Web novel fanfiction TG the good. The latest of the latest. Chapter 161 Zhu Lengxin was forced to retreat by He Chuan's aura. I didn't expect that I would still underestimate the martial arts world of the Central Plains. I thought that I would be able to rule the world after becoming a saint cultivator. I didn't expect that there would be an expert like you in the Central Plains other than the Guma sect. It seems that I have to use my last move. Today, I'll let you know what fear is. Zhu Lengxin's expression became more ferocious like he had made an important decision. Oh, are you ready to risk your life? He Chuan immediately retracted his aura. He just wanted to force the other party to fight with all his might. Suddenly, the dark clouds that had been blown away in the sky gathered again, and the demonic energy around Zhu Lengxin's body became even more potent. He knelt on the ground and looked up at the sky as if he was making some prayer. He mumbled to himself. Yu Zhuang looked at He Chuan worriedly. Because the wisest thing to do now was to interrupt Zhu Lengxin's sacrificial ritual directly. Otherwise, wouldn't they fail miserably in a ditch if there were any accidents? The moon in the sky seemed to have turned scarlet, and an endless evil aura gathered from all directions, continuously pouring into Zhu Lengxin's chest. At the foot of the mountain, Wei Qiancheng and the others were still waiting for news. Suddenly, the corpses on the ground seemed to come to life and began to wriggle. COR Corpse Manipulation Some of the more timid soldiers retreated when they saw this. They could fight against powerful experts, but they would be afraid of the unknown. Don't panic, everyone. It must be the evil spirits from the outer realms can't you see that they didn't get up at all? How can any corpses be coming back to life? Wei Qianqing hurriedly tried to calm his men down. After the reminder, everyone quieted down. When they went to the dead bodies, they all turned into mummies without exception. What's going on? Wei Qianqing turned around and asked the imperial court Xiantian master. It should be the White Lotus cult's evil technique. They use dead bodies as sacrifices to attract external energy into their bodies. One of the grandmasters explained. No one knew the details of the reason, but it was not like fooling around. Wei Qianqing heaved a sigh of relief. He was terrified that it was something unclean. He had said that he was not afraid, but he was actually scared to death. He Chuan was still very calm as he looked at the scene in front of him. He had no intention of stopping it. He wanted to see how powerful Zhu Lengxin's strongest form was. About half an hour later. Zhu Lengxin he should not have said that because he did not have any human characteristics. They were like pure beasts, uncivilized ape men. In fact, Zhu Lengxin didn't want to do this either, because once he sacrificed himself, he would never be able to turn back into a human. He could only maintain this non-human and non-demon image. I've already advanced to the Saint Cultivator second stage. So what if you're a Saint Cultivator? There's still a gap between saints cultivators. Zhu Wuxin laughed evilly as if she was going to swallow He Chuan into her stomach. You're right. There's indeed a gap between saint cultivators. I'll show you what a gap is. He Chuan activated the Sunflower Bible and used his true essence without reservation. He had a powerful aura that seemed to be able to split open mountains and earth, as well as an inexplicable feminine aura. It was this strange change that made Zhu Lengxin, who was extremely arrogant, very sad. This dissonant feeling was like eating a fly in the middle of a meal. At this moment, Zhu Lengxin was already an arrow on the bow and had no choice but to take the initiative to rush toward He Chuan. In an instant, the two of them exchanged blows. Zhu Lengxin's expression changed drastically. The tide like lethal hidden force that came from his body had already made him lose all thoughts. The seething, ocean-like, and mountain-like power instantly drowned him. His internal organs were all impacted. If he didn't use his vital essence to protect his heart, he would have died. The vital essence in He Chuan's body was deep and overbearing, and it could even twist objects into a fine powder. Who the hell are you? Why am I still not your match even though I've become a saint cultivator second stage? Zhu Lengxin was in complete despair. The man in front of him was terrifyingly strong, and from the relaxed look on his face, it seemed that he had not used all his strength. It seems that this is your limit. 
even the legendary gods and devils are only at this level. He Chuan had lost his patience. He took the initiative to attack. He flashed behind his opponent and pressed the Mingmen acupoint on his opponent's back. He gathered nearly half of his internal energy, and a hiss could be heard through the air. The power of his finger was no small matter. A dejected sound rang out. Like a leather ball with a hole, Zhu Lengxin's vital essence started to leak out. No. I'm willing to hand over the position of cult leader. If you want money and beautiful women, or if you want to be the emperor, I'm fine with it. Zhu Lengxin was scared. The insufferably arrogant leader of the White Lotus cult begged for mercy with all his might. He Chuan was very disdainful of him. He had thought that Zhu Lengxin would be tougher before the end. In any case, he was an expert in the outer realms that made people tremble with fear, but he didn't even have a bit of backbone. Saint Cultivator Second Stage Saint Cultivator Half-Step Saint Cultivator By the time He Chuan threw him to the side, Zhu Lengxin had already become a cripple. Even a Ho Tian Cultivator could easily kill him. You're the real devil. Zhu Lengxin wished he could eat He Chuan alive. He turns from a Saint Cultivator to a disabled person. That kind of feeling was no better than death. You have no right to say that. How many innocent lives have died in your hands? I'm just doing what I have to do. He Chuan's state of mind wouldn't be affected by these two sentences. That's right, what could be more despairing than being reduced to a cripple? That was to die in despair. Liener, go and kill him. He Chuan would not allow Zhu Lengxin to continue living. Who knew if he had other ways to recover his cultivation? This kind of person must disappear from the world. Kai Lien was stunned for a moment as if she had not heard him clearly. Until He Chuan repeated it again. Only then did she confirm that she hadn't misheard him. He Chuan had never forced her to do anything she didn't like. But now, she was asked to kill someone. Young master, I dare not. Kai Lien said in a trembling voice. Usually, she didn't even dare to kill a chicken, but now she was asked to kill people. This is a process that you must go through. There are so many innocent lives that have died at his hands. By killing him, you are indirectly saving countless lives. He Chuan's tone was unyielding. Because if Kai Lien wanted to become an expert, she had to go through a baptism of blood. Kai Lien more or less knew He Chuan's temper, and she had to kill Zhu Wuxin today. Taking a deep breath, Kai Lien picked up an iron sword from the ground and slowly walked in front of Zhu Lingxin. The iron sword pointed at Zhu Lingxin's chest, but it couldn't stab down. Miss, this senior is right. If you don't kill him today, many innocent people will die at the hands of the outer realm demons in the future. You should be able to tell which is more important. Yu Xuan also tried to persuade her. The iron sword finally stabbed into Zhu Lingxin's chest. The iron sword fell to the ground with a clang, and Kai Lien ran to the side to vomit. Chapter, 162 Zhu Lengxin, the leader of the White Lotus cult, would never have imagined that he would die at the hands of a Khanate Xientian. He Chuan knew that this was only the beginning. From the way Zhu Lengxin forcefully increased his strength, he was definitely related to the legendary gods. However, if he wanted to understand the strength of a god, he would have to encounter the true body to know. It's all thanks to the senior's help, this surname Yu is endlessly grateful. Yu Zhuang cupped his fists and said. It was just a coincidence. I didn't come here to save you. He Chuan still had a cold look on his face. Yu Zhuang couldn't help but feel a little embarrassed. However, he could understand that experts all had weird tempers. He Chuan walked in front of Zhu Lengxin's corpse and used his divine sense to check the changes in his body. It was indeed different from the structure of humans, but it was very similar. It seemed that this group of so-called gods and demons was just a mysterious race that no one knew about. They were not out of the scope of humans, nor were they gods or demons or ghosts. The reason why the White Lotus cult was able to rise in such a short period of time and agree to the outer realm martial arts world was most likely related to Zhu Lingxin's deal with the so-called gods and demons. When he had time, he could go to the outer realms. He wanted to see how powerful the so-called gods and devils were. 
However, this also indirectly showed that this world was not as simple as he thought. In the past, when he was cultivating in seclusion in the scripture pavilion, he had been like a frog in a well. As expected, it was good for him to come out and see the outside world. Even if he was a saint cultivator sixth stage, he could not be too careless. There was always someone better, and a mountain beyond a mountain. The Gumu sect was not the only sect in the martial arts world of the Central Plains. There should be more powerful hidden sects. Therefore, he needed to continue to work hard to improve his strength and try to break through to the Saint Cultivator realm as soon as possible. Just as he was about to leave, he suddenly remembered that this temple was also very special. In addition, Zhu Lengxin had just performed a sacrifice. If he signed in here, would he be able to get good rewards? Sign in. Ding. Congratulations to the host for successfully signing in. You are rewarded with one book Taishan scripture. A notification sound rang in He Chuan's mind. He quickly checked the reward. However, he realized that it was different from before. The Taishan scripture was different from other martial arts he had learned. It was a Taoist scripture, an internal cultivation method for cultivators. Other martial arts books were fighting techniques and martial arts secret books. Who can write such an excellent scripture, the hoary head Taishian scripture? This was obviously not within the scope of martial arts, so He Chuan was very surprised by this reward. The Taishian scripture was not only a cultivation technique. It also included swordsmanship, qing gong, internal strength, and other unique skills. If one successfully mastered it, he would definitely be able to look down on the world. The cultivation method was no longer the four levels but directly transformed into the nine heavenly layers. Every layer heavenly layer had its own corresponding ultimate skill. On the first page, it was written, the first order of the Xian is bounded by the Xian, and the boundless lines are like the sky. Yin and Yang were unified by one Yang, and all things were shaped. They Fangzhou's family was composed of three people. They say the number is 99, complementing the group, for its combination number. There are 81 poems, and each year is pure and honest. Could it be that he could really shatter the void after learning it? However, He Chuan didn't have time to cultivate now. He'd better study it when he returned to the inn. In the dungeon. The imprisoned experts looked at the door that was slowly opening with anticipation. He wasn't dressed like an alien monk. It was an expert wearing the robes of the imperial court. When Zhu Lingxin was making the sacrifice, the strong evil aura gave them a bad feeling. Because the aura was too powerful, their blood seemed to be flowing out in reverse. They didn't expect the demons of the outer realm to be so powerful. At that time, everyone thought that they had no hope of escaping. You've all suffered. The demons of the White Lotus cult have been exterminated. Everyone, please follow me out. An expert from the imperial court said. This sentence was no different from the sound of nature. We're saved. We're finally saved. That's great. The people who had been locked up for months cried tears of joy. They had thought that they could only wait for death to come. The group walked out of the dungeon and greedily breathed in the fresh air. Then, they were shocked by the scene in front of them. The place where Zhu Lingxin and He Chuan were fighting was barren for dozens of miles, and the cracks on the ground were bottomless. What kind of battle had happened here? Even a half-step saint cultivator couldn't do that. Everyone, the White Lotus cult's matter has come to an end. You may leave. The people of the imperial court returned to the imperial court, and the people of the sect returned to the sect. In short, they went back to their own homes and didn't need to stay here in the cold wind. Yangzhou City. In the magistrate's hall. Wei Qianqing personally poured a cup of tea for Yu Zhuang. He he, it's all thanks to your help. Otherwise, I would have lost my life as a magistrate. The sword hanging on his neck was finally moved away. He had not been eating and sleeping well these days. He had been suffering every day. Brother-in-law, you don't have to be so polite. I can't just watch my sister become a widow. Besides, the Gumu sect is obliged to help exterminate this foreign cult that is poisoning the martial arts world in the Central Plains. Unfortunately, I'm not their match. 
If it weren't for Senior's sudden appearance, I'm afraid we would only have met at the Bridge of Helplessness. Yu Zhuang had once rejoiced over the fact that he had become a half-step saint cultivator. There was only a sense of urgency in his heart. When he returned to Guma's sect, he would continue to concentrate on his cultivation and strive to break through to saint cultivator as soon as possible. Because a half-step saint cultivator was no different from an ant in front of a saint cultivator. He didn't even have the right to attack. It was an uncrossable gap. I wonder who that senior cultivator is. I can also write a memorial to report to His Majesty. Wei Qiancheng wanted to get to the bottom of He Chuan's background and then report it to the imperial court. I'm not sure. I've never seen this person in the secluded sects which the Gumu sect is connected to. His martial arts style is domineering, but it also has a hint of gentleness and strangeness. It's obvious that he has mastered two types of martial arts to the extreme. Yu Xuang couldn't see through He Chuan's martial arts. This was because a saint cultivator was already at the peak of the Great Tao. A casual punch or kick would be enough to destroy a city. They didn't need to use any fancy moves. Moreover, judging from He Chuan's behavior, he didn't want to deal with people from the imperial court at all, so Wei Qianqing couldn't win him over. It's a pity, I still wanted to have a drink and chat with him, and also report the credit to the imperial court. Wei Qianqing rubbed his palms together. He really wanted to have a chat with Yichuan. It was okay to only get familiar with him. Brother-in-law, you shouldn't think about this matter anymore. Not long after the battle ended, that senior left spiritual god temple with his servant girl. It's obvious that he doesn't want to be disturbed. I'm going back to Gumu's sect too. Please send my regards to my sister. Yu Xuan picked up his steel-heavy sword and got up to leave. Wei Qianqing didn't expect Yu Xuan to be in such a hurry and had wanted to ask him to stay for a meal. However, Yu Xuan was in a hurry to cultivate in the Gumu sect, so he was not in the mood to eat. In an inn in Yangzhou city. He Chuan was still the same. He held a cup of tea made by Kai Lian in his hand and sat by the window, observing all kinds of passers-by. The tea is slightly bitter. I'm afraid that Liener has forgotten to pour her first pot of water and is still affected by the killing. He took a sip of tea and noticed that Kai Lian was not paying attention. I'm sorry, I'll make a new pot of tea right away. Kai Lian seemed to wake up from a dream and quickly got up to make tea again. Life is like tea. It's not only sweet but also bitter. You need to learn to grow. He Chuan stopped Kai Lian and said earnestly. Thank you for clearing my doubts, young master. Liener understand. Kai Lian solemnly bowed to He Chuan. Chapter, 163 After receiving Wei Qianqing's memorial, Zhou Shimin already had a rough guess in his heart. Because from the description, it should be He Chuan and Kai Lian. This not only relieved him of the burden in his heart but also gave him a sense of joy. Because He Chuan was still on the side of the great Zhou dynasty. Fortunately, they didn't send out Princess Changning. Otherwise, something might have happened when she faces Zhu Lengxin from the White Lotus cult. He immediately summoned the important officials of the court to the imperial study to discuss how to encircle and annihilate the remnants of the White Lotus cult. The cloud floats while one drinks, who is drinking alone under the moon. In the blink of an eye, another two years passed. He Chuan didn't take Kai Lian to other places. Instead, he bought a house outside Yangzhou to start an ordinary people's life, experiencing the various changes of the world. He was focused on cultivating the Taishian scripture now. According to the scripture, the Daoist scripture was about returning to nature. First of all, he had to enter the mortal world and experience the various forms of the mortal. Only then would he be able to gain some enlightenment. He looked at the neatly arranged seedlings and could not help but smile from the bottom of his heart. He was self-sufficient and grow all the vegetables himself. Young master, please have a cup of tea. Kai Lian came over with a cup of tea and said in a soft voice. It was worth mentioning that under his guidance, she had already entered the ranks of half-step saint cultivator. She was no longer the kind little palace maid who didn't dare to kill a chicken. During this period of time, she followed He Chuan's instructions and robbed the rich to help the poor, and caught all kinds of felons. 
the people of the martial arts world gave her the nickname Hundred Flower Lady. Today, I'll take Lienar to go for a boat ride on the lake and see the beautiful spring scenery of Yangzhou Lake. He Chuan finished the hot tea in one gulp. Because of years of cultivation, his internal organs were already far beyond that of ordinary people. He would be fine even if poison entered his throat. Moreover, he felt that the tea was more fragrant this way. Hearing that they were going to Yangzhou Lake, Kai Lian immediately showed a happy smile. She wanted to go there to have a look, but He Chuan was very strict with her cultivation, so she didn't have time to go. You're only one step away from becoming a saint cultivator. It's just that you can't cross the barrier yet. Put your cultivation aside for now. I'll teach you how to read and write tomorrow. He Chuan knew that Kai Lian was like Princess Changning. He had already broken through to the saint cultivator realm. What he needed to do now was to minimize the danger. To avoid energy deviation. The brush and ink shed tears in the mortal world, the mist has hidden in the void, looking for a cause and effect. Everyone's fate is different and distinguishable, but it is the root of love. She brushed her clothes and rolled up her sleeves. Her tears fell into her five fingers, and it felt cold to the touch. Yesterday was different from today. A superficial reputation is useless. Playing the zither, different people had different hearts, they just sank in it. The courtesan's sweet yet sad singing voice came from the largest pleasure boat on Yangzhou Lake. There were several small boats surrounding it, and countless scholars wanted to be the guests of the courtesan. He Chuan lay on the boat, his legs resting on Kai Lian's lap. No one was paddling their boat, but it always moving past the most beautiful scenery. Kai Lian tapped He Chuan's calf as she listened to the pleasant singing of the courtesan. Her little head kept bouncing. Their mood was also relaxed. If Lienner likes it, let's buy a seven-string zither on the way back. When you're free, you can sing a little song for this young master to listen to. He Chuan's eyes were closed, but the entire Yangzhou city was covered by him. He would be the first to know if anything happened. I don't know how to sing. Young master, please don't make things difficult for me. Kai Lian quickly shook her head and said. He Chuan smiled indifferently. He had just said it casually. He stretched out his hand to stroke Kai Lian's black hair. This kind little palace maid could only maintain her true self in front of him. Suddenly, He Chuan noticed a group of people barging into the Yangzhou magistrate's residence. It seemed like there was something important. Wei Qianqing hurriedly and respectfully welcomed them into the room. They were the cavalrymen sent by the imperial court to deliver the decree. Lord Wei, His Majesty has ordered you to find the expert who eliminated the White Lotus cult. The messenger said. Although Zhou Shimin had He Chuan to help him extend his life, he had to deal with court affairs every day. He couldn't take the time to take care of his body, and now, he basically didn't pay much attention to court affairs. For the time being, Crown Prince Chengen was in charge of one side. However, Zhou Shimin understood the current situation. The Crown Prince had not been baptized and could not take charge of one side. Even with the assistance of a saint cultivator like Changning, he was still too young. Changning also had a child's heart and needed someone's help. He Chuan was the only person who could set things right at a critical moment. I've only met him once. Where can I find him? Wei Qianqing said helplessly. He had only met this mysterious expert once. Now, he was asked to go and change the topic. Where was he going to find him? Of course, Zhou Shimin already knew about this problem. The cavalryman in charge of passing on the message left a sealed secret letter to tell Wei Qianqing that the mysterious expert had returned to find him. If he did not come, Zhou Shimin would not blame him. Hearing this, Wei Qianqing finally heaved a sigh of relief. He was really aggrieved as Yang Zhou magistrate, and he had been on edge all day. It wasn't easy to get rid of the remnants of the White Lotus cult, yet he still had to help find the mysterious powerhouse. He had heard from Yu Zhuang that the other party was a saint cultivator. Killing him was as easy as killing an ant. If that mysterious expert was unhappy, he wouldn't even have a place to cry. People will die of old age or illness, it was something unavoidable. He Chuan crossed his legs and took a big bite of the apple. 
After listening to the conversation between Wei Qiancheng and the messenger, he already understood. This time, Zhou Shimin really couldn't make it. Even the great golden immortal wouldn't be able to save him. He was probably forcefully hanging on, and who knew when he would die. Mother once told me that everyone has to go through life, old age, sickness, and death, and then reincarnate. Kai Lian didn't have a deep understanding of death. He didn't find it scary. Perhaps it was because she had killed people who deserved to die, and she had no relatives or friends by her side, so she had never experienced life and death. Reincarnation Perhaps there is no reincarnation, and death represents the end. He Chuan didn't know if reincarnation really existed. Perhaps the research on reincarnation in the real world was for this. Could people live forever? This was an eternal topic that had been discussed for so many years without any results. Some people said that there was no such thing as eternal life. No matter how strong you were, your life would come to an end one day. Some people felt that the limit could be broken, and as long as they touched the limit, they would be able to obtain true immortality. The night was quiet. Wei Qianqing was dealing with official business in the study. He could be considered a good official who was diligent and loved the people, but he was not an honest official. As the saying goes, when the water is clear, there will be no fish. He first had to ensure that he and his family could live a good life, and then he would do his best to help the people solve their difficulties. He could take the money that he should take, but he wouldn't take a single cent that he shouldn't. This code of conduct made Wei Qianqing feel like a fish in water. Suddenly, the space in the room began to distort. A figure appeared in the study. Men. There's an assassin. Wei Qianqing shouted out of instinct. No need to shout. The people outside can't hear you. I'm here to get the letter. It was He Chuan. Chapter, 164 Wei Qianqing was relieved to hear that He Chuan had specially come to get the secret letter. Looking closely, it was indeed the young master who had saved him at the foot of the mountain. He quickly took the secret letter and handed it to He Chuan. If you don't mind, I'll immediately order people to prepare food and wine. Before Wei Qianqing could finish his sentence, he realized that He Chuan had already disappeared. If it wasn't for the fact that the secret letter was no longer there, he would have thought that he was dreaming. He's indeed an otherworldly expert. He comes without a warning and leaves without leaving a shadow. Wei Qianqing muttered to himself. Back in his house, He Chuan opened a secret letter from Zhou Shimin. To beloved minister, He Chuan. Although the people of the world bless me by saying long live the emperor, I'm very clear in my heart that to be able to live for a hundred years is already considered a long. After all, the world is waiting for the next ruler, and it's impossible to stop governing. Although Crown Prince Chengen is handling the kingdom well, I know that his heart is unstable and that he will probably cause trouble. So, I hope that when necessary, you can set things right. It wasn't an imperial edict or an order, but a request from a friend from many years ago. When we meet again, I guess you will probably meet me in front of my mausoleum. I hope you'll bring some good wine and tell me about the world's wonders. Why bother? After He Chuan finished reading the secret letter, he recalled the past. It was as if Zhou Shimin had returned to his status as a prince, going to the library to read books every day. In the blink of an eye, they were separated by heaven and earth. He silently lit the letter. What was written in the letter was more like an old friend reminiscing about the past, without a high and mighty tone. It seemed that Zhou Shimin knew him very well and knew that it was useless to use imperial power to suppress him. He might as well ask for help as a friend. I hope you can be a good emperor and live up to my expectations. Another autumn arrived. He Chuan shook his head when he heard the cries from Yangzhou City. Because he knew that it was not a family member who had passed away, but the emperor of the great Zhou dynasty, Zhou Shimin. Young master, is there an epidemic in Yangzhou city? How did so many people die? I just went into the city to buy some things and saw many people wearing mourning clothes. Kai Lian heard the crying and asked in confusion. Silly girl, it's not crying, but his majesty has died. Su Xian rubbed Kai Lian's head, and an inexplicable emotion rose in his heart. 
When Kai Lien heard that the emperor had passed away, she didn't feel much in her heart. In her opinion, it didn't matter who the emperor was. It was fine as long as she could stay by He Chuan's side for the rest of her life. If the government didn't force the commoners to cry, they wouldn't be crying in mourning clothes. The commoners did not even know the emperor's name. Zhou Ximin was considered a wise ruler. Otherwise, it would have been better if the commoners did not curse him behind his back. Young master, I feel that I can't suppress my cultivation recently. Can I start to break through? Kai Lien didn't have the mood to care about the emperor's life or death. She would not be able to cry even if she wanted to. Yes, my state of mind is almost there. Tonight, copy the Taishan scripture ten times. Tomorrow, I will protect you. After Liena has broken through, we will go to the next place. He Chuan put his hands behind his back. On the whole, Crown Prince Chengen managed the country quite well. There was no need for him to return, so he would travel around first. Where are we going? Even though Kai Lien was reluctant to part with the little things that had happened in Yangzhou City, she still followed He Chuan's words. Outer Space He Chuan looked at the fallen leaves in the sky and thought back to the strange things that Zhu Wuxin had done. He was prepared to take a trip to the Outer Realm. While understanding the local conditions and customs, he would also search for the legendary gods and devils. He wanted to see what was so special about them. The oasis was accompanied by yellow sand, and birds were dancing with the camel bells. The extremely high temperature was only one step away from the normal temperature, which was very unique. The sand dunes in the desert were clear and layered, and the lines of the hills were smooth and smooth. The sand slopes on the leeward were like water, and the sand flowed like a river on the leeward. At the peak of the sand mountain, in the depths of the desert, one could quietly observe the magnificence of the desert and witness the scenery of the sunset dyeing the sand. The setting sun was close to the ridges of the desert, and the earth was dark against it, revealing a layer of dark red. The waves of the desert that held the setting sun solidified, like a sleeping sea. In the desert, if one could not find an oasis, it was easy to die. Therefore, even though the outer realm desert scenery was beautiful, it was extremely lacking in resources. This was also the reason why the tribes and countries of the outer realms were eyeing the great Zhou dynasty covetously. Compared to the land in the central plains, the outer realms were still desolate. Every year, there would be people dying of hunger or thirst. Two figures appeared in the boundless desert. Young master, the desert is so desolate. We've walked for so many days, but we haven't even seen a single person. The two of them were He Chuan and Kai Lan. Kailan had successfully broken through to the saint cultivation realm a while ago, and He Chuan had taken her to the outer realm from the central plains. Of course, no one lives in the desert. Once we pass through this desert, we'll reach the place where the alien tribes live. There are grasslands and water sources there. He Chuan explained. Kailan stuck out her tongue in embarrassment. She had thought that there were people living in the desert. She was still at a disadvantage due to her lack of culture. Under He Chuan's guidance, Kai Lan had already learned how to read and write. But she still didn't read enough books. The temperature difference between day and night in the desert was extremely great. It was extremely hot during the day, but it was so cold at night that it could freeze people to death. However, it had no effect on saint cultivators, because they were immune to the cold and heat at their stage. The unlucky tiger died at Kai Lan's hands and became their dinner. She was already used to killing people. When she killed animals, her heart did not waver at all. Ever since she started practicing martial arts, her need for meat had also increased. Young master, I heard that the tiger bone soup is very nourishing. You should drink more later. Kai Lan packed up the tiger meat, especially removed the tiger's bones and whips, and boiled them in the soup. Do you know what this tiger bone soup is good for? He Chuan didn't know whether to laugh or cry. I heard that it's good for your health. I heard it from a stall owner. When I was in Hangzhou, I wanted to buy some for you, but I went a little late and didn't make it. Kai Lan replied in a serious manner. She didn't know what the tiger bone was for, but it was definitely good for the body. 
Back then, the stall owner had promised her that he would maintain some kind of relationship with her. Anyway, she didn't really understand. Even with each one's state of mind, he almost couldn't hold back his laughter. One had to admit that the little palace maid was really cute. He Chuan realized that if Kai Lan wasn't by his side, life would be less fun. After a while, he drank the tiger bone soup in one gulp. This kind of thing was indeed good for the body. He Chuan could feel the warm current spreading through his limbs and bones before being absorbed by his vital essence. As for the other functions, it wouldn't affect him at all as long as he didn't deliberately trigger the effects of the tiger bone soup. Kai Lan held the tiger's thigh and ate it with great relish. After eating and drinking to his heart's content, He Chuan, which was rare, did not meditate and cultivate. Instead, he lay on the yellow sand and looked at the Milky Way hanging in the sky. From here, he could see it more clearly and seemed closer. Kai Lan was curled up in his arms, her little hand pointing at a certain shining star from time to time, asking if there was a story. Previously, when He Chuan was bored, he had told Kai Lan the story of the cowherd and the weaver girl. At that time, the little girl had been crying and almost wanted to settle the score with the Queen Mother. Chapter 165 In the great desert of Yubei, the Nur tribe believed that there was no enemy in the north. They did not recognize the five grains and only ate fish and perilla. It was said that the people of the central plains were ignorant, but the people of the tribes in the outer regions were even more ignorant. They didn't even have a surname in their lives. Only used a simple name. Their clothing was also very backward. Some people wore animal skins, while most people wore clothes woven from the most primitive hay. From this, it could be seen that the status of the clansmen who wore animal skins was relatively higher. They had always been on guard against outsiders. Young master, this group of people is really strange. Why do they keep staring at us? Kai Lian hid behind He Chuan in fear. With her current power, all the people of the Nur clan combined wouldn't be her opponent. However, she wouldn't kill innocent people. More importantly, the look in her eyes showed she was a little scared. It was as if they wanted to eat people. Don't be afraid, they rarely see outsiders. They are just cautious. He Chuan was still as indifferent as ever. Kai Lian was still a little scared, and she hugged his arm as she walked forward. The Nur tribe was only a small tribe in the desert. The significant tribe was the Xiongnu tribe. They suddenly emerged and controlled all the tribes in the desert, often attacking the borders of the great Zhou dynasty. They smashed, robbed, burned, raped, and pillaged, all kinds of evil things. They dreamed that one day, they would take over the great Zhou dynasty. The White Lotus cult had developed from here. As long as you showed some tricks to fool the tribes in the desert, the leaders of the tribes would regard you as a celestial being and provide you with good food and drinks. Fine wine and delicacies, all kinds of beauties, money, and jewelry, you can choose. Their degree of ignorance was no better than that of clansmen. Of course, other than the allure of money and jewelry, there was no need to look at beauty and food. Woo woo. The bugle call for the tribes to gather sound. Everyone's spirits were lifted, and they immediately followed the source of the sound. That was the place of the leader of the Nur tribe. He Chuan and Kai Lian followed at the back of this group of people. Is there a festival? Kai Lian guessed. A large-scale gathering in the central plains was either a war or a large-scale festival. There was no sound of horse hooves nearby, so it was obviously not a battle between tribes. I don't know much about the history of the Nur tribe, so I need to see it with my own eyes. It's better to travel 10,000 miles than to read 10,000 books. This saying is true. He Chuan shook his head. The great Zhou dynasty's history books only briefly mentioned it and did not have detailed records. Only when he personally came to see it did he realize that it was far behind than he had imagined. They didn't even know how to breed cows and sheep. A stone altar was built, surrounding a dense crowd of people from the tribe. They knelt on the ground with a pious expressions in their eyes. They were holding their heads in their hands and mumbling something. On the stone altar, the tribe leader had three strands of wolf hair on his head. There was also a woman wearing a gorgeous animal fur coat. 
she looked like the tribe leader's wife. The couple stood on both sides. In the middle was a woman in gorgeous clothes, which was similar to the clothes of the White Lotus cult when they invaded the Central Plains. They should be the remnants of the White Lotus cult in the Outer Realms when Zhu Lengxin was killed, the Imperial Court had besieged the remnants of the White Lotus cult. Many sect members ran back to the Outer Realm. They relied on their mediocre skills to make a living everywhere. They didn't dare to go to the more powerful tribes, so they could only find small places like this and prepare to revive. The mud originates from the chaos, and the white cult appears in a golden age. The white lotus cult's followers shouted. The mud originates from the chaos. Everyone in the tribe shouted. Should we kill the demons of the white lotus cult? Kai Lien blinked her big eyes. She no longer had any psychological burden in killing bad people. It's good that Liener makes the decision. You need to have a scale in your heart. He Chuan shook his head. He couldn't be bothered to deal with such an ant-like existence. There were too many fish that had escaped the net, and he had no interest in clearing them out. Moreover, the other party hadn't even reached the inborn realm. He probably didn't have a high status in the White Lotus cult, so there was no value in fighting her. Kai Lien pulled herself back and forth in her heart, not knowing if she should kill the other party. Despicable Central Plainsman! How dare you disrespect the gods! Kneel. The White Lotus cult's followers believed that with his ability and the protection of so many people in his tribe, he would have no problem killing the two Central Plainsmen. Some people always like to walk on the road to death. Just now, Kai Lien was still struggling to decide if she should get rid of the other party, but now, she had the best excuse. Buzz. The water autumn sword at her waist was instantly unsheathed, and the tip of the sword was pointed at the enemy. This was the sword He Chuan had received from the check-in system as a birthday gift for Kai Lien. Kai Lien named the sword Water Autumn Sword, and she would not use it. How dare you be disrespectful to the Divine Envoy! Kill them all! The tribe leader waved the bone cane in his hand, which should be made of the spine of some large animal. The warriors of the tribe held their weapons, knocked their most primitive bows, and immediately aimed at He Chuan and his partner. Keep her alive and see if she knows anything about the gods. He Chuan was prepared to make a last resort and ask if the god fiends were in the outer realm. Just as he finished speaking, Kai Lien left an afterimage on the spot like a ghost. She used the evil warding sword technique, and her entire body was so fast that it was blurry. Other than He Chuan, everyone else could only hear the sound of the sword in the air. Ah! Screams rose one after another. Kai Lien crossed each one of them in the blink of an eye, and a long wound appeared on the wrists of the tribal warriors, which were holding weapons. Blood slowly flowed out. The White Lotus cult's followers saw that the situation was not good and was about to turn around and escape. Bang! Kai Lien kicked her in the butt, and the White Lotus cult's members fell flat on their faces. The Water Autumn Sword was placed on her shoulder and pointed at her neck. Any slight movement would cause blood to splatter on the spot. Lady, please spare me. The disciples of the White Lotus cult knelt on the ground, their voices trembling. My young master has something to ask you. Hurry up and get over there. Seeing that she didn't even have a backbone, Kai Lien instantly lost interest. The tribe leader stood in place, not knowing what to do. The oracle had been defeated. Who's in charge of the White Lotus cult now? He Chuan asked the disciple in front of him. Your Excellency, the White Lotus cult has been divided after the death of the leader. No one can take charge of the White Lotus cult. The White Lotus cult's followers didn't dare to hide anything, since it wasn't a secret anyway. Moreover, the elders had all been killed. The White Lotus cult only existed in name. It would probably be unable to recover even after a few hundred years. Do you know about the rapid growth of strength? He Chuan continued to ask. I have low position and can't touch the core, but I heard from the leader above that the White Lotus cult has a secret chamber. If you want to make a breakthrough, you have to go in. Those who can survive will be able to improve their strength. This wasn't a secret in the White Lotus cult, but she was too weak to go in and improve her strength. How much do you know about Zhu Lingxin? I don't know anything about the cult leader. 
I don't even know the elders of the cult. You can leave. He Chuan noticed that she didn't reek of blood, so she should be an underling of the White Lotus cult. She couldn't be considered evil. Chapter, 166 God's Messengers You must be God's messengers. Seeing that the White Lotus cult's followers had run faster than rabbits, the tribe leader immediately knelt down and called them oracles. He Chuan was speechless. If a person who knew martial arts was the so-called God's messenger, the people of the Nur tribe would probably wear out their knees after walking around the central plain of the martial arts world. Because the martial arts world in the central plains was full of oracles, they could only walk on their knees. We're not God's messengers. We only know little martial arts. You've all been deceived by the White Lotus cult. Kai Lien quickly explained. She could kill people, but she felt uncomfortable being God's messenger and having people worship her every day. The atmosphere was very awkward. The people of the Nur tribe didn't dare to get up. He Chuan and the other man didn't admit that they were the messengers of God. What about the belief of the people of the Nur tribe? What about their God? Let's go take a look at the White Lotus cult's headquarters and ask them how to get to the Xiongnu tribe. He Chuan didn't have time to care about the belief of the Nur tribe. He had to continue looking for clues about the gods and devils. After the leader of the tribe showed them the way, He Chuan and Kai Lien continued their journey. In the imperial palace of the great Zhou dynasty. Princess Changning sat in her bedroom, the petals in her hand falling continuously. Master missed me, master didn't miss me, master missed me. The floor was already covered with many bright petals. It seemed that Princess Changning's condition had been going on for a long time. There was only one petal left, and it just so happened that he didn't miss her. Princess Changning rolled her eyes and tore the petal in two. Master missed me as expected. The palace maids around her covered their mouths and didn't dare to laugh out loud. The princess was really good at deceiving herself. They were all new palace maids who had just entered the palace a few years ago and were very curious about the master that Princess Changning spoke of. According to the older palace maids, Princess Changning was a martial saint, so she didn't need to marry. No one could control her marriage. A saint cultivator's master must be very powerful. Eldest princess, the empress requests an audience. A young eunuch came in and reported. Call her in. Princess Changning waved her sleeve, and the petals on the floor disappeared. After a while, the empress came in with tears in her eyes. She threw herself into Princess Changning's arms and began to cry. What was going on? Why did she start crying? Did Sister Qingyu suffer any grievances? Did Qingyin hit you? It's not that His Majesty hit me. It's that I've made His Majesty unhappy and he wants to strip me of my position as the empress, after the empress finished speaking, she began to cry again, constantly wiping her tears. All of you may leave if you dare to say a word today, you will be flogged to death. Princess Changning waved her hand and motioned for all her personal palace maids to leave. Since ancient times, the matter of abolishing the empress had always been extraordinary. Only if the empress had lost her virtue and talent would the emperors of the past generations depose empress. The current empress was the eldest daughter of the Fang clan, personally bestowed by Zhou Shimin. Fang Luqing was proficient in zither, chess, calligraphy, and painting. She had the characteristics of a gentlewoman from Jiangnan. Zhou Shimin, Qin Lihua, and even Changning all thought that she was a good girl. Under Fang Luqing's management, the harem was well organized and there were no conflicts. It had been maintained for many years. How could they not be shocked and they were suddenly going to be abolished? However, Princess Changning didn't think too much about it. It was normal for a couple to say angry words when they had a conflict. Besides, with her and her mother, how could she let Qingyin depose the Empress? Little sister Qingyin, please explain in detail. I want to know what exactly happened. Princess Changning said softly. If there was really no other way, she would have to speak up personally. Otherwise, it would cause dissatisfaction among the civil and military officials, and the great Zhou dynasty could not enter a state of unrest. Fang Luqing had the backing of the prime minister of three dynasties, Fang Yuanqing. If things didn't go well, it might be difficult to end this. 
I'm afraid Sister Changning won't believe it, but a few months ago, His Majesty recruited a Western Region singer into the palace. She was indeed quite pretty, and His Majesty liked her very much. Anyway, there are so many women in the harem, so it doesn't matter if there's a Western Region singer. Fang Luqing shook her head, her eyes filled with disappointment. Chining trusted Fang Luqing's character. She wasn't the type to get jealous. There were at least dozens of beauties in Chengen's harem, if not three thousand. She would probably die of jealousy. For the next few days, His Majesty has been spending his time in the chamber of the Western Region singers. Because of this, the other sisters have been quite resentful. Yesterday, noble consort Qin went to His Majesty to complain, but she didn't expect His Majesty to be so angry and even scold her. Today, His Majesty came to find me and insisted that I have no talent and virtue and that I need to give up the position of the Empress. Fang Luqin briefly explained the situation. After hearing this, Princess Changning's heart had already sunk to the bottom. Noble consort Qin was General Qin's younger sister. At the time, it was Zhou Shimin who had weighed the pros and cons and deliberately promised her to Qingyan to ensure the balance of the great Zhou dynasty. Noble consort Qin was usually a little domineering and liked to be jealous, but it wasn't a big problem and she hadn't made any big mistakes. Qingyan's actions had not only offended the Fang family, but also the Qin family. He was simply making a fool of himself. Didn't you go find Mother Empress Dowager? Chiming had a bit of Hichuan style. She didn't pay any attention to the matters in the palace and cultivated all day in her sleeping chamber. Occasionally, she would return to the library to read and miss the time she spent with Hichuan. Qin Lihua was basically in charge of the harem. After all, she was the Empress Dowager. As a mother, Chengen would at least listen. Sister Changning, you may not know this, but a few months ago, His Majesty specially built a Daoist temple for Empress Dowager to go to and enjoy her life. Empress Dowager has already gone over a few days ago, and I can't find her even if I wanted to. Fang Luqing pitifully said. Chengen had clearly planned this. Let's go and take a look. Chengen aggressively brought Fang Luqing to find Chengen. They were stopped by two old eunuchs as soon as they reached the hall. Your Highness, His Majesty has an order. He has urgent political matters to deal with and will not see anyone. One of the blue-robed old eunuchs said respectfully. What? You don't even want to see me? Princess Changning was a little angry. She had doted on her twin brother the most since she was a child. Chengen was also the closest to her. How could they have disappeared? His Majesty said that he would not even see the eldest princess, but His Majesty said that he would apologize to the eldest princess in two days. The blue-robed old eunuch did not dare to offend the eldest princess, but they had no choice but to obey Chang'an's orders. Hearing that there was an important matter to discuss, Chang'ning did not want to barge in. The harem must not meddle in politics. This was a rule that had been passed down since ancient times. Little sister Ching'er, you go back first. I'll come back later. I'd like to see how he'll explain it. Princess Chang'ning advised. Fang Luqing didn't have any good ideas and could only hope that Changning would be able to persuade Chengen. The governing hall was the temporary imperial residence for the great Zhou Emperor's afternoon break. Usually, after dealing with political affairs, the emperor would take a short rest here. But now, the governing hall was full of song and dance. Chengen was shirtless as he watched a veiled singer dance in the middle of the stage. The singer was not wearing anything underneath. Under the sunlight, the beautiful spring light was faintly visible. Chapter, 167 Huh, my beloved consort's dance is so beautiful that even the stars in the sky are overshadowed. Chengen was hugging a singer from the western regions who had just finished a dance, and his big hands were groping around the beautiful woman's delicate body. The singer of the western regions had a welcoming appearance, and her slender, jade-like hand slid across Chengen's chest. Her Highness the Eldest Princess has already come. The singer of the Western Region said tenderly as she held Chang'an's weakness with her small hand. My beloved consort, you have good means. You can even hide from royal sister. Chang'an was still a little afraid of this sister. 
Furthermore, Chanming was a saint cultivator, so her words carried a lot of weight. Why don't your majesty marry the eldest princess off or arrange for her to live outside? That way, no one will bother us. The singer of the western regions stuck out her pink tongue and licked Chang'in's face. Chang'ing was the only variable. This western region singer didn't want her good plan to be ruined. No, my sister's marriage was decided by the late emperor. No one can change it. Furthermore, there must be a saint cultivator in the palace. Chengin was not completely confused. If he drove Chang'ing out of the palace, how could he guarantee his own safety? Moreover, he didn't have the guts to do so. It's better to cut the route to avoid any accidents. I still have a few sisters who know all kinds of tricks. I'm sure your majesty will like them. The singer of the western regions rolled her eyes and placed Chengin's large hand on her plump chest. Chengin hadn't seen much of the world, and this singer from the western regions was truly open-minded, serving him every night in all sorts of ways, he would have been left to die. When he heard that the singer of the western regions had a sister, Chengin was immediately moved. Does beloved consort have any ideas? Quickly tell me. His big hands rubbed the beauty's chest, a little impatient in his heart. Fong Lu Qin and noble consort Qin were both daughters of noble families. Naturally, he couldn't do that kind of trick. Moreover, as the empress of the great Zhou, Fang Lu Qin had to remind Chang'an that he could not let loose and damage royal etiquette. Perhaps this made him rebel, which led to him lingering with the western region singers. Your Majesty, as the supreme emperor of the great Zhou dynasty, it's up to you to remove the empress. As long as you announce it in the main hall tomorrow, I'll arrange for my sisters to enter the palace the day after. How about it? After the western region singer finished speaking, she slowly bent down and served Chengen with all her might. Chengen's eyes were half-closed, but his mind was already wandering. No matter if it was the eldest princess, his mother's teachings, or Zhou Shimin's last words, they had all been thrown to the back of his mind. The most important thing was to be greedy for extreme happiness. Chengen, who was enjoying himself, did not see the mockery in the eyes of the western singer. The next morning. In the throne room. Chengen walked into the hall with light steps and sat on the dragon throne that symbolized the emperor. Empress, you don't want to improve and always stir up trouble in the harem. You don't have virtue. I declare that the empress is abolished. With a wave of his sleeve, Chengen acted first and reported later. Your Majesty, you can't. I hope your majesty will reconsider. The empress is the motherly figure of the world. His majesty's actions are in violation of the ancestral teachings. The officials were so shocked that they couldn't say anything. Removing the empress was a matter of national importance, and they had to see if the empress really didn't cultivate her virtue before they could make the final decision. Now that Chengen was suddenly implementing the power of the deposed empress, the ministers would definitely come forward to stop it. Fang Yuanqing closed his eyes. He knew his daughter very well. Back then, Zhou Shimin had advised him several times before he finally agreed to let Fang Luqing marry into the inner court of the palace. But now, it had ended up like this. However, he couldn't stand out and plead for mercy. After all, he had to avoid and absolutely couldn't let others catch hold of his weakness. I've made up my mind. I'm going to reinvestigate the case of colluding with the White Lotus cult. Chingin punched the dragon chair. When he thought about how he would be served by a group of Western beauties the next day, he wished that time could pass even faster. The group of old officials left behind by the late emperor would definitely stop him at all costs, so he could use this opportunity to replace them all. In this way, they could enjoy singing and dancing every night, and no one would be able to control themselves. As the emperor, his words were like gold and jade. He immediately ignored the objections of his ministers, got up, and walked out of the throne room. He didn't even need to submit a memorial to the morning court. Sai, I'm afraid the great Zhou dynasty is about to change. Some old officials knelt on the ground and looked helplessly at Chengen's back. They really couldn't figure out why they had suddenly become like this. Prime Minister Fong, what do we do now? An official asked. This minister is old and should abdicate. The matters of the imperial court have nothing to do with me. 
Fang Yuanqing said in disappointment. Just now, Chen had asked to reopen the case of the White Lotus cult. His purpose was self-evident. It was better to leave on his own initiative. As for his daughter, he could only ask Princess Chang'ing to take care of her. The most important thing was to keep his life. He now regretted marrying Fang Luqing into the imperial family. The news of her being removed soon reached Princess Chang'ing's ears, and she was so angry that smoke was coming out of her head. She had wanted to say a few words to Chen'en after the court session to dispel his thoughts of being an empress. He hadn't expected that Chen'en would ignore the opposition of the entire court and make the dethroned empress a sure fact. The result was out, and she was powerless to change it. Your Highness the Eldest Princess, Prime Minister Fong requests an audience. The palace made outside the door said. Please, no, I'll personally welcome him. Chang'ing immediately stood up from his chair. Princess Chang'ing was very clear about the weight of this senior figure of three dynasties. She quickly walked out of the palace and saw Fang Yuanqing with a worried expression. I was just about to look for Prime Minister Fang, I didn't expect you to personally come over. Princess Chang'ing forced a smile on her face. Fang Yuanqing sighed and followed Princess Chang'ing to the pavilion in the courtyard. Your Highness, please set up a barrier. Fang Yuanqing was a scheming old man, he mouthed the words. Princess Chang'ing had set up a barrier. Unless a saint cultivator like each one came in person, no one could hear their voices. She quickly told him about Lu Qing looking for her yesterday, including the fact that she didn't have time to persuade Cheng and Empress Dowager Qin Lihua had moved into the Daoist temple. In my opinion, this matter is of great importance. Whether or not we can defend the great Zhou dynasty will all depend on the eldest princess. Fang Yuanqing knew that she was a saint cultivator. Please explain in detail, Prime Minister. Changning also felt that things were not as simple as they seemed. Ever since Your Majesty ascended to the throne, he has been working hard to govern the country. He's not any worse than the late emperor. I also saw this point and allowed Qing'er to marry into the palace. So in my opinion, the problem lies with the singers of the western regions. Fang Yuanqing was an old fox, how could he not see through it? Whether it was the White Lotus cult or the various tribes in the outer realms, all of them were eyeing the great Zhou dynasty covetously. They were constantly looking for an opportunity to topple the great Zhou. The sudden change in Cheng'en's personality was definitely because he had been bewitched. Now that the enemy was in the dark and they were in the light, they had to be extremely careful and couldn't make the slightest mistake. Prime Minister Fong explained the plan. Your Highness, it would be best if you could contact 9,000 years old. His Majesty once told me in secret that he would give 9,000 years old the power to set things right. Master is a mysterious person. Ever since he left the palace, he has never returned. Princess Changning also wanted to contact Yichuan, but she couldn't. Chapter 168 North of the Desert it was said that the founder of the Pure Land sect founded the White Lotus cult. In the early days, it called on believers to worship their ancestors. It was a secret group of half-monks and half-celestials. Its doctrine was relatively simple, and its scriptures were easy to understand. The people of the lower class happily accepted it, so it was often used to organize people to resist oppression. There were two forces in the world of the White Lotus cult that were fighting with each other. They were called the light and dark sects. Light represented kindness and truth, while dark represented sin and irrationality. At first, this idea was good, but the White Lotus cult called on the people to start a rebellion when the great Zhou dynasty was getting weaker. After being suppressed, they had no choice but to leave the central plains. They accepted ignorant believers in the outer realms and continued to strengthen themselves. The White Lotus Cult was located on Mount Qingyuan in the Outer Realm. The mountain peak was extraordinarily steep and rose from the ground. The pine trees on the ridge were graceful, and there were many strange stones on them. However, since Zhu Lingxin returned, the mountain peak was filled with a faint red miasma. Every night, all kinds of ghostly wails and wolf howls would come out, making it look like hell. The nearby tribes moved away one after another. No one wanted to live in such a ghostly place. 
He Chuan strolled along the steep stone steps and began to explore the entire Qingyuan mountain with his spiritual sense. Young master, there is a kind of evil energy on the mountaintop. It is very similar to Zhu Lengxin's. As a saint cultivator, Kai Lian's divine sense could also cover the entire white lotus cult. It seems like I can find some useful information here. He Chuan retracted his divine sense. There were only a few small fish left in the white lotus cult. It was likely that the various sects of the western regions that Zhu Lingxin had forcibly suppressed in the past had taken advantage of Zhu Lingxin's death to start retaliating against the White Lotus cult and prevent them from rising again. An eye for an eye. Who are you? How dare you barge into the White Lotus cult's sacred grounds? The disciples in charge of guarding the mountain gate looked at them cautiously. Some time ago, a lot of masters from the sects in the western region had come, killing people and snatching things they saw. This made the remaining White Lotus cult's followers somewhat fearful. Humph. He Chuan's cold voice rang out, releasing a portion of his might. The average disciple in charge of guarding the gate knelt on the ground with beads of sweat on his forehead. He couldn't even move a finger. Young master, do you want to kill him? Kai Lian's hand was on the hilt of the water autumn sword, ready to unsheath it at any moment. You have to learn how to distinguish things by yourself. What if I'm not by your side one day? He Chuan pinched Kai Lian's face. The little palace maid's life was getting better and better, and her face was getting chubbier. He liked to pinch her cheeks from time to time. The soft and chubby baby face felt very good to the touch. Liener wants to stay by young master's side for the rest of my life. Kai Lian rubbed her face. She didn't want to leave He Chuan. Let's go in first. He Chuan didn't answer. As a reincarnated person, he would have to leave one day. But he didn't want Kai Lian to be sad. Seeing that He Chuan didn't want to continue this topic, Kai Lian's pretty face revealed a happy smile. Most of the White Lotus Cult's buildings were built against the mountain, so they looked more like large caves. It did not look splendid and imposing but a little shabby. When He Chuan released his pressure just now, the people of the White Lotus Cult had run away. They feared that if they ran too slowly, they would have to go down and accompany Zhu Lingxin. This also saved Kai Lian a lot of effort. In case some fools couldn't see the reality and came to provoke them. He Chuan wasn't in the mood to enjoy the view of the cave he went straight to the secret chamber of the White Lotus Cult. The heavy stone door was in front of him, and it wasn't easy to open without knowing where the mechanism was. He Chuan placed his slender palm on the stone door and mobilized his vital essence. Boom! The stone door instantly shattered into pieces, but there was no vibration. His control of vital essence had already reached a terrifying level. In an instant, it was like an evil spirit had been released from its cage. Countless red auras that could be seen with the naked eye attacked the two. He Chuan didn't resist and let the red aura wrap around his body. The violent yet weak true energy entered his body. To him, it was insignificant. It would be a great supplement if it was a Xientian master or a half-step saint cultivator. However, they had to be able to hold on and not be affected. It's indeed an evil demon. He slowly opened his eyes, and his vital essence instantly forced the red aura out of his body. He continued to walk inside. The secret chamber was filled with dried corpses and white bones. Kai Lian tugged at the corner of his clothes and carefully walked in. It was too scary inside. There was a golden incense burner in the deepest part of the secret room. Through the crack, He Chuan found a scarlet bead inside, from which the red aura was coming. He opened his palm and immediately took the golden hollow incense burner into his hand. Young master, what is this? Kai Lian displayed her excellent tradition of being diligent and eager to learn, shamelessly asking. The elders of the White Lotus cult are, at most ninth-level Xientian grandmasters. They must have relied on this to break through to a half-step saint cultivator quickly. The moment He Chuan opened the lid, countless red auras swarmed over, trying to absorb the flesh and blood of him and Kai Lian. He immediately raised his protective energy to protect the two of them. The red aura could not break through. After observing it for a while, he used his internal strength to shatter the scarlet bead, and the red aura started to dissipate. However, 
He Chuan's brows were tightly furrowed. The moment he shattered the bead, he felt a faint aura lock onto him. Just as he wanted to investigate, it disappeared. As expected, he had some skills. No wonder he could control Zhu Lingxin. It seemed that this god was somewhere in the outer realm. If he wanted to get rid of them, he had to find the real god first, not the kind of humans who were controlled. Let's go. He turned around and walked out after saying that. We're leaving just like that. I haven't finished exploring. Kai Lien felt that this was too fast. At the very least, they had to search around White Lotus Cult to see if there were any clues. There are quite a lot of corpses here. You can bring them back if you like and sleep with them. He Chuan had already achieved his goal. His main purpose was to take a look at this secret room and understand the power of the legendary gods and demons. Now, he had a general understanding of it. It was still within the range of control and not the kind of power that surpassed humans. Kai Lien looked down at the corpse under her feet and quickly ran out of the secret room. She didn't want to sleep with a corpse in her arms. Thousands of miles away in the Xiongnu tribe, in a luxurious palace. Zhu Lingxin, that trash, actually failed. What a waste of energy. The black figure muttered to himself. He was very interested in He Chuan. Not only could he kill Zhu Wuxin, but also be unaffected by the violent aura. It was a perfect carrier. After coming to the western regions for so many years, it had been long since he had found such an interesting human. The moment he crushed the bead, he had attached a breath to He Chuan's body so that he could find him at any time. He Chuan, who was thousands of miles away, already knew that he had been possessed by the aura. If he weren't willing, the aura wouldn't be able to do so. The god wanted to find him, which was exactly what He Chuan wanted. He might as well play along and pretend that he didn't know anything. At that time, it would be hard to say who would be the prey and who would be the hunter. Chapter 169 in the imperial palace of the great Zhou dynasty. Chengen was lying on the bed, completely naked. Eight foreign beauties were sitting around him, also wearing only underwear, their jade-like hands wandering all over his body. He had experienced the ultimate bliss of life in the past two days, and he was a little reluctant to part. It's time for your majesty to attend morning court. The singer of the western regions brought the wine to Chengen's mouth. Tell eunuch Wang that I have been ill recently and will not be going to court this morning. How could Chengen still be willing to go to court? He hadn't enjoyed it enough. This group of foreign beauties indeed had a lot of tricks up their sleeves, and they were quite unrestrained. He had experienced all the happiness that he had never experienced before. Your Majesty, have you forgotten about the cleanup plan? Grand Tutor Lu has been making a lot of noise to see you these days, saying that all the knowledge your majesty read has been fed to the dogs. When the western region singer heard that Chengen wasn't even willing to attend morning court, the smile on her lips grew even wider. There were still many important officials in the imperial court that needed to be dealt with. When the time came, she could replace them and become the new empress of the Zhou dynasty. She didn't need to listen to the orders of those people. Once she became the empress of the Zhou dynasty, no one would be able to threaten her. Everyone wanted to live for their own benefit, and this singer from the western regions was no exception. She did not want to be controlled by others forever and become a tool. Did my royal sister come? Chingen suddenly felt a headache. Grand Tutor Lu was his master, and he could not deceive his master and destroy his ancestors. That would incur the condemnation of all the scholars in the world. Two days ago, Princess Changning came over and scolded him. The two people that Chang'an was most afraid of were Grand Tutor Lu and Princess Changning. You're the supreme emperor of the Zhou dynasty, the master of the world. How could that Grand Tutor Lu scold you? All of us sisters felt heartbroken. The singers of the western regions tried to get rid of all the obstacles by using pillow talk. Chang'an felt a little lightheaded from the flattery. He pulled a beauty beside him into his arms and began to grope her. Since your majesty is unwilling to touch Grand Tutor Lu, what about the imperial consort? Just because she's an imperial consort, she's yelling at me and even saying that the western singer immediately comes up with another plan in case her first plan doesn't work. What did consort Qin say? Qingyan asked with a frown. 
The imperial consort said that she would send me and my sisters out of the palace so that we would never see his majesty again. After saying that, the singer of the western regions lay in Chengen's arms and began to cry loudly. The other eight beauties also shed tears of grievance. She dares. This emperor will immediately order her to be thrown into the cold palace and have her keep Fong Luqin company. Cheng Yin immediately sat up. These beauties were his precious treasures. If anyone dared to send them out of the palace, he would fight them to the death. He didn't even bother to check the truth. It was because noble consort Qin wasn't as important as the beauty beside her. He didn't even want to see her. What, you're saying that noble consort Qin has also been thrown into the cold palace? Princess Chiming listened to the report of her personal palace maid and her anger instantly surged. Noble consort Qin has just been sent in. This servant immediately came to report to her highness. The personal maid said in a whisper. Huffed, forget it. Even Qinger has gone in. It's good to let Sister Qin go in and calm down for a while. Recently, Princess Chiming had been secretly investigating the identity of this group of foreign beauties. However, the other party was very cautious and did not give themselves away. The information sent back from the outside showed that their identities were very clean, and all of them had been investigated. This was what made her most suspicious. He Chuan had told her many stories about murder cases. The less suspicious something is, the more suspicious it is. If we can clear the fog, we can see the answer we want. She had always kept these words in mind. What kind of storm could a few foreign beauties cause? What she wanted to find out was whether there was anyone else behind the scenes. Who was it that had the guts to lay a hand on the great Zhou Emperor? Your Highness, it's best for you to go and see Noble Consort Qin. Noble Consort Qin is in the cold palace, struggling to live. If someone with ill intentions uses this opportunity the palace maid didn't continue. However, the meaning was obvious. If someone killed noble consort Qin and caused her to fake her death, wouldn't that be exactly what some people wanted? So troublesome. I'll go and take a look. You go and contact the fired officials in Cheng inside. The eldest princess stood up and walked towards the door. The cold palace. They walked on a stone road covered with moss, crossed a cluster of crooked fences, and the windows were embedded in the ancient wall made of blue bricks. The window paper had long disappeared, leaving only the horizontal and vertical window panes, which were tied with long and short red ropes, helplessly swaying in the wind, as if someone was complaining, but also like a faint sorrow that could not be blown away. Accompanying a sovereign was like accompanying a tiger. The emperor had a harem of three hundred beauties, and if things didn't go his way, it was easy to be thrown into the cold palace. However, Cheng Yin was probably the first emperor to banish the empress and the noble concubines into the cold palace. All of you, get lost. I'm going to find his majesty personally. Noble consort Qin threw all kinds of porcelain at the eunuchs and palace maids. As the Qin family's youngest daughter, she had been pampered by everyone since she was young. The Qin family had been a family of generals for generations. The commander of the imperial guards was her brother. Younger sister, why are you doing this? This will only make His Majesty more disgusted. Even though Fang Luqing had entered the cold palace, she was still the empress, so her movements were not affected. In fact, the cold palace was not as miserable as she thought. However, if she was assigned to another palace, the emperor would not step into the concubine's room anymore. Then, he would lower the treatment and title of the concubine. This was the meaning of being banished to the cold palace. Other than the drop in his accommodation and title, there was not much difference. Elder Sister Qing, His Majesty has already become like that, and you're still speaking for him. I'm going to kill those vixens. In the palace, only Fang Lu Qing and Princess Changming could control noble consort Qing. If it wasn't for Fang Lu Qing, she would have gone to Cheng Yin's bedroom to make a scene. All of you may leave. Princess Changning came to the door and said to the eunuchs and maids. Sister Changning. As if she had found her savior, noble consort Qin immediately threw herself into Princess Changning's arms and kept talking. She was clearly a little girl who had not grown up. Don't make trouble. This is a special period. 
the Prime Minister and General Qin are not having a good time. They have been relieved of their duties for the time being. Chang gently stroked Noble Consort Qin's black hair. When Noble Consort Qin entered the palace to study when she was young, she often pestered Princess Chang like a little follower. Therefore, she had always treated Noble Consort Qin and Fan Lu Qin as her younger sisters. However, now wasn't the time to speak up for them. She had to stabilize the overall situation first. His Majesty has abandoned me and Sister Qinger. I don't want to live anymore. Noble Consort Qin was truly in love with Chengen, but unfortunately, the Emperor had already been blinded. Go and hang yourself now. At most, I'll help you send your corpse back to the Qin Manor later. Princess Chengning pulled Noble Consort Qin's ear and said in an unpleasant tone. Seeing that she was really angry, Noble Consort Qin didn't dare to continue making a fuss and helped Princess Chengning to the chair. These foreign beauties aren't simple. Cheng Yin has been completely captivated by them. It's very difficult for me to even meet them. Princess Chang said in a serious tone. Then what do Sister Chang mean? Fang Lu Qin was meticulous and had inherited the good genes of Prime Minister Fang. In a while, you and Sister Qin will move next door to me. Sister Qin Jia can come and make trouble with me every now and then. Sister Qin Yer, please help to persuade her. When the time comes, put on a show for others to see. Otherwise, your lives will be in danger. The great Zhou dynasty was about to change, and Princess Chang had to find a way to stabilize it. At the same time, she began to miss He Chuan. Chapter, 170 The Xiongnu Totem was a black dragon. They were a group of nomads from the ancient deserts and grasslands. Most of them lived in the Gobi Desert, and the tribes on the grasslands were their elites. In the war, the Xiongnu people would behead the enemy and receive a cup of wine, and they would give the wine to the enemy, making them their slaves. It could be seen that the Xiongnu people had the custom of headhunting. Chopping off the heads of their enemies in the war was a symbol of honor, and they could be rewarded by the tribe. It was precisely this kind of fierce fighting style that caused them to become a major threat to the great Zhou dynasty. After the first emperor of the Zhou dynasty unified the central plains, he ordered Qin Aolu to lead 300-00 troops and a group of Xientian cultivators to attack the Xiongnu people in the north, overtook Hetao region, and stationed troops in Shangjuan. The Xiongnu people immediately retreated 700 miles and did not dare to herd their horses south. Qin Aolu had built the fortress, which was located in the north. He had also built a road from Zhou Yuan in the north to Yunyang in the south, forming a long line of defense in the north. Qin Yang had been defending the north for more than ten years, and the Xiongnu people were intimidated by his power and did not dare to attack again. Since then, the Xiongnu people had been recuperating. Sixty years ago, after Tatumtan took the throne, they began to expand. After he defeated the king of Donghu, swallowed Lu Fan tribe and the white sheep king immediately. They also recovered the counties and prefectures that Qin Aolu had taken from them. The Dingling, Tsusha, Xinli, and other tribes in the north and northwest had all submitted to the Xiongnu. After the Xiongnu people became powerful, they started to eye the great Zhou dynasty. From time to time, they would send troops to harass the borders. In a large tent somewhere in the Xiongnu tribe, three people with extraordinary auras were sitting inside. Although they had restrained their auras, one could still tell that they were extraordinary. Especially the green-robed man who sat at the very top. His eyes were vaguely surrounded by a red aura, and he had an aura that looked down on the world. Zhu Lingxin is really trash. He can't even complete my lord's mission. The green-robed man's tone was filled with disdain. It's not that simple. According to the information we have, the seven major sects of the martial arts world in the Central Plains only exist on the surface. There are many saint cultivators among the countless sects that have hidden. The white-robed man said. In his opinion, although Zhu Lingxin was a little useless, he had already become a saint cultivator. If the opponent was not in the same realm, they would not be able to kill him. The martial arts world of the Central Plains existed many years before the great Zhou dynasty, so it was normal for them to have hidden experts. They were controlling the Xiongnu now to use this opportunity to invade the Central Plains. 
This was because the place was rich in resources, had a large population, and hid shocking secrets. If he could crack the secret, he could even become a saint cultivator. Is there any news from Lana? The green-robed man asked. Yes, the emperor of the Zhou dynasty spent his days on their bellies. He didn't even attend morning court recently. Another man in black said. Huh, very good. As expected, even the emperor of the great Zhou dynasty can't escape the art of sexual intercourse. A man in a white robe placed his hands behind his back and looked into the distance through the tent as if he could already see the great Zhou dynasty being pocketed. My lord, the main problem now is how many saint cultivators are there in the martial arts world of the central plains, and whether it will affect our plan. Also, God sent us a message a few days ago, asking us to pay attention to a master from the central plains. When the man in black mentioned God, his expression became more and more respectful. The white-robed man did not speak. Although that God could give them power, he was controlling them in a different way. If they couldn't get rid of the control in the end, what was the difference between them and puppets? When he entered the central plains and found the secret buried deep within, he would be the one who have the last laugh. At that time, he could even step on a god. The sun in the blue sky was getting higher, the jade dragon was enchanting, the endless green was by the sheep, and the horse was drunk in the blue sky. After walking in the desert for many days, they finally saw the beautiful grassland. Kai Lien excitedly ran to the lake and scooped up some water to wash her pretty face. Even if they weren't affected by the desert environment, their hearts would always be different. Anyone who walked in the endless yellow sand all day would feel sick of it. He Chuan's mood also became much better. He released his divine sense to sense the aura around him. After a long time, he gradually withdrew his divine sense. There was no danger in the surroundings. When he saw the power left behind by Zhu Lengxin and God, he became even more cautious. He was sure that becoming a saint cultivator wasn't the end. He wasn't invincible, and he still had a lot of room for improvement. Fish, fish, don't run. Kai Lien looked at the fat fish in the lake and couldn't help but swallow her saliva. I'll rest here for the time being. It just so happens that I want to eat Lienner's grilled fish. He Chuan understood Kai Lien's thoughts very well. He lay on the grass and looked at the clouds in the sky, feeling extremely relaxed. Kai Lien was immediately overjoyed. She patted the lake twice, and a few lively fish instantly floated on the surface of the lake. After setting up the bonfire, she happily placed the grilled fish on the fire and continued to roast it. The sound of horse hooves came closer and closer, heading toward their resting spot. He Chuan continued to look at the sky. The highest level was only a ninth stage Xientian cultivator, so they posed no threat. Your Highness, it's Central Plainsman who is barbecuing. They might be merchants who are here to do business. The scout came back and reported. Under the golden sun, a sixteen-year-old girl was riding on a huge golden deer. She had a flat duck egg face, beautiful features, and a pair of big eyes that were like water. Her skin was fair and soft, her lips were red and petite, and there was a heroic spirit in her eyes. She was wearing a short fur coat made of marten skin, a red fox shawl on her shoulders, and a hood covering her long hair. She still had a childish air about her, but her smile was full of evil. It was little Princess Liao, the new chief of Tatumton. It's those cunning central plainsmen. Let's go and have a look. Lia squeezed the golden deer's stomach with her legs. Her followers quickly followed. This little princess was the apple of Chanyu to Tumpton's eye. If anything happened to her, it wouldn't be enough to kill them ten times. Kai Lien held up the grilled fish and handed one to He Chuan before eating it in big mouthfuls. A thief from the central plains, how dare you to steal the fish from the heavenly sacred lake? Lia pointed at He Chuan and Kai Lien as she rode on the golden deer. This was nothing. The heavenly sacred lake was the water source that the Xiongnu tribe relied on for survival, but catching a few fish was not a big deal, and no one would care. It tastes so good. Kai Lien didn't even raise her head as she continued to gnaw on the grilled fish in her hands. Being ignored made Lia quite angry. As the treasure of Tatumton, she had never been defeated. 
hurry up and capture them, then roll them up and spank their butts. Lia was kind-hearted and did not shout to kill, and the punishment was only a spanking. This was because her biggest punishment when she was young was to be spanked by her mother. However, Lia's followers were not so kind. They drew their weapons and attacked Kai Lian and He Chuan. He Chuan extended his right palm and made a sucking void at Lia, who was on the golden deer. Chapter 171 Lia realized that she could not control her body. It was as if she was flying in the air, heading in He Chuan's direction. Pa! 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 He Chuan placed the cute Lia horizontally on his lap in a crouching position, then hit her a few times. The crisp sound made everyone dumbfounded. Especially Leah's followers, their princess had actually been spanked in public. If Tatumtan knew about this, their heads would definitely roll on the ground. However, He Chuan's performance was too amazing. A living person was sucked in front of him, which was impossible for a ninth stage Xientian cultivator. Could this person be a half step saint cultivator? Aya, I'm going to bite you to death. Leah opened her mouth, revealing her neat teeth, and bit He Chuan's arm. Bah! How come your arm is harder than a rock? She was dumbfounded. She had almost broken her teeth just now. He Chuan thought that this grassland princess was quite interesting. She didn't seem afraid at all when she was being held in someone's hand. She was really naive. Aren't you afraid that I'm a bad guy and I'll kill you right now? He let Lia go. He had just taught her a simple lesson. Who asked them to disturb the peace? Lia blinked her peach-shaped eyes, almost forgetting that she had just been spanked. However, the handsome man in front of her was extremely skilled in martial arts. She was no match for him at all. What should she do? Master, please accept this disciple's bow. She thought for a long time and finally made a decision. Kai Lian had wanted to interrupt her, but after hearing He Chuan's voice in her mind, she stopped talking. The Xiongnu tribe had a high chance of being related to gods and demons. If he wanted to investigate, entering the Xiongnu tribe was the best way. Teaching Lia martial arts was a great opportunity. Besides, this grassland princess was kind and didn't have any malicious intent toward central plainsmen, so she ordered to kill anyone just now. Practicing martial arts is very hard and tiring. If you can't persevere, you should go home early and eat. He Chuan waved his hand and said impatiently. Lia was surprised to find that she had actually stood up uncontrollably. Don't worry, master. I'll definitely work hard. I can serve tea, do the laundry, and cook. Her small mouth immediately began to ramble, and her heart was even more determined. Whether or not she could do it was put aside for the time being. She would first acknowledge him as her master. The followers didn't dare to say anything. Didn't they want to chase him away? Now, it had become a matter of learning from a master. Besides, her highness didn't even know how to make tea, let alone do the laundry and cook. She was clearly trying to fool them. It didn't matter if He Chuan was lying or not, he agreed to Li Ya's request to be her master. Li Ya, who had successfully acknowledged him as her master, was overjoyed. She immediately pulled He Chuan and Kai Lian back to the tribe to tell her father and mother the good news. Tatumtan's residence was much more luxurious than the tribe in the desert. It was also a small palace built with green bricks. Although it could not be compared to the imperial palace of the great Zhou dynasty, it was still enough to make the herdsmen of the grassland yearn for it. In addition to the surrounding warriors of the tribe, there were also several masters of the ninth stage Xientian protecting them. There was no lack of half-step saints cultivator in the dark. Father, I found a martial arts teacher. Lia ran into the palace and said to Tatumtan loudly. Tong Dun Chanyu looked at He Chuan, who was dressed like a colorful lotus. He immediately became alert and secretly kept his guard up. He didn't know what his youngest daughter's purpose was in bringing back the two central plainsmen. He had to be vigilant at all times. This was his principle as the Xiongnu leader. Just like the emperor of the great Zhou, he would not trust anyone easily. Moreover, Liya was honest by nature and was easily fooled. What business do the two of you have in our tribe? If you don't have enough money, this king will give you some. 
Tatumtan still wanted to keep the danger out of his door. He was ready to send the two people of unknown origin away. It's Liya who wants to be my disciple. If you don't welcome us, we will leave immediately. He Chuan said indifferently. From the beginning to the end, he spoke in an equal tone and didn't take this to Tumtum seriously. This king thinks you are spies sent by the Central Plains. Take him down. Tatumtan was very displeased with Yichuan's tone just now. The Xientian experts immediately entered the tent. Humph. The colorful lotus water autumn sword was unsheathed and immediately engaged in a battle with the Xientian realm experts. Yichuan had his hands behind his back the entire time, as if the fight in the palace had nothing to do with him. Liya looked at the battle worriedly. How did the teacher she had finally found get into a conflict with her father? She didn't want to see this. The Xientian masters of the Xiongnu people came quickly, but they were defeated even faster. No one was able to withstand even a single move from Kai Lian. Whoosh! The water autumn sword instantly returned to its sheath. Kai Lian, who had won, didn't press on with her victory, nor did she use Tatumtan as hostages. Tatumtan looked at the many Xiongnu masters lying on the ground. Those who could protect him were all highly skilled in martial arts. He didn't expect this little girl dressed as a maid to be so powerful. This man who didn't make a move, how strong was he? However, it seemed that the two of them really had no ill intentions. Otherwise, they would have joined forces to deal with him. Ha ha ha. I'm sorry, this king was testing you just now, but I didn't expect you two to have such hidden skills. I'll leave Liu to sir. Tong Dun Chanyu immediately changed his clothes and face, looking like an old friend who had not seen him for many years. Those who could sit in the supreme position were indeed shameless. He Chuan had a deep understanding of this, so he wouldn't argue with the other party. It was good that he had achieved his goal. I've heard that the beauties of the grassland are not bad. I like them very much. He slowly sat down on the chair and said. I understand. I'll arrange a few maidservants for you later. They'll definitely be beautiful. You can play with them however you want. Tatumtan gave a smile that all men understood. At the same time, the wariness in his heart also decreased a lot. After discussing tomorrow's ceremony, Tatumtan asked someone to take them to rest. My king, that woman from the Central Plains is already a half-step saint cultivator, and that man's aura is even more unfathomable. Won't there be any danger? An expert hiding in the dark asked worriedly. It doesn't matter. I'll send people to monitor them first. If it really doesn't work, I'll ask the imperial advisor to make a move. If they just focus on teaching Leah martial arts, I won't bother about them. Of course, Tatumtan would not trust He Chuan so easily. He was just pretending just now. Kai Lian sat on the chair in a depressed manner. What, you're not happy after defeating the Xiongnu experts? He Chuan asked despite knowing the answer. Young master must be disgusted with me. Does young master like women with big breasts? Kai Lian pouted and gestured in front of her chest. Silly girl, if I don't have any other requests, do you think Tatumtan will believe me? Asking him to send two maidservants is also an opportunity for him to monitor us. He Chuan was very indifferent to love. However, he did admit that women with big breasts were more attractive. Kai Lian scratched her head in embarrassment. She hadn't expected He Chuan to think so far ahead. Indeed, as he had said, if he didn't have any requests, Tatumtan would probably not be at ease at all. Chapter 172 When the breeze is gone, the river cannot be seen, and the water is clear and bright. On this beautiful day, the king of the Xiongnu tribe announced a major event. His youngest princess had taken He Chuan, a man from the Central Plains, as her master. According to the rules, Li Ya wanted He Chuan to present the master disciple gift. All of them were done according to the etiquette of the Central Plains. There were only a few people who could enjoy such treatment. Everyone was very envious of this foreigner from the Central Plains. After the ceremony, Liya became He Chuan's disciple. Chest out, bend down, stomach in, hands flat. He Chuan was lying on the rotten chair, holding a ruler in his right hand and a book in his left hand. 
Two beautiful grassland beauties stood on both sides, dressed in relaxed clothes, massaging his shoulders and tapping his calves. He looked like a dandy. Xiongnu was a tribe, and their overall level of culture was not high. In the past, no one had even recorded history, and they had to rely on the Zhou dynasty to write it. However, in the last few hundred years, the Xiongnu tribe had started to learn the Central Plains culture and recorded their own history. In case future generations didn't know. He Chuan wanted to see if there were any more detailed records of gods in the Xiongnu history books. Kai Lian ate the whole beef leg bone until her cherry lips were shiny. She was very happy that there was enough meat on the grassland. The one who suffered the most was little Princess Liao. In her horse stance, she saw Kai Lian eating so happily and couldn't help but swallow her saliva. Big sister Kai Lian, can you give me a piece of meat to eat? The moment he finished speaking, the ruler landed accurately on Leah's perky buttocks. Before it's over, you're not allowed to eat or speak. He Chuan lectured. After taking in this disciple, he would take responsibility and not just pretend to do it. Leah's little face was bitter, and she regretted her decision to practice martial arts. Wasn't she just looking for trouble for herself? In the palace. How have you been? Tatumtan asked. There's nothing unusual. Young Master He Chuan has been very responsible in teaching the Sixth Princess martial arts every day. It's just that the maid who was in charge of serving He Chuan was a little afraid to say it. What is it? Tell this king the truth and I'll pardon you. Tatumtan glared with killing intent. Every time the Sixth Princess disobeyed, Young Master He Chuan would hit her bottom with a ruler. He seems to be interested in the princess. The maidservant quickly knelt on the ground and said in a trembling voice. Actually, He Chuan had no feelings for Liao. It was purely his wicked interest. When they had first met, Liao had said that she would spank his butt. Therefore, it could be understood as revenge. However, he did not think that the maid would misunderstand. You can go back now. You can't mention this to anyone, or else. To Tumtum's meaning was obvious. Anyone who dared to speak rashly would die. After the maidservant left, a figure appeared quietly. It was the half-step saint cultivator who protected the king, a white-haired black-robed elder. What do you think? Tatumtan seemed to be asking himself, but also the people around him. The sixth princess has reached the marriageable age. If she can hold up two half-step saint cultivators, it'll definitely be an advantage. The black-robed old man replied respectfully. He had to consider the entire Xiongnu and not Leah's perspective. No matter how much she was favored, she had to get married, so why not maximize the benefits? Tatumtan didn't blame the black-robed old man, but seriously considered the suggestion. We'll discuss this matter later. Is there any news from the imperial advisor? Tatumtan continued to ask. There's good news. The emperor of the Zhou dynasty has no interest in politics. Under Lana's influence, he changed all the important officials in the dynasty. When the Zhou dynasty starts a riot, that'll be the best time for my king to take over the central plains. The black-robed old man replied respectfully. Huh, that's the best news. Tong Dun Chanyu was convulsing with laughter. He didn't expect that the emperor of the great Zhou dynasty could not resist the temptation of beauty. It was an unexpected surprise. At that time, he would lead all the tribes in the plains and the desert to attack the great Zhou dynasty. We'll stop here for today. Don't forget to continue meditating and cultivating your inner energy at night. He Chuan squinted his eyes, but he was a little shocked. He didn't know what had happened in the distant Zhou dynasty. If he hadn't heard about it from the conversation between Tatumtan and the black-robed elder, he wouldn't have known that Chingen had become like this. It seemed like he had to find an opportunity to return to the great Zhou dynasty. Zhou Shimin had once asked him as a friend to help look after the new emperor, Chengen. He really made him worry. He was actually so smitten by a few women that he didn't even care about politics. If Zhou Shimin had known this in the underworld, he would have been so angry that he would have opened the coffin and given Chengen a few slaps. Master, tomorrow is the day to pay respects to the Dragon Temple. Do you think I can win the title of the first warrior? Liya ran to He Chuan's side and said coquettishly. 
the Xiongnu people paid special attention to heavenly gods. They believed that the heavenly gods were the supreme ruler of the gods, and the gains and losses of the human world depended on the gods. If a person's actions could follow the way of heaven, then heaven would give them good fortune. Otherwise, the heavens would bring disaster to people. Thus, whenever things went smoothly, it was called a blessing from the heavens. Worshipping the dragon city was like praying to the gods to bless the Xiongnu with good weather and to keep away disasters and diseases. It was the same as the worship ceremony in the central plains, which was a blessing ceremony. However, the Xiongnu people felt that it was boring to simply pay their respects. After praying, they would fight for the title of the first warrior of the tribe every year. If you become the number one warrior, you would be able to get the favor of the grassland girls. Choosing a partner would not be a problem. Therefore, every year, the competition for the tribe's first warrior was also on the day of the tribe's wedding. The grassland girls would dress up very beautifully and choose the warriors they liked to marry. Last place is more like it. You just learn for a few days and want to defeat the experts of the tribe. He Chuan said with a smile. But the evil warding swordsmanship is so powerful. How can I not be their match? Liya was a little unhappy. She had wanted to be the strongest warrior of the tribe for a long time. No matter how powerful the evil warding sword technique is, it still needs the corresponding strength to support it. You're a girl, why are you participating in the tribe's competition? He Chuan didn't quite understand. This disciple seemed to have a strong attachment to the title of the number one warrior. Humph. Who told my father to always praise those useless brothers, saying that the Xiongnu people will be inherited by them? I can't accept this. Lia had her hands on her waist, her dream was to be a female king. Who said that only men could be warriors, who said that only men could become kings? She refused to believe it and wanted to show it to others. That was why she had the thought of acknowledging him as her master. He Chuan's heart moved, and he immediately understood his disciples' thoughts. It was interesting that a cute girl wanted to be a female king. Take one pill every day, and don't slack off in your cultivation. He took out the porcelain bottle from his arms and handed it to Liao. Inside were the supplementary medicinal pills rewarded by the system. Many thanks, Master. Liao took the pill with both hands and ran towards her palace in a hurry. Young Master, do you really want to train Liao to become a female king? Kai Lian asked in a low voice while the two maidservants weren't around. This is more interesting, isn't it? He Chuan rubbed his nose as a plan gradually formed in his mind. Chapter 173 The Great Zhou Dynasty The court officials stood in the throne room, bitterly waiting for Emperor Chengen. What time is it already? In my opinion, we have been waiting bitterly for another day. His Majesty will not come. An important official said disappointedly. Sai, when will it end? The government has been abandoned. This official will go see the Empress Dowager in a moment. You're crazy. A while ago, a colleague went to find Empress Dowager. As soon as he arrived at the entrance of the Daoist temple, he was captured and charged with the crime of murdering the Empress Dowager. He was a barbarian. Great Zhou is finished. The officials in the court were discussing spiritedly. The emperor had not attended court for several days in a row. Even if he occasionally came twice, he had no interest in politics. If someone dared to say that there was an existence in the harem that could bring disaster to the country and the people, they would be executed in two days for groundless crimes. The key was that all the important officials who could handle significant matters were forcefully dismissed and replaced by a new batch of direct officials. This group of new officials fought for power all day long, fawning over the upper class and being corrupt. If this continued, the great Zhou dynasty would completely collapse. A loyal official might lose his life, but a treacherous official could rise step by step and earn a lot of money. I'm afraid everyone has a scale in their hearts on how to choose. The time has come, disperse. The blue-robed eunuch in charge of the rites waved his horsetail whisk and left the throne room. The eunuchs and palace maids were even more helpless because they didn't even have the right to manage the emperor. Among the ministers, some were happy, some shook their heads helplessly, some were angry at him for not competing, 
and a few had nothing to do with it. The officials on Chang'an's side wished for this to happen every day. Because they had the most power now. They could have beautiful women and money if they wanted, and they didn't have to do anything. It was simply like a god's life. The governing hall. The place that symbolized the emperor's diligence had been completely transformed into a place of pleasure by Chang'an. He simply didn't wear any clothes, grabbed a western beauty at random, and began to do dirty things in public. Western region singer, Lana, brought a glass of fine wine to Chang'an's mouth considerately. Your Majesty, yesterday I came up with some new tricks. Tonight, I'll have them play with Your Majesty. Lana said with a smile. All right, if beloved consort has any new tricks, bring them out. This emperor will take them all. After Cheng Yin finished drinking the wine, he pressed down on the western beauty under him again and continued his unfinished exercise. When will this concubine become the empress? His majesty has promised. Lana pressed her face against Cheng Yin's chest as she spoke in a highly aggrieved voice. This emperor has the final say after the dethronement, but some ministers don't agree to the appointment of an empress. The main thing is that Grand Tudor Lu has never relented. Cheng Yin said helplessly. The empress played the role of half the sky in a country, so the selection of the empress also had a stringent system. Moreover, the empress was a role model for all the women in the world. She also had to manage the concubines and palace servants in the harem. She had the power to reward and punish, as well as to kill and maintain order in the harem. At the same time, the empress was also responsible for persuading the emperor and supervising the actions of the emperor's harem. Lu Qing did an excellent job in this aspect. As for Lana, not only did Tudor Lu constantly mention her as a devilish woman, but he also declared that if Cheng Yin dared to make her his empress, he would immediately kill himself in the throne room. One had to know that Grand Tudor Lu had once been a great scholar, and his students could be found all over the world. If he committed suicide in the throne room because of this matter, then Cheng Yin would be condemned by all the scholars in the world, forever nailed to the pillar of shame. That old thing asks for death every day, and he's still alive for so long. Your Majesty, why don't you go along with his wishes? Lana's long, narrow eyes flashed with killing intent. Those who dared to stop her from controlling the world must all die. As long as Grand Tudor Lu was still alive, she would be a concubine. She would not become the mother of the country and the empress, and she would not have the right to touch government affairs. What? No. Everyone says that heaven and earth are masters and teachers. If I kill my own teacher, isn't that against heaven's will? Ching Yin was shocked by Lana's words, and his lower body almost went soft. There was no difference between killing his master and killing his father. At that time, not to mention the world, even Princess Changming, would not let him go. He was fascinated with beauty, but he was not completely confused. If this concubine can become the empress, I'll immediately help His Majesty choose a concubine from the entire country. We sisters will personally train you. By then, the entire harem will be a place for you to enjoy yourself. Lana tried to tempt him again. She had already grasped Cheng In's weakness. This Cheng In was indeed a little moved. The few beauties had indeed given him a nirvana of enjoyment. The beauties that Lana had trained would definitely not be bad. Just the thought of it made Cheng Yin feel tempted. However, he still didn't dare to kill Tudor Lu. Don't worry, your majesty. When I was in the western regions, I obtained a colorless and tasteless medicine. As long as it's taken, even the coroner won't be able to find the cause of death. Grand Tudor Lu is so old, and it's normal for him to die of old age. Lana's demonic murmurs continued to assault Cheng Yin's defensive line. All right, let my beloved consort handle this matter. Make sure it's clean and neat. We can't be found to be related to anything. In the end, Cheng Yin couldn't resist the temptation and was completely immersed in her beauty. Thank you, your majesty. I'll make you the tiger bone soup, and I guarantee you'll be in a great mood tonight. Lana put on a thin veil before turning around and leaving the governing hall. After she ordered the kitchen to prepare the tiger bone soup, she did not return to the governing hall but returned to her own sleeping quarters. The two of them appeared in the palace. 
They were dressed like palace maids, but they were actually people Lana had arranged. It was for convenience. What's going on on Changning's side? Lana asked. Reporting to Master, Noble Consort Qin went to make a scene again today. The eldest princess was a little impatient and reached out to give Noble Consort Qin two slaps. The palace maid respectfully replied. And then? What was Noble Consort Qin's reaction? Lana was an expert in conspiracies, so of course, she wouldn't believe them so easily. What if Princess Changning and Noble Consort Qin were acting? Then, Noble Consort Qin hung herself with a three-foot white silk banner. However, she was saved by the palace maid who delivered the meal. Now, she's making a fuss about leaving the palace. The palace maid continued to answer. Lana immediately broke out into a smile. This noble consort Qin was seeking her own death. Now, she could only rely on Princess Changning, yet she still had to make her unhappy every two or three days. That way, she would have one less threat. Whether it was noble consort Qin or Fang Lu Qin, she would find an opportunity to get rid of them, including Princess Changning. As long as all the obstacles were removed, it would the day she would become the Empress. Find an opportunity to kill Grand Tudor Lu with poison. Be quick, and don't make any mistakes. Lana still had a chance to make a move on Noble Consort Qin and Fang Lu Qin. Moreover, the two of them had moved next door to Princess Changning. With the protection of a saint cultivator, it would be difficult to find an opportunity. It was better to ascend to the position of Empress first. One of the palace maids received the order and left. The Xiongnu people have sent news, asking Master to depose the Emperor as soon as possible. The rest of the palace maids delivered the order. Tell them, Chengen is still in consciousness. I will try my best to deal with him as soon as possible. Lana wouldn't let anything happen to Chengen before she had complete control over the Zhou dynasty. Otherwise, she would not have the chance to become the Empress. For now, it was better to stall for time. When everything was ready, she would lead her troops to destroy the Xiongnu tribe. Chapter, 174 The night was quiet. It's been hard on little sister Qin today. Princess Changming waved her hand to set up a barrier, her eyes full of heartache. It's not hard. I'm willing to do anything for His Majesty. Noble consort Qin touched the marks on her neck, hoping that Cheng would change his mind. They had been forced into a corner. If they didn't counterattack, their life would be in danger. I don't know if that devilish woman will be fooled. Fang Liuqing's face was filled with worry. Sister Changning, why don't you just kill them? Imperial Consort Qin and Fang Luqing already knew that Princess Changning was a saint cultivator. In her opinion, a saint cultivator could solve the problem by taking their life, so there was no need to go through so much trouble. I told you to use your brain more. If it wasn't for me protecting you, you silly girl, you would have died a few times already. Princess Changning's index finger touched noble consort Qin's smooth forehead twice. He Chuan had often said to her, never be complacent about your current strength. She remembered that when she had gone to find Cheng in the day before the empress was dethroned, she had not sensed anything wrong. Later on, she found out from his trusted palace maid that Cheng in hadn't been dealing with any political affairs that day. Instead, he had been fooling around with Lana. As a saint cultivator, she didn't even sense it. It proved that the other party was at least a half-step saint cultivator, or a saint cultivator of the same realm. Now, Cheng in had eight more western beauties by his side. If Changning's assassination succeeded, it would be fine, but if the assassination failed, it would definitely be reported to Cheng in. When she was expelled from the palace, it would be over for her. Sai, does Master know about the situation in the Great Zhou? Changning's greatest support was not herself, but the mysterious He Chuan. She didn't think He Chuan was that strong back then. Now that she thought about it after she became a saint cultivator, she seemed to still be very far away from He Chuan's realm. He had heard from his father that Zhu Lengxin, the leader of the White Lotus cult, was close to a second stage saint cultivator, but he wasn't He Chuan's match. Master? Why didn't Sister Changning invite your master over? Noble consort Qin's beautiful eyes suddenly brightened. Princess Changning's master was so powerful. 
Master has left the palace for many years. I haven't been able to contact him. Princess Changning shook her head helplessly. When noble consort Qin heard that she couldn't contact him, she became dejected again. This is bad. Fang Luqing suddenly recalled a terrifying incident. Sister Qing, why are you so shouting? You scared me to death. Noble consort Qin patted her ample chest and said with some dissatisfaction. Everyone knows that this wicked woman wants to be the empress, but Grand Tutor Lu has been trying to stop her. If Grand Tutor Lu dies Fang Luqing suddenly thought of this possibility. Princess Changning was not allowed to meddle in politics, so it was not a problem to protect them, but the matter of suppressing the empress had always relied on the help of Grand Tutor Lu. If Grand Tutor Lu were to be killed, wouldn't that be pushing the boat along with the current? She dares. If that wicked woman dares to attack Grand Tutor Lu, I will kill her even at the cost of falling out with Chengen. Princess Changning felt that Lana wasn't that stupid. If something happened to Grand Tutor Lu, everyone would suspect her. Grand Tutor Lu was not only the tutor to the Crown Prince of Chengen, he was also the tutor to Zhou Shimin. He was more important than Changming and the minister of the court. This was also the reason why Grand Tutor Lu dared to curse at Chengen and Lana in public. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Fang Luqing shook her head. She also felt that the possibility was low. Tomorrow, I'll send a few experts to protect Grand Tutor Lu in secret, just in case. Princess Changning said. Unfortunately, they didn't know that Chengen had gradually lost his bottom line. He had personally agreed to Lana's plan to get rid of Grand Tutor Lu. Lu Manor. Grand Tutor Lu was sitting in his study, writing a denunciation about the demoness wreaking havoc in the imperial court. He was prepared to contact students from all over the country and spread the news to everyone. If everyone in the world opposed this, Chengen would not be able to make Lana his empress. Squeak. The door was pushed open, and the maidservants in the manor lowered their heads and placed the ginseng soup on the table. Grand Tutor Lu flicked his wrist after he had finished writing the denunciation. I'm getting old. I'm so tired from writing an article. I'm not far from my coffin. Unfortunately, I've failed the late emperor. He wiped the tears from the corner of his eyes. Cheng and had been his proudest student. He had thought that he would be like Zhou Shimin, a diligent and loving sovereign. He had never imagined that he would end up in such a state. He picked up the ginseng soup and slowly drank it. Not good. The old master fainted. The servant girl shouted. Soon, the Lu Manor was in chaos. No one paid any attention to the maidservant. The next morning, Princess Changning hide her aura and left the palace quietly. He secretly came to the Fong Manor. Compared to when it was crowded like a market, it was much more deserted now. She pushed the door open and saw a few ministers who had been dismissed. Grand Tutor Lu is dead. She confirmed again. Yes, the funeral was held last night, Fang Yuanqing nodded, his eyes filled with helplessness. I'll go back and kill that demoness immediately. Princess Changning's killing intent soared. She wanted nothing more than to kill Lana immediately. Your Highness, don't be agitated. Grand Tutor Lu's death was caused by an illness, not a homicide. Fang Yuanqing quickly called out to Princess Changning even though they all knew that Grand Tutor Lu had been murdered. But the problem was that several famous coroners in the capital could not find any problems at all. If there was no evidence that he was poisoned, then Lana couldn't be blamed for it. What should we do now? Without Grand Tutor Lu, Chengen will definitely make that wicked woman his empress. By then, it will be difficult to overthrow her. Princess Changning sat on the chair weakly. Lu Qin had already thought of this yesterday. It was her fault for not sending people to protect Grand Tutor Lu in time. This was the result of this situation. Now is not the time to blame yourself. Grand Tutor Lu has already rushed ahead of us and written a denunciation. Fang Yuanqing passed the document to Princess Changning. The fake maidservant had not seen the denunciation that Tutor Lu had left behind to attack Lana, or it would have been destroyed. The denunciation of this scholarly sage would definitely resonate with all the students in the world. There's no time to lose. 
we have to spread the news immediately and cause a huge commotion in the capital. The commander of the Imperial Army, Qin Yintian, spoke. Even though he had been removed from his position, the Imperial Army still listened to his commands. When the time came, he would use the Imperial Army to spread the news, and he believed that it would quickly reach Chengen's ears. All right, I'll leave this matter to you. I still have to return to the palace to protect my two younger sisters, so that the demoness won't have any chance to take advantage of this time. Princess Changning knew that this was not the time to be sad. Grand Tutor Lu was already dead, and Lana might make a move on Fang Luqing and noble consort Qin. Especially Fang Luqing, because of her support to regain her position as the empress, her influence was obvious. Lana, who was in the palace, was the first to hear the news of Grand Tutor Lu's death. She was prepared to find Chengen to fulfill her promise and make her the empress of the great Zhou. At this time, Chengen was still sleeping soundly after a night of fun. He didn't know so many things had happened. Lana pushed open the door and took off her chiffon. She sprawled herself on Chengen, who was sound asleep. Then, she winked at the eight foreign beauties. They started the morning call service together. Chapter, 175 Chengen woke up groggily and saw Lana looking at him with a shy and charming expression. Why is my beloved consort doing so early? He asked in confusion. The sky was still dark, and this beauty would never call him at this time. Because of last night's affair, he had a bit of an irritable mood after waking up. Your Majesty, it's time for you to attend the morning court. Lana hurriedly planted a kiss on Chengen's face. Morning court. Chengen was even more confused. Lana used to tell him that there was no need to attend morning court. The ministers would take care of it, and he could enjoy himself in peace. This was a true emperor. Yet today, she had suddenly come to persuade him to attend morning court. Did the sun rise from the west? Your Majesty, have you forgotten that we agreed that I would become the Empress once Grand Tudor Lu died? When Grand Tudor Lu suddenly died in his home, the coroner claimed that he died of natural causes. Lana hurriedly reminded him. To avoid any more trouble, she had to become the Empress today. I remember now. I did promise my beloved consort. Chingen knocked his head and recalled what he had said two days ago. He didn't think that Grand Tutor Lu would die. He wasn't as happy as he had imagined. Instead, he felt a little sad. After all, other than Princess Changning and He Chuan, only Grand Tutor Lu was closest to him. This teacher had taught his knowledge and the way of the emperor. He couldn't help but feel a little regretful. Back then, he had impulsively agreed to Lana's request. Your Majesty, do you not like me? Then this concubine will immediately take my sisters and leave Lana saw that Chengen's expression wasn't good and immediately knew what he was thinking. What are you saying, beloved consort? You are the most important in this emperor's heart. Chengen hurriedly coaxed her. I'm doing this for the emperor's sake. Every day, Grand Tutor Lu calls you a fatuous emperor, and I've become a demoness. If he's still alive, how are you going to proceed with the consort selection? Lana continued to make an issue out of the consort selection. Only by becoming the empress could she carry out the follow-up plan. If it dragged on for too long, she didn't know if there would be any changes, so the sooner, the better. Hearing about the consort selection, Chingen's blood once again boiled if he could enjoy the entire harem at any time and place. That was the true life of an emperor. Change my clothes. This emperor wants to go to court. Chengen immediately perked up. Thinking of the consort selection was about to take place, he immediately threw Grand Tudor Lu's death to the back of his mind. Lana's expression immediately turned joyful as she hurriedly called for the eight beauties from the outside world to help Chengen change his clothes. The throne room. The officials had finally waited for the emperor to arrive. Thinking that the political affairs of the past few days could finally be dealt with, a yearning for the future of the great Zhou dynasty rose in their heart because the emperor had finally changed. This emperor has decided to make Lana my empress, and she'll be in charge of the three palaces and six courtyards. Chengen announced. All the officials were dumbfounded. He had thought that Chengen had come to deal with the piled-up political affairs, but they had not expected that he would appoint a new empress. 
Under the leadership of such an emperor, it would be strange if he didn't forget about the great Zhou dynasty. The wicked woman caused the disaster that befell the great Zhou dynasty from the heavens. Not only did his majesty not get rid of the wicked woman, but he also made her the empress of the world. An old official finally couldn't stand it anymore. The crown prince's teacher, Grand Tutor Lu, had just died. As the emperor, he didn't even mention reminiscing and rewarding him, and even had the mood to appoint the empress. Didn't this mean that he understood how the people of the world would view Chengen after this day? Moreover, it was highly possible that Grand Teacher Lu had died at Lana's hands, but there was no evidence. I see you're old and muddled, so I'll allow you to retire and return to your hometown. Chengen's temper had also risen. This old official was a middleman, so he had not replaced him. Now, whenever he spoke, he said the word demoness, which made him very unhappy. If you don't like it, then go home and farm. Don't bother me here. The old official heaved a long sigh, took off his black hat, and prepared to leave the throne room. Your Majesty, there are rumors in the city that Empress Lana is a demon and that all the officials are criticizing her. If Your Majesty were to make her the Empress now, I'm afraid she'll be reviled by the entire world. Immediately, a minister arranged by Fang Yuanqing came forward with the denunciation. Present it. Chingen suppressed the anger in his heart and had his personal eunuch bring the denunciation over. The more he looked, the angrier he got. The denunciation described Lana as an unpardonable criminal and even listed down thirty of her crimes. Even Chingen had become an incapable ruler. What a load of nonsense! Pass down my orders to immediately make Lana the new empress. Dispatch the imperial guards to search every household to see who dares to badmouth the royal family behind their backs. Chingen waved his sleeves and left. Even Chingen's forces couldn't bear to watch this. Their power was built on the foundation of the Zhou dynasty. If the great Zhou collapsed, they would have nothing. If they pretended not to hear the official's words, then wouldn't he be an utterly fatuous ruler? The ministers looked at each other, not knowing what to do. When Princess Changning heard that Chengen had given Lana the title despite objections, she immediately couldn't sit still. This was simply nonsense. Looks like I'll have to go talk to Chengen. She suddenly stood up and said. Chengen had actually turned a blind eye to the move that had been left behind by Grand Tudor Lu. This was going against the entire world. No emperor in history dared to do this. Sister Changning, please calm down. I think that His Majesty has been admonished by the ministers to make this wicked woman his empress. He has probably read the denunciation. Since His Majesty is willing to do anything, he must have some resentment in his heart. Fang Luqing hurriedly pulled on Princess Changning. If she went now, not only would she not get the desired effect, but it would also backfire. The siblings would probably only quarrel, and Princess Changning could not do anything to Qingyan. If Lana continued to whisper pillow talk, Chengen would probably find an opportunity to send Princess Chengning out of the palace. Then, according to little sister Chengyu's opinion, what exactly does this demoness want to do? Princess Chengyu asked in confusion. Lana must be plotting something behind the scenes for her to think of all sorts of ways to turn Chengyu into this. However, they were very careful and couldn't find any useful information. On the surface, the plan is nothing more than to destroy the great Zhou, but there is another possibility. The demoness wants to become the empress of the great Zhou. Fang Luqing analyzed. Lana had been by Chingin's side for so long. If she had used some slow-acting poison, she would have probably succeeded long ago. Or if you want to cause the rebellion of the eight vassal lords, you can even use strong poison. However, Lana had only charmed Chingin so he wouldn't attend morning court sessions. Then, she racked her brains to become the empress, which meant that she wanted to become the ruler of the country. If it's really as little sister Ching said, there's no need to be too anxious. Princess Changning gradually calmed down. In the early stages of the empress's life, Chingin had to be alive. She would pass down the decree through Chingin, and only after the entire court was under her control could she truly become the empress. Otherwise, it would all be for naught. Without the support of the ministers, it was useless. The difficult problem in front of him was how to make Lana give herself away. 
Since the wicked demoness is staying in the palace, she must have someone else to send the message. Sister Changning, you can pay attention to this. When you catch the messenger, you will naturally know the secret behind the scenes. Fang Luqing was indeed Fang Yuanqing's daughter, she was very meticulous. If she was a man, she would probably be the prime minister of a country. Chapter 176 The Xiongnu sacrificial ceremony was completed. The battle of the tribe's strongest warrior had begun. The contestants were all Xientian masters, and they were all younger than 18 years old. This was also how the Xiongnu people ensured their bloodline and wolf nature. In comparison, the people of the great Zhou dynasty lived too comfortably and lacked a fierce temperament. As Lia's master, He Chuan sat in a seat right below Chan Yu to Tumtum. In fact, he had no interest in this kind of thing, but it was difficult to refuse such kindness. Lia kept begging him to come over because today was the day of her competition. Tatumton really doted on Lia and was willing to let her participate in the battle for the best warrior of the tribe. He probably just wanted her to have fun. Young master, do you think sister Lia can win? Kai Lian looked at the Xiongnu experts and then turned to look at Lia's thin body. They were simply not on the same level. That would depend on whether she slacked off in her cultivation. He Chuan's divine sense swept across all the participants. They were about the same level as Lia. In this case, it would depend on whose basic skills were the most solid. Lia's cultivation technique was taught by He Chuan, so she was naturally better than others. However, she was now like Kai Lian in the past, lacking actual combat experience. Therefore, it was hard to say who would win. Mr. He Chuan, my daughter is improving rapidly under your guidance. I am very pleased. Tatumton said with a smile. He was more and more optimistic about He Chuan. Especially that bottle of mysterious elixir, which allowed Leah's progress to be extremely fast. No one knew where this mysterious expert came from. Based on all the signs, they did not seem to have ill intentions toward the Xiongnu people, and they were not spies. This made Tatumton gradually lower his guard, and he even had the intention of matchmaking Lia and He Chuan. They wanted to tie the enemy to the Xiongnu war chariot. Princess Lia is willing to suffer. I'm just giving her some appropriate guidance. He Chuan didn't know what was on Tatumton's mind. Even if he knew, he would just laugh it off. Be it the great Zhou Emperor or the Xiongnu King they were all equal in his eyes. Wuing didn't exist for him. Tatumton smiled and didn't say anything. In his opinion, he Chuan had nothing wrong except for his lust and love for good wine. It's normal for cultivators to be arrogant. He's indeed a suitable candidate for the prince consort. Soon, it was Leah's turn. She held a three-foot-long Qingfeng sword in her hand, and her pretty face was full of an excited smile. The difference between her and her opponent in the first round was very obvious. In less than two moves, Liya had knocked away the weapon in their hand. Enthusiastic cheers immediately rang out from the surroundings. The Xiongnu people liked courageous people, and Lia used her strength to change everyone's opinion. Moreover, they didn't expect the sixth princess to improve so quickly. Good. As expected of my daughter. I would grant you a wish if Lia got the first place. Tatumton was very satisfied with Lia's performance. The other princes and princesses' faces suddenly turned very ugly. The limelight was stolen by the youngest sister, which made them feel a little embarrassed. The key was that Tatumton had not yet chosen an heir, and the struggle between the princes and princesses had reached the most intense state. There had been female leaders in the tribes of the grasslands and the desert, so it was not only the prince who had the right to inherit. Princesses also had rights. Lia used to be a silly and sweet princess. Even though Tatumton favored her, she was not a threat. Everyone was willing to pretend to like this sister of theirs. From today onwards, everything will change. Lia was fully capable of joining the ranks of the struggle for the throne. Whether it was the imperial family or the king family, it wasn't easy to obtain genuine affection. In the great Zhou dynasty, it was still possible for a princess to be with a prince, but it was very rare. Tatumton saw the reactions of his children. The Xiongnu tribes had always been like this. Back then, 
he had also emerged from the struggle and finally sat on the throne of the king. This was the wolf of the grassland. It had to suppress its own kind in order to become a true wolf, a true leader. Master, how was my performance? Liya ran to He Chuan and said coquettishly. It's just a so-so. It's an instinctive situation to take down the enemy with one move, but you used two more moves. He Chuan didn't praise her but scolded her instead. Just now, this disciple wanted to show off the magnificence of her swordsmanship, so she had violated a great taboo, and her sword moves were flashy but without substance. If the other party's strength were equal to Leah's, she would be suppressed and defeated. He had often taught Princess Changming, Kai Lian, and Lia not to be complacent because of their current strength. One had to know that there was always someone better. Now, she had not even reached the ninth stage of the Xientian realm, but she was already feeling smug. It was already a light punishment for him not to spank her little butt. Lia immediately pulled a long face. She did not expect to be reprimanded for winning the match. Ha, huh, young master is right. Lia, you must not underestimate your enemy, or else you won't be able to get the reward today. Seeing that He Chuan could correct Lia's mistake in time, to Tumpton was very satisfied. This was a true teacher, not someone who only knew how to flatter and compliment because of her status as a princess. The match was still ongoing. In the end, besides Lia, there was also the warrior under the first prince, Karhan Burak, the warrior under the third prince, Mandarathu, and the warrior under the eldest princess, Narasal. Leah's strength could only be ranked third among the four of them. Karhan Burak was the strongest, having the strength of an eighth stage Xientian. Master, what should I do? Lia hugged He Chuan's arm and shook it. She did not have any confidence. That Karhan Burak was too strong, especially with his cross training kung fu. It was difficult for a sword to injure him. The evil warding swordsmanship's unique point is its speed and ghostly movement. Although Karhan Burak's cross training kung fu is strong, he still has a weakness, He Chuan whispered into Lia's ear. The first prince saw the movement on He Chuan's side and revealed a disdainful smile. Karhan Burak was the most powerful young man in the Xiongnu tribe. It was a fool's dream for Lia to want to defeat him. This year's first place was almost certain, and he could also stand out in front of his father, getting closer and closer to the position of heir. He would think of a way to deal with Lia in the future. The semi-finals had officially begun. The first battle was between Karhan Burak and Mandarathu. Seeing that the game had entered its climax. The 50 0 people on the scene shouted in unison, their voices shaking the heavens and earth like a tsunami. Karhan Burak quietly listened to the deafening cheers. He didn't know why, but he enjoyed the cheers as if they were what he deserved. Mandarathu had been staring coldly at Karhan Burak since he came on stage. He sneered, I heard you are the number one warrior in Xiongnu tribe. Karhan Burak paid no attention to his opponent. Standing three feet away from him, he closed his eyes and lowered his head, lost in thought. It was as if he didn't hear Mandarathu's question at all. It was more like he was looking down on him. He was also very confident in his own strength. Chapter 177 Seeing that Karhan Burak did not answer, Mandarathu couldn't help snorting coldly. Just as he was about to say a few words of ridicule, Karhan Burak suddenly raised his head and looked at him. This glance made Mandaratha shiver, his heart beating wildly, and his pupils couldn't help but shrink. It was a gaze filled with ruthlessness and killing intent. Being looked at with such a gaze, Mandarathu couldn't help but feel a chill in his heart. He had come out to challenge Karhan Burak, on one hand on the orders of the third prince, and on the other hand, he was confident that he would win. However, in the blink of an eye, Mandarathu suddenly discovered that the current Karhan Burak's aura had become a bit more powerful. He stood there with a heavy expression like a mountain, giving off a feeling of unrivaled. How is this possible? Could it be that his power had advanced to another level? Or is he deliberately hiding his strength? Mandarathu's heart trembled. Before, he was 100% confident that he could kill Karhan Burak, but now he had no confidence at all about whether he could defeat Karhan Burak. However, since things had come to this, he couldn't back down at the last minute, or else he wouldn't be able to raise his head in this life. 
He Chuan had long noticed that Karhan Burak had deliberately hidden his strength and his target was the warriors under the third prince. If one was not careful on the field, it was normal to be injured. He could even kill the other party directly. After all, Mandarathu was not a noble. In the arena. Manchalatu could only brace himself and accept the battle. He forced himself to calm down and immediately released a stern aura. At the same time, his right hand slowly pulled out the long knife hanging on his waist and slowly pointed the tip of the knife at Karhan Burak. His expression was dark and cold, and under the influence of his aura, even some of the audience at the front of the stage felt a little breathless. The blade in Manchalatu's hand was three feet and seven inches long. It was sharp and shiny, and the blade was dark red in color, exuding a threatening murderous aura. Who knew how many warriors' blood he had drunk? That was how he got the name Invincible Blade. Of course, the Invincible Blade was not Mandarathu. It had been passed down from his master, and he had also inherited the name. Mandarathu himself didn't stand out in any way. Good Blade. Karhan Burak's gaze fell on the other party's blade, and he couldn't help but sigh in admiration as he felt the biting cold killing intent on the blade. This saber has drunk the blood of thirty-seven experts. Today, you are the thirty-eighth. To be defeated by the absolute blade, you have definitely lived your life in vain. Mantola laughed arrogantly when he heard this, and his expression couldn't help but be a little proud. It's a famous saber, but unfortunately, the person is useless trash. The world's absolute blade is already a waste of its undeserved reputation. Karhan Burak sneered as he stared at the blade in his hand. I heard that your blood blade is also made by a famous master. I wonder if it can defeat my absolute blade. Manchalata definitely couldn't back down. However, if you lose today, the name of the world's invincible blade will be transferred to me, Karhan Burak. Karhan Burak chuckled, his tone full of disdain. The surrounding audience began to get excited. The competition hadn't even started yet, and there was already such a strong smell of gunpowder. If it really started, wouldn't it be even more exciting? Young master, I think Mandarathu will definitely lose. It's a pity for that invincible blade. As a saint cultivator, Kai Lien could easily analyze the true strength of the two. The outcome had already been decided before the battle even began. He Chuan didn't answer Kai Lien's question but frowned at Karhan Burak. When the other party's strength had increased just now, he had a bit of the feeling that the White Lotus leader had. As expected, the gods had already infiltrated the Xiongnu tribe, but he didn't know how many more were hidden within. He Chuan did not take the initiative to release his divine sense to investigate to avoid alerting the enemy, so he did not know how many people here were like Karhan Burak. Unless the other party took the initiative to release their aura. Mandaratha's anger rose from the bottom of his heart, and killing people was just a matter of nodding. The name of the world's invincible blade was earned by his master after decades of wandering in the pugilistic world and winning against all the experts in the desert and the prairie. If Karhan Burak wanted to snatch it, that would be the greatest humiliation to him. Take my blade. As soon as he finished speaking, he suddenly shot out like an arrow, his blade slashing toward Karhan Burak's chest. The sound of air being torn rang out, and the sharp sword intent stirred up a whistling wind that was ear-piercing and shocking. Just by looking at this momentum, it was already extremely shocking. He was indeed worthy of being the inheritor of the invincible blade. However, although Mandarathu's blade was fast, Karhan Burak was not slow either. His figure flickered slightly as he displayed the shape-shifting movement technique. Leaving an afterimage on the spot, he instantly moved a few feet to the right, easily avoiding Mandarathu's probing blade light. Mandarathu's daggers missed, and he was slightly stunned. He then looked at Karhan Burak, but he did not draw his saber. He only indifferently looked at him, his face devoid of any expression. It was as if he was looking at a dead object, and the aura around him gradually became stronger. The spectators in the surrounding stands couldn't help but be surprised and began to discuss. Mandarathu had already drawn his sword, but Karhan Burak still hadn't drawn his sword. What the hell was he doing? Could it be that he wanted to let Mandarathu have a few moves? This time, Kai Lien had also noticed that something was wrong with Mandarathu and turned to look at Hichuan. 
he seemed to want to confirm the answer in his heart. He Chuan nodded his head slightly, confirming Kai Lian's guess. It was indeed related to gods and demons. Feeling the powerful aura of Karhan Burak, Mandarathu couldn't help but shiver in his heart. He didn't dare to rashly attack again and immediately stood still, confronting Karhan Burak. After a moment, the feeling Mandarathu felt was getting weirder and weirder. He felt an invisible pressure spreading from Karhan Burak's body, almost suffocating him, and an unknown chill rising from his back. He suddenly felt a sense of powerlessness. This feeling made him afraid. After he had learned the absolute blade, he had never felt this kind of feeling. In particular, the feeling of being suppressed by Karhan Burak made him even more uncomfortable. Although the two of them had not really made a move, the momentum of both sides was rising steadily, and the atmosphere in the field had become suffocating. After staring at each other for a long time, Mandaratha finally felt that Karhan Burak's aura was gradually reaching its peak. He knew that it would be disadvantageous for him if this continued. Finally, he couldn't help but shout loudly. The absolute blade slashed at Karhan Burak's head. The sword intent came wave after wave, like a stormy sea, constantly sweeping towards Karhan Burak. The audience in the stands couldn't help but exclaim in shock. They didn't expect Mandarathu's swordsmanship to reach such a level. Leah's hands were clenched tightly. She had not expected her opponent this year to be so strong. Clang! A dragon-like roar resounded in the arena, and a blood-red blade light flashed. The treasured saber at Karhan Burak's waist had already been unsheathed like a meteor and slashed toward Mandarathu. He used the ultimate move that his mysterious master had taught him, sky-high blood waves. In an instant, the dark red blade light was like the roar of hell. The audience had never seen such a fast, ruthless, and domineering strike in their lives. He Chuan nodded to himself. They were indeed skilled. This god could actually create such a powerful saber technique, which showed that their strength could not be underestimated. Chapter, 178 It was slightly inferior to the technique rewarded by the system. Manchalatu only felt the scenery in front of him change. The rising sun was nowhere to be seen, and in its place was a dark red moon. This seemingly simple saber technique of Karhan Burak's was something he had no power to parry or dodge. He suddenly understood that this was the true essence of saber techniques, and it had already returned to reality. Just as Latour thought it through, the audience suddenly exclaimed. The first time Karhan Burak unsheathed his blood blade, it had already cut into Mandarathu's shoulder, falling straight down with a flash of light. The surroundings were eerily quiet, even a pin drop could be heard. When he turned his head, he saw that Karhan Burak had already sheathed his saber. He unsheathed and retracted his saber in an instant. His movements were smooth and neat as if he had never used his knife before. His eyes swept around and looked at the dumbstruck Mandarathu. He smiled and said, Thanks for letting me win. Just as he finished speaking, Ta. Mandaratha's left arm fell to the ground, and blood spurted out of the wound like an arrow. The bright red color was so beautiful. The spectators in the surrounding stands were all stunned. No one had expected that with a single strike, Karhan Burak would defeat Mandarathu and break his arm. This was too terrifying. Everyone was shocked by Karhan Burak's world shaking blade, and almost everyone stood up in shock. The third prince, in particular, had never thought that Mandarathu, whom he had placed so much hope on, would be so easily defeated by a single strike from Karhan Burak. His shocked fat face turned ashen. He couldn't help but stomp his feet and curse, trash. Trash. What absolute blade. It's simply useless. He Chuan and Tatumtan in the main stands couldn't help but nod. This Karhan Burak had very solid basic skills, not to mention that he could withstand external forces. The seemingly ordinary drawing and sheathing of the saber had been practiced for countless years. After a long time, the audience around the stand seemed to wake up from a dream. Whether they were men or women, they all burst out in earth-shaking cheers, blood blade Karhan Burak. Warrior. Brave warrior. Indeed. That absolute blade of Karhan Burak could be called the invincible blade of the world. 
Even an imperial swordsman like Mandarathu would not be able to resist the world-dominating blade. Karhan Burak raised his hands and spun them around to receive the cheers of the audience. At this moment, he stood at the peak of glory. The third prince's face was so gloomy that it could scare people to death. In the past, the Invincible Blade had enjoyed the highest honor in the Xiongnu tribe. He didn't expect that his successor couldn't even withstand a single move from the other party. The result was indeed unexpected. As expected of Blood Blade Karhan Burak. Third brother, don't be too sad. After all, swords have no eyes, and no one wants to hurt anyone. The eldest prince stood up arrogantly and spoke to the third prince in an ambiguous manner. Hee hee, the Xiongnu tribe has many warriors, I just need to find one more. Big brother, you don't have to feel bad. The third prince was upset, but he could not show it. He could only force a smile. However, from his words, Mandarathu was already a useless person. Once he lost his value, he would be abandoned. Yes, I didn't expect Karhan Burak long to be so strong that even the successor of the Invincible Blade was no match for him. This is the good fortune of the Xiongnu tribe. Tatumtan said with a smile. He did not care about the outcome of the battle between his children. As a king, he had to protect the prosperity of the entire Xiongnu tribe. Master, I don't seem to have much confidence now. Leah's cute face scrunched up. Although He Chuan had taught her a few words, she did not expect Karhan Burak to be so strong. Only now did she feel that there was indeed a gap between their strength, and the little pride she had before was all gone. Now you know you've underestimated your enemy. Just do your best. As a princess, the other party won't do anything to you. If you lose, you can start all over again. He Chuan said calmly. There were always wins and losses in life, and with the support of Karhan Burak's violent aura, it would be very difficult for Lia to win. Unless the evil warding swordsmanship could be used to the extreme. However, based on Lia's current strength, it would be extremely difficult for her to fully utilize the evil warding sword technique. Next year is too far away. I want to become the strongest warrior of the tribe this year. Master, you have to think of a way. Lia wrapped her arms around He Chuan's neck, her pretty face pressed against his. Tatumtan pretended not to see the intimacy between the two and turned to chat with the others. He Chuan would not think too much about it. He treated Lia like a junior. But some people were very unhappy. The sixth princess was the most beautiful flower in the grassland, and many people were waiting to climb up using her. Many of them were fans of the sixth princess. If looks could kill, He Chuan would have become a porcupine by now. He could only sigh helplessly at Leah's request. However, she was also using external forces to improve herself. He Chuan placed his palm on Leah's back and sent a burst of vital essence into her body. Tatumtan was closer and could clearly feel the changes around him. With just one beam of true energy, Ya had become a ninth stage Xientian cultivator. Although it was only temporary, it was enough to show how powerful He Chuan was. Could he be at the peak of half step saint cultivator? Tatumtan concluded in his heart. His daughter had always been by his side and did not dislike being intimate with He Chuan. If he could use this as an excuse to arrange a marriage, there should be a chance. Although Liya was a little young, it could not hide her beautiful figure. This mysterious expert was also very lecherous, so he would definitely not mind taking Liya. If they got married successfully, he would be able to lock He Chuan in. In the blink of an eye, countless thoughts formed in his mind. Lia had also noticed the changes in her body, and she immediately felt extremely confident. It's not right to rely on external forces. I'll let you experience the realm of a ninth stage Xientian cultivator in advance, take it as though you break through the basis of being a warrior. Make good use of it. He Chuan rubbed Lia's head and said softly. Next up, Lia would fight against the eldest princess's warrior, Narasong. Narasong was the weakest among the four of them. He was not a match for Lia, who had improved her state. Sixth sister has found a good master. If you have time, why don't you bring Mr. He Chuan to my place as a guest? The eldest princess temporarily suppressed the fire of jealousy in her heart. 
she knew that it was all thanks to He Chuan that Liao was able to break through so quickly. If she could pry this mysterious expert out of the water, she would be willing to sacrifice her body. Compared to becoming a female king, the cost was insignificant. We'll talk about it when we have time. Liya blinked her eyes and pretended to be innocent. Don't be fooled by the girl's innocent appearance, she was actually scheming. Otherwise, why would she have taken He Chuan as her master at the first opportunity? They were all children of the king. There was no such thing as a truly innocent and naive girl. The eldest princess's eyes shot out two sinister gazes. Chapter 179 The weather was clear, and the sun was high in the sky. Next up was the highlight the sudden emergence of the sixth princess Lia against the strongest of the grasslands' younger generation, Karhan Burak. Lia pointed the sword in her hand at the other party and activated He Chuan's vital essence that he injected into her body. She had already given her best up to 120%. Karhan Burak remained silent. He stood as still as a mountain, his eyes shining with a sharp light like an eagle's. His left hand gently pressed on the sheath of the blood blade at his waist, his thumb pressing hard on the blade's edge. Clang! The blood blade was unsheathed by three inches, revealing a dazzling dark red light. In an instant, a cold and bloody smell spread out in all directions, making people feel fear. The surrounding audience was even more silent. Everyone was intimidated by the atmosphere before the storm. Uya shouted. She took the lead to launch an attack, her figure rushing forward like lightning, her long sword making a whistling sound as it pierced Karhan Burak's chest. The blade was cold and ruthless, displaying the essence of the evil warding sword technique. Good. Die. Karhan Burak roared, and the blood blade in his right hand shot out of its sheath like lightning. In the midst of Karhan Burak's thunderous roar, everyone saw an incomparably soul-stirring red light flash before them. It was like a rainbow in the sky, opening up from space and tearing through the sky. It was as if it wanted to devour everything or twist everything in the world into pieces. The red blade ray brought with it a terrifying whistling sound, causing the clothes of the people at the surrounding tables to dance wildly. Like a bolt of lightning, he had arrived in front of Liya in the blink of an eye. He was incredibly fast. Karhan Burak was merciless in his attacks, not even considering the other party's status as a princess. Tatumtan pulled a long face. He didn't expect Karhan Burak to be so presumptuous. The first prince stood at the side anxiously. It's fine if you hurt Mandarathu, but he'll also be punished if you hurt Liao. He Chuan's heart stirred, but he was not worried about Liao. As long as he was around, no one could hurt his disciple. He could see that Karhan Burak was unable to control his emotions, which should be the side effect of borrowing power. Karhan Burak long used the 13 invincible slashes. This was a blade technique created by a certain god or demon, and it was a fusion of the essence of various blade techniques. Each slash contained endless differences, often attacking the enemy from unexpected angles, pursuing the soul, and taking the life. Liya was now facing off against Karhan Burak and had seen a true expert. It was far faster, more ruthless, and more brutal than she had imagined. She immediately changed her move and quickly blocked the sword in front of her face. The sword and saber clashed, causing sparks to fly. The crisp sound of metal clashing resounded throughout the entire temporary camp. Liya felt a hidden force coming from the opponent's knife like a stormy sea, shaking his body and forcing him to take two steps back. Her arm was numb and sore, and the web between her thumb and forefinger of her right hand was torn and bleeding. She could barely hold on to the long sword and almost lost it. Seeing such a sharp knife momentum, the surrounding people couldn't help but shiver and break out in cold sweats for Sixth Princess Liao. After all, it was a sparring match, and the outcome was hard to predict. It was normal for her to be unable to control her strength. However, the evil warding sword technique was extremely strange. If Liya had more actual combat experience, she would not be so passive. Suddenly, Liya's figure flickered and became faint. The sword gleam also disappeared into the darkness. This was the special characteristic of the evil warding sword technique. The blade of the sword was like a life-taking venomous snake as it attacked Karhan Burak's throat. Liya's figure disappeared in an instant, 
causing the surrounding audience to exclaim in surprise. A moment later, there was no blood. Those with profound cultivation could clearly see that what was in Leah's sword was the afterimage of Karhan Burak, not the real body. Shape shifting. Karhan Burak revealed his face. The moment he appeared, he killed Mandarathu. Then, he used the thirteen invincible slashes to force Leah to retreat. Now, he had used the shape shifting movement technique to dodge Leah's killing intent and used three movements in succession which opened everyone's eyes and many people were amazed. Karhan Burak's figure was illusionary as he shifted his position and suddenly appeared behind Lia. His movement technique was so fast that it was as if he had appeared out of thin air. He unsheathed his treasured blood blade once again. His body spun quickly, and the blade followed his body. He drew a circle in the air and slashed out. The blade wind was sharp and fierce, whistling through the air. It was the fourth slash of the invincible thirteen slashes. The sound of the wind was so ear-piercing that Lia hurriedly turned around and immediately blocked it with her sword. The sword and saber clashed, and sparks flew everywhere. Suddenly, Karhan Burak's strike was followed by sixteen consecutive strikes, each of which was filled with fierce true energy. It made Lia take four steps back, her arms numb and her heart filled with shock. However, this wasn't the end. The saber momentum hadn't stopped. Karhan Burak's body flew up, and the bloody blade slashed down from the air. The fifth slash of the thirteen invincible slashes flew over. The blood blade was dazzling under the infusion of true energy. The invincible thirteen slashes became faster and faster, fiercer and fiercer. The power of the fifth slash was more than double that of the fourth slash. Lya wanted to dodge but Karhan Burak's blade was too fast for her, so she could only grit her teeth and take it. The three-foot-long green peak sword shot out a cold light and met the golden saber that Karhan Burak was slashing at. In an instant, a series of metal clanging sounds rang out in the field. The two sides had exchanged more than twenty moves in a row. Karhan Burak's blade form had not ended. After the twenty-four strikes, there was still one more strike, which was to cut Leah's underarm. At this moment, Leah's arms were sore and her moves were old, so she was unable to take this strike. Leah was about to die under the blade of Karhan Burak. Buzz. Everyone was stunned. This was because there was one more person in the field who easily caught Karhan Burak's blood blade with two fingers. The person who saved Leah was none other than He Chuan. He Chuan had been staring at the battle. He saw that Lia was following her opponent's momentum and chose to meet force with force in the end. He knew that she would lose. It was only when Lia was in danger that he came to her aid in time. One could see just how fast Karhan Burak's blade was. Very good. Seeing that He Chuan had saved Lia, Karhan Burak still did not intend to stop, as if he had gone crazy. Take my sixth slash. Before he could finish his shout, Karhan Burak's blood blade had already slashed out. One blade seemed to have turned into countless blades, swiftly slashing at the vital parts of Lia and He Chuan's bodies. Even an ant dares to overestimate its own ability. He Chuan said in disdain. The other party had clearly lost his mind and was obviously trying to take his and Lia's lives. It seemed that if the battle went on for too long, the aura of the gods and devils would start to go berserk causing people to fall into a state of frenzy. The sparks had not disappeared, and the blade light had not faded. The first prince's face was deathly pale. Karhan Burak's attack was ruthless and merciless. He was truly cruel and didn't take killing seriously. The point was that this was the sixth princess. Wasn't this just digging a grave for the first prince? He had thought that he had brought back an expert, but he had never thought that it would be a disaster. If Yi Chuan's strength was not enough, he really did not dare to think of the consequences. Big brother, you're too ruthless. You won't even let Sixth Sister off. The third prince stood up and could no longer suppress the ecstasy in his heart. He pretended to reveal killing intent in his eyes as he pointed at the first prince and said with a trembling finger. Looking at his expression, he thought that he had suffered a great grievance. Tatumtan looked calm because he knew how powerful Yi Chuan was. However, in his heart, he had already put Karhan Burak on his must-kill list. Chapter, 
180. No one would have thought that Karhan Burak would kill He Chuan and Li Ya at all costs. It was obvious that he did not put the nobles of the grassland in his eyes. The blood blade swept up a red light, enveloping the two people in the field. He Chuan calmly picked up the sword in Leah's hand and used the evil warding sword techniques, Devil Sweeper. With his strength, he did not need to do so, but he wanted to let Leah know what it meant to have an advantage. Sword energy flew everywhere, and He Chuan disappeared with Liao. God so fast. Karhan Durak clutched the wound on his neck and knelt on the ground, but he couldn't stop the blood from flowing. In the end, the strongest expert of the Xiongnu tribe died. They had suffered heavy losses in this competition. The inheritor of the Absolute Blade had been crippled, and the eldest princess and sixth princess Liya were probably the biggest winners. The first prince finally heaved a sigh of relief. However, when he thought of how the expert he had won over had died, he felt a little angry. In this competition, Princess Liya won the title of the tribe's strongest warrior. Tatumtan announced the result. Although the title of the number one warrior this time was slightly exaggerated, it was still a satisfactory conclusion. It's all thanks to young master He Chuan, otherwise Big Brother's men would have made a big mistake. The third prince looked at him carefully and immediately tried to build a relationship with He Chuan. It didn't matter whether the successor of the Absolute Blade won or lost. It was fine as long as the first prince didn't win. However, this sixth sister was worth paying attention to. With the help of an expert like He Chuan, she would have a higher chance of winning the position of king. The other princes and princesses also came to congratulate her, but most of them tried to win him over. Even if they were unhappy Liya had won the title of the number one warrior, they still had to put on a show. Tatumtan asked Liya if she had any wishes, but Liya said that she hadn't thought about it yet and would ask for it later. The competition ended and the bonfire banquet began. Kai Lien was looking forward to this. She liked everything related to food. In the temporary main tent, Tatumtan was sitting in the main seat, with two half-step saint cultivators beside him. How is it? What did you find? I'm afraid Karhan Burak has something to do with the imperial advisor, one of the half-step saint cultivator with a beard said. Humph. I'll talk to the grand tutor. If Karhan Burak dared to kill Ya, wouldn't he dare to kill me one day? Tatumtan was very wary of the imperial advisor. Because this imperial advisor was very mysterious, Tatumtan cooperated with him for his own benefit, but he also had to be on guard against him. This was to prevent the Xiongnu tribe from being consigned to eternal damnation. My king is right. No matter who is behind Tatumtan, killing a member of the royal family is a capital crime. I believe that the imperial advisor will not mind. Another black-robed half-step saint cultivator said. Hearing the obvious fear in the words of the two masters beside him, Tatumtan couldn't help but sigh in his heart. Cooperating with the imperial advisor was like asking a tiger for its skin. If he was not careful, he would be gnawed clean. He could only place his hopes on the secret of the central plains. At that time, the Xiongnu experts would be able to quickly increase their strength. Let's not talk about Karhan Burak for now. How's Lana doing? Tatumtan was more concerned about the Zhou dynasty. If they wanted to invade the central plains, they had to destroy the great Zhou dynasty first. Lana sent back a message saying that we still have to wait. The black-robed half-step saint cultivator lowered his head, thinking about something. Wait. Did this woman not know what her mission was? He told her to take care of herself and get rid of the obstacles as soon as possible. Tatumtan flicked his long sleeves, stood up, and walked out of the main tent. As a king, he had to personally attend the bonfire party. This way, he would appear to be close to the people below. He Chuan slowly retracted his divine sense while holding his special kumis. It was just as he had thought. Xiongnu had been able to rise so quickly in recent years because of the gods and demons. They had the same goal as Zhu Lengxin, which was to obtain the secret of the central plains. A hint of curiosity rose in his heart. What kind of secret would require the gods and devils to go through so much trouble to set up? With the strength of gods and devils, wouldn't it be better to personally go to the central plains to search? Or could it be that there were also powerhouses like gods and demons in the central plains, 
and the current situation was formed because of their existence. Countless thoughts flashed through his mind. However, the more important issue at hand was Cheng Yin. He Chuan had never thought that Cheng Yin, after becoming the emperor, would be so entranced by beauty that he would be unable to extricate himself. He could understand if they were looking for a way to live forever or were obsessed with alchemy. However, they were just a few beauties. What charm did they have? Master, Sister Liener, try this beef tenderloin. This is a treatment that only warriors get. Lia presented the beef tenderloin to He Chuan as if she was presenting a treasure. Kai Lian was not polite when it came to eating, and it immediately took a large piece. He Chuan picked up a small piece of beef and tasted it. However, the taste was really good. The beef tenderloin was the most expensive part of a cow's body. It was the essence of meat with low fat content. Today, apart from the royal family, only the warriors of the grassland could enjoy it. This was the first time Liya had obtained beef tenderloin as a warrior, so her happy expression was clearly displayed on her face. From tomorrow onwards, I'll double your cultivation, and also have lessons with Liener. He Chuan gave the beef tenderloin to Kai Lien, very dissatisfied with Liya's performance. Using the evil warding sword technique to fight against the heavy blade was clearly a brainless move. Oh! Liya lowered her head and didn't dare to say anything after being reprimanded. She knew that she had been too reckless during the battle. If He Chuan hadn't acted in time, she would have been either dead or injured. Young Master He Chuan, let me offer you a toast. The eldest princess swayed her sexy waist and walked over to them, her charming face full of temptation. She was blatantly trying to pry someone's corner. The sixth princess, Lia, was just a young and inexperienced little girl. How could she be as charming as a mature beauty like him? Who knew how many of the men in the grasslands coveted the eldest princess's beauty? However, this kind of thing had no effect on He Chuan, because his lustfulness was all an act to confuse others. He drank the wine in one gulp, his expression light and carefree, not changing because of the other party's temptation. It was only basic etiquette to drink with the other party. Humph. Imperial sister, aren't you going to comfort your warrior Narasong? He lost so badly today. Lia was like a little leopard protecting its food and immediately bared her sharp fangs at the eldest princess. The competition had officially begun. The silly girl was just a cover. As the youngest princess, she could only rely on her father's protection and had no bargaining chips to fight for power. However, the situation was different now. With He Chuan as her backing, she had the right to participate in the game. Most importantly, she had already become a great cultivator. He he, as expected, Sister Lia is the best actress. We were all fooled by you before. The eldest princess's eyes shot out two sinister gazes. At first, she had thought that her opponents would be the first prince and the third prince because the other siblings were basically trash and had no right to touch the position of the king. But now, she had a strong opponent. Chapter, 181 he Chuan quietly watched them mock each other and had no intention of interfering. As expected, this group of King's family children was all scheming people. Kai Lien held the beef tenderloin and watched with great interest. This was more interesting than watching the opera. She recalled He Chuan's previous teaching, the human heart is the most difficult to fathom. Don't be fooled by others' appearance, so put away your unnecessary kindness. The scene in front of her now was precisely what that sentence meant. If Lia had not taken the initiative to reveal her ambition, she would not have realized that the lovely grassland princess who surrounded her and called her sister Liener all day was actually so shrewd. Young master He Chuan, you still need to think about it. A half-step saint cultivator is not invincible. The eldest princess ignored Lia and continued her great cause of poaching. He Chuan didn't say anything and continued to drink. Back then, even Zhou Shimin was unable to persuade him, much less a princess from a small tribe. He wouldn't be here to watch them fight for power if it weren't for the traces of the gods and devils. Seeing that he didn't respond, the eldest princess didn't continue to dawdle and turn back to her seat. The Great Zhou Dynasty His Majesty the Emperor began to select concubines from all over the country. All 16 to 18-year-old beauties were required to attend. 
Some families did not want their daughters to suffer in the palace and wanted to hide their daughters. However, the government had ordered that anyone who dared to hide a young girl of the right age would be arrested for hiding. This caused many people to cry out in grief. No matter if you have an engagement or not, no matter if you have power or not, you must participate in the consort selection. The scale and intensity of the attack were unprecedented. In the face of this situation, there was no need for Grand Tudor Lu's denunciation to spread. The officials spontaneously began to condemn him in speech and writing. They attacked the emperor in writing and poetry. For this reason, the ministers sent memorials to the palace. Unfortunately, they didn't know that the trusted empress, Lana, had intercepted the memorials. Your Majesty, this group of scholars is idle and bored all day. They write boring articles to attack you every day. Shouldn't we give them a taste of our power? Lana massaged Chengen's temples as she spoke in a soothing voice. Most of the articles aimed at Lana, and they cursed her in various ways. Moreover, they disapproved of this new empress in their hearts, and some even wanted Fang Luqin to restore her position. Lana was extremely furious. Fang Luqin had always existed as a threat. However, with Princess Changning protecting her, it wasn't easy for her to make a move. She begged Chengen to send Fang Luqin out of the palace but was refused. After all, she was once the empress of the great Zhou dynasty and the emperor's woman. What if they put a green hat on Chengen after she left the palace? The eldest princess would disagree. Even if they were always in the palace, Chengen wouldn't let Fang Luqin go. Lana was afraid she'd evoke his disgust, so she didn't dwell on this matter. Instead, she was thinking about how to kill Fang Luqin secretly. I can't hear the scolding of the literati. They are just moaning in pain. When my emperor father was still in power, he would laugh at such poems and articles. There were so many scholars in the world that he couldn't manage all of them. Moreover, this group of scholars had stinky and hard bones and couldn't be killed. In general, it was very troublesome. So he didn't want to care about this kind of annoying matter. However, Lana didn't want to let this go. She didn't just want to be the empress. She wanted more power. Your Majesty, you're so diligent and love the people. You've given so much to the people, but they all misunderstood you in the end. Why don't you arrest them first and imprison them to reflect on themselves for a while? Lana came up with a brilliant plan. That's not good. Chingin still didn't want to make a move on the civil officials. After all, they relied on writing to make a living and couldn't rebel. Recently, Princess Changning had been bugging him. She didn't mention anything about Lana becoming the empress. Instead, she began to supervise the court. Hence, Lana didn't have the chance to share pillow talk with him. However, she did not want to see Chingin manage the government. Chingin, who had no heart for the government and was engrossed in beauty, was the situation she wanted to see. If your majesty doesn't want to care about it, why don't you leave it to me? I also want to help your majesty by setting up a supervisory organization. Not only can I monitor all the officials, but I can also help your majesty find beautiful women. Lana voiced her thoughts. As long as she could get the power of marriage, she would be able to get rid of those who opposed her and slowly take control of Chengen. The harem is not allowed to meddle in politics. Chengen frowned. It was a good idea to set up a supervisory organization. However, if he gave Lana authority, wouldn't his position as the emperor be a decoration? Therefore, he definitely could not. He wasn't stupid enough to give power to others. Even if Princess Changning came, it would not do, because the emperor's rights protection was essential. I also want to share your majesty's burden. The owner of this monitoring agency must be your majesty. You're also the one who gave the orders. However, I helped to set it up so as not to delay your happiness. You should know that the consort selection is almost concluded. Lana was sprawled on Chengen's body, and her jade-like hand slid across his chest. Once again, she brought up the matter of the consort selection. She wanted Chengen to sink into the sea of beauty completely. The supervisory organization had to be established no matter what, even if she could not fully control the power in the early stage. When Chengen heard that the consort selection was about to be done, his face immediately showed joy. 
Recently, he had been looking at the beauties of the western regions and was a little tired of them. It was not bad to change his taste occasionally. All right, I'll leave this matter to my beloved consort, but I need to look through the list. Cheng Yin finally agreed. Don't worry, your majesty. I'll send it to you as soon as possible. Lana's face lit up as she lowered her head and began to serve Cheng Yin with all her heart. The name list. As long as the beauties she trained could keep the emperor busy, he would not remember the name list. Little sister Qing Er's guess is right. It is indeed related to the Xiongnu tribe. It is a pity that the woman hid a strong poisonous mouth. Princess Changning held the letter in her hand, her tone full of pity. She listened to Fang Liuqing's suggestion and paid close attention to the movements around the palace walls. As expected, she caught a woman dressed as a palace maid last night and tried to climb over the wall. After capturing her easily, he found the letters between Lana and the Xiongnu. However, due to her slight negligence, the woman committed suicide. If she hadn't caught her red-handed, the addicted Chengen probably wouldn't have believed her. Lana would have even made a false countercharge against him. Sister Changning has already done a good job. We can leave this letter for now. When we have enough evidence, let's see how this wicked woman can deny it. Fang Luqing held the letter in her hands, feeling that this operation was extremely successful. At the very least, they had figured out the other party's background. As long as he exposed her at the right time, Lana would have nowhere to hide, and Cheng Yin would be able to realize the situation. Humph. That demoness is really detestable. It's fine that she bewitched his majesty, but now she's even holding a national consort selection. All young girls of suitable age must participate. What's the difference between this and forcefully snatching women? Noble consort Qin pouted her cherry lips and said with extreme dissatisfaction. The impact of this incident was indeed not small. The image of the wise emperor Cheng Yin had plummeted among the people. Chapter 182 Of course, Princess Changning also knew that Cheng Yin had done something wrong. The last time they had met, she had already tried to persuade him. However, Cheng Yin used the excuse of having more offspring to firmly reject Princess Changning's proposal. In the end, the siblings parted on bad terms. So recently, Princess Changning no longer went to find Cheng Yin, in case the wicked woman found an opportunity to send her out of the palace. Unfortunately, Qin Lihua had been cultivating in the Daoist temple for many years and no longer care about their affairs. Even if she stepped in to manage it, it would definitely be of no use and would only add to the troubles. Sister Changning, is there still no news about your master? After Fang Luqin knew that He Chuan had the power to set things right, she knew that this was their biggest chance to turn things around. Every time she heard Princess Changning mention it, she knew that the other party was highly skilled in martial arts and had no problem suppressing Lana and the others. There's still no news. Wei Qiancheng has helped to search for a long time, but we only found the house where Master used to live, but it's already empty. Princess Changning shook her head helplessly. He Chuan's last appearance was in Yangzhou City, but after searching for so long, there was no news of him at all. She had a feeling that He Chuan would definitely appear to help the Great Zhou stabilize the situation. Master. Please return as soon as possible, the Great Zhou needs you. The Plains. Xiongnu Tribe. Walla. The first prince flipped the table over, and the things on the table were smashed into pieces. Liya. He Chuan. Just wait, I'll kill you all one day. The card that he had relied on the most had been destroyed, and his father was obviously very dissatisfied. This would be extremely disadvantageous to the future successor. He had promised the imperial advisor that he would become the new king, which was why the other party had sent Karhan Burak over. Now that he was dead, he didn't know how to explain it. He couldn't help but shiver when he thought of the state preceptor's methods. All of a sudden, the space in the bed chamber distorted slightly, and a figure appeared in front of the first prince. With a black cloak draped over his body, he emitted a black aura, making it impossible to see his face clearly. Greetings, Imperial Advisor. The first prince stood up and bowed respectfully, even more respectful than when he was facing Tutumtum. You failed. 
The imperial advisor's voice was very calm as if he had no emotions. It was very smooth at first, but I didn't know why Karhan Burak went crazy and tried to kill the sixth princess, so I. Before the first prince could finish, he was interrupted by the imperial advisor. He's just a piece of trash. You don't have to take it to heart. You can have as many Exiantian Ninth Stage Grandmasters as you want. The Imperial Advisor's tone was as if he had thrown away a piece of useless garbage. Seeing that the other party did not blame him, the First Prince was relieved. At the same time, he was secretly shocked. This mysterious Imperial Advisor was really powerful. He did not even care about a cultivator of the Xantian Ninth Stage. What should we do next? Now that a stumbling block has appeared, Ya has already become a Sientian cultivator, she can break through the half-step saint cultivator without it. The first prince was a little anxious. The Xiongnu people had always respected the strong, but now that someone had appeared out of nowhere. He used to have the best chance of inheriting the throne, but now it was hard to say. If they waited until Ya became a half-step saint cultivator, then the others would have no chance. To break through with the help of external forces is nothing. I need to change my plan. The imperial advisor's tone wavered with a hint of disdain. Change of plans? Is imperial advisor going to send a half-step saint cultivator over? The first prince said arrogantly. Hee hee, they're not sending half-step saint cultivators. But for you to become a half-step saint cultivator. The imperial advisor's laughter sounded creepy and uneasy. Lia had already become a Sientian cultivator, so the first prince had already lost the upper hand. Even if he sent a half-step saint cultivator over, he would not be able to change to Tumpton's opinion. If his children were half a step saint cultivator, it would definitely make the Xiongnu king happier. Borrowing external forces was always the lowest method because you didn't know if the external force you borrowed would choose to eat its master or not. But I'm already old, how can I break through? The first prince laughed at himself. He was addicted to the power struggle and could not extricate himself. He had missed the best age for cultivation, and now it was basically stagnated. What breakthrough? Short-sighted, what can't our supreme god do? As long as you become a king, don't forget to become a subject of god. The imperial advisor stood up and looked up, his voice filled with madness. Could he become a half-step saint cultivator? He had never even thought about it before. It was a great surprise to be able to become a half-step saint cultivator. Re really? He could not help but start to tremble. Do I have to lie to you? You're just a half-step saint cultivator. As long as you're obedient, you might even become a saint cultivator. The imperial advisor said in disdain. To him, this level was worthless. If it wasn't for the fact that gods couldn't appear in front of people, for the time being, becoming a saint cultivator was indeed not a dream. Obedient, obedient. I'll definitely be obedient. The first prince nodded hurriedly. As long as he could become a half-step saint cultivator, he would be willing to eat SHT, let alone be obedient. After taking it, it can help you become a half-step saint cultivator. However, if you don't have the corresponding realm, it's easy for you to not be able to suppress your rage. Try not to fight with others. The imperial advisor left these words and reincarnated, leaving the tent. The first prince knelt on the ground excitedly and picked up the scarlet pill. This was his hope. Young master, why do you keep frowning recently? Kai Lien massaged his temples. Seeing He Chuan's habitual frown, she helped to smooth it out. There are always rats, and I hate rats the most. He Chuan's eyes were closed. He had clearly sensed the aura of a god in the first prince's bedroom. Although the other party had concealed his aura, it still did not escape his divine sense. Kai Lien knew that he wasn't talking about the real rats, but the group of evil gods. I didn't expect the Xiongnu tribe to have so many rats. Young master, how do you plan to deal with them? After Kai Lien felt that Lia had ulterior motives, she did not want to stay any longer. Her life in the past was still better. She missed the times when she was reading in the library pavilion or the life of a farmer and a weaver in Yangzhou City. Now that they were scheming against each other and looking for some annoying god, she finally began to understand Yichuan's mentality at that time. 
When she had just left the palace, she had felt that it was very fresh and that she could travel everywhere. However, as time passed, Kai Lian wanted to go back more and more. Don't act rashly. Let's wait until we figure out the situation first. Know yourself and know your enemy, and you'll win every battle. Never overestimate yourself and underestimate your enemy. He Chuan always maintained a clear-headed state in the human world. If a god or devil was more powerful than him, it would be easy for him to get into trouble if he attacked rashly. There was still a period of time before he could leave the Xiongnu tribe. He knew what Kai Lian was thinking, but now was not the time to leave. At the very least, he had to solve the problem at hand. Chapter, 183 Master, Sister Liener, this is the tremella soup that I specially asked the kitchen to make for you. It's easy to get heady if you just eat meat on the grassland. Lia personally brought in two bowls of soup. He Chuan was still the same as before, smiling as he picked up the tremella soup. Kai Lien, on the other hand, was a little cold, not as close to Lia as she was before, and there was gradually a sense of distance. Lia did not seem to notice this and continued to hang around them, not mentioning anything about the royal power. In fact, He Chuan admired this disciple of his. At least she could hide her true self well so that she could maintain an advantage in the fight for power. Take these two bottles of pills back. Don't slack off on your cultivation. You'll become a half-step saint cultivator soon. After He Chuan knew the imperial advisor's goal, he could not let Lia fall behind. After all, whoever became the future king would bring benefit to their plans. The system's products were definitely of high quality. Lia knew that He Chuan had given her good things and she could break through to the half-step saint cultivator realm as soon as possible. Wasn't that what she wanted? Thank you, master. Lia gave him a kiss on the cheek and left the place happily with the pill. Our plan is in line with her ambitions. If there's anything Liener can't let go of, whether you can continue to be good friends with her depends on what you think. He Chuan said a few words of comfort and continued to drink his soup. In fact, in his current realm, it was not a problem for him to go without food for a month. It was something that was not essential. He would occasionally take a bite or two to warn himself that he was still immortal. But Kai Lien was purely eating for her desire for food. As long as she saw food, she would not move. It had to be said that the taste of the tremella soup in the grassland was really good. Liena knows that what you said makes sense, but I can't get over it for the time being. Perhaps I'll be fine in two days. Kai Lien also knew that Lia had the right to choose her own future, and she had no right to interfere. From the beginning to the end, she had been too short-sighted and did not expect Lia to be so ambitious. She felt a little cheated. It's good that you can get over it. Aren't we lying to her too? It's a two-way arrow. He Chuan had the help of his divine eyes and could tell at a glance that Lia was not simple. That was why he had thought of supporting Lia to become the future female king. If she was not cut out for it, he would not have wasted his efforts. Just like the third prince, who seemed to be on par with the first prince and the eldest princess, but in fact, all his cards had been seen through, and he had no right to inherit the throne. Leah's biggest opponents now were the first prince and the eldest princess. The eldest prince was supported by the mysterious imperial advisor, and the eldest princess was definitely supported by someone. Did Tatumta know this? The situation of the Xiongnu tribe was far more complicated than he had imagined. Last time, young master said that the situation in the Zhou dynasty was not optimistic. Are you not going to go back and help? Kai Lien didn't bother about Lia's problem anymore and left it to time to solve. She suddenly remembered that the Zhou Emperor was always indulged in beauty. At that time, he had mentioned that he wanted to go back. Liener, stay behind and cover for me. It'll take at most three days to come and go. He Chuan thought of Zhou Shimin's request in the secret letter, then about Cheng'en's failure to live up to expectations. He couldn't help but sigh. Couldn't they just let him be less worried? Besides, there were so many beauties in the central plains. He was really useless to be able to charm a few western beauties. Kai Lien had originally wanted to follow him back, but when she heard that she had to stay behind to cover for him, she was somewhat disappointed. 
but she suddenly realized that the Xiongnu tribe was so far away from the Great Zhou, and there was a desert in between, but it only took three days to go back and forth. How was that possible? Is young master teasing me? How could the return trip be so short? It would take at least ten days to half a month. Kai Lian wanted to confirm if she had heard wrong. She had to make sure the time was right as a cover. Becoming a saint cultivator isn't the end. Every time you advance to the next realm, you'll find that the door to a new world is open for you. If He Chuan used all his strength, he would be able to return to the capital of the great Zhou dynasty very quickly. He had come to see the changes in life, so he naturally couldn't go too fast. This time, Kai Lian understood that He Chuan's realm was far more terrifying than she had imagined. There was such a huge gap between Saint Cultivator. The Great Zhou Dynasty had undergone earth-shaking changes recently. Because the Emperor had issued the latest imperial edict, announcing the establishment of the Supervision Department. The Inspection Department had the power to monitor the officials and the people of the world. They also had the right to act first and report later. Countless scholars who criticized the Empress and the Emperor were arrested and sent to prison. The self-restraint of scholars was higher than the sky. They thought that it would not be a problem to stay in prison for a few days. They might even gain a reputation and show that they were unyielding and not afraid of imperial power. However, when they entered the prison, they realized that things were different from what they had expected. The official who called himself the Invigilator had already prepared all kinds of torture equipment and began to torture these weak scholars. He was forcing them to admit to their crimes. In the beginning, these scholars would rather die than submit, but the Invigilator's methods were extremely cruel. If they didn't admit to their crimes, they would be tortured to death. Skinning, cramping, and dismembering the body were all relatively easy punishments. Falling into the hands of this group of people, the earlier they died, the better. Otherwise, it would really be life worse than death. Under such punishment, the scholar could only admit their guilt helplessly. Where there was oppression, there would be resistance. Under the forced suppression of the Inspection Bureau, countless civil organizations began to emerge in various places, bound to overthrow the tyranny. Scholars might not be good at fighting on the battlefield, but they were very good at inciting people's hearts and writing articles. In addition to the forced selection of concubines, many people had begun to join the rebellion army. Very few people wanted to live an ordinary life. If they could kill their way into the capital, they would be able to get high positions and great rewards. Is there anyone who is born to be a king, a duke, a general or a minister? Faced with the rebellion army that had sprung up like mushrooms after the rain, the officials of various places were panicking and hurriedly sent the memorials to the palace. But what they didn't know was that the memorials could no longer reach Emperor Chengen's hands. Every day, Chengen indulged himself in the newly trained beauties. In the beginning, in order to not delay his enjoyment, he would play with the beauties while getting Lana to read him memorials. Of course, Lana only read what she wanted Chengen to hear, and filtered out everything she didn't want him to hear. Later on, Chengen believed that the entire Great Zhou was peaceful, that the ministers could easily resolve this, and that he only needed to indulge in pleasure. Princess Changning, Fang Yuanqing, and the other officials could no longer sit still. They had not expected Chengen to become like this. He didn't even care about the basic state affairs, and the word prison was established in various places, causing the Zhou dynasty to constantly deteriorate. Today, this princess will cooperate with General Qin from the inside and outside to behead this demoness in public. Princess Changning clenched her fist and said. This minister have an important matter to ask of you. After coming up with a plan, Fang Yuanqing suddenly knelt down. What are you guys doing? I'll definitely kill that demoness. Princess Changning was a little puzzled. Was there a need to be so exaggerate just to kill a person? Even if they didn't kneel and beg, Princess Changning would still do her best to kill Lana. She wouldn't rest until she died. Chapter, 184 We would like to invite your highness to ascend the throne. Fang Yuanqing said. It was an earth-shattering statement. Since ancient times, there had been no precedent of an empress ascending to the throne. Are you guys crazy? After killing Lana, can't Chengen still lead you to stabilize the great Zhou Empire? 
Princess Changning never thought that they would suddenly say this. She had never thought of such a thing. This was even more difficult than killing Lana. Moreover, what would happen to Chingen? Eldest princess, do you think that after killing Lana, his majesty will become his former self? His heart is no longer on the state affairs. In the past, Fang Yuanqing also thought that Chingen could turn back. Thinking that the emperor had been bewitched by the demoness, there must still be hope. However, now that Lana was basically in control of the imperial court, but Chengen didn't care about it at all. He continued to hang around with his newly selected concubines. Thus, he had already seen through Chengen's true nature. Chengen was a fatuous ruler who indulged in beauty, but it had only been stimulated. It was easy to go from frugal to extravagant, but difficult to go from extravagant to frugal. Even if he could change his mind this time, there was no guarantee that a new woman would appear one day, and Chengen would still fall for her. Furthermore, the Xiongnu tribe already knew about the weakness of the great Zhou Emperor, so they would definitely continue to use this strategy. Prime Minister Fang is right. Eldest Princess has to think about the great Zhou. His Majesty is indulging himself with women every day. I'm afraid his body is already Qin Yin Tian did not continue. Chingen spent 29 days a month playing with beauties. If Lana was pregnant, they would have accepted it. At most, he would just cripple Lana's martial arts and have her give birth to the future crown prince. However, the women of the harem did not have any news. Coupled with the fact that Chengen did not care about his body, it was probably very difficult to leave behind an heir. A dynasty without an heir was very dangerous. Emperor Chengen's only sibling was Princess Changning. If an outsider were to inherit the Zhou dynasty, it would be no different from destruction. Most importantly, after Chengen's death, everyone in the great Zhou dynasty would want to be emperor, but in the end, there would still be internal strife. The only way was for Princess Changning to inherit the throne and for Chengen to become a free and unfettered prince. When Princess Changning's child was born, it would be fine to give them surname Zhou. At that time, the throne could be naturally handed over. It was the best of both worlds. This princess can't quite accept it now, let me rest a bit. Princess Changning held her forehead, unable to make up her mind. On one side was the great Zhou dynasty, and on the other side was his closest brother. What if Chengen couldn't accept it? I understand the eldest princess's difficulties, but have you ever thought that the current life is what the emperor likes? Perhaps he will be very happy to accept it. Fang Yuanqing was an experienced man. He knew that Princess Changning did not reject them directly, which meant that there was hope. Besides, men understood men. Chengen wished he could lead a drunken life every day. The life he likes. Princess Changning repeated this sentence. He Chuan's figure appeared in front of her again. Back then, she did not understand why her omnipotent master was willing to cultivate in the central library pavilion. Year after year, day after day, he never thought about climbing up for power. After being granted 9,000 year title, he immediately left the palace with Kai Lian and traveled to various places to see the local customs. Perhaps this was the life he Chuan liked. He could cultivate without restraint, go wherever he wanted to go, and not be bound. Fang Yuanqing saw that Princess Changning's expression kept changing and knew that he should increase the dosage. He quickly signaled to the other ministers. If the eldest princess does not agree, we will kneel for as long as needed. All right, but we'll talk about it after we kill that wicked witch. For the sake of the stability of the great Zhou dynasty, Princess Changning decided to accept Fang Yuanqing's suggestion. The ministers stood up and began to plan for the purge. The eldest princess is a saint cultivator. She should be able to capture and kill that wicked woman. Some officials were very optimistic because as far as they knew, there were only a few saint cultivators in the entire central plains. Now that they didn't have to worry about Chengen, the plan could be easily implemented. No. It should be a fierce battle. Master once taught me a method to conceal one's aura, so it will be difficult for opponents of the same realm to discover this princess's true strength, so this princess feels that this demoness also knows the aura concealing technique. Princess Changning was not so optimistic. She always remembered He Chuan's teachings and never looked down on anyone. 
Cheng Yin had been bewitched to the point of losing his soul. He had probably told her about her strength as a saint cultivator. When Lana met her, she didn't show any signs of fear. Then, it was possible that the other party was also a saint cultivator. Is that demoness really that strong? Qin Yin Tian was in disbelief. As a general, he knew how terrifying a saint cultivator was. We have to prepare for the worst. However, Master only taught me the highest grade martial arts. I have the advantage in the same realm. You don't have to worry too much. Princess Changning was confident in her martial arts, but she was afraid of accidents. There's no time to waste. This subject will immediately contact the Imperial Guards to enter the palace. Qin Yin Tian hurriedly left. In the Imperial Palace. Qing En's head was resting on the beautiful woman's plump thighs, and there were three new beauties serving him. Ever since the establishment of the Ministry of Supervision, the crime rate has been plummeting. However, there has been a shortage of manpower recently. Your Majesty should consider expanding it. How about 500 people? Lana sat to the side and helped to review the memorials. Although she was asking, she had already made her decision. The Empress can do as she wishes, when will the next batch of beauties be sent over? I've already tried all the tricks of these beauties. Cheng Yin only cared about beauty and pleasure now. He didn't have the time to worry about political affairs. Your Majesty, don't worry. In a few days, I'll send over thirty beauties. They're all one in a million beauties. I've already helped you train them to be very obedient. Lana's lips curled up into a mocking smile. She had only added 500 men to better control the situation in the court. Ha ha ha. Then I'll wait for two more days. Cheng Yin said excitedly. Your Majesty, the eldest princess requests an audience. A palace maid wearing a thin veil walked in, which couldn't hide her beautiful scenery at all. There weren't even eunuchs in Cheng Yin's resting place. It was filled with all kinds of beauties, including palace maids, for him to enjoy at any time. Oh no, hurry up and help this emperor get up and change clothes. You guys should also quickly change your clothes. Cheng Yin hurriedly got up. He still had a lot of respect for this sister of his. After quickly packing up, Cheng Yin sat on Lana's seat and pretended to be handling political matters. Humph. You're good at acting. Princess Changning went forward to pull Cheng Yin's ear. The beauties could only lower their heads and pretend that they didn't see anything. It's impolite of the eldest princess to do this. His majesty is priceless. How can you hit and scold him so easily? Lana was currently thinking about how to get Princess Chaning out of the palace so that she could rest easy. Don't give me that. It's impolite to talk about it now. You all are playing here without even wearing clothes. Do you think this princess doesn't know? Cheng Yin. You've let father and grand tutor Lu down. Today, you will go to mother and tell her yourself. After Princess Changning finished speaking, she pulled Cheng Yin's wrist and walked out. Your acting skills are not bad. Lana clapped her hands, and the eight western beauties from before suddenly appeared and surrounded Princess Changning and Cheng Yin. Chapter, 185 What do you want? Hurry up and retreat. Faced with the attacks of the Western beauties, Cheng Yin instinctively protected Princess Changning and had everyone move away. You finally revealed your ugly side. A witch from Xiongnu. Princess Changning let go of Cheng Yin, and two streaks of lightning shot out from her beautiful eyes. She knew that Lana wouldn't let her take Cheng Yin away. Your Majesty. Princess Changning is planning a rebellion. As the Empress, this concubine has the duty to help you get rid of the threat. Lana smiled indifferently. Right now, all she needed was a living emperor. Whether he was crippled or imprisoned, it was fine as long as Cheng Yin was alive. As for Princess Changning's repeated attempts to ruin her plans, he had to get rid of her now. This is outrageous. Someone, lock up the Empress. Does she say that Princess Changning is rebelling? Cheng Yin didn't believe a single word. He was obsessed with beauty, but he wasn't really stupid. Now, Lana's intentions were clear. Unfortunately, no one responded. A few palace maids with high martial arts skills had already quickly surrounded the outer side. 
Princess Chining's escape route had been completely blocked. Ha ha ha. Your majesty really doesn't understand the situation. It's good for you to enjoy your life here every day. As long as you promise this princess to expel the eldest princess and gradually transfer the power, this princess will let her go and you can continue to enjoy your life. How about it? Lana didn't intend to continue pretending. Originally, she had wanted to take things step by step and slowly get the power in her hands, but now it seemed that Princess Chanming could no longer sit still. Then let's see who will win today. How dare you lie to me, you impudent witch! Chinyin gritted his teeth. Only now did he realize that he had been played. Slap! Princess Chining felt resentful for Chengen's failure to live up to her expectations and slapped him heavily in the face. Now that you've come to your senses, you've almost destroyed the foundation of our ancestors. None of the scholars in the Zhou dynasty support you now. All the places are revolting. Do you think you can handle the government while lying in bed? Chengen was completely stunned. It wasn't that he had been beaten silly by Princess Chengen, but that he hadn't expected the matter to be so serious. They said that the Zhou dynasty would be prosperous and that even if he didn't go to court, he would be able to handle government affairs well. It turned out that everything was a lie. It's just a small group of bandits. Your majesty doesn't need to worry. This princess can destroy them with a wave of my hand. Lana said with absolute confidence. Kill. I think you'd better save your own life first. Princess Chongming's aura continued to rise. She released her Saint Cultivator aura, and the air around her froze. The eight extraterrestrial beauties took a step back and released their auras as well. Half-step Saint Cultivator The eight beauties who looked weak were all half-step Saint Cultivators. However, no matter how many half-step Saint Cultivators there were, they couldn't fill the gap between them and Saint Cultivators. It was like a huge natural chasm. Those who had not reached the martial Saint level were just ants. Whoosh! Bang! The cloud-piercing arrow rose in the night sky and exploded in the air. The dazzling fireworks represented the beginning of the slaughter. The sounds of battle instantly joined together as Qin Yuntian led the imperial army and charged toward the palace, engaging in a fierce battle with the men that Lana had bribed. It seems like you're well prepared. However, you're destined to return empty-handed today, because you're not the only saint cultivator. Lana released her aura, instantly reaching the level of a saint cultivator. A faint red mist surrounded her body. The god and devil. The eldest princess's expression changed slightly. She remembered he Chuan had often mentioned gods and devils before he left. Back then, out of curiosity, she had also read anecdotes of Chizhou. Now, Lana's situation was similar to what was recorded in the books. I don't know what you're talking about, but you can call this princess god if you like. As long as you kneel and beg for mercy, I'll let you live today. Lana had been bestowed with martial arts and pills by a mysterious person to become a saint cultivator. She had no idea what the other party's identity was. That was why her ambition was growing. It was hard to predict the outcome of a battle between saint cultivators battle. With eight half-step saint cultivators by her side, the scales of victory began to tilt in Lana's favor. Chingen felt a great sense of powerlessness as he looked at the situation before him. It turned out that nothing the person sleeping beside her said was true, and it was still her identity as a saint cultivator. Killing him was as easy as killing an ant. If not for her fear of Princess Changning, he would have been crippled and become the emperor in the name only. However, he couldn't change anything now. He could only watch helplessly. This emperor was truly a tragic failure. Since you are so stubborn, don't blame this princess for not being polite. Before she could finish her sentence, Lana had already lost her patience. She pressed two of her fingers together and pointed at Princess Changning's back. As the saying goes, when enemies meet, their eyes will turn red. Furthermore, Princess Changning was an obstacle in front of her. She instantly pointed out her sword fingers and condensed nearly 90% of her internal energy. The whistling sound broke through the air, and the strength was not trivial. The air in the surroundings immediately condensed. Princess Changning didn't dare to be slow. 
her figure flickered and she used the shape-shifting movement technique. At the same time, he used the martial art from the Sunflower Bible taught by He Chuan, air-condensed needles. Countless silver needles flew through the air and shot toward Lana, who was charging toward her. The silver needle whistled along with the wind, containing wind and thunder. The gentle wind stirred up the grass and leaves that filled the sky, dancing, and whistling. The Sunflower Bible was a top-grade martial art. No matter if it was in terms of technique or strength, no average Joe could compare to it. Lana didn't dare to be slow either. She immediately retreated at high speed, and her protective aura instantly enveloped her entire body. Clang clang clang. The energy blocked the countless silver needles. It was a good thing that the two of them were at the same cultivation level. Otherwise, this move would have taken Lana's life. The Central Plains is indeed filled with crouching tigers and hidden dragons. This princess has decided not to kill you. This princess will pry out this exquisite martial art from your mouth. Lana's lips curled into a cold smile as she clenched her right hand into a fist and punched out with lightning speed. Boom! A terrifying sound rang out, and there was a faint twining of lightning. The Heaven Demon Five Thunder Fist contained the thirteenth level of inner force, which was a high-level martial art created by the gods and demons. Although it couldn't be compared to the system's reward, its power couldn't be underestimated. Princess Changning shouted. Offering Buddha with borrowed flowers. The intense and dazzling golden light around her body immediately began to spin, gradually spinning faster and faster. The powerful centrifugal force was like a celestial maiden scattering flower, sweeping the fist force around her body away in all directions. The two different internal forces immediately produced an extreme rejection. The thick force of the heaven-killing five thunder fists and the soft and domineering force of the sunflower manual swept up the flowers and trees within a dozen meters. With the two of them as the center, a vacuum was formed. Chengen had learned martial arts from Hichuan for a while, so he had the ability to protect himself. However, just as he was trying to escape, he was grabbed by the collar by Western Beauty and was carried away like a little chick. It was impossible to run. Fortunately, Chengen was still of use, and this group of Western Beauties wouldn't do anything to him. However, as the Emperor of the Zhou Dynasty, he was too cowardly. Chapter, 186 Go to Hell Princess Changning raised her vital essence to the extreme and used the evil warding sword technique. Two of her fingers formed a sword, and the blade's radiance immediately expanded in the wind. Like a venomous snake that was about to devour its prey, she forced Lana back ten steps on the spot. Lana didn't dare to show any weakness, and she once again used the cultivation technique taught to her by the god and devil. The two of them exchanged blows again. They were so fast that even a half-step saint cultivator couldn't see them clearly. Houses collapsed and cracks appeared on the ground. If someone accidentally entered the center of their battle, they would be torn to pieces in an instant. A saint cultivator's strength was terrifying. However, there was still a difference between them. Lana relied on external forces to inject her strength into her core. There was still a gap between her and Princess Changning. The longer the two fought, the more obvious Lana's disadvantage became. Princess Changning's sword-like fingers streaked across the sky, bringing up a strand of her opponent's hair. Even his protective energy barrier had been pierced through by the sword's fingers. Princess Changning's evil warding swordsmanship was unbelievably fast, which was a world of difference from Leah's. When she was about to pursue victory, the attack of the four western region beauties was already five feet in front of her. The momentum of their joint attack was so strong that even Princess Changning couldn't help but be afraid. In her eyes, the strength of this group of Western Region beauties was far below her. However, when they attacked together, their inner force seemed to converge in some special way, so that each person's attack power could increase by several times in an instant. If he didn't guess wrong, if the four of them were already so powerful when they joined forces, the power of the three of them would be even more multiplied. It would be best to break them down one by one. Princess Changning had already decided on an attack strategy in her mind. Her body moved to the side at the same time, and she used the shape-shifting technique to bypass the joint attack of the four people. 
the speed of his movement technique was unparalleled. She instantly pounced toward Lana, who was still in mid-air, and flicked her left index finger. Whoosh! A crimson sword energy shot forth from his fingertips and headed straight for Lana, who was ten meters away. It was as fast as lightning, and it was the evil warding sword technique's moon-chasing meteor. This move was like a meteor in the sky, and it was extremely fast. Lana was so frightened by Princess Changning's sword that her face was as white as a sheet. She was just about to pull away and calm the blood in her body before continuing the battle. However, she didn't expect Princess Changning to dodge the joint attack of the four and attack her. Now that she could not avoid it, she raised her internal strength to the maximum and used the Heaven Fiend Five Thunder Fists to meet the Moon Chasing Meteor. The three feet's distance was covered in an instant. The red sword energy and the silver fist forces clashed in the middle of the two. The sword's energy was like a sharp ball. The dense fist force was unable to block Princess Changning's evil warding sword technique. The sword force still pierced through the fist force and continued to fly towards Lana. Not good. Lana's forcefully thrown fist was unable to block the sword force and was greatly shocked. As she watched the sword force pierce through her fist and fly toward her, she hurriedly dodged to the side. However, she was still a step too slow. The sword energy pierced through Lana's arm, and blood instantly gushed out. Lana tapped a few spots around the wound and immediately stopped the bleeding. What a pity! Princess Changning thought to herself when she saw that the other party was not seriously injured. All of you, come with me together. Lana was utterly shocked by the ghostly evil warding swordsmanship. She no longer had her earlier arrogance and immediately commanded the eight western beauties to attack together. She must kill Princess Changning today. The eight beauties of the western regions stood together, and their auras suddenly soared. Their realms were not the same as normal saint cultivators. It seemed that the cultivation techniques created by gods and devils could not be underestimated. This kind of joint attack technique was very rare even in the martial arts world of the Central Plains. Flame Palm The eight western beauties shouted at the same time. The scorching flames wrapped around a huge palm shadow that was as heavy as a thousand pounds. The palm was as heavy as a mountain, and its aura suppressed Princess Changning's body. This time, it was Princess Changning's turn to hurriedly retreat to increase the distance between them and the flaming palm. It brushed past her by a hair's breadth and disappeared into a towering pagoda tree a hundred feet away, where it burst into flames. Princess Changning knew that she couldn't drag this on any longer. Lana was still staring at her like a tiger watching its prey. She had to break through the combined attacks of these eight people first. She took the initiative to pounce on her with unparalleled speed, leaving behind countless afterimages, making it impossible for people to distinguish between the real and the fake. She pointed out the evil warding sword technique's bell-shaped demonic eyes with both hands. It shot toward the heart of the western region beauty on the far left. No one had expected that Princess Changning, who had just suffered a secret loss, would still dare to take the initiative to attack. They were a little flustered at first. After all, the true strength of these eight western region beauties was only half-step saint cultivator realm. However, their combined attacks could reach the level of a saint cultivator. In a one-on-one -on -one situation, they could not block it at all. In a moment of desperation, the beauty of the western region on the far left could no longer wait for her companions to come to help. She quickly stood still and used all her strength to launch a fiery palm at Princess Changning like a thunderbolt. She planned to meet force with force and at least delay Princess Changning's footsteps until her companions came to help. Seeing this, Princess Changning quickly withdrew her sword fingers and formed a fist. Then she turned her fist into a palm and used the Sunflower Bible to condense countless silver needles. Overbearing and soft vital essence instantly appeared in the palm of her hand, which suddenly met the flame palm of the Western Region Beauty on the far left, aiming to seriously injure the other party in the shortest time possible. Otherwise, when the other seven arrived, they would have to pay a huge price to deal with eight experts at once, including the saint cultivator, Lana. The flaming palm hit both of Princess Changning's palms. In an instant, countless air explosions rang out. 
The western region beauty on the far left felt an extremely powerful and rotating energy force, which forcibly moved away her raging internal strength. At the same time, her body was also involuntarily pulled out by Princess Changning, just in front of her two companions. The western region beauty on the far left immediately felt that something was wrong. Just as she was about to stabilize her body and escape, a series of violent forces had already exploded in her chest. She looked down and saw that Princess Changning's right palm had silently pressed against her chest. The internal force in her palm was like a raging sea, pouring into her body. She could only feel her body involuntarily flying backward as if all the energy in her body had left her body. Her vision became more and more blurry, and a large amount of blood gushed out of her throat. In the end, her entire body crashed into the forest behind her. Katya. She crashed through two trees that were as thick as an adult's arm and fell into the flowers. There was no movement, and it was unknown if she was dead or alive. Princess Changning's tactic was successful. She instantly injured one of them, greatly reducing the power of the other party's joint attack. The threat it posed was limited. Lana was shocked, and her expression changed. Princess Changning's martial arts skills were beyond her imagination. They were both saint cultivators, but Changning was much stronger than Lana. This made Lana even more determined to obtain the Sunflower Bible Technique. Chapter 187 Let's join forces and kill her. Lana said. She immediately appeared in front of the remaining seven otherworldly beauties. The palms of the seven western beauties were connected, and each of them activated their highest skills at the same time. They secretly circulated their divine skills in their bodies to integrate the internal energy transmitted by the other party. In an instant, the true energy in the seven people's bodies began to converge and merge, forming a strange internal force that was both hard and soft. Finally, all of it was transferred to Lana, who was standing at the very front, forming a strange internal energy that was both hard and soft. The five elements mutually reinforced and restrained each other, able to merge completely different inner forces without producing any rejection. The strength of gods and devils couldn't be underestimated. No wonder He Chuan insisted on leaving the library pavilion to search for the legendary gods and devils. No one could underestimate the immensity of the world. Lana slowly approached Princess Changning. The aura she exuded was even stronger than before. She was like a still pool. Even Princess Changning's heavy aura could not move her clothes at all. This deep abyss-like silence made one think that Lana's attack would definitely be earth-shattering and heaven-shattering. Princess Changning quickly decided on a strategy. She leaped up once more and instantly channeled true energy into her right leg, which sent her flying toward Lana's head. Just as it was about to hit Lana's head, she suddenly disappeared. At this moment, a sky full of fist shadows attacked Princess Changning from the lower left side with an amazing force. At this time, Princess Changning was still in mid-air and couldn't use force to dodge. When Lana's attack was about to land, Princess Changning hurriedly retracted her right foot and began to spin. She wanted to escape Lana's attack range as quickly as possible. Just as she was three feet away from Princess Changning, Lana's fist had already struck the protective energy barrier behind her. Dozens of sounds from the energy barrier breaking were heard. Princess Changning's protective barrier energy shattered inch by inch. Although Lana's fist had not reached her, the violent force had already jolted Princess Changning's body back and forth more than ten times. It almost broke through her protective magic barrier. She didn't expect Lana's internal strength to increase by so much with the combined internal strength. It was a violent blow. It could almost break the magic barrier outside her body. However, she had to kill this devilish woman today in order to return peace to the great Zhou dynasty. Thinking of this, Princess Changning couldn't help but ignite a fighting spirit in the depths of her heart. She hurriedly focused her mind and circulated the Sunflower Bible to its limit. Unfortunately, with the help of the Seven Beauties, Lana's strength had already surpassed Princess Changning's. There was a tearing sound. The fist passed under Princess Changning's armpit and made a long cut on her clothes. It was just a few centimeters away from hurting her skin. This princess will first crush all your bones. After that, I'll force you to tell us what your technique is. 
Lana became arrogant once again because she had already gained an absolute advantage. World Destroying Thunder Fist With the power of thunder, she punched Princess Changning's chest. This attack used 120% of her true force. The wind from the punch whistled through the air as if it was faintly accompanied by the sound of wind and thunder. It was indeed her unprecedented peak work. Princess Changning had no way to retreat. She could only take this move head on. Bang! The powerful fist force seemed to have hit a heavy object, making a deafening sound. In the distance, Cheng En could not help but block his ears. At the same time, he anxiously watched the two people fighting in the arena. The dust settled. Master! Princess Changning was surprised and looked at the figure in front of her. Lana quickly retreated, startled by He Chuan's sudden appearance. Just now, her perfect attack had been easily blocked by the other party with just a finger. Furthermore, she had actually heard Princess Changning call him master. This meant that the man in front of her must be terrifyingly strong. Young eunuch he. Chingen muttered in disbelief. He Chuan had left for many years, and everyone thought he would never return. He didn't expect to return at such a critical moment. How dare the people from the outer realms enter the central plains and act so impudently? He Chuan turned around and said coldly to Lana. If it wasn't for the woman in front of him bewitching Chingen, he wouldn't have come back from so far away. No matter who you are, you will die in my hands today. Lana pretended to be calm and collected, but in reality, she was thinking about how to escape. With that, she waved her right arm and a golden light shot out from her sleeve. It was as fast as lightning and as fast as thunder. It drew a brilliant arc in the air and headed straight for Cheng In, not He Chuan or Princess Changning. What a good move. This lone flying dagger was the famous heavenly demon soul chasing dagger. Despicable and shameless witch. Princess Changning cursed in anger. She didn't expect the other party to use such a despicable move. Cheng In's mouth was agape, his eyes filled with disbelief. The two of them had been together for so long, and he still had feelings for her. However, the other party's heartlessness made him feel very desperate. Why? He seemed to be asking his heart. However, Lana didn't reply. Instead, she flew toward Chengen like the king of hell, mercilessly aiming for his throat. Lana's move was beyond everyone's expectations. However, with He Chuan around, how could such an attack succeed? He Chuan flicked his finger into the air, and an invisible force shot out. Clang! The flying knife that was knocked away did not fall to the ground. Instead, it was like a living creature as it circled in front of He Chuan. He Chuan extended his white and slender palm and gently pulled the flying knife with his index finger. The golden light suddenly accelerated and spun, shooting toward Lana. Not only was he able to turn danger into invisible danger, but he could also turn it into an attack on the enemy. He had long since mastered the use of vital essence as he pleased. Lana, who was just about to get up and escape, heard the air-piercing sound coming from beside her and helplessly returned to her original spot. Lana hurriedly circulated the true energy in her body and unleashed the five thunder fiend fists once again. The golden light of the flying knife turned gracefully in the void, drawing a few beautiful lonely lines. He returned to He Chuan's side. It's a little interesting, but it's a pity that it's nothing much. If that's all you can do, I'll send you to your death now. He wasn't toying with a mouse. He was just trying to stimulate the celestial devil energy in the other party's body so that he could do more research on it and have a better idea of what to do in the future. Lana didn't dare to stay any longer. She pulled her finger out of the golden light and the flying knife shot toward Chengen. At the same time, she waved her left arm, and another golden light shot out, heading in He Chuan's direction at the same time. She waved her hands continuously, as fast as a wind wheel. The curved flying daggers in the air increased in number, and there were already eight of them. Her slender jade-like hands continuously pulled back and forth the flying daggers, and her attack continued. Specks of golden light danced around He Chuan and the others. He Chuan injected a stream of vital essence into Princess Changning's jade-like back. If he killed her now, he wouldn't be able to study her. He just had to raise Princess Changning's cultivation level to Lana's level. 
Then, without a change in expression, he waved his sleeve. The two flying daggers in front of him seemed to have eyes, accurately colliding with the flying daggers in front of Chen'an. The flying daggers collided with each other, causing sparks to fly in all directions. They were like dazzling fireworks, and the light was dazzling. Chapter 188 He Chuan used the shape-shifting technique and arrived beside Chen'an as if he had crossed space. This was to prevent anyone from ambushing them again. The battle in the field was left to Princess Changning to solve, and it could be considered to have ended. She probably had a lot of pent-up anger in her heart and needed to vent it out properly. Young eunuch he. Chingen lowered his head, not daring to raise it to meet the gaze of his master, who had once taught martial arts. Yes, I heard that Grand Tutor Lu has passed away. Did you go to pay your respects? He Chuan had watched Chengen grow up. Seeing the child of the past become like this, he couldn't help but feel myriad emotions. Grand Tutor Lu had been a great Confucian of the court, but he had died at Chengen's behest. Deceiving one's master and destroying one's ancestor was a crime the heavens would not tolerate. Chengen didn't dare to reply. He didn't curse or complain as he had imagined. His words were calm and unperturbed, which made him feel even worse. No, I didn't, he still answered honestly. A teacher is like a father. Grand Tutor Lu has taught you for many years. When this is over, go to his grave and say a few earnest words. He Chuan did not mention the cause of Grand Tutor Lu's death. Even if he mentioned it, it would only add to his troubles. He couldn't kill Chengen with his own hands. I know. Chengen didn't dare to refuse. This young eunuch he was mysterious and unpredictable. With just two simple moves, he was able to make the insufferably arrogant Lana suffer. His strength was definitely enough to crush everyone present. Furthermore, he was indeed in the wrong in this matter. Back then, he had been possessed and agreed to Lana's request, resulting in his current state. The key was that the woman he had been wife Xiongnu sent the woman he had been with all day to kill him. This was what he couldn't accept. From the beginning to the end, the emperor of the great Zhou dynasty was played like a clown. This is what the late emperor left in the library. I just happened to pick it up. He Chuan took out a golden mace, which was made of gold. Chengen immediately broke out in a cold sweat when he saw the item. The emperor whip, which was also the golden mace, was the wish of the late emperor to entrust his child to him. The late emperor of the Zhou dynasty granted the ministers the power to beat up the incapable ruler and the treacherous ministers. They could even execute the emperor first without reporting. It was equivalent to having the emperor's sword in hand. Usually, the emperor's whip was given to a loyal and reliable old official by the late emperor. It was invented to prevent the late emperor's heir from being fatuous and tyrannical or stop him from making mistakes due to his young and rash behavior. Now that He Chuan had taken out this item, his meaning was very obvious. It was the right to execute the golden mace. Little eunuch He, what is the meaning of this? This emperor. Before Cheng En could finish speaking, He Chuan's golden mace had already fallen. He didn't use too much force, but Cheng En felt a burning pain in his back. Pa! 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 He Chuan had a sense of decency and didn't hurt his bones. However, the flesh on Cheng En's back had already become a blur. If it wasn't for the late impurant last words, I wouldn't have cared what you became. He Chuan put away the golden mace. He was not a psychopath, so he just needed to teach her a few appropriate lessons. There was no need to go too far. Cheng En gritted his teeth in pain, tears flowing down his face. It hurt. It was a heart-wrenching pain. He finally realized that He Chuan had soaked the golden mace in salt water. Although he didn't hurt his muscles or bones, the pain was unbearable, especially now that his back was full of wounds. The salt would amplify the pain by many times. He didn't dare to cry out in pain, nor did he dare to touch it. He could only stand there and watch the battle not far away. On the other side. Faced with Lana's demonic soul-chasing flying daggers, Princess Changning who had improved her powers, could easily block them. She once again gained the upper hand. Lana had no choice but to return to the seven foreign beauties. She wanted to join forces to resist Princess Changning, 
and she was able to cooperate with them. Their hearts were connected, and they supported each other. Although one of their companions had died, Lana was able to replenish her energy, so they could continue to struggle. Princess Changning waved out a sword curtain. With the enhancement of her strength, the sword became even sharper. Lana and the seven otherworldly beauties struggled to resist Princess Changning's entry into the palace. She would occasionally look at He Chuan, who was not far away, and her eyes revealed an indescribable, complicated expression. If this mysterious expert had continued to attack, they would have already been defeated. But now, he was watching from the side. What was his purpose? Lana was slightly distracted, and her fist techniques were a little scattered. It was inevitable that a hole would appear in the defense she had formed with the seven western beauties. The sharp and ghostly sword intent shot in. The sword intent swept past her head and cut off the silver hairpin that bound her hair, letting her beautiful hair fall. It was a close call, and she almost lost her life. Hall master, be careful. Don't be distracted. The western beauty beside her shouted loudly, giving her a severe blow to the head. Lana instantly regained her senses and no longer paid any attention to He Chuan, who was watching the show. The most important thing now was to deal with Princess Changning's evil warding sword technique. This was the first time He Chuan had seen a joint attack, and he was amazed. If all eight of them were saint cultivators, Changning probably wouldn't have had the chance to attack. As expected, the power of gods and devils couldn't be underestimated. Princess Changning, who had regained the upper hand, was even more invigorated. She couldn't help but use her trump card. Sixteen sword energies circled the two of them, and the air was filled with the sound of swishing. Princess Changning finally understood He Chuan's thoughts. It would be good for her to break through if she could fight against an enemy who was on par with her. At the same time, it also made her realize that becoming a saint cultivator was just the beginning. Lana also began to move in a fit of hatred. She leaped and somersaulted, her hands moving as fast as lightning and transforming in all directions. She shot out all of the spinning flying daggers like the Thousand Hand Guanin. Princess Changning's power was also exerted to the extreme. Her fingers formed a sword circle to form a net, instantly blocking all the flying daggers. Her attack didn't slow down, and she quickly rushed through the flying daggers like flowing water. She waved her evil warding swordsmanship and it was as smooth as mercury flowing on the ground. Even if Lana combined forces with the seven otherworldly beauties, they could only protect themselves for the time being. They didn't have the power to defeat their enemies. The evil warding sword technique was fast and ruthless, and Lana and the others were momentarily exhausted. The situation of the battle stabilized once again. Both sides were waiting for an opportunity to find the other's weaknesses. Princess Changning gradually got used to Lana's strange flying daggers. Her earth-splitting swordsmanship changed from sealing to twisting. Her finger swords were infused with profound internal energy and gleamed with an unstoppable force. The fearsome sword projection twisted the flying blade into countless metal fragments scattered on the ground, never returning to Lana's hands again. Lana didn't dare to relax after her ultimate throwing knife technique was broken. She quickly pulled out the remaining throwing knives from her chest. Princess Changning continued to move forward, her swords light crisscrossing and following the same pattern, turning the flying daggers into powder. The golden light in the air became less and less, and the golden fragments scattered over the ground. In an instant. Lana only had one flying dagger left. She flipped her wrist and held it in her hand, no longer shooting it out. She caught the sword the Western Beauty tossed over from behind her and quickly charged toward Princess Changning. Of course, Lana knew how to use the sword too. Not only was she highly skilled in throwing daggers and fist techniques, but she was also skilled in swordsmanship. Princess Changning fearlessly faced the attack head-on, her sword light aiming straight for the enemy's central palace. The distance between the two of them rapidly shortened. Lana's phoenix-like eyes widened as she let out a delicate cry, and the last flying dagger in her hand shot out. Chapter, 189 The flying dagger flew toward Princess Changning's chest with the force of a thunderbolt. This was an attack with 120% true force. The golden light whistled through the air as if it was carrying the sound of wind and thunder. It happened too fast. 
Princess Chiming's fingers stabbed forward like a sword, and everything around her seemed to slow down. Her two fingers and the tip of the flying knife collided with each other. Immediately after, the sharp sword intent broke the tip of the knife and stabbed into the knife like it was breaking tofu. The knife rolled up and separated into two sides until it penetrated the entire flying dagger. The sword's intent did not lose momentum as it stabbed toward Lana's chest. However, Lana was prepared for it. The sword in her hand immediately blocked Princess Changning's path. Clang! Clang! The two fingers clashed with the sword, and sparks were actually ignited, dazzling and dazzling in the dark night. Sacrifice! Lana knew that she would definitely lose if this continued. She could only activate sacrifice and take one last gamble. It's finally being used. This time, I'll have to watch it more carefully. He Chuan crossed his arms and looked at the so-called sacrifice with interest. Back then, Zhu Lengxin had forcefully used this move to increase his cultivation level. He wondered what was so different about Lana's sacrifice. The seven extraterrestrial beauties knelt on the ground and raised their hands toward the scales as if they were performing some sacrifice. Their faces were filled with piousness. A red aura that was visible to the naked eye began to emanate from Lana's body. It hovered above her head, and her aura became more and more unstable as if she was about to go crazy at any moment. It was similar to when Karhan Burak went berserk as if he would lose his mind. The true energy of the seven western beauties was continuously injected into Lana's body. However, unlike before, the true energy no longer circulated in and out of her body. Instead, it was all for Lana to use. Soon, the seven beauties' hair turned white, and their bodies were all skin and bones, no different from mummies. Their life force was gradually being cut off. Chingan felt nauseated when he saw their miserable state. The beauty who was still whispering sweet nothings to each other just now had turned into a dried corpse in the blink of an eye. Anyone would feel very uncomfortable. Ha ha ha. You actually watched this princess complete the sacrifice. I don't know if I should call you confident or stupid. Lana sensed the powerful aura within her body as she laughed wildly in a highly arrogant manner. She had instantly risen from a first stage saint cultivator to the peak of a third stage saint cultivator. Lana felt He Chuan was, at most a third-stage saint cultivator and was no match for her. Not bad. You've increased by two levels, and you seem to be able to maintain your consciousness. You're stronger than Zhu Lengxin and Karhan Burak. He Chuan knew that people who accepted the power of gods and demons activated different forms of power. Some of them would turn into monsters like Zhu Lengxin or lose their minds like Karhan Burak, and some would end up like Lana. Not only did it increase her strength, but it also maintained her original appearance and rationality. I don't know what nonsense you're talking about. Today, this princess will take your lives. Lana couldn't be bothered to waste her breath. She had to make them die with her subordinates. The heaven's bane five thunder fist struck out once again. The sky and earth instantly changed color. Dark clouds faintly gathered above her head, and lightning flashed as if it could trigger heavenly tribulation. Princess Changning couldn't help but take two steps back. The current Lana was terrifyingly strong. Even with Hichuan's true energy, she wasn't a match for her. At this moment, Hichuan moved. It was as if his entire being had transcended space and appeared beside Lana out of thin air. He grabbed her fair neck with one hand. Lana's incomparably powerful aura instantly disappeared. Go to hell and repent with the innocent. After He Chuan finished speaking, he directly broke the other party's neck. The people present were instantly dumbfounded. They didn't expect things to turn out like this. A peak third stage saint cultivator was killed as quickly as crushing an ant. Then what kind of terrifying realm was He Chuan in? General Qin led the imperial guards in and heaved a sigh of relief when he saw that Lana was already dead. Chengen, master, let's go in and talk. Princess Changning was even more nervous because she didn't know what to say next. She had to ask her brother to abdicate. In the governance hall. The atmosphere was very strange. He Chuan held the fragrant tea that Princess Changning had served, and his eyes swept over the crowd. Fang Yuanqing sized up the decorations in the hall. 
The entertainment tools were placed at the side, and the women's clothes were scattered on the ground, but there was no time to clean them up. The symbol of the Zhou dynasty's diligent government had become so filthy. This made him even more determined. Your Majesty, please abdicate your position. Fang Yuanqing led the way and knelt down. Cheng Yin had initially wanted to express his feelings, but he had not expected to be forced to abdicate. Are you guys thinking of rebelling? He slammed the table in anger and questioned the officials. He Chuan was also stunned by this. He had thought it would be over after teaching Cheng Yin a lesson, but now he was asking Cheng Yin to abdicate. He turned to look at Princess Changming and instantly understood something. Your Majesty, it's not that we want to rebel. Please ask yourself in front of everyone if you still have the heart to continue managing the court. Fang Yuanqing asked. It was like those gamblers who were addicted to gambling. They always said it was the last round, but they still couldn't help but sink into it until they lost everything. Since Cheng Yin was no longer in the mood for politics, staying on the throne would do no good to the Zhou dynasty. This Emperor Cheng Yin had wanted to refute, but he turned to look at He Chuan and remembered that he was still holding the golden mace in his hand if he couldn't do it well. Your Majesty need not worry. I will not support them, and the court matters have nothing to do with me. However, if you dare to make another mistake, don't blame me for not considering our past relations. Otherwise, I will be disobeying the late emperor's orders. He Chuan didn't help either side. Whether Cheng Yin continued to rule or Princess Changning became the empress was a matter of the imperial court. If your majesty wants to live a carefree life, why not be an idle prince? You can take away all the beauties you like in the palace. As long as you don't cause trouble, I believe the eldest princess will not control you. The old fox Fang Yuanqing continued to tempt him. Since He Chuan was not going to interfere, everything was fine. If this 9,000-year-old insisted on protecting the current emperor, there was nothing they could do. Cheng Yin hesitated. He was more inclined to enjoy himself with beauty now. However, he couldn't bear to give up his power as the emperor. He Chuan sighed in his heart. Fang Yuanqing was also giving him the last chance. As long as Cheng Yin firmly chose to rule, there would still be a chance. If he still hesitated when faced with a choice, then there would be no more chance. Because Cheng Yin could no longer be a good emperor who was diligent and loved his people. Princess Changning closed her eyes in disappointment. She hoped her brother would firmly say he would turn over a new leaf and make a clean break with the past. Even so, she would not have accepted the position. But because of Fang Yuanqing's words, she became hesitant. Who would believe that Cheng Yin could still be a good emperor? Since you've already made your choice, why don't you take advantage of the situation? Seeing that things were deadlocked, He Chuan added fuel to the fire. This emperor is willing to abdicate the throne and let imperial sister Chang Ning rule the country in the future. Cheng Yin didn't have the confidence to be a wise ruler, so he might as well live a carefree life. Chapter 190 the great Zhou dynasty needed to continue its reign. Without the support of the imperial court, Cheng Yin would not even be able to enjoy life. Seeing Cheng Yin agree so readily, the weight in Fang Yuanqing and the other officials' hearts was lifted. If Cheng Yin refused no matter what, they couldn't kill him, so they could only take forceful measures. Cheng Yin I. Princess Cheng Ning felt sorry for her brother. After all, she had stolen the position of emperor. She didn't know how to face Cheng Yin. Prime Minister Fong is right. I'm no longer in the mood for political affairs. If I continue, I may destroy the great Zhou dynasty. It's better for imperial sister to stabilize the country and avoid becoming a sinner. Since Cheng Yin had already made his decision, he did not continue to feel conflicted. He might as well be more free and easy so that everyone wouldn't feel sad. Master, why don't you stay for a few more days? Princess Changming turned to look at the relaxed He Chuan and had a bold idea. We're leaving the day after tomorrow. There's something important there. He Chuan had to rush back to Xiongnu and could not stay here for too long. Perhaps he would return to the library when he was tired one day. There were still many unknown mysteries waiting for him to solve them. The eldest princess and his majesty should hurry up and make preparations. The coronation ceremony will begin tomorrow morning. 
the great Zhou dynasty is already in a state of instability. It is necessary to stabilize the situation in various places. Of course, Fang Yuanqing wanted He Chuan to stay. With such an expert in the imperial palace, the great Zhou dynasty would be more stable. However, he knew that this 9,000 years old was different from ordinary people and would not listen to anyone's advice. Even Zhou Shimin couldn't make him stay, so their persuasion was useless. The next step was to discuss the specific details of the ascension ceremony. He Chuan didn't participate. Instead, he returned to the library pavilion. There was dust everywhere. In the past, Cheng Yin and Princess Changming could still think of sending people to clean this place, but after Cheng Yin was captivated by Lana, no one thought of this matter. He recalled the time when Eunuch Chui had brought him here, the scene of him talking seemed to have happened just yesterday. And the first time he met Zhou Shimin. Zhou Shimin led the young Chang Ning and Cheng Yin. It was a peaceful and heartwarming scene. He waved his sleeve lightly, and the dust disappeared in an instant. He could rest here for two nights, so he picked up a book and flipped through it. It was a comfortable and leisurely life. It was really something that people yearn for. After an unknown amount of time, a familiar aura was approaching. Young eunuch he. Cheng In walked into the common library with a Go board in his hand. Seeing his carefree appearance, he had probably already thought things through. Your Majesty. He Chuan replied nonchalantly. I'm not the emperor anymore. Young eunuch he, you can call me Ben Ming or King Xiaoyao. Cheng In shook his head and arranged the chessboard. The decree had been written, and he had officially abdicated. He would wait until the morning court to announce it to the world. King Xiaoyao, your name is not bad. I hope you can be truly free and unfettered. He Chuan didn't know what Cheng Yin was thinking. Even if he knew, it had nothing to do with him. After a game of chess, Cheng Yin bowed respectfully. He said that after he announced his abdication the next day, he would guard Grand Tutor Lu's tomb for seven days. He would also bring the Empress Dowager to his fief and take care of his mother for the last time. After this incident, Cheng Yin had indeed grown a lot. However, there were more than 300 top grade beauties with him on his way to the fief. This also showed that Cheng Yin could not do without beauty. He Chuan didn't say anything about this. Even if Cheng Yin were to die in a woman's stomach, it would be his own choice. The heavy burden of the great Zhou dynasty was now on the head of Chang Ning. Not long after Cheng Yin left, Chang Ning also came to the library pavilion alone. You two siblings have a telepathic connection. He Chuan joked. He was closer to this disciple. Perhaps it was because of Chang Ning's willingness to accompany him for so many years in the library pavilion. Master, do you think Cheng Yin is willing? Princess Chang Ning sat in Cheng Yin's seat and continued to play with He Chuan. She didn't know her brother's true thoughts. She didn't know when it started, but there was a barrier between the twins. They could no longer return to their childhood. If the eldest princess Her Majesty is not clear, I am even more unclear. He Chuan made a rare joke. He initially wanted to train Liya to be Xiongnu tribe queen, but who would have thought that Changning would become the empress? Could it be that the competition in the future was due to the birth of his two disciples? A ridiculous feeling rose in his heart. Wasn't that too ridiculous? Master, call me Changning or Ninger from now on. I'm not used to being called Her Majesty. No one knew what Changning was thinking, but the chess piece in her hand made a clattering sound. You're still the same. You always make a sound when you place a piece, and there's still a knot in your heart that hasn't been untied. He Chuan simply stopped playing Go. Changning wasn't very good at chess, to begin with, and she was even less of a match for He Chuan when her mind was in a mess. It wasn't even half of Chengen's power. Actually, I have a favor to ask of you, but I'm afraid you'll refuse. Changning seemed to have made a great decision. All these years, although He Chuan had rejected her requests on the surface, he had still helped her in secret. However, she wasn't confident at all. If even the Honorable Empress of the Zhou Dynasty can't do it, I'm afraid I can't do anything either. When He Chuan saw Changning's expression, he felt that he was going to be tricked. He didn't dare to agree to it. He wanted to hear what it was first. 
It's indeed very difficult for this disciple, but with Master's help, it's very easy. Master, I don't even know when you'll come back. Can't I just beg you once? Chang immediately looked like she had been abandoned by He Chuan. Master will agree to your request. He Chuan said after some thought. He felt that Chang probably would not request for him to stay. After being together for so many years, Chang understood his temperament. She wouldn't put forward any conditions that would make him feel disgusted, otherwise, the master and disciple relationship would end here. A gentleman never goes back on his word. Master, since you've already promised, you can't go back on your word. Seeing He Chuan had agreed, Princess Changning immediately revealed a smile of success. He Chuan suddenly had a bad feeling. He felt that he had been tricked by the other party. However, he couldn't go back on his word now, so he could only nod and agree. I want Master to leave me a baby, Changning said shyly. Pfft. No matter how calm He Chuan was, he still couldn't help but spit out his tea when he heard this. Ahem, ahem, ahem you can't joke about this. Besides, you know I'm an incomplete man. How can I help you have children? He was now somewhat regretful. He should have left the imperial palace as soon as possible. How could there be such a thing? I'm a saint cultivator, how could I not know that master has already recovered his male part? Chingen loiters around with the women all day without leaving any descendants. I'm afraid there's something wrong with his body, so this important task has fallen on my head. Chang looked at He Chuan's handsome face and felt a sense of anticipation. Chapter, 191 With Chang preference, she definitely wouldn't be interested in ordinary men. If she were to spend her entire life alone, the great Zhou dynasty would have no one to take over. He Chuan had rushed back just in time to help. She didn't ask for He Chuan to stay by her side. She just wanted him to help her leave behind offspring. There are so many men in the world, why are you so persistent to choose your master? He Chuan sighed helplessly. He had never expected things to turn out like this. She didn't even need to force him to get married and directly forced him to have a baby. Although Changning could not be said to be devastatingly beautiful, she was wearing a thin white chiffon garment. Her face was as beautiful as peach blossoms, and her brows were as light as chrysanthemums blooming in early autumn. It was a beauty rolls up the beaded curtain, sitting quietly and raising her brows. Master should be able to sense my intentions. I won't use this matter to bind you, as long as you can leave behind the Zhou dynasty's bloodline. Master shouldn't mind the child's surname being Zhou, right? Changning said sincerely. If I don't mind when did I promise you anything? Don't mess around. He Chuan quickly denied it. He still didn't want to get involved in feelings. Master. Changning threw himself into He Chuan's arms and hugged his waist tightly. She had to take the initiative now, or she would really have no chance. He Chuan still wanted to say something but Changning covered his mouth with his red lips. Their lips separated after a long time. A.I., have you really thought it through? He Chuan said as he stroked Changning's black hair. It's fine as long as Master doesn't mind Ninger's ugly appearance. Changning said shyly. He Chuan picked up Changning in bridal carry, walked to the bed, and gently placed the beauty on it. It was a night full of a dragon and fish dancing. The next day, Ching Ching. He Chuan slowly opened his eyes. Changning was lying lazily in He Chuan's arms, her eyes misty and her face full of satisfaction. Her red lips were slightly open, and her arms were wrapped around He Chuan's firm back, afraid that this man would leave she was really a clingy demon. Today is Ningyur's ascension ceremony, you can't be late. He Chuan took the clothes and helped Changning, who had just been deflowered, put them on. An eye-catching red plum blossom bloomed on the bedding, proving that the new empress had turned from a young girl to a woman. However, Changning stretched out her long, straight legs and placed them on He Chuan's shoulders. Her alluring beauty was revealed to the man she loved. She tried her best to ask for it a few more times and strive to succeed. He Chuan smiled and gently patted her perky butt. He leaned over and continued to ride the horse. I heard that the emperor is going to court today and has summoned back all the ministers. Some people were happy, while others were sad. 
because if Chengen continued to govern, the great Zhou would have hope. Now, the emperor urgently needed to come out and stabilize the overall situation. Some people were happy, while others were sad because some of the officials were not so optimistic. They believed that Chengen would not change and that the court session today would definitely announce something even more absurd. There might even be a national consort selection again. However, when they saw Fang Yuanqing and Qin Yintian return, they felt a little more confident. Even if the emperor did not care about state affairs, this loyal minister could still stabilize the situation. Under the expectant gazes of the ministers, Cheng Yin, who was wearing a python robe, and Princess Changning, who was wearing a dragon robe, appeared in the throne room. The dress of the brother and sister made the ministers dumbfounded. Wasn't this a violation of the law? As a princess, she actually dared to wear a dragon robe. Could it be that she was planning a rebellion? This emperor was bewitched by the Xiongnu woman and did a series of wrong things, causing the people to be resentful and let down the late emperor's trust. Fortunately, I had the help of all the important officials and my imperial sister, so I was able to expose the Xiongnu woman's plot. However, I knew that I had no interest in politics, so I abdicated the throne to Princess Changning and became the new emperor. After Cheng Yin finished speaking, he began to read out the contents of the decree. Your Majesty is very prominent. We pay our respects to the new emperor. Fang Yuanqing did not give the others any time to object and immediately expressed his support for Empress Changning's ascension. Changning sat on the throne with a serious expression. In reality, she was still a little uneasy. After all, this was her first time attending court. She had to deal with the political affairs of the entire country. Where is the Minister of Justice? As if he was a natural-born emperor, Channing sat on the dragon throne and her voice carried supreme majesty that no one dared to underestimate. Your subject is here. The Minister of Justice hurried out. I order you to contact all the provinces, counties, and towns immediately to release the innocent scholars who have been captured. There must be no delay. Changning's first imperial edict was issued. After that, she once again issued an order that no place was allowed to continue letting young girls enter the palace in the name of choosing a consort. Among them, there must be some officials who treat one's superior's casual remarks as order and make a big fuss and keep the captured women for their own use. If there are any who refuse to obey or secretly disobey, they will be executed. There were traitors among the imperial court's officials from all over the country, and they were all barbarians. In troubled times, heavy punishment was needed. When Changning ascended to the throne, she would have to face rebellions from all over the country and the unstable imperial court. She had to establish her might. She wanted to let the world know that she, as the empress, was not inferior to the previous emperors. Seeing Princess Changning like this, Chengen also felt gratified. He left the throne room quietly and arrived at the temple where his empress mother, Qin Lihua, was staying in the carriage. He was afraid Empress Dowager would oppose and depose the empress, so he sent Qin Lihua here. In reality, it was a disguised house arrest. Qin Lihua did not say anything about this. Instead, she stayed there and chanted sutras all day long, hoping that the heavens would ensure the prosperity of the great Zhou dynasty. Chingin quietly walked into the great hall worshipping the ancestor. He saw his mother chanting sutras with her eyes closed, her hair already white. Yet, because of his selfish desires, he was staying in such a place. He felt as if a knife was being twisted in his heart. Empress mother, your son was wrong. Chingin knelt on the ground and kowtowed three times. Qin Lihua turned around and saw Chingin in a brocade robe. Her face turned pale instantly. The great Zhou is gone. It's good that it's gone, you can live the life you want, quickly run for your life. Qin Lihua shook her head, thinking that the dynasty had already collapsed. Qingyin felt ashamed when he heard Qin Lihua's words. It seemed like his mother knew this very well, but she just didn't say it. Little eunuch he came back and foiled the plot of the Xiongnu witch, but I have no mood for political affairs, so I abdicated the throne and handed it over to my imperial sister. This time, I came to take mother to the fief to enjoy a peaceful life. He quickly explained. What if he angered his empress mother? 
Qin Lihua heaved a sigh of relief when she heard that the great Zhou dynasty was still around. She hated herself for being soft-hearted and being tricked by Chang'an into coming to the Daoist temple to chant sutras for Zhou Shimin. However, it was useless to regret. What should have happened had already happened. In addition, the final result was good. Whether Chang'an or Changming became emperor, it was the blood of the Zhou family. There was not much difference. Unfilial son, you've placed all the burden on your sister's shoulders. Qin Lihua walked up to Chang'an and gave him a tight slap. Chang'an didn't try to avoid her, because Qin Lihua had already forgiven him. I'm sorry, but don't worry, mother. You're not any worse than me. You're the most successful empress in the history of the great Zhou dynasty. He stood up and held on to Qin Lihua's arm. There was nothing left in the capital. It was time to leave. Chapter, 192 He Chuan was lying on a rocking chair in the library pavilion. He had tea in one hand and a book in the other, enjoying a short and beautiful day. Because he was returning to Xiongnu tribe the next day, he didn't know when he would be able to enjoy himself like this again. However, tonight would probably be very busy because Empress Changning was sitting at the side, reviewing the memorials. She had to squeeze He Chuan dry in the limited time. There is nothing to worry about in this world, but people's hearts are often disturbed. He Chuan said slowly. I didn't expect husband even to know poetry. Since last night's in-death exchange, Changning had called him husband. He Chuan didn't care about how she addressed him. Whether it was little eunuch he, master, or husband, they were all just titles. Moreover, they had already done it as husband and wife. I don't know anything. I want to wander and see more. This world is far more wonderful than I imagined. He stretched lazily. As expected, this kind of life suited him better. The world's troubles were too dull. Since you like this kind of life, why don't you want to stay? I promise that no one will disturb you. I can also come over to rest occasionally. Let's work hard to have a few more children and choose a boy to continue the He family's lineage. Chang'ing walked to He Chuan's side with the memorial in her hand and lay in his arms. She felt the warm embrace of the man she loved and was reluctant to part with him. When I'm tired, I'll naturally come back here. The gods and devils are a threat after all. He Chuan tightened his grip on Chang'ing's delicate body. Staying in the palace of his own accord was definitely different from staying in the palace because of others. He didn't like to be bound. As for having more children to inherit the family line, he didn't even exist here. He was not a person in this world and would not stay here. It was not a problem whether he had someone to offer him any incense or not. Then let's hurry up and get down to business. Changming wasn't embarrassed at all. There were no outsiders here anyway, so she took He Chuan's hand and walked into the room. He Chuan shivered, not sure if it was an illusion. He felt that he had to pay the price. People had their own joys and sorrows, and the moon had its ups and downs. Princess Chang'ing gently stroked her lower abdomen and looked at the white clouds in the sky. She had asked the imperial physician and found that there was a high chance of getting pregnant in the next two days. However, He Chuan's departure still made her sad. He Chuan had spent the entire day rushing back to the Xiongnu tribe on the grassland. Young master, you're back. Kai Lian, who was gnawing on a beef leg, raised her head and said in surprise. She knew that He Chuan's return meant that the matter with the great Zhou dynasty had been resolved. Did anything happen in the grassland? He Chuan slowly sat on the chair and asked about the Xiongnu tribe situation over the past two days. There is indeed something big. The first prince suddenly became a half-step saint cultivator, and most of the Xiongnu forces are on his side. The eldest princess and the third prince came to find you twice, but I sent them away. Kai Lian wiped her greasy mouth and began to explain the recent situation. The first prince's breakthrough into a half-step saint cultivator was within He Chuan's expectations. With the help of the mysterious imperial advisor, it would be very easy to break through. He just didn't know if the first prince would be like Karhan Burak, who would lose his mind if he overused his strength. In comparison, the person behind the scenes who taught Lana was stronger. As such, there was more than one god in the Xiongnu tribe. 
Would there be any conflicts between gods and devils? The anecdote of Chizhou was too one-sided. However, it would be solved sooner or later. Now, he only needed to support Lia to take the throne, and the people hiding behind the scenes would jump out. It seems that the eldest princess and the third prince can't sit still anymore. I wonder if someone will die. He Chuan touched his smooth chin. It was a good thing that Lia had recently taken the pill and gone into seclusion. She could be temporarily removed from the battle, and when the outcome of the battle between the first prince, the eldest princess, and the third prince was decided, Lia would then intervene. He Chuan didn't want to expose his existence too early. The god that left his aura on him wasn't in Xiongnu, which meant that he had a higher status. He needed to figure out the specific situation first. Speak of the devil. The third prince came to find him again and happened to meet the eldest princess. The two siblings didn't even greet each other. From this, it could be seen that the battle had already reached the point of white heat. Greetings to the eldest princess and the third prince. Kai Lien politely greeted them and then served them tea. After all, the central plains had been a state of etiquette since ancient times. Although these two siblings were a little annoying, they were still guests, and there was no reason to neglect them. Master He Chuan, you've been in seclusion for two days. I'm sure you've made great progress. The eldest princess had a devilish figure, a high nose bridge, blue eyes, a white neck, and skin as smooth as jade. Her waist was like a water snake, and her curves were extremely alluring. It seemed that she had dressed up carefully. As she spoke, she kept winking at He Chuan. As long as this man was willing to bow down to her, she didn't mind giving up her body. Vixen. You're shameless. Kai Lien cursed in her heart. I heard that Master He Chuan likes beautiful women, so I specially chose a pair of twins. They are the best in both appearance and figure. As long as I could have a word with Master He Chuan, they will be sent over tonight. The third prince was not to be outdone, and he also used beauty to seduce him. He Chuan didn't know whether to laugh or cry. If he had known this would happen, he would have pretended to be greedy. The gold and silver would have been of some use. Now that everyone in the Xiongnu tribe knew about this, it would be difficult to change his lecherous image. Kai Lien, of course, knew what kind of person He Chuan was. Seeing her young master's dark expression, she tried her best not to laugh. It's a pity that I encountered some problems during my closed-door cultivation. Recently, I've been feeling that I have the will but not the strength. I need more rest. He Chuan quickly changed the topic. Whether it was the eldest princess or the beautiful twins, he had no interest in them. Even if he was interested, he wouldn't accept them, because accepting them meant that he was willing to jump ship to their side. He had his own principles, and since he wanted to help Liya rise to power, he would not change his goal. The eldest princess and the third prince would definitely be able to hear such obvious words of sending the guest off. Humph, so what if you're half-step away from the peak of the Saint Cultivator realm? That wretched girl, Lia, will never be able to take the position. I hope you won't regret your choice today. The third prince left without looking back. In the face of such a meaningless threat, He Chuan's heart did not waver at all. He even wondered how this kind of person had the confidence to compete for the throne. I don't think Master He Chuan will be angry with the pig, right? Why don't we work together first, get rid of the first prince, this obstacle, and then compete fairly? The eldest princess took a step back and wanted to cooperate. Now that the first prince had become a half-step saint cultivator, Tatumton would definitely be more inclined toward his son. The scales of victory had tilted, so cooperation was the best way. Eldest princess, you've asked the wrong person. This has nothing to do with me. I'm just a teacher who taught Lia Kung Fu. He Chuan took a sip of tea. He didn't directly refuse, nor did he agree. As for whether or not they should work together to get rid of the first prince, that was something Lia and the eldest princess needed to consider. He would not waste his brain cells to participate. Chapter 193 The eldest princess left with a meaningful smile. Coquettish fox, she is truly shameless. Kai Lien snarled. Most importantly, the eldest princess's figure and appearance were indeed alluring. 
If it were not for He Chuan's strong self-control, he would have already become a guest of honor. She lowered her head to look at her ordinary chest and suddenly felt a sense of defeat. Liener, you don't have to be envious. You're still growing up. You should eat more meat when you're free. He Chuan consoled her with an amused smile. Women really cared about these things. Last night, Empress Changning had even asked him if he had ever liked another woman. He Chuan was speechless about this. He used to be a eunuch. What was the use of liking a woman? He he, third brother and big sister are nothing more than clowns. If they want to fight with this king, they will die without a burial place. The first prince was now full of confidence. Not only was he a half-step saint cultivator, but he also had an imperial advisor behind him. No one else could compete with him at all. It was nothing but useless work. We have to be careful of the sixth princess too. I heard that she has been cultivating in seclusion recently. The king will probably consider her more if she becomes a half-step saint cultivator. Gurdon was the first prince's tactician and was good at giving advice. The first prince's current status was all thanks to Gurdon's help, so he was the first prince's absolute confidant. That little BTCH is taking advantage of her father's love. How dare she jump out and fight for power? About father, do you think we can? The first prince's face was crazed as he made a throat-slitting gesture. Most of the forces in the grassland support him now. If Tatumton died suddenly, no one could stop him. After that, he would kill all his brothers and sisters to eliminate his worries. Your Highness, you must not act rashly. How can the king not be protected by strong men? You will only be consigned to eternal damnation if you assassinate him rashly. Moreover, the consequences of the other princesses and princes revolting in the name of revenge will be unimaginable. Gurdon jumped in shock. This was a purely brainless act. The death of Tatumton would not benefit the Xiongnu and would only cause chaos. It was a bad move. Sai, this king was saying. The problem is that there are too many variables. This king does not have absolute confidence in ascending to the throne. The first prince suppressed the crazed look in his eyes, but no one knew if he had changed his mind. Since Tatumton was in good health and still had a long time before the end of his life. However, the first prince could not wait any longer. He wanted to become the new king as soon as possible. The imperial advisor still needs the complete Xiongnu to help attack the great Zhou. If his highness messes up the plan, he will kill the first prince. Fear flashed through the first prince's eyes when he heard Gurdon mention the imperial advisor. The other party was like a bottomless abyss. Every time they met, that terrifying aura made the first prince not dare to raise any resistance. It was all thanks to him that he was able to become a half-step saint cultivator. However, when Gurdon mentioned the imperial advisor was suppressing him, he was extremely unhappy. Because the great prince of the grasslands was like a dog to the other party, not even daring to resist. This prince will not mention this matter again. In your opinion, what should we do next? The first prince suppressed his dissatisfaction. He now needed Gurdon's advice. Let's split them up. First, we'll find a way to get rid of the weakest third prince and take over his power. Then, we'll deal with the eldest princess. Finally, we'll deal with the sixth princess, who has no power. Gurdon said after thinking for a while. The third prince was not cunning. As long as a trap was set, the third prince would easily jump into it. The eldest princess had the support of many people and could probably fight against the first prince, so she needed to be eliminated as soon as possible. After all, Lia started relatively late. Without the support of power, it would be difficult for her to achieve great things. It would be fine to leave her to the last. Third brother, that pig should be dealt with as soon as possible. He relied on his mother's protection to have his current position. The first prince was extremely disdainful of his third brother. The third prince's mother had been the leader of a small tribe in the desert. Later, she was defeated by Tatumton and married him. The people from her previous tribe had all joined the Xiongnu tribe. It was with the support of this tribe that the third prince had the qualifications to compete. Otherwise, with the third prince's intelligence, how could he be qualified to compete for the position of king? After explaining the detailed plan, 
Gurdon left the first prince's chamber. He returned to his room and saw the imperial adviser waiting for him. This humble servant greets my lord the imperial adviser. Gurdon knelt on the ground and prostrated himself. How's the plan? The imperial adviser's body was covered in a black robe, and his slightly hoarse voice sounded. The first prince is reckless and plans to kill Tatumton. I've already persuaded him. Gurdon stood up and respectfully replied. Trash is indeed trash. I've wasted a lot of resources to support him to his current position, but he actually wants to ruin my great plan. The imperial adviser was obviously very dissatisfied with First Prince's idea. A mere Xiong Nu tribe was nothing. If it were not for the secret of the Central Plains, he would not have done his best to help them. Gurdon was someone the imperial adviser had planted beside the First Prince. His purpose was to stabilize the other party and prevent him from making a bad move. Now, it seemed that this move was very wise. Imperial Advisor's prediction is divine. I'm very impressed. Gurdon flattered. Stop talking nonsense. The Xiongnu tribe's autumn hunt is coming. Is there any problem with the plan? The Imperial Advisor had no interest in flattery. Gurdon quickly expressed that everything had been arranged and that they would definitely be able to elect the first prince. I hope so. I'm not the only one here. There is also a competitor on the eldest princess side. If my superior is not satisfied, everyone will die. The imperial adviser obviously didn't want anything to go wrong with his plan. I understand. Everything has been arranged. Don't worry, imperial adviser. But he Chuan from the Central Plains has appeared recently. I don't know how to deal with him. Gurdon hurriedly replied. He Chuan's background was a bit mysterious. He was able to quickly help the sixth princess reach the Xientian ninth stage and was close to the half-step Saint Cultivator realm. He was afraid that it would affect the plan. Humph, he's just trash, don't worry too much. I'll naturally find a chance to deal with him. Right now, let's focus on helping that trash become the king. After the imperial adviser finished speaking, his figure disappeared. He Chuan, who was meditating with his legs crossed, opened his eyes. He had easily detected the aura of the imperial adviser. In order not to alert the enemy, he didn't release his spiritual sense to listen in on their conversation. However, He Chuan could roughly guess the situation. It was nothing more than the supporting forces between them to become the new king. Chapter, 194 The autumn wind was cold, and the grass and trees were frosty. He Chuan was lying on the bed, and Kai Lian was kneeling beside him, her small hands helping him rub his back. He occasionally enjoyed it a little because he was also a normal person. Master. Sister Lianer. Lia was dressed in green, looking graceful and graceful. A long sword hung from his waist, a quiver hung from his shoulder, and he held a small, exquisite bow and arrow. What's the matter? You look so energetic. He Chuan sat up and was speechless at Lia, who had run over. She was clearly a shrewd young lady, yet she had to pretend to be an innocent young lady. However, Lia was indeed very obedient in front of him, and He Chuan could not expose her. We're going to the autumn hunt soon. Master and Sister Liener, hurry up and pack up. Lia said excitedly. In the cold garden, wild geese flew in the autumn, and the grass rustled outside the stone palace gate. The Han family's banners and banners surrounded them, and the Fong country's mountains and rivers were low in sight. The flowers wrapped around her hair, and the willow eend looked like it was leaning against the golden bank. The king came to look at the beast flying out west of Jianzhang. Every autumn, the royal family of the Xiongnu tribe would bring their officials to hunt to show their good relationship. He Chuan didn't have much interest in hunting. There's all kinds of wild game in the hunt. It's not as good as bear paws, wyvern, or hares. Lia began to list the delicious food. Kai Lien couldn't sit still anymore. She really wasn't interested in hunting, but she was very interested in eating delicious food. During this period of time, she had gradually accepted Lia's change. Although they were not as close as before, they were still good friends. Lia had already figured out He Chuan and Kai Lien's temperaments. 
she now knew that He Chuan was not actually a lecherous person. He was very indifferent to everything as if he had no desires. Kai Lian was a foodie. Her personality was very similar to He Chuan's, except when it had something to do with food. In the face of Kai Lian and Leah's pleas, He Chuan could only accompany them to hunt. When the royal family was hunting, they would send a team of soldiers and horses to drive all the animals within a radius of dozens of miles over a few days before, so as to avoid the royal family and nobles returning in disappointment. Everyone, the rules are the same. Whoever's prey is able to please this king will be heavily rewarded. The one with the most prey will be heavily rewarded. Tatumton excitedly bragged to his courtiers about how he had killed a tiger with his bare hands and been praised by his father. Although the officials listened to it every year and could even recite it word for word, they acted as if it was the first time they had heard such an exciting thing and applauded and cheered. Tatumton seemed to enjoy the flattery of the officials. The Xiongnu people respected martial strength, and he was most proud of killing a tiger with his bare hands. This king will take his leave first, please do as you please. Tatumton led the imperial guards and set off toward the place with the most prey. As the leader of the Xiongnu tribe, he also needed to hunt more prey to reward his subjects. The other nobles should go elsewhere. No matter how good or precious the prey you hunted was, it was not as good as the reward from Tatumton because it was a kind of honor. Liao lightly pressed her legs against the horse's belly and galloped into the forest depths with He Chuan and Kai Lian. He Chuan followed at the back. He did not seem to be controlling his horse, but the horse was very obedient and galloped behind Liao. There were a few hidden auras not far away, but they were not the target, so he could not be bothered with them. Master, I'm already at the peak of Shintian's ninth stage. When can I break through to half-step to Saint Cultivator? Leah's face was filled with anticipation because she had heard the news that the first prince had become a half-step Saint Cultivator. Her heart was a little anxious. In order to compete for the throne, she had to show her value in front of her father. Otherwise, it would be not easy. The man in front of her was her life-saving straw. When the conditions are right, you will naturally be able to break through to your current realm. You and Kai Lien will start learning the four arts from tomorrow. After that, you should read more books and temporarily put aside your cultivation. He Chuan could help Liao break through at any time, but it was still a matter of state of mind. They had to reach the same realm. When she heard that she had to learn the four arts and read, Leah's cute face instantly scrunched up. She felt a headache when she was asked to cultivate and do literary things every day. Master, I feel sleepy just by reading. Can you change the method? She pleaded, feeling wronged. Young master is asking sister Leah to improve her state of mind. Otherwise, there is a risk of energy deviation when you break through. Young master will naturally help you break through when your state of mind improves. He Chuan had taught Kai Lian a few times, and now it seemed like she was teaching Liao. Liao finally understood and was overjoyed. The third prince, with several masters, was galloping in the depths of the forest. As long as he won first place in the hunt today, he might be able to get his father's special attention. Whether it was the first prince, the eldest princess, or the sixth princess, Liya, all of them had to step aside. However, the third prince and the others had no idea that dark clouds had already covered the sky at this time. A plot targeted explicitly at him was about to arrive. At this moment, an antelope jumped over. The third prince excitedly drew his bow and shot an arrow. The experts immediately kept quiet, afraid they would disturb the antelope and the prince's mood. Whoosh! His posture was quite handsome, but unfortunately, he didn't even touch the antelope's hair. His archery skills were outrageous. How could a feathered animal escape from this king's arrow? He didn't forget to boast to cover up his embarrassment. The guards beside him could only shout powerful and helplessly follow behind him to watch the performance. At this moment, a rain of arrows was shot at their team. Keep in formation. The master who was responsible for protecting the third prince reacted quickly and immediately ordered the soldiers to get into formation. The light-armored cavalrymen quickly rushed to the front, raised their arm shields, and waved their steel knives to block the rain of arrows. Who is so bold? You dare to attack this king? The third prince shouted sternly, 
but he was actually scared to death. The person who wants your dog's life. A group of masked men of sacrifice in black jumped out and surrounded the third prince. As today was the hunt, the third prince did not bring many men with him. There were only four ninth stage grandmasters and more than thirty personal guards. However, it was obvious that the other party had planned this long ago. There were more than two hundred people lying in ambush, many of whom were ninth stage grandmasters. It would be very difficult for the third prince to survive today. You dare to kill your own kind? That's a serious crime. If the king finds out, you and your family will all die. A black-robed expert beside the third prince shouted. To be able to avoid the army that was chasing the animals, it was obvious that they were very familiar with this autumn hunt. Furthermore, more than two hundred people had appeared out of thin air so that they would be easily discovered. Therefore, it was easy to guess the identity of this group of people. They were the people of a certain prince or princess. It was a pity that threats were of no use. Death warriors were called death warriors because they were not afraid of death. In order to complete the mission, the underlings would either be willing or forced to sacrifice their lives. In order to avoid being captured after failing the mission, they would usually take poison before they carried out the mission. Protect the third prince. All troops, charge. Follow me. Seeing that there was no turning point in the situation, the black-robed man wielded his sword and shouted. Whoosh accompanied by a buzzing sound, the rain of arrows cut through the sky, forming arcs, and shot toward the third prince. It was because his fat body was more conspicuous in the crowd. Their mission to kill the target had been completed. Chapter, 195 The third prince looked at the warriors falling to the ground. He was shocked. The scene in front of him was not magnificent, it was bloody and cruel. Wherever the death warrior went, they destroyed everything and tore open a bloody path. The soldiers who were protecting the third prince were instantly defeated. Fortunately, the experts on the third prince's side were very strong. They ruthlessly reaped the lives of the enemies around them. They had to ensure the safety of this heir. The underlings quickly took control of the main road to avoid an effective counterattack organized by the third prince and to prevent the target from escaping. Although He Chuan was with Lia, he always paid attention to the assassination. Of course, he didn't want to save them. He wanted to see if there was any information about gods and demons among them. The black-robed man saw things were not going well, so he mustered all his courage and rushed out with the third prince. How could the leader of the underlings allow his target to escape and stop him personally? The black-robed expert suddenly felt as if a powerful killing intent surrounded him. It was as if the air around him had been sucked dry, making him feel suffocated. The leader of the underlings took advantage of the black-robed expert's uneasiness and used his spear like a stick, smashing it toward the other party's head. The long spear turned into a crescent moon in the air, showing the incredible power of the blow. There was no way to avoid it, so he could only fight to the death. Otherwise, he and the third prince would not be able to leave this place. The black-robed expert took a deep breath and used all his strength to block the leader of the underling's attack. Clang! The deafening sound of metal clashing against metal rang out in the air, causing the eardrums of the surrounding people to vibrate. The black-robed expert felt his arms go numb as a tremendous force poured into his body from his arms his internal organs suffered a powerful impact, and the blood in his chest churned the leader of the men of sacrifice pulled back his long spear, and the bodyguards of the third prince surrounded him. He growled, and the long spear in his hand pierced through the chest of a bodyguard like a silver meteor in the blink of an eye. Then, the long spear lifted the corpse and smashed it towards the bodyguards rushing towards him. The moral of the dead warrior soared when they saw their leader's bravery. Demonic Blade The black-robed expert was not to be trifled with. From top to bottom, the huge black sword light was indestructible. Like a flood under a broken dam, the leader of the death warrior swept forward with the power to collapse mountains and crack rocks. The leader of the death warrior did not dare to take it head-on and hurriedly dodged. However, the death warrior behind him didn't manage to dodge in time, and the black sword light took their lives. Everyone was intimidated by his aura, and the surrounding area became a vacuum. The third prince's face was stained with blood, and his stomach was churning when he smelled it. 
Everyone, attack together. Directly kill the target. The leader of the Death Warriors stopped being arrogant and ordered everyone to attack together. If the target escaped today, they would all be buried with him. The two hidden masters instantly leaped down like swallows and quickly flew toward the third prince. In the blink of an eye, they arrived before the other party. The third prince did not even have the time to shout before two sword lights went straight for his neck and chest. The momentum was rapid and extremely fast. Cough cough, protect the king. The third prince clutched his bleeding wound and fell to the ground. He was not going to survive. The sudden assassination frightened the bodyguards behind him, and they hurriedly drew their bows and shot arrows. Unfortunately, the two hidden experts were highly skilled. After blocking the arrows, they disappeared into the dense forest. Quickly find a doctor. The guard captain in charge of keeping watch was covered in a cold sweat. Once the third prince was dead, they would all be buried with him. Retreat. Seeing that the mission had been completed, the leader of the underlings retreated in an orderly manner. The entire hunting ground was in chaos. Deep in the forest. You'll be in charge of roping in the third prince's forces when you go back. You can help to recommend talented people. We won't treat you badly. One of the two assassins who tried to assassinate the third prince was actually the third prince's subordinate. I'm afraid no one would have expected this. Your subordinate thanks your excellency for your help. I will definitely not disappoint the first prince. At the same time, a man in black also appeared on the eldest princess's side. The man in black moved quickly. In one step, he was only five feet away from the eldest princess and shouted, Die! The expert beside the eldest princess hurriedly pulled out his sword to block it. Suddenly, his eyes blurred and he lost track of the black-clothed man. The man in black carried a gust of wind as he stepped lightly on the newly sprouted grass. The air around him surged, and the strong wind swept up the soil on the ground. The sword light danced and whistled in the sky. Spurt. The heart of the man in black was pierced through by the eldest princess. He fell to the ground with unwillingness in his eyes. The eldest princess was suspicious. The other party wasn't here to assassinate her, but to kill her on purpose. What is going on? The ministers in Tetumpton who were hunting were all at a loss when they suddenly received the news that the third prince had been assassinated. Before they could come to their senses, Tetumpton had sent someone to search for the soldiers and found the eldest princess's standard weapon on the assassin. The ministers were no longer calm. This was the inheritors starting to kill each other. The ministers who had witnessed this bloody case were constantly having a battle in their hearts. This subject is willing to swear fealty to the king. Someone had to take the lead. Seeing that things were not going well, a minister took the lead and shouted. The other ministers also followed suit and pledged their loyalty. Those ministers who were not determined followed suit. It was fine to secretly participate in the struggle for the successors, but now that a life had been lost, it was better to draw a clear line first. Tetumpton clenched his fists so hard that his palms were bleeding from the nails. He was not dead yet. In the past, this group of children was just fighting for power with each other. He turned a blind eye and let it pass. This was because everything had been carried out with his tacit approval. But today's premeditated assassination had already crossed his bottom line. What if the assassins today came to assassinate him? If that happened, the Xiongnu people would have to go through a long period of internal strife, and they would not have the energy to attack the great Zhou dynasty. Investigate, investigate thoroughly. Call back those unfilial sons for this king. Not long after, the princes and princesses came to Tetumpton, each with their own thoughts. All of you are my children, but what someone did today really made me angry. Lena, what do you have to say? Tetumpton ordered the soldiers to show the evidence. In addition, when the soldiers went to find the eldest princess, they happened to find the body of a man in black. Father is wise. If I wanted to assassinate my royal brother, I wouldn't have left such clear evidence. Someone must have framed me. The eldest princess quickly explained. She had now figured out why the man in black was so easily killed. It was to frame her. Hee <laughs> hee, so you're saying that you once had an idea? 
Tecumten sneered and asked. Of course, he knew that the eldest princess was not so stupid. He could even narrow down the scope to his children, but he had already lost a son. Could he lose another child? There was bound to be no follow-up to this matter, but he had to find out who was behind this. Chapter 196 The third prince's assassination had cast a shadow over the autumn hunt. However, Tetumpton was indeed a formidable figure of the grassland. Even in this situation, he still let the hunting continue. In this regard, many ministers came forward to persuade him, thinking that even the king was in danger. What if the killer came to kill Tetumpton? Do you think I'll be scared by a mere assassin? Tetumpton was eager for these assassins to come and kill him so that he could capture and interrogate them about who had ordered them to kill the third prince. Moreover, he knew very well that his children would not kill him now, at least not before the heir was decided. Seeing his insistence, the ministers didn't say anything more and just let the hunting continue. However, everyone was no longer as enthusiastic as before. In the end, they hastily finished their work and began barbecue game in the wild. This segment was Kai Lien's favorite. She didn't care who the king was as long as they didn't delay her from eating. It was rare that Lia didn't go to Tetumpton to act coquettishly today because she knew that if she said anything at this time, it would have the opposite effect, and her father might be disgusted. The wisest choice was to stay here obediently. He Chuan was also happy to be idle. Nothing was more important than drinking and enjoying the beautiful scenery of the grassland. However, some people didn't like quietness. The eldest princess walked over with enchanting steps and sat beside He Chuan. Her charming face was very calm, not nervous at all because she was framed. Sixth sister is in the mood to eat and drink, not afraid that this matter will be investigated to you. The eldest princess said. Humph. I won't use this kind of underhanded means. Big sister should be careful. You're still a suspect. Lia was not to be outdone. The other party was always blatantly trying to steal her person, which made her very unhappy. However, she couldn't do anything about it in her current situation. After all, she had to rely on He Chuan, not him. The eldest princess had been operating secretly for many years, and her influence had already taken shape. Other than the first prince, the eldest princess's influence was the greatest, so Lia could only endure it for now. She was born too late, and no one thought she could become the queen of the grassland. There's a saying in the central plains that goes. If you don't do anything wrong, you won't be afraid of ghosts knocking on your door at midnight. Although I hate third brother, he's still of some use. He can help me restrain the first prince. Now that third brother is dead, I've immediately become the target to be eliminated. The next one might be sixth sister. She was a very smart woman. The eldest princess immediately analyzed the pros and cons. If Lia was willing to cooperate, they could still resist the first prince together. Otherwise, they would be defeated one by one. Unlike Big Sister, I don't have any capable people around me. Besides Master and Sister Liena, I have no one else to rely on. Lia immediately began to cry about how poor she was, saying she had no power to rely on and could not help even if she wanted to. Young Master He Chuan is worth thousands of soldiers and horses. If Sixth Sister is willing, I'm willing to use warriors to exchange with you. The eldest princess's seductive eyes swept over He Chuan. If she had the help of this expert, her great plan would succeed. Unfortunately, Lia was not stupid. In this world where the strong were respected, saint cultivators were much more critical than the warriors. She couldn't do such a thing and didn't dare to decide for He Chuan. The eldest princess is too kind. I was a crane at night, not a warrior of thousands. He Chuan was speechless. Why did you put yourself in the middle of your fight? If he was provoked, he could directly let Lia take over by then, even the battle could be omitted. It seems that Mr. He Chuan still prefers green apples like Sixth Sister. The eldest princess saw that He Chuan wasn't listening and immediately changed the topic. It seems that the eldest princess is testing my bottom line. Do you know that this is very dangerous? If you cross the line, I might kill you. He Chuan's eyes were filled with killing intent. 
The powerful killing intent was so real that the eldest princess immediately shut her mouth in fear. He Chuan, who usually looked very gentle, was so scary when he was angry. Liya saw that the eldest princess had been defeated and immediately smiled, thinking to herself. She deserves it. Who asked her to speak so unscrupulously? This made He Chuan unhappy. Let's see if the other party would dare to come and steal her in the future. You two betches, do you think you can fight against this king by cooperating? I'll send you down to see that pig when I find the chance. Seeing the eldest princess and Liya together, the first prince could roughly guess what they were thinking. However, the first prince had absolute confidence that he would continue to deal with the eldest princess and Liya after he had taken over the third brother's forces. Liya has hunted the most this time, and I like it the most, so this tiger belongs to Liya. Tatumtan pointed at the dead tiger and said. This reward could not be said to be small. The tiger's body was full of treasures. Its skin, meat, bones, and even the man's favorite tonic, the tiger's whip. Although the royal descendants and aristocrats could also get it on a regular basis, the reward of Tatumtan was even more different. Every year, Tatumtan would keep it for himself because he also had concubines to take care of, and he would never let go of such a nourishing thing. But now, he was giving it to Lia, proving that he still doted on his daughter the most. This made the other children very jealous. He Chuan finally understood that Tatumtan didn't want to reward Lia alone, but he didn't know who to reward after the third prince's incident. Because the reward meant that he would let them do whatever they wanted, he said there was something he liked among Lia's prey today. In fact, he was basically hinting that his other children should be more honest. Otherwise, he could support whoever he wanted to, and he did not want to see an assassination again. The first prince snorted coldly to himself. He couldn't suppress his desire to kill Tatumtan and take over the throne. Tatumtan liked to eat bear paws, so bears were his favorite prey. For this reason, he did not hesitate to rear a black bear in secret, just so that he could receive a reward today and further consolidate his position. Tatumtan had actually said that the deer meat was his favorite. It was the biggest joke in the world. Thus, the first prince's ideas which had been suppressed by Gurdon continued to surge again. As long as he could kill the eldest princess and Lia, then find a way to kill Tatumtan, no one would be able to stop him from becoming the king. First Prince The king is granting wine. Gurdon saw that the first prince's expression was uncertain, and he didn't even raise his glass, so he quickly reminded him. Didn't you say that the plan was foolproof? Why didn't I get anything today? The first prince quickly raised his glass and asked Gurdon in a low voice. First prince, don't be impatient. We only need to stabilize the situation and quickly integrate the third prince's power. There's no need to do anything else. Gurdon cursed in his heart, pig brain. The first prince was already the biggest winner, yet he was still haggling over the reward for the hunt. Could it be he wanted to rebel? Tatumtan is not a fool. How could he reward you and the eldest princess? Even if the sixth princess, Lia, were not here, today's reward would not have fallen into the first prince's hands. Chapter, 197 At the end of the hunt, the biggest winner seemed to be Lia on the surface, but that was not the case. Master, did you call me here because of cultivation? I've been studying hard to improve my state of mind. Lia asked in confusion. He Chuan rarely looked for her. Other than teaching her about cultivation, they barely talked. At first, Lia thought He Chuan didn't like her, but later, she found out through Kai Lian that Master was like this no matter who he was with. Kai Lian barely spoke to him every day. Therefore, she naturally thought that it was a matter of cultivation. Since ancient times, the struggle for royal power has always been a bloody one. If you really want to fight, you must have your own power. He Chuan knew this was an opportunity for Lia to participate. Master, I'm sorry. Lia was a little embarrassed. She didn't expect He Chuan to be so open about it. Since you have the heart, I will naturally support you. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. He Chuan's goal was to use Lia to rise to the top so the gods and demons could not enter the central plains through the Xiongnu tribe. At that time, the gods and devils could only offer themselves. 
As for the eldest princess and the first prince, there were probably shadows of gods and devils controlling them. On the other hand, Liya was more innocent. Thank you for your understanding, master. I didn't want to compete with them for the position of king, but my mother told me before she died that even if I didn't fight for it, I still couldn't escape my fate. I could only sign up by holding on to my power. Leah's mother did not die of natural causes. She was poisoned by a rare poison and eventually died. Tatumtan liked Leah's mother the most, so this was also an invisible struggle in the harem. The murderer who killed her mother was not necessarily a concubine. The mother of the first prince and the eldest princess could be the murderer. She wanted revenge. Kai Lien did not expect Lia to choose to fight for the throne because of this matter. It seemed that he had wrongly blamed her earlier. There's an opportunity in front of you now. Whether you can complete it or not depends on your performance. He Chuan picked up the tiger's bone soup that Kai Lien had made and took a sip. This kind little palace maid insisted that the tiger's bone was very nourishing and good for cultivation, so she had specially asked for it from Liya. Master, please enlighten me. I will do my best to complete it. Liya was like a studious primary school student, her ears perked up as she listened intently. As the youngest daughter of the king, although you are loved by everyone, you have a fatal flaw. You don't have your own power. Everyone knew about this drawback. In fact, even He Chuan didn't have to say it, Liya herself knew it. There's nothing I can do about this. I joined too late, and the various forces have already formed their forces. Liya sighed helplessly. Her mother was an ordinary concubine and had no power to leave her. That was why she had been pretending to be innocent and lovely, wandering around to Tumtun, hoping to rely on her father. However, the Xiongnu tribe were destined to compete with each other, and Tatumtan would not help Liya to ascend the throne. The death of the third prince is the biggest opportunity. Now, the first prince and the eldest princess are both eyeing this cake, but they are both suspects for the third prince's death, and you are the least likely. He Chuan heaved a sigh of relief. The tiger penis soup did have the effect of warming and nourishing, but the taste was not flattering. If he wasn't afraid of letting Kai Lien down, he definitely wouldn't have drunk it. After hearing He Chuan's words, Lia's mind began to wander. She really did not want to use the third prince's power. Because she felt that she had nothing worthy of them following her. The people under the third prince are probably very loyal. After the master dies, isn't there only revenge left? He Chuan suggested again. Even if the first prince had planned it well, it would definitely take time to recruit this group of loyal subordinates. However, if Liya was smart enough and her methods were brilliant enough, she would be able to cut off the first prince's plans before he could. Disciple will do it right away. Liya was overjoyed and immediately left the place. If young master were to help, wouldn't sister Liya be faster? Kai Lien said as she gnawed on the roasted tiger tendrils that the kitchen had just sent over. Liena wouldn't have been moved by the story just now, would she? He Chuan reached out and rubbed Kai Lien's head. Only this kind little palace maid followed him without any goal. Even Empress Changning had a favor to ask of him. Although it wasn't entirely a conflict of interest, it wasn't that simple. Although Leah's story was wonderful, it could not be completely believed. 60% of it was true and 40% was false, and only Kai Lien would immediately believe it. Perhaps this was the reason why He Chuan liked her by his side. Damn it, that BTCH Liya actually got the whole tiger as a reward. The first prince was obviously very dissatisfied and was still thinking about the rewards from the hunt just now. First prince, was there a need to do this? It's the best result that the eldest princess didn't get a reward. The sixth princess has no one to rely on and only He Chuan is by her side. When the time comes, the imperial advisor will help to deal with it. We need to seize the third prince's power first. Gurdon felt that ever since the first prince had become a saint cultivator, he had become more self-centered. In the past, the first prince had been very supportive of his plans and would have carried them out without any hesitation. But now, he was not listening to anything. All he did was stare at the throne of the king. It was the imperial advisor again. The military counselor beside him kept talking about the imperial advisor, 
which made the first prince feel like he was a dog, a dog without dignity. How could he accept this? In fact, he had been thinking about how to break through the imperial advisor's control. As long as he became the king, he would have a chance to break free from their control. He had originally wanted to discuss with Gurdon how to deal with the state preceptor in the future, but it seemed that this Gurdon might be one of the state preceptor's men. As a prince, how could he not have a brain? He had only relied too much on Gurdon before. Perhaps even Gurdon didn't realize that his respect for the first prince was gradually decreasing, and was becoming more and more respectful to the imperial advisor. Hee hee, so you don't approve of the plan of me becoming part of the king? The first prince revealed a gentle smile, and a murderous intent flashed in his eyes. That's right. I'm sure the first prince is well aware of the imperial advisor's orders. The position of the king will be yours sooner or later, so there's no need to be so impulsive. Gurdon did not notice First Prince's killing intent and continued to use his status as the imperial advisor to exert pressure. You may leave now. I'm a little tired. The military counselor should make a detailed plan to annex the Third Prince's power as soon as possible. The First Prince said, waving his hand. Seeing that the First Prince no longer mentioned killing Tetumpton and seizing the throne, Gurdon stood up and took his leave. Is there any way to hide it from the imperial advisor and put the blame on the eldest princess for his death? The first prince revealed a crazy smile. He had challenged his bottom line time and time again, and he had already placed Gurdon on his kill list. No one could stop him from doing what he wanted to do. He would even get rid of the state preceptor. This minister will think of a way. A figure suddenly appeared in the room. It was a saint cultivator. It seemed that this first prince was not as simple as he appeared to be. Chapter, 198 In the third prince's palace, the ministers knelt before the simple tomb, crying at the body in white mourning clothes. The third prince was going to be buried tomorrow, but they didn't even know who the murderer was. The first prince and the eldest princess were the most suspicious, but unfortunately, they did not have the ability to take revenge. Before the leader passed away, he asked us to take good care of the third prince. But now, he was assassinated by a despicable man. We must avenge the third prince. That's right. We'll avenge the third prince. Revenge. This group of people was all old courtiers who had followed the third prince's mother here and were not very loyal to Tetumpton. When the Xiongnu tribe defeated them, they had no choice but to rely on them. But now that the leader's successor was dead, they had no direction, and only hatred was left in their hearts. I think it's better to find a force to follow. The first prince is a good choice. An old official in red said with his eyes half closed. What are you saying? The first prince might be our enemy, and it's delusional to rely on him. That's right. It's already kind of us not to kill him. He wants us to submit to him. The proposal was immediately met with strong opposition. The people present were not fools. The first prince was most likely the murderer, although they could not rule out the possibility the eldest princess had directed and acted out a good show. However, the first prince was definitely more suspicious. This was an undeniable fact. Now that he proposed relying on other forces, some loyal ministers were naturally unwilling. Do you think I'm willing to do so? But since things have come to this, I have no choice but to rely on other forces. Do you want to make yourself a king? Otherwise, when the first prince ascends to the throne, no one will be able to escape. The red-robed old official immediately said with a righteous tone. These words silenced everyone. The master that they had followed had died, so they were now rootless duckweed. Even if they didn't have to rely on the first prince, they had to choose one. Otherwise, they wouldn't even have the chance to stand on a side when someone inherited the throne. The newly appointed king would definitely eradicate his dissidents, and they would become his targets. No matter what, I still don't agree to join the first prince's camp, at least until the real murderer is found. Another blue-robed old official stood out and said. The blue-robed old official's words immediately resonated with the crowd. It was clear how important he was to them. Just as this group of people quarreled, they suddenly heard that the sixth princess had come to offer her condolences to the third prince. Lia came in with her two attendants, lit three joss sticks, and bowed. 
Her actions touched the third prince's loyal subjects. From the beginning until now, only Tutumtun had come for a visit, and the rest of his brothers and sisters seemed as if nothing had happened. Even if he died, no one was willing to come and pay their respects to the third prince. Family ties were worthless in front of them. Therefore, now that Lia was here, everyone could not help but change their opinion of the sixth princess. No matter if she was sincere or not, at least Lia was willing to come and pay her respects. That was enough. Third brother, don't worry. Lia swears by the god of the prairie that she will catch the murderer who tried to kill you and bring his head to your grave to pay respects. Lia's gaze was firm as she raised three fingers and swore. Thank you, sixth princess. We are willing to follow you as long as you help avenge the third prince. The old official in blue hurriedly took the lead and knelt down. The god of the prairie was their totem, and they couldn't go back on their words. It was as if they had found their backbone. If they could bring Lia to the throne, whether it was the first prince or the eldest princess, they would be able to get their revenge. Who knows if she's telling the truth? Everyone, don't be fooled by her. She might be the one who killed the third prince. Seeing that most of the people were ready to follow Lia, the old official in red immediately jumped out to object. Humph. This princess is not interested in you at all. I just want to help my third brother take revenge, but you didn't treasure it and immediately jumped out to object. Doesn't this mean that you know something? Catch him. Lia was smart and immediately thought of the reason. Even if this old official in red did not agree to follow her, he should not have jumped out now and accused her of being a murderer. Even a fool would know that the most suspicious people were the first prince and the eldest princess. The sixth princess is right. He just said he wanted to follow the first prince. Capture and interrogate him. Everyone, attack together. Only then did the crowd realize that the person in front of them was most likely the first prince's man. If they caught him, they might be able to interrogate him about the assassination. Where are you running to? When Lia saw that the old official in red wanted to escape, she immediately pulled out her three-foot-long Qinfeng sword and disappeared from where she was like a ghost, instantly appearing behind him. Buzz! The sword energy instantly tore through the air and directly entered the back of the old official in red. The other party immediately lost all signs of life. She was not prepared to capture him alive. Even with the support of her forces, she felt that she was still at a disadvantage and was not in a good position to fight the first prince head-on. It was best if this person died, or she would have to face the first prince's anger directly. But what Lia did not know was with each one's strength, even if all the experts of the Xiongnu tribe attacked him together, they might not be his match. Her understanding of Hichuan was too shallow. Thank you for killing the traitor, sixth princess. From now on, we will respect you. The blue-robed old official was also a senior and experienced man. How could he not know what Lia was thinking? At that moment, he no longer mentioned the matter of the first prince. We are willing to pledge our loyalty to the sixth princess. The other people present also expressed their opinions. The sixth princess, Lia, had successfully taken over the third prince's forces. There was a huge wave of disdain in the Xiongnu tribe. This meant that Lia's feathers gradually plummeted and she had her own force. She had more bargaining chips in the fight for the successor. Tatumtan was very satisfied with this. He had already heard about what had happened that night. Only Lia was willing to pay her respects to the third prince so that she could take over the third prince's forces. The eldest princess didn't say anything and even came to congratulate him. Because in the eldest princess's opinion, Leah's appearance would help her share the burden. In the past few days, whether in public or private, the first prince had been making trouble for the eldest princess, and everyone knew that he wanted to get rid of her. Damn it, this little slut actually dared to steal my things. This king will make her unable to live or die. He had painstakingly set up a scheme to assassinate the third prince, but it was all for Lia in the end. How could the first prince tolerate this? He swore that he would kill Lia and make her die more miserably than the third prince. First prince, don't be anxious. This matter is indeed unexpected, but fortunately, the power has not fallen into the hands of the eldest princess. Gurdon persuaded. He had just killed the third prince, 
and now he was going to kill the sixth princess, Liao. Wasn't he not putting the king, to Tumten, in his eyes? It was not good for their follow-up plans. Humph. Isn't this your plan? You've repeatedly assured this king that it is well planned. The first prince was extremely displeased with Gurdon. Chapter, 199 The first prince shouldn't have forgotten the imperial advisor's plan. If the imperial advisor is not satisfied Gurdon's heart skipped a beat when he saw the first prince's bloodthirsty gaze, and he quickly mentioned the mysterious imperial advisor. He didn't know that this would only make him die faster. This was because the first prince had long wanted to kill Gurdon. Then, according to you, what should we do next? The first prince asked coldly. It's better to win in a stable way. First, we must find a way to make the eldest princess lose the people's hearts. Whether it's intimidating or enticing, we have to make them stand on the first prince's side. Then we can deal with the sixth princess. Gurdon revealed his plan. Go to the eldest princess's side. After all, it's her birthday today. We have to give her some face. The first prince took out a sealed jade box and placed it in Gurdon's hands. The jade box was carved with beautiful patterns. Just this jade box alone was worth a lot. Gurdon bowed and left the tent with the jade box. Kill him and frame the eldest princess, then execute this king's plan. The first prince said to the void. A ripple appeared in the quiet space. The birthday of the flower of the Xiongnu tribe, to Tumpton's eldest daughter, was naturally a big event. After all, some people were still waiting for the eldest princess to become the queen of the grassland, and their status would also rise with the tide. He Chuan, who received the invitation, was a little speechless. He didn't want to attend any birthday parties. In fact, he had never celebrated his birthday in all the years he had been here. However, Leah's relationship with the eldest princess was quite good recently, so after Leah's repeated pleas, he casually picked out a gift in the system space and brought Kai Lien to the eldest princess palace. The palace was bustling with noise and excitement. The various ministers greeted each other and discussed the recent matters of the Xiongnu tribe. He Chuan chose an inconspicuous seat and sat down with Kai Lien. He was in charge of drinking, and Kai Lien was in charge of eating. The people around him came over to toast and greet him, but He Chuan always had a calm smile on his face. There was a kind of feeling of rejecting people a thousand miles away, but no one could find fault with it. Today's protagonist, the eldest princess, was dressed to the nines. Her hair was tied up in a high bun, full of pearls and jade, and her extravagant aura was compelling. Her skin was delicate without a single wrinkle, and her almond shaped eyes were watery. In the blink of an eye, Spring was born. The tight fitting and luxurious embroidered dress accentuated her voluptuous figure, revealing an indescribable lust. Her voluptuous breasts were especially eye catching as if they were about to burst out of her clothes. However, her face was reserved, giving off an air of inviolability. He Chuan could even hear the sound of men swallowing. It had to be said that the eldest princess's appearance and figure were top grade, especially when she exuded an exotic aura. Kai Lien looked at the other party with some envy. She lowered her head to look at her small body and then began eating. Thank you, everyone, for coming to my birthday despite your busy schedules the eldest princess gave a long speech. The main goal was to win people's hearts. This gave the people below more confidence. On the other hand, Lia sat below the eldest princess, clapping her little hands as if she were a fangirl of her big sister. However, everyone knew that they could not underestimate the sixth princess. She could easily take down the third prince's forces, so who dared to look down on her? Next up was the segment about giving birthday presents. The ministers all displayed their abilities. Some of them had heard of it, while others had never heard of it. Sixth Princess Lia has gifted a pair of hundred-year blood corals. Blood coral was also known as the swallow's nest. It contained a large amount of colloid, iron, calcium, underwater yeast, water-soluble fiber, a variety of vitamins, and minerals. It could remove wrinkles and black spots, nourish the blood, accelerate abdominal and fat metabolism, have had the effects of clearing the intestines and maintaining beauty. This kind of thing was women's favorite. And a hundred-year-old blood coral was an excellent thing. 
Not only did it have a beautifying effect, but it could also significantly increase one's strength. Leah's generosity stunned the eldest princess. It was a plastic sisterly relationship, to begin with. People who didn't know would think that the two of them were very close. Thank you, sixth sister. I really like your gift. The eldest princess said with a smile. She really liked this gift. Big sister, you don't have to be so polite. You and I are related by blood, so sisters should help each other. Leah's words had a hidden meaning. They had to work together to fight against the first prince before deciding on the victor. Sixth sister is right, and we should help each other. The eldest princess had been waiting for Leah to say this. The first prince was the most powerful now. If they still fought with each other, they would be easily defeated by the first prince. The surrounding ministers clapped their hands and cheered for the drama the two sisters were putting on. Master He Chuan has given a youth retaining pill. The MC shouted again. This made the present guests exclaim again. The youth retaining pill was definitely something that women dreamed of, and some women were even willing to fight for it. I took a brush from the void and decorated you with a beautiful face. A teardrop fell from the corner of your eyebrows, that robust youth. It was the essence of the youth retaining pill, hiding the dreams of the young girls. This poem could indirectly explain the value of the youth retaining pill, a treasure countless women yearned for. Even in death, they wanted to die with their most beautiful faces. What the MC said next made them even more surprised. Young Master He Chuan has written that this bottle of youth retaining pills can not only keep you young, but it also has another effect. After you take it, you will immediately grow in reverse and return to your appearance from three years ago. As soon as these words came out, the whole place boiled over. Even the eldest princess was surprised. There was such a pill in this world. After eating it, not only can it maintain one's appearance, but it can also reverse the growth. She didn't really believe it. It wasn't just the eldest princess who didn't believe it. No one present could believe it. Although He Chuan came from the mysterious central plains and was very powerful, being able to guide Liya to the Xientian ninth stage rank in a short time, they still did not believe that he could take out such a heaven-defying pill. How can such a pill exist in this world? I don't believe it. Yes, we don't believe it. How could there be a reverse growth pill? Could it be that young master He Chuan is trying to fool the eldest princess? Some men who were interested in the eldest princess began to verbally attack He Chuan. They didn't want a certain someone to be in the limelight. Everyone, please calm down. We'll know if it's true or not after we try. The eldest princess saw that He Chuan was still as calm as ever and was very confident in himself. She took the porcelain bottle of the youth retaining pill and poured out the pill inside. A strong medicinal fragrance spread. The eldest princess swallowed it in front of everyone. Something incredible happened. The eldest princess's skin changed visibly. After being exposed to the wind and sun on the grassland, her slightly dull skin instantly became white. Look, the eldest princess seems to have changed. She's become younger. Yeah, the skin on her face has become more elastic and more beautiful. Chapter 200 the youth retaining pill really had such an effect. This made everyone present exclaim in admiration, and they instantly surrounded He Chuan with burning eyes. He Chuan didn't care about this. The system's products were definitely of the highest quality. This small matter wasn't worth being surprised about. He was very calm, but the others were calm. Could could this be the effect of the youth retaining pill? FCK does the youth retaining pill indeed have a reverse growth effect? This is too godly. If this pill is real, how much would it sell for? All the women present could not wait to push He Chuan over and then plunder the youth retaining pill from him. This was definitely the ultimate dream of women. In fact, not only the women present but some men were also afraid of getting old. If they could become young, it would not be a dream to find a few more wives while everyone was still in shock. The eldest princess also reacted. It seemed that the youth retaining pill was indeed very magical, but she couldn't see the changes in herself. What are you guys doing? Go and get the bronze mirror for the eldest princess. The maid beside her quickly said. 
An upright bronze mirror as tall as a person was placed in front of the eldest princess. The eldest princess's reflection appeared in the mirror. I've really become beautiful. I really become a few years younger. The eldest princess couldn't help but mutter. She was also a woman, so she was naturally very concerned about her appearance. Young Master He Chuan, do you still have more of these youth retaining pills? Just tell me how much you want. Yes, as long as young Master He Chuan asks, I'll give you my most beloved concubine. Hearing all kinds of requests, He Chuan almost turned around and left. It was one thing for other people to give concubines, but a minister in his fifties actually wanted to give his first wife. Wasn't this taking advantage of him? I obtained the youth retaining pill by chance. There's no more. He Chuan shook his head. He had never seen this piece of crap in the system space. If it weren't for the eldest princess's birthday today, this youth retaining pill probably wouldn't be able to see the light of day because this kind of thing was even more useless to him. When they heard that there was only one youth retaining pill, the others immediately became disappointed. Thinking about it, it was probably impossible to have too many of these heaven defying things. Thank you, young master He Chuan. This is my favorite gift. The eldest princess smiled charmingly at He Chuan. As long as this man wanted it, she was willing to give up her body. He had a mysterious background and mighty strength. Unexpectedly, he had so many good things on him. Unfortunately, now that she had reached an agreement with Lia, she could not continue poaching him. She could only find another opportunity to tempt He Chuan. The king of the Xiongnu has sent a jade eagle, wishing the eldest princess to soar into the sky like an eagle. The MC continued to shout. Tatumtan's gift wasn't expensive, but it had a good meaning. Obviously, Tatumtan still liked his eldest daughter. The first prince has a gift for you. The MC looked at the words on the gift list but didn't say what it was. He didn't dare to make wild guesses and could only speak the truth. The eldest princess frowned. The first prince was actually giving her a gift. It was clearly a weasel paying a New Year's visit to a chicken. He had no good intentions. He Chuan, who was sitting in the corner, was a little curious. It was indeed unexpected that the first prince would give the eldest princess a gift. He immediately used his divine eyes to see through the surface of the jade box and see what was inside. As expected, he knew the first prince would not be so kind. There was going to be a good show to watch. Eldest princess, what do we do now? Should we open it? Her personal maid asked in a whisper. The gifts from the nobles had to be opened, or else the MC would not be able to continue to speak. The main thing was the first prince and the eldest princess were not on good terms, so he would definitely not give anything good. If she didn't open it, the eldest princess would instantly become immature and wouldn't even dare to open the gift. Others would question her prestige. She was in a dilemma. Open it. With so many people watching, the eldest princess definitely couldn't be afraid. She had to open it and have a look, and then the MC would sing a thank you song. Under everyone's expectant gaze, the MC slowly opened the jade box. He still didn't know what it was. Perhaps he was afraid that the MC would see the item and close the box, so the first prince had specially wrapped it in red cloth. He wanted to show off his birthday present in front of everyone. The MC turned to look at the eldest princess. After getting an affirmative answer, he gradually took out the thing inside the red cloth. Silence. The hall, which had been bustling with noise just now, immediately became extremely quiet. They didn't know whether to laugh or cry, and some even wanted to scold the first prince. Kai Lien shyly covered her eyes and continued to peek through the gaps between her fingers. The eldest princess's face immediately turned livid. She stepped forward, threw the things on the ground, and then announced that the MC would continue reading the next gift. Looking at her heaving chest, she was obviously outraged, but the key was that she couldn't flip out. This was because the first prince's gift was a man's weapon made of jade. Now, it was somewhat insulting. In other words, she was an old woman that no one wanted. Detestable bastard, this princess will definitely make you suffer. The eldest princess suppressed the anger in her heart with great difficulty. She had thought about what the first prince could give her. 
Even if she had to send him to his grave, she could still bear it because that would prove that the first prince was brainless and others would look down on him. Sending coffins to his siblings' birthday parties. However, no one could find any fault in giving such a thing. After all, the eldest princess was still single. She had nowhere to vent her anger, and even if she wanted to counterattack, it would only hit cotton. This first prince is quite interesting. It seems like the eldest princess and Lia have underestimated him in the past. He Chuan said as he touched his smooth chin. He knew that things weren't that simple. They couldn't give out such an item just to anger the eldest princess. This matter would, at most, become a temporary joke in the tribe. The Xiongnu tribe was open-minded, so no one would take it to heart. He Chuan released his divine sense and caught sight of Gurdon, who had just sent over the gift. The other party had already become a corpse. It seemed that the first prince could no longer sit still. Tomorrow's show would be even more exciting. However, all of this had nothing to do with him. He only needed to enjoy this interesting show silently. The eldest princess didn't know that a black pot was still waiting for her. After counting the gifts, she gave a long speech again and announced the official start of the banquet. The maids entered the room from both sides of the door, holding all kinds of delicious food in their hands. So it's the appetizer in front. Kai Lian rubbed her stomach. She had eaten too much just now and didn't know that all the good food was behind. She regretted eating so much just now. He Chuan found her silly look a little funny. It's your fault for eating so much just now. You must be regretting it now. He said as he rubbed Kai Lian's head. It's okay, there's still room in my stomach. This was Kai Lian's last stubbornness, and food must not be let down. As all the delicacies were served, the guests in the hall began to toast and drink with each other to bond. Lia had a smile on her face as she talked and laughed with the eldest princess. However, no one knew what they were all thinking. Chapter 201 The eldest princess was so embarrassed that she became angry after receiving the gift and actually killed the first prince's subordinate. This news quickly spread throughout the Xiongnu tribe. It was like the eldest princess, who liked to seduce men on the surface but liked women behind their backs. All kinds of bad news about the eldest princess was everywhere. Your Highness, the first prince, has gone too far. How could he frame you like this? Should we fight back? The personal maid massaged the eldest princess's shoulders with an unhappy tone. Fight back. How could we retaliate? Are we going to kill him? Or are you just as despicable as him? coming up with such useless information. Although the eldest princess was angry, she had to endure it for now. Because the gift from the first prince at the birthday banquet had indeed made her angry, if she fought back, she would leave the impression that she was vengeful for the slightest grievance and was shrewd, which would not be suitable for winning over the ministers. She didn't quite understand. It was said that Gurdon was an important strategist on the first prince's side and had given him a lot of advice. Even the assassination of the third prince was part of his plan. Wasn't the price of this framing a little too high? It was better to change to a worthless scapegoat and take the opportunity to make trouble. So the eldest princess couldn't understand the meaning behind it. In her eyes, this move was a stupid one. The first prince's bedroom. The imperial advisor sat on his chair with a dark expression. Gurdon was someone he had arranged, but now he was dead. This made him very unhappy. It's all the eldest princess, that slut's doing. It's just a gift, but I didn't expect her to fly into a rage out of humiliation and kill to silence him. The first prince said, pretending to be innocent. The first prince had been preparing for this for a long time, and Gurdon didn't even care about him. All he talked about was the imperial advisor. How could he endure this? This tactic of killing with a borrowed knife was just right. Probably no one would think that it was a self-directed show by him. Oh, is that true? The imperial advisor looked at the first prince calmly as if he was trying to find something from him. Killing people because of gifts. The eldest princess wasn't that stupid. The imperial advisor felt that the truth was still open to discussion. Actually, I don't know if it's the eldest princess is doing. It's possible that the sixth princess took the opportunity to make a move and deliberately put the blame on her. 
she's been very well off recently. Not only does she have the help of powerful people, but she also takes the opportunity to pick up trash and win over the third prince's power. The first prince smacked the table angrily, changing the topic to Liao. He didn't know if the imperial adviser had noticed, but he was sure the other party still needed him. Therefore, they would not fall out with each other. Sixth Princess Liao There's news from the Central Plains that Lana has failed. It's said that a mysterious expert killed her. The imperial adviser fiddled with his slender fingers, wondering how the first prince would deal with this matter. Lana failed. The first prince was stunned. He had heard that the emperor of the Zhou dynasty was obsessed with beauty. How could he fail the mission? Moreover, Lana, who was sent over, should be in the saint cultivation realm. Even if she couldn't win, she could probably run away. Now that she had been killed, it proved that this mysterious master of the Zhou dynasty was at least a third-stage saint cultivator. The central plains was indeed full of crouching tigers and hidden dragons. That's right. If the gods knew about this, they would definitely be furious. So, what's your plan? The imperial advisor asked on purpose. The first prince's heart skipped a beat. Was the mysterious imperial advisor in front of him testing him or asking him to speed things up? I think it's better to dissolve the eldest princess's power first, then officially take the position to avoid affecting your plan. He hesitated for a long time, but still didn't dare to say what he was thinking. Because he didn't know what the other party's goal was. Very good. I didn't expect your highness to remember my plan still. As long as you follow the plan, I'll help you break through to the Saint Cultivator realm. After the Imperial Advisor finished speaking, his figure disappeared. You've indeed treated this king as a loyal dog from the beginning to the end. The plan needs to be executed as soon as possible. Are you confident in getting rid of the Imperial Advisor? The First Prince said to the Void. The expert beside the First Prince did not appear, but his voice rang out in the empty palace. Excellent. This way, no one can stop this king from ascending to the throne. When the time comes, I'll execute everyone who stands in my way. The first prince was overjoyed to hear that he had a 70% chance of killing the imperial advisor. He didn't care about God's plan. Maybe it was something that the imperial advisor had made up. The purpose was to scare him. Wasn't it just a saint cultivator? He also had one by his side. The wind was warm and the sun was bright. It was another perfect day, and Leah's mood was no different from the weather. Not only had she taken in the third prince's forces, but she was also about to break through to be a half-step saint cultivator. She could stand up to the first prince, and the scales of victory were gradually tilting in her favor. Kai Lien skillfully laid out an orican ceiling array. She had learned a lot from He Chuan over the years. What's there to be happy about? Kai Lien asked in confusion when she saw Leah's excited face. A half-step saint cultivator hadn't even touched the actual threshold of martial arts. Was it worth it to be so excited? She didn't feel anything when she broke through to the saint cultivation realm back then because Su Xian told her this was only the beginning. An expert like Sister Kai Lien, of course, doesn't understand what I'm thinking. If I were half as good as you, I would wake up laughing in my dreams Lia flattered her without a trace. It was a pity that Kai Lien did not feel happy about such flattering words. He Chuan was still the same, lying on the rocking chair and reading the Taishian scripture in his hand. The more he read, the more he felt it was exquisite. There was indeed a fundamental difference between cultivation and martial arts. Martial artists focused on tempering their bodies and souls, pursuing their own destructive power and the harmony of their moves, and improving their own martial virtue and martial arts realm. On the other hand, the immortal cultivator's goal was to remove the false and retain the truth, to pursue the extraordinary and immortal body, as well as to improve the state of mind and the eternal soul. The goal and essence of the two were different, but the process and starting point overlapped and repeated. In fact, since ancient times, most cultivators had practiced martial arts and medical skills at the same time. Martial artists could also enter the Tao with martial arts and further cultivate the immortal Tao. However, it was easier to enter the Tao through cultivation, but it was more difficult to practice martial arts. What are you looking at, Master? 
Li Ya ran to He Chuan's side and asked while Kai Lian was setting up the formation. A Taoist scripture, are you interested? He Chuan didn't even lift his gaze as he continued to explore the mysteries of the Taishian scripture. Reading scriptures. I'm not interested. Liya waved her hands repeatedly. She was already a little tired of reading these days, let alone reading scriptures. She really couldn't figure out why this master of hers looked like he was in his seventies or eighties, always so carefree and at ease. He wasn't as mysterious as the other experts, nor was he as full of himself as the other experts. Instead, he was more like an ordinary person. Chapter 202 With the help of He Chuan's pills, Liya's breakthrough went unusually smoothly, as if everything was natural. Liya felt the surging true energy in her body and wished she could immediately raise her head to the sky and roar. Only then could she express the joy in her heart. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Sister Kai Lian, for your help. She quickly thanked Yi Chuan. You're still far from that. There's nothing to be proud of about being a half-step saint cultivator. You can't slack off on your cultivation, or your realm will end here. He Chuan poured cold water on her out of habit. Whether it was Empress Changming or Kai Lian, he would always pour cold water on them when they broke through. Aya, Master, can't you let me be happy for a while? Liya pouted her little mouth. The joy of her breakthrough instantly vanished. This was a realm that many people dreamed of, but it was worthless in front of He Chuan. It was not even worth being happy about. You'll have plenty of time to be happy on the day you're killed. He Chuan continued reading. When he had broken through, he had always considered the dangers of the outside world. Thus, he had never been happy about it. Recently, most of the items he had checked in with the system were no longer in use. The system prompted him to go to a more special place to get good items. This made him even more cautious. This meant that there were many unknown places in this world. Young Master is doing this for Sister Leah's own good. It's not too late to be happy for a while after you break through to the Saint Cultivator. Kai Lian agreed with He Chuan's point of view. Saint Cultivator. That sounds so far away. Liya felt it was too much of a blow to be with them. Breaking through to the Saint Cultivator realm was only something worth being happy about for a short while. Lana failed. Tatumton sat on the throne and looked at the scout in front of him, asking coldly. Yes, the Emperor of the Great Zhou has already passed the throne to the new Empress. The situation in the Great Zhou has stabilized, and it is not suitable for the Xiongnu to attack now. The scout said respectfully. The Empress? It seems that the mysterious man who intervened is very bold. He actually allowed the Zhou dynasty to have an Empress. Tatumton said in disbelief. In the history of the great Zhou dynasty, there had never been a female emperor. What a world-shaking event this was. After the changes, it was announced that the Xiongnu invasion plan had temporarily failed, so they could only plan for the long term. Help me send a letter to the Lord. Tell him there's a change in plans and the honey trap won't work anymore. Tatumton was also somewhat helpless. The gods and demons were behind the Xiongnu invasion plan. He Chuan withdrew his divine sense. According to the current situation, the first prince, the eldest princess, and Tatumton did not belong to the same forces. From this, it could be seen that there was a competitive relationship between gods and demons. Or rather, the mysterious treasures of the central plains were things that even gods and devils wanted for themselves. What was it that caused the gods and demons to fight against each other and support their own delegates? No matter what it is, it can't fall into the hands of the outer realms he waved his hand at the sky, and a white gerfalcon landed. This was Leah's gift to Kai Lien, and Kai Lien really liked this pure white jade-clawed gerfalcon. Gerfalcons had thick and long beaks, and the upper part of their tarsus was covered with feathers. Both genders are the same color, and their beaks and claws are like iron hooks flying fast and high. They could catch wild swans, wild ducks, rabbits, and jackals. Every spring, the Khans of the Xiongnu tribe would release gerfalcons to capture swans near the river. When they caught the first swan, they would throw a feast to celebrate. It was called the First Swan Feast. When catching the gerfalcon, 
they first used three stones to form a frame on the hillside facing the sun, symbolizing the golden tower and divine hall on the ninth heaven of the eagle god realm. There was a mountain rock inside, representing the divine mountain where the eagle god lived. Finally, they planted grass as incense and used wine as a sacrifice. Then, they set up a net to catch the eagle. The net was three meters long and one meter wide. A pigeon or a dead chicken was tied to the net as bait. The eagle hunter hid in the shack camouflaged with branches and waited for the eagle to come. Sometimes, eagle catchers had to squat for dozens of days. They were called crouching eagles. The eagle circled down from the sky, caught the bait, and was caught. After capturing the gerfalcon, they would immediately send it to the tribe's royal family to enjoy. Little White. Why are you running around? Kai Lien looked at the gerfalcon on He Chuan's shoulder and said with some dissatisfaction. He Chuan's face was filled with black lines. The name of the most precious jade claw gerfalcon was also unique. I was the one who summoned it down to help deliver a letter. He Chuan touched Little White's head. This fellow had been fed well since it was young. Other gerfalcons ate meat at most, but it grew up eating the pills rewarded by the system. Therefore, not only was it larger than the average gerfalcon, but it was also more intelligent. When it saw Kai Lien coming over, it called out twice to please her. It was young master who asked it to deliver the letter. Kai Lien thought that she had encountered something. There might be some changes in the Xiongnu people. I'll inform Changning and ask her to find the so-called treasure. He Chuan tied the letter he had prepared in advance to Little White's feet and fed it two pills. Little White flapped its wings and flew up, quickly disappearing from their sight. What kind of treasure is it that is worth all these people's efforts? Kai Lien looked up at the sky with some reluctance. Usually, when she was bored, she would talk to Little White. I don't know what it is, but it must be very important to the Central Plains. Otherwise, why would these gods and devils spend so much effort to find it? He Chuan shook his head. Now that news of Lana's death had reached there. He wondered what new actions they would take. He definitely wouldn't let this matter rest. Liener still feels that it's best to stay by young master's side. You don't have to worry about the troubles of the world and can be free all day. Kai Lien reminisced about her life in the library. Although it was boring back then, it was very fulfilling. There was no need to scheme against each other. When she first came out, she was delighted. -y. She felt that being able to play and taste all kinds of delicious food was the life she wanted. Unfortunately, as time passed, she wanted to return to her previous life. You've become so sentimental at such a young age. Aren't you living a carefree life now? You can even eat delicious food every day. He Chuan rubbed Kai Lien's head and said with a smile. I'm not young anymore. Liener has been with you for five years and three months. Kai Lien counted the days with her fingers. Cultivation knew no time. Only then did He Chuan react. Kai Lien was already twenty years old and was no longer the little palace maid she had been. Liener, if you have any unfulfilled wishes, feel free to do it. He didn't know if the other party had any wishes and had never asked before. Does young master want to chase Liener away? I just want to stay by young master's side. Kai Lien immediately became aggrieved, tears welling up in her eyes. Cough. I'm just afraid that you'll miss your family or have any wishes you want to fulfill. You can come back to me after you've fulfilled them. He Chuan quickly explained. He didn't want to see a woman crying. Young master is Lien's family, hearing He Chuan's explanation, Kai Lien smiled again. Since her family sold her to the palace, she had already given up. Kai Lien was indeed kind, but she was definitely not stupid. Chapter 203 the Great Zhou Dynasty. In front of him was a magnificent palace. A golden plaque was erected on the end of the door, and the words Longevity Palace were inlaid on it. Many palace maids and eunuchs were standing in the corridor that surrounded the palace. An old eunuch with white eyebrows stood on the jade steps of the palace door. When he saw Fang Yuanqing get off the carriage, he quickly came up to him and bowed. He chuckled and said, Prime Minister Fang, her Majesty has been waiting for a long time. 
The white-browed eunuch surname was Nia, and his name was Yuan. He looked very old, but his body was very healthy. His face was ruddy and his skin was white. He wore a dark red eunuch uniform and held a ceremonial scepter in his arms that glowed with a green light. He was the eunuch of a half-step saint cultivator, and he was responsible for the safety of Empress Changning. In fact, as a saint cultivator, she didn't need the protection of a half-step saint cultivator. However, if the empress makes a move personally, it would damage her dignity. Moreover, the empress was pregnant now, so it was not appropriate to make a move. Fang Yuanqing nodded and walked into the longevity palace. Empress Changning was playing with a handsome jerfalcon in her arms it didn't look like an ordinary one. This minister greets your majesty. This jerfalcon does not have a single strand of stray hair on its body. It is truly a rare creature, and this minister is also very envious. Fang Yuanqing looked at the jerfalcon who was on guard against him, he indeed liked it very much. He didn't expect this thing to have a spirit and know how to protect its master. Minister Fang likes it, I also like it, but it's a pity that it's here to deliver a letter. Empress Changning waved her sleeves and the letter landed in front of Fang Yuanqing. Fang Yuanqing received the letter with both hands and read it carefully. So it's a letter from Duke He. What kind of treasure does my central plains have that the demons from the outer realms are eyeing it? Fang Yuanqing was also curious. He had thought that it was a simple Xiongnu invasion, but he did not expect it to involve so many things. There were even legendary gods and devils. As Empress Changning's husband, He Chuan naturally could not continue to address him as 9,000 years old. This was something he had prepared for the head eunuch Wei Jing Chun at that time. Hence, after some discussion, He Chuan was conferred the title of Duke. It seems that we have to be wary of these devils from the outer realms, fortunately. My husband has sent back news from the Xiongnu tribe. Empress Changning patted Little White's head and tied the letter of longing to its feet. She hadn't expected that those three days would still be of use, and she had successfully gotten pregnant with Yichuan's child. The great Zhou dynasty finally had an heir. This also gave the ministers hope, and the stone in their hearts was finally lifted. Such a large country must have an heir. Little White rubbed against Empress Changning's stomach as if it could feel a new life. Under their reluctant gazes, it disappeared into the night. Duke He is truly a heavenly being. Even the jerfalcon he raised is so spiritual. It even knows how to give Her Majesty blessings. Fang Yuanqing's bootlicking skills were so good that no one could tell that he was just trying to flatter them. This was the art of language. Minister Fang, there's no need to be envious. In my letter, I've already asked my husband to help me find this kind of high-grade jerfalcon, so I'll just give you one. Empress Changning stroked her bulging belly happily, her pretty face glowing with a motherly glow. Many thanks, your majesty. Fang Yuanqing quickly thanked her. I will have to trouble Prime Minister Fang with the Xiongnu matter. When the time comes, I will come up with a plan. As for the matter of finding the treasure, I feel that it is not appropriate to make it public. It will be better to do it quietly. Empress Changning said after some thought. They did not know if this treasure was related to the fate of the Zhou dynasty, so Changning only found Fang Yuanqing to come. It was not appropriate to let too many people know about this. Your Majesty's overthinking is very reasonable. No matter what treasure it is, it's best if it's controlled by the imperial court. Don't think that the seven major sects have shut themselves in because of Duke He's suppression. Once the foundation of the great Zhou dynasty is unstable, they'll definitely jump out. Fang Yuanqing understood this group of people too well. When you were strong, they would pretend to surrender. Once you were weak, they would jump out and devour you. Humph. The seven major sects are part of the martial arts world of the Central Plains, yet they want to go against the Zhou dynasty in every way possible. They're far worse than those reclusive sects. If they dare to jump out again, don't blame me for turning the seven major sects into history. Empress Changning's eyes emitted a dangerous light. If the seven great sects were willing to help deal with the evil forces of the outer realms, the Zhou dynasty would have had a much easier time. Actually, regarding the situation of the seven great sects, I have an idea. 
Fang Yuanqing had already thought of a solution when the seven great sects participated in the previous rebellion of the vassal states. When Chengen had been confused, he had already come up with a plan. Unfortunately, Chengen had no time for political affairs at that time, so his plan was put on hold. Now that he had brought up the past again, Fang Yuanqing felt that it was time to execute his plan. Prime Minister Fang, please tell me. Empress Changning wanted to see what Fang Yuanqing had in mind. The world bustles for profit, and the people bustle for profit. The seven great sects are actually not of one heart. Your Majesty, why don't you let them decide who is better? Fang Yuanqing stroked his beard and smiled. Let's decide who's stronger. Empress Changning's eyes instantly lit up. Since ancient times, there had never been a first in literature and a second in martial arts. Of course, there were also competitions between the various sects. Each of the seven major sects had its own glorious times. In the past thirty years, Shaolin and Wudong were publicly acknowledged as the big stars in the martial arts world. However, it was still unknown who was more skilled. The Great Zhou can hold a royal martial arts competition, whether it's for the people of the martial arts world or the seven great sects. At that time, Her Majesty can bestow the plaque of the number one in the world. The alliance of the seven great sects will collapse on its own. Fang Yuanqing was indeed an old fox, he could actually think of a strategy to kill with a blunt knife. Moreover, it would not cost the imperial court a single soldier. It was just an empty title bestowed by the emperor. This is a brilliant plan. Prime Minister Fang, please take care of it together with the Ministry of Revenue and the Ministry of Justice. No accidents are allowed. Empress Changning nodded in satisfaction. This plan was indeed brilliant. None of the seven great sects wanted to be suppressed. If they had the plaque bestowed by the emperor, then they would definitely fight to the death for it, and at that time, the alliance of the seven major sects would be broken. They might even kill each other. Even though they knew it was a scheme, the seven major sects would still fall for it. After all, how many people could resist the temptation of being the number one in the world? The news that the great Zhou dynasty was holding a national martial arts competition spread like wildfire. The various large sects had also received the news. The empress of the Zhou dynasty said that the great Zhou was established through martial arts and could not lose its roots. Thus, the ban on the seven great sects was temporarily lifted, and everyone could participate. The winner would not only be able to enter the national treasury to choose a weapon, but also receive a plaque bestowed by the empress. This was a supreme honor. Because in everyone's eyes, the Zhou dynasty was the center of the world, and the most powerful martial arts also came from the central plains. If anyone could obtain a plaque bestowed by the emperor, it would prove that he was truly the number one in the world. The Wudang clan and the Shaolin temple saw the trick and advised everyone not to participate in it, in case they fell into the imperial court scheme. However, the other sects didn't care. So what if it was the imperial court scheme? It was just a martial arts competition. It would be better if Shaolin and Wudang didn't participate, as they would have fewer powerful enemies. Chapter 204 Regardless of whether this was a scheme by the imperial court or not, the majority of the seven great sects felt that they should participate. They didn't want to be suppressed by the Wudang sect and Shaolin temple for the rest of their lives, and this was the perfect opportunity. Seeing that the other five sects were insistent, Wudang and Shaolin had no choice but to participate. After all, they had to maintain their status in the martial world. Moreover, everyone was also talking about who was stronger between Wudang and Shaolin. The first martial arts conference this time was an excellent opportunity to test the cultivation level of the disciples. The imperial court had also announced that the last battle would be held in the imperial palace. Empress Changning would bring all the ministers to watch at that time, which could be said to be giving the seven major sects enough face. The Wudang sect. It was one of the martial arts sects in the central plains. Its founder was the disciple of a Shaolin master. The M Master and Disciple had violated the Shaolin prohibition on learning martial arts without permission and were chased out. Later, he adapted according to the Shaolin cultivation method and created his internal cultivation technique. He established a sect, and thus, Wudang was established in the pugilistic world. 
Wudang sect was a sect of inner force and was as famous as Shaolin sect in the martial arts world. They were both known as the powerhouse of the martial arts world. Master, the imperial court's plan can be said to be farsighted. However, the other sects can't resist the temptation of being the number one in the world and insist on participating. Ling Su, the sect leader of Wu Zhang, complained to his white-bearded master. Don't you have any desire to live a better life? Since you've already agreed to participate, then let our disciples compete. Taoist Ziyang was the previous sect leader, but he passed the position of sect leader to Zhang Junbao as soon as he started to study Taoism. His martial arts skills were unparalleled, and his swordsmanship was exceptional. However, he had not been involved in the affairs of the world for many years. Even when Wudang was forced to seal off the mountain, he did not make a move. This was because, in his opinion, every cause brings a consequence. The seven major sects had failed in their rebellion with the vessel's king and should be punished. As for Taoist Ziyan, he was already a saint cultivator, but he rarely showed his face, so many disciples thought that he had died. He knew his disciple Zhang Junbao very well. If Zhang Junbao did not have a competitive heart, he would not have participated in the competition. This disciple is only preparing for the rainy days. When the great master left Shaolin, the world always thought that Wudang was inferior to Shaolin. So, I took this opportunity to prove Wudang's worth. Zhang Junbao claimed that the imperial court was scheming and treacherous, but he still could not help but jump into the trap. As the sect leader of the Wudang sect, it was not wrong for Zhang Junbao to think for the whole sect. Therefore, Taoist Ziyang could not say anything more. If Zhang Junbao also became desireless, then the position of sect leader would not be suitable for him. I won't interfere in this matter. A saint cultivator wouldn't want to participate in such a meaningless competition. Taoist Ziyang knew the purpose of this disciple's visit. It was not to visit him but to ask him to come out of the mountain. Master, you know me best. As the leader of the martial arts sect, I have to make sure that Wudang becomes the number one sect in the world. Although you have not been involved in the secular world for many years, you still have to consider the sect. Who knows if those saint cultivators are as desireless as you? Zhang Junbao did not want Wudang to lose. As long as Taoist Ziyang agreed to help, they would truly be safe. Forget it. If there are saint cultivators participating, I will fight for Wudang. It was true that Taoist Ziyang had the obligation to help Wudang's sect. After all, he was from Wudang's sect. Thank you, Master. Zhang Junbao was overjoyed to hear his M-Master agree. Great Zhou. The capital became more and more lively. Martial arts practitioners from all walks of life gathered here. To prevent anyone from causing trouble, the imperial court specially strengthened the patrol of the army. In addition, there will be more than 39th stage grandmasters to assist. If there are troublemakers, they will be disqualified and expelled from the capital. If there are offenders, they will be dealt with according to the law. However, how could the people from the martial arts world who were used to being free and idle not cause trouble? Especially those who had grudges would start to fight if they didn't agree. Without exception, they were all either expelled by the imperial court or detained in prison and dealt with according to the law. This also made the people of the martial arts world a lot more obedient. However, there were always people who liked to seek death or to be in the limelight. In an inn. The two martial arts practitioners with old grudges gathered together. Zhou Bai, you took advantage of my injuries to steal the hundred-year-old mountain ginseng. I will definitely take revenge for this. Heartrending sword Li Kuangfeng had been looking for Zhou Bai for many years, and he had finally found him. Huh, the treasures naturally belong to whoever has the ability. Overlord Zhou Bai wasn't someone to be trifled with. If he didn't have some skills, he wouldn't have been so arrogant. Since they couldn't talk things through, the two signed the life and death contract and were about to fight. The government would not care as long as the innocent were not hurt. The open space was surrounded by a crowd of onlookers. Of course, everyone was very excited to see blood. Zhou Bai charged over at an extremely fast pace. With two consecutive turns, he raised his saber and slashed from right to left. Facing the powerful blade technique, Li Kuangfeng immediately jumped back to dodge, 
but the blade technique did not stop there. Overlord Zhou Bai immediately held the hilt of his blade with both hands and slashed twice to his left and right, extremely fast but not losing power. Li Kuangfen was starting to feel that things were not going his way. The long sword in his right hand could not keep up with the speed, and the short sword in his left hand was clearly unable to block. He was using his own weapon to block instinctively. The distance between the two was pulled apart, and Li Kuangfeng's attack was naturally interrupted. At this time, he couldn't advance or retreat, and it was quite awkward. Li Kuangfeng had no choice but to re-establish his stance and change the short sword in his left hand from the front to the back. He wanted to continue to strengthen his offense. It turned out that he had not realized the change in the situation and wanted to use the change in the offense to suppress his opponent. The overlord deserved his reputation, especially this revolving saber. The saber technique is swift and fierce, and it doesn't lack power. That's right. This heartrending sword Li Kuangfeng is already using his inner energy to resist the attack. He's already showing signs of defeat. Li Kuangfeng is probably going to lose. This Zhou Bai is very strong. The surrounding audience started discussing. Even with his internal energy, Li Kuangfeng's sword was unable to withstand the attack and was forced out of his hand. The speed of his sword was too slow and it was already flicked away by the edge of the blade, causing blood to splatter everywhere. Another unlucky martial artist had fallen. No matter how famous he was in the pugilistic world, he was still reduced to dust. What are you all looking at? Hurry up and disperse. The soldiers in charge of cleaning drove the crowd away to avoid chaos. It could be said Li Kuangfen couldn't see the situation clearly. He didn't have Zhou Bai's strength, to begin with, but he still had to take revenge for his stolen ginseng. In the end, he even lost his life. However, this also showed the cruelty of the martial arts world. It was not about friendship, but the law of the jungle. The law could not restrain them at all. Or rather, they did not want to be bound by the law. That was why the imperial court was very angry with the people of the martial arts world. After all, the emperor did not want to see anyone leave the scope of his control. The soldiers lifted the body and left, leaving two soldiers to clean up the bloodstains. Everything would return to normal shortly as if nothing had happened. After a few days, everyone would forget about the heartrending sword Li Kuangfeng, because there were new talents in the pugilistic world, and a new topic would replace him soon. Chapter, 205 The Xiongnu tribe quickly found out that the great Zhou dynasty was hosting the first ever martial arts convention. Tatumtan thought that they needed to show off their strength to the martial arts world of the Central Plains, and the people under the god and demon also thought it was a good opportunity. They could use the competition as an opportunity to send people into the central plains in an open manner so that they could find the location of the treasure. With the pride of the central plainsmen, it would definitely not be good for them to refuse a challenge from an expert from a foreign land. As long as you didn't cause trouble, it didn't matter if you participated in the martial arts conference. You were definitely no match for the martial arts world of the central plains. The people behind the first princess and the imperial advisor all thought it was an opportunity. If he could send an expert to win the title of the world's number one, not only would he be able to give the Zhou dynasty a slap in the face, but he could also take the opportunity to find treasures. Moreover, the winner would definitely get to Tumpton's approval. The first prince could not refuse the imperial advisor's request, because it was not the time to fall out with him yet. Master. Master. Something big has happened. Liya ran in again and shouted at He Chuan. Copy the book ten times today, He Chuan looked at Taishan's scripture nonchalantly. He was very dissatisfied with Liya's behavior. Eldest sister and the first prince are both going to the capital of the Zhou dynasty to attend the number one martial arts conference. Let's go as well. I also want to see the scenery of the central plains. Liya was already used to copying books. Now that she was not inferior to others, the tacticians under her all thought that Liya had to follow. If Liya could become the world's number one, her chances of becoming the successor would be even greater. He Chuan had no interest in the martial arts conference. It was just fighting for an empty title. Moreover, he did not have to go through so much trouble to help Liya to the top. Master, 
I heard that the first prince and eldest sister have both sent saint cultivator experts. If you don't come with me, I won't have a chance. Leah hugged the cashier's arm and said coyly. A hidden saint cultivator. He Chuan's heart skipped a beat. Could it be that they were after the treasures of the Central Plains? Participating in the martial arts conference was just one of the reasons. Young master, why don't we go back and take a look? Kai Lian also missed the local customs of the Zhou dynasty. She wanted to go back and take a look. All right, let's go and take a look. He Chuan took the opportunity to agree. Leah's goal had finally been achieved, so she was naturally very happy. She immediately ordered her subordinates to get ready. At the same time, the Empress of the Great Zhou Empire, Changning, received He Chuan's letter. Knowing that her husband was going to return to the capital, she was very happy. However, things weren't that simple. The Xiongnu people's goal in coming here wasn't simple, they were after the legendary treasure. She had no clue yet, so no matter what, she couldn't let the evil cultivators from the outer realm succeed. Let General Qin Yintian enter the palace to see me. Empress Changning announced that she would be meeting the commander of the Imperial Army. The security of the capital had to be strengthened. In the vast desert. He Chuan was sitting on his camel, reading a book in his hand. No matter what kind of environment it was, it would be difficult for it to affect his strength. Lia and Kai Lian were also fine. After all, they were also true experts. The aura of saint cultivators could be sensed from the first prince and the first princess team. It seemed that they placed great importance on this trip to the Zhou dynasty. After crossing the desert, we'll reach the Zhou dynasty. That's where the truly beautiful scenery is. I'm sure little sister Lia will like it. Kai Lian recalled the beautiful scenery of Yangzhou city, which was many times better than the grassland. Perhaps this was also why the Xiongnu tribes eyed the Zhou dynasty so covetously. It was because the central plains were vast and had many resources. It was very suitable for survival. Really? What delicacies are there in the central plains? Lia understood Kai Lian's character very well and deliberately found a topic that the other party liked. Bird's nest chicken shred soup, sea cucumber braised pork tendons, fresh razor clam shredded radish, kelp pork belly soup, abalone braised pearl vegetables, cabbage shrimp soup, shark's fin crab soup, mushroom braised chicken, rumbling hammer, fish belly braised hem soup. When Kai Lian first entered the palace, she had seen the emperor's menu. At that time, she had been drooling. Sister Kai Lian, don't say any more. My little stomach is already hungry. Lia felt that she was still a little short-sighted. These dishes sounded delicious just by their name. It wasn't like when she was in the grasslands, where she could only eat meat all day. After a long time, she would get tired of it. There are many specialty snacks on the streets. I'll bring you to try them after we get to Yangzhou City. Kai Lian patted her small chest and said with a sense of loyalty. She didn't dare to say that she was very good at martial arts cultivation, but in the area of food, she had almost eaten everything in Yangzhou City. She knew where the food was good, what flavor it was, and what specialty dishes or snacks were as if she was familiar with them. He Chuan was deeply impressed by this. He said that Kai Lian must be the reincarnation of the god of food and had tasted all the delicacies in the human world in this life. Time passed in the blink of an eye. After a long journey, their group finally arrived at Yangzhou City. Yangzhou was located on the north bank of the Yangtze River, opposite Zhenjiang City. It was an ancient city with a long history. The lakes were dense, the scenery was beautiful, and the culture was profound. Yangzhou is a famous metropolis on the east of Huaihe River, a beautiful residence in Jushi Pavilion. As the Zhou dynasty's economy became more stable, the market grew bigger by the day. At night, Yangzhou city was very lively, and music filled the air. In the glittering dance pavilion, young girls were dancing, and the streets were full of tourists. The spring wind was ten miles on Yangzhou Road, rendering the city's luxurious and prosperous atmosphere. The streets of Yangzhou City were bustling with traffic, and the dance pavilions were dense. It was noisy and prosperous, and flowers were blooming. On the road of Yangzhou, 
there were countless bead curtains, and under all the curtains, there were countless beauties in red clothes and green sleeves, but it was better to roll up the bead curtains. Such a beautiful scene caused the Xilnu people to be mesmerized. The scenery of the Zhou dynasty is indeed beautiful. Lia couldn't help but sigh. Before she could continue admiring the view, a group of fully armed soldiers came up to her. The leader was He Chuan's old acquaintance, Yang Zhou's magister, Wei Qiancheng. Ha, huh, an honored guest of the Xiongnu people has come from afar. I am sorry for not welcoming you. Wei Qiancheng didn't get off his horse. Instead, he cupped his fists and bowed. Because he was an official of the Zhou dynasty and represented the powerful great Zhou. The princesses and princes of the grasslands were not worthy of his respect. If Tatumtan had come in person, he would have dismounted to welcome him. The fist was the truth, and dignity was above the blade. I'm here to participate in the martial arts conference. May I know your name, sir? Although the first prince was displeased, the other party had already given him face, so he could not flare up. Otherwise, not only would this trip to the Zhou dynasty end, they might even lose their lives there. The eldest princess was not to be outdone either. She quickly came out to express her stance, not letting the first prince steal the limelight. Wei Qiancheng had been an official for many years. He could tell at a glance that the princess and prince of the grassland were not on good terms. I am the Yangzhou Magister, Wei Qiancheng. I have received Her Majesty's decree and know that guests from the grasslands have arrived. I have especially received you. He glanced at He Chuan but did not acknowledge him. To put it nicely, it was reception, but to put it bluntly, it was surveillance. There were arrangements for reception along the way. Chapter 206 He Chuan and Kai Lian naturally didn't greet Wei Qiancheng and pretended not to know each other. Our family is in this Yangzhou city. The He family was originally a large family, but later, young master's family fell into a sorrowful state, Kai Lian told a story to Liya with a serious face. Anyway, they did buy a house in Yangzhou City. As for their past, Liya did not have the ability to investigate. It was mainly to let the first prince and the eldest princess let down their guard. The group arrived at the courier station where they were staying at. My honored guests from the grasslands, please rest for a while. I will welcome you tonight. If you plan to wander around Yangzhou, please follow the rules. After all, the great Zhou is ruled by law. Wei Qiancheng said a few polite words and then left. He still had to send a letter to the imperial court. Big sister, Kai Lian and I are going to go shopping. Do you want to come with us? Lia had long been unable to suppress her inner desires and was prepared to take a stroll around. If even Yangzhou city was so beautiful, then how prosperous would the capital city be? You can go with Miss Kai Lian. I'm going back to rest. The eldest princess said with a smile. She had other things to discuss. Lia nodded her head and went out to play with Kai Lian. He Chuan, on the other hand, held his books and returned to his room to rest indifferently. Wei Qiancheng had just returned to his study to write a secret memorial when he found He Chuan sitting in a chair waiting for him. Greetings, Duke He. Wei Qiancheng was not surprised at all and quickly said. There are at least three saint cultivators in the Xiongnu group. Inform the capital to be prepared. There is no need to send experts to monitor them, just put on a good show. He Chuan nodded, not surprised by his new identity. Empress Changning was already pregnant with his child, and the identity of a eunuch was no longer suitable for him. But he chuan neither about the title duke or eunuch, and he remained the same. It made people feel like they were bathing in the spring breeze. Three Saint Cultivators Wei Qianqing was shocked, but then he remembered that Zhu Lingxin had died at he chuan's hands, and the stone in his heart gradually fell. It would be useless to send a half-step Saint Cultivator to monitor an expert of this level. He just needed to send people to monitor them and not let the Xiongnu people become suspicious. If they didn't send anyone, the other party would instead suspect that they had a plan. Or perhaps they thought that their actions had been exposed. I understand. Wei Qianqing said. When he raised his head, He Chuan had already disappeared. 
He was already used to experts who came and went without a trace, so he immediately wrote He Chuan's instructions into the secret memorial. Kai Lian brought Lia to the small courtyard where they had once lived. The yard was already overgrown with weeds, but the house was well maintained, except for the dust. Kai Lian looked around with a nostalgic look, her sleeves fluttering as dust and weeds fell together. So Sister Kai Lian and Master used to live here, then why did they come to a place like the grasslands? Lia asked, pretending not to care. In fact, she also wanted to probe Kai Lian's intentions. In her opinion, Kai Lian was more honest and kinder, and would not lie. After young master was successful in his study of cultivation, he felt that we shouldn't limit our vision to the central plains. You should travel everywhere. It just so happened that a white lotus society from the outer realms entered the central plains and was destroyed by a mysterious master. That's why we started looking for traces of the white lotus society to see if we could find anything. Under He Chuan's tutelage, Kai Lian wasn't just a kind-hearted palace maid. She was actually very clear about the sixth princess's plans, but she pretended not to know. Therefore, there were some truths and some lies in her words, and could not be considered a lie. The two of them looked around, and Lia had a better understanding of He Chuan and Kai Lian's identities. Her wariness was also gradually lowered. Let's go. I'll bring little sister Lia out for some good food. Seeing that the fire was about ready, Kai Lian prepared to do the most important thing, which was to eat delicious food. Lia was also looking forward to it. Kai Lian didn't go to a luxurious restaurant. Instead, she went straight to the first street snack. The sanding bun was a famous traditional food in Yangzhou. It was said to have originated during the era of the first emperor of the great Zhou dynasty when Master Ding of Yangzhou had made breakfast for him. It was a bun made with sea cucumber, chicken, meat, winter bamboo shoots, and shrimp as the filling. Later, in consideration of the consumption level of the civilians, the sea cucumber and shrimp were removed, and the three-piece bun was now made. Of course, if you had the money, you could also eat the luxury version of a sanding steamed bun. Of course, the two of them were not short of money, so they bought two luxury versions to try. The bun was fresh, fragrant, crisp, and tender, fat but not greasy. It's so delicious. Unfortunately, it's a little small. I haven't had enough yet. Lia swallowed the last bite of the bun reluctantly. The cuisines of the Central Plains truly lived up to their reputation. They were much more delicious than roasted meat. Sister Lia, you're so stupid. How could there only be one type of Yangzhou snack? You have to save your stomach for other snacks. Kai Lian had already finished the bun in her hand, and she was already thinking about a delicious dish. Only then did Lia realize that she was completely addicted to the food. The Yangzhou spring roll was a famous local traditional snack, and it was said that it evolved from the spring cake. It was usually long and stuffed with pork, bamboo shoots, leeks, black fungus, winter mushrooms, and carrots. It tasted fresh, salty, and delicious. Thousand-layer fried cake, yangzhou soup dumplings, huang xiao xiao bing, and finally, half a salted goose each. Lia was lying on the chair, rubbing her round belly. She really could not eat anymore. I regret not coming here earlier. If only I could eat so much delicious food every day. Leah's pretty face was filled with happiness. It was simply too delicious. She even wanted to stay in Yangzhou for a few more days. We'll be able to eat a lot of delicious food on our way to the capital. Kai Lian also said while rubbing her belly. At the same time. The first prince was looking at a map in his room. The imperial advisor has marked quite a few places. There's one in Yangzhou. You should go and check it out during the banquet. Don't be discovered. The first prince was also very curious about what kind of treasure could make the imperial advisor so solemn. The people monitoring the relay station are at most at the sixth stage Xientian. They can't detect my whereabouts. The black-robed expert said confidently. Humph. The great Zhou dynasty had nothing better to do than to hold a martial arts conference, so their plan to harm this king had to be changed. I think we should be worried about that BTCH next to us, their goal is the same as ours. 
the first prince wasn't afraid of the people here. They weren't even half-step saint cultivators, so they posed no threat. The main thing was that the eldest princess also had saint cultivators following her, and they were all after the treasure. There would definitely be a fight between them. The black-robed expert didn't say anything this time. There were strong and weak saint cultivators as well, and he didn't know the strength of the saint cultivators around the eldest princess. Therefore, he didn't dare to comment further. But you don't have to worry too much. This king has especially left a way to deal with that cheap woman. You just have to act according to the plan tonight. The first prince put away the map, a sinister smile on his face. If the eldest princess obediently gave him the thing, then it would be good. If she dared to snatch it, then don't blame him for being ruthless. Chapter, 207 This time, Wei Qianjing put in a lot of effort and directly found the most famous restaurant in Yangzhou City to entertain this group of people from the grassland. The princes and princesses of the grassland were secondary. Their main purpose was to entertain Duke He. He had heard that the future heir in the empress's stomach was planted with He Chuan seed. Therefore, he had to serve He Chuan well. Moreover, the strength of this duke could not be underestimated. Of course, the first prince, eldest princess, and the others did not know. They thought this Lord Wei Qianzhen was afraid of the Xiongnu tribe's strength and was trying to please them. There was a wide variety of food in the central plains. Even if it was a luxury to eat some green vegetables on the prairie, this dinner party did indeed make them have a great appetite. After eating and drinking to their heart's content, Wei Qianjing found more than a dozen brothel girls to accompany him according to the plan he had prepared. This didn't hinder everyone's own plans. Since no one wanted to stay together, these women could act as a cover. He Chuan took the opportunity to bring the two girls into the room and pressed the acupuncture point at the back of their heads. The two girls fell asleep instantly. They would not wake up until tomorrow morning. He used his divine sense and sensed that his target had already left. He unhurriedly followed behind to see what was in Yangzhou City and whether it was the treasure the gods and devils were looking for. The endless forest outside Yangzhou City stretched all the way to the eastern suburbs. He Chuan, who was following behind, walked to an unremarkable little valley and frowned. This was because this valley looked very ordinary, but there were hidden traces of a formation. If it weren't for his high level of formation skills, he might not have been able to see it. No wonder no one knew about the existence of this place. There was an endless forest outside, and inside the valley was a palace built of stone. He Chuan's heart stirred, and he immediately flew to the palace. He used the divine eye to look into the palace and was surprised to see two people fighting inside. Their auras were very similar and probably related to gods and devils. A man in a white robe and a silver mask stood beside him. On the other hand, his opponent was shrouded in a black mist. When he fought, he would faintly reveal an evil young face, so they should be an expert created by the gods and devils. In the palace, two saint cultivators were still fighting fiercely. When He Chuan entered, he didn't attract anyone's attention. He wasn't interested in fighting at all. Of course, he wouldn't stop the two of them from fighting. It had nothing to do with him. He began to observe the situation in the palace. A bronze fragment floated in the center of the magnificent and empty hall. It looked ancient and mysterious. Ancient characters could be vaguely seen on it, making people want to know what kind of story was recorded in this bronze fragment. This item was undoubtedly a treasure, but He Chuan didn't know what the bronze fragment was used for. He might only know after he had sorted it out. However, the aura it emitted should be something incredible. No wonder the gods and devils of the outer realms went through so much trouble to come and join in the fun. I didn't think there would really be a so-called shocking secret treasure. He didn't know what was inside. He had been worried that there was no special place to check in recently, so he decided to check in and see what good things he could get. Ding! Congratulations to the host for successfully signing the contract. You are rewarded with a bottle of great fortune pills. Notes, it can be used to break through to the saint cultivator realm. He Chuan hadn't shown a happy expression for a long time, and now he was overjoyed. What he lacked now were pills that could help him break through to the saint cultivator realm. 
the previous check-in rewards were basically useless. He had left a portion for Empress Changning, and the rest were for Lia and Kai Lian to use. He had been stuck at the seventh stage of the Saint Cultivator for too long. He needed to break through his current realm as soon as possible. He would only be more confident if he encountered true gods and devils. Humph, we all live for the gods. Why don't we each take a step back? This fragment is mine, and the next one is yours. The silver masked expert said. He had a good plan. He didn't know when he would find the next fragment, but now he was talking about the next fragment. Hee hee, do you think I'm very naive? You either let go or die. The evil young man didn't buy it at all. These words were more like a lie to a three-year-old child. Even if both of them had gods and demons behind them, they belonged to different camps. Whoever got it would get it, so they could go back and report. Otherwise, he would not be able to escape punishment. Thinking of the punishment of the gods and demons, the evil young man couldn't help but shiver. Neither of the two was willing to give in. Then, go to hell. The silver-masked expert's black aura soared into the sky. He held the golden battle axe in his hand, and the air instantly distorted before shattering and annihilating. The evil-looking young man naturally would disagree. He shouted, and his body bloomed with an extremely bright red light. It pierced the void like a sword and rushed in all directions. The silver-masked expert had made his move. The palace immediately fell into chaos. The delicate balance was broken again, and endless killing intent filled the air. The evil-looking young man sneered. Of course, he wasn't a reckless man. He wasn't so arrogant that he could definitely defeat his opponent. The silver-masked expert waved his golden battle axe in the wind, and a terrifying vengeful spirit rushed out with a roar, sweeping toward his opponent. A wave of devouring power was released. He Chuan naturally didn't want to continue watching them fight. He was ready to take the bronze fragment away. The silver-masked expert and the evil-looking young man had already made their moves, but they didn't notice the situation on Hichuan's side. In the face of such a terrifying battle, the palace was as stable as a mountain. There were no signs of it breaking, making it seem extraordinary. However, the golden armor exuded the aura of the origin of laws. No matter what methods the people present used, the golden armor remained suspended in the air, motionless. The floating bronze fragment still wanted to struggle, but as He Chuan increased his vital essence, it finally fell into his hands. The space distorted, and He Chuan disappeared after he got the treasure. This is bad. The two powerhouses who were still fighting did not expect that someone would be able to pick the peach in front of them. More importantly, they had not discovered anything at all. How terrifying was the other party's strength? Damn it, let's stop for now. Let's find out who this person is first. The silver-masked expert put away his giant axe and said in a highly displeased tone. I think it's reasonable. The person who comes is powerful, not someone you and I can defeat. We'll join forces to get rid of him. After that, we'll decide whom the treasure belongs to. The evil-looking young man was also unhappy, but it was too late to say anything now. The treasure had already disappeared. To be able to take something away from a saint cultivator without a trace, he must be very powerful. It was true that they needed to join forces to deal with the powerhouses hidden in the dark. After reaching an agreement, the two of them quickly left the place. Chapter, 208 At this moment, He Chuan had already returned to his residence. He waved his hand to set up a barrier and then played with the bronze fragment in his hand. The fragment was as big as a basin, but it weighed 500 kilograms in his hand. Ordinary people couldn't take it out at all, so it was obviously not an ordinary item. The words Yangzhou were carved on it in ancient Chinese characters. Yangzhou. He Chuan couldn't figure out what it was for a while, but it should be related to some treasure he was looking for. This fragment was obviously only a small part of it. He would probably have to collect all the fragments to figure out what it was. Now that one of them had fallen into his hands, no matter what the other party was plotting, they would have to go through him first. Otherwise, it would be not easy to achieve. He carefully kept the fragment. Knock knock knock. At this moment, there was a knock on the door. 
he picked up the Taishian scripture to read and removed the enchantment. After getting his permission, Liya pushed the door open. Master, I feel that the eldest princess and the first prince must have some unspeakable secret. They're both very mysterious. Liya sat beside He Chuan obediently and massaged his shoulders. Oh! He Chuan was obviously not interested in the secret between the eldest princess and the first prince. And now, he had a rough idea of their purpose. Master, aren't you interested in their secrets? What if it's a treasure that's as rich as a country's or a supreme grade cultivation manual? We'll suffer a great loss if we don't get involved. Leah's eyes darted around. Although she could not figure out the other party's plan, she felt that everything would be fine if He Chuan were involved. I'm not interested. It's more interesting to watch the rich man's concubine quarrel next door. He Chuan's eyes were fixed on the Taishian scripture, and his tone did not fluctuate at all. However, what he said was true. He had just released his divine sense, and when he passed by a luxurious mansion not far away, he happened to hear the quarrel of two concubines of the wealthy merchant. The two of them were cursing so badly that even the palace fighting dramas on TV were inferior. He even listened to it for a long time. Ah! Liya was dumbfounded. She did not expect that her master, who was usually indifferent to everything, liked to listen to concubines quarrel and was not even interested in treasures or cultivation manuals. She had a trick up her sleeve but had no place to use it. She didn't know how to pique Chuan's interest. The eldest princess and the first prince were both on the move, so wouldn't she fall behind? Then what about me becoming the female king? Anyway, Liya knew that He Chuan supported her in becoming a female king, so she did not try to hide it. Fighting is fighting, not fighting is fighting. He Chuan said as he knocked Liya's head. This made Liya even more dumbfounded. The culture of the Central Plains was extensive and profound, and she could not react in time. What is fighting is fighting. Although you desire to fight, you can't let anyone know about it, and you can't let your desire drive you to action. The last sentence, not fighting is fighting, means that you have hidden your desire to fight, but you have to take action to create a favorable environment so that you can get what you want without fighting for it. He Chuan's words implied that Liya was still not shrewd enough. It would be fine if she just sat and watched the eldest princess and the first prince fight. Tatumtan was not dead yet. It was useless to act so anxiously. The more anxious you were, the more likely you would make mistakes. By then, you would leave a bad impression on Tatumtan. It was not beneficial to the battle for the position of the Khan. Next, he told Liya the story of Zhou Shimin's fight for the throne, letting her understand how Zhou Shimin, who was not an optimistic fifth prince, eventually became the emperor. At that time, Zhou Shimin was a man who did not do any proper work. He had nothing to do all day. Other than reciting poems, he would go to the library to read. As a result, the other brothers looked down on Zhou Shimin, thinking he didn't even have the right to compete for the throne. At the same time, it also made everyone lower their guard. The late emperor naturally saw all of this, but he did not say anything. The previous nine princes' battles for the throne had given the late emperor a huge headache. The back of his hand and the palm of his hand were both flesh. They were all his children, so how could he not feel heartache? However, the royal family was like this. In the end, there was only one person who could sit on the throne. The late emperor wanted to observe this group of sons while he was still alive. Although Zhou Shimin wasn't cut out to be an emperor, he was still well liked by the late emperor. Because he didn't compete for anything, he naturally gave the late emperor less of a headache. He was cautious in everything and was good at reading people's expressions. Sometimes, he would even put in a good word for the crown prince, thus winning the good reputation of to be highly principled. In front of everyone, he did not reveal his sharp edge and deeply hid his thoughts about fighting for the throne. However, he secretly sent his hangers-on to lobby everywhere, widely making friends with ministers and famous people, and was ready to seize power. Ultimately, he stood out from his nine brothers and finally won the throne. Leah's mouth was agape, her eyes filled with adoration. Although the Xiongnu tribe was hostile to the Zhou dynasty, it did not stop her from adoring Zhou Shimin. While your king father is still alive, everything is unknown. 
you need to play the role of a caring little daughter. He Chuan picked up the fragrant tea beside him and took a sip. He was actually very impressed with Zhou Shimin. To seize the throne under such difficult circumstances was not something anyone could do. What if my king father doesn't pass the throne to me in the end? Liya asked after some thought. Because she felt that the competition on the grassland was different from that of the central plains. Her father still preferred the wolf's nature. If she continued to play the role of a naive girl, she might eventually lose the right to inherit the throne. Huh, you can't possibly think that the throne was actually passed to him in the end, right? He Chuan asked, amused. He's working so hard. Why doesn't he pass it to him? Liya was shocked once again. She felt it was only suitable to pass it on to Zhou Shimin. Could it be that things were not as she thought? I see that your little head is very smart, and your strength is not bad. Why don't you have confidence? He Chuan asked. The smart Liya immediately understood the logic behind this. Zhou Shimin was indeed outstanding, but other brothers were even more outstanding. However, the person the late emperor was least guarded against was Zhou Shimin. Moreover, no matter whether the imperial edict was real or fake, everyone would think it was real because the late emperor deeply loved Zhou Shimin. The truth was Zhou Shimin had colluded with Fang Yuanqing and Qin Yintian to falsify the edict and ascend to the throne. If Liya became the favorite princess of Tatumtan, it would be reasonable to win over Tatumtan's most trusted subjects. In the end, because of the side they were on, no matter who took over the position, they would find a way to change it to Liao. I understand, master. Thank you for your help. Liao said happily. The best decision she had ever made in her life was to take He Chuan as her master. It's good that you understand. From tomorrow onwards, you have to study more. You have to learn the four arts. He Chuan continued to study the Supreme Mystery Sutra. When she heard that she had to study, as well as learn the four arts, Leah's little head immediately felt a headache. Master, can you change the condition? I want to practice martial arts. She quickly acted coquettishly. No. The more books you read, the more you will understand. He Chuan wouldn't change his mind just because she was acting coquettishly. Chapter, 209 What do you mean by hidden experts? The eldest princess was in disbelief. She knew that the first prince had a saint cultivator following him, and the people from both sides had already met. Then, the expert who took the item was not from their side. In that case, it was worth pondering. Could it be sixth princess Leah's men? The silver-masked expert asked. It's possible, but the chances are too small. You've seen He Chuan and Kai Lian before, so they shouldn't be able to hide from your perception. I'm afraid Liya doesn't have the ability to subdue other experts. Even though the eldest princess was a little suspicious of Liya, she told herself that it was impossible. This was because it was confirmed that there were no gods or demons around Liya, which meant that Liya was just a princess who pretended to be innocent and sweet. She had no one to help her and was only able to get back up now because of Hichuan's help. No matter who it is, if the eldest princess wants to help, I will investigate in secret. I will try to get rid of this person as soon as possible to avoid any trouble. After saying that, the silver-masked man disappeared. The eldest princess also felt that she needed to find out more. If it was really a strong person by Leah's side, then she would have to reevaluate the situation. As she wriggled her water snake to slip into He Chuan's room, several auras instantly covered her. Of course, He Chuan had already noticed it. He continued to read his book calmly and then continued to educate Liao. Oh, Mr. He Chuan, you really know how to enjoy yourself. You actually let my sixth sister give you a massage. This princess has dabbled in massage. Mr. He Chuan, do you want to try? The eldest princess opened the door and said with a smile. It's only right and proper for the disciple to serve their master, what's big sister doing here? Liao immediately became alert. They had agreed to form an alliance, so why was she trying to steal him away? I'm just passing by. By the way, I'd like to remind you that there's someone here with dirty hands and feet. Just now, I lost one of my treasures. The eldest princess stared at He Chuan and Liao, trying to figure out something. TSK, 
and I thought it was a big deal. What does it have to do with us if you lose something? We don't have anything valuable. Lia pursed her lips in disdain. She did not know what the eldest princess was up to. He immediately retorted sarcastically. If you lose something, you can report it to the officials. Maybe Magistrate Wei will be able to help the eldest princess find it quickly. He Chuan's tone was filled with dissatisfaction. The master and disciple were obviously very unhappy. If they had really taken the treasure, they definitely wouldn't have said such things. Sixth sister, Mr. He Chuan, you've misunderstood. I came here to remind you out of goodwill. I didn't say that you stole it. The eldest princess would not believe them so easily. After all, anyone could act. The key is that you don't have any treasures worth us stealing. The last time, your youth retaining pill was a gift from my master. Who cares about your broken things? Liya said impatiently. He Chuan continued to read his book and ignored the eldest princess. The other party's little thoughts could not be hidden from him. He was very confident in his acting skills. He had watched self-cultivation of actor before. The atmosphere was a little awkward. The eldest princess and the secret forces had confirmed that the sixth princess Liya had nothing to do with the missing bronze fragment. Sixth sister is always suspicious. I did come to inform you out of good intentions. Why are you acting like we're enemies? The eldest princess's skin was thick enough to not take this ridicule to heart. My master is so powerful, who would dare to come and steal our things? Leah's mind began to race. Since the other party had come to probe, they must have lost something important. Could it be that the first prince and the eldest princess wanted the treasure, but in the end, someone else had taken the fruit? This was a good thing for her. She had originally wanted to ask Yi Chuan for help to find the treasure, but now that no one had found it, she didn't have to think about it anymore. Just as Yi Chuan had said, one should learn the Tao of fighting is a fight and not fighting is fighting. Let's not talk about this for now. Has Sixth Sister decided who will be the one to fight in the martial arts conference? The eldest princess immediately changed the topic. Of course, I'll do it myself. Lia pointed at her own nose. Even if she didn't make a move, He Chuan and Kai Lian wouldn't make a move either. This time, Lia had begged her for a long time. Sometimes, Lia even wondered if her master was an old monster. Why did he have the same mentality as the elders in the tribe? Ha, <laughs> that's good. I thought I'd have to compete with Mr. He Chuan. I wouldn't stand a chance. The eldest princess actually had her doubts as well. Why was He Chuan following Liao? For beauty. But no matter what, she was stronger than Liao, but every time she tried to seduce He Chuan, it was as if he couldn't see her. The eldest princess thinks too highly of me. Even if I were to compete, I wouldn't be able to become the world's number one. You must know that the martial arts of the Central Plains are full of crouching tigers and hidden dragons. It's not that easy. He Chuan immediately shook his head and said. He really didn't think that he was the best in the world. As the saying goes, there is always someone better than you. Who knew when a few experts would jump out? It was better to keep a low profile. Mr. He Chuan is open-minded and doesn't care about fame and fortune. The eldest princess deliberately bent down, revealing the white scenery of her chest. Stealing one's important people also required some skill. If the other party was willing to jump ship, Liao would not be able to say anything. Liao looked at the eldest princess's seductive appearance and snorted coldly in dissatisfaction. Fortunately, He Chuan had good self-control and turned a blind eye to this kind of temptation. If it were any other man, they would have long fallen under the eldest princess's skirt. Master, little sister Liao, supper is here. Kai Lian was holding two salted geese in her hands as she happily walked into the room. She didn't expect the eldest princess to come here and quickly greeted her. Is little sister Kai Lian still not full? Do you still need to eat supper? The eldest princess had long heard that He Chuan's maidservant could eat a lot, but she didn't expect her to eat so much. Tonight's banquet was very sumptuous. She had eaten a little too much and still had not digested it. This little maidservant actually wanted to eat supper so quickly. Unbelievable. What was in that stomach? 
Would the eldest princess like to try it? Kai Lien excitedly opened the salted geese, and the alluring fragrance instantly filled the air. She and Lia had not had enough salted geese, so she had specially gone to buy it. The eldest princess originally wanted to refuse, but when she smelled the fragrance, her stomach couldn't help but growl. Thank you, Sister Kai Lien. I won't be polite then. She immediately joined the food devouring army. He Chuan shook his head and felt that the aura around him had dispersed. He knew that he had already fooled them with his performance. Young master, do you want to try it? Kai Lien's mouth was full of oil as she invited He Chuan. However, He Chuan had no interest in food. He shook his head and continued reading. You're so young, yet you're reading scriptures. The eldest princess was elegantly eating the goose leg in her hand. She turned her head and saw the three words Taishan scripture, but she didn't think that was a cultivation secret manual. Reading scriptures can cultivate one's body and mind. He Chuan said, shaking his head. He had no intention of inviting her to read it together. The eldest princess was different from Lia, she would agree even if she did not actually read them. It's easy to lose than gain if you talk too much. Chapter, 210 Master, do you think the treasure Big Sister mentioned is the one we were talking about? Lia asked curiously after the princess royal left. I'm not sure, but it should be very important. Don't even think about the treasure. It's not a good thing for you. He Chuan knew the importance of this treasure, but he would not tell Ya about it. He definitely couldn't hand it over to her. Since this thing was carved with the geographical location of the Zhou dynasty, it was very likely to be related to the fate of the country. Even if Liya obtained it, she would not be able to protect it with her life. So it was better for her to stay away from right and wrong, be a princess in peace, and wait for the right time to fight for the position of Khan. I'm just a little curious. If it were really taken away, I'd be happy too. Liya was not too interested in the treasure now. After all, she had to pretend she did not want to fight for the throne. The group rested for two days in Yangzhou city before heading to the capital. In the southeast, San Wu's capital, Qian Tang, had been prosperous since ancient times. Smoky willows, wind curtains, and emerald curtains, hundreds of thousands of trees around the embankment in sand, raging waves rolling in frost and snow, the sky has no boundaries. Pearls are listed in the market, and households are full of luachi, competing for luxury. Wavy lake accumulated at peak Qingjiao. There are three autumn laurels, and ten miles of lotus flowers. The Chang pipe makes clear, the diamond song floods the night, and the fishing man and the lotus child playfully. Thousands of horsemen embrace the high teeth. Listen to the shao and drums and enjoy the smoke. In the future, I will return to Phoenix Pond to enjoy the beautiful scenery. The prosperity of the capital was more evident than that of Yangzhou. This made the Xiongnu people finally understand why the tribes in the outer regions were so unwilling to give up on the central plains. Only by living in the bustling capital could one feel the true respect of the people. The emperor of the Zhou dynasty was a true emperor. General Qin Yintian personally led a group of people to welcome them. The capital is currently under martial law. Please obey the laws of our Zhou dynasty. If anyone dares to disobey, don't blame me for not showing any mercy. His Majesty will meet you tomorrow. As the commander of the imperial army in the capital, Qin Yintian naturally did not care about the princes and princesses of the grassland tribes. They were just a barbarian from the outer realm. Moreover, the entire capital was filled with martial arts practitioners, so they were even more unfriendly to people from the outer realms. The first prince and the others did not dare to voice their anger, and could only keep their depression in their hearts. After He Chuan and Kai Lien returned to their room, he waved his hand to set up a barrier and immediately disappeared. When they reappeared, the two of them had already returned to the palace. Everything in the library pavilion was so familiar, and nothing had changed. Kai Lien looked at the familiar scene and was so moved that she shed tears. You're already so old, but you're still a cry baby. If you're reluctant to leave, you can stay. He Chuan rubbed Kai Lien's little head. Young master, I'm just happy. I'll go wherever you go. Kai Lien didn't care if she was in the palace or not. 
As long as she could stay by He Chuan's side, it would be fine. Otherwise, it would be meaningless for her to live alone in the palace. Now, she was just reminiscing. You can reminisce here first I'm going to meet someone. After He Chuan finished speaking, he disappeared. In the imperial study. As the empress, Chang was handling official business. When she heard that He Chuan was coming back, she was very excited. After all, He Chuan was the child's father. Although they didn't spend much time together in the later stages, they still had a strong relationship. Other than her emperor father, He Chuan was the person she admired the most in her life. The story was a little unexpected, but they still came together. The situation in various places was stable now. Those who secretly plotted rebellions against the great Zhou had all been executed. Under Fang Yuanqing's suggestion, she held another imperial examination in the country and sealed the mouths of the scholars. The scholars now had a very good impression of Empress Changning. In the beginning, everyone thought that it was a joke for a woman to be the emperor, and there were always people who jumped out to object. After a series of reformations and ruthless methods, the world's view of Empress Changning changed. Occasionally, there would be objections, but they were quickly suppressed. As for Chengen, he was currently living a very carefree life. He no longer cared about the matters of the great show and spent his days in the wind and snow, while taking care of the Empress Dowager. This also made everyone feel at ease. After all, Chengen liked his current life. It was fine as long as he wouldn't cause any trouble at the top. The great Zhou dynasty was still the most important in everything. The space suddenly twisted and He Chuan's figure appeared in the imperial study. Husband. Changning stood up happily with a surprised expression on her face. You've worked hard. He Chuan caressed her pretty face. In fact, he and Changning were more like family and nothing else. But now, looking at Empress Changning's bulging belly, he couldn't help but sigh. Changning leaned into his arms and felt a moment of peace. As a woman, she naturally hoped that He Chuan would be by her side. The entire capital is not at peace right now. I'm very happy that husband is back. Empress Changning leaned into He Chuan's arms, her heart filled with happiness. Actually, the martial arts conference is not the key. The key is the fight between the gods and demons for the treasures in the central plains. He Chuan took out the bronze fragment. The word Yangzhou on the bronze fragment was very eye catching. Empress Changning touched the two carved words. After Great Yu established the Xia dynasty, he divided many vassal states among his former princes and grandsons. As time passed, some vassals were inevitably disloyal. In order to inspect how many vassal states there were in the world and to maintain the relationship between the Xia dynasty and the vassal states, the Great Yu decided to hold a vassal meeting. As it was the time when the various dukes came to court, Xia Yu took the opportunity to hold the sacrificial ceremony, and the duke stayed in Yangqing to help. When it was time for the ritual, the great Yu knelt on the ground and prayed deeply. The officiant recited the congratulatory words loudly, and all the dukes listened carefully. The first half was to pray for the country and the people, and the second half says the world was given to Shun and it would be passed on to virtuous people in the future, and that it was not based on family line. With the words of the vice saint, I've found out that only Elder Tao is wise and has made great achievements. I recommend him to the emperor and pray for his permission to stop the war. I look forward to your prayers. After the ceremony, the vassals dispersed and gathered again. Everyone was deeply dissatisfied with the Great Yu. After the Great Yu suburban worship, there were as many as 33 countries that left. In terms of calculations, most of the unconvinced countries were in the southeast. As a result, the Great Yu decided to hold a vassal meeting at Mountain Tu, which was located to the southeast of Yang City, to reflect on his mistakes. After the meeting at Mountain Tu, the vassals happily split up. In order to show their respect, the various dukes often came to Yang City to offer gold or bronze. Later on, the amount of copper offered by the nine states increased year after year, and the great Yu remembered that the yellow emperor of the Xianyuan clan had successfully cast a cauldron. In order to commemorate the Mountain Two meeting, they were prepared to use the gold that the various dukes had given to create the nine prefectures' cauldron. However, 
To avoid being blamed by the feudal vassals, the great you decided after careful consideration that the tributes from each state would be used to forge the cauldron of that state, and the situation of the mountains and rivers in that state would be cast on the cauldron. Chapter 211 After He Chuan heard this, he finally understood what the fragment in his hand was. It was the cauldron that the great you used to suppress the nine prefectures. No wonder the gods and devils from the outer realms wanted to snatch it. Without it, the dragon energy in the central plains would have dissipated. In the future, there will be countless disasters in various places. The tribes in the outer realms could attack the Zhou dynasty. The most important thing was that the nine prefectures' cauldrons could be used for cultivation. This must have restricted this group of gods and devils, so they wanted to find this treasure. It doesn't matter. As long as the bronze fragment is in my husband's hands, they will not be able to gather the nine prefectures' cauldrons. Princess Changning returned the bronze fragment to He Chuan, her face full of longing. That being said, Your Majesty still needs to send people to collect the fragments of the nine prefectures' cauldrons as soon as possible. There might be unexpected gains after gathering them. He Chuan liked to plan ahead. It was useless to hold a bronze fragment in his hand. It would be better to gather them all and place them in the hands of the Zhou dynasty to prevent the gods and devils from the outer realm from having any ideas. Besides, he didn't know if he needed a complete nine prefectures cauldron. What if it could be used without collecting all of them? You Majesty! The Minister of Justice requests an audience. Just as the two of them were getting intimate, the palace maid outside came to report. Announce! Empress Changning smiled apologetically and sat back on her chair. The smile on her face instantly disappeared, and she had a serious expression. He Chuan sat at the side and casually picked up a book to read. The Minister of Justice came in with sweat all over his head and began to report the recent cases. Now, there were crooks mixed in with the honest folk in the capital, and cases were happening from time to time. However, most of them were small matters like fighting, which the Ministry of Justice could handle. However, a young lady from a wealthy family in the north of the city had been kidnapped yesterday. The next day, a corpse was found, and there were traces of defiling on it. This was obviously a case of a rapist infiltrating the capital to commit a crime. There were too many martial arts practitioners in the capital, so it wasn't easy to investigate. Therefore, the Minister of Justice wanted to borrow some help from Empress Changning. Otherwise it would be difficult to continue with the case. Since ancient times, no matter if it was the people of martial arts world or the common people of the court, they all hated rapists. If there were good people, there would be bad people. Since ancient times, there has been no exception. This was the case for rapists, and the ancient punishment for such criminals was even more severe. When the Zhou dynasty had just been established, it was very troublesome to maintain public security. At that time, there was a rapist with excellent Qin Gong. This rapist, Chui Su, had set a shocking record of raping 182 women within 10 years. In ancient times, rich women had a strong sense of chastity, and the victim would not dare to say anything in order to protect their reputations. Therefore, Sang Chong had never failed even once in his 10 years of prostitution. It was only when he was about to do evil for the 183rd woman that he was exposed. The man's disguise was completely exposed and he was immediately tied up and sent to the government office. After interrogation, the big lecher confessed to the master Gu Kai, there are seven disciples and ten years of roaming evil crimes. The government determined that Chui Su's crimes were comparable to the ten evils and sent him to the capital, asking the law to reconvict him. In the end, the imperial censorate followed the imperial edict and executed the evil Chui Su with the torture of death by a thousand cuts. At the same time, they sent a letter to each province to arrest Chui Su's seven disciples. This was what happened to rapists in ancient times. Compared to the current law, it was much more ruthless in ancient times. Nowadays, in Zhou dynasty, you would be executed with the cruel torture of death by a thousand cuts if you were found out. Furthermore, his family members would also be discriminated against. After all, he was their own child, and they were raised by them. Therefore, in ancient times, it was rare for girls to be harmed. On the one hand, the criminal law was harsh. If they were caught, 
they would be executed with one word or by dismembering them. Moreover, there were brothels to visit. It wasn't worth it to risk his life to do such a thing. Not only did this rapist dare to commit a crime, but he also committed a crime in the capital. The thief was indeed audacious. In He Chuan's opinion, he could not sympathize with rapists. If they were caught, they would be sentenced to death. Let's see who would dare to commit the same crime again. This way, many young girls would not lose their chastity and might even lose their lives. Can my husband please Changning wanted to solve the case as much as possible. If He Chuan could help, the matter could be easily solved. No one knew if this rapist would continue to commit crimes. If another young girl lost her life because of this, the imperial court would lose its face. No problem. Could this lord please explain in detail if the rapist had left behind any items or if anyone had accidentally seen them? Of course, He Chuan would not refuse. It was a piece of cake. He also had a deep hatred for rapists. This kind of person would destroy not only the girl, but also the family. Only then did the Minister of Justice notice the man beside Empress Changning. And she had even called him husband just now. This humble official greets State Duke He. As an important official of the Imperial Court, he had naturally heard of He Chuan's existence. He Chuan was already a legendary figure in the Great Zhou Dynasty. Other than a few people who knew the story, the others were guessing what He Chuan had done to make Empress Changning fall in love with him. Although they had never met He Chuan, they had heard many different versions of their story. This was the first time he had seen him in person, and he felt he spoke very calmly. He did not deliberately try to please Empress Changning, nor did he act high and mighty towards him. It was as if she was born to make people feel good about her. I already know about this matter. You can go back and put up a notice first. Those who provide clues will be rewarded with a hundred tails of gold, and those who capture it will be rewarded with a thousand tails of gold. In addition, it can also serve as a warning to everyone. He Chuan said softly. This group of martial arts practitioners had their heads in their pockets, so they still cared much about money. This if the imperial court were to issue an announcement, wouldn't the minister of justice didn't continue. It was still up to Empress Changning's reaction. After all, this matter concerned the face of the imperial court. Do as my husband says. In addition, I'll inform General Qin to continue strengthening the night defense. The Ministry of Justice should also organize two groups of experienced people to look for clues. Empress Changning was becoming more and more elegant, like a real ruler of a country. The Empress had already spoken, so the Minister of Justice naturally had to do as she said. The Ministry of Justice could also be more relaxed. After all, there were many people in the martial arts world in the capital now. Having someone to help could save a lot of effort. He was also very impressed with He Chuan. These suggestions would be of great help in capturing the rapist. Let me hear the little guy's voice. He Chuan waited for the Minister of Justice to leave he bent down and placed his ear on Empress Changning's lower abdomen. The faint fragrance of jasmine assailed his nose. His divine sense also entered through Empress Changning's meridians, thoroughly examining the future child. The children are very healthy. They should be twins. He Chuan straightened his back and took Changning into his arms. If it's two boys, do you want one of them to take your surname? Empress Changning asked. They'll all take your surname. He Chuan shook his head. He didn't belong to this world to begin with, so there was no point in adding to his worries. The children and grandchildren would have their own fortune. Under Empress Changning's love and care, the two children would definitely live very well. Chapter 212 The night was not quiet. Ever since the Ministry of Justice issued the notice, many people had been looking for rapists at night. However, the rapist disappeared for a few days, as if he was afraid and did not dare to appear again. Zhao Quan was a vagabond in the pugilistic world. He wanted to come to the capital to broaden his horizons and see how powerful he was. He had practiced taking the head of a general in a crowd of 10,000 horses. He was good at riding on the ground and in close combat. In terms of Qingdong and martial arts, they were very ordinary. He was drunk as he walked through the alleys of the capital. 
because it was past the curfew time, he did not dare to take the official road. It would be too troublesome to invite the Ministry of Justice for tea. Suddenly, he saw a figure flying up and down the wall. Is there a good show to watch? Revenge? Or what? That person flew on the wall while Zhao Quan ran on the ground. He even had to occasionally leave the house on top of the wall to observe the person's direction. After crossing a few courtyards, the man disappeared. Zhao Quan thought to himself, the enemy of the master of this house must have arrived. He also climbed up the wall and hid in the dark, ready to watch the show of killing and seeking revenge. It wasn't too late to help when it was necessary. He bent down and drew a short knife in his hand in case of mishaps. This house was tall and big. It seemed to be a wealthy family. At this time, the main family's people were probably already asleep. The backyard had all the lights and fires put out, and the surroundings were silent. He followed the man to the backyard, only to see him tiptoe silently on the ground, then leap up to the second floor. Zhao Quan didn't dare to get too close. The man in black pride opened the door and sneaked in. Immediately after, a young girl's cry of surprise could be heard, and then it was silent again. Zhao Quan didn't dare to be slow and followed him upstairs. The room was suddenly lit up. He leaned over the window and opened the paper window to take a look. He saw the man holding a sharp knife with bull ears. He was laughing lecherously and threatening a pure young girl to submit. So you're a rapist. He suddenly recalled the notice from a few days ago. It should be the person in front of him. He had thought that this rapist would not dare to commit the same crime again, but he had never felt that he would be so bold as to continue committing crimes in the imperial city. The rapist had probably scouted the place beforehand, so he was very familiar with the mansion's layout. Zhao Quan felt that it was a pity for such a talent. He had such good qing gong, flying over roofs and walls like an agile monkey, but he did not use it on the right path. Instead, he specialized in the business of defiling girls from good families. It was despicable. Fortunately, she had met him. Otherwise, the girl in this family would have been ravaged and killed. A good family would have been instantly frostbitten, and a new corpse would have been added to the wilderness. The bold flower-picking thief didn't know what was happening outside and lit the lights directly. In order to be able to observe the girl's beautiful face more clearly, he didn't use incense or anesthetic. Instead, he directly used force and threatened her with a knife, which made the thief's methods even more cruel and explicit. At first, the young girl was still struggling with all her might, but how could she withstand the strength of the rapist? In her hand was a sharp knife, and the rapist also covered her cherry lips. Not long after, she gradually lost the strength to resist. If you submit to me, I'll spare your life. If you serve me until I'm happy, maybe I'll even bring you home to be my bride. If you dare to resist and shout, I'll definitely kill your entire family and set fire to your house before I leave, turning it into a wasteland. Even your corpse won't be able to be found. The rapist laughed lecherously as he spoke in a low voice. The young girl didn't know if she was shaking her head or nodding her head. At this time, she was already lifeless and didn't dare to resist. She was afraid that this rapist would really kill her family. That's right. You're not afraid of death, but are your parents not afraid of death? Cooperate well with this old man, this old man will leave once I'm done, you won't lack anything. It's just for this old master to enjoy for a moment, who asked this little lady to be so beautiful, making this old master unable to sleep and eat in peace. Seeing that the girl was no longer resisting, the rapist removed his hand from his mouth and said. Please have mercy on me. I'll ask father to give you more silver tomorrow. The young girl finally had the chance to speak. She couldn't help but shiver and beg for mercy. Do you think I care about silver? I'm not greedy for money, I just like beauty like you. The rapist's hands were not idle either. He first placed the short knife on the table next to him, then lifted the quilt, and his big hands were ready to tear the girl's underwear. Although Zhao Quan was also a lecherous man, he had never done such a thing that was worse than a beast. The matters between men and women had always based on love. Both were willing, and men had to be responsible for women. 
how could he use force to force them or even take their lives? How was such evil behavior different from pigs or dogs? If not, he could go to a brothel to spend money and enjoy himself. This kind of business was despicable. Stop, you dog! Seeing that the young girl was about to be humiliated, Zhao Quan shouted loudly from outside the door. There's really a fool who doesn't want to live. How dare he spoil my good plan? You're lucky. We'll split it in half when we meet. You wait outside for a moment, and after I'm done with my business, you can come and play with this girl, how about it? The rapist straightened up and spoke to the window. He thought that he had met a fellow peer. After all, to enter someone's mansion at this time, he would either be stealing someone or money. Anyway, he was done for. He didn't care about the girl's life. Bah! Petty thief, come out! Zhao Quan knocked on the window and shouted. He didn't know the depth of the rapist's kung fu and was afraid that he would hurt an innocent girl if he were too cautious in the house. Touching the king of hell's head in the middle of the night, you want to die but can't wait until dawn. No one has ever dared to speak to me like this since I was born. The rapist opened the door and came out with a treasured saber. Zhao Quan slowly retreated to the empty space in the backyard. The rapist was also a martial artist, and by looking at Zhao Quan's standing posture under the moonlight, he knew that the other party was also a martial artist. The rapist did not dare to be careless. He waved the short knife in his hand and pounced viciously at Zhao Quan. The courtyard was already brightly lit, but the young girl's parents, siblings, and servants were still in the dark. They advised the two not to fight and arranged for someone to report to the authorities. The young girl saw that the rapist had been led away, so she got down and closed the door, crying in a low voice. In less than ten rounds, the rapist knew that he had met an expert. If this continued, he would definitely die at the hands of this person. My lord, you and I have no enmity the day before and no grievances recently. Why do you want to fight with your life? A wise man does not fight when the odds are against him, the price can be high or low. The rapist immediately turned his face to the ground and begged. Dog thief, you entered the house at night and wanted to defile a good woman. What crime is this? If the road is not fair, everyone will cultivate it. If things are not fair, everyone will take care of it. How can I let you go? Zhao Quan angrily rebuked. I know I was wrong. I won't dare to do it again. The rapist's eyes rolled twice, and he was prepared to make a change of tactic as an escape strategy. Or he could use underhanded tactics when the other party wasn't paying attention. All right, I'll find a rope to tie you up. Let's talk at the Ministry of Justice. Zhao Quan said coldly. He couldn't go to the Ministry of Justice, as the rapist had assaulted countless women, so how could he deliver himself to his door? The rapist was secretly on guard. At the same time, he held a hidden weapon in his sleeve, ready to launch a sneak attack at any moment. Chapter 213 Hearing the conversation between the two, the young girl's father finally understood. It turned out to be a rapist who had entered the mansion. Fortunately, he had met Zhao Quan. The rapist's words flow like a river as he begged for mercy. However, Zhao Quan did not care at all. He continued to press forward with a short knife in his hand, moving as fast as lightning. Go to hell. A poisonous dagger shot out from the rapist's sleeve and headed straight for Zhao Quan's door. Zhao Quan hurriedly diverted his attention to block the fierce flying daggers. At this moment, the rapist jumped ten feet away, and with another leap, he jumped onto the wall. This is bad. After Zhao Quan blocked the flying knife, it was too late for him to give chase. Moreover, the rapist's qinggong was very good, and he couldn't catch up at all. It happened too late. The short knife on the ground seemed to have a life of its own as it flew toward the rapist. It hit the thief right in the crotch. The flying daggers were extremely fast and powerful. The rapist's DCK was cut off by the roots in one fell swoop. Another eunuch had descended. The rapist screamed in pain and fell of the wall. Zhao Quan wanted to go outside to check on the situation, but the young girl's father grabbed his wrist. You can't leave you killed someone in my house. 
we have to see the officials tomorrow. It's not too late to leave after we make things clear. The young girl's father could not prove his identity as a rapist, so he could only ask Zhao Quan for help. Zhao Quan couldn't get away and couldn't say a word. Just as he was entangled with her, the girl came out of the room with messy hair and cried. Father, please don't make things difficult for our benefactor. The young girl saw this and quickly explained the situation. I'll first see if that rapist is still alive, then I'll go to the Ministry of Justice with Sire tomorrow, okay? Zhao Quan was still thinking about the reward. It was said to be a thousand tales of gold. The key was that he wasn't the one who had killed the rapist just now. He didn't know who had done it in secret. The young girl's father let go, and Zhao Quan quickly ran out. He went around the wall and saw a young man standing next to the corpse, as if waiting for him. May I know your name? Did you help to kill the rapist just now? Zhao Quan didn't know the other party's intentions and asked warily. He Chuan. If you hadn't discovered the tracks of the rapist, I'm afraid it would have been very difficult for me to find him. The man was He Chuan. He had been covering the capital with his divine sense for the past two days, looking for the rapist. The small-scale fight between the two had attracted He Chuan's attention. He had heard their conversation and confirmed that the rapist was here. Just now, in order to punish the rapist, he had directly turned the other party into a eunuch. It's hard to find him. Zhao Quan was a little dumbfounded. Could it be that the other party had been lying in ambush here all along? He didn't know how powerful a saint cultivator was and didn't even think in that direction. You can get a thousand gold coins from the Ministry of Justice for the corpse. However, your martial arts skills need to be improved. After He Chuan finished speaking, he had already disappeared. Zhao Quan was a little dumbfounded. He Chuan was like a ghost from the legends, coming and going without a trace. He carefully walked up to examine the corpse and suddenly found a book and a pill beside it. He quickly picked it up and read the thirteen deadly swords. After flipping through two pages, he knew that it was not an ordinary item. Also, this pill gave off a strong medicinal fragrance. Thank you, benefactor, for your gift. I, Zhao Quan, will uphold justice in the future and continue to carry forward the martial arts world. Zhao Quan knelt on the ground. Although he didn't know who He Chuan was, he was certain that he had left behind the sword manual and the pill. The first day of the preliminary selection competition for the martial arts tournament officially began. Martial arts clans, families, and even some forces that lived in seclusion in the mountains and forests had come here to prepare for the glorious title of number one in the world. Furthermore, everyone could not sit still when they heard that the Xiongnu people were coming with great momentum. Everyone had gathered at the temporary training field in the capital. This was the venue of the martial arts conference. When they entered the finals, it would be held in the palace. What an honor that would be! The Huashan sect, the Kongtong sect, the Shaolin, Wudang, and the other seven big sects of the martial arts world were here. There were also people from various mountain estates and martial arts families. The martial arts practice field was the size of two football fields, but at this moment, it was crowded and noisy. Qin Yintian personally led 200 cavalrymen and galloped across the field to maintain order. He had the various major powers take their seats in order, and the various tribes also cooperated with him. There were also some meddlesome ministers who came to watch the show. They were dressed in luxurious clothes and had outstanding temperaments. With their tall and cultivated figures, although they looked old, they had the mature and domineering aura of old men. This caused many female swordsmen's eyes to sparkle. He Chuan, who was sitting in the corner, glanced at the major forces around him. He found that many people had met him once. He had seen the eight vassal lords when they were rebelling. At the same time, he found that almost all the forces had a flag in front of them. For example, the Huashan flag was a sword, the Kongtong sex flag was a Chinese parasol tree, and the Shaolin flag was a mountain. As for the rest of the big families or clans, as long as they were famous in the underworld, they all had their own flags. The entire arena was filled with colorful flags fluttering in the wind. Although they were gaudy, they clearly indicated which force they were from. It was equivalent to a disguised form of publicity. 
Aya, master, if we weren't informed about the flag, I otherwise would have been prepared. Liya looked at the flags of the various sects and said enviously, the flag is a kind of totem, a kind of faith. You can just design it according to the totem tomorrow. He Chuan shook his head. This disciple of his really liked to be serious. So what if he had a flag or not? It wasn't like lone wolves in the martial arts world have flags. I'll draw master on the flag. Liya said after thinking. Your master hasn't passed away yet. Stop your nonsense. Just as He Chuan was about to knock Liya's little head, the bell in the hall rang. The sound of the bell was as loud as thunder, but it had a miraculous effect of cleansing the soul, making everyone involuntarily quiet down. It's the spirit bell. Everyone's heart trembled as they looked up. A group of people walked onto the high platform in the middle of the martial arts practice field. The leader was a middle-aged man. He looked like a pale-faced scholar with deep and bright eyes. He wore a blue eunuch uniform and seemed to be a half-step saint cultivator. Back then, he had taken some kind of spiritual medicine. Not only did he preserve his appearance, he had also broken through to become a ninth-rank grandmaster. He was usually very low-key in the palace and rarely revealed his talents. Later, he Chuan left Empress Changning a pile of pills and asked her to train more saint cultivators. This eunuch was on the list. Beside Qin Yin Tian, there was an old monk holding a staff. His hair and beard were all white, and he had a kind face. He greeted everyone around him and said, Amitba. Everyone hurriedly stood up and returned the greeting with a respectful expression. The middle-aged eunuch and the others also returned the bow, not daring to be the slightest bit slow. This was because the old monk was an eminent monk of Shaolin Temple. It was rumored that his strength was also in the half-step saint cultivator realm. The key was that this old monk did not care about fame and fortune. This time, his main purpose was to help stabilize the situation as Qin Yintian's old friend. The old monk was known as the guide of Shaolin Temple and was respectfully called the guiding master. It was because of his guidance that countless disciples had entered the Shaolin Temple. Chapter 214 The first Xiantian Ninth Level Grandmaster, the young master of Mingjian Peak, Yi Tianqing, was the first to enter the arena. Ha ha ha, I've long heard that Yi Tianqing's swordsmanship is superb. I'm here to have a taste today. A martial arts cultivator flew up to the ring. He was also a Ninth Level Xiantian Master. His posture was very arrogant, his aura was powerful, and his voice was very arrogant. He was a new ninth level Xiantian master in the martial arts world. However, there were also strong and weak ninth level Xiantian masters. The moment he stepped onto the stage, he was defeated by Yi Tianqing in one move and returned in a sorry state. After that, a few more people appeared. Yi Tianqing did not waste any time and directly fought. But without exception, after a few moves, they were still defeated. In the eyes of ordinary martial artists, Yi Tianqing was a little too strong. It was a chilling sight. However, He Chuan and some of the other experts could clearly see that it was not Yi Tianqing who was too strong. It was the other ninth level Xiantian cultivators who were too weak. These people were the newly advanced ninth level Xiantian cultivators who had taken medicine. Moreover, being a ninth level Xiantian cultivator was destined not to go far. It was just an appetizer. The warm up is over. Let me fight you. Another ninth level Xiantian cultivator spoke. It was the head of the Zhou family, one of the three aristocratic families. Please. Yi Tianqing's expression was grave, the two of them immediately engaged in a fierce battle. After a few dozen moves, the Zhou clan's sect leader let out a loud roar and slammed his palm on Yi Tianqing's chest like a lion that had just escaped its cage. Yi Tianqing was sent flying while spitting out blood. In the surrounding area, the Zhou clan disciples were excitedly cheering for the might of the sect leader. The Zhou clan leader stood on the high platform and looked at the crowd. Before the judge could open his mouth, a cold voice was heard. I'll fight you. His voice was as sharp as a sword, filled with battle intent. The audience followed the voice and looked over. They couldn't help but be shocked. It was Zhao Wuji, the sect leader of Tianjian Peak. 
It was rumored in the pugilistic world that the Zhou family's head once attacked the Zhou family's head but was repelled by Zhao Wuji's emotionless sword. The two became mortal enemies, and now, it seemed that it was true. Whoosh! As he swung his sword, the cold sword light illuminated the sky. At the same time, a clear and hard sound of a sword rang through the world. The sound of the sword was filled with soul-stirring power and a cold and sharp killing intent spread. Everyone's swords trembled uncontrollably. Some of the warriors who used swords even felt a natural suppression, making them unable to even draw their swords. This is sword intent. Zhao Wuji has actually comprehended sword intent. All the half-step saint cultivators' expressions changed, and they sat straight. In the cultivation of martial Dao, everyone was different. After reaching a particular realm, they had no choice but to start cultivating their own martial Dao's true meaning. Sword cultivators cultivated sword will, sword cultivators cultivated saber will, and martial artists who were good at fighting cultivated fist will. This was the only way to advance in martial arts and the path to becoming a strong person. Cultivating the true meaning of martial Dao was equivalent to stepping onto another stage of martial Dao. Master, have you cultivated the true meaning of the sword? Liya asked in confusion. I have. He Chuan replied. Of course, he had cultivated the true meaning of martial Dao. Otherwise, how could he have entered the seventh rank of saint cultivator? What kind of martial Dao intent does master have? Liya asked. Saber intent, sword intent, spear intent, and staff intent of a saber. He Chuan thought for a moment. He had forgotten some of them, but he had basically mastered them. Liya was dumbfounded. Just how powerful was her master to have comprehended so many martial Dao true intents? On the arena. Zhao Wuji unsheathed his sword. The sword light was cold, and the sword intent circulated, making all the grandmaster experts present apprehensive. And as far as they knew, among the ninth-level Xientian masters in the pugilistic world, Zhao Wuji seemed to be the first to cultivate sword intent. Sect leader Zhou's expression changed drastically. A few days ago, when he attacked Zhao Wuji, the other party still had not cultivated sword intent. Still, only a few days later, Zhao Wuji had actually cultivated sword intent. Moreover, he could feel that the sword intent was obviously extraordinary. It was indestructible and merciless will shook his consciousness. He roared and used all his strength to resist. The palm of his hand was like the blazing sun, emitting a blazing ball of light, blocking Zhao Wuji's sword light. However, the sword's intent was invisible, penetrating his body and directly attacking his soul. Sect leader Zhou's body staggered. His face turned pale, and he vomited blood as he was sent flying. He struggled to get up, but he was powerless. His eyes revealed shock and fear looking at the sword-wielding Zhao Wuji. He couldn't even block one move. Was the sword intent really that terrifying? If you want to kill, then kill. Sect leader Zhou said dejectedly as he stretched his neck. Zhao Wuji looked at him with cold eyes for a moment, put away his sword, and once again walked back to the high platform saying, Please enlighten me, eminent monk of Shaolin. Sect leader Zhou felt bitter. He knew that Zhao Wuji saw that the war was about to begin, so he spared his life. However, there was also a hint of contempt in it. He did not say anything more and was helped back to his seat by the Zhou family's disciples to take medicine to treat his injuries. Zhao Wuji was crazy enough actually to dare to directly challenge a Shaolin master. This one would like to compare notes from Master Ziyuan's brilliant moves. Of course, the Shaolin disciples would not be afraid. Ziyuan chanted Amitbao, then flew onto the stage and began to fight with Zhao Wuji. Both of them were fighting calmly without any killing intent. It was as if the two martial arts masters were communicating with each other. Many low realm martial artists were fascinated by this. In particular, some of the moves the two of them used were simplified, giving them different insights after dozens of movements. Groan. Zhao Wuji once again used sword intent. Ji Yuan used all his strength to block it, but he was still defeated. But Ji Yuan did not fall, opening his mouth to admit defeat, acknowledging Zhao Wuji's formidable strength. All the ninth-level Xientian masters present fell silent. 
Zhao Wuji, who had formed sword intent, was terrifyingly strong. The Tianjian peak let out a burst of cheers. But at this moment, a loud laugh came from the direction of the Nine Holy Palace. Ha ha ha, without the tiger in the mountain, the monkey will be the king. The man laughed and jumped out of the Kongtong sect. He wore a large black cloak embroidered with skulls and carried a treasured saber on his back. His eyes were as cold as the stars as he overlooked the entire scene. His domineering and powerful aura made the surrounding people instantly quiet down. I, Guang Cheng, am here to learn from your skills. Guang Cheng raised his chin, looking aggressive and arrogant. Guang Cheng Daoist's cruel and merciless style terrified the people of martial arts. When Zhao Wuji saw Guang Cheng, he couldn't help but tense up. His expression was particularly cautious and severe. A sword cry. Zhao Wuji quickly drew out his sword. The sword light slashed down, and the sword's intent was vast and mighty. He used all his strength. Hust. Guang Qing Daoist attacked with his blade. There was no blade intent, but the blade light was much stronger than Zhao Wuji's. The moment the sword light and the saber light collided, the sword intent struck Guang Cheng. Blood seeped out of the corner of his mouth. He roared and rushed over again with his saber. The blade light rolled towards Zhao Wuji. The sword ray was shattered, and the saber ray continued to slash down. With an indestructible momentum, it broke the high platform. The two of them fought speed with speed. The sword and the saber collided, causing sparks to fly. Chapter 215 Taoist Guang Cheng 1 In the end, sword intent couldn't overcome the gap. Zhao Wuji was probably already a half-step saint cultivator. The ninth stage of the Xientian realm was still a little lacking. He Chuan was uninterested. After all, a fight of this level might seem very exciting to others, but to him, it was no different from a fight between children. Master, there are so many masters in the martial arts world of the Central Plains. Can I become the number one in the world? Lia was a little stunned to see so many people. Especially the match just now, it was too shocking. It was far more exciting than the Xiongnu number one warrior selection. This also made her lose confidence. She didn't know what to do next. It's good to be confident, but you need to face reality. He Chuan shook his head. If it was a battle between two half-step saint cultivators, then Lia did have a chance. However, there was no lack of saint cultivators among the many people in the martial arts world. If they were to compete, Lia would not have a chance at all. The gap between the two was difficult to cross. In fact, he didn't expect so many saint cultivators to come today. The Central Plains martial arts world was full of crouching tigers and hidden dragons. The world's number one moves people's heart. Whether it was the seven major sects, the prominent families, or the major mountain villages, all of them wanted to clear the name of their families or sects. The battle on the field was getting more and more intense. Guang Qing defeated five challengers in a row and successfully advanced to the next round. There were too many people in the pre-selection stage. In order to end it earlier, the imperial court had set this rule for the challenge. After all, the world's number one was just a scheme to disband the seven great sects, not to choose who was the number one. The sooner it ended, the better. Hee <laughs> hee, I didn't expect that my trip to the Zhou dynasty would give me such a big surprise. I wonder if you have the confidence to give the martial arts world of the Central Plains a tight slap in the face. The first prince looked at the battle in the ring. He did not have to win the competition. The original plan had already deviated. But now if he could win and get his father's praise, he could also explain to the imperial advisor. This was a happy ending for everyone. It was indeed a bad idea to make the father and son fall out and rely on rebellion to seize the position. I'm not very sure. First Prince, don't forget that the mysterious master was able to hide from our detection the other day when the treasure was lost. He's enough to defeat me. I just don't know why he didn't make a move. The young man with the evil look on his face was the first prince's subordinate. The other day, they were robbed of the bronze fragments. Until now, they still didn't know who did it and had no clue. For now, 
he could only set his sights on the bronze fragments in other places and hoped he could complete them as soon as possible by the end of his trip to the Zhou dynasty. Humph. If we can't succeed, then I'll carry out the follow-up plan. You just have to stay behind after the treasure is found. The first prince still counted on this expert to deal with the imperial advisor. If he couldn't get his father's praise, then he could only rebel. Anyway, he didn't want to wait any longer. When he returned to the plains, he would start a rebellion, so the treasure that could help the experts around him increase their cultivation was the best choice. Although the two of them spoke very softly, coupled with the cheers, the sound of fighting was covering their voices. However, they still couldn't escape He Chuan's detection. As expected, they want to rebel. It seems that the plan to let Liya ascend the throne can be put on hold. He Chuan had no intention of stopping the first prince's rebellion. On the contrary, he wanted to help him if he had the chance. Tatumtan's desire for the Zhou dynasty had not died down. He was always thinking about the plan to attack. Perhaps the death of this king could cause a dispute between the tribes of the grassland and desert, and by then, he would no longer have the time to plan for the Zhou dynasty. After the first prince ascended the throne, he would drag the other party down. With this layer of relationship, the Xiongnu and Zhou dynasty could make a peace agreement. At the very least, there would be no conflict for the next 100 years. In this way, the gods and devils would have no external means to rely on, and in this case, He Chuan could see the true face of the gods and devils. Were they human or a ghost, a demon or a devil? Let's drag them all out for a walk. The competition on the stage was still going on. A Taoist priest in green from the Wudang sect had already defeated four people in a row. If he could defeat one more person, he would be able to advance to the next round. Amitba, I'm here to learn the secret arts of Wudang. A monk in a yellow robe jumped into the ring. Judging from his aura, he was at least a half-step saint cultivator. The battle between Wudang and Shaolin had officially begun. As the most powerful figures in the martial arts world, they didn't intend to determine a winner when they formed an alliance. But in the dark, neither of the two families was convinced. In the past, Shaolin had even said that the Wudang Grandmaster was a Shaolin disciple, which made Wudang unhappy. Now that the time to fight for the world's number one had come, everyone didn't need to continue pretending. Hee <laughs> hee, so you're an eminent monk from Shaolin. Then I'll have to ask for your advice. The Wudang sect's disciples brandished their swords. Bang! The Wudang expert stomped his feet on the arena and shot out like an arrow leaving the bow. With a buzzing sound, the sword peak looked like it was about to devour someone. The yellow-robed monk made his move at the same time, striking at the Wudang expert with his air-splitting palm. The Wudang expert, on the other hand, retracted his sword and met force with force with a palm. The two began to fight at close range, from moves, fist techniques, palm techniques, body techniques, and so on. His performance in the battle was incisive. The yellow-robed monk attacked more than he defended. He easily used all kinds of moves, just like a great grandmaster. Although the Wudang expert attacked less and defended more, he had the upper hand. He dodged with confidence. This was the competition between Wudang sect and Shaolin temple. Both of them wanted to appear more powerful. After all, they were representing their own sects. Only by suppressing the other party in all their moves could the power of the two great sects, Shaolin and Wudang, be shown. The two of them fought back and forth for a while and both felt that they had figured out their opponent's strength. The yellow-robed monk shouted loudly and pushed out his palms with the force of a mountain and a sea. The terrifying true energy was so dense that it seemed to have substance, causing the air to distort. The Wudang expert turned over and crouched on the ground. Tai Chi Palm. Boom. In the end, the yellow-robed monk lost to the Tai Chi Palm. He flew out of the ring like a kite with a broken string. Wudang's Tai Chi Palm was good at using softness to overcome strength, borrowing strength to fight the enemy. The yellow-robed monk was caught off guard and fell into the trap. Only then did he fly out of the arena. That's all the Shaolin cultivator can do. The Wudang expert bowed, his eyes full of disdain. There was a clear gap between the other party's strength and his, so it was expected that he couldn't beat him. 
and there were still many Shaolin masters who had not made a move, so these words were clearly a little arrogant. He Chuan felt that watching a show was more interesting than watching a competition. This time, Shaolin had been slapped in the face, and was definitely going to get back at them. He did not know how the Wudang sect would respond, and whether the two sects would become enemies in the end because of this. It was exactly as he had thought. Shaolin couldn't stand the Wudang sect's mockery. A half-step saint cultivator went up to the stage. His momentum was obviously at its peak, only one step away from becoming a saint cultivator. With only one move, he had defeated the expert of the Wudang sect and directly responded. Chapter 216 he Chuan was uninterested. After Liao advanced, he suggested they return to the relay station first. Kai Lian also left with him. Liao stayed behind to continue watching the competition. She did not want to miss such a grand event. She could learn something from every match, so He Chuan didn't force it. If she wanted to watch, she could just stay. He just happened to be taking Kai Lian back to the palace. He Chuan did not disturb Empress Changning. Instead, he returned to the library pavilion. He lay on the rocking chair in the front yard and flipped through the anecdotes of Chizhou again, wanting to see if he could find anything new in the allusions to gods and demons. Kai Lian quietly cleaned the library pavilion. She didn't use any martial arts, but rather she cleaned it with all her heart. This allowed her to become calm. She didn't know if it was because she had been with Yichuan for too long, but she now liked the quiet. Reading and cleaning could make one's heart calmer. Young master, why do you think people have desires? Kai Lian asked in confusion. Desire is innate. For example, if you want to live a peaceful life now, you can't escape the scope of desire. He Chuan shook his head. He also had desires. For example, he wanted to obtain better things in his reincarnation. He wanted to reach the peak of humanity. It was all the desire that drove him to act. No one could avoid it. Desire was a part of human nature. It was something that humans were born with. It was a form of release of instinct, forming the most internal and basic basis and necessary conditions of human behavior. Driven by desire, humans constantly occupied objective objects, thus forming a certain relationship with the natural environment and society. Through the more or less satisfaction of desire, man, as the subject, grasped the object and the environment, and achieved the same unity with the object and the environment. In this sense, desire was the fundamental driving force for people to change the world and themselves. It was also the driving force behind human evolution, social development, and historical progress. If humans lost their desires, they would probably still live in the Stone Age. Desire was not a derogatory term. The key was how to control his inner desires. If it was used on the evil path, then this desire was destined to be spurned. If desires were transformed and developed, it would benefit the evolution of the entire human race. Oh! Kai Lian scratched her little head, not fully understanding. Because He Chuan's explanation was a little profound, she found it difficult to understand. Previously, she had thought that she had become desireless. She didn't expect that liking good food and wanting to live a quiet life were all inner desires. Duke He, Her Majesty has arrived. A young eunuch ran over and said respectfully. The person in front of him was a legend in the palace. It was said that he used to be a little eunuch in the library pavilion, but now he had become the Empress's pillow. He was the role model for all the eunuchs in the palace. However, they probably couldn't do it because He Chuan had no intention of letting a eunuch break through. If that happened, the entire palace would be in chaos. It was better to let the palace maids and imperial guards cultivate in the direction of saint cultivators. If there was an exception, and the eunuch suddenly broke through to the saint cultivator level, he would be arranged to work outside, even if there were no more concubines in the harem. However, these palace maids were still around, and they would still be handed over to the boy in the future. This had been the rule of the Central Plains for thousands of years, and a case like Changning was a rare example. He Chuan nodded to show that he understood. Kai Lian quickly packed up and went to the door to welcome him. Changning had only brought two personal handmaidens with him. She didn't bring a bunch of people with her. Kai Lian, 
you don't have to be so polite. There are no outsiders here. Chiming held Kai Lien's small hand and walked to the side of the chair. She had a good impression of this little palace maid. She was very kind and not scheming. Moreover, she was clear about He Chuan's situation. He wouldn't have too many romantic feelings. Otherwise, something else would have happened between them. You need to rest more when you're free. Do you want to sleep here for a while? He Chuan walked in front of Empress Changning. He placed his warm palm on his lower abdomen and transferred a stream of vital essence into it. Empress Changning certainly knew how precious the vital essence of a saint cultivator was. He Chuan was also expressing his love for unborn children. Humans were not plants and could not be emotionless. Although He Chuan did not have many feelings for Empress Changning, he was happy and hopeful for the child. He hoped that the two children could grow up healthily. Empress Changning had a blissful smile on her face. After all, she was also a woman. Of course, she hoped that at this time, her husband would be by her side and be able to share the joy of having children. Husband, can you come back when the child is born? She caressed He Chuan's handsome face. The world was unpredictable. Who would have thought that a master and disciple would become husband and wife? She also became the empress of the great Zhou dynasty. Of course, I'll be back. He Chuan understood the importance of this moment. Any woman would feel disappointed if the man she loved was not by her side. Even as the empress of the great Zhou dynasty, she still needed her lover to be by her side when she was giving birth. How was today's battle? Empress Changning asked. She hadn't gone to the scene to watch, but from the frightening reports, she knew that it was very lively today. Moreover, it was said that the Wudang sect and the Shaolin temple were hostile to each other. The two gangs were locked in a fierce battle, and many masters who had a chance of advancing were eliminated today. If it weren't for the fact that both sides were the top figures in the martial arts world, they would probably have fought each other today. It was even possible for a personal battle to happen. Nothing much. The saint cultivators didn't fight today. They're no different from children playing. He Chuan said, shaking his head. On the first day, they were testing each other. The Wudang and Shaolin sects didn't lack half-step saint cultivators, so they fought seriously. The other clans or mountain villages had no interest in fighting, so he was not interested in them. I heard that you accepted a little disciple, the sixth princess of the Xiongnu tribe. Is she very beautiful? Empress Changning suddenly thought of this and couldn't help but feel a little jealous. Although she knew that He Chuan would not have a relationship beyond friendship with her, she couldn't help but think. Perhaps pregnant women would let their thoughts run wild. That's right, it's the sixth princess, Liao. She's your junior sister, and I plan to make her the female king of the Xiongnu. That way, the two of you are very similar. He Chuan's tone remained calm. He had no other thoughts about Liao. He could understand Empress Changning's wild thoughts, but there was no need to explain this kind of thing. It would only make things worse. If he didn't mention it, the other party might forget about it after a while. A female king? What are your thoughts, husband? Empress Changning quickly forgot what had just happened. She knew that He Chuan must have his own reasons for doing this. Lia has no prejudice against the people of our country. If she can become the empress, it will be good for both the Xiongnu and the Zhou dynasty. He Chuan didn't hide his plan and explained it to Empress Changning in simple terms. Chapter 217 If the Zhou dynasty and the outer realm could remain in peace for a hundred years, then the Zhou dynasty's power would increase by a large margin it wouldn't be so easy for the enemy to attack again. Thank you, husband, for thinking about the great Zhou. Empress Changning wrapped her arms around He Chuan's neck and kissed the handsome face of the man she loved. We're all family. You're being too polite by saying thank you. For He Chuan, it was a piece of cake. It wasn't too difficult. He still had feelings for Empress Changning's library pavilion, so helping the Zhou dynasty was within his expectations. He wasn't truly heartless or someone who had forgotten his feelings. I've already told my subordinates that I'll spend the night with my husband in the library pavilion. Empress Changning wrapped her arms around He Chuan's neck, 
her beautiful eyes filled with beautiful memories of the past. Not only did Kai Lien miss life here, but Empress Changning also missed it. Back then, her younger brother, Chengen, and she had cultivated with Yichuan. At that time, she admired He Chuan very much and thought her master was omnipotent. Later on, when Zhou Shimin was poisoned, and no one could do anything about it, the first thing she thought of was her master. She thought that as long as her master took action, it would be easy to handle. There was no problem at all. And that was the truth. He Chuan had helped Zhou Shimin detoxify the poison. He helped the Zhou dynasty defeat the alliance of the seven great sects and quell the rebellion of the eight vassal kings. The half-step saint cultivator, who was invincible in everyone's eyes, was no different from an ant in the hands of this man. Later on, under He Chuan's guidance, she became a saint cultivator everyone envied. From then on, she understood that she liked this man. She thought she had not expressed her love, but they ended up together by accident. She still felt happy even if they could not cuddle together like ordinary people. Liener, go and clean up. I've also specially asked the kitchen to make some dishes. I guarantee that you'll like them. Empress Changning said as she rubbed Kai Lien's head. She knew what Kai Lien liked to eat. Late at night. He Chuan took out all the spiritual pills in the bottles. The rest of the spiritual herbs and precious herbs were also placed on the ground in the order of their grades and the order of the five elements. These pills were enough for the Zhou dynasty to nurture a few more experts. He Chuan and Kai Lien no longer had any use for it. Did husband become a thief during this period? Empress Changning said half-jokingly when she saw so many treasures. Nonsense, these are all pills I made when I had nothing to do. I don't have a use for them. He Chuan didn't want the system exposed, so he said casually. In fact, Empress Changning was very touched. Because He Chuan was willing to give her these things, it meant that she still had a place in his heart. He Chuan looked at Empress Changning and Kai Lien, who were sorting out their items, and his heart suddenly moved. It had been a long time since he had checked into the library pavilion. Would he get a good reward if he continued to check in now? Or did the system decide it would no longer give him anything good? He immediately checked in. Ding! Congratulations to the host for winning the great creation pill. He Chuan's heart skipped a beat. There was indeed something good. The night was over. The light of the morning sun shone through the cracks in the trees. It was not glaring but rather gentle. The chirping of insects, birds, and beasts rose and fell. We have a lot of precious herbs this time. Will they help us break through to the ninth rank of the ultimate realm at once? Abbess Fong Ling rubbed her palms together excitedly. He Chuan was sitting cross-legged in the room. A vast medicinal power was reflected back to his five viscera and six bowels from his body. He hurriedly operated the Taishan scripture to cultivate. His physical body rumbled as his strength soared. Saint Cultivator 7th Rank Primary Stage Saint Cultivator 7th Rank Intermediate Stage Saint Cultivator 7th Rank Advanced Stage Peak State His aura was still increasing, and his eyes were incomparably bright. He felt his body subliming and transforming. He felt as if there was an invisible meat grinder stirring in his body. Other than the pain, his strength was also rapidly increasing. He Chuan could feel the threshold of a seventh rank saint cultivator. Go! He roared in his heart as he drew upon the vast medicinal power of the great creation pill to rush towards the bottleneck. Boom! His body rumbled, and his aura instantly surged. The might of a saint cultivator was emitted, and his entire person instantly grew three centimeters taller. His aura became even more powerful. An eighth rank saint cultivator. He was only one step away from the ninth rank. He did not know what breaking through the ninth rank would be like. But he really wanted to experience it. However, we still need to take it slow and steady, one step at a time. Otherwise, if one's foundation wasn't stable, it was very likely that one would suffer from energy deviation. The later cultivation would definitely be more complex than now. He Chuan muttered to himself. Suddenly, he felt an invisible force pressing down on him. He opened his eyes and looked at the sky. 
Dark clouds gathered in the sky, and the wind raged. Was it because he was cultivating the Taishan scripture? This was because he no longer purely cultivated martial arts but had begun cultivating Tao. He Chuan's guess was right. It was the power of lightning that struck down. He turned pale with fright and adjusted the vital essence in his body to its strongest. The lightning continued to strike down, one after another. However, it wasn't as strong as he had imagined. It was as if some power was tempering his body. The superficial aura that he had when he had just broken through became more condensed. His body was also becoming stronger because of the tempering of the lightning. It shone like an unpolished jade. He Chuan also gradually realized the benefits of being struck by lightning. He used his vital essence to resist it while circulating the Taishan scripture to strengthen his body. At the same time, he was also perplexed. There had never been a lightning tribulation when he had broken through in the past. Could it be that there would be a lightning tribulation every time he broke through a realm? The three bolts of tribulation lightning disappeared and the dark clouds in the sky gradually dispersed. He immediately examined his body carefully. Although he looked extremely disheveled on the outside, his bones, muscles, and blood were being reconstructed, and strong energy in his blood gradually rose. There was a faint sound of muffled thunder in his body. It also sounded like someone was beating a drum, which was shocking. His physical body had become even stronger. In the past, he had chosen to refine energy instead of the path of body forging, so his physical body was actually not strong. However, everything had changed now. His entire body had become extremely strong after being tempered by lightning. Within a breath, a white mist appeared from his mouth and cut down a small tree three feet away. He Chuan was very satisfied as his perception covered his entire body. After the baptism of the lightning tribulation, even though he had suppressed his strength to the level of a ninth-rank grandmaster, both his vitality and physical strength had reached their peak. He wasn't any weaker than those half-step saint cultivators. The cultivation method of the Taishan scripture was to break the limits of the human body. In theory, he could break the limits of the human body could nine times, so it was called the nine ultimate realms. Cultivating the heart, cultivating the energy, and cultivating the body. Only when the three were combined could one truly cultivate the Tao. It would not be like Yichuan's situation in the past, where he had simply become an energy refining expert. Now, he had to cultivate his body from the beginning and strive to reach the so called nine highest realms. After a long time, Yichuan opened his eyes again. There was a flash of lightning in his eyes, which carried a terrifying pressure. His aura became profound and the power of energy and blood in his body was restrained, making him look like an ordinary person. Right now, he was ordinary from the outside to the inside, and his tsunami-like energy flowed very slowly. Chapter, 218 He Chuan seriously comprehended the Taishan scripture and quietly touched the mysteries of the cultivation method. If it were someone with had no patience, they might really throw the Taishan scripture away as an ordinary sutra. Half an hour later, he Chuan heaved a long sigh of relief, and his eyes were filled with satisfaction and surprise. Clearly, he had gained a lot. He was indeed a little surprised because the difference between cultivation and martial arts was not just a little bit. He will definitely have outstanding achievements in the future. He pushed open the door and came out. Empress Changning and Kai Lian both noticed that he was different. It's all thanks to the Taishan scripture. You guys have to study it more. Kai Lian and I will go back first to avoid suspicion. He Chuan prepared to bring Kai Lian back. Now that his cultivation had broken through and his strength had improved greatly, he was more confident in dealing with the gods and devils. He didn't treat the Taishan scripture as a treasure either. He had already passed it on to Kai Lian, Empress Changning, and the sixth princess, Lia. At the competition venue outside the capital, the battle cries on the stage were endless, and there were figures fighting everywhere. He Chuan returned to his resting room in time and didn't arouse any suspicion. He and Kai Lian had come again today to watch. This was because today, 32 powerhouses would be chosen to advance to the next round. The competition would be even more intense. Zhang Junbao, the leader of the Wudang sect, had defeated the leader of the Huashan sect. 
everyone was shocked. The power of the Wudang sect was once again deeply rooted in people's hearts. The first to advance to the top 32 is Zhang Junbao from the Wudang sect. The judge in charge announced. The scene was instantly filled with cheers, but without a doubt, the disciples of the Wudang sect were the happiest and the loudest. The other martial arts factions were more or less unwilling or jealous, and their congratulatory smiles were forced. However, at this moment, people found that after the head of the MA sect, Abbas Feng Ling, went up on the stage, she suddenly sat down cross-legged with her sword placed horizontally on her knees. She actually entered a meditative state, and her body emitted a kind of mysterious aura. The audience looked at each other and were very curious at the same time. The head of the MA sect suddenly entered a meditative state. Was he going to break through her realm? Or did this abbess Feng Ling not care about the others at all? The young master of Qinghe Manor, Lu Yong, has come to challenge Senior. The handsome young man in embroidered clothes was about 24 or 25 years old. His skin was fair and clear, and his eyes were bright and full of energy. This young master had a long sword hanging from his waist, and the scabbard was inlaid with red, blue, and white gemstones of various colors. It was brilliant and dazzling, showing that he came from an extraordinary family. In an instant, Feng Ling opened her eyes, and a sword intent began to flow around her body. This sword intent was a destruction sword intent that had reached the great success stage. It formed a tornado of sword intent phantoms above her head, causing the sky above the martial arts practice field to be filled with a murderous aura. In the field, everyone's faces paled. The young master of Qinghe Manor, Lu Yong, was dumbfounded as he exclaimed, Destruction Sword Intent. How could Abbas Feng Ling have comprehended such a strong sword intent? He was both shocked and jealous, because his emotionless sword intent came from the emotionless sword that he had inherited. After being sharpened by the sword intent time and time again, he only managed to comprehend it after narrowly escaping death. Abbas's Feng Ling power completely overpowered his emotionless sword intent. The other sect leaders looked at Abbas Feng Ling's appearance and exclaimed in their hearts. I didn't expect the MA sect leader to be so powerful. It seems that he has been hiding her strength. That's right. In the past, Abbas Feng Ling didn't reveal her talents and was very low-key in her actions. I didn't expect her to be so strong. Hearing this, they all sighed. A half-step saint cultivator with such a strong sword intent, it would be hard to find an opponent. Abbas Feng Ling stood up and waved her hand, and the dragon-slaying sword fell into her hand like a dragon. Slash! She slashed out with her sword, and the sword light streaked across the sky. The sword will raged, and the aura of destruction exploded, causing ripples in the void. With a boom, the platform was completely shattered. A long and deep pit appeared on the ground, and a terrifying destructive aura filled the air. All around, the sect leaders of the other six major sects all stood up in shock. They couldn't take this sword, so they could only choose to avoid it. Thanks for letting me win. Abbas Feng Ling's martial force trembled, her long hair danced wildly, and her robe also fluttered. He had enough momentum. The disciples of the MA sect cheered loudly, cheering for their sect leader. As if they were influenced by this, some of the cultivators from some sects also started to shout. Their voices gradually became louder and louder, as if the entire world was shouting for Feng Ling. From this moment on, Abbas Feng Ling's swordsmanship was completely famous in the pugilistic world. Abbas Feng Ling's power made everyone feel shocked, fearful, and in awe. Now that she had formed her sword will, she had become even more powerful. She stood there like a treasured sword. There was an invisible sword intent circulating around her, making people have no choice but to bend their backs and lower their heads. Although the sect leaders of the other sects were jealous, they had to admit that Abbas Feng Ling made them look up to her at this moment. Many older generation experts had a premonition that the martial arts world of the Central Plains was about to change again. He had thought that it was a battle between Wudang and Shaolin. He didn't expect the MA sect to interfere. Abbas Feng Ling became the second expert to advance. The fight for the third place was particularly intense. The patriarchs of the other two aristocratic families also went up to compete. 
In the end, Shueha's patriarch also entered the arena. He swept everyone with his overwhelming strength. The fight for fourth place began. The wanderer of the pugilistic world, Zhou Tong, jumped onto the stage. In the blink of an eye, he had defeated three people. Just as he was about to ask who else was there, the sect leader of the Kunlun sect appeared. The Kunlun sect sect leader punched out. His fist was like the sun, and Zhou Tong was forced to the ground, unable to recover for a long time. Everyone was shocked. The sect leader of the Kunlun sect was indeed worthy of his reputation. The fourth person to advance was the Kunlun sect's leader. After the top four were settled, the others became even more anxious. Then, Liya couldn't help but want to go on stage, but she had to get He Chuan's permission. Today's battle was even more exciting because these were all true experts. Compared to the first day's preliminary selection stage, it was much more exciting. Liya did not want to miss the moment when she would exchange moves with them. What are you panicking for? If you want to advance, you should wait a little longer. I told you to read and calm your mind, have you forgotten? He Chuan said calmly. If they wanted to pass through smoothly, they would have to wait until all the experts from the seven major sects had advanced in rank. Otherwise, it might be a futile effort. The seven great sects had only taken up seven spots, which was still enough for them to advance. Seeing how serious He Chuan was, it was evident that he did not want her to take the risk. Liya could only continue waiting helplessly. At the same time, she could tell that He Chuan was not confident in her martial arts. After that, the remaining experts from the seven major sects all made their moves and won the spots for their respective sects to advance. Many people were waiting for the competition between the seven major sects to end. The remaining spots would be opportunities for other cultivators. Only then did He Chuan allow Liya to attack. Liya fought as the sixth princess of the Xiongnu people. She immediately used her evil warding swordsmanship. No one in the field could compete with her and she successfully won the position of advancement. The first prince would participate in person, while the eldest princess would send a half-step saint cultivator to participate. The competition was getting more and more intense. Chapter, 219 The world was silent. The full moon rose. Amidst the waves roaring, the battleships covered the sky and the sun as they came over. They brought with them a billowing murderous aura, along with the sea breeze. The port was located along the coast of the sea, river, lake, and reservoir. It had the water linkage equipment and conditions for ships to enter and exit and anchor safely. In other words, the port was mainly a place where water and land transportation intersected. Water transportation mainly included sea, river, and lake transportation. This also included being used as a military strategy. Chuanzhou Port was located on the coast of the lower reaches of Jinjiang. It was north of Chuanzhou and had excellent port resources. This port brought the Zhou dynasty the prosperous scene of the people of ten continents and the merchants of ten thousand countries. The spring water came out of the stacked ridges, and the rainbow bathed in the sun. Among the flowers of the academy, beside the lotus lake in the Buddhist temple. The emerald imperial jade sat against the old house, and the clouds were dyed red. A good wind rises in Liching district, and the floating boat floats on the vast ocean. Chuanzhou port made Chuanzhou one of the largest cities in the world at that time. It created this ancient city and contributed to the city's diverse culture. The Xiongnu was not the only country that was eyeing the Zhou dynasty. There were also other countries that were far away. A dozen or so warships with yellow, blue, and white flags set off to the Zhou dynasty's coast. The strong bows and crossbows on the warships were all in place, and the assault team and the suicide squad were formed. They were equipped with kerosene, which would explode immediately once ignited. The Zhou dynasty's Chuanzhou navy had already discovered that the situation was not right and had immediately sent a letter back to the capital. Chuanzhou navy, Wan Guanglin, led the battle. The three zero zero people who were good at swimming were formed into an assassin team, carrying fuel wrapped in waterproof tarpaulin. When the war broke out, they would sneak into the enemy's warships, kill, set fire, and create chaos. The two thousand soldiers of the Scythe Army were well equipped and well organized. 
The left wing consisted of 5,000 archers and 10 ninth rank Xientian cultivators. The right wing's army was also about the same, while the middle army had 100 people, personally led by Wang Guanlin, as the main fighting force. Time passed. There were spies constantly going deep into the sea to gather information. The figures coming and going touched everyone's heart. The sea breeze was strong and cold, causing everyone to feel cold. The army had gathered on the shore. The war flag fluttered in the wind, and a depressing and somber aura filled the air. It had been many years since such a battle had occurred in the Zhou dynasty's ocean. Everyone was very nervous, and their palms were covered in sweat. The scouts standing on the watchtower by the coast could already see the shadows of the enemy's warships. The astrologer observed the weather and thought that at midnight, the northwest wind would blow and the enemy would ride the wind and waves to reach Chuanzhou port. The final battle is tonight. Kill all the enemies. Myriad light forests voice spread in all directions, filled with killing intent. All the soldiers were shocked, and their eyes burned with fighting spirit. They waved the weapons in their hands and shouted, Kill! 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 The ocean breeze sent the voice full of killing intent into the ocean. Unlike the prosperity of the past, Juanzhou city was still crowded with people. However, no matter if it was the tea houses and wine shops, or the restaurants and brothels, everyone was quietly waiting, sometimes looking in the direction of the coast outside the city. Many commoners hated those soldiers. But at this moment, they hoped that they could win the battle, fight a beautiful battle, drive away the enemy, protect Chuanzhou city, and not let the enemy enter the city. At midnight. Northwest wind. In the blink of an eye, the warship was about to reach the shore. The soldiers in Chuanzhou could even see a group of blonde-haired and blue-eyed enemies under the moonlight. Kill. At Wan Guanlin's command, the left wing, right wing, and middle armies that were ready to attack erupted with tsunami-like killing cries. However, the enemy warships quickly shifted to the side and adjusted their direction, forming a chain battle formation. Holes appeared on the hull of the ship, from which dark muzzles poked out. Boom boom boom. The sky was filled with cannon fire, and the void cannon fire was like a meteor. In a split second, the earth quaked and the mountains shook. The entire coast exploded and turned into a sea of fire. In an instant, thousands of people died or were blown into pieces. Some lost their arms and legs, and miserable screams rang out. Myriad Light Forest, the commander on the coast, was furious. The soldiers were even more dumbfounded. As they watched the cannonballs fall from the sky like flowing fire, they only felt their heads buzz. They had never seen such a thing before. Continue to charge. Assault team, suicide squad charge forward. Wan Guanlin roared and ordered, his entire body filled with killing intent. The adjutant beside him also came to his senses and hurriedly ordered the armies to charge. However, the enemy didn't give them a chance to get close. Fierce artillery fire rained down, and the coast was littered with corpses. However, no one could break through the coastline, let alone approach the enemy's warships. General, what should we do now? The enemy's attack is too fierce. The adjutant fled back in a sorry state. He had lost nearly half of his 100 strong army. His eyes were blood red, filled with anger and killing intent. Wan Guanlin secretly swallowed a mouthful of saliva. As he looked at the sky full of cannon fire and the earth shaking, his heart trembled. Just as he was about to call for a retreat and fight another day, a voice rang out in his mind. He waved his hand and smashed a piece of wood to vent his emotions. Looking at the enemy's warships, he turned to his adjutant and said coldly, ordinary cultivators won't be able to win this war. We have to rely on grandmaster level experts to win. Gather all the experts of the ninth rank Xientian and follow me. We'll rush onto the warship and destroy those cannons. Whoever dares to disobey my orders will be a eunuch. Lu Sima, you're in charge of gathering the three armies to continue the charge and cover us. As long as the warship is destroyed, the enemy will be like chickens and dogs, unable to withstand a single blow. Yes. Lu Sima quickly accepted the order. This was not the time to be careless. 
everyone immediately got into action. On the shore, Myriad Light Lin took the lead. The army's morale was high, and their battle cries resounded through the void. A group of ninth rank Grandmaster powerhouses activated their Qingdong to avoid the artillery fire and charged into the sea. After that, everyone used the water movement technique to float on water. The soles of his feet stepped on the sea water, splashing up waves. They were like dragons and lightning, extremely fast. In a few breaths, they were close to the warship. Stop them. Archers, fire. On the ship's side, the enemy soldiers discovered them and shot arrows at them. The experts with extraordinary archery skills on the shore drew their bows and arrows to protect Myriad Light Forest and the others. For a time, screams and arrows were heard. Under the ship's railing, Myriad Light Lin raised his saber and suddenly swung it. Slash! He roared loudly, and the saber light poured down. The enemy's nearest warship was blasted open, and seawater poured in. The other experts were also making their moves. Although the warship was sturdy, it could not withstand the attacks of the experts of the 9th rank Xientian. Soon, it started leaking everywhere. The warship shook, and the people on it shouted in panic. Charge up and kill them all. Wang Guanglin roared and landed on the ship like a great rock spreading its wings. The saber ray was dozens of meters long. Wherever it passed, corpses were cut apart and blood splattered. The warship lost its offensive power, and a gap appeared in an instant. The battle formation of the warship was broken. Lu Sima, who was on the shore, saw this and excitedly shouted for his army to charge over. Chapter 220 Along the shore of the Chuanzhou Road, artillery fire filled the sky. The earth trembled, and the mountains shook. The sound of fighting soared into the sky. When Wan Guanlin led the ninth rank Xientian cultivators to attack the first warship, the enemy's battle formation was broken, and a gap appeared. The adjutant immediately led the Chuanzhou army and charged in from this gap. With the warships alternating, artillery fire could not be fired. If the enemy attacked forcefully, they would accidentally hurt their own people. Thus, the royal ship in the middle blew out the great horn. Bang! The brilliant fireworks exploded in the sky. A cloud-piercing arrow, thousands of soldiers, and horses came to meet. The commander-in-chief has given the order. All troops, get in the formation in charge. When Lu Sima saw the signal, he quickly waved his flag and shouted, ordering the follow-up troops to charge. Crossbow volley, shield. Infantry, don't wear heavy armor and go into battle. Enter the sea and attack freely. Kill. The enemy also turned around and attacked. Hundreds of thousands of soldiers from both sides were fighting on the shore. Many people were even fighting in the sea. Blood dyed the sea red, and the waves took away one body after another. The Chuanzhou army had not experienced war for many years. At this moment, both sides were fighting. Many people were so scared that they cried for their parents. Before they could see the enemy's appearance, their heads were cut off by swords. On the other hand, the enemy was like a hot knife cutting through butter, their black armor exuding a cold light. Seawater was dripping from it, and blood was flowing. And this blood was mostly from the Chuanzhou army. The large army of cultivators formed by the prominent martial arts families, gangs, and other forces in Chuanzhou was like a cup of water on a burning cart of firewood in the battle of hundreds of thousands of people. Many people were kings in one-on-one -on -one battles, but they were lousy in group fights. They fought on their own without any order, relying only on the sharp swords and knives in their hands and their hot blood. When the sea was dyed red with blood, the ground was covered with corpses, and the artillery fire exploded in their ears. They all panicked. Their faces were pale, and they screamed in fear. They turned and ran, but they were chased by the enemy and shot with arrows. Everyone, follow me. One of the Grandmaster experts roared in anger. The sharp swords in his hands were like white silk as he killed the enemy soldiers. However, when he looked back, he saw that no one was following him. Those guys had all run away. He couldn't help but panic. His Qinggong skill was poor, and he was stabbed to death by the enemy's halberds. 
It was not that there were no brave people, but they were all quickly extinguished like this grandmaster expert. On the entire battlefield, only the army led by Shin Qinxiu was still holding on. The disciples and elders of the Qin Yun sect behind him were like a sharp blades, working together to kill the enemies until their blood flowed like a river. I'll fight you. A ninth-rank grandmaster military general from the other side rushed over. He held a long halberd that was dripping with blood. It was evident that he had already killed many people. Swoosh! Shen Qinxiu's sword slashed across the sky. That person's head flew up, and his headless body fell into the sea. The enemy army was terrified. The Chuanzhou army was excited as they followed Shen Qinxiu and charged into the enemy. On the other side, Wang Guanlin led a group of ninth-rank cultivators. They killed anyone who stood in their way. One warship after another was destroyed and sank by them. We'll kill our way to the command ship in the middle and win. When they boarded another warship, the enemy came to destroy them. The enemy had abandoned the people on this ship in order to destroy them. Several ninth-level Xientian cultivators were hit by the cannon and turned into pieces. The cannon blew the myriad light forest away and fell into the sea. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Arrows and artillery fire were fired simultaneously, and several unconscious ninth-rank cultivators were killed on the spot. Fortunately, at this time, the army led by Shin Qinxiu arrived. The gangs in Chuanzhou also brought kerosene. At the price of many people dying, they set the kerosene on fire. At the same time, people constantly poured kerosene directly into the sea. In an instant, a massive fire burned the sky. The entire sea surface turned into a sea of fire. As the wind blew, the fire pounced on the warship. The warship was instantly engulfed in a sea of fire. Some people screamed and fell from the side of the ship. This fire completely turned the tide of the battle. Other than a few warships that were further away, all the warships that were lined up on the coast were caught in the sea of fire. On the high railing of the command ship in the middle of the enemy, Commander Wesley and a group of high-ranking officials were watching from afar. At this time, many warships were caught in the fire, and Wesley could not help but frown. Everyone, it's time for you to make your move. Otherwise, if you lose, don't even think about the skyship and just escape. First suppress Chuanjo City, then find the fortune of this dynasty. Wesley said. The group of high-level nobles cupped their hands and accepted the order, then turned and left. This group of enemies from overseas was very excited. When they set off, you can set off with my personal guards. Remember, don't linger in battle. Put down the formation plate and leave Wesley said in a low voice. His adjutant nodded and left. His gaze once again landed on the battlefield, on Shin Chinchou. His eyes were filled with a powerful battle intent. When Shin Chinchou used his sword intent to kill a battle general, he had the thought of fighting him. The great Zhou dynasty seemed extremely powerful on the island of Chuanzhou. However, there were not many ninth-rank Xientian experts here. The navy general, Shen Qinxiu, could be ranked in the top three. However, in Wesley's eyes, the great Zhou dynasty already had enough experts. If not for their powerful cannons, it would have been difficult for them to gain the upper hand. In this battle, he saw dozens of ninth-rank Xiantian cultivators killing each other on the warship. Especially after the group of experts destroyed one warship after another, it made him a little afraid. The confidence they had in coming here was their brave warships and cannons, as well as their powerful artillery attacks. This method was given to them by the oracle from beyond the heavens, and it was the magic weapon of the British Empire to conquer the world. No one knew about it except for the spies sent by the bulldozer dynasty back then. But at this moment, the warships were being destroyed, and the artillery fire was gradually extinguished. Therefore, he had no choice but to sacrifice a warship to bombard the great Zhou dynasty's ninth-rank Xientian cultivators. Some people were indeed killed, but more people escaped. Wesley took a deep breath and ordered the command ship to sail into the sea and stay as far away from the coast as possible. At the same time, he had to be on guard to prevent being attacked by a ninth-rank Xientian expert. At this moment, the fire on the sea surface was put out by the waves, and the army once again charged to the shore. 
At the same time, a dense group of noble private troops rushed out of the command ship. They were all martial artists with excellent equipment. When they were still a few dozen meters away from the shore, they took off one bomb after another from their waists and threw them at the great Zhou dynasty soldiers. This was a new weapon developed by the British Empire. Although it was not as powerful as artillery, it was mixed with poisonous smoke, fog, and poisonous insects. Therefore, they were all grenades, but they had different names. Some were called poison smoke bombs, some were called poison mist bombs, and some were called poison bug bombs. A poisonous bug bomb exploded next to a great Joe soldier. The densely packed poisonous insects were as small as needles and burrowed into their armor. The soldier screamed in pain and rolled on the ground before dying in pain. Chapter 221 A shrill scream was heard, which scares people. The situation is not good. If we continue, we'll lose. Lu Tao led the scythe army and charged back. He was covered in blood. Lu Lu Hai was beside him. Of the 200 scythe army soldiers behind him, only 500 were left. They were all injured. The enemy's weapons were really good, causing the Chuanzhou Alliance army to suffer heavy losses. In the command center, as a general, Wang Guanglin, had a huge headache. Because the battle was not going well, the Alliance army of the various forces suffered heavy losses, and if the battle continued, they would be greatly weakened. Let's retreat. We will defend Chuanzhou city and slowly fight with them. We will wear them out. One of the adjutants suggested, but the others quickly rejected it. You have seen the enemy's long-range attacks. No matter how thick the city walls of Chuanzhou are, can they withstand the rumbling of artillery fire? Once we retreat, Chuanzhou city will be in chaos. Many people will flee. Then what should we do? The enemy's weapons are better than ours, and the soldiers and manpower of the various forces are almost all used up. Everyone was arguing. One side wanted to fight, one side wanted to retreat, and no one could out-talk the other finally, everyone looked at Wang Guanlin, who was sitting in the middle. General, you decide. We'll listen to you. Everyone looked at Wang Guanlin. Continue to fight. We can't retreat from this battle. Moreover, we must win. I've already informed the imperial court, and reinforcements will arrive soon. Wang Guanlin's voice was resolute and decisive. The cloak behind him fluttered, and he had a ruthless and unyielding temperament. It was not that he was a hero and fearless, but the imperial court's punishment was too frightening. It didn't matter to his subordinates, but as the general, he would definitely be held accountable by the imperial court. However, no one knew the hardship Wang Guanlin felt. They had only seen the most powerful Wang Guanlin being so confident. They couldn't help but be shocked and said in surprise, could it be that General has already thought of a good strategy to defeat the enemy? Wang Guanlin cursed in his heart, but he didn't know if he should say it. He didn't have any fking good plans to defeat the enemy. The only way he could think of was to wait for the imperial court to send reinforcements quickly. Luckily, some people were stubborn and were willing to die in Chuanzhou city. Otherwise, he didn't know what to do. He didn't know if the Empress had received an urgent letter from 300 miles away and when the reinforcements would arrive. He could only try his best to stabilize the situation. He definitely couldn't hand over Chuanjo city to others. Otherwise, they would be condemned by history. Wang Guanlin felt extremely uneasy. But he still maintained a calm and composed expression. Everyone, it's easy to defeat the enemy, but we must wait for an opportunity. He smiled and said. What opportunity? General, do you need me to create it? The adjutant was immediately overjoyed and asked hurriedly. The others also looked at Wang Guanlin in excitement. All of you are leaders of a force and experts of Xientian ninth rank cultivators. If you are willing to take out all your assets, these enemies should be nothing. As soon as he said this, everyone's expression changed, and they lowered their heads. They were the people of Chuanzhou city, but they were still unwilling to reveal everything. What? You're not willing. Is this not your home? If we lose this battle and Chuanzhou city falls, what use would your trump cards be? Wang Guanlin's expression was serious as he coldly said. 
General, you may not know this. It's not that we're unwilling to use our own trump cards, but some things have extreme backlashes that can devour our lifespans. The leader of a gang smiled bitterly. That's right. Otherwise, we would have dominated Chuanzhou City. Someone immediately echoed. The other ninth rank Xientian cultivators also smiled bitterly. As for those ninth rank Xientian cultivators who didn't have any trump cards, they could only be envious. As those were items passed down by the major forces, the traveler cultivators of the pugilistic world had to rely on themselves, so they didn't say much about their reliance. Doesn't the general's family have a trump card too? I remember that the ancestor of the Wan family obtained a pair of boxing gloves back then. One of the leaders said. In other words, as a general, shouldn't you set an example first? Wan Guanlin naturally knew about that pair of gloves. It was currently placed in the secret room in the deepest part of the house. The boxing glove was filled with a strange red light and exuded a terrifying power, like an extremely evil item. He looked at it and felt his heart jump, so he did not dare to wear it. The competition in the capital was in full swing. The top 32 had been selected, all of whom were half-step saint cultivators. He Chuan couldn't help sighing in his heart. He didn't get confident because he advanced to a half-step saint cultivator. Now, it seemed that he was very wise. There were countless masters in the world, and half-step saint cultivators were as many as the hair on an ox. Naturally, there would be many saint cultivators. He had to speed up and keep moving forward. He had to seize the opportunity to break through to the saint cultivator realm. Only then would he be able to go further. Master, I've advanced. Lia waved her little fists, her face filled with excitement. To be able to stand out among so many experts and become one of the 32 powerhouses, she was already very satisfied. At the very least, she didn't lost in one round. If I didn't know, I would have thought that you've become the number one in the world. Remember my words. Never be proud of your current achievements. You still have a long way to go. He Chuan shook his head. He didn't even dare to stop and look at the scenery. Your disciple understands. It was very difficult for Lia to receive praise because the world was not as simple as one might think. Those who didn't enter the saint cultivator realm were just ants. But you've already done very well. Let's go back. He Chuan thought for a moment and praised her in a calm tone. Long live, master. Lia had finally gained He Chuan's approval. Although she did not know if he was being sincere, she had made some progress. The bustling capital was bustling with people. Lia took Kai Lian shopping while He Chuan bought two tiger dolls and returned to the palace. If nothing went wrong, the two children would be born this year, the year of the tiger. Therefore, He Chuan bought the tiger dolls as a gift. In the imperial study, Empress Changning looked at the urgent letter in her hand with a gloomy expression. Fang Yuanqing, Qin Yuntian, and the other officials also had difficult expression on their faces. He Chuan's sudden appearance startled everyone present. Everyone, don't worry about me. Just continue the discussion. He Chuan placed the two tiger dolls on the table. Empress Changning looked at the ragdoll tiger and smiled. The people from overseas this time have blonde hair and blue eyes. They have some characteristics of a barbarian country. It is said that they are strong and well trained. The soldiers of our Zhou dynasty cannot be compared with them. Fang Yuanqing said. The battle at Chuanzhou City was truly unexpected. Because they had never thought that someone could actually attack from the sea. It was simply unbelievable. The great Zhou dynasty had been established for so many years, but this had never happened before. This was because their views had not kept up. They had never thought about what was at the end of the sea. Because no one had studied these things. Chapter 22 when He Chuan heard Fang Yuanqing's description, he immediately came to a conclusion. These overseas barbarians were from other countries of the Great Zhou. They came to the Zhou dynasty from the sea and engaged in a large scale battle with the Zhou dynasty navy. The Zhou dynasty's navy suffered heavy losses. I don't think there's a need to panic. The overseas barbarians are just using strange weapons. They don't have many masters there. 
As long as the Imperial Court sends a team of Grandmaster Masters, they can deal with this group of overseas barbarians. The Minister of War said. Don't panic, don't panic. Do you think I'm an idiot? Empress Changning grabbed a cup of tea and threw it at the Minister of War's face. The Chuanzhou army had been completely defeated, but the Minister of War didn't know how to improve. On the contrary, he felt that it didn't matter. How could Empress Changning not be angry? Moreover, it was said that the weapon of the overseas army called the cannon was very powerful. If a ninth rank Xientian cultivator was hit by it, he would either die or be injured. If this army was the vanguard, how would the Zhou dynasty resist later on? The minister of war didn't dare to say anything. Under such circumstances, everyone was cursing the minister of war in their hearts for serves him right. Instead of quickly admitting his mistake, he acted as if he could win. It was already good enough that they didn't punish him. The enemy is strong, and our coastal navy has already neglected training. I think that we must make full use these time to train the various armies. Qin Yintian stood out and felt that strengthening the army was the most important thing. The ministers began to discuss how to deal with this matter. He Chuan closed his eyes to rest. He felt that although these ministers were familiar with Sun Tzu's arts of war, they were still not good enough. If they fell behind, they would be beaten. Now that the foreign countries had already developed tactics of using warships with cannons, if the Zhou dynasty didn't develop in this direction, they would definitely suffer a great loss. What does State Duke he think? Fang Yuanqing looked at He Chuan, who was at ease, and suddenly asked. He felt that He Chuan had a well thought out plan and that there was no harm in asking. Empress Changning and the other ministers also turned their heads to see if He Chuan had any good suggestions. I'm not better than any of you in terms of politics, but I know that the Zhou dynasty will fall behind if we remain conservative. Cannons must be studied, and we must vigorously develop the navy. At the same time, we must reduce the army and improve the treatment of the army. He Chuan said. Isn't it a waste of military expenses for the Zhou dynasty to develop its navy so much? The minister of war jumped out again and said. The local garrisons had to consume a lot of military pay every year, so where would they find the spare money to support the navy? The others also did not agree with increasing the strength of the navy. After all, the coastal areas were still relatively safe. At the very least, it seemed very safe to them. A teacher once told me that the world is bigger than you can imagine. The Zhou dynasty is just a small place, and the money earned from sea trade is far beyond your imagination. There are also islands full of gold. Perhaps the foreign barbarian army you mentioned is about to attack. He Chuan knew that the ancient people's vision was limited, so he had to explain more about the outside world to them. Gold everywhere. The Zhou dynasty was only a very small part. They couldn't believe it. It was simply a burden on their knowledge. Is State Duke's words true? Even Fang Yuanqing was in disbelief. Because they felt that the Zhou dynasty was the center of the world, they called it the Central Plains. Do I need to joke around with you? They didn't want to listen, and He Chuan didn't want to continue. Anyway, they would remember it after they suffered a loss. Husband, can you tell us what the outer realms look like? Empress Changning believed that He Chuan would not speak nonsense. She knew this man well enough. Since Empress Changning wanted to hear it, he Chuan would naturally tell her everything he knew. The natives of Nanyang were like a bunch of barbarians. They had no idea what etiquette was. If they walked west along Jinzhou, they would enter the Indian Ocean after passing through a long and narrow channel. The Strait of Malacca was an important passage connecting Southeast Asia and the Indian Ocean. After crossing the Malacca Strait, they would reach the Indian continent, which was the origin of Buddhism. However, the Indian continent was now divided into countless small countries, and they were at war with each other. What was more interesting was that Buddhism was not very popular there. Only the southernmost Lion Kingdom had always believed in Buddhism, and the Lion Kingdom also worshipped a piece of Buddha's finger bone Sariras. The Sri Lanka was rich in gems starting from the South Asia subcontinent, then the African continent, and the ancient Egypt civilization. Finally, he talked about the brilliance of the Mediterranean civilization, especially the Roman Empire, which was closer. 
These were things that Empress Changning and the ministers had never heard of before. At first, they had interrupted and asked a few questions, but later, they were fascinated by what they heard. They had always thought that they had traveled far and wide, and had seen many things. They did not expect that there were so many places in the world that they had not reached. Even if Grand Tudor Lu were to come back to life, he would have to listen to He Chuan's explanation because they had never been so far away. After he finished talking about the situation in Europe, he finally crossed the Atlantic Ocean and began to talk about the situation in North and South America. From the Japanese's mainland island, they could find an ocean current that headed east. If everything went well, they would only need a month to reach the American continent. They were famous ancient civilizations in ancient Egypt, the two river basins, ancient India, ancient Greece, ancient Rome. The first batch of countries appeared in Mesopotamia, ancient Egypt, and the India Valley. City-state systems rose at this time, and the Romans began to expand their territory by means of invasion and colonization since the 3rd century BC. During Augustus's reign, Rome controlled most of the Mediterranean coast. After the Roman Empire, Europe had the famous Middle Ages, which brought about frequent wars. In the early days of Europe and the United States, it was commonly known as the Dark Age. Traditionally, it was considered a relatively slow development period in the history of European civilization. Africa and the Americas still maintained a relatively primitive tribal form until the discovery of the Great Voyage. If the Zhou dynasty could be one step ahead of the others, they would become even stronger. Therefore, if you want the Zhou dynasty to continue to be strong, you must not focus on the land in front of you. You must look further. If the Zhou dynasty's ambition was not limited to the central plains, but to the entire world, they might be able to create a real empire that never sets. However, he had no interest in participating in such matters. It was a matter between the empress and the ministers. Whether they chose to be conservative or to vigorously develop the coastal areas and open up sea trade, it was all up to them to make the choice. This minister feel that Duki's words make sense. If the Zhou dynasty is complacent because of a small achievement, it will fall behind other countries. We must also put in a lot of effort into researching this weapon called a cannon. Fang Yuanqing firmly supported He Chuan's suggestion. Chapter, 223 After He Chuan's persuasion, everyone finally realized that the current Zhou dynasty might not have such a huge power. The Wei nation, the closest to the Zhou dynasty, is located in the open sea to the east of Goguryeo and the other two countries. There's only a strait between them. The Wei nation has three islands, with Honshu Island being the largest. The emperor lives on Tsukushi Island in the southernmost of the Wei nation. Although the area of this island can't be compared to the largest Honshu Island, it's still comparable to a prefecture in the central plains. The Wei nation and Goguryeo must be conquered and removed from their culture all. According to He Chuan's analysis, Qin Yintian felt it was best to guard against the two countries closest to them. Otherwise, if there was a problem, these two countries might attack the Zhou dynasty. In addition, the tribes in the outer realms were eyeing them covetously, so they indeed, needed to be on guard. He Chuan agreed with Qin Yintian's idea. The Japanese occupied four large islands, but Hokkaido was actually occupied later. For a long time in ancient times, the Wei nation also occupied the south-central part of Honshu Island, most of the four countries, and the north of Kyushu Island. As for the other places, they all had their own independent forces and didn't belong to the Wei nation at all. It was only later that the Wei nation slowly occupied them. This country wasn't easy to deal with. The best way was to get things done once and for all. He couldn't be soft-hearted. The southern part of Tsukushi Island had always been a gathering place for pirates. Almost all those who live by the sea like to go there and choose to open a gap from Tsukushi Island and gradually expand. It was an excellent method. He Chuan actually disdained the Goryeo and the Japanese, but they were just rats. For now, do as Minister Yen said and send a team of ninth rank Xientian cultivators to help. We need you develop a specific plan for reducing the army and expanding the navy. Empress Changning waved her hand, indicating for them to leave. There were no major events in Chuanzhou City. After all, the number of enemy troops this time was not too large. 
The ministers knew that the Empress wanted to be alone with the Duke, so they left with a good attitude. Thank you for your help, husband. Otherwise, the problem in Xuanzhou would have been enough to give me a headache for a while. Empress Changning picked up the ragdoll tiger on the table and sifted through it. A sweet feeling rose in her heart. Even if Yichuan didn't have any feelings for her, he was already very good to her future child. She knew this man's character too well. If it weren't for the fact that he had a child, Yichuan probably wouldn't even care about the Zhou dynasty. He would not care about what happened in Xuanzhou. You and I were husband and wife to begin with. Why do you need to be so formal? He Chuan said with a smile. Although his personality was rather indifferent, he did have a trace of affection for Empress Changning. How could he be so heartless? He actually knew how to be romantic too, but after so many reincarnations, plus the fact that he was a eunuch this time, the feelings in his heart might have faded a little. Of course, Empress Changning didn't know these things. Tomorrow is the elimination round between the experts. Who do you think has the best chance this time? Empress Changning ordered the kitchen to prepare three bowls of nourishing soup. One of them was given to Kai Lien. If it's a battle between two half-step saint cultivators, then the Wudang sect and the Shaolin temple have the greatest chance. The leading figure in the martial arts world wasn't just a matter of words. Even if a dark horse like Abbas Fong Ling appeared, it would still be difficult for her to win. However, the title of the world's number one was so moving that it probably wouldn't end well for a half-step saint cultivator. They would probably send out saint cultivators. At that time, it would really be hard to say who would win or lose. Players like Liya would be eliminated early, and it was a big pass for them to enter the top 16. That was why He Chuan had warned his disciple not to be arrogant. There's actually something I want to do, but I don't know if it's appropriate. I want to ask husband to help me make a decision. Empress Changning had the plan to implement, but it was not appropriate to ask the ministers. She could only let him decide for this matter. Let's hear it. He Chuan was a little surprised. Since she had asked him privately, it seemed to be something important. I'm sure you've seen the situation with the Minister of War. Many officials in the court don't do anything and dawdle all day. They take advantage of their status to take bribes and commit corruption everywhere. Thus, I want to set up a department to deal with them. Empress Changning didn't want to see too many parasites in the court. You can be a parasite, as long as you don't endanger the Zhou dynasty, you have to make some achievements. Not only did they get paid for doing nothing, but they also wanted to take the money of the imperial court. This way, the Zhou dynasty would only become more and more corrupt. We can set up a specialized military and political intelligence bureau to investigate the court, gather external information, and engage in activities such as reconnaissance, arrest, and interrogation. He Chuan remembered that on the Blue Planet in his previous life, there had been a department like the Imperial Secret Service in ancient times. The Imperial Secret Police Force was under the direct jurisdiction of the Emperor. There were positions such as Commander and Warden. Because they needed to travel to foreign lands, they had to be proficient in many foreign languages and customs. As the military organization of the Emperor, the Imperial Secret Police Force main function was to command guards, patrol, capture, and engage in surveillance, interrogation, and other activities. They were also involved in collecting military intelligence and plotting against enemy generals. However, they had to grasp it well. They couldn't let the power of the Imperial Secret Police Force expand infinitely, and when the time came, it would become a tool to eradicate dissidents. There had to be a limit to everything, or else not only would it make the Imperial Secret Police Force expand, but it would also make the ministers panic and go against their original intentions. Husband's idea is perfect. If the Zhou dynasty had the Imperial Secret Police Force, the officials would become more well-behaved. Empress Changning said happily. Her husband was really powerful, and it would not be an exaggeration to say he was a good partner. As the emperor, you have to look at the world with your own eyes and not communicate through other people's mouths. It's not good for you to rely too much on this department. As a modern person of the Blue Planet, He Chuan was not very familiar with history, but he knew that the change of dynasties was often insignificant. It gradually became a big deal until it could no longer be stopped. 
It had a lot to do with the emperor. I'll remember what my husband said. I'll definitely not let this kind of organization have too much power. Of course, Changming knew He Chuan's words were for own good. Good advice was unpleasant to the ear and beneficial to the action. She couldn't always listen to the words of the people under her. Just like when Cheng was still in power, he was engrossed in beauty every day and didn't know that the world was changing and that rebellions were springing up everywhere. He would lie on the bellies of beauties all day long, dreaming of the prosperity of the country and the peace of the people. There is one more important thing. As the emperor, have you ever thought about why your subjects should be officials? He Chuan picked up the soup that the kitchen had just delivered and brought it to Empress Changning's mouth with a spoon. Why did they become an official? The people of the Central Plains liked to be officials. It was a long-standing tradition that ten years of hard work was a meritorious service. If you study well, you will become an official, reflected the scholar's vigorous pursuit of an official career. If they couldn't become an official or weren't successful in the officialdom, they would choose to live in seclusion and never get involved in political affairs. Chapter 224 Empress Changning carefully considered the essence of the matter. He Chuan's question indeed had some deeper meaning. Why did the officials want to be officials? Create peace for all things. A few hot-headed youths came with such an attitude, but not many. Occasionally, one or two would appear, but they would soon be assimilated into the officialdom. Fame and fortune. Bring honor to their ancestors. She was really not sure because the way of a monarch did not teach one to consider why an official should be an official. That's a story for the future. If you can't even fill your stomach, how can you talk about fame and fortune and bring honor to your ancestors? First of all, they have to fill their stomachs and support their families, not to mention the officials who have nothing to their name. It's difficult for them to support their families with just a little salary. He Chuan took a sip of the soup. The imperial court salary was low, and the tasks were heavy. If one were not careful, they would be finished. With the emperor's order, they had to produce results in a year. There was also the phrase wake up earlier than chickens, sleep later than dogs. What should I do according to my husband? Empress Changming also discovered the root of the problem. Some officials didn't take bribes and didn't think of ways to make money. It was difficult for them to even support their families, so how could they bow to the emperor and die? First, increase their welfare. Then, if they are corrupt and accept bribes, the court can legitimately deal with them. We have to push back the morning court session. Everyone can come after a good rest. The officials who live further away will have enough time. The morning court session doesn't need to be held every day. He Chuan suggested. These were all suggestions that were beneficial to the Zhou dynasty. The officials and their families could at least eat and wear well, not have to worry about their lives, and have more time to do practical things. They didn't have to constantly think about life and how to make money. This was a virtuous cycle, where all the disadvantages were removed. In my opinion, if my husband were to become the emperor, he would definitely do better than me. Empress Changning said with great admiration. From the Battle of Chuanzhou to the changing of the imperial court and the imperial secret police force, they were all ingenious plans. If I were the emperor, I would probably be no different from Chengen. Rather than having me handle so many government affairs, it would be better to take my life. He Chuan could come up with ideas, but he had to supervise the officials under him personally. He would definitely avoid dealing with political affairs every day. He didn't have that intention and couldn't be the emperor. That was a challenging position. Being high and mighty was only one aspect. No one could see the hard work behind the scenes. Of course, it was easy to be an incapable ruler. Empress Changning had only said it casually. She could not give the position of emperor to He Chuan. Because, in the Zhou dynasty, only the surname Zhou could be used. Otherwise, she would not have the face to face her ancestors. This group of ministers would not agree to it either. Sai, the Zhou dynasty is in troubled times. Just as we thought of a way to organize a martial arts conference to separate the alliance of the seven major sects, the barbarians from overseas, as well as the tribes from the desert and the grassland, attacked us. Empress Changning had been under a lot of pressure recently, 
but she didn't have a good solution. She could only solve them one by one. After this period of time, she could finally heave a sigh of relief. There was nothing he Chuan could do about this. The path of an emperor was destined to be full of hardships and obstacles. If one wanted to become an empress that was respected by others, then one not only needed to be able to defend the country's territory but also to expand outwards. Or perhaps it was better to say that he had made unprecedented achievements. If a problem can be solved, it's not a problem. If nothing happens in the Zhou dynasty all day long and everyone is busy with their things, what's the need for an emperor? Since you're in this position, you're destined to be responsible for the country and your people. He Chuan reached out and gently stroked Empress Changning's fine black hair. He knew the frustration in her heart and the pressure she had to face every day. If possible, the woman in front of him would definitely want to live the life she wanted. Unfortunately, Chengen failed to live up to everyone's expectations. The heavy burden of the country could only fall on her head. As the Empress, Changning was prepared to watch the top 32 matches personally. In order to ensure her safety, he Chuan put on a silver mask and followed in the carriage. He used his martial arts to change his breath. Because he had a feeling that today would not be peaceful. The street was in a state of shock. A figure jumped down from a tall building on the side of the street. With the light of a sword, he became one with the sword and shot toward the most luxurious carriage like an arrow leaving the bow. The whistling sound was incomparable. Hurry up. It was too fast. It was unbelievably fast. It was so fast that the surrounding guards did not even have time to react. In the blink of an eye, the assassin was already close to the carriage. His sword flashed like lightning and pierced through the carriage. Time seemed to have stopped. Countless people stared at the assassin in the carriage, feeling like they were in a dream. The assassin was a man in white. The moment his sword stabbed into the trunk, the expected scream did not happen. The trunk was also stronger than he had expected and did not break under his impact. It felt like the sword had stabbed into a sponge, and there was no force. At this moment, his expression changed. He took back the sword with his right hand and smacked the trunk with his right hand. Boom! An earth-shattering explosion rang out as the entire carriage exploded into pieces. A fist pierced through the carriage's wall and struck the white-robed man's chest. It was as fast as lightning and carried a violent gust of wind. Not good. The assassin in white cried out in his heart and hurriedly dodged to the side. However, he was still half a second too slow. The wind from the fist hit his left shoulder. In an instant, a huge force sent him flying backward and landing in the middle of the street. Whoosh! At this moment, the Imperial Guards finally reacted and were in an uproar. The four personal palace maids reacted the fastest. With a shout, they each drew their swords and flew off their horses, charging straight at the white-clothed man. Qin Yintian did not want to fall behind. He drew the blade at his waist, and with a furious roar, he charged toward the white-robed man. In an instant, the street was in chaos. Assassin. There's an assassin. Protect the Empress. Protect the Empress. The Golden Eagle guards shouted and surrounded the carriage. Not even a drop of water could get through. The sudden turn of events scared the commoners on both sides of the street, who were watching the commotion and fled in all directions. In the panic, people squeezed, and many people were pushed to the ground. They were trampled and screamed in pain. The scene was a mess. Empress Changning didn't panic. After all, she had the cultivation of a saint cultivator and was quite powerful. Furthermore, He Chuan was like a stabilizing force. As long as someone got close to her, they would be pushed aside by his great strength. Husband, why did you let him go on purpose? She knew that with He Chuan's strength, the assassin would not be able to escape. I want to know who is so bold. He Chuan was very angry because Empress Changning was still carrying two unborn children. Regardless of whether he could find the person behind the scenes, the assassin will die because he had left a wisp of tracking energy on the assassin. As long as he wanted to catch the other party, it would be very easy to find him. Fortunately, the streets of the capital were interconnected. Although there were many people on the streets, 
after the initial chaos, the crowd quickly dispersed. There were many injured people left on the ground, most of them elderly, women, and children. Qin Yintian arranged for his soldiers to send the injured to the nearest medical hall for treatment. Chapter 225 The assassin dashed left and right, his movements like the wind as he shuttled through the crowd. His sword was like a rainbow and lightning, whistling through the air. Wherever he passed, blood rained down, and screams rang out. The imperial guards fell one after another, their corpses lying on the ground and their blood forming a canal. There were too many imperial guards, but there was only one assassin. The white-robed man seemed to know that Qin Yintian and his four palace maids were not to be trifled with, so he intentionally avoided them and did not get entangled with them. He chose to kill the weaker imperial guards and escape. At this moment, Qin Yintian and the four female guards realized that having too many people was not good. The streets were narrow, and they couldn't fully display their skills. The assassin's technique was too fast, and his martial arts were too high. The guards were far from being his match. Often, when they squeezed past the guards and were about to catch up, the assassin had already changed direction and couldn't catch up. In the blink of an eye, the white-robed man carved out a bloody path and broke out of the encirclement of the imperial guards. He then leaped onto the roof of a building on the side of the street. Just as the man in white reached the top of the building and thought he could escape, a sudden change occurred. He heard a sharp shout, and a slim figure appeared before him. Before he could see his opponent clearly, the dazzling sword light had already split its attention and attacked him. It whistled through the air. Before the sword had arrived, a gloomy cold air had already arrived, and it was bone chilling. The man in white had just climbed up the roof and was not stable yet. He hurriedly waved his sword in his right hand and put it down. Clang! He pushed the sword to the side, but the force from the other party's sword forced him to take a step back. He instantly stepped on the air and fell off the roof. However, the white-robed man was also really impressive. He knew that if he landed on the street, he would definitely be surrounded by the Imperial Guards again, and it would be difficult to escape them. In the midst of danger, he turned his body in the air and hooked his feet on the corners of the eaves, using the upside-down golden hook. His head was hanging on the eaves, and his body was like a bow. The long sword rushed up from the eaves, through the eaves, and stabbed the enemy on the roof. Qin Yintian, who was on the street, could see it clearly. He shouted in shock, Young lady, be careful. The person who blocked the white-robed man on the roof was a woman dressed in martial arts attire. She was the third young lady of Jade Water Village, Wang Mengxi. She did not expect the assassin to be so skilled. Not only did he not go down, but he also counterattacked. She could not help but be shocked. She hurriedly flew back and raised her sword to block. Clang! The two swords collided, creating a cloud of dazzling sparks. In the midst of danger, Wang Mengxi blocked the man in white sword that had pierced through the roof. However, the strength of the man in white sword was surprisingly strong. The force directly sent her sword flying out of her hand. A sharp sword intent shot out from the tip of the sword and charged forward. Swoosh! The sword intent brushed past Wang Mengxi's face and cut off her headband. In an instant, her long hair spread out and danced in the wind, revealing her beautiful and tender face, which was as gorgeous as fire. The man in white forced Wang Mengxi to retreat with one strike of his sword. He was not going to let her off so easily. He followed closely behind her like a shadow. He struck again, aiming for her throat. It was quick and ruthless. His attack was ruthless and merciless. He did not show any mercy just because she was a beautiful woman. He was cold-blooded, heartless, and hard-hearted. Their martial arts were on completely different levels. The white-robed man's martial arts were far superior to Wang Mengxi's. Whether it was in terms of body movement, cultivation, or the speed of his sword, Wang Mengxi could not compare to him. Seeing that the other party's sword was coming at her, it was already too late to avoid it. She thought of something in a hurry and rolled onto the roof of the building, narrowly escaping the white-robed man's sword that cut his throat. Her body rolled down the inclined eaves, rolled down the roof, and fell straight down the street. Kill. At this moment, 
Qin Yin Tian had already leaped onto the roof of the building. He jumped high up and with a loud roar, he raised his saber with both hands and used the heaven and the earth genesis move. The long sword brought along an unparalleled wind and slashed down towards the white-robed man's head with great force. The man in white turned around and used the move raising fire to burn the sky. The sword in his hand swept up like a flash and collided with the long sword. Clang! In an instant, the sound of iron clashing rang out, causing countless sparks to fly. It was brilliant and dazzling. Almost at the same time, Qin Yintian's left palm struck towards the white-robed man. The wind from his palm whistled, containing the power of his thirty years of bitter cultivation. It was extremely powerful. The white-robed man didn't show any weakness and caught it with a palm. Bang! The two men's swords and palms clashed. Under the impact, the beam on the roof could not bear the considerable force of the two and collapsed. The two fell into the building together. In an instant, the sound of metal clashing came from the building, and it lasted for the time it took to brew a cup of tea before it became silent and no more movement could be heard. He Chuan had been following the assassin with his spiritual sense. Just as Qin Yin Tian was about to continue pursuing the fleeing assassin, a sound came from above him. He hurriedly looked up and saw a person rolling down from the roof, falling towards him. Qin Yin Tian jumped in shock. In a hurry, he didn't have time to think and hurriedly opened his arms to catch the falling person. A person who weighed more than a hundred pounds fell from a three-story building. The force of the fall was not to be underestimated. Qin Yin Tian did not know how powerful it was and was not prepared enough. He caught the person in time, but the result was that he was crushed to the ground by the person who rolled down. The weight almost suffocated him. The person who had rolled down the roof was, of course, Wang Mengxi. She held her head and closed her eyes, too scared to look at anyone. He Chuan didn't want to understand Qin Yin Tian's words. Who was behind the assassin? Why did he want to kill Empress Changning? In a courtyard. Lu Qingguan was panting heavily. He didn't expect today's assassination to be so difficult. If he was given another chance, he definitely wouldn't do such a stupid thing again. The money he took wasn't enough to be the down payment. The mysterious figure beside the Empress was at least a saint cultivator. If it weren't for his Qin Gong, he would have died today. However, he didn't know that He Chuan had let him go on purpose. It seems that there are some people coveting the great Zhou dynasty. Your Majesty, please continue to move forward. I will be back in a while. The more He Chuan cultivated, the more he could see the changes in the world. He was getting closer and closer to the ninth rank saint cultivator. He could destroy mountains with a thought, and his arms had the strength of tens of millions of pounds. It could even change the weather of a small area. However, it could not change the weather of an entire city, much less the entire Great Zhou Dynasty. However, it was still very easy to track down rats. Whoosh! 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 In the sky above the courtyard, there was a strange sound of wind. Who's there? Bien Jinan asked. Hee hee, so you're one of the four great villains of the pugilistic world. Very good. Where's your boss, Lu Qingguan? Do Rongua, the chief of the martial arts performance supervisor, suddenly appeared in the courtyard. He looked at the three people on the roof. Who the hell are you? Bien Jinnan looked at Do Rongua with a fierce look and cursed. You don't even know who I am. Do Rongua sneered. I'll capture you first, then I'll ask you who the mastermind behind the assassination of His Majesty is. Buzz. Do Rongwa made his move. Damn it, so it's a eunuch. I've long heard that the eunuchs of the great Zhou dynasty are powerful. Today, I'm going to see how powerful this eunuch is. Bien Jinnan directly pounced on Do Rongwa. Chapter, 226. Do Rongwa's Tiangang Gongzi technique was indestructible. He instantly destroyed Bien Jinnan's sword, and his palm landed on Bien Jinnan's chest. The gap between the two sides was too big. Bien Jinnan was no match for Do Rongwa. It was too fast. Lu Jiafeng and Yuan Qingwei couldn't save him in time. Damn eunuch, you're looking for death. 
Lu Jiafeng threw the baby in her hand at Dou Rongguo. Then, she joined hands with Yuan Chengwei and attacked Dou Rongguo. When Dou Rongguo saw that the other party had actually thrown a baby, his hands and feet could not help but loosen a little, and he reached out to catch the baby. At this moment, an iron staff suddenly appeared and stabbed at Dou Rongguo's heart. Dou Rongguo's eyes were filled with killing intent as he blocked the iron staff with one palm. What a powerful eunuch! He's a half step saint cultivator. Let's go. Lu Qingwen, the boss of the four great villains, directly attacked Dou Rongwa with sound waves. Dou Rongwa's Tiangang Gongzi technique was integrated into one, so this kind of sound wave attack could not hurt him at all. However, he had to use his true energy to protect the baby, which caused three of the four great evils to escape for a while, and he was only able to kill the fiend, Bian Jinnan. He threw the baby to the young eunuch beside him and pursued the three evildoers with all his might. Not only did he want to kill the three evildoers, but he also wanted to find out who was behind this. Buzz! Dou Rongwa's speed was extremely fast. In just a few jumps, he had already arrived thousands of meters away. The fourth of the four villains, Yuan Chengwei, was only a sixth rank Xientian cultivator. He was not Dou Rongwa's opponent at all. Fortunately, his Qin Dong was very good, so he moved very fast and actually ran ahead of Lu Jiafeng. Dou Rongwa swung his palm at Lu Jiafeng. Lu Jiafeng's face was filled with despair. They had underestimated this eunuch's power. The other party had only used one move to kill his third brother, and he couldn't even block one move. Just as Lu Jiafeng felt the terrifying aura, a black shadow flashed and blocked in front of Lu Jiafeng. The black shadow waved its palm, which landed on Dou Rongwa's palm. Boom! Terrifying shockwaves swept out in all directions. The great Zhou dynasty citizens below were affected as they were killed by the tremors. Dou Rongwa's face was filled with killing intent. Although this black shadow was not his match, he was still a half-step saint cultivator. It would not be easy for him to kill this person. At this time, Lu Qingwen, the big brother of the four great villains, saw that someone was helping him, so he immediately turned around and attacked Dou Rongwa. The three experts immediately started fighting. Dou Rongwa was furious, and he performed the tenth position of the Big Dipper Virgin technique. He wanted to kill these two people as soon as possible. Boom! 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 The terrifying fluctuations alarmed countless people. They were extremely shocked. They were on the outskirts of the capital, not far from the northern Shaolin Temple. Someone actually dared to fight here. Wasn't he afraid of attracting the attention of the Shaolin Temple? What terrifying experts! The three of them are all half a step saint cultivator. That person is actually Lu Qingwen. He actually wants to join forces with the black clothed man to deal with that middle aged man. Who is that middle aged man? I've never seen him before. Who's that mysterious black shadow? His martial arts are so awkward. It seems like he doesn't dare to use all his strength. Dou Rongwa was a little anxious. A monk from the Shaolin Temple had appeared out of nowhere. He Chuan silently watched this battle. The people of the Shaolin Temple are actually so restless and selfish. He Chuan felt that this matter had something to do with the Shaolin Temple, so he waved his hand. The next moment, for silver needles shot out. The silver needles shuttled through space and instantly pierced the throats of Lu Jiafeng and Yuan Qingwei, who were still watching the battle. Then, two silver needles pierced the throats of Lu Qingwen and the mysterious man in black. The martial swordsmen who were still watching the battle were instantly shocked. How did Lu Qingwen die all of a sudden? And that Yuan Qingwei and Lu Jiafeng too? That's right. This Lu Qingwen is a half-step saint cultivator. His divine power is unparalleled. Only a few people can suppress him. How did he die? Who is that man in black? There were many high-level Xientian experts among the spectators. They were all very confused. Who's that middle-aged man? A powerful energy surrounds him, and ordinary people are no match for him. His cultivation is terrifying beyond compare. How did he kill Lu Qingwen? They were all very puzzled. 
They racked their brains but still couldn't understand. The guards in the dark were both shocked and excited. They had witnessed with their own eyes the chief of the martial arts performance supervisor, Do Rongwa, fight against two great masters. Suddenly, Lu Chengwen and another mysterious man in black died tragically. Without exception, Lu Jiafeng and Yuan Qingwei also died. It was definitely not Do Rong was doing, it was very likely. Could it be Hai Duki? Hai Duki was extremely mysterious. He was not well known in the Great Song Dynasty, but in the Great Zhou Dynasty, he was a terrifying existence. Especially for the guards, they had vaguely heard of him. The person who slept beside the Empress. It was said that his strength was monstrous. The news of the Empress of Great Zhou being assassinated on the street spread very quickly. However, there were no accidents. This was within his expectations, but also beyond his expectations. The Empress of the Zhou Dynasty would definitely have experts protecting her, so it would definitely not be easy to assassinate her. However, this assassin still dared to assassinate her in the street. Either he had absolute confidence, or he was blinded by hatred. That's why he would do such a reckless thing. In everyone's eyes, it was definitely the latter. I heard that the assassin didn't even get close to the carriage. Sister Kai Yen, why didn't Master tell me that he was going home to visit his relatives? I'll go back with Master. Lia pouted her little mouth, feeling that her master's family was her family. Young Master said that it's just a distant relative's birthday and there's no need to bring us along. Moreover, Sister Lia has a competition today and will definitely be busy. However, young master told me to tell Sister Lia not to care too much about winning or losing and just do your best. Kai Lian didn't even need to draft a script when she lied, but she still felt a little guilty. Fortunately, Lia didn't think about it in any other way. Oh, master still doesn't think well of me. Lia was even more depressed. She still wanted to fight for first place. However, she knew very well that it was extremely difficult to fight for the number one spot in the world. It might even be a battle between saint cultivators. Her Majesty has arrived. Qin Yin Tian, who was wearing the radiant armor, led 3,000 black armored guards to the competition ground. This group of soldiers were clearly elites. They were specially dispatched here because of the assassination just now. Dozens of imperial court experts stood around the constructed grandstand. The killing intent on their bodies was very obvious. Even the weakest of them was a ninth-rank Xientian cultivator. The blue-robed eunuch in charge of the rites held a horsetail whisk in his hand and swept his eagle-like gaze across the crowd. Judging from his aura, he was half a step away from the peak of the saint cultivator realm. Only the emperor of the great Zhou dynasty was capable of such a display. Leah's eyes twinkled as she watched this scene. She had heard that this was the only empress of the great Zhou dynasty. If she were to become the female king of the Xiongnu tribe, she would definitely be as impressive as the empress of the Zhou dynasty. Lia was not the only one who was envious. Everyone else was envious of this aura. Otherwise, why would most people want to sit in a supreme position? Who didn't want to rule the world? To become the emperor. Chapter 227. Chiming slowly got off the carriage. She was wearing a golden crown with a real dragon carved on it. She wore white clothes with a five-clawed golden dragon embroidered with golden threads. Her beautiful face was majestic, and her slightly raised belly had a hint of motherly radiance. He Chuan was wearing a silver mask and a black suit. He exuded the imposing aura of a saint cultivator. Because he had deliberately changed his aura, other than a few people who knew his identity, no one else knew that He Chuan was the state duke. The husband of Empress Changning. So strong. Everyone's expression changed drastically when they saw He Chuan's aura. The empress of the Zhou dynasty was rumored to be a saint cultivator. They didn't expect her husband to be a saint cultivator as well. And he seemed to be stronger than ordinary saint cultivators. No wonder the assassin's assassination failed. This mysterious man was too powerful. As He Chuan was wearing a silver mask, no one could see his true face. They did not dare to test him with their aura either and could only guess silently in their hearts. Who was this mysterious man? Everyone, please begin. 
Empress Chongming held He Chuan's hand. The two of them sat on the main seat and opened the door to the people below. The reason why He Chuan had released the aura of a saint cultivator was to warn them not to act rashly. Anyone who dared to assassinate the Empress would not have a good end. If He Chuan hadn't appeared, some people might have had some ideas. But now, if they wanted to make a move, they had to consider whether they could survive. Wow, the Empress of the Zhou Dynasty is so cool. Leah's beautiful eyes were filled with admiration. She had to admit that her father's presence and grandeur could not compare to Empress Changning. This was the aura of the Great Empire. Activate the formation. Qin Yintian gestured, and a few experts stepped forward to activate the protective array. The battle today was destined to be even more powerful. To avoid harming the innocent, the imperial court had to set up the array overnight. He Chuan passed down this formation. He got this formation as a checked in reward, but had no use for it, so he gave it to Empress Changning. The first battle was between Zhou Haran, the senior disciple of Ming Jian Peak, and Wan Juanxiong from Chuanjin sect. Both of them were half step to saint cultivators and were famous experts in the martial world. Even more coincidentally, both were sword experts. He wondered if the imperial court had done sufficient research to make the first match extremely exciting. Within the protective formation. I heard that Brother Zhou's sword is very fast. I want to see it for myself. Wan Juanxiong was only holding a wooden sword. This wooden sword was a rare peach tree thunder wood that only appeared once in a hundred years. The peach tree thunder wood was split open by the lightning from the heavens, and ghosts were deeply afraid of it. It was the most powerful magical object to ward off evil. Because the message of the Thunder God and Lightning Mother sealed their spiritual bodies on the Thunder Wood, it was highly intimidating to spirit bodies and could be used as a magical object to protect the residents. The people believed that the trees that were struck down by lightning had the effect of exorcism. Since light could drive away all the ghosts and evil spirits from the tree, the other ghosts did not dare to approach it when they saw it again. As the Thunder God had struck it, it had the innate effect of suppressing and warding off evil in Daoist talismans. They also used thunder wood to make magic tools, such as the thunder wood date seal. Zhou Haran held a three-foot-long Qingfeng sword in his hand. Ming Jian Peak had no lack of famous swords. As the eldest senior brother, the sword in his hand was the world's most refined weapon. The blade was three feet and seven inches long, and the net weight was 7.13 pounds. It was called the Crystal Lunar Sword. Enough nonsense, fight. There was no nonsense. Zhou Haran turned into a bolt of lightning, and his sword technique poured down like moonlight. The sword technique was agile and swift, like a green snake swimming in the air in clouds. When the sword gets its way, the rocks crumble. Good swordsmanship. One Juanxiong's peachwood sword transformed into thousands of swords and he waved several yellow talismans at the same time. His Tao energy circulated and went against Zhou Haoran's. Normally, a Taoist could only choose between sword cultivation and Tao cultivation, but Wan Juanxiong had clearly entered the level of great sword cultivation. In addition to his first-class swordsmanship, he also had some achievements in Tao. Wan Juanxiong's peachwood sword spun and exchanged a blow with Zhou Haoran. The peachwood sword turned into four. His technique was clean and neat, and his figure was unpredictable. In fact, there was only one real peachwood sword. The rest were all hidden swords. He rotated the four hidden blades so that they were intertwined and flowing like clouds and water. However, Zhou Haran was fighting against Wan Juanxiong's peachwood sword with one hand and had to be careful of four hidden blades, but his face was not flustered at all. With the help of his brisk movements, he often disappeared inexplicably and then reappeared unexpectedly. Of course, half-step saint cultivators were also divided into different realms they were divided into the early stage, the middle stage, and the peak. For example, Wan Juanxiong and Zhou Haran were almost in the middle stage. They were both one step away from the peak, and could see the barrier that people yearned for. If he could break through successfully, he would become a true saint cultivator. At that time, no one would be able to compete. The road of martial arts became smoother. The two of them exchanged blows, and for a moment, it was difficult to tell who was winning. 
figures flew around in the field, and sword radiances surged in all directions. The sword intent shot into the protective barrier, causing water to splash. The system's products were indeed of high quality. The attack of a half-step saint cultivator couldn't break the formation at all. The martial arts practitioners present could not help but exclaim in their hearts. The great Zhou dynasty was getting stronger and stronger, and it would probably suppress the martial arts world for many more years. I've only been half-step into saint cultivator for three years. I've made some progress, but I haven't reached the peak threshold. What about you? Zhou Haran's breathing became more and more rapid. It was obvious that he was at a disadvantage. Wan Juansheng smiled slightly, and his hand quickly rotated, and the hidden blade also became six, I'm about the same as you, but I feel that I'm going to enter my peak condition after today's battle. Congratulations on getting the answer. The condition is that you can really win today's competition. Zhou Haran added. Zhou Haran suddenly waved his sleeves, and two purple sword intent shot out. This sword intent was a true lost art. So young, but you can actually use the Mingjian Peak's purple cloud saint sword. Wan Juansheng sneered, and at the same time, he hit Zhou Haran with his palm, like a celestial being touching the top of his head. However, how could Zhou Haran allow someone to touch his head? He shouted angrily and swung his sword, forcing Zhou Haran to retreat three steps. He took a step forward and threw a punch with his left hand. Then, he heavily punched Zhou Haran's chest. Again. Another punch made Zhou Haran spit out blood. Wan Juansheng smashed Zhou Haran to the ground. Three flying daggers flew out of Zhou Haran's sleeve, forcing Wan Juansheng to step back. He barely managed to escape and retreat to the side. At this moment, he was covered in blood and his clothes were torn. He was no longer as calm as before. Break. Wan Juansheng glared at him. The fog that had surrounded them dispersed. The wind, the chirping of birds, and the slight chill of the autumn night all returned in an instant. Wan Juansheng won. He was not too surprised because Wan Juansheng's strength was slightly higher than Zhou Haoran. If he didn't win, then he should be the one to be surprised. The people on Wan Juansheng's side started to cheer for him. Chapter 228 the match was indeed fascinating. Empress Changning clapped her hands hard. The duel between the two was indeed interesting. Whether it was swordsmanship or other things, it was all stunning. They're indeed good. Their basic skills are very solid, and they're well known in the martial arts world. Their sword moves are gorgeous enough, but they're a bit flashy. He Chuan admired them, but he always felt their martial arts skills were too different. They didn't return to their original state and always wanted to end the battle with a gorgeous move. When they could simplify things, they would really not be far from breaking through and becoming saint cultivators. Today's match was indeed more exciting. If Her Majesty were to take the field, she would probably win the championship. Under the nurturing of Hichuan's various elixirs, Empress Chining became a second-rank saint cultivator. Hee <laughs> hee, my husband has also learned to say nice things. Even if I'm not pregnant, it would be difficult for me to become number one in the world. It's more likely that my husband will take action. Empress Changning's pretty face revealed a smile. It would be more appropriate for her to enter the top five. It would not be a joke wanting to obtain first place. Not to mention the hidden power of the seven major sects, even the major families and mountain villas had hidden themselves very deeply. Previously, when the 9,000 year old Wei Jing Chun made his move, he did not really affect the foundations of the seven major sects. This group of hidden experts did not make a move. Otherwise, the imperial court might not have been able to suppress the seven great sects. Did these experts not usually appear? It was because they believed that they could not meddle in worldly matters, especially the changes in dynasties. Otherwise, it would affect their state of mind, and it would be easy for them to go berserk. Number one in the world. If all the hidden experts in the world come out, it'll probably be a battle between us saint cultivators, or someone might have already broken through to the saint cultivator level. He Chuan had always been very careful. The world was so big, and there were still foreigners. No one knew what their civilization was like, 
whether martial arts flourished, or whether firearms could threaten saint cultivators. Everything was unknown. Husband is as calm as ever. There are too few people who can reach your state of mind. I wonder when husband will break through to the saint cultivator realm. Empress Changning was actually very curious about He Chuan's strength. After so many years, what realm had the man beside her reached? It's only one step away. When the water flows and the channel is formed, I don't think it'll be too far away, although He Chuan's expression could not be seen from his mask, there was a slight fluctuation in his tone. It was not because he was proud, but mainly because he wanted to see what level he could rise to after breaking through to the Saint Cultivator level. Was that true cultivation? And is the above the end or just the beginning? Look, your disciple is about to go on stage. Empress Changning pointed at Lia, who was in the ring. She was curious as to how much this princess of the grasslands had learned from Hichuan. Was she as strong as when she became a half-step saint cultivator? Wandering Cultivator, by Li Feng. Heartless Sword, Lia. The two people in the ring reported their names to each other. Pfft. Kai Lian couldn't help but spit out her tea. Just now, Lia said she wanted to come up with a nickname in the pugilistic world. Kai Lian had thought she was joking. She didn't expect to find a nickname, but what the hell was this heartless sword? The people below the stage also started to discuss animatedly, most of them mocking Liao. It's interesting that you dare to call yourself heartless at such a young age. You're just a barbarian from the outer realm. How dare you talk about the heartless sword? What a joke. Bai Li Feng, quickly finish off this little kid with one move. Let her go back to the grassland to drink milk. This little disciple of yours is quite interesting. Could it be that your husband gave her this name? Even Empress Changning couldn't help but laugh. She didn't understand why Lia had called herself that. Only those experts who had genuinely forgotten about love could be called emotionless. And Lia had probably never even been in love before, so how could she be heartless? Without experiencing love, how could one be emotionless? Ruthless? My sword can be called peerless. The sword dance was peerless, and this sword was no longer human, no sword. You talk too much nonsense. Lia was a little unhappy at being jeered at. What ultimate sword? What ultimate world? It did not matter to her. The evil warding sword technique that He Chuan had taught her was the ultimate sword technique. Bai Li Feng danced with his sword. The sword intent condensed and did not dissipate. His entire body was like a fallen leaf drifting away, and the sword in his hand was not stained by a single speck of dust. The man was like a sword, and the sword was like the man. The sword intent broke the space in front of him, like the clear sky after snow. The wind and clouds in the world were both real and illusionary. The explanation was that it was both true and false. The heavens and earth were boundless. Falling Meteor Lia dared not be slow in the face of such a mighty sword. She immediately used the fastest move of the evil warding sword technique. Shooting star-like shuttle, dewdrop dreambreaking, falling strike, cloud-slaying evil goo. A strong wind blew. A drop of dew rose with the wind. The water autumn sword in Lia's hand moved forward against the dew, but it did not pierce through. While the people in the pugilistic world were talking, they could not help but sigh in their hearts when they saw Leah's ghostly sword. They didn't know where her master came from. In the arena. Bai Li Feng's sword intent was like a tide, as majestic as the ocean, sweeping towards Lia. The sword had no technique, only sword intent. Back then, he had held the sword in the sea for half a year before comprehending this move that had no purpose. The autumn waters arrived, and hundreds of rivers flowed in the south of the sea. Lia was like a small boat in the ocean. The two sword energies met, and a shooting star passed through the sea. The two of them passed by each other. A strand of long hair fell. I've lost. As expected of the heartless sword. Bai Li Feng laughed at himself. It was a pity that this move of his was intentional and formless and could not be used as a true absolute sword. With time, if his sword arts and martial arts realm reached a higher level, he might be able to become a true sword of fatality. 
Seeing that Liao finally knew how to play to her strengths and avoid her weaknesses, He Chuan nodded in relief. Liao would definitely lose if she chose to fight head-on with her opponent. This was because he had said more than once that the evil warding swordsmanship specialty was its speed. The sword was like a ghost. If one couldn't understand the essence of the sword technique, then they were destined not to go far on the road of Marshal Dao. What? Bai Lifeng actually lost to a little girl from the plains. Did you see that? That girl's sword is so fast that I can't even see how she attacked. That's right. I didn't expect that the outer realm barbarians could also comprehend this kind of sword technique. We can't underestimate them. The absolute sword isn't absolute, but Bai Li Fong has enough experience. The crowd below the stage began to discuss enthusiastically again. They had not expected Liya to win. It seems that the sixth princess has already mastered the evil warding sword technique. Empress Changning said with a nod. Asoaso. The top sixteen is her limit. Bai Li Feng is too focused on his will and has forgotten that the essence of the sword is a move. He Chuan shook his head. To put it bluntly, Bai Li Feng still pursued magnificence. His sword intent seemed majestic, but it was only one move. As long as it could be broken or dodged, then Bai Li Feng was destined to be unable to win. That's true. Without any moves, it's just empty talk. It's the same as losing the chance to win. Empress Changning nodded in agreement. Liya, who had returned to her seat, immediately shared her joy with Kai Lien. Chapter 229 Sister Kai Lien, how's the name of the Heartless Sword? Isn't it very powerful? Liya asked arrogantly. Your strength is not bad, but this title is lacking. People rarely called themselves Heartless. Kai Lien said, shaking her head. Liya quickly asked why she could not be called Ruthless. Kai Lien explained the reason. The culture of the Central Plains was extensive and profound, so it was normal for Liya to be unclear about some things. However, since the name of the Heartless Sword had already been announced, it could not be changed. Otherwise, wouldn't he be slapping her own face? It's over. If I knew this would happen, I would have called it the Sentimental Sword. Leah's little face was bitter as she felt her naming sense was too embarrassing. She should have discussed this with her master. He Chuan reads books every day, so he must be cultured. The match continued. Wudong clan's Nangong Chaoyang vs Northern Spear King Sikong Changfong. It was another battle that was the focus of attention. It's a good spear. You're very strong. Nangong Chaoyang praised him. It was rare for a young man like him to have such a good spear. As the representative of the Wudang clan, he had to guide the younger generation. Only then could it show the foundation of a large sect. Many thanks for the senior's praise. Sikong Changfeng cupped his hands and said. But it's a pity. Nangong Chaoyang let out a soft sigh. He only needed to turn his hand slightly, and Sikong Changfeng, along with his spear, would be spun. This move was already at the peak of a half-step saint cultivator. Sikong Changfeng was incomparably shocked. He had practiced his spear arts every day in the Valley of Medicine and had managed to master each of the eight spear arts, from the first to eighth and the other way around. Sikong Changfeng's power had significantly increased, but a single move from his opponent still suppressed him. No. Sikong Changfeng gritted his teeth and suddenly let go of his spear. He stepped on the spear's shaft with one foot and jumped up, punching at Nangong Chaoyang with his fist. Return. Nangong Chaoyang stretched out his hand and waved his fist, sending Sikong Changfeng flying back. Sikong Changfeng was punched in the middle. He wiped the sweat from his forehead and panted heavily. As a gunman, don't give up your gun easily unless you can get it back. Nangong Chaoyang's heavy fist struck out once again, hitting the long spear away. Sikong Changfeng tapped his feet and flew up, instantly catching the long spear. He then landed on the ground and slightly bent over to look at Sikong Changfeng. Nangong Chaoyang's Tai Chi palm has improved quite a bit. Zhang Junbao, the leader of the Wudang sect, praised with a smile. Nangong Chaoyang looked at Zhang Junbao, the leader of the Wudang clan, 
and said respectfully, Master, you're too kind. If it were you, I'm afraid my Tai Chi palm would be broken with a single finger. That's too exaggerated. However, I still need to work hard. Zhang Junbao shook his head. The master and disciple echoed each other's words, and they wanted everyone to see the style of the Wudong clan. Nangong Chaoyang turned around and looked at Sikong Changfeng with a stern expression. Junior, you have one more chance. Hold your spear well this time. Sikong Changfeng didn't reply. His right hand clenched his long spear, and his eyes were cold. He's like a hungry wolf. Zhang Junbao took a sip of fragrant tea. Rise. Nangong Chaoyang took two steps forward with all his strength. The muscles on his body instantly expanded, and true energy surrounded him. It was flowing with a faint golden light. This was the Wudong clan's Vajra barrier. It was second only to the Buddhist sect's indestructible diamond divine power, a protective barrier. Only the sharpest spear could break the Vajra barrier. Take my spear. Sikong Changfeng roared and jumped out with his spear. What a fast speed! Someone in the hall exclaimed. In the beginning, they all thought this was just a ronin who had not seen the world. But the first shot was already shocking enough, and this shot could be called amazing. Even Nangong Chaoyang did not dare to catch it with his bare hands. The golden light on his body became even more intense. Sikong Changfeng appeared in front of Nangong Chaoyang at lightning speed and quickly thrust his spear forward. A clang sound was heard. It was as if he had really stabbed into metal. But other than the clanging sound. In addition, there was a subtle sound. Zhang Junbao, the leader of the Wudang clan, had a smile of admiration on his face. Nangong Chaoyang furrowed his brows. Even Sikong Changfeng didn't hear any weak sound. Because it was too soft, it was like the sound of an eggshell being gently knocked. It was just a crack after the collision. However, what Sikong Changfeng broke was the Vitra barrier. In the blink of an eye, Sikong Changfeng's entire body was sent flying once again. Nangong Chaoyang raised his hand and waved his palm, throwing the silver moon spear out. The spear stabbed into the marble of the arena. Sikong Changfeng had used up all his energy. He closed his eyes helplessly and waited to land heavily on the ground and embarrass himself. Nangong Chaoyang came to the other party's side and reached out to support him. Junior is sincerely convinced. Sikong Changfeng cupped his fists. In this battle, the Wudang clan won the battle and the people. It might have been a coincidence, but after the Wudang sect, it was the Shaolin Temple's turn. Kong Ming of the Shaolin Temple versus Lu Yi, the heroine of the pugilistic world. If Master is willing to admit defeat, then it won't hurt our relationship. Lu Yi said. Female benefactor, you have such a big tone. Kong Ming jumped up and struck down with his eyebrow-raising staff. The aura was so shocking that the calm air around them started to fluctuate. Lu Yi instantly pulled out her three-foot-long Qingfeng sword. With a flash of sword light, she had already met the long staff. Female benefactor is indeed good at martial arts, but you need to speak with enough respect. Kong Ming's tone was slightly surprised. You're about the same age as me, so don't use the tone of an elder to talk to a junior. Lu Yi was obviously very angry. She turned around, and her sword intent went straight for Kong Ming. Kong Ming held the stick in his right hand and raised his left hand slightly. He suddenly swung it at the front row. It was the Shaolin Temple's ultimate technique, the Buddha's palm. He forcefully dispelled the sword intent. This works too. Lu Yi was shocked. She didn't expect that the young-looking little monk would be so powerful. Kong Ming held a long stick in front of him, holding a Buddhist ritual in his left hand, and his monk robe fluttered without wind. This is the absolute difference between their cultivation levels. There's no other way. He Chuan shook his head and said softly. Although Lu Yi had been a half-step saint cultivator before, she was only a mid-stage half-step saint cultivator. She was still a step away from the peak. The little monk of the Shaolin Temple, Kong Ming, was young, but he was already half a step away from the pinnacle of the saint cultivator realm. 
If the female benefactor is willing to admit defeat, then the competition is over. Kong Ming sent the message back to Lu Yi. Little master, you must be joking. Lu Yi pulled out seven sword flowers and prepared to use her trump card, the West Chu Sword Song. It was just that she rarely used it. Her West Chu Sword Song would only be useful at important times. This time, it would not work so well. Suddenly, the bright space rod was swung. Lu Yi, who was thirty feet away, was far enough from the eyebrow-raising staff. However, she felt that her back had been hit hard, and fell to the ground. She wanted to get up again but felt she was suppressed by a powerful force, and he couldn't move no matter what. I've already said there's an absolute difference between our cultivation levels. There's no other way. Kong Ming said nonchalantly, as if Lu Yi, who was lying on the ground, had nothing to do with him. Detestable. Lu Yi pushed her sword against the ground and tried to stand up. However, she could only kneel on one knee with all her might. When you travel the pugilistic world in the future, you must remember that if there is a difference in the realm, don't take any chances and just run away quickly. Kong Ming also put away his Ibra Zabrist stick in the style of the Shaolin Temple. Chapter 230 After today's competition, He Chuan was ready to go to the northern Shaolin Temple in the suburbs to take a look. He dared to lay his hands on Empress Changning, so don't blame him for being merciless. Dark clouds gathered in the sky. As if a storm was coming. It was like a black dragon coiling around. Eunuch Yang, let's go. He Chuan didn't retract his aura. He wanted everyone to know what would happen to the people of the northern Shaolin Temple. Everyone was also shocked as they looked at the carriage in the distance. The Duke's aura is really powerful. The true energy in my body is scattered, and I can't muster any strength. Leah's gaze became even more determined. She wanted to become stronger. When a strong opponent appeared, she would not be affected. She would only go against the current and advance courageously. To the mountain 300 miles northwest. He Chuan, who was sitting in the carriage, suddenly had an idea. He instructed Eunuch Yang to continue moving forward. Yes, Hai Duke He. Eunuch Yang started to speed up the carriage. An hour later, the carriage arrived at the mountain gate. It was a narrow flight of stairs that was very high. There were 9,999 steps. It was newly built. The scenery here was like a painting. The mountain range rose and fell, and there was a clear lake at the foot of the mountain. The vegetation by the lake was fresh, and the spiritual energy was dense. As far as the eye could see, ancient trees towered into the sky, spiritual grass could be seen everywhere, and a few pavilions were located in the mountains, with spring water flowing beside them. It was simple and natural. Duke He, shall we go? Eunuch Yang asked. He was also an accomplished man. Now that he was a half-step saint cultivator, he could naturally see this place was not ordinary and that there were experts stationed there. Let's go. Yes, sir. Eunuch Yang pulled the carriage straight into the mountains. When they reached the three thousand steps, an invisible barrier stopped the carriage. He Chuan gently pointed, and the carriage silently blended into the invisible barrier. The entire carriage entered it. A ray of light at the end of the tunnel. Eunuch Yang looked at the scene in front of him and was stunned. What entered his eyes was a series of golden and resplendent pagodas. The statues in the pagoda were all made of gold and brass. He didn't know how much gold was used. Around the pagoda, there were thousand-year pine trees that emitted pure spiritual energy. Cultivating here would definitely be faster than one could imagine. On the square, countless monks were training. Some trained their bodies, studied Buddhism, and wandered the virtual sky world. Master, why is there a northern Shaolin temple here? Eunuch Yang found it strange. He often chatted with the eunuchs of the West Imperial Censor, but he did not know that the Northern Shaolin Temple was a whole new world. It was so magnificent. Now, there was a Northern Shaolin Temple outside of it. There was definitely something wrong. This is the real Northern Shaolin Temple. They are hiding here. Interesting. He Chuan said calmly. 
this small world was probably the work of an expert. There were perhaps gods and devils here. The dilapidated northern Shaolin temple outside was probably a cover. This was the genuine one. Now he finally saw it. At that moment, the northern Shaolin temple also discovered the carriage. The chief monk of the Arhat Hall of the northern Shaolin temple squinted his face, and his eyes were filled with killing intent. The northern Shaolin temple had sealed off the mountain, but someone had still broken in. He could not let this person spread the news that the northern Shaolin temple was here, or it would definitely attract covetous eyes. The northern Shaolin temple had a long history and many treasures. He could not let these covetous people know the location of the Shaolin temple. Boom! The first master of Arhat Hall made his move, it was the sky Prajna Palm. The power to lift the heavens, the power to pull the mountains, the unparalleled energy. Buzz! When the small mountain approached the carriage, it actually turned into quicksand and slowly drifted away from the sky. His strength was terrifying. The Arhat Hall's chief couldn't believe his eyes. He didn't even see the man in the carriage attack. Amitba. Shushu. May I ask where you are from? The abbot of the northern Shaolin temple appeared. The carriage headed towards the Mahavira hall of the northern Shaolin temple and finally stopped in front of the hall. The demons of the outer realms are rampant. As a member of the human race, the northern Shaolin temple should descend the mountain to eliminate the demons and protect the great Zhou dynasty. He Chuan said calmly. You're being too serious, benefactor. We're monks, and we pay attention to the purity of the six roots. We've long separated ourselves from the secular world, and whatever happens in the world has nothing to do with us. Please go back, benefactor. The abbot of the northern Shaolin temple said, holding a Buddhist salute. The eminent monks of the northern Shaolin temple were all disgusted. This duke is not asking you for a favor, but ordering you. He Chuan said in an aggressive tone. The aura contains made all the eminent monks of the northern Shaolin temple tremble in fear. You are the duke. The abbot of the northern Shaolin temple was shocked. This time, He Chuan did not say anything. That's right, the one in the carriage is Duke He. You bunch of monks, what do you mean by, six roots of purity has nothing to do with the secular world? Look at these statues, they're all made of gold. This is not what you call having nothing to do with the secular world. Eunuch Yang raised his head and said arrogantly. Amitba, you're too kind. These are all worldly possessions and can be found all over the mountains. The northern Shaolin temple saw that no one was using them, so we used them to make statues. We don't need anyone to donate gold or silver. The abbot of the northern Shaolin temple said nervously. Eunuch Yang snorted twice. This group of monks was all fat and big-eared. Who knew how much meat they had eaten? What? Don't you want to go? He Chuan's calm voice sounded again. The eminent monks of the northern Shaolin temple looked at each other. Amitba. We are monks. We must serve the Buddha and listen to his Dharma. The abbot of the northern Shaolin temple refused without a second thought. Since you want to listen to the Buddha's Dharma, I'll send you to the Buddha. This is not the Buddha realm, after all. It's too far away from the Buddha. He Chuan's indifferent words sent a chill down the spines of the thousands of people from the northern Shaolin temple, as if they had fallen into an abyss. Huffed. A strong wind blew, uprooting the thousand-year-old ancient tree. The golden pagoda also rose from the ground and flew into the distance. Dark clouds covered the sky, and the weather changed. It was a scene of doomsday. The eyes of the eminent monks of the northern Shaolin temple turned red when they saw this. You starred from the imperial court. You destroyed the foundation of the northern Shaolin temple and killed our disciples. I'm going to subdue the demon today. The chief monk of the Arhat Hall of the northern Shaolin temple was furious. I've killed your disciples from the northern Shaolin temple. I've also killed a monk before. His name is Xian Cai. He Chuan said calmly. What? You killed Xian Cai. The masters of the northern Shaolin temple was furious. Master Xian Cai of the northern Shaolin temple had been killed along with the four great villains. 
The worst thing was that someone had said that Xian Ci had an affair with one of them. This was simply ruining the reputation of the northern Shaolin temple that had been around for thousands of years. Kill, kill this dog. Shaolin temple disciples, kill with me. The numerous monks of Shaolin temple rushed toward the carriage with a murderous aura. Xian Ci tried to assassinate the empress. You guys can follow him too. He Chuan said indifferently. As soon as he finished speaking, he no longer held back and activated the Sunflower Bible, Boundless Heaven and Earth. He was a little puzzled. Why hadn't the gods and devils appeared yet? Vidra subduing demon formation, Shaolin Temple Disciples, follow me. Chapter, 231 No one present was a match for He Chuan. Pfft. In an instant, blood splattered everywhere. Cold and desolate. Eunuch Yang, let's go. Yes, Duke He. Boom. 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 This part of the valley caved in, and two large mountains collapsed, completely covering the valley in the middle. No one knew that this was the burial ground of the northern Shaolin Temple of the Great Zhou Dynasty. The heavens and earth were turned upside down, and the world was turned upside down. The cold demonic light against the four absolutes of chaos. With just one strike, half of the great Zhou dynasty's capital was destroyed. Millions of people died under this attack. A green-robed figure appeared in the air and stood above the great Zhou dynasty's Taiha Palace. The world was silent. Everyone looked at the green-robed figure. This time, they finally saw him clearly. He wore a green robe, had a long face, and his eyes were calm. They were like the boundless starry sky, incomparably deep. They also heaved a sigh of relief. Executed. In the smoke and dust, a figure that was like a god and a demon appeared. He was completely naked and had a head full of red hair. He was like a fire god that was born from the flames, and his body was surrounded by terrifying flames. His bare skin contained infinite power. However, his indestructible muscles were covered in bloody marks. His face was filled with a monstrous killing intent. The terrifying killing intent was like a flood that surged towards the sky. All the living creatures nearby were killed instantly, and their souls were destroyed by the terrifying killing intent. This was the outer realm. He activated the four ultimate techniques of heaven chaos with all his might, but everything collapsed before he even made a move. He had the power to destroy everything. He could kill gods and Buddhas in his way. He wanted to completely destroy the person who had come. He wanted to crush He Chuan under his feet and rub him repeatedly. There was another person who wanted to kill He Chuan, the true abbot of the northern Shaolin temple. He was eager to try. The abbot in front of him was just a puppet. A powerful energy rolled in the sky above the great Zhou dynasty. The elder of the Dharma house immediately retreated. His big brother was about to attack, so it was better for him to stay away from him. The elder of the Dharma house, the outer realm god fiend, and the true master of the northern Shaolin temple had become brothers. The people who were watching the show behind He Chuan were somewhat shocked. That divine power had come from a hundred miles away and had even injured the outer realm god fiend. To be able to launch an attack from a hundred miles away and injure an otherworldly god fiend, it meant that the duke of the great Zhou dynasty's attack power was much stronger than his. He Chuan stood above Taiha Palace and looked at the Outer Realm God Fiend, the Elder of the Dharma House, and the true master of the Northern Shaolin Temple. He moved. His target was the Other Realm God Fiend. Whoosh! Green smoke curled up. The Other Realm God Fiend was shocked. He activated his undying demon body with all his might and used his fire and thunder ganchi at the same time. Dog thief, this god will kill you. His strength was completely released, and his essence, aura, and spirit had reached the peak. His strength was the pinnacle of this world. Even if his clansmen attacked him, they could not kill him. The terrifying power shook the space. His body was covered in stellar energy. Even if a diamond entered three feet of his body, it would be ground into powder by the stellar energy. However, to the Divine General's horror, a hand broke through his fire and thunder gongchi and arrived in front of him. 
the hand broke into his sea of consciousness from the space between his eyebrows. The outer realm godfiends were in danger. The elder of the Dharma house was furious. He wanted to save his big brother. The abbot of the northern Shaolin temple and the elder of the Dharma house attacked He Chuan with all their might. The sleeve on He Chuan's right arm exploded and turned into powder. There were even bloody marks on his skin. It didn't matter. This was because he didn't have any defense and was attacking with all his might just to kill the weakest outer realm god fiend. If he killed the people of the great Zhou dynasty, he would die. Assassinating Empress Changming was also a capital crime. He Chuan's hand directly entered the mind of the other realm god fiend. He wanted to capture the divine soul in the other realm god fiend's sea of consciousness. The head of the other realm god fiend exploded. Even though he had the unparalleled undying demon body, he couldn't block the Sunflower Bible. He Chuan's palm appeared in front of everyone. In his hand was a transparent figure that was half a foot tall and no different from an outer realm god fiend. He had three rings of light protecting him. It's actually the three colored holy light protecting his body. Where did he find the three colored holy light? Elder Song Qing of the Wudang sect was extremely shocked. The three colored divine light was a rare and wondrous item in the world. It was born from the world and could protect the soul. There were even rumors that the three colored holy light could protect the reincarnation of the soul. The outer realm god fiends had three colored divine light. No wonder they could always be heavily injured and not die. The world destroying demon body did not have such power. He Chuan tried to grab the three colored divine light with both hands, but he grabbed nothing. He he, you can't kill me. I'll never die. I'll take over the great Zhou dynasty's outstanding talents and eat everyone in the great Zhou dynasty. The other realm god fiend laughed wildly. He wanted to escape, but the hand that grabbed his divine soul was like a heavenly hoop, and he could not break free at all. Many of the ultimate contenders had strange expressions on their faces. They did not make a move. The other realm god fiends and the elders of the Dharma house had no intention of helping. Since the other realm god fiends had such a treasure, they would find a chance to snatch it away. He Chuan's left palm reached into the sky and absorbed the power of the lightning. His left eye flickered with green light as the power of life was used on the three-colored divine light. The three-colored divine light did not leave the divine general. He Chuan snorted coldly, and the light of death in his right eye shone on the three-colored divine light. Since he couldn't strip it, he might as well destroy it. If he, he Chuan, wanted to kill someone, not even the heavens could save them. Buzz buzz buzz. The three-colored holy light was actually dissipating, and the god fiend could not resist death. How is this possible? How is this possible? The other realm god fiend cried out in fear. This was something he had obtained from the secret realm, a divine item that was immortal and indestructible. Now, it was going to be destroyed by a human. This had completely subverted his logic. Stop, you dog. The god fiend from the outer realm order you to stop. He Chuan turned a deaf ear. He used his left hand to resist the black dragon and his right hand to grab the divine general. The light of death in his right eye acted on the three-colored divine light on the divine general's body. He wanted to kill the divine general thoroughly. The abbot of the northern Shaolin temple had a bad feeling. This duke of the great Zhou dynasty was far more powerful than he had imagined. Second brother, attack. The elder of the Dharma house nodded. The two of them joined forces and activated their divine arts with all their might. An earth-shattering battle had erupted. Myriad Net Dao. Chaos Heaven Four Absolutes. The two divine powers merged together and attacked He Chuan. He Chuan continued to activate Death's Eye, and at the same time, he activated the Cold Light Demon Technique and the Xientian. Boom! The sky shattered. The earth trembled, and it was a thousand times more terrifying than a dragon turning over the earth. He Chuan attacked with all his might just to suppress the divine arts of the outer realm god fiends and the elders of the Dharma house. If the aftershock dispersed, everyone below the seventh Zhongtian realm within a hundred miles would die a tragic death. It exploded. He Chuan's many years of accumulation were reflected at this moment. 
If it was just a normal saint cultivator, he could kill them instantly. Now, he was fighting against the outer realm god fiends, the elders of the Dharma house, and the elders of the northern Shaolin temple. He was the only one who could deal with these powerhouses. The yellow sand filled the sky, rolling and whistling. The heavens and earth were turned upside down, and the end of the world had come. The other realm god fiend still managed to escape from He Chuan, but the battle had just begun. Who would win against He Chuan among these three brothers who had their own thoughts? The people who were watching the battle from a hundred miles away also wanted to know. Chapter 232 He Chuan's expression was very calm as he faced the god fiends the outside realm. An attack of this level was no problem for him. He simply attacked the void, and time seemed to have stopped. His seemingly weak body was actually unmoving in the violent hurricane. Even the clothes on his body did not move at all. A fiend god? Is this all you got? He Chuan was a little disappointed, but he didn't expect that there were really gods and devils lurking in the central plains, and they were even in the northern Shaolin temple. If it wasn't for the fact that someone was in a hurry to assassinate Empress Changming, he really wouldn't have noticed. Only to this extent. What a joke. I want you to die. The outer god fiend said and flew away. Even though he was a fourth rank saint cultivator, he didn't have much confidence. Looking at the powerful energy gathering in the sky above the northern Shaolin temple, it was as if it was going to pierce through the sky. The experts hundreds of miles away were shocked. A battle at this level was the true strength. It was laughable that they were still fighting for the number one position in the world. It was already giving face by not being laughed at. It was as if it wanted to pierce through the heavens. I thought that the great Zhou dynasty's 9,000-year-old Wei Jingchun was the limit. I didn't expect such an expert to appear. No wonder the Empress fell in love with him. Such an expert is truly terrifying. That's right. Even if the 9,000-year-old Wei Jingchun was still alive, I'm afraid he would not be a match for this mysterious expert. What opponent? Wei Jingchun is at most a saint cultivator, but they're obviously third-rank saint cultivators and above. He is nothing. Back then, the 9,000-year-old Wei Jingchun had crushed the sect leaders of the seven major sects as a half-step saint cultivator, but that was only in the battles below the saint cultivator level. The true experts disdained to participate. If a saint cultivator had appeared at that time, Wei Jingchun would not even have had the chance to fight back. This was the absolute difference between the two. Even from a hundred miles away, everyone could feel their hearts palpitate. This kind of pressure was too terrifying. Supreme Demonic Technique The black mist emitted by the other realm god fiend seemed to want to devour He Chuan. He Chuan was still calm and composed, as if he didn't see the attack of the saint cultivator. The back of the man in black was facing the crowd. Even if the powerhouses around him attacked him with all their might, they could not shake him at all. The outer realm god fiend was shocked. The attack of a fourth rank saint cultivator was unable to break through He Chuan's defense. It was simply a disgrace. Were mere humans from the central plains already so powerful? Attack at the same time. Kill him. The outer realm god fiend shouted. Fear had already emerged in his heart. If he continued to delay, he was afraid that he would not be able to resist running away. He didn't dare to think about the punishment for failing the mission. It would be better to die here. The abbot of the northern Shaolin temple and the elders of the Dharma house immediately responded. M.O. Luo's world annihilation. Nine heavens of dragon and elephant. Demonic palm of destruction. The three of them attacked at the same time. In an instant, the sky changed color. The wind and clouds changed, and the roars of dragons and tigers lingered in their ears. The surrounding time was frozen, and only a terrifying divine technique was left to attack He Chuan. The hearts of the people who were watching from a distance were also fluctuating. In particular, Empress Changning, Kai Lian, and the important officials who knew about this matter were all cheering for He Chuan in their hearts. This was because if He Chuan were to lose, the great Zhou dynasty would have to face the pressure of the mysterious powerhouse. Who can write Your Excellency, the hoary head Taishian scripture? He Chuan's entire body became ethereal. 
the Taishian scripture was his trump card now. The Sunflower Bible and the Extreme Yang Divine Skill were still in the martial arts category, and they were now techniques that aided his cultivation. Boom! A massive explosion was heard. With each one as the center, a golden light suddenly appeared. The three divine powers descended on him as if they were going to turn each one into dust. However, the golden light became more and more dazzling. The pillar of light shot up into the sky. The Zhou dynasty is indeed full of crouching tigers and hidden dragons. It's just that this king didn't expect that there were already so-called gods hidden in the Zhou dynasty. The first prince said with lingering fear as he looked at the terrifying energy erupting in the distance. Fortunately, he had never thought of assassinating the empress. Otherwise, all of them would have been buried with her, and none of them would be able to escape. It's indeed beyond my imagination. It seems that the so-called battle between the gods has also reached a very intense stage. The young powerhouse with an evil expression muttered to himself. He was now even more confident that the treasures in the central plains were vital. Otherwise, he would not have been able to hide in the northern Shaolin temple for so long. Without decades of infiltration, it was impossible to achieve such a situation. Or rather, it could be said that they had been planning this for over a hundred years, all for the sake of those bronze fragments. The battle in the northern Shaolin temple continued. He Chuan had easily broken through the siege of three experts. If this is all you've got, then you can all go to hell. His tone was still emotionless. The time in the surroundings resumed its flow, and the flowers, grass, and trees that had been destroyed earlier were rejuvenated. The destructive techniques of the three masters were different. The Taishian scripture was more like the origin of all things, which rejuvenated the earth. The outer realm god fiends looked at He Chuan, who was at the center of the explosion of energy, and the fear in their hearts grew. They had already used all their strength, but they still couldn't kill He Chuan. After coming to the Zhou dynasty for so many years, this was the first time he felt despair growing in his heart. In the past, they had always been the ones to bring despair to others. Now, it was the opposite. No one could have expected it. Die. This time, He Chuan took the initiative. Since they dared to assassinate Changning, they must die. Facing the powerful He Chuan, the three experts panicked. The only thing they could think of was to escape. However, He Chuan didn't care what the other party was thinking. He directly activated the Taishian scripture. Killing one person in ten steps, not leaving a trace for a thousand miles. His figure disappeared on the spot. No matter how fast his opponent was, they could not be faster than He Chuan. A distance of several thousand meters was covered in the blink of an eye. The other three were fast, but He Chuan was even faster. He put his two fingers together to form a sword and directly swept toward the neck of the elder of the Dharma house. A huge head instantly shot up into the sky. Blood splattered everywhere. The elder of the Dharma house had died so easily that the remaining two people were trembling with fear. In a few breaths, He Chuan came back to the abbot of the Northern Shaolin Temple. In the face of such a strong He Chuan, the abbot of the Northern Shaolin Temple was furious. After all, he was a well known master. With the strength of a third rank saint cultivator, he could do whatever he wanted in the Zhou dynasty, but he was forced into such a state today. Now, he was actually beaten by an unknown person from the imperial court to the point where he couldn't even retaliate. It was simply a great humiliation. The abbot of the northern Shaolin temple attacked with hatred. Buddha's giant palm. A huge palm shadow was thrown at He Chuan. He Chuan stood in the air and quickly retaliated against the terrifying palm shadows. When things are done, I'll brush my clothes and leave, hiding my achievements and fame. He waved out two finger swords, breaking the huge palm print, and the sharp sword intent continued to shoot at the other party without reducing its power. The northern Shaolin temple's abbot didn't have time to react, and his forehead was pierced through. Two of the three brothers had already died. There was only the last outer realm god fiend left. Chapter, 233 he Chuan circulated his quintessential essence and chased after the otherworldly god fiend with all his might. Like a flashing meteor, he instantly arrived within thirty meters of the other party. 
If you're willing to bury the hatchet, I'll give you endless benefits. Besides, there are powerful experts in our clan. Even saint cultivators are just ants. If you kill me, they'll never let you go. The god fiend was truly afraid. He begged Hee Chuan to let him go. Wagging his tail and begging for mercy. Unfortunately, Hee Chuan didn't answer him as if he didn't hear him. He had already obtained the information he wanted from the few words of the outer realm god fiend. As expected, saint cultivators weren't at the end of cultivation. There were even higher realms the outer realm gods weren't gods. They were just a mysterious race. Perhaps they were more talented in cultivation. Or perhaps they had some unknown cultivation method or secret, and their starting point was much higher than that of ordinary humans. In addition, the brainwashing was relatively successful, which made people mistakenly think that gods really existed in the world. The crime of assassinating Empress Chiming was unforgivable. He didn't care how powerful the other party was. He had to kill him today. The golden light instantly enveloped the god fiend. The outer realm god fiends were enveloped within this domain, and it seemed as if it could destroy the heavens and earth. There was no escape. If you kill me, you will definitely die. The god fiend still wanted to make a final struggle. Unfortunately, He Chuan didn't fall for this trick and directly killed the other party. After dealing with all of them, He Chuan's figure disappeared. The ordinary monks of the northern Shaolin temple were also kept in the dark, so there was no need to kill them all. Monks who had committed crimes were naturally dealt with by the laws of the Zhou dynasty. In the imperial palace, Empress Changning held her bulging belly and walked back and forth in the imperial study. The explosive energy from the northern Shaolin temple was truly terrifying. She knew that He Chuan was powerful, but the god fiends of the outer realm were very mysterious. The space rippled, and He Chuan's figure appeared beside Empress Changning. Husband. When Empress Changning saw her lover appear, the big stone in her heart was finally lifted. She immediately went forward and hugged He Chuan's waist, pressing her pretty face against his chest. The matter has been resolved. You don't have to worry. However, you will need to send someone to clean up the mess. He Chuan gently stroked Empress Changning's hair. He could feel the other party's affection. At this moment, he was touched. The god fiends of the outer realm are too savage. They've infiltrated the northern Shaolin temple for so many years. If not for my husband's timely detection, the great Zhou dynasty would have faced another disaster. Empress Changning was unwilling to leave He Chuan's warm embrace. She wasn't the only one who didn't expect it. No one would have thought that an outer realm god fiend could actually hide in the northern Shaolin temple. Although there was a difference between the northern and southern Shaolin temple, it was still a thousand-year-old temple. Patriarch Bodhidharma had once cultivated here. Even in such a place, god fiends could infiltrate. Did other sects have them as well? Empress Chiming didn't dare to think about it. They're just a tribe from the outer realm. Perhaps their cultivation methods are a bit special. They're not as terrifying as you think. You don't need to scare yourself. Just focus on your pregnancy. He Chuan knew what Empress Changning was worried about. If the gods and devils had really infiltrated the entire central plains, then they would not have needed to fear the great Zhou dynasty and the hidden sects. So things weren't as bad as they had thought. With husband here, I'm much more at ease. Empress Changning raised her head and said with a smile. As long as He Chuan was there, she felt very safe. This was because this man had always given her the feeling that he was omnipotent. It was as if nothing could stump him. After a moment of warmth, Empress Changning began to order a thorough investigation of all the members of the Northern Shaolin Temple. Anyone who had an affair with the Outer Realm God Fiends would be arrested and interrogated by the Ministry of Justice. The two of them cuddled for a while before He Chuan returned to the courier station in the capital. This was to prevent the people of the plains from becoming suspicious. In the relay station, they were discussing the battle just now. It wasn't just the relay that was discussing it. All the martial arts experts in the capital were probably discussing the battle just now. Master, it's a pity you went home to visit your relatives. You didn't see the shocking battle outside the city. It's simply earth-shattering. 
Leah's little hands were gesturing non-stop as if she had been personally involved just now. I was lucky to have seen it from afar. He Chuan said with an indifferent smile. If I'm half as good as them, I'll definitely be number one in the world. After winning today, Lia felt a little lightheaded. It's good that you know. The current experts don't care to fight for the so-called number one in the world. If you want to become an expert, you shouldn't take this matter too seriously. Whether you're number one or last in the world, hard work is indispensable. He Chuan said. The strong relied on not only talent but also hard work. Young master, have some soup first. I've specially prepared it for you. Kai Lian knew that it was He Chuan who had just attacked. He Chuan would definitely get rid of them if they tried to assassinate Empress Changning on the street. She had been worried that an accident would happen. At this moment, the room door was pushed open and the eldest princess walked in, swaying her slender waist. Congratulations sixth sister for successfully advancing and becoming the world's number one. This sentence was deliberately flattering because everyone knew that Leah might not even be able to advance to the next round. Not to mention the number one in the world. This was how people thought. If Leah had a chance to win, the eldest princess would definitely not come over to congratulate her. She would even curse Leah in her heart to quickly losing the competition. But she would not be stingy with all kinds of praise when there was no hope. For example, if someone asked you if you had 10 million, would you be willing to donate it? At this time, most people answered yes, because if you don't have 10 million, it's all just your imagination. However, if you were asked if you were willing to donate 10,000 yuan, you might shake your head immediately because you had 10,000 yuan in your pocket. To be able to enter the top 16 is already the best result. I don't even dare to think about winning all the competitions, but Big Sisters people are truly amazing. Lia was not an idiot. Of course, she knew the eldest princess's blessing was fake kindness and righteousness. However, the relationship between the two of them was temporarily a cooperative one, so they had to be able to get along on the surface. Sigh. I thought there was still hope, but after two days of competition, I realized that the Central Plains martial arts world is full of crouching tigers and hidden dragons. For example, today's battle in the suburbs is the real horror. The eldest princess shook her head and said. She was also a rational woman, and she knew that it was hopeless to become the world's number one. However, she could also accept this fact because the first prince had no hope either. Why don't we go back earlier? The grasslands are still better. Lia tilted her head and thought for a moment. She felt that it was better to return to the plains. The Zhou dynasty was too dangerous, and they could not become the world's number one. In comparison, the plains were much safer. Wait until she becomes a true expert. Everyone laughed at Leah's innocent look. Chapter, 234 Ding! Congratulations to the host for successfully checking in. You are rewarded with the Nine Revolutions Divine Art. He Chuan did his routine check-in. He didn't expect to be rewarded with such a good thing. He quickly opened the system to check the introduction of the Nine Revolutions Divine Art. This was an extremely powerful defense technique. It could only be used after one had reached the Saint Cultivator level. He used the vital essence in his body to form a nine-circle divine gold to protect himself. With every successful transformation, its defense would be strengthened. When it was practiced to the ninth transformation, it could be called a true invincible defensive divine art. It was impervious to fire and water, and impervious to swords and sabers. This cultivation technique seemed to be at the same level as the Taishian scripture. He Chuan was quite familiar with the check-in system. It was not worth it to set a long-term check-in point now. This was because he could go anywhere he wanted. If he checked into a special place or a place he had never been to, there was a chance that he would find something good. And this place basically wouldn't have anything good. He Chuan didn't really care because he had plenty of time to wait. After looking at the system reward, he continued to focus on his cultivation. Today, he had learned from the outer realm god fiend hidden in the northern Shaolin temple that saint cultivators were not enough. There were even more powerful existences among the gods and devils. At the same time, he rejoiced that he didn't become smug just because he had become a saint cultivator. 
if he went to look for the god fiends directly, he might die. The main problem now was to improve his strength and strive to break through to the saint cultivator realm as soon as possible. The martial arts conference did not stop because of yesterday's battle. Being the number one expert in the world was still everyone's main goal. Today, He Chuan didn't wear a mask and appeared as Duke He. Instead, he sat in the audience with Kai Lien to watch the competition. Empress Changning did not come either. Master, what if I lose today? Liya asked nervously. She had no confidence in advancing to the top eight. Go back and work hard on your cultivation. Don't worry. He Chuan said as he rubbed her little head. Being too concerned about winning or losing would instead become an obstacle. It would be better to devote oneself to sparring. It would be good to learn something from this competition. Come on, Sister Liao. I'll take you to eat delicious food no matter who wins or loses. Kai Lian still supported Lia, as always. There weren't many delicious foods in the capital. But there were still some delicious things. For example, homemade pork was easier to find in Nan Luo. He wouldn't miss out on the hot pot because not only was the mutton very fresh, but it was also very tasty. The ingredients of the sheep's brain were fine and tender, the meat was even in thickness, and the meat was tender. The sheep's tendon was pure lean meat with moderate hardness. The beef was marbled and tender, nourishing the stomach and spleen. The fresh sirloin was cut by hand and had a smooth texture. The recipe was based on the traditional ingredients of hot pot beef. I'm going to burst my stomach. Ever since Lia came here, she always had a bloated stomach. What she liked to eat the most were all kinds of bloated food. The puffs in the capital could be divided into oil pop, vegetable pop, and soup pop. The reason why it was called an pop was because of its speed. The beef and mutton were cut into thin strips and blanched in boiling water. That was it. And the effort was in this split and then the scoop. Because the stomach could be divided into different parts, the heat requirements were different. If the time was short, the stomach would be born, and if the time was long, the stomach would be old. With the right heat, the stomach would be crisp, tender, and chewy, and the more he chewed, the more delicious it was. The best way to reflect the quality of the stomach was to burst the water. Water pop was one of the cooking methods, and the water here referred to clear water without putting anything in. Unlike the crispy tripes that had been processed in Sichuan, the fried tripes in the old capital paid attention to the taste of freshness, so only clear water could test the freshness of the ingredients. Other than the raw ingredients being fresh, the only way to make the stomach burst was to make it burst. The water must be full and boiling, and the fire must be strong. When the ingredients were put into the soup, they were cooked in a few seconds. The scattered stomach pill took five seconds, the belly plate seven seconds, and the belly gourd, belly beam, and beef tripe took eight seconds. If it exploded, it would become hard. The moon belly was the most precious part of a sheep's stomach, and only about twenty pieces of it could be cut out of a sheep. Scattered elixir pills, on the other hand, paid attention to speed. It could be taken out of the pot with a little roll, but after a long time, it would become hard and unmoving. Although scattered pills and hundred leaves were very similar, most people would choose scattered pills over hundred leaves. In particular, the moon belly strips were slightly boiled. In a specially made shallow bowl, it was dipped in water and mixed with a sauce made from sesame sauce, soy sauce, braised shrimp oil, chili oil, cilantro, and so on. It was then served with a small xiaobing. Kai Lian made an okay gesture. Soon, it was Lia's turn. The grassland sixth princess Lia versus the Huashan sex Li Wenwu. They were stunned by that smile. They didn't waste any words. A scarlet sword light flowed out from Lia's hand. She used the evil warding sword technique again. Before Li Wenwu could raise his sword to counterattack, the scarlet red had already arrived in front of him. Li Wenwu tapped the ground with the tips of his feet and retreated quickly. Even if it was Li Wenwu of the Huashan sect, Lia did not show any mercy. This was because her master, He Chuan, had told her that there was nothing to lose. She just had to do her best. Lia immediately appeared a hundred feet away. However, in just a thousandth of a second, 
the scarlet sword light flashed past Li Wenwu's chest and quickly disappeared. Even Li Wenwu didn't see anything. Suddenly, he heard the sound of wind. In an instant, the two of them attacked at the same time, both as fast as lightning. The green sword light shot up into the sky, and the sword in Li Wenwu's hand made three sword flowers in the air, like a snake spitting its tongue, and went straight for Li's forehead. This move had almost reached the peak of Li Wenwu's abilities. Lia had disappeared into thin air, causing Li Wenwu to retreat again. Lia immediately appeared a hundred feet away. However, in just a thousandth of a second, the scarlet sword light flashed past Li Wenwu's chest and quickly disappeared. Even Li Wenwu didn't see anything. Suddenly, he heard the sound of wind. In an instant, the two of them attacked at the same time, both as fast as lightning. Before the two swords met, the two sword intent collided, making a clang sound. The azure sword was almost knocked out of his hand. Li Wenwu's eyes were filled with shock. But he could not lose, because this was related to the glory of the Huashan sect. Kill. The howling of the wind swept across the fixed horizon, and a heavy rain was about to fall. The melody was the sound of blood flowing on the sword, the moment a fatal wound opened. The sword lights crisscrossed and danced in the arena. The flickering shadow attacked continuously, causing the sky and earth to change color. The rumbling thunder and lightning struck the ground, creating a crack of light. Li Wenwu incited his opponent's words silently at this moment. He raised his sword shadow and thrust it towards Liao, who was opposite him. His breath was filled with the sweet taste of blood, and his moves turned into demonic fireworks that shattered everything, circling Liya's heart and lungs. Liya snorted arrogantly and raised her autumn water sword to block it. Li Wenwu was about to win this battle. He couldn't help but laugh bitterly, and then he coughed violently. He didn't know when he had been hit by a sword. Maybe Liya's sword was too fast, and the pain in his wound started to show. He knew that he couldn't slack off or even catch his breath. Perhaps he would turn into dust if he fell down and couldn't get up again. Therefore, Li Wenwu gritted his teeth and took out the sword within a sword, hoping to end the battle in one move. Chapter 235 The wind blew, rolling up the red leaves. The sword intent struck, and the world was filled with a murderous aura. He pulled out his sword with a backhand and held it flat in front of his chest. At this moment, Li Wenwu seemed to have changed into a different person. Although his hair was unkempt and his clothes were still ragged, he no longer looked dejected and haggard. His pale face had already glowed with a dazzling brilliance for the past two years. He was like a sword hidden in a box, concealing his strength and biding his time, not revealing his sharp edge. That was why no one could see its brilliant brilliance at this moment when the sword was brandished. The iron sword was swung in the wind, and a dark, cold light was aimed at Leah's throat. Before the sword arrived, the cold sword intent had already shattered the west wind. Leah's steps faltered, and she retreated seven feet. Li Wenwu's iron sword changed its movement and stabbed out. With a long cry, he soared into the sky, and the iron sword also turned into a flying rainbow. He had become one with his sword. With a shake of his arms, he had already swept past the coming sword in tent and fell down with the red leaves. The long howl did not stop as he flipped in the air. The long rainbow sword suddenly turned into countless light shadows and sprinkled down on Leah's head. The power of this sword was enough to shatter a person's soul. Within a thirty-foot radius, it was covered by sword energy. No matter which direction, you couldn't dodge it. With a ding, sparks flew in all directions. The water autumn sword in Leah's hand met his sword. At this moment, the sword intent that filled the sky suddenly disappeared without a trace, but the blood rain like maple leaves had not yet fallen. They stood still in the blood rain, with Li Wenwu's sword still held horizontally in front of his chest. But the sword tip has been blown away. Liya looked at Li Wenwu calmly, and the other party also looked back at her. The two of them were utterly expressionless. But both of them knew that Li Wenwu could no longer use his sword. The sword broke as fast as lightning. Momentum was important. Now that the sword tip was broken, its speed would be significantly affected. East rising purple energy. I'll take your life while you're down. 
Lia turned into a ray of light and pointed her sword at Li Wenwu's throat. It was so fast and blurry. The essence of the evil warding swordsmanship was being displayed to its fullest at this moment. I lost. Your sword technique is powerful. Huashan Sex Li Wenwu was eliminated. It was unexpected but also an expected ending. Because the Huashan sect leader could see clearly that even if they used a saint cultivator, so what? In the end, they would still be no match for the Wudang sect and Shaolin temple. It was better to use a disciple who was half a step to the saint cultivator level to train them. He could also make everyone in the martial arts world praise him for knowing when to advance and retreat, knowing when to gain and lose. This was also a victory. Hua Shan has become one of the seven major sects of the Central Plains in vain. That BTCH Lia won the competition. The first prince had a disdainful look on his face. He was clearly furious that Lia was able to advance. They even wondered if the Hua Shan sect was going easy on them. However, the outcome had already been decided, so there was no point in thinking too much. It would be better to arrange the next plan. There's no hope of becoming the world's number one and there's no hope of obtaining the bronze fragment. I'm preparing to carry out my plan so they can't return to the grasslands. What do you think, Mr. Mengjian Mukiri? The first prince turned his head and asked the young man with an evil expression in a low voice. I like it when people call me by my central plane name, Meng Ao. Meng Ao said coldly. Don't worry about the name. This king wants you to go back and execute the plan. Help this king become the new king of the plains. The first prince did not want to wait any longer. He had thought that with Mang Ao's strength, he would have a chance to become the so-called number one in the world and give the central plains a loud slap in the face. At the same time, he would be able to show off in front of his father. However, the reality was different. There were too many martial arts experts in the central plains. They had no chance at all. I understand. First Prince. Please delay for a few more days and wait for my news. Meng Ao took the First Prince's token and left the audience. Is he ready to rebel? He Chuan looked at Meng Ao as he left. Although the two of them had used voice transmission, they couldn't hide it from He Chuan. He overheard their conversation. This meant Leah's chance had come, and at the same time, it meant that he was going to face the gods head on. It was time to make another breakthrough and break through to the saint cultivator level. Master, let's go and eat the fried tubros. Lia did not ask for praise arrogantly when she returned this time. Because this narrow victory made her even more aware of her strength. The martial arts conference had probably come to an end. It was no difference whether they watched the rest of the match. It would be better to stroll around the capital, eat and drink, and finally return to the grassland happily. Let's go. He Chuan had no interest in watching any longer. He had to go back and break through later. The three of them followed suit. I'll let you guys understand sooner or later. The first prince said through gritted teeth as he watched them leave. After eating and drinking to their fill. I'm afraid I won't be able to watch your match tomorrow. My bottleneck has started to loosen recently, and I'm preparing to take this opportunity to break through. It'll take me at least two to three days and, at most, six to seven days. He Chuan said as he rubbed Leah's head. Although Lia was a little sad, she also understood breaking through was the top priority. Anyway, she could not be the best in the world, so she gradually felt relieved. At the same time, she began to feel curious. Her master had never mentioned his strength. He had asked about it before, but He Chuan had said it was not worth mentioning. She didn't know how powerful this not worth mentioning was. He Chuan had said that he wanted to find a hidden place, but in fact, after separating from Lia and Kai Lian, he had directly returned to the palace. Empress Changning had just finished reviewing the memorials. Seeing He Chuan return, a sweet feeling instantly welled up in her heart. I'm going back to the library pavilion to break through. He Chuan gently caressed Empress Changning's bulging lower abdomen. They were about to be born in two months. He had a feeling that this was unreal. In this world, he was going to be a father for the first time. He didn't know if he could fulfill his responsibility and if the two children would be close to him. 
Or just like a stranger. Breakthrough. Could it be that husband is about to break through the realm above the legendary saint cultivator? Empress Changning was somewhat surprised. This was because He Chuan had told her that he had reached a barrier that was difficult for ordinary people to reach. She had never even heard of how powerful the realms above the saint cultivator were. Yet, her lover said that he was about to break through. How could she not be surprised? Yes, I do about to reach the realm above the saint cultivator. I heard it's called the mortal realm. He Chuan did not hide his thoughts. He wanted to experience how special the extreme mortal realm was. Moreover, among the gods and demons, there were already powerhouses that had reached the human realm. He could not fall behind too much. Empress Changning was also happy for He Chuan. After all, her man was going to become a strong warrior of the extreme mortal realm, which would give the great Zhou dynasty more security. She knew that his lover's heart was very soft. He was actually still concerned about her, but he just wouldn't show it. I wish husband success in breaking through to the human realm. Empress Changning said. He Chuan appeared very calm because he was confident in himself. He had already accumulated power for so long, so he should be able to break through soon. Chapter, 236 He Chuan sat cross-legged in the secret room. He swallowed a great creation pill and began to break through. Due to the vital essence he had accumulated over the years, he had broken through to the ninth heaven of the saint cultivation realm in less than fifteen minutes. He was only one step away from the barrier. He searched for the mystery of the extreme mortal realm in the great Tao of his mind. At the particular moment when Zhou Kuan was about to collapse, he fell into a deep level of meditation and seized the opportunity. It was as if he had stopped breathing. He sat there like a statue. However, his entire body was incomparably sparkling and translucent. In the void above his head, many symbols flickered and revealed auspicious light. This was the opportunity for his breakthrough, He Chuan's selflessness. They only knew how to pry into the profound meaning that was hard to manifest in the world, which was the corner of the Great Tao. That was its transformation. Now that he was engrossed in it, trying to figure it out with his heart and using his spirit to temper it, his body became more and more crystal clear and actually emitted a kind of fragrance. This wasn't an increase in realm, but the shaping and refining of one's own cauldron. He Chuan drew the Tao marks into his body to wash away the dust and refine his real body. It was just as the book said, there would be new life in the Great Tribulation, and there would also be a great fortune. If he could capture it, it would naturally be a heavenly fate, which would greatly benefit his future cultivation. This was the most solid true essence of the immortal Tao Foundation. At this time, many people in this world had noticed it. All the outstanding people were making their moves to capture the trajectory of the great Tao and cause its tangible body to resonate with their own body. At this special moment, the great Tao would appear in the world. Catching a small part of it was a great fortune for the strong and would benefit them for life. He Chuan's body was surrounded by a white mist, which carried a delicate fragrance that washed away the prosperity. It made him feel free and at ease, untainted by the mortal world and even more divine. He had obtained great benefits. With his eyes closed, he used his will to capture the Tao laws and explore the origin as if it was his body's instinct. Everything floated in his heart, and an indescribable comprehension lingered in his mind. A rumbling sound was heard around him, like a rapid sonic boom. He was lifted up by a silent aura, like a small boat in the sea, facing the monstrous waves, trying to cross to the other side of the future, crossing the sea of suffering in the human world. However, not only were there huge waves in the sea but there were also hurricanes that seemed to flip him over at any time. That was the supreme great Tao. Its aura was too majestic, and mortals simply couldn't control it normally. The boat would capsize at any moment, and both the body and the soul would be destroyed. However, He Chuan was still struggling to cross the river, and his expression was very calm. He even stepped out of the small boat and wandered in the endless ocean, bathing in the endless waves. He Chuan's actions were extremely dangerous. He wanted to fight against the endless great Tao, but humans were very small. It was as if they could be flipped over at any time, and He Chuan would be directly turned into dust and die. The golden symbols in the air entered his body as if rebuilding his body and building a flesh-shell treasure ship. 
he was accumulating power and creating the foundation of the great Tao, just so that in the future, he could be like a fish in the sea and a bird in the sky. He was opening up his own boundless heaven and earth. Guiding the Tao into the body, using the endless runes to baptize one's body, it was to build an immortal body and accumulate one's potential, waiting for the day to soar to the sky and leap even higher. In fact, it could even be like a carp leaping into the air, transforming into a dragon and riding the wind, undergoing a qualitative change and being reborn to prove its own body in Tao. During the fourth day of the Great Tribulation, He Chuan sat cross-legged in the void. He was surrounded by runes, both inside and outside his body. In the end, the runes condensed and turned into a flame that burned his body. This was tempering, guiding the Tao to temper the body. In the end, he even took form. The symbols revealed by the fragments of the great Tao had already connected together to form a cauldron. He was contained in it, and the flames were raging as he refined his true body. Boom! In the end, when the sun rose from the east, all of this dispersed, and the world returned to its clear state. It was already the morning of the fifth day. He Chuan opened his eyes and felt that something was different. A fragrance smelled stronger than orchids inside and outside his body. This was a sign that he was close to his body and had already achieved success. Under normal circumstances, even saint cultivators would not be able to achieve this, with the exception of a few individuals. In the past, his physical body was strong and comparable to the Shaolin Temple's indestructible body of Vitra. Now, he was close to the Great Tao and could easily construct runes in his body, advancing his body and the way of Dharma. I've succeeded. He Chuan muttered to himself. The path of cultivation was difficult, and the further one went, the more difficult it became. One could die at any time and disappear. But now, he had an additional form of protection. His corporeal body was sturdy, and he was also blessed with the light of Tao. It protected him at all times and nurtured his essence, energy, and spirit. This resulted from the corporeal body's treasured ship and his spirit blending together. He eyes this opportunity and established the foundation of his great Tao in the Great Tribulation. Quietly waiting for the day to take root, sprout, and soar into the sky. It covered the universe. The wind stopped, and the flowing light in the sky disappeared. There was no blood light and no killing tribulation. Looking up, the sky was bright and clear, and there was no killing intent in the world. Everything was peaceful. He tried to wave his hand, and the withered flowers in the corner immediately rejuvenated. He waved his hand again, and the flowers bloomed and withered. The mortal realm could draw upon the origin power of heaven and earth. He Chuan had not expected this. Could it be that no matter if it were body refinement, energy refinement, or Tao cultivation, in the end, all paths would lead to the same destination, walking the path of the great Tao? However, the prerequisite was that they had to be able to break through this barrier. However, He Chuan still had a question that puzzled him. He had already reached the mortal realm, so why was it that no one else in the central plains had broken through to this realm? Even if the cultivators of the mortal realm couldn't get in, the martial arts world in the central plains was so big. Why didn't these places have any warriors of the mortal realm? Although there weren't many saint cultivators in the central plains now, there were many in history. In addition to other places, there was definitely a lot of them. Why didn't anyone break through to the mortal realm? He Chuan felt that there was something wrong with this world. The reason why he was able to break through to the mortal realm had an inextricable relationship with the system, or perhaps it was related to the great creation pill rewarded by the system. In addition, he could comprehend the will of the way in the recently awarded Taishan scripture, which was why he could smoothly break through to the extreme human realm. But even if he wasn't an outer realm god fiend, to rely on a god fiend to break through to the mortal realm, was it an evil technique or an innate talent? He wasn't sure, especially when he had killed the outer realm god fiends. The moves used were very unique. All in all, there were many unsolved mysteries in front of him, waiting for him to explore further. After returning to the library pavilion, He Chuan resumed his previous pace of life. It was as if it had just happened yesterday. Empress Chiming sensed He Chuan's aura and hurried to the library pavilion. Did husband successfully break through? She couldn't see anything right now. She was not sure how strong He Chuan was now. 
I've indeed broken through. I'm now in the mortal realm. He Chuan waved his sleeve after he finished speaking, and Empress Chiming found that she couldn't even move a finger. It's important to remember that she was a true saint cultivator. But in front of He Chuan, who was in the mortal realm, she couldn't even resist. It was shocking. Chapter 237 If the difference between a half-step saint cultivator and a saint cultivator was like heaven and earth, then the difference between a saint cultivator and a human extreme was like the difference between the earth and the sun. There was no comparison at all. Congratulations to husband for advancing another step. I'm afraid no one can suppress you this time. Empress Chiming felt happy for He Chuan. Only after becoming a saint cultivator did he realize how difficult it was to go further. Every time they advanced to the next realm, they had to put in hundreds of times more effort than Xientian cultivators. It also required the assistance of all kinds of supreme grade medicinal pills. Otherwise, it would be a fool's dream to break through to the mortal realm. There was probably only one person in the world who could cheat like He Chuan. There's nothing to be happy about. I'm afraid that's only your wishful thinking for you to say no one can suppress me. The world is so big, and there are countless experts. The road ahead is still long. He Chuan said, shaking his head. He Chuan would never be proud until he was truly invincible. His vision was always looking forward. He wouldn't be happy because of this small achievement. Maybe this was why he could break through to the furthest mortal realm. The gods and devils of the outer realm had already reached the mortal realm, and he didn't know what stage they were at. It was too early to be happy. My husband has always been so rational. It's good to be a little happy. This is a realm that has never been recorded in the Central Plains. I want to throw a banquet to celebrate with you. Empress Changning said to He Chuan in a spoiled manner with a mischievous smile on her face. There's no need for a banquet. Tonight, you accompany me for a few drinks and let the kitchen prepare some dishes to go with the wine. Now that he thought about it, He Chuan had never had a proper meal with Changning. They talked about life ideals and such. He had to take this opportunity to make up for it. They might have to separate one day again. When Empress Chiming heard He Chuan's words, a happy smile immediately appeared on her face. It was rare for her lover to take the initiative to say this. It was even rarer than the sun rising from the west. She immediately sent someone to the kitchen to serve the dishes. In Empress Chiming's palace, He Chuan and Chiming sat opposite each other. There were a few dishes on the table and a pot of fine wine. He Chuan reached out and poured himself a cup. Empress Changning was pregnant and couldn't drink. Just now, husband said that the first prince wants to kill Tong Dun Chanyu and become the new king? Empress Changning asked. That's right. He's gradually going crazy and can't suppress his inner desires at all. He won't be able to wait until Tong Dun Chanyu abdicates. He Chuan picked up a piece of fresh fish, carefully picked out the bones, and put it in Empress Changning's bowl. This heartwarming gesture made Empress Changning happy again. In that case, doesn't that mean your little disciple has no chance? After hearing that Liao lost the competition two days ago, Changning calmed down a lot. She didn't go out to play recently and started to cultivate hard. Liao knew very well that her strength was far from strong enough. She never wanted to experience that sense of powerlessness she had felt in the competition with the Wudang clan a second time. No chance. Let the first prince be the villain first, and then we'll fight for the throne. He Chuan disdained the first prince. It wouldn't be nice to say that he had killed his father to seize the throne. However, there might be a war in the great Zhou dynasty. It was also good for Liya that the first prince had successfully taken the throne. When that time came, it would be perfectly justifiable for He Chuan to help Liya get promoted. In the outside world. The Empress issued a new imperial edict to temporarily seal off the northern Shaolin Temple, which was welcomed by countless martial arts forces. Initially, the northern Shaolin Temple had been the sole power in the world, and now that they were banned, it was a good thing for the world. The seven major sects of the Central Plains martial arts world immediately followed the decree. They announced that they would begin a self-examination of their mountain gates and assist the government in restoring order to the local area. Just like that, 
the war that was about to break out in the world was settled. Perhaps even the outer realm demon gods had not expected that things would turn out like this. Even though some ambitious forces still wanted to take advantage of this opportunity to expand, they all gave up after seeing He Chuan make a move. After a self-examination, Empress Chang learned from her painful experience and first implemented a benevolent government, announcing that she was resting and building strength. Then, the Empress announced that she would officially implement the new martial arts policy. This was proposed after many years of balanced discussion. It had detailed laws and regulations, a sound supervision system, and many top martial arts forces supported it. They even chose a region in advance as a test and achieved outstanding results. At this point, the martial arts of the great Zhou dynasty welcomed a positive and orderly flourishing development. In the Xiongnu tribe. The most incredible pride of the Xiongnu tribe and was seen as the representative of the totem. A saint cultivator had passed away on a snowy mountain at the age of 100. Time flew by, and the quiet days passed quickly. The Wudang sect had successfully won the title of number one in the world. The Shaolin Temple expressed dissatisfaction, and the major sects began to pick sides. In the end, it led to the collapse of the martial arts world, and the various sects began to take sides. This was what the great Zhou dynasty wanted to see. England started to attack the great Zhou dynasty, and until now, the two countries had been in constant conflict. The great Zhou dynasty had started to develop its maritime power. The sudden death of Tong Dun Chanyu and the succession of the first prince, who called himself Heavenly King. He immediately started the war to continue the unification of the grasslands. At the same time, he announced that Lia and the eldest princess had betrayed the country and were not allowed to return to the tribes of the grasslands. Otherwise, he would be killed without mercy. The Xiongnu tribe was slowly entering its golden age. Meng Ao was also known as the son of the White Tiger. The two of them worked together to rule Xiongnu completely. The threat the Xiongnu tribes posed to the Zhou dynasty had become extremely serious. Fortunately, the great Zhou dynasty's new martial arts policy greatly increased their strength. The proportion of martial artists had significantly increased, and there were many Xientian realm martial artists and even a few half-step saint cultivators. Most importantly, this new batch of half-step saint cultivators made up for the lack of the full combat power of the great Zhou. The library pavilion was a little more lively than usual. There was one more person here, Lia. He Chuan finally told Lia his identity and agreed to help her become the king of the grassland. Lia finally accepted this explanation. The eldest princess was also temporarily staying in the capital because she had nowhere to go. As for whether she had any follow-up plans, no one knew. Big sister Kai Lian, has master not come out yet? Lia came out of the quiet room and looked at the still tightly shut room before asking Kai Lian. No, young master said he wanted to continue breaking through. Kai Lian said, shaking her head. It's been so long. I've already broken through to the saint cultivator level. Master won't stay in seclusion forever, will he? Lia suddenly said. If it weren't for the fact that the room still contained a mysterious force that prevented her from approaching, she would have barged in long ago. Even though she had already become a saint cultivator, she still didn't dare to be careless. She had always remembered He Chuan's teachings. After seeing many masters of the martial arts world in the Central Plains, she did not dare to underestimate them anymore. Chapter 238 Lia had wanted to challenge the number one expert of the Xiongnu tribe, the White Tiger Meng Ao. Thus, she had been training hard for the past year in hopes of improving. After all, defeating Meng Ao would allow her to take over the king position. You must remember the young master's teachings. Without his words, you must not seek revenge on the first prince. Kai Lian opened her mouth to persuade. Forget it, I'll go back and continue my cultivation. I'll wait for master to come out of seclusion. Lia shook her head and turned to return to her room. Of course, she remembered He Chuan's words. In the recent period of time, the conflicts between the Great Zhou and the Xiongnu tribes had become more and more frequent. Sooner or later, the Great Zhou and the Xiongnu tribes would have an earth-shaking battle. 
As the princess of the Zhou dynasty and a saint cultivator, she had an important position in the great Zhou dynasty. As long as she ascended to the position of female king, the two sides would be at peace for a hundred years. In the quiet room. He Chuan sat cross-legged and continued to cultivate. He wanted to continue improving his strength. He couldn't feel at ease when he had just reached the extreme mortal realm. I'm still lacking a little. Suddenly, He Chuan opened his eyes. His eyes were as deep as the ocean, filled with endless vicissitudes of life. As early as eight years ago, his cultivation had reached the peak of the fifth-rank mortal realm. He was still prepared to come out of closed-door cultivation only after at least sixth rank. Unfortunately, he was still a little short. Originally, he thought he should be able to gain a pill that was beneficial to his breakthrough through checked-in, but he had never encountered one. He wondered if his luck had run out. Or was it that the imperial palace had started to not give him anything good again? Although he had checked in at some important places outside to try his luck, he had been to the Xiongnu tribe, the East Sea, the Southern Wilderness, and the various countries in the Western regions. But he had never checked in anything useful for breaking through to the extreme mortal realm. Sai, why has the system been so lacking recently? He Chuan sighed. However, he firmly believed that he would definitely be able to check in for good items in the future. The current difficulty was only temporary. He had to be patient. It was better to continue breaking through and let the Xiongnu tribe play around for now. The Xiongnu tribe's great snow mountain. On one side, it was covered in snow that would not melt for 10,000 years on the other, it was like spring all year round. A mighty divine palace stood on the snow mountain. It was the holy land of the Xiongnu tribe, the White Tiger Palace. This was the place that the Xiongnu Heavenly Khan had promised to build for Meng Ao. On this day, the heavens and earth trembled on the snowy mountain. Countless snowflakes fluttered as if they were being pulled by an invisible force. They formed a white tiger that covered the sky in the void. When the Xiongnu tribesmen inside and outside the white tiger palace saw this, they all knelt down and worshipped. At the same time, on an open-air altar in the center of the white tiger palace, a tall and sturdy figure sat cross-legged with his upper body bare. A snow-white light-like energy radiated from him. His body gradually left the altar and floated in the air. His hair had also started to turn from black to white. Suddenly, he opened his eyes, which were filled with endless surprise. Did I finally succeed? The figure muttered to himself. It's been so many years. I finally returned. I didn't expect that my descendants have lost control of the central plains and reduced to a foreign race beyond the Great Wall. But it doesn't matter. I'll take back everything I've lost and that precious treasure. So many years have passed, it should be almost complete. The capital just wait for your master to return. When the tall and sturdy man landed, he revealed an extremely handsome and masculine face. His facial features were deep and well-defined, and he naturally exuded an invisible domineering aura. At the same time, the huge snow wolf that had been shrouding the white tiger palace had also gradually disappeared. When he walked out of the square, there were a large number of guards and maids outside. Great sage, have you broken through? An old man in sackcloth said excitedly. Just now, he had felt an incomparably great power that enveloped this world. It was a power that surpassed the Xientian realm. Only the supreme saint cultivators could touch it. Yes, I've already broken through. This tall and sturdy man was the white tiger grand sage, Meng Ao. However, he had another identity that no one knew about. Under normal circumstances, in this world that had been sealed, it was almost impossible to reach the mortal realm. However, he was not an ordinary person because he was a member of the god fiend clan. They could break the norm. Therefore, he would become the first mortal realm warrior on this continent in hundreds of years. He was truly invincible. Pass down my orders. Gather the 36 tribes of the grassland and the 72 tribes of the desert to attack the great Zhou. The white tiger grand sage, Meng Ao, changed into a set of majestic robes and gave his orders. When the Xiongnu tribe experts heard this, they roared in acknowledgement. And the first prince the king was only a puppet. In an instant, 
countless cavalrymen left the great snow mountain and galloped to various parts of the Great Plains, conveying the orders of the great white tiger grand sage to all tribes. The Great Zhou Dynasty The Capital The Court Session in the Throne Room Empress Changning sat on the dragon throne and looked down at the officials. To his left sat the crown prince, Zhou Ming. Zhou Ming was the eldest son, while Zhou Shui was the eldest princess. They were the twins that Empress Changning had given birth to. He Chuan had only started his closed-door cultivation after accompanying her in giving birth to the children. Zhou Ming was the future hope of the great Zhou. As long as the ministers saw this cute doll, they felt that the future was full of infinite possibilities. This was because the child born from the union of Duke He and Empress Changning must have a terrifying talent. Report Urgent report from the Xiongnu tribe. Just as the Zhou dynasty's grand assembly was being held, someone suddenly ran into the main hall faster than lightning and knelt down on one knee. Present it. Empress Changning said in a deep voice. Soon, a eunuch examined the seal of the secret letter in the soldier's hand and presented the letter with three feathers. Empress Changning tore open the letter and flipped through it. Her expression changed drastically. A few days ago, the White Tiger Grand Sage Meng Ao of the Xiongnu tribe summoned 36 tribes of the grasslands and 72 tribes of the desert to attack the Great Zhou. Empress Changning said in a deep voice as she looked at the crowd with her sharp eyes. The court officials were shocked. Even though the Great Zhou and the Xiongnu tribes had been in constant conflict, it was only a small fight. At most, one of the tribes would go south to plunder. However, it was different this time. The White Tiger Grand Sage actually issued a summoning order to gather all his tribe's cavalrymen to attack the Great Zhou. This meant that they were going to fight a war that would destroy a country. Even though the Great Zhou Dynasty had been working hard for decades and its strength had greatly improved, the Zhou Dynasty was still very weak. However, the Xiongnu tribe was not weak either. After Meng Ao unified the Central Plains, their military strength had reached a terrifying level. They could easily gather millions of cavalry. Furthermore, this Meng Ao was extremely ambitious. He wanted to imprison the Heavenly King and become the true Lord of Xiongnu. Both of them were saint cultivators. However, this was only what they thought, because He Chuan had already cultivated to the extreme mortal realm. Your Majesty, the Xiongnu tribes have not given up on their evil intentions. They want to taint the rich lands of our central plains. They have the ambition of wolves. We must quickly make preparations and gather the army to head north. With the current military strength of the north, it will be very difficult to resist the charge of the wolf cavalry. Chapter, 239 That's right. Our great Zhou has formed a powerful new martial arts legion. It's time to show it to the Xiongnu tribe and let them see the might of our great Zhou army. A group of barbarians from the grassland dared to attack our central plains. We must make sure that they will never return. Your Majesty, I'm willing to go to war and lead the army to support the northern border garrison. All the ministers chimed in. The current great Zhou was no longer the same as before. Besides having a huge ordinary army, it also had four extremely powerful martial arts legions. This martial arts legion was not formed by only relying on powerful martial artists. Instead, they had strict training even the commanders were saint cultivators. The battles of the martial arts legion were no longer one-on-one -on -one battles. Instead, they could cooperate with each other. The combat strength of such a martial arts legion would increase exponentially. They had even developed battle formations suitable for the Martial Arts Legion. General Qin Yintian, you will temporarily lead the Martial Arts Legion North to support the northern border garrison. Your first mission is to assist the garrison and defend the defense line. The Empress Changning of the Great Zhou began to assigning people. Your Majesty, I also want to fight. General Long Aoyan of the Great Zhou Dynasty was a newly promoted saint cultivator. He could not wait to show off his skills. I'll assign tasks to you in the future. This war won't end too soon. Empress Chang Ming said, shaking her head. She did not dare to use new people, as the war with the Xiongnu people was no small matter. If they were not careful, they would be doomed eternally. She would wait until Chuan came out of seclusion. 
Furthermore, going to the north to help the garrison was a very dangerous mission. If they were not careful, they could be surrounded by the Xiongnu cavalry. They need to find someone with experience to fight. In the blink of an eye, a month had passed. A shocking piece of news came. Millions of Xiongnu cavalry broke through the defense of Yunshan Pass and lost the entire Liangzhou. Not long after, even more shocking news arrived. The Azure Dragon Martial Arts Legion had been completely annihilated in Ji City. Other than General Qin Yintian, the other saint cultivators had all died. Countless people were stunned. The new martial arts legion was very powerful. There were over 300 people, all of whom were Xientian realm cultivators. There were only four such armies in the entire Great Zhou dynasty. Moreover, the Azure Dragon Martial Arts Legion was the most powerful one, but it was lost just like that. Up until now, no one knew how the Azure Dragon Martial Arts Legion was completely annihilated. They only received scattered news that the Azure Dragon Martial Arts Legion was destroyed very quickly and was besieged at Jishue City. It was said that the Tiger Leopard Cavalry had appeared nearby. Normally, wherever the White Tiger Grand Sage went, the Tiger Leopard Cavalry would follow. Such news was a huge blow to the morale of the Great Zhou Dynasty. The Qilin Martial Arts Legion and the Shadow Martial Arts Legion had been sent to support the defense of these two passes. With no other choice, Empress Changning could only send her final Martial Arts Legion to the battlefield. Just in case, Empress Changning also sent a few more half-step saint cultivators to strengthen the strength of the Martial Arts Legion. Unfortunately, not long after the Luo Wang Martial Arts Legion set off, the news of the other two passes being broken also came in. She even lost contact with the Qilin Martial Arts Legion and the Shadow Martial Arts Legion. This chilled the hearts of the great Zhou Imperial Court. They were about to roar in anger. No matter how strong the Xiongnu cavalry was, they couldn't be this strong, right? In the end, the Luo Wang Martial Arts Legion retreated. The great Zhou's defense line was also fully contracted. At the same time, the Xiongnu tribe army split into three and charged forward like a hot knife through butter. The army in the middle charged straight for the capital of the Great Zhou. The Great Zhou is in danger. When millions of Xiongnu cavalry were about to invade the south, this news could not be hidden, and it quickly spread throughout the Great Zhou. However, there was no panic. Instead, countless civilian martial artists actively joined the army. Even the seven major sects and the major aristocratic families were involved. In the library pavilion, He Chuan continued to sit cross legged and cultivate the Nine Revolution Divine Gold Body technique he had just obtained. This defensive martial art had been cultivated to the limit of the sixth rank, and could break through to seventh rank at any time. His body had undergone a huge change along with the fluctuation of true essence. His entire body had become golden. Few, is this the Nine Revolution Divine Gold? I didn't expect that on the foundation of the Sixth Transformation would actually give birth to a projection feature. He Chuan clicked his tongue in wonder. The special projection feature was very simple. It could project a powerful Nine Golden Body and fix it in one place, which could be maintained for a period of time. A thought suddenly flashed through his mind. If this Nine Transformation Golden Body was strong enough and could absorb the energy of heaven and earth, wouldn't it be able to exist forever? Maybe he would have to go through several cycles in the future. Phew, I've been in seclusion for a long time. I should go out and take a look. Maybe I'm already lucky and can sign in something good. He Chuan retracted his Nine Golden Body's projection and stretched. Because of his closed-door cultivation these few years, he had specially sealed the entire secret room in order not to be disturbed. No sound from the outside could enter. He Chuan suddenly frowned. Because he found that Kai Lien was walking around anxiously outside. What was happening? He Chuan removed the seal and walked out of the quiet room. Master, millions of Xiongnu tribes have surrounded the capital of Zhou. The White Tiger Grand Sage is a saint cultivator. No one in the Great Zhou is his match. Even General Qin Yintian is heavily injured and has been unconscious for a long time. Furthermore, in less than a day, the White Tiger Grand Sage is going to sacrifice 800,000 citizens of the Great Zhou. Kai Lien said anxiously when she saw He Chuan finally appear. 
she was on the verge of tears. That's 800 people and soldiers of the great Zhou dynasty. I've only been in closed-door cultivation for about a year, and the great Zhou dynasty has already become like this. That first prince is that powerful. He Chuan felt that he had miscalculated again. It's not the puppet king, but the white tiger grand sage Meng Ao. I heard that he has already reached the mortal realm and no one in the great Zhou dynasty is his match. Kai Lian explained. He Chuan suddenly thought, did that young man with the evil look on his face finally win the power of the great Zhou dynasty? He was rather curious that the white tiger grand sage had reached the powerful mortal realm. Therefore, with a thought, he could vaguely sense a terrifying aura lurking outside the capital. Although this aura did not pose much of a threat to him, it was an irresistible force to the great Zhou dynasty. He's indeed a saint cultivator, and he's much more powerful than that other realm god fiend. He Chuan could not help but exclaim in his heart. To be able to reach the extreme mortal realm in this world, it seems that the white tiger grand sage Meng Ao also has some secrets. He touched his chin and a smile appeared on his face. Now it seemed like he had made a mistake back then and didn't notice anything special about this Meng Ao. But he didn't care. Things were still under control. He now felt that his decision to continue his closed-door cultivation was wise. It was hard to say who would win if they were at the same level. However, he was now in the sixth-rank mortal realm, so he was confident he could win. Chapter 240 Dina O.M. A brawny man with braid said in a low, muffled voice. He was the great sage's grand disciple, Meng Tian. In terms of seniority, he was equivalent to the white tiger grand sage Meng Ao's junior nephew. He was also a powerful saint cultivator. Since Meng Ao took over the serious division, many of the white tiger palace's experts followed him to the great plains. It's not the right time yet. Meng Ao said indifferently with his hands behind his back. His powerful will sensed the capital. The familiar fluctuations of the formation still existed even after a long time. It had completely integrated with the entire city and all the people in the capital. But who knew that this mysterious formation that could increase the strength of the great Zhou's defenders had other uses? As long as they sacrificed millions of great Zhou people in the capital, they would be able to completely activate that mysterious formation and open up that mysterious domain. Only when the great Zhou people's despair reached its peak would the effects of the sacrifice be best. The setup from 300 years ago was all for today. He had already sensed the fluctuations of the array gradually boiling in the void. Very soon, the feast of slaughter would begin. This belongs to me. How can I allow an outsider to occupy it? You must pay the price in blood. The white tiger grand sage Meng Ao's heart turned cold. The capital was in chaos and despair. Even the defending army was unable to maintain order. This was because there was less than a day left until the Xiongnu people would massacre the capital. Even the defending army's morale was low. They had no choice, as the Xiongnu army was suppressing the great Zhou army. The three martial arts legions had been sacrificed and destroyed. When the Xiongnu people besieged the capital, the imperial court stopped a counterattack. They had gathered a large number of high-ranked cultivators and even saint cultivators, but in the end, more than half of them died. If not for the white tiger grand sage holding back at the end, they would have lost more than half of their forces. In that battle, the white tiger grand sage displayed the mortal realm's power, causing the great Zhou's high-leveled cultivators to fall into despair. This was because the power of a celestial phenomenon was not something that human strength could contend against. At this moment, within the throne room, the atmosphere was oppressive. Fang Yuanqing's originally healthy body had become old and hunchbacked in just half a month. The great Zhou that they had spent so much effort to create was actually so fragile. Your Majesty, can you invite that high duke? An important official stood out and said. As early as thirty years ago, he was just an ordinary minister. He had the honor of seeing Duke He's elegant demeanor. At that time, He Chuan still appeared as a eunuch. At that time, many ninth-rank cultivators couldn't even withstand a single blow from Duke He. He even killed the devilish woman Lana and eight saint cultivators in the palace, forcing Cheng'en to abdicate and made changing the empress. 
although no one knew the specific details, they could still analyze and guess. For the past thirty years, he had kept it hidden in his heart and had never revealed it to anyone. Because of this, only those who were present at the scene knew that Duke he was an invincible martial saint. And now, in the imperial court, there were no more than ten of those people. He happened to be one of them. However, Yi Chuan was already in the mortal realm. Some officials standing by Ching In's side narrowed their eyes. That person had long since become a nightmare in their hearts, so in the past few decades, they had never mentioned him, and would never allow anyone to mention him. Because Yi Chuan caused Cheng In to leave the throne, their career ended along with it. This group of ministers selectively has ignored and forgotten. It is also fortunate that Yi Chuan never appeared again, so it gave them peace of mind for decades. But because of the number one martial arts conference, Yi Chuan reappeared beside Empress Changning. Only then did they realize how afraid they were of that person. After thinking for a long time, some officials smiled bitterly and shook their heads. So what if that person came out? No matter how invincible a saint cultivator was, it was useless to face a true mortal realm warrior. As for He Chuan, could he have also broken through to the extreme mortal realm? It was difficult. It was too difficult. The 900-year-old Wei Jing Chun ended up like this. He went into seclusion and never appeared again. Perhaps He Chuan would also take the same path. As time passed, his traces in this world would gradually disappear. At that time, their fear would be completely cured. Unfortunately, he no longer had the chance. A million Xiongnu people were about to attack the city, and the great Zhou's current strength was not enough to resist. Empress Changning would become the empress of a fallen country, and they would become the subjects of a fallen country. At this moment, a eunuch hurriedly came to his side, waking Empress Changning from her thoughts. Your Majesty, Duke He has appeared in the Qingyan Palace. Empress Changning was stunned. Her husband had finally come out. The Qingyan Palace was Empress Changning's palace. Although He Chuan rarely stayed here, he was either out or cultivating in the library pavilion. Sometimes, he would hug Empress Changning and say heartfelt words, and the two would rest there. He Chuan strolled around the Qingyan Palace and turned to check on the injuries of the General of the Imperial Guards, Qingyan Tian. After being treated by many saint cultivators and imperial physicians, Qin Yin Tian suffered from the extreme mortal realm's pressure, which caused his soul to be damaged. If there were no accidents, General Qin Yin Tian would become a vegetable and spend the rest of his life in a hospital bed. The Empress would rather give this great general enough respect and make an exception to let him live in the palace and be treated by the imperial physicians daily. He Chuan looked at Qin Yin Tian, who was lying quietly on the bed, breathing evenly as if he was in deep sleep. Although he was already sixty years old, Qin Yin Tian still looked very young. His body was also very strong. This old general was also the pillar of the great Zhou dynasty. Generally speaking, when one's cultivation reached the half-step saint cultivator realm, one could basically guarantee that one's aging would slow down. Moreover, the younger the person who broke through to the saint cultivator realm was, the younger they would look. Back then, the demon Empress Lana from the Outer Realm was able to charm Cheng In because of her peerless beauty and disposition. You don't have the strength, but you still want to charge forward. However, this will also show your loyalty to the great Zhou dynasty. He Chuan shook his head and took out a pill. Infused with a little power and it turned into powder. Then, He Chuan injected some power into a few of Qin Yintian's acupuncture points, accelerating his body's absorption. At the same time, He Chuan pointed his finger at Qin Yintian's glabella and cast the soul sucking spell. Chapter 241 The soul absorbing technique was not only used to capture the soul but it could also be used to communicate with the subconscious. The former was forced, and the damage was huge. The latter was a passive skill and was almost harmless. After an unknown period of time, He Chuan retracted his finger. Following that, Qin Yintian's body shifted slightly before he slowly opened his eyes. State Duke He. I am still alive am I dreaming? Qin Yintian opened his eyes and asked in disbelief. Of course, you're still alive. He Chuan laughed. Duke He, please do not go after the white tiger Grand Sage Meng Ao. 
His powers are too terrifying. He is already a saint cultivator. You are no match for him. Qin Yintian suddenly thought of something and hurriedly said. Oh, old General Qin, how can you be so sure that this duke is not his opponent? He Chuan didn't know whether to laugh or cry. You are not in the mortal realm yet. How could you be Meng Ao's opponent? Now the Xiongnu tribe has surrounded the city, and we cannot escape anywhere. We'll die sooner or later. Qin Yintian said, very disappointed. There are variables in this world, and this was not yet the end. He Chuan said with a smile. Duke He, did you break through to the mortal realm after a year of closed-door cultivation? Qin Yintian's eyes widened. He knew that Duke He never bragged. Since he was so confident, he must have reached the mortal realm. At this moment, a strong hope was born in his heart. Perhaps, Duke He could really save the great Zhou dynasty once again. I guess so. He Chuan smiled. At this moment, a domineering voice rang out from outside the capital. It resounded through the sky like a shadow, suffocating the millions of people in the capital. Xiongnu Iron Cavalry, hear my order. Break into the capital and kill all the dogs of the Zhou dynasty. Immediately after, a tsunami-like howl echoed. It was the brutal cries of the millions of Xiongnu people. The Xiongnu people are about to attack the city. Qin Yintian's face turned pale. This was because he knew that the royalties, the soldiers, and the common people would all suffer a destructive massacre once the capital was breached. Moreover, the voice contained a terrifying sense of oppression that was suffocating. This was the power of the mortal realm. Just his voice alone could intimidate a saint cultivator. He was almost unable to resist. He had experienced this feeling of powerlessness and despair before. With this duke here, the Xiongnu people won't be able to do anything for long. He Chuan laughed. Following that, he grabbed Qin Yintian and flew away, quickly landing on the highest building in the imperial city. From here, one could see the entire capital city clearly, even the outside of the capital city. A flood of millions of Xiongnu soldiers could be seen outside the city, and it was suffocating. At this moment, the morale of the entire capital's army was at its lowest. It wasn't just the pressure from the one million cavalries. The aura of the mortal realm was also constantly shrouding the capital. That would be the most fatal. High-ranked grandmasters and saint cultivators couldn't even unleash their full power, so they had to constantly bear the suppression of the pressure of the mortal realm. Using the pressure of a mortal realm warrior to oppress our Zhou dynasty's warriors. He's bullying the weak. This Meng Ao is too much. He Chuan shook his head. In the next moment, he directly released the power of the mortal realm. It spread out and enveloped the entire capital city, repelling the pressure of the white tiger Grand Sage Meng Ao. At the same time, a calm voice sounded in the sky above the capital. Meng Ao, are you trying to bully the great Zhou Empire for not having any mortal realm cultivator? He Chuan's calm voice resounded through the sky, shaking the entire Xiongnu people. He Chuan's voice echoed in the air. This was the sound of supreme pressure, as terrifying as a mountain that weighed 10,000 pounds. This was the terror of the mortal realm. With just a question, the aggressive Xiongnu people were scared to the point they didn't dare to continue being arrogant. This was a powerful strength. This voice also encouraged the entire Zhou dynasty. After being humiliated for so long, it was finally something that could make the people, soldiers, and ministers of the great Zhou rejoice. He Chuan was like a shot of cardiac stimulant. While everyone was overjoyed, they also saw hope for the future. This was something that had never happened before. At this moment, the haze over the entire capital city had dissipated. The experts of the Zhou dynasty were also shocked. This powerful aura was definitely not the aura of the white tiger saint, Meng Ao. As saint cultivators, they were very sensitive to such auras. Now that the Zhou dynasty had a saint cultivator, it was simply too shocking. This is so praiseworthy. He Chuan. I've been waiting for you for a long time. If you are willing to become a member of the Xiongnu people, I will spare these people's lives from the great Zhou dynasty. Meng Ao said calmly as he sat in the carriage. I'm afraid I'm no longer fit to be a member of the grasslands. 
you've killed too many people of the great Zhou dynasty. I'm not going to forgive you, He Chuan shook his head and sighed. This is not a big deal. As long as you are willing to let go of your hatred, the whole world will still be ours. Meng Ao smiled. He Chuan, on the other hand, could vaguely feel a hint of killing intent. This killing intent was extremely obscure. If He Chuan's cultivation hadn't increased, it would have been difficult to sense it. What a glib tongue. Starred, why the white tiger saint need to kill you himself? I'm enough to kill you. The brawny man Meng Ao said. He was now at the peak of the ninth rank saint cultivation realm, only one step away from the mortal realm. He Chuan lowered his head and took a sip of tea. The sword on Qin Yintian's waist suddenly appeared in his hand, and he slashed at Meng Tian, who had just entered the capital. Since there was a bird that stood out, he didn't mind getting rid of it first. Swish! A blazing sun suddenly appeared three meters above Meng Tian's head. It shot out a dazzling white light and emitted a strong heat. The surroundings were instantly baked. The scorching sun was as large as a wheel, its radiance reaching far into the sky. It illuminated Meng Ao, He Chuan, and the entire capital city. It was so bright that Qin Yintian could not open his eyes. In front of the scorching sun, the sword in He Chuan's hand seemed insignificant. Meng Tian's eyes glowed with anger as she was about to roar. He had never expected He Chuan to be the first to attack. He had been prepared to make the first move. As soon as he made a move, the eighteen saint cultivators of the White Tiger Palace would rush in to help, and He Chuan would die without a doubt. He didn't expect to be one step late and for He Chuan to beat him to it. The sword silently streaked across the scorching sun and the space between his eyebrows. It was like a hot knife cutting through butter, and everything was silent. The blazing sun disappeared. The entire capital became dark. He Chuan opened his eyes and looked at Meng Ao, who was tongue-tied and wanted to roar but couldn't make a sound. Meng Tian's face was filled with unwillingness and anger. His eyes were wide open, and the divine light in his eyes had been extinguished. He had turned into an angry Vitra statue. This was a statue with an imposing aura. Although it was still, it gave people the feeling that it was channeling its power to launch an attack containing a strong impact. He Chuan suddenly disappeared. He suddenly disappeared. When the eighteen saint cultivators of the White Tiger Palace climbed over the city walls and rushed into the city. All they saw was Meng Tian, who was motionless. Chapter, 242 White Tiger God, please bless us. The eighteen saint cultivations of the White Tiger Palace chanted the name of Buddha. They immediately felt that something was wrong and stepped forward. Sect Master. The eighteen saint cultivators of the White Tiger Palace shouted at the same time. White Tiger God, please bless us. The eighteen saint cultivators of the White Tiger Palace lowered their heads and put their palms together. Their faces were solemn. The headmaster had ascended to Nirvana. It was sad and joyful. They turned their heads, but they could not see He Chuan in the attic. He Chuan, that dog thief, is really powerful. A middle-aged monk said slowly. He's indeed a vicious person. He can't have run far. I'm afraid he's already out of the capital. This dog is really bold. He actually. Let us split up and search for this devil. I'll take a look. A middle-aged lama with a bamboo-thin body and dim eyes calmly said. The remaining seventeen people shut their mouths and stared at him. His dharma eyes were enough to find that bastard he chuan. The middle-aged monk closed his eyes and opened an eye between his brows. It was a golden vertical pupil, cold and indifferent, like a god looking down at all living beings in the world, without sorrow, joy, emotionless, and without anger. The middle-aged monk closed his eyes and turned his head. His golden vertical pupils slightly narrowed. The seventeen saint cultivators were all shocked. Being stared at by the golden vertical pupil, his body instantly became as stiff as stone and could not move. Only when the golden vertical pupil looked elsewhere did his body slowly recover. The power of this divine eye was evident. A moment later, the golden pupil suddenly changed shape, from vertical to horizontal, 
like a long and narrow human eye. With a muffled bang, golden light suddenly burst out of his vertical pupils. The golden light was like dozens of golden swords. He Chuan was standing on the tallest building in the capital, looking back at the eighteen saint cultivators of the White Tiger Palace. His eyes were also golden. It was the heavenly divine eye ability he had cultivated in the past. At this moment, a god statue appeared above his head. It had handsome facial features, three eyes, a long sword in its hand, and a huge dog on its back. The huge dog was the size of a tiger. It looked honest, energetic, and high-spirited. He Chuan felt that it was God Erlang from the myths and legends, but it was also different from God Erlang, Yang Jin. It seemed to be true, but it wasn't. He stopped thinking about it after he was a little confused. At this moment, the statue's vertical pupils were flowing with a hazy golden light, like the melting moonlight. He Chuan's vertical pupils shot out golden light, but it was like the golden light of the rising sun in the morning. On the streets of the capital. Crack. With a crisp sound, the golden light disappeared, and the golden flat pupil also disappeared from the center of his brows. The tall and thin monk opened his eyes wide, but the light in his eyes quickly disappeared. He stood there without moving and turned into a statue. Senior Brother Chin. Someone called out. The tall and thin lama had died. White Tiger God, please bless us. The remaining seventeen lamas chanted the name of Buddha in unison, solemn and grand. At this moment, the solemn and sorrowful call of Buddha resounded through the entire capital. Even a rat dares to bark. He Chuan suddenly appeared in front of them and waved his sleeves lightly. Before the seventeen lamas could even react, they all became corpses. Killing them would be too easy. You dare to kill the people of my white tiger palace? He Chuan, you'll die today. Meng Ao shouted as his true energy surged out. He raised his right hand and slapped down from dozens of miles away. Elemental energy surged, and the water in the moat began to churn. A glittering pillar of light quickly smashed down on He Chuan. Interesting. He Chuan's expression was calm. He wanted to see how strong Meng Ao was and how different a true god was. The light pillar was already approaching, and He Chuan had no time to escape. However, He Chuan was not afraid. He immediately poured out his vital essence and turned around to strike. Bang! He Chuan's palm instantly shattered the light pillar that was rapidly approaching. The water of the moat was raging, and the shattered elemental energy shot out in all directions in the moat. He Chuan didn't stop. After sending Qin Yin Tian off, he retreated once more. However, Meng Ao was already prepared. He did not wait for He Chuan to retreat before he attacked. His true energy surged out like a mountain and pressed down on He Chuan. He Chuan furrowed his brows and opened his arms wide. The blood jade spear appeared out of thin air. Buzz. The moment the bloody jade spear appeared, He Chuan did not hesitate at all. He immediately thrust the spear in his hand at Meng Ao. Humph. Meng Ao snorted and leaped into the air, avoiding the spear. He shook his shoulder and slapped He Chuan with his right hand. Before the fierce palm wind could approach He Chuan, the violent vital essence still blew He Chuan's long hair into the moat water. He Chuan's eyes narrowed. He stepped forward and dodged the palm wind. At the same time, he threw his blood jade spear at Meng Ao. The handle of the blood jade spear wasn't very sharp, but it carried a terrifying force. It shook the water away and instantly smashed into Meng Ao. Bang! With a muffled sound, Meng Ao's body that had jumped up was sent flying. After forcing Meng Ao back with his spear, He Chuan didn't follow up with another attack. Instead, he turned around and shot towards the west. After a short exchange, He Chuan had a basic understanding of Meng Ao's strengths. At least, he was at the second rank of the mortal stage. He was not He Chuan's opponent at all. However, he didn't want to start a war near the capital, in case the other party was driven into a corner and killed the civilians. You can't leave. Meng Ao thought He Chuan was afraid. The deafening roar of the white tiger reverberated in the sea. Meng Ao's body had already turned into a hundred-meter-long purple-white tiger. 
Meng Ao's entire white tiger body glowed with a crystalline purple light, making the entire purple white tiger look ferocious and terrifying. At the same time, a powerful pressure spread out and instantly locked onto He Chuan, who was quickly escaping. Meng Ao had only revealed his true form for an instant. His hundred meter long white tiger body twisted and his entire body was like a ray of light. In an instant, he had caught up to He Chuan. I said, you can't escape. The mouth on Meng Ao's giant white tiger head opened and closed slightly. The words that came out of the mouth were filled with killing intent. Before he could finish his sentence, Meng Ao's thick white tiger tail suddenly swung towards He Chuan. Buzz! The white tiger's tail, which was as thick as an arm, shattered the water of the moat, causing the water around He Chuan to instantly thin. At the same time, it brought with it an unparalleled destructive power as it struck down. The purple evil white tiger's tail was many times faster than the blazing blood demon eels. He Chuan had already found out during his previous battle with Di Jiu. It turned out that true god fiend could also change their bodies. This was something He Chuan had not expected. He had indeed underestimated this group of otherworldly god fiend. When Meng Ao's white tiger tail came down, it was like a huge mountain. It was not slow and was as fast as lightning. He Chuan easily dodged it. The moat's water churned, and mud rose. The waves splashed and the sea rocks shattered. The originally clear water of the moat immediately became muddy. Those who offend my white tiger palace will die. The ferocious purple demon white tiger roared. The hundred meter long white tiger twisted its body again and turned into a purple light, instantly smashing toward He Chuan. Meng Ao wanted to kill He Chuan. He Chuan's pale face was expressionless. The moment Meng Ao attacked, countless green rays shot out like venomous snakes. Their twisted bodies instantly covered He Chuan. Chapter 243 If this is all you're capable of, I'll be very disappointed. Other than beast transformation, which is a little surprising, the other techniques are boring. He Chuan had thought that the White Tiger Grand Sage, Meng Ao, would be able to display more of his abilities. However, he did not expect that to be all he had. If he didn't have any other abilities, it would sound like an insult to Meng Ao. He didn't expect things to turn out like this. He had successfully broken through to the mortal realm but still couldn't become a truly invincible existence. Could it be that He Chuan had found the secret? Did he find the treasure? He wasn't very sure. The person who snatched the bronze fragment that day was you. Meng Ao recalled that he was still a saint cultivator when he was fighting with the eldest princess's subordinates for the fragment. At that time, the treasure had been quietly taken away. It was definitely He Chuan's doing. You're not stupid. The bronze fragment is indeed in my hands. He Chuan said calmly. Since you're looking for death, I'll fulfill your wish. A human voice came from Meng Ao's mouth, and his huge body suddenly released a red mist. The entire sky was dyed scarlet. The clouds in the sky were also like blood mist. Meng Ao's life force was quickly consumed, and he became weaker and weaker. Even after transforming into a beast, it could still be used as a sacrifice. It had something more to offer compared to the demonic god of the northern Shaolin temple. He Chuan had not expected this. However, he didn't care. He started to use his true energy and Taishan scripture. The saint domain spread out and covered Meng Ao. He didn't dare to play any tricks. In this area, no one could shake him. The surrounding blood mist disappeared into his domain. No matter how much life force Meng Ao sacrificed, he couldn't break free. His domain was very effective against Meng Ao. It's actually the Saint Realm. You're above the third rank mortal realm. Meng Ao's animalized eyes revealed a look of fear. This was something that he had not expected. He thought He Chuan had only entered the mortal realm by chance. But now, it seemed that things had gone beyond his imagination. A feeling of despair began to spread in his mind. More importantly, his sacrifice had been stopped. If he could not complete the sacrifice, he would not be able to transform into his final form. This situation made him extremely desperate. 
why did he Chuan have to appear when he thought he was invincible? The saint realm, which could only be possessed by those above the third stage of the mortal realm, had appeared and interrupted his sacrifice. Was the heavens too cruel to him? Why did it have to be like this? He went speechless and can't help but ask the heavens. He Chuan reached out his huge palm and grabbed the purple demon tiger in the air. No matter how Meng Ao struggled, it was useless. I've planned for most of my life, but I didn't expect to die in your heart in the end. I'm not willing. Meng Ao's tiger eyes were filled with endless anger. If he could move, he would have swallowed He Chuan. Unfortunately, he had completely lost the ability to resist. He Chuan only needed to pinch him slightly, and Meng Ao, who had been so arrogant just now, would be turned into ashes, not even leaving behind his divine sense. If you kill me, you'll never know the secret of the central plains. You'll definitely regret it when the time comes. The mortal realm isn't the end. Meng Ao seemed to have grabbed onto his last hope and started to grow crazily. In his opinion, no matter who it was, they would definitely be interested in the hidden secret. People like He Chuan wanted to explore the mysteries of it because it was the hope of the strong. Interesting. You're still in the mood to negotiate with me now. Do you think I can't do anything to you? He Chuan's soul absorbing technique was not just for show. With a thought, he Chuan's powerful spiritual power instantly began to sweep through the other party's sea of consciousness. Ah! The pain in the soul was more agonizing than the physical pain Meng Ao wanted to die immediately. Meng Ao was filled with regret. Why did he have to meet He Chuan? If he continued cultivating in the snow mountain and came out after reaching a particular realm, it was hard to say who would win. However, it was useless to regret it now. Was the other party really human? Or was he also a hidden race? Unfortunately, he didn't know that He Chuan was a cheater. Meng Ao felt that he must have forgotten to check the Chinese calendar when he left the house, which was why he was so unlucky to meet He Chuan. He could only resist with all his might, not wanting He Chuan to collect his memories. However, the remaining will was gradually worn out, and his consciousness began to blur. The scenery in front of him was also blurry, and the secrets in the depths of his brain began to spread. After some time, He Chuan slowly opened his eyes. He looked as if he had expected this. Compared to the gods from the Northern Shaolin Temple, this Meng Ao was clearly of a higher level in the clan. The other party was very clear about some of the core secrets. He didn't think the other party had such a shocking secret. If he hadn't discovered it, it would have been easy for him to get what he wanted. The other party was just too impatient, or else it would be hard to say. This shocking secret now belonged to He Chuan. A smile appeared on his face. Decades of planning had gone down the drain. No wonder Meng Ao was so depressed when he died. So the Zhou dynasty had such a secret. However, to activate the great formation of the Zhou dynasty, one had to trigger the great octagon formation. He still had other things to do. He would first make Liya a true female king, so that the Xiongnu and Zhou dynasty would not have another war for the next hundred years. As for the Xiongnu soldiers, they had to pay the price because the people and soldiers of Great Zhou would not die in vain. The White Tiger Grand Sage Meng Ao was dead. Everyone in the capital could see it clearly, making them finally relax. The people and soldiers in the city let out a deafening cheer. Because with State Duke he around, they could win. In the Xiongnu camp, millions of soldiers felt a sense of despair. This was the emotion they had given to the people of the Great Zhou. Now, He Chuan had returned them all. The invincible White Tiger Grand Sage, Meng Ao, had been beaten by He Chuan to the point where he couldn't even fight back. He was an expert in the extreme mortal realm. How did he become like this? Be it essence, energy, or spirit. It caused the Xiongnu soldiers to fall. Their sage, the White Tiger Palace's king, had fallen just like that. Their faith had crumbled. General, the White Tiger Sage has already passed away. Should we retreat back to the plains? Someone suggested. Meng Tian and Meng Ao were both dead. They had no chance. If they didn't retreat, they might face the danger of being destroyed. This sentence immediately resonated with them, and they seemed to have found their direction. 
Only by retreating to the grasslands now could they keep their lives. Countless Xiongnu cavalry immediately wanted to leave. The Xiongnu soldiers, who were arrogant before, quickly retreated. Whether it was a general or an official, no one could stop the army from retreating. Chapter 244 It wasn't that they didn't want to care, but he couldn't do anything. At the same time, they must have the same thought in their hearts. Let's leave this troublesome place first. After killing the citizens of the Great Zhou Dynasty and trampling the land of the Great Zhou Dynasty, you still want to leave so easily? He Chuan stood in the air and sneered as he looked at the Xiongnu cavalry that was trying to escape. He waved his palm at the escaping Xiongnu cavalry. Sand flew in the air, and the trees on the ground were uprooted. It was like the end of the world. Empress Changning held Zhou Ming and Zhou Shui in her arms as she looked at He Chuan, who was displaying his divine might. Her heart was filled with pride. This is your father, the most powerful man in the world. She said gently to her children. A golden palm that covered the sky pressed down from the air. That shocking scene not only caused the Xiongnu cavalry to tremble in fear but also caused everyone in the capital to feel shocked. If Yi Chuan's move landed in the capital, the entire capital would be reduced to dust. They did not doubt the power of this palm. He Chuan, who was in the sky, looked calmly at the Xiongnu cavalry that was still running away. Since he had attacked, the Xiongnu soldiers had no chance to escape. In fact, the Xiongnu people were already very powerful, and even if they did not include Meng Ao and Meng Tian, they still had millions of soldiers. In addition, there were 300 ninth rank Xientian cultivators, 500 half step saint cultivators, and 10 saint cultivators. It was enough to sweep the Zhou dynasty. Unfortunately, they faced He Chuan, a sixth rank powerhouse who had reached the mortal realm. Experts of the same realm could fight against him, but the rest were simply not able to last a single round. They were facing the terrifying He Chuan, and his palm seemed to be able to suppress the world. Everyone, let's resist together. Some saint cultivators saw that things were bad and quickly gathered the strong people around them to attack together, trying to find a chance of survival. Under this pressure, the ordinary soldiers' mouths and noses had already begun to bleed. As the golden palm continued to descend, countless soldiers exploded and died. Boom! An earthquake-like sound rang out, and the entire earth trembled. However, those in the capital didn't feel anything, which showed that He Chuan's control of his power had reached the point of perfection. Otherwise, many houses in the capital and the surrounding areas would collapse, causing immeasurable losses. When the smoke and dust gradually disappeared, a huge pit in the shape of a terrifying palm appeared a hundred miles away from the capital. It was as terrifying as a blood-stained abyss. The one million Xiongnu cavalry and experts were buried in the pit, but they had all turned into dust and disappeared. It saved them the trouble of cleaning. The crisis of the great Zhou dynasty was once again resolved with Yichuan's appearance. After this battle, everyone finally came to their senses. What number one in the world? Only an expert like State Duke he could be called the number one expert in the world. In the entire Zhou dynasty, there was probably no one who was his match. He usually didn't show off. At this critical moment, he was able to save the Zhou dynasty from disaster. This was so the brutal Xiongnu people would not massacre the people of the great Zhou dynasty. He Chuan looked into the distance, and his anticipation for the secret of the central plains grew. His figure disappeared, and in the blink of an eye, he was beside Changning. As a result, he carefully held his son and daughter carefully in his arms the strong appearance just now had disappeared. This time, thanks to husband who acted in time and saved the great Zhou dynasty. Empress Changning looked at He Chuan with a happy smile. As long as her lover was here, she would be fine. Next time, I am preparing to return to the grasslands with Liya and make her the female king. By then, the Xiongnu and Great Zhou can be peaceful for many years. He Chuan planted a kiss on Zhou Shui's cheek. He actually preferred his daughter more. This should be a common problem for most men. After he helped Liya become the new king of the plains, he would continue to search for the secrets hidden in the central plains. A gentle breeze blew past, and the dark clouds over the capital slowly dispersed. Just like the current situation, the sky cleared up after the rain. 
the golden sunlight shone on everyone's faces, warm and comfortable. Master. Lia pulled Kai Lian's hand and ran over. She didn't go to watch He Chuan and Meng Ao fight. However, she actually hoped that her master would win. Whether it was the puppet king or the white tiger sage Meng Ao, they did not want Lia and the eldest princess to return to the plains. He even wanted to kill them directly. However, the death of a million Xiongnu people made her feel sad. After all, they were her own people. There were so many people, and not even their bones were left behind. They died on the way to participate in the war. Were they guilty? Yes. However, their sins were because of the heavenly king in Meng Ao above, which was why they were in this state. You should prepare yourself. We'll return to the grassland and take back the position that belongs to you. He Chuan's words were filled with confidence. Even Meng Ao was no match for him, so what could the puppet heavenly king do? There was no chance to resist at all. Whoever He Chuan wanted to take the throne of the kingdom would be able to do so. If they wanted to resist, Meng Ao would be their example. Big sister. Liya thought of the eldest princess and wondered if the two of them would compete in the future. I think life in the Zhou dynasty is very suitable for her. It's better to stay here than to go back to the grassland and suffer. He Chuan's words had already announced the rest of the eldest princess's life. She would never have the chance to return to the plains. She could only live in the Zhou dynasty and had nothing to do with the Xiongnu people. Princess Lia, don't worry. Our Zhou dynasty is vast and abundant in resources. There's a place for the eldest princess to live a better life. Empress Changning picked up Zhou Ming and Zhou Shui from He Chuan's arms and asked the nanny to take them to take a nap. When Lia heard He Chuan and Empress Changning's words, the stone in her heart was finally lifted. She had already lost all of her family, and after the first prince returned to the grasslands to seize the throne of the king, he killed all of her brothers and sisters. The eldest princess and Lia were lucky enough to escape the calamity because they were in the Zhou dynasty. When He Chuan returned to the grassland, he would definitely kill the first prince. That left the two sisters. Lienner, go and pack the clothes. We'll set off tomorrow. After He Chuan finished speaking, he left with Empress Changning. Tonight would be a night for the couple, for they didn't know when they would meet again. Lia came to the eldest princess's temporary residence and prepared to bid her farewell. Sixth sister, you have to manage our tribe well in the future. I'm afraid it will take at least a few decades to recover from this loss. The eldest princess was shocked after watching the battle between Meng Ao and He Chuan. At the same time, she also understood one thing. The king's position was no longer of her concern. Everyone had underestimated He Chuan. No one had expected this man's realm to be beyond their imagination. There were no records of it in the books. Big sister. Silly girl, I've already gotten over it. You're the only sister I have left. The eldest princess rubbed Leah's head. A smart woman knew when to advance and retreat. Chapter 245 Xiongnu Tribe The Heaven King knew that after Meng Ao died, he would quickly regain his power and was ready to make his final struggle. Furthermore, He Chuan and Lia had given the Heavenly King a chance. You bastard who killed your own father, I will avenge all the dead people of the Xiongnu tribe. Lia said from the moral high ground. Ha, huh, you make it sound so grand. This king is right here. If you have the ability, come and take it. The heavenly king laughed out loud. It was all for that position. He was just a little more ruthless. Go to hell. Lia attacked instantly. The water autumn sword had a huge power that shook the entire Xiongnu tribe. It actually created a two meter wide, one thousand meter wide, pitch black ditch. Just the terrifying gorge that spread for a thousand meters was enough to make one's hair stand on end. Whoosh! The endless lake water gushed into the ditch, instantly forming a whirlpool, causing the water within a hundred miles to surge violently. Humph! You escaped quite quickly. However, you still have to die. The heavenly king emerged from the vortex and pounced toward Liao. He had also reached the saint cultivator realm, the same realm as Liao. Liao dodged quickly, 
shifting her position at the critical moment and avoiding the attack. Otherwise, death was certain. However, even if he managed to escape the first time, it would be difficult to escape the second time. The same technique might not be able to achieve the same effect if it was used repeatedly. This caused Lia to frown as she dodged quickly. Just now, the Heavenly King had almost injured her, causing her speed to slow down even more, and she was temporarily unable to escape the pursuit of the Heavenly Khan. Buzz! The Heaven King was as fast as lightning, its body twisting in the air as it closed in on Lia. A terrifying true energy burst out, giving Lia strong pressure in the lake. Lia's eyes turned cold as she changed direction and dodged to the side, trying to escape the pursuit of the Heavenly King. However, she had underestimated Meng Ao's speed. Just as He Chuan changed direction, the Heavenly King's body also changed direction and attacked He Chuan again. The long sword in his hand swung and instantly struck Lia's body. Bang! There was a muffled sound accompanied by the sound of bones breaking. He Chuan's body once again shot backward like a meteor. Pfft! Bright red blood splattered in an arc in the lake as Lia smashed into the water. The Heavenly King narrowed his eyes and stared at Lia. Right now, the only thing he wanted to do was to tear Lia and He Chuan into pieces. These two had not only destroyed the Xiongnu cavalry, but they had also deprived him of the chance to continue being the king. Seeing that the Heavenly King was still about to attack Lia, He Chuan sent out a palm strike. The Heavenly King fell to the ground like a kite with a broken string. If you tell me anything about your cooperation with the gods, I can give you a quick death. Otherwise, I have hundreds of ways to torture you until you tell me everything. He Chuan stood in front of the Heavenly King, raised his right foot, and lightly stepped on his chest as he coldly spoke. Ha ha ha. You're hilarious. Do you think this king will be afraid? The Heavenly King's originally emotionless face suddenly revealed a smile at this moment, and it turned into a hearty laugh. He Chuan suddenly furrowed his brows, and the coldness on his face became even more intense. His vital essence spread out, and his right foot, which was stepping on the chest of the Seven Demons Hall's Vice Hall Master, slightly exerted force. The smile on the Heavenly King's face froze, and he felt a sweetness in his throat as he spat out blood. He Chuan's heavy kick made the Seven Demons Hall's Vice Hall Master feel like a mountain was pressing down on his chest, causing his chest to cave in. The already heavily injured body of the Heavenly Kings became even more serious. Is it funny? I'm telling you, my patience is limited. I want to give you a dignified death. I'll make you beg for death if you're not willing. He Chuan said coldly as he withdrew the demonic elemental energy on his right foot after seeing the Heavenly King vomit blood. He didn't have a hobby of torturing people. If they were willing to cooperate, it would be a happy situation. Although He Chuan really wants to execute the Heavenly King on the spot, he's even more interested in knowing how many secrets he knows about the gods. The more detailed, the better. Do you want to know who sent me? You'll know when you see this. The Heavenly King wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth and looked at He Chuan with a smile. His right hand touched his waist, and a purple waist token the size of a palm shot out. He Chuan frowned and took the waist token. He carefully looked at the words on it. The Sacred Soul Island. He squinted his eyes and furrowed his brows as he asked in confusion. I became the king of the plains not only because of Meng Ao, but also because of their palace master. The power of the gods is beyond your imagination. If they were united, the entire world would be theirs. The heavenly Khan reached his right hand into his waist again and took out a bronze fragment. Where did this thing come from? He Chuan looked at the words on it. The words Jingzhou were written on it. It should be from Jingzhou. He was very curious as to how the Heavenly King had found it. But it's a pity it'll soon turn into a fine powder. The Heaven Khan's expression turned cold as he forcefully gathered his elemental energy and channeled it into his right hand, crushing down on the bronze fragment. Not many people knew about the secret of the bronze fragment, but He Chuan was sure that the Heavenly King knew a lot. After all, Meng Ao had personally searched for the bronze fragment. Through the soul-collecting technique, he knew that it was the map provided by the Heavenly King. 
And what the heavenly king needed now was for He Chuan to temporarily let his guard down and focus all his attention on him. Small tricks. He Chuan said in disdain. And in He Chuan's opinion, although the heavenly king was the murderer of Tong Dun Chanyu, he was definitely not the mastermind of the whole incident. Therefore, he wanted to find the mastermind and exterminate him. Behind Meng Ao were the others. After all, Meng Ao had personally gone to search for the bronze fragment. Through the soul collecting technique, he knew that it was the map provided by the Heaven Khan. And what the Heavenly Khan needed now was for He Chuan to temporarily let his guard down and focus all his attention on him. Small tricks. He Chuan said in disdain. The moment the Heavenly King clenched his fist, he Chuan immediately exerted force with his right foot on the chest of the Seven Demons Hall's deputy hall master, causing the Heavenly King's chest, which had just recovered, to cave in again. Blood spurted out from the Heavenly King's mouth once again. His chest felt as heavy as a mountain, causing the vital essence that the deputy hall master had just mustered to disappear completely. The hand that was holding the bronze fragment also fell down powerlessly. After stopping the Heavenly King's attempt to destroy the bronze fragment, He Chuan did not hesitate. He reached out his right hand and snatched the bronze fragment. With the bronze fragment taken away, a smile suddenly appeared on the pale face of the Heavenly King. A bright smile, a bright smile that showed that his evil plan had succeeded. He Chuan's expression was still calm. He immediately controlled the Heavenly King and called Lia over. Even if the Heavenly King had a great scheme, it would be useless now. Lia instantly pounced on the Heavenly King's back, the blade of her sword flashing with a cold light as she stabbed into Heaven King's back. She had to avenge her father. Chapter, 246 Spurt There was a slightly muffled sound, and the Heavenly King's body, which was dodging, suddenly stopped. A dark red color immediately seeped out from the corner of his mouth. BTCH, you dare to kill me. The Heavenly King slowly turned his head and looked in disbelief at the pair of eyes filled with killing intent. Bastard, you can go to hell. Leah's voice rang out, causing the Heavenly King's frozen body to tremble slightly. This was a sign of extreme anger. Originally, he had dreamed of using the power of the bronze fragment to kill He Chuan by surprise, then turning around to kill Lia and become the true king of the grassland. He no longer needed to be a puppet. This move was originally meant for Meng Ao, but he didn't expect it to be useless. However, it was precisely this overconfidence that had caused him harm. Get lost. The Heavenly King let out an angry roar, turned around, and struck out with his palm. Leah's eyes flickered slightly, but she did not seem to have the intention to dodge at all. Facing the Heavenly King's palm strike, she also raised her palm to meet it. Bang! With a muffled sound, Lia didn't move at all, but the Heavenly King was sent flying several meters back, landing heavily on the ground. Aren't you afraid of death? The Heavenly King was lying on the ground, raising his head with difficulty to look at Lia's cold expression, blood flowing out of his mouth. Afraid, of course, I'm afraid. But because I'm afraid of death, I messed up your true essence when I attacked just now. You won't be able to use your vital essence for a day, and I will be able to avenge my father. Lia walked towards the heavenly king and raised the sword in her hand. How will you kill me if you can't use your vital essence? Lia's tone was very slow and unhurried, but it still made the other party feel that it was ear-piercing. They won't let you go. They are more powerful than you can imagine, the heavenly king seemed to have adapted to the poison in his body and said with a dark expression. Oh, really? I'm afraid you don't know that my master is already in the mortal realm. The white tiger grand sage Meng Ao did not even last one move against my master. Lia slowly walked to the heavenly king's side and knelt down. What did you just say? Can't win against one move. Mortal realm? The heavenly king said in disbelief. He thought He Chuan and Meng Ao were both at the pinnacle of the legendary ninth rank saint cultivator. However, he did not expect the two of them were in a realm beyond his imagination. So, go to hell. Leah's water autumn sword had pierced through the heart of the heavenly king. A mysterious island. From today onwards, the seven devil hall will no longer exist on the sacred soul island. 
Because Meng Ao is dead, everything will belong to this one. The black hair behind Su Fenyu's back fluttered in the wind. He was wearing a red robe to exude a fierce aura. His smile was full of fear, and his life was like a blade of grass that could be destroyed with a flick of a finger. In the void, Su Fengyu looked at the seven devil halls as hall master, who had exploded in an instant, and the corners of his mouth curled up again, revealing a demonic smile. It was as if killing the other party with a snap of his fingers was no different from crushing an ant to him. However, the forest was already in a sorry state because of the seven hall master's sudden explosion, and blood mist lingered in the air, condensed, and did not dissipate. It gradually drifted away with the wind. The wind and clouds receded in the sky, and the thunder disappeared. Even the pitch-black spatial rift as thick as an arm slowly closed up and disappeared. The sky once again returned to its cloudless state. Burp. When the blood mist entered his body, Su Fengyu burped as if he had just had a full meal. To the explosion of the light beam, the seven devil halls as deputy hall master, who had their clothes torn by the flowing essence power, awkwardly raised their head and looked up at Su Fengyu, who was standing high up in the air, with a shocked expression. It's him. The seven devil halls as deputy hall master says in surprise. It was the first time the deputy hall master of the seven devil halls had seen Su Fengyu, who was floating in the sky. However, he was very familiar with the pressure that Su Fengyu was exuding. So it's actually him. The deputy hall master of the seven demons hall lay on the ground in a daze. His long, narrow eyes slightly narrowed as he looked at Su Fengyu, feeling lost. The pressure he exudes was exactly the same as that of the mysterious man who tries to kill the seven devil halls as deputy hall master but was stopped by Meng Ao, who eventually takes the seven devil halls for Symbol's blood cauldron. They were all from the same race, but there was no lack of infighting between them. In other words, the mysterious person who injured the Seven Devil Hall's deputy hall master, caused the death of his parents, and ordered his subordinates to take the Four Symbols' blood cauldrons away was this realm lord who killed the Seven Devil Hall's hall master with a flick of his finger. This result made the deputy hall master of the Seven Devil Hall feel helpless. After all, the Seven Devil Hall's deputy hall master still had the thought of killing that realm lord to avenge his parents. Now, it seemed that the difference between the two was not small. Arg. The feeling of being free again was great. It's a pity that Meng Ao is already dead. Su Fengyu didn't seem to notice the gaze of the Seven Devil Hall's deputy hall master. Instead, he stretched out his arms and said with an evil smile and a lazy expression on his face. Greetings to the Realm Lord. Zhuo Chui, who was hovering in the air not far away from Su Fengyu, was so excited that he was on the verge of tears. He quickly knelt in the air and cowed out. Disciples Wa Chui, congratulate the Realm Lord for escaping. Eh. Yours Wa Chui. Su Fengyu glanced at Zhuo Chui and asked softly. He seemed to have recalled something. Realm Lord, it's this disciple. Zhuo Chui cowed out again and answered respectfully. Hmm very well, Zhuo Chui, you've assisted me in descending to this world. I'll definitely reward you well. Su Fengyu only glanced at Zhuo Chui and then looked away into the distance, laughing. Thank you, Realm Lord. It's this disciple's honor to be able to serve the Realm Lord, I don't dare to have the slightest hope. Zhuo Chui said respectfully while still kneeling in the void. Buzz. Before Zhuo Chui could finish his sentence, the Seven Devil Hall's Great Elder, who was flying over at high speed, stopped his attack in mid-air and landed behind Zhuo Chui with a turn of his body. Zhuo Chui, as the current Hall Master of the Nine Souls Hall and the Divine Inyang Ghost General, how can you kneel so casually? Hurry up and get up! The Seven Devil Hall's Great Elder frowned and a trace of disgust appeared on his face. He scolded Zhuo Chui and looked at Su Fengyu at the same time. Don't be rude. When you see the Realm Lord return, you should come over and greet him. Instead, Zhuo Chui berated the Seven Devil Hall's Great Elder. Humph, do you think I'm as spineless as you? The Seven Devil Hall's Great Elder waves his long sleeve and says disdainfully. Oh. As soon as I came out, I met the people from the Seven Devil Hall, and now another tough guy had come. It's been many years since someone dared to talk to me in this tone. 
Well, I've been suppressed for so many years, so I want to move my muscles and bones. After saying that, Su Feng Yu's evil smile reappeared on his face. He didn't seem to have made any movements, but his eyes were slightly focused. A bloody hole appeared on the left side of the Seven Devil Hall's Great Elder's chest. Fresh blood spurted out and instantly dyed the clothes in front of his chest red. Chapter 247 the Seven Devil Hall's Great Elder also spat out a mouthful of blood. His already aged face had turned deathly pale. Clearly, he had been seriously injured. Eh. He didn't die. Interesting, this is really interesting. A surprised expression flashed across Su Feng Yu's face, and he looked puzzled. As he said that, he took a step forward and appeared behind the Seven Devil Hall's Great Elder in a flash. The Seven Devil Hall's Great Elder is startled. Before he can even react, a jade-like palm has already struck his neck. Bang! With a muffled sound, the Seven Devil Hall's Great Elder's eyes turn dark, and his whole body immediately goes limp, as if he has fallen unconscious, and he falls down. Realm Lord, please spare him. Sui Chui was shocked. He quickly stood up, caught the Great Elder of the Seven Devil Hall, and bowed to Su Yu. The aura of a saint. TSK, TSK, I didn't expect that after a hundred years, someone would be able to break through to the mortal realm. This is wonderful. Su Feng Yu ignored Zua Chui and muttered to himself. He looked at the Seven Devil Hall's Great Elder with eyes full of desire. As he spoke, he actually walked towards Zua Chui. Realm Lord, please show mercy and spare my brother's life. Zua Chui was greatly shocked. He hurriedly knelt down in the void again with the great elder of the Seven Devil Hall in his arms and cowed out. Your brother. So, you two are brothers? Su Feng Yu stopped in his tracks and asked in confusion. Realm Lord, the Seven Devil Hall's great elder is indeed my younger brother. However, my younger brother was born with a stubborn temper, and he didn't know his limits, that's why he offended the Realm Lord. I hope that the Realm Lord can show mercy and spare his life. Seeing that Su Feng Yu had stopped, Sua Chui thought his words had moved him, so he quickly continued to kowtow and said respectfully. However, when Su Feng Yu heard this, a devilish smile appeared on his face again. For the first time, he officially set his eyes on Sua Chui. It is not impossible to spare his life. However, this lord's main body had just escaped and was extremely weak. I needed to be replenished by living beings. If I spare him, I'll use you as compensation. With that, Su Feng Yu's right arm moved and suddenly stretched out. The distance of two to three feet was crossed in an instant, and he grabbed Sua Chui's neck and lifted him up. Realm Lord, you've promised me that you won't harm anyone on the Sacred Soul Island. Sua Chui's expression changed drastically as he realized that he could not control his body while being strangled. At the same time, the Seven Devil Hall's Great Elder, who was in Sua Chui's arms, also fell to the ground because he lost control of his body. Humph. The premise of the agreement between you and me is that you can help me escape. However, the reason why I was able to escape not because of you but because of the blood of the Hundun. Therefore, the agreement between us is not valid. As for you, you can die now. With that, a devilish Xian Rong appeared on Su Feng Yu's face and his right hand strangling Zua Chui's neck suddenly exerted force. Crack. Crack. The sound of bones cracking could be heard. Zua Chui, who was at the mortal realm, had his neck broken and died on the spot. Humph. Su Feng Yu snorted in disdain. He waved his right arm and threw Zua Chui's body high up in the air. The next moment. Bang. With a loud explosion, just like the previous Seven Devil Hall's Hall Master, Sua Chui's body exploded into pieces, leaving behind a cloud of blood mist that quickly merged into Su Feng Yu's body. Soon after, Su Feng Yu slightly moved his left hand and pointed at the falling Great Elder of the Seven Devil Hall. The air trembled and the unconscious Great Elder of the Seven Devil Hall disappeared from the air. This lord really needs to study it carefully. I wonder what it's like now after a hundred years. Is the great Zhou dynasty ready to welcome me back? Su Feng Yu muttered to himself. Before he finished speaking, 
he suddenly turned his head around and his demonic eyes immediately looked at the seven devil halls deputy hall master, who was lying limply on the ground. The corners of his mouth could not help but curl up slightly, revealing a devilish smile. Su Feng Yu had a pair of red phoenix eyes and long eyebrows, which made him look extremely terrifying. However, the look in his eyes caused the deputy hall master of the seven devil hall to change his expression. Even though the seven devil hall's deputy hall master had been poisoned by the ghost eyes poison and had temporarily lost control of his body, his mind was still clear. He had seen the entire process of Su Feng Yu killing Zhua Chui and taking away the seven devil hall's great elder. Those were the two almighty of the sacred soul island, yet they had been toyed around by Su Feng Yu like ants. It was truly a jaw-dropping sight. And now, Su Fen Yu's eyes were fixed on the deputy hall master of the Seven Devil Hall. However, Su Fen Yu didn't kill the Seven Devil Hall's deputy hall master as he had done before. Instead, he took a step forward and instantly landed in front of the Seven Devil Hall's deputy hall master. Long time no see, little guy. The pressure that had frightened all the living beings on the island had disappeared. Su Feng Yu put on an evil smile, clasped his hands behind his back, stared at the deputy palace master of the Seven Devil Hall and said in a low voice. It's you, indeed. The Seven Devil Hall's deputy hall master says with certainty. If the pressure emanating from Su Feng Yu's body is just a coincidence before. Now that he heard Su Feng Yu's words from such a close distance, the deputy hall master of the Seven Devil Hall was utterly certain that the terrifyingly handsome man standing in front of him was Su Feng Yu. The parents of the Seven Devil Hall's vice hall master had died at his hands. After that, his hall master had gone through many hardships and traveled tens of thousands of miles to come here. Although Su Feng Yu's voice wasn't as old and weak as before, his tone and tone were exactly the same. At this moment, the Seven Devil Hall's deputy hall master was almost certain that the Su Feng Yu standing in front of him was the mysterious Realm Lord. However, wasn't Su Feng Yu a sealed Realm Lord? And how did he get others to help him? This made the Seven Devil Hall's deputy hall master extremely confused. Oh. It seems like you've recognized me. However, Su Feng Yu says with an evil smile after hearing what the deputy palace master of the Seven Devil Hall has said. Although he said that, he did not mind being recognized by the deputy hall master of the Seven Devil Hall. Since that's the case, let this lord introduce himself. This lord is the only world cultivator left in this world. Su Feng Yu had forgotten his age. You can call me the Seven Realms, or the Realm Lord, like the so-called masters in the past. Su Feng Yu looked at the deputy hall master of the Seven Devil Hall and started to explain. You must have a lot of doubts in your heart right now, right? For example, why did this lord want others to capture you? And why did I seize the four symbols blood cauldrons and force you to come to the sacred soul island? I do have some doubts, but will you tell me? The seven devil hall's vice hall master says to the seven worlds with a bitter smile. Indeed, he was perplexed about what the seven realms had done. He didn't even understand why Su Feng Yu, who he had never met before, would target him. However, even the Inyang ghost general Zhua Chui and the great elder of the Seven Devil Hall were like ants in front of Su Feng Yu, and he could easily kill them. It would be as easy as turning his hand if he wanted to kill him. The Seven Devil Hall's deputy hall master didn't believe such a peerless figure would explain such a thing to him. Chapter, 248 Huh, you're quite self-aware. I still don't know your name, Su Feng Yu laughed when he saw that the other party was so understanding. He didn't refute or respond, just laughed. My name is Gu Mingzhou. Back then, the 173 members of the Gu family all died in your hands. Why did you spare my life? Gu Mingzhou was very puzzled. Why did Su Feng Yu ask him to stay behind alone? I have my reasons for sparing your life. You'll find out in the future. I'm actually quite curious. Meng Ao wasn't weak in the clan, but he was killed by a mere human. What a disgrace. Su Feng Yu didn't know how strong He Chuan was, but his race had a unique talent for cultivation that ordinary people couldn't compare to. It seemed that the sacred soul island had become weaker and weaker in the hundred years that he had been away. He wanted to regain his power and then kill his way back to the great Zhou dynasty. 
he wanted to take revenge for what had happened in the past. Su Feng Yu seemed to be melancholic and sighing, and the expression on his face was uncertain. He raised his head and looked up at the sky. He seemed to have fallen into endless memories and was being pulled further and further away. You killed my entire family with great difficulty, and in the end, you don't even have an explanation. That's not good, is it? Gu Mingzhou felt that things were not that simple. The other party was definitely hiding something from him. I didn't kill your entire family. You'll naturally know when the time is right. Su Feng Yu spoke unhurriedly, and in the end, he seemed to have deliberately paused, a smile flashing across his face. Gu Mingzhou wanted to ask for an explanation, but Su Feng Yu deliberately kept him in suspense and did not make things clear to him at all. The other party's strength was too heaven defying. He was no match for him at all. He wanted to force the matter out, but he did not have the strength. However, the other party said that he didn't kill his entire family. What was the reason behind this? He was truly puzzled. However, if I want to regain control of this sacred soul island, you must die. Su Feng Yu's somewhat melancholic face suddenly turned cold. A strong killing intent was present in the terrifying pressure. Gu Mingzhou felt a chill run down his spine from the sudden pressure. He could sense the aura of death from the pressure that Su Feng Yu was exuding. At this moment, Su Feng Yu had already decided to kill Gu Mingzhou. Why? Why are you doing this? In the end, you still want to kill me. Gu Mingzhou wanted to clarify. He poured out all the doubts and anger in his heart without holding back. Su Feng Yu was a little dumbfounded by Gu Mingzhou's question, and he was suddenly stunned. However, he quickly regained his senses, and an elegant and devilish smile reappeared on his face. Didn't you just say that even if you have doubts in your heart, and I won't tell you? After all, it's only interesting to kill you like this, right? Su Feng Yu stared at Gu Mingzhou and revealed a playful expression as he chuckled. Gu Mingzhou clenched his fists in anger, wishing he could kill the other party immediately. But he didn't have that ability. In fact, there's no harm in telling you. Your real father was the previous island master of the Sacred Soul Island. You were only sent out when you were born. Back then, your true body was sealed by your father and a group of experts. Before he could finish speaking, the evil look on Su Feng Yu's face disappeared and was replaced by a demonic, cold expression. The stagnant pressure around him started to roll again. A terrifying vital essence gathered on his right arm, and he suddenly slapped Gu Mingzhou with his palm. Whoosh! The sky changed color, and a strong wind suddenly rose. Su Feng Yu's seemingly simple palm seemed to contain a power that could destroy the world. It directly tore the void between Su Feng Yu and Gu Mingzhou, and it instantly struck Gu Mingzhou's forehead. Gu Mingzhou's expression was still dull as if he had not sensed the arrival of death. There was no expression on his face and Su Feng Yu's last words before he attacked echoed in his mind. I'm actually the young master of the Sacred Soul Island. Who are the people here? Why don't the others tell me the truth? Gu Mingzhou looked up at the palm that was coming down fiercely, and a look of unwillingness flashed across his face. Now, Gu Mingzhou had lost all support and all his abilities. He was like a piece of fish on an anvil waiting to be slaughtered. He looked at the palm that was coming down fiercely, unwilling but helpless, and quietly waited for death to come. One could see the terrifying power contained in Su Feng Yu's palm with the naked eye. If he were hit, Gu Mingzhou's soul would definitely be destroyed, and he would die. However, just as Su Feng Yu's palm, which seemed to be able to destroy mountains, was about to land on Gu Mingzhou, an arm wrapped in black suddenly appeared above Gu Mingzhou's forehead. The palm with a black leather cover suddenly met Su Feng Yu's palm, which emitted a red light. Bang! A muffled sound, which was not deafening, was heard. It was like the sound of two mortal fists colliding. It immediately sounded three inches above Gu Mingzhou's head. I've come to find the young lord. Who dares to commit murder on the sacred soul island? An extremely sinister voice suddenly came from behind Gu Mingzhou. His voice reverberated throughout the broken forest. Just hearing it was enough to make one's hair stand on end. A cold wind blew on one's back, and one shivered. 
However, it was this cold voice that pulled Gu Mingzhou back from the edge of death. Who's there? Gu Mingzhou was shocked. He, who had just narrowly escaped death, looked at the red-robed man in front of him. Su Fengyu, who had been so arrogant just a moment ago, staggered backward. A look of surprise instantly appeared on his face, and he quickly turned around to look. A middle-aged man in a black robe appeared behind Gu Mingzhou. It was a middle-aged man who was nearly two meters tall. His facial expression was closely pressed against Gu Mingzhou's back. On his strong and powerful arms, two black leather gloves drooped slightly. The man was wearing a hooded cloak, and the hat covered his entire head, leaving only his angular bronze face that had been engraved by time. I am Zhou Yuanbao. Greetings, young lord. The black-robed man also looked at Gu Mingzhou the moment he saw him. Their eyes met. Under Gu Mingzhou's confused expression, the black-robed middle-aged man respectfully knelt behind Gu Mingzhou and called out softly. Gu Mingzhou's face revealed a panicked expression. One had to know that this black-robed middle-aged man was an existence who even dared to contend with the red-robed man, Su Fengyu. Gu Mingzhou could only look up to them. The two people in front of him were beyond his reach. An existence that even he had to look up to suddenly knelt down and saluted him on their first meeting, which really gave Gu Mingzhou a big shock. Left Devil Emissary, Zhou Yuanba. Su Fengyu, who had been pushed back by the black-robed man, took a few steps back. His eyes were fixed on the black-robed man, and surprise flashed across his handsome face. Facing Su Fengyu's surprise, Zhou Yuanba didn't seem to care at all. He just stared at Gu Mingzhou, not even daring to blink. It was as if she was afraid that Gu Mingzhou would disappear if she blinked. Chapter 249 Young Lord, are you alright? Zhou Yuanba's voice was no longer cold but rather hoarse as he spoke to Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou had not yet recovered from the shock of the black-robed man suddenly kneeling down. When he heard the question, he only nodded in a daze. It's good that you're fine. If you were to lose even a single hair, this subordinate would not be able to make up for it even if I were to be smashed to pieces. Zhou Yuanba said excitedly. Um, may I ask who you are? Gu Mingzhou finally recovered from his shock and asked carefully. I'm the left demonic emissary of the Lord Master, a ninth-ranked demonic cultivator of the mortal realm. Young Lord, you haven't awakened your power yet. Otherwise, you would have surpassed me very quickly. Zhou Yuanba introduced himself respectfully. A ninth-ranked demonic cultivator mortal realm. Gu Mingzhou was stunned. In this world, he had only heard of half-step saint cultivator, saint cultivator, and mortal realm, but he did not know what kind of existence a demonic cultivator in the mortal realm was. He was still confused. Young Lord has yet to awaken his powers, so you naturally don't know what a demonic cultivator is. You just need to know that I'm one of the twelve demonic emissaries under the Lord Master. Since I've found Young Lord, I'll naturally follow and protect you until you awaken. Zhou Yuan Ba explained with excitement. Humph, a mere demonic emissary at the mortal realm. How dare you say that you'll protect him? Before Zhou Yuan Ba could finish his words, Su Feng Yu snorted coldly and said in a disdainful tone. To tell you the truth, the young lord you're trying to protect won't live past today. I'll get rid of him. What did you just say? Zhou Yuanba, who appeared especially calm in front of Gu Mingzhou, immediately jumped up when he heard Su Feng Yu's words. His voice became unusually angry as he stared at Su Feng Yu and said coldly. He he. I'm not afraid to tell you that I'm the one who wants to kill your young lord. Su Feng Yu sneered again. Before he could finish his sentence, the pressure that had been dispersed earlier suddenly attacked. He suddenly rushed towards Gu Mingzhou and struck out with a palm. Whoosh! The palm wind, which contained a destructive power, was no longer restrained. Instead, its power was fully displayed. The sky changed color as it attacked Gu Mingzhou. How audacious! Seeing this, Zhou Yuanba was instantly furious. He had just said he would protect Gu Mingzhou, but Su Fengyu had attacked him directly. This made him feel humiliated and extremely angry. He immediately shouted and stepped past Gu Mingzhou. 
He also pushed out his palm and instantly met Su Fenyu's fierce palm wind. Bang! A muffled sound reverberated through the air. Su Fenyu's ferocious palm strike was once again blocked by Zhou Yuanba. His body swayed slightly, but he did not take another step back. Humph, I was wondering who would be so bold, so it's a world cultivator. I've always heard that world cultivators are powerful and rarely lose. Today, I, Zhou Yuanba, will break this legend. After blocking Su Fenyu's attack again, Zhou Yuanba's face was filled with anger, but at the same time, he also looked cautious. Although Zhou Yuanba sounded arrogant, he still had a deep fear of Su Fenyu. However, that was all. As for feeling of terror or panic, there was absolutely no such thing. Before he could finish his words, Zhou Yuanba took three steps forward and instantly closed in on Su Fenyu. He raised his strong right arm and suddenly swung his palm at Su Fenyu. That will depend on whether you have the strength to do so. Be careful not to become my nutrients. In the face of Zhou Yuanba's arrogant words, Su Fenyu also responded without showing weakness. At the same time, the smile on his handsome face had disappeared, and a hint of caution appeared. It was obvious that in both Su Fenyu and Zhou Yuanba's hearts, the other was not an easy opponent. Zhou Yuanba and Su Fenyu were fighting. The continuous sounds of collision resounded throughout the island. The frightened birds and beasts in the forest quickly fled the place. While Zhou Yuanba and Su Fenyu were walking away, their hands kept clashing with each other. Gu Mingzhou, who was not far away, frowned. He could not believe what was happening in front of him. This made Gu Mingzhou feel like he was dreaming, even more so than when Zhou Yuanba suddenly knelt. The two people in front of him, whether it was Su Fenyu, who was known as the world god, or the black-robed fiendish cultivator Zhou Yuanba, who worshipped Gu Mingzhou as his master, could be said to be the top existences in this world. However, it was these two powerful people who were now in front of Gu Mingzhou, punching and slapping each other without any pattern. There was no energy of vital essence as vast as the ocean, nor was there any brilliant and exquisite spell techniques. There were only copper fists and iron palms, colliding with each other. One punch, one palm, not giving way to the other, and the collision was endless. This I might have met a fake world cultivator and a fake demonic cultivator in this Tao Wu, Gu Mingzhou muttered to himself and looked at the two people in front of him in shock. He was extremely shocked and came to a conclusion. He had thought he would see a great battle but did not expect to see a cautious collision that was not even comparable to a child's. It was really a big surprise. However, Gu Mingzhou did not realize that the two people, who looked like they were simply clashing, would cause a small area of the void around them to tremble every time their fists and palms came into contact. The energy of vital essence would dissipate. While he was still in shock, the collision between the two became even more intense and faster. In a breath's time, they had almost collided nearly a hundred times, and even the sound seemed unable to keep up with their fists and palms. The surrounding void was torn apart, and thin, pitch-black void cracks appeared. It was a collision of absolute power that could shake the void and tear the space. Just as the attacks of the two gradually became stronger, the sound of rustling footsteps suddenly rang out in the dilapidated forest. Then, a group of male cultivators in beast clothes came out of the trees. Sacred Palace Guards Gu Mingzhou recognized the rogue cultivators who had suddenly appeared on the island. They were the guards of Sacred Soul Island's upper palace. Moreover, among the few people walking in front of this group of guards, a fat individual cultivator immediately attracted Gu Mingzhou's attention. Jing Yuan Shan. Gu Mingzhou instantly remembered the name of this fat itinerant cultivator and muttered. At that time, he claimed the hall master had instructed him to come and help Gu Mingzhou. And in fact, he had indeed helped Gu Mingzhou. There were also several people walking in front of the guards beside Jing Yuan Shan. Three of them were the sacred palace's commanders who had appeared at the ceremony before. As for the other dozens of them, for some reason, they did not follow. After recognizing the person who had come, Gu Mingzhou suddenly had doubts in his heart. Although Zheng Yuanshan listened to Zhuo Chiui's orders in private, and it was obvious that he was Zhuo Chiui's man. However, on the surface, Zhuo Chiui had already left the sacred palace, and he was now under the great elder's command. 
However, it was not his turn to be troubled, as Su Chiui had already died. Su Fengyu captured even the Great Elder, and his whereabouts were unknown. Chapter 250 It's you. Where's the Grand Elder? When Gu Mingzhou looked at Jing Yuanshan, Jing Yuanshan also saw Gu Mingzhou and asked directly. Of course, he also saw Su Fengyu and Zhou Yuanba, who were fighting. However, he instantly focused his gaze on Gu Mingzhou. Perhaps it was because Zhuo Chiui had specifically ordered him to help Gu Mingzhou. Your island master was killed by him. Even the great elder was killed by him. He was the one wearing red. Gu Mingzhou thought to himself, but a look of panic appeared on his face. He pointed at Su Fengyu, who was fighting and shouted. What did you just say? Jing Yuanshan frowned and said in surprise. It was not just Jing Yuanshan. Even the three commanders beside Jing Yuanshan and the thirty to forty guards behind him were shocked and in disbelief. Brat, don't talk nonsense. The Great Elder is the supreme existence of our sacred soul island. Who doesn't respect him? How can he be killed just because you said so? As soon as Jing Yuanshan finished speaking, a commander beside him criticized. That's right. The Great Elder has ruled over the Sacred Soul Island for hundreds of years. We are all very clear about his strength. He is definitely one of the top existences in the world. His strength cannot be underestimated. How could he be killed? No, recently our team has been patrolling the entire Sacred Soul Island. I know almost everyone in the Sacred Palace, but I've never seen this person before. He must be an imposter. Humph, I was wondering why he dared to lie to us. So he was an imposter. He doesn't look like a good person. Brothers, kill him. A commander's accusation immediately caused the surrounding guards to be dissatisfied. They questioned Gu Mingzhou one after another, and some even wanted to kill Gu Mingzhou on the spot. However, just as everyone was discussing, Zheng Yuanshan suddenly raised his hand and interrupted everyone's discussion. He turned his head to look at Su Fengyu and Zhou Yuanba, who were still fighting, and then looked at Gu Mingzhou before walking over. Little brother, I know that you have a relationship with the Great Elder. Tell me, was what you said just now true or false? Did you see it with your own eyes? Zheng Yuanshan approached Gu Mingzhou and asked with a frown. Gu Mingzhou did not expect Jing Yuanshan to say something like that. It seemed that although he had only met the Great Elder once and did not have a deep friendship, the Great Elder should have already regarded him as one of his own. Perhaps this Great Elder also knew his identity. I'm telling the truth. I saw with my own eyes, the Great Elder was torn apart and devoured by the red-robed world god. Gu Mingzhou thought to himself, but he nodded his head slightly and put away the panicked look on his face. Gu Mingzhou's words were so convincing that Jing Yuanshan could not help but believe him. He stopped walking toward Gu Mingzhou and turned to look at Su Fengyu, who was colliding with Zhou Yuanba. Do you know who he is? There aren't many people who can defeat the Great Elder. Zheng Yuanshan obviously believed Gu Mingzhou's words. He stared at Su Fengyu and asked Gu Mingzhou. He's called Su Fengyu, he used the four symbols blood cauldron to break the boundary wall and let the world god out. Gu Mingzhou answered seriously. So it's the world god. If that's the case, then what he said about the great elder makes sense. Zheng Yuanshan completely believed Gu Mingzhou's words. Before he could finish speaking, Zheng Yuanshan threw his right hand behind him, and a green light suddenly shot towards Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou was shocked, but his body was numb and he couldn't move at all. He could only watch as the green light shot towards him. Whoosh! The speed of the green light was very fast, and it hit Gu Mingzhou's chest almost instantly. Bang! There was a muffled sound, and Gu Mingzhou's immediately felt a sweet taste in his mouth. He subconsciously stretched his neck forward. A large mouthful of pitch black and viscous blood instantly spurted out of Gu Mingzhou's mouth and splattered all over the ground. Gu Mingzhou, on the other hand, looked surprised. The green light that Jing Yuanshan had thrown out actually forced out the ghost eye poison in Gu Mingzhou's body, allowing Gu Mingzhou to regain control of his body instantly. From the looks of it, you must have been hit by a secret technique, so your body is numb. But don't worry, 
I've forced out all the poison in your body with that strike. You'll be back to normal in a short while. Although Jing Yuanshan did not turn around, he seemed to have noticed Gu Mingzhou's surprise. With his back to Gu Mingzhou, he explained calmly. Then, without waiting for Gu Mingzhou's reply, he walked toward Su Funyu and Zhou Yuanba, who were still clashing their fists. Brothers, set up the formation and avenge the great elder. Zheng Yuanshan's chubby face was cold as he walked toward Su Fengyu and shouted. Yes. Before he could finish his sentence, the guard who had been questioning Gu Mingzhou quickly answered. At the same time, they all drew their weapons and jumped out, quickly surrounding Su Fengyu and Zhou Yuanba. The energy of true core strength in their bodies spread out and gathered in the air, quickly forming a formation that enveloped Su Fengyu and Zhou Yuanba. All generals, listen up. Tian Luo formation, kill the man in red. After the formation was set up, the commander, who joined the guards, immediately shouted. As Sheng Yuanshan approached the two people who were clashing, he stopped ten feet away. He stared at the fists and palms that kept clashing, and his expression instantly changed slightly. He had naturally noticed the spatial crack that the collision between Su Fengyu and Zhou Yuanba had created. Hold on. Zheng Yuanshan's heart palpitated, and he quickly called out to stop them. It was too late. As Zheng Yuanshan spoke, the commander who had spoken immediately gave his final order. The air trembled, and the terrifying ball of light in the air, which was condensed with the energy of vital essence of thirty to forty guards, suddenly trembled violently. Suddenly, a beam of light as thick as an arm shot out, instantly tearing the void apart and shooting toward Su Fengyu. It was a white beam of light as thick as an arm. It gathered the pure vital essence energy of the surrounding thirty to forty saint cultivators and formed a terrifying attack that could tear the void. It tore open space in the air and shot toward Su Fengyu. What? Su Fengyu's brows were tightly furrowed. Even though he was fighting Zhou Yuanba closely, he had also noticed the light beam that was coming at him. A look of disgust flashed across his face as he blocked Zhou Yuanba's attack with his palm. He raised his right hand and grabbed at the air, trying to block the light beam. However, the power of the light beam was clearly beyond Su Fengyu's expectations. The moment his raised right hand touched the light beam, an explosion suddenly rang out. Boom! The sky changed color, and the light shone brightly. The entire sacred soul island seemed to be shaking slightly. The beam of light that descended from the sky tore a pitch-black spatial rift several meters long in the air and extended to Su Fengyu's raised arm. Bang! After the muffled sound, Su Fengyu, who had blocked the fierce light beam, was knocked back by the dark space crack. He only stopped after more than ten feet. Su Fengyu, who had just stopped, suddenly spat out blood. Although there was no change in his expression, he was clearly angry. He looked at the guards around him. This wasn't to say that Su Fengyu's cultivation was weak as a world god, nor was it to say that the combined attack of the sacred palace guards was terrifying. Chapter 251 As someone who could easily wipe out cultivators in the mortal realm, he could easily block the combined attacks of hundreds of saint cultivators, let alone these thirty or forty. The main reason Su Fengyu was forced back and vomited blood was his carelessness. He thought that he could easily block the combined attack of these dozens of people. However, he did not expect that even though he blocked the light beam, he could not block the spatial crack created by the light beam. It was the most terrifying existence. If an ordinary expert touched it, they would be instantly killed by the turbulent storm in the spatial crack, without even a corpse. Even a man of the mortal realm would find it hard to resist. It was the storm created by the spatial turbulence in this crack that caught Su Fengyu off guard and hit him directly. Fortunately, although Su Fengyu had been trapped for one, zero zero years and his cultivation had not yet recovered, the strength of his physical body alone was enough to withstand this spatial turbulence. Of course, Su Fengyu had also paid the price of vomiting blood. Die, world god! Su Fengyu vomited blood. Zhou Yuanba's face was full of disdain as he sneered. Before he could finish his words, he moved his feet and charged forward. He suddenly waved his fist and smashed it toward Su Fengyu. The confident Su Fengyu's face finally changed a little, but it was more of anger. 
He didn't have time to wipe the blood from the corner of his mouth, so he quickly used a spell and directly mobilized the surrounding vital essence, which madly gathered in front of him and condensed on his right hand. Then, he suddenly hit Zhou Yuanba's fist. Bang! The fist and palm collided, and a muffled sound rang out. When the fist and palm came into contact, the turbulence caused by the collision seemed to shatter the void. It actually caused the void to crack, creating a space crack as thick as two fingers. With the fist and palm as the center, it spread in all directions. It was ferocious and terrifying. Zhou Yuanba looked at the countless terrifying cracks between him and Su Fengyu. A cold smile flashed across his face as he once again ridiculed. Is this your strength as a world god? You're nothing more than this. After saying that, Zhou Yuanba suddenly retracted his right arm and passed through the dense spatial cracks. He instantly approached Su Fengyu, and a dark light appeared between his left fingers. He threw a punch again. Whoosh! The fist wind whistled, carrying the power to tear the void. It directly penetrated the void and instantly hit Su Fengyu's chest. Bang! With a muffled sound, Su Fengyu didn't even have time to withdraw his palm before he was directly hit. His whole body was instantly sent flying dozens of meters away. When he landed, he slid back a few meters before he could stop. Although Zhou Yuanba's punch did not knock down Su Fengyu, he spat out blood again when he stopped. However, the blood that Su Fengyu vomited this time was obviously brighter and thicker than the blood he had just spat out. It was obvious that Zhou Yuanba's punch, which had pierced through the void, had caused more damage to Su Fengyu than the storm caused by the spatial turbulence. Humph, the so-called world cultivators are nothing more than this. Zhou Yuanba withdrew his fist and stood in Su Fengyu's original position. He looked at Su Fengyu with his hands behind his back and said disdainfully. In the face of Zhou Yuanba's disdainful tone, Su Fengyu slightly twisted his neck, but he was not angry. Instead, he laughed. His thin lips opened slightly, and a soft voice suddenly came out. Oh, I see. Was it? Then I'll let you experience what the true power of a world god is. Before he could finish his words, Su Fengyu's peerless face again revealed a long-lost evil smile. At the same time, Su Fengyu's travel-worn body suddenly flew up and suspended in the air. Under Zhou Yuanba's confused expression, he suddenly stretched out his arms. Not good. Disperse the formation, everyone retreat. However, when Jing Yuanshan saw Su Fengyu's strange behavior, his expression changed greatly. He shouted and, without hesitation, turned around and shot into the distance. However, none of the guards listened to Zheng Yuanshan's sudden shout. Instead, they were stunned and looked in confusion at Zheng Yuanshan, who had disappeared quickly. In their eyes, Su Fengyu was clearly at a disadvantage. Moreover, he had been beaten up twice in a row and was about to be defeated. This should be a good opportunity to pursue victory. Why did he suddenly retreat? It wasn't just the powerhouses who were puzzled. Even the three commanders were surprised. Even Zhou Yuanba, who had mysteriously appeared, was confused. At that moment, everyone present, except Gu Mingzhou, had a look of confusion on their faces. However, before they could recover from their shock, the smile on Su Fengyu's face became even more devilish. His thin lips moved slightly, and a light and clear voice instantly entered everyone's ears. All living beings of this world, return to my body. The Sanskrit sound of Zana is flourishing, and Chinamo Tua is here Su Fengyu's voice was very soft. Even though the surroundings had become complicated, it could still be clearly heard by everyone, so they could hear it clearly. Moreover, there seemed to be an inexplicable power in the voice. When it reached everyone's ears, everyone's soul could not help but freeze. This included Gu Mingzhou, who had just stood up. The moment the voice entered his ears, his face froze, and he could not move. After Su Fengyu finished his chant, he softly spat out the last word. Devour. Before he could finish his words, the void trembled. The wind and clouds changed color, and lightning flashed. The sky that had just regained its light instantly darkened again. Gu Mingzhou's expression changed drastically. 
he could clearly feel the violent primordial energy in his surroundings surging uncontrollably into his body and filling his entire Dantian instantly. Not only that, but the vital essence that had not been refined showed its violence in Gu Mingzhou's Dantian and began to wreak havoc. Fortunately, Gu Mingzhou had often used the inner technique and had devoured this violent energy of true essence before. So he could endure it. However, what caused Gu Mingzhou's expression to change was the true primordial energy that continuously flowed into his body. Even though his Dantian was already full, the violent energy of vital essence still rushed in without a care. It was difficult for Gu Mingzhou to stop the absorption even if he wanted to. He could only watch helplessly as the true primordial energy surged madly and squeezed into his Dantian, filling his flesh and blood and wreaking havoc. If this continued, even if he didn't die from the violent energy of vital essence, his body would explode from the endless energy. However, just as Gu Mingzhou was panicking, an icy power suddenly entered his body from his chest and quickly spread throughout his entire body. It instantly purified and refined the violent energy of vital essence, turning it into pure energy of vital essence and fusing it into Gu Mingzhou's flesh and blood. Then, the icy power began to enter Gu Mingzhou's Dantian like a wolf entering a flock of sheep. The violent primordial energy withdrew from Gu Mingzhou's body. The violent primordial energy that had already entered Gu Mingzhou's Dantian also entered the primordial energy in Gu Mingzhou's meridians and became Gu Mingzhou's own primordial energy, causing Gu Mingzhou's cultivation to increase explosively. Chapter 252 The Peak of Half-Step Saint Cultivator, Saint Cultivator, The Peak of Saint Cultivator, Mortal Realm In an instant, Gu Mingzhou's cultivation had crossed three levels, and he had become a cultivator of the mortal realm. Gu Mingzhou once again regained control of his body and broke free from the previous restraint. But that didn't mean that the others would be as lucky as Gu Mingzhou. Among the guards who had lost control of their bodies, the guards with slightly weaker cultivation suddenly blushed. His eyes were wide open, and his pupils were dilated as if he was enduring something extremely painful. The next moment. Bang! With a loud explosion, the red-faced guard suddenly exploded in the crowd. Then, bang! 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 The guard who had exploded first was like a fuse. After his body exploded, the bodies of the thirty to forty guards around him also exploded. Not only the guards but even the three commanders' faces were flushed red. It was as if something terrible had happened to their bodies. Their pupils enlarged and suddenly exploded. In the blink of an eye, minced meat flew everywhere, blood shot out, and a blood mist filled half of the forest. This group of loyal guards to the sacred palace wanted to take revenge for their master and died in the explosion. Their bodies were shattered, and their corpses were left behind. All that was left was the bloody mist, which emitted a strong smell of blood. It quickly flew up among the flying pieces of flesh and fused into Su Yu's body. In the blink of an eye, nearly forty saint cultivators exploded and died. As the blood mist entered his body, the already terrifying pressure on Su Yu's body increased even more. It turned from illusory to real, and the power generated caused a storm to blow and crush the grass and trees. At this moment, Su Yu was like an ancient demonic god, standing quietly in the void. He didn't care about the people around him who had exploded and died, as well as the crazy and raging pressure. His eyes were filled with endless evil intent as he looked at Zhou Yuanbao. In the Xiongnu tribe, a new ceremony was being held. Liao was dressed in a gorgeous robe as she sat on the throne and looked at the ministers below. She could not help but feel a strange feeling in her heart. If not for He Chuan's help, she might not have been able to become a female king. The shamans below were mumbling something. It was nothing more than a prayer for good weather and peace. He Chuan sat on the side, feeling that the ceremony was very boring. This kind of ceremony was not as interesting as reading books. Kai Lian wasn't in high spirits and was even a little drowsy, but she couldn't be rude. Lia officially became the new female king when all the rituals were over. The world is one family. Meaningless war commands make the people suffer more. Lia said slowly. The Xiongnu army no longer had any soldiers, and if they did not recuperate, they would not be able to continue being the ruler of the grasslands. 
not to mention continuing to compete with the Zhou dynasty for hegemony. The problem he faced now was to recuperate and how to do it. The ministers did not object to the decree of the female king. Not only had the Xiongnu people lost a million cavalrymen, but Yichuan's terror had also been deeply rooted in their hearts. Going against the Zhou dynasty now was no different from courting death. Moreover, when the first prince claimed to be the heavenly king and began to slaughter all his brothers and sisters. It was the Zhou dynasty who protected Li's safety. Otherwise, she and the eldest princess would probably have died. Putting everything together and forming an alliance with the Zhou dynasty would be the best result. They had already given them enough face by not making them submit. What else could they ask for? The king is wise. The officials shouted. Liya wrote a letter and ordered the messenger to send it to the Zhou dynasty. The alliance agreement had been set. Both sides could temporarily heave a sigh of relief. He Chuan's heart was filled with emotions. He had never thought that the empress of the Zhou dynasty and the female king of the Xiongnu would be by his side. Could it be that this reincarnation was bound to be related to women? What if Kai Lian was the number one heroine of the pugilistic world? He quickly threw this thought out of his mind. Build up the trade route with the Zhou dynasty as soon as possible. Use our cattle and sheep to exchange for better food. We can't always rely on the weather. The tribes in the grassland need to make changes. Liya said. Although the climate of the grassland was constantly changing, it was not a problem to plant a crop of food every year. All kinds of vegetables could be stored in winter. There was more hope for them to survive the winter, and eating meat every day was unbearable. He Chuan was the one who had taught Liya everything. The grassland attacked the border of the Zhou dynasty every year because of the lack of food for the winter. Although there was a lot of beef and mutton, there was a limit to the number of kills. Otherwise, it would be no different from killing a chicken to get its eggs. Planted vegetables and grains. The other ministers were a little confused. After all, their ancestors had lived on grazing. They weren't good at this kind of thing. If there was a problem with the planting, they would lose everything. Your Majesty, please think twice. The grasslands have never had any planting techniques passed down since ancient times. If we suddenly change it, I'm afraid we will not be able to harvest anything. An old official stood out and said. I've already contacted the Empress of the Zhou Dynasty, and they'll send people from the Ministry of Agriculture to follow up and guide you, so you have to learn well and strive to pass on the planting techniques to the various tribes. Moreover, I'm going to cultivate experimental fields first. After gaining experience, I'll carry out large-scale promotion. Liya was not a fool and had already asked He Chuan about this question. The environment in the central plains was different from place to place, and it took a lot of detours to develop suitable planting methods for each place. Now that someone had come to help guide them, they had to grab the opportunity and make good use of it. Hearing what Liya said, the ministers no longer objected. The grassland did not lack meat. Grains, vegetables, and fruits were all very scarce. The morning court session ended. He Chuan lay on the rocking chair and continued his routine check-in. Ding! Congratulations to the host for successfully checking in. You will be rewarded with a bottle of Bodhi pills. Note, legend has it that this is a rare fruit that grows on the land of Fire Chilin's blood. It originally grows in places of extreme fire. The blood Bodhi had the effect of healing serious injuries and increasing one's strength without injury. Unfortunately, the martial arts world people had only heard of its name and had never heard of it. There were also some blood-red fruits growing among the vines in the cave they were blood Bodhi. The bottle of Bodhi pill was made from blood Bodhi and dozens of precious herbs after 49 days of refinement. After he finished reading the information on the Bodhi pill, he was delighted. Ever since he knew about the existence of the sacred soul island, his desire to continue breaking through had never stopped. He had not expected to obtain such a good item after returning to the Xiongnu tribe. Master Liya was dressed in luxurious casual clothes and came to the tent where he was. What kind of problem did you encounter this time? He Chuan sat up and asked in a calm tone. It's not that I've run into any problems while tidying up my father's belongings, I discovered this book seems related to some world god. 
Liya took out a blue book from her bosom. When he Chuan heard the words World God, he was immediately moved. When he killed Meng Ao, he had already learned about Sacred Soul Island. There was some information about the World God, which was why he Chuan wanted to improve his strength as soon as possible. He didn't expect Tongtu and Chanyu to be in contact with the World God. Chapter 253 World Gods were usually related to this world. Their strength did not come from themselves but from how strong the people in this world were. Usually, when a world god appeared, the world's spiritual energy would begin to recover. In other words, it would be easier to cultivate. Saint cultivators would spring up like mushrooms after a rain, and they would keep popping up. Becoming a saint cultivator would become the real beginning of cultivation. It was no longer so unattainable. No one could predict what this world would become. He Chuan's desire for power grew even stronger. This was because it was also possible to reach the mortal realm. The sacred soul island was the place where the god fiend clan lived. They were born with the energy of inheritance. However, they were all intermarried within their own race to maintain the purity of their bloodline. This way, everyone outside sacred soul island would have no chance. That was why the powerful ones called themselves gods. Some people called them demons, and the brainwashed people called them gods. Therefore, the people who wrote about Chizhou didn't know the truth, so they simply called them gods and demons. A few hundred years ago, the current sacred lord had joined hands with various experts from the central plains to seal the world god, who specialized in using the blood essence of experts to cultivate. The origin energy of the entire world was also sealed. Most of those experts had also fallen in that battle. The rest died due to their injuries and the sealing of their origin energy. No one escaped death. However, no one had expected that the world god could still bewitch people from the outside world, spending a hundred years thinking of a way to break the seal. Meng Ao and Tongtu and Chanyu appeared to be respectful to the god fiend clan, but in reality, they worked for the world god. Has this world god already broken the seal? He Chuan did not know what had happened on Sacred Soul Island. He felt that things had become more complicated. Because of the death of the Sacred Lord, Sacred Soul Island had been torn apart and was in conflict with each other. They all wanted to find the secret of how to seal the world god. However, they didn't know this was the other party's scheme. Releasing the world god could restore the origin energy, but who could stop this devil? The Nine Cauldrons were the key to sealing the world god. He immediately wrote a secret letter and asked Empress Chining to help him find the bronze fragments of the Nine Prefecture's cauldron. This was because he didn't have the confidence to kill a world god. Liener, I'm going to continue my closed-door cultivation. If Lia encounters any problems, please help her out. He Chuan put the book aside and was about to ask Lia to help him find a secret room. Continue cultivate. Wasn't Master already invincible? You still need to cultivate. Liya was a little surprised. She had never realized that He Chuan was a cultivation fanatic. Why had he been cultivating non-stop since last year? Don't you feel very bored? Invincible. This world is about to undergo a huge change, and the two of you can't slack off in your cultivation. If you hear the word world god, immediately turn around and run, and don't fight back, do you understand? He Chuan shook his head. He wanted to be invincible so his reincarnation evaluation would be at least S. Who knew that things would get out of control? Be it the world god or the mysterious god-fiend race. They were all obstacles in front of him. Continuing to cultivate was the right thing to do. Although Lia and Kai Lian were a little confused and didn't know what a world god was, He Chuan definitely wouldn't harm them. So they kept his words in mind. At once, Liya ordered people to clean up the secret room built by her father, Tong Dun Chanyu, and let He Chuan use it as a place to practice. The Xiongnu messenger brought a secret letter and a pair of jade clawed jerfalcons to the capital of the Zhou dynasty. Even though the people of the Zhou dynasty did not like the Xiongnu people, no one wanted to continue fighting after the bitter battle. They were very willing to see the two sides form an alliance. The people suffer when the kingdom prospers, and the people suffer when there's death. Especially when they were experiencing war, the people were in even more pain. Empress Changning had a rare moment of leisure. 
With her lovely daughters in her arms, she couldn't help but miss her lover. Your Majesty, the Xiongnu messenger has sent two jade claw gerfalcons and a secret letter from Hai Duke He. The personal maid presented the items. These were the two children Little White had given birth to. They were the offspring of pure jade claws. When they were young, they didn't look so fierce and were rather cute. Zhou Ming reached out his toot little hand, wanting to grab the gerfalcon. Ming Er can train them when you grow up. You can't now. Empress Changming kissed Zhou Ming and Zhou Shui on their cheeks and handed them over to her personal maid. She couldn't wait to open the letter He Chuan had sent back. Just like before, he didn't express much of his thoughts, but it was enough to surprise Empress Changming. After all, this had never happened before. The simple word thought was already a huge breakthrough. The letter also mentioned his concern for the two babies. World God Empress Changming's heart sank when she saw the information about the World God. Previously, Meng Ao had already cast a huge shadow over the Great Zhou Dynasty. However, he did not expect that Meng Ao was just the tip of the iceberg. There were many more experts stronger than him. Was it really a time of disaster for the Zhou Dynasty? Fortunately, she still had He Chuan, the man she could rely on. She wouldn't know what to do if He Chuan weren't there. The search for the bronze fragments would probably have to be intensified. Otherwise, if He Chuan could not suppress the so called World God, the entire Zhou dynasty or the world would be destroyed. World gods weren't good people. They were humans with evil thoughts and soul transformations. They would use everyone as nutrients to increase their strength. On the other side, He Chuan continued to prepare for his closed door cultivation. He would come out if there were an important matter. There were also a few bottles of cultivation pills for Changning and the two children. The world's spiritual energy was about to be restored, so everyone had to improve their strength as soon as possible. Empress Changning's cultivation had fallen behind due to political affairs, and these pills were just enough to keep her from coming back. Pass on my order. Do your best to find the fragments of the Nine Prefecture's cauldron. This must be done in secret. After the Empress gave the order, several figures began to move. They were all her trusted palace maids and had been trained with Yichuan's pills. The weakest of them was a half-step saint cultivator. This time, she did not inform Fang Yuanqing and the other ministers because she did not know who would be infiltrated. Even if they did not have it now, who knew what would happen in the future? The nine prefectures' cauldrons were too important and had to be in their hands. Your Majesty. Prime Minister Fong requests an audience. A blue-robed eunuch walked in and reported in a soft voice. Announce. Empress Changning shattered the letter into dust and waved her hand to signal for Fong Yuanqing to come in. Fong Yuanqing walked into the imperial study and greeted him respectfully. Recently, there have been constant conflicts in the martial arts world. Wudong, who has become the new number one in the world, is the first to be involved. They are not giving in to the Shaolin Temple. He gave a simple report. Isn't that a good thing? Empress Changming couldn't wait for the seven major sects to start killing each other. It is indeed a good thing, but I think that the imperial court should support the Wudang sect to prevent the balance from being broken. Fang Yuan Qing was a scheming old man. He wanted to make the Wudang sect a clan of the imperial court. Chapter, 254 The battle on the sacred Soul Island continued. Su Fengyu had killed a group of experts. This is terrible. Zhou Yuanba cried out in shock. Apart from Su Fengyu, the only person who was not affected was Zhou Yuanba. Zhou Yuanba didn't feel like his body would explode, but he looked even more panicked than the other experts who had exploded. Before he could finish his words, under Su Fengyu's gaze, Zhou Yuanba looked as if he had seen a ghost. Without any hesitation, he tapped his feet on the ground and immediately flew backward. He actually chose to escape. Zhou Yuanba's body flew backward. When he passed by Gu Mingzhou, he stretched out his right arm and directly swept Gu Mingzhou up, shooting out of the sacred soul island. At this moment, Zhou Yuanba did not hesitate at all. He chose to escape with Gu Mingzhou. Isn't it too late to leave now? Su Fengyu still had a smile on his face as he watched Zhou Yuanba leave with Gu Mingzhou. 
he didn't look worried at all. He stepped into the air and ran a hundred meters in a single step, chasing after Zhou Yuanba. Behind Su Fengyu, terrifying dark clouds that covered the sky and the sun, with lightning flowing through them, moved along with Su Fengyu, covering a radius of 100 miles. Whiz! When Gu Mingzhou was brought away from the sacred soul island by Zhou Yuanba, he realized how slow he was. Even though Zhou Yuanba was carrying Gu Mingzhou, the speed that he displayed was already beyond Gu Mingzhou's understanding. It was unknown how many times faster he was than Zhou Yuanba. It was as if he was teleporting, and it was easy for him to travel a hundred miles in a breath. In the blink of an eye, Zhou Yuanba flew past the deep forest that Gu Mingzhou had spent a night passing through. He brought Gu Mingzhou out of Sacred Soul Island. Not only Zhou Yuanba, but also Su Fengyu, who was chasing after him. Su Fengyu's speed was also beyond Gu Mingzhou's knowledge. It was comparable to the speed of light or even faster. Even with the dark clouds that covered a hundred miles behind them so they couldn't see his figure, he still caught up and appeared ten miles behind them. Let's go to that reef. Gu Mingzhou turned pale with fright. Su Fengyu's speed was obviously faster than Zhou Yuanba's, and he quickly pointed forward. Zhou Yuanba listened to Gu Mingzhou. He immediately turned around and flew towards the reef with Gu Mingzhou. He arrived almost instantly. Over there. Hurry to the bottom of the sea. Gu Mingzhou spoke again, pointing to where he first appeared and speaking loudly. Zhou Yuanba was confused. However, before he could ask anything, Su Fengyu had already attacked from behind. Damned demonic emissary, you can't escape. Su Fengyu followed him. His seemingly casual steps in the air actually crossed a distance of a thousand feet and approached Zhou Yuanba. Before he finished his words, he raised his right hand and struck at Zhou Yuanba. Whoosh! Thunderclouds covered the sun, electric arc circulated, the sky changed color, and the wind howled. A huge palm that covered ten miles suddenly emerged from the terrifying thunderclouds behind Su Fengyu. Its entire body was emitting monstrous flames with a terrifying attack that seemed to be able to destroy the world, and it slammed down fiercely toward Zhou Yuanba. Zhou Yuanba's expression was serious. He did not dare to stay any longer and immediately flew towards the sea with Gu Mingzhou. Plop! Even though the sun was shining brightly at noon, the water of the Arctic Sea was still freezing. There should be a passage to the world of demonic cultivators nearby. Can you find it? However, Gu Mingzhou was not in the mood to care about this. He did not even let out the vital essence protecting his body. Although he was pointing the way for Zhou Yuanba. The main reason was Su Fengyu's speed was faster than Zhou Yuanba's. If he were to escape, he would probably be caught up very quickly. Gu Mingzhou didn't know that Zhou Yuanba, who had just mocked and ridiculed the world god, would suddenly choose to escape. But from Zhou Yuanba's serious expression and rapid breathing, Gu Mingzhou could feel the urgency of the situation. Therefore, he could only try. After all, if Zhou Yuanba could find the path the Samsara Underworld Hall Master had taken, he would be able to leave Sacred Soul Island. This was undoubtedly the best way to get rid of Su Fengyu. However, to Gu Mingzhou's disappointment, Zhou Yuanba frowned at Gu Mingzhou's question, then shook his head. You didn't find it. Gu Mingzhou instantly understood what Zhou Yuanba meant. Before he could finish his words, a monstrous pressure instantly attacked. The huge palm, which covered a full ten miles, instantly hit the sea above Gu Mingzhou's head. The seawater churned and scattered, and huge waves surged. It actually caused the seawater within ten miles of Gu Mingzhou and Zhou Yuanba to disperse, creating an empty space in the ocean. Gu Mingzhou and Zhou Yuanba's figures were completely exposed, and they were discovered by Su Fengyu, who was in the sky. A thousand meters below the surface of the sea, there were eight altars on the sand-covered seabed. They surrounded and protected a small formation that was emitting a faint light. It's there. Gu Mingzhou's eyes were sharp. He saw the formation in the altar and quickly reminded. In fact, even without Gu Mingzhou saying anything, Zhou Yuanba had already noticed. In an instant, they had already reached the top of the formation, and the two of them entered it. Buzz! 
Without the obstruction of the array, the light suddenly brightened, and Zhou Yuanba and Gu Mingzhou's bodies suddenly disappeared. A teleportation formation? Surprise flashed across Su Fengyu's face, but it was soon followed by a sneer. Humph. In this world, no one could escape from this lord yet. It's just a small space created by the heretic practitioner. If Yi Chuan were here, he would definitely remember the secret space of the northern Shaolin Temple, which was similar to this place. Su Fengyu descended from the sky and also entered the spell formation. Behind Su Fengyu, the sky was covered with thunderclouds that covered hundreds of miles. However, he did not follow them into the formation. Instead, he turned around and flew across the sky toward the northeast. The speed was so fast that the afterimages gradually disappeared. The seawater that was pushed away surged over and instantly submerged the array altar in the vast ocean. There were actually cultivators at the bottom of the freezing sea. Samsara Underworld Hall, a secret sea area. The palace was magnificent, and the corridors were winding. It was like the Samsara Underworld Hall in the human world at the bottom of the sea, but it was empty as usual. Even the Samsara Underworld Hall master, who had only been in the Samsara Underworld Hall, was nowhere to be found. A bright white light suddenly burst out of the empty hall. The void suddenly split open, and two figures fell, floating to the ground. Samsara Underworld Hall, I'm back. Gu Mingzhou stood in the main hall and looked at the black hole gradually closing midair. He looked around at the surrounding buildings and sighed. Where is this place? Zhou Yuanba also looked around and asked in confusion. This is a world created by the demonic cultivators at the bottom of the freezing ocean. I was originally sent to the sacred soul island from here. As Gu Mingzhou explained, he finally realized there was no one in the empty hall. He hurriedly called out. Young lord, there's no need to shout. There's no one here. Not only this place but there are also no living beings in the entire palace. Zhou Yuanba interrupted Gu Mingzhou's shouting and explained. Chapter, 255 Gu Mingzhou immediately nodded. This was Gu Mingzhou's second time here. During his first two visits, the entire palace only had the Samsara Underworld Hall Master. Now that the Samsara Underworld Hall Master wasn't here, it was naturally empty. I was planning to let the Samsara Underworld Hall Master join forces with you to fight Su Fenyu. But now, it seems like we have to leave first. After confirming that the Samsara Underworld Hall Master was not around, Gu Mingzhou immediately made a decision. But before he finished speaking, he took the lead and walked out of the hall. However, just as Gu Mingzhou and Zhou Yuanba walked out of the palace, a group of demonic cultivators suddenly appeared out of thin air. They held sharp blades and surrounded Gu Mingzhou and Zhou Yuanba. How dare you trespass the Samsara Underworld Hall? What are you doing? Among the demonic cultivators, a leader in a scarlet robe pointed a long spear at Gu Mingzhou and scolded him coldly. Zhou Yuanba clenched his right hand slightly, and a dark light immediately flowed out. The situation was urgent, and Su Fengyu could catch up any time. It couldn't be sudden. Therefore, when faced with the obstruction of this group of demonic cultivators, he was prepared to deal with them and then escape quickly. Everyone must have misunderstood. I was invited by the Samsara Underworld Hall Master. Gu Mingzhou quickly reached out to hold Zhou Yuanba and stepped forward. He cupped his hands at the leader of the demonic cultivators and explained. What a joke, you can't even lie. The pavilion master had passed away three months ago, so how could there be an important guest? In my opinion, you must be a lackey of the Zhou dynasty who wants to take advantage of my Samsara Underworld Hall. Before Gu Mingzhou could finish, he was interrupted by the leader of the sorcerers, who shouted coldly. The Samsara Underworld Hall Master has passed away. Gu Mingzhou did not expect the Samsara Underworld Hall Master to die. Young Lord, why waste your breath on him? They're just an ant. We can just kill them directly. Zhou Yuanba stood beside Gu Mingzhou and said in a deep voice. Zhou Yuanba was in the sixth rank mortal realm, so he naturally didn't take these demonic cultivators seriously. Even Gu Mingzhou could easily defeat these people, but he would not do so. 
Gu Mingzhou would not lay a hand on the demonic cultivators of the Samsara Underworld Hall because the Hall Master did him a favor by sending him to the Sacred Soul Island. If you don't believe me, you can ask Hei Wu Chang. Gu Mingzhou immediately stretched out his hand to stop Zhou Yuanba and looked at the leader of the demonic cultivators. Humph, everyone knows that Hei Wu Chang is not here. How do you want me to ask him? The leader of the demonic cultivators snorted coldly. I don't think you're a good person, even if you're not a spy of the martial arts world of the Central Plains. Take them down. The leader of the demonic cultivators obviously did not want to waste any more time talking to Gu Mingzhou and immediately gave the order. However, before he could finish his words, a terrifying pressure suddenly descended. Bang! Then, the seawater churned. The seawater above the Samsara Underworld Hall suddenly split apart and retreated a hundred miles, revealing the bottom of the sea. The terrifying thundercloud that covered the sky slowly descended. It was a huge dark cloud that covered a hundred miles of the sea. Lightning flashed, and arcs of light circulated. Young Lord, let's go. Zhou Yuanba recognized the origin of the thundercloud and immediately exclaimed in shock. This thundercloud was the terrifying dark cloud behind Su Fengyu. You guys hurry up and leave. Gu Mingzhou could naturally tell as well. He looked nervous and reminded her. However, the demonic cultivators surrounding Gu Mingzhou did not believe Gu Mingzhou's words, even though they were equally surprised. They still didn't move. As they looked up at the thunderclouds above them, they also stared cautiously at the two people in the middle. Young Lord, it'll be too late if we don't leave now. Zhou Yuanba said anxiously. Without waiting for Gu Mingzhou's reply, he grabbed Gu Mingzhou by force, stomped on the ground, and jumped up. He brought Gu Mingzhou with him and broke through the encirclement, shooting toward the southeast. Where do you think you're going? The leader of the demonic cultivators, who had been secretly watching Gu Mingzhou, reacted. He immediately brandished the spear in his hand and thrust it into the void. Zhou Yuanba's speed was so fast that he was already a hundred miles away before the spear reached him. Without stopping, it shot forward and disappeared from everyone's sight in the blink of an eye. Immediately inform Hei Wu Chang. The leader of the evil cultivators put away his spear and stood still. He stared at Zhou Yuanba and Gu Mingzhou, who had disappeared but did not pursue them. Zhou Yuanba's speed had intimidated the general, and he knew the difference between the two, so he gave up on the pursuit. Yes. One of the heretic practitioners who had just reacted immediately cupped his hands and replied. However, before the evil cultivator could finish his sentence, the slowly descending thundercloud had already descended. The next moment, the void trembled. The samsara underworld hall behind them suddenly exploded. The roof of the hall, which was made of glazed tiles, shattered, and a bright red figure appeared instantly. He fled so quickly. Su Fengyu was floating on the roof of the main hall, staring in the direction where Zhou Yuanba had disappeared. Who are you? You actually dare to destroy the Samsara Underworld Hall. The leader of the evil cultivators was furious. Gu Mingzhou and Zhou Yuanba's escape had already made him angry. Now that the Samsara Underworld Hall had been destroyed, he was furious. Dozens of demonic cultivators jumped up and attacked Su Fengyu. You're just an ant, but you can replenish the physical strength I've just exhausted. Su Fengyu stretched out his right hand and waved at the dozens of demonic cultivators who were rushing over. Bang! 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 A series of explosions rang out above the Samsara Hall. The evil cultivators who flew into the air all exploded and died in the air. Their flesh and blood flew everywhere, and the blood mist quickly entered Su Fengyu's body. What? The leader of the evil cultivators was terrified. Without any hesitation, he turned around and ran. You still want to run? Su Fengyu, who had just killed the demonic cultivators, noticed the leader of the evil cultivators who had escaped and said softly. He raised his right arm and pointed at the leader of the demonic cultivators. An extremely fine red light suddenly shot out and instantly entered the leader of the demonic cultivators' body. Blood and flesh flew everywhere. The leader of the demonic cultivators who had guarded the Samsara Underworld Hall for almost a hundred years had died and turned into a mist of blood. 
I've recovered about 60% of my strength. After absorbing the blood mist left behind by the leader of the evil cultivators, Su Fenyu let out a long breath and muttered to himself. After absorbing a peak stage immortal foundation cultivator, for ordinary immortal foundation cultivators, and hundreds of Tianyuan cultivators, my strength has only recovered 20%. Although I was able to defeat that damned demonic cultivator, I'm afraid it'll be difficult to kill him. Su Fenyu frowned and pondered. Suddenly, he raised his head and looked into the distance with a surprised expression. It was filled with pure vital essence, extremely violent, and the fluctuations it set off were shocking. Eh. There are so many vital essence fluctuations. There are so many creatures that could be killed there. Su Feng Yu muttered. I'll recover my strength first, and then I'll go and capture the two of them. Su Feng Yu instantly turned into an afterimage and shot in the direction of the fluctuations. As Su Feng Yu moved, the huge lightning cloud above also moved. The electric arc flowed, shaking off the 300 meter deep seawater. It followed Su Feng Yu and flew southwest. Su Feng Yu's speed was extremely fast, and with the dark clouds opening the way, he completely separated himself from the seawater. There was no resistance at all as he flew in the void. Very quickly, he flew a million miles away and was far from the Samsara Underworld Hall. He was gradually approaching the huge true core strength wave. Chapter 256 Kill I swear to protect the Samsara Underworld Hall with my life. Brothers, kill. We will take down the Samsara Underworld Hall and unify the Arctic Sea. The seawater surged and churned. Before Su Feng Yu had even approached, a deafening battle cry could already be heard. True core strength shot out. Although it wasn't strong, when the huge amount of true core strength interweaved together, it formed an existence that could endanger someone in the mortal realm. They kept colliding in the sea, creating explosions, shaking the bottom of the sea and shaking the netherworld. This was a battle between the great Zhou dynasty's reclusive sects and the demonic cultivators. The two sect began to fight to the death, which was a chaotic battle. Among them, a group of huge cultivators was the most eye-catching. They were completely red, just like the burning flames at the bottom of the sea. The weapon in his hand was swung up and down as if it was stirring the world. Wherever it passed, dismembered corpses were strewn all over the ground, and broken limbs flew up. Huh, Brother Lu Xiang, I really didn't expect that the huge cultivators of your Sanyuan cave would be so powerful in a chaotic battle. On the southern side of the battlefield, Zhang Sun Ting was floating in the sea, hundreds of meters above the ground. He looked at the demonic cultivators who were gaining the upper hand. With a bright smile on his face, he turned to Lu Xiang, who wore a dark red robe. Of course, our tribe was born for battle. We can take down Samsara Underworld Hall. It's a pity that Hei Wu Chang isn't here. Otherwise, I'd kill him with my own hands. Lu Xiang's red robe fluttered in the wind as he proudly declared. The Samsara Underworld Hall Master had fallen. When the Sword Saint Patriarch of the Martial Arts World in the Central Plains received the news, he immediately ordered his troops to march into the Samsara Underworld Hall. Even without the Samsara Underworld Hall Master, their foundation was not to be underestimated. Not only did they stop the invasion of some hidden sects of the Central Plains in the Zhou Dynasty. Among them, Lu Xiang's Sanyuan Cave was the most obvious. It even led a rebellion and wanted to cause internal strife in the Samsara Underworld Hall C area. Back then, as Hei Wu Chang of the Samsara Underworld Hall, he acted swiftly and decisively. He ordered the Sanyuan Cave's destruction and even personally killed the cultivators who tried to escape. This made Lu Xiang extremely angry, and swore to kill Hei Wu Chang for revenge. Brother Lu Xiang, don't worry. Now that you have joined the ranks of the martial arts world of the Central Plains, Hei Wu Chang is the only one left to fight. It's only a matter of time before we take down the Samsara Underworld Hall. By then, Hei Wu Chang will be at your disposal. Zhang Sun Ting naturally knew the reason behind this. He quickly waved his hand and tried to persuade Lu Xiang. Besides, isn't Brother Chu Ze going to ambush Hei Wu Chang? Maybe they have already captured him and taken him back to Sword's Peak. They are waiting for us to make a decision after we win this battle. 
When He Wu Chang annihilated San Yuan Cave, Cave Master Sha Jing in Chu Zhe, who was in contact with Lu Xiang, was frightened. He sent his clansmen away overnight and crossed the customs to seek refuge with the Sword Saint Patriarch. When He Wu Chang learned of this, he was furious and ordered to surround Chu Zhe as a warning. Chu Zhe was equally furious. He borrowed a few experts from the Sword Saint Patriarch and sneaked into the Samsara Underworld Hall C area to ambush He Wu Chang and assassinate him. After hearing Zhang Sun Ting's words, Lu Xiang did not reply. His gloomy face eased up and he nodded slightly in agreement. No matter how powerful He Wu Chang was, he was only at the mortal realm. Encountering an ambush from five mortal realm warriors of the same level, it was simply a narrow escape. As Zhang Sun Ting had said, he might have been captured by Chu Zhe and brought back to the sword's peak. Why don't we end this battle? Zhang Sun Ting said to Lu Xiang. All right. Lu Xiang agreed. He immediately flew into the battlefield with his sword in hand and attacked the few generals of the demonic cultivators from Samsara Underworld Hall. However, before Lu Xiang's sword could hit the general, he panicked and looked to the north in fear. Huh, your cultivation is not bad. A gentle voice was heard. The sea on the north side of the battlefield suddenly split open, and a huge thundercloud covering the sea suddenly appeared. The red-robed Su Yu slowly walked over in the air. A terrifying and suffocating pressure suddenly descended. This caused everyone who was fighting at the bottom of the sea to be stunned and stop fighting. Who who are you? Lu Xiang's face was filled with fear, because when the red-robed man appeared, he had lost control of his body. Su Yu walked over slowly and stopped thirty feet away from Lu Xiang. I am the master of this world, and you are all my food. His right hand reached out to Lu Xiang. Bang! Lu Xiang's body, which had been frozen in midair, exploded instantly. Blood splattered everywhere, and the blood mist that remained in midair quickly entered Su Feng Yu's body. Ah! It's incomparably delicious. As the blood mist entered his body, Su Feng Yu sighed with great enjoyment. The smile on his face became even more evil. He lowered his head slightly and looked down at the many experts below him. It's your turn now, my food. Su Feng Yu's voice was not cold, nor did it have any killing intent. Instead, it was full of warmth, like a breeze. However, it terrified the experts at the bottom of the sea. Lu Xiang was a cultivator in the mortal realm. With his huge body and talent, he was even more powerful. Countless experts had died at his hands. He was a well-known expert in the entire world at the bottom of the freezing sea, but he couldn't even withstand one move. His body instantly exploded and died, turning into a bloody mist that scattered. This was enough to make everyone's heart palpitate in fear. This how is this possible? Zhang Sun Ting's eyes widened in shock, and he asked in disbelief. Although he was stronger than Lu Xiang and could defeat him, it would be more difficult to kill him than to ascend to heaven. Not to mention, it was done so casually. Zhang Sun Ting recovered from his shock. He turned and ran without hesitation. He could see the mysterious man's strength, especially the thunderclouds that had driven away the surrounding hundred miles of seawater. It made his heart palpitate, and he poured out his true core strength to escape in panic. You want to leave? Then I'll start with you. Zhang Sun Ting's actions immediately caught Su Fen Yu's attention. The devilish smile on his face grew even wider. As he spoke, he raised his right hand and pointed at the rapidly escaping Zhang Sun Ting. Zhang Sun Ting, who had already escaped a hundred meters away, exploded. Zhang Sun Ting's body exploded and he died. The bloody mist that me left behind flew back and entered Su Feng Yu's body. An ant at the mortal realm, barely passable. He smacked his lips and muttered to himself. Then, he shifted his gaze to the others. He fell directly from the sky. At the same time as Su Fen Yu fell, the terrifying thunderclouds above him suddenly trembled. The powerful force descended, causing the stunned powerhouses to return to their senses. Arg! Quickly run! Retreat! My lord is dead! Let's run! After regaining their freedom, all the masters on the scene immediately roared in shock and turned to run away in unison. 
They wanted to get away from Su Fenyu, the pervert who had easily killed Zhang Sunting. The smile on Su Fenyu's face became even happier as he faced the evil cultivators who were fleeing in panic. Don't say that I didn't give you a chance. Now, all of you come at me together. If you can touch me, I will let you go. After saying that, Su Fengyu stretched out his hand and grabbed the expert closest to him. Chapter, 257 The area between the eyebrows of the Sword Peak's cultivator exploded, and his sticky brain liquid spurted out, splashing on the faces of the demonic cultivators beside him. A blood mist flew out from his fallen body and quickly entered Su Fengyu's body. Not good. This space has been surrounded. It's the doing of the thundercloud above. The places that are covered by it are all blocked. We can't escape. Ah. I don't want to die. Many of the escaping soldiers immediately realized the seawater that had been driven away by the thunderclouds had been completely surrounded, and there was no escape. Even if Su Fengyu didn't make a move, Zhang Sunting, who had just escaped, wouldn't have been able to fly more than a hundred miles away. This lord had said that if you want to live, then attack me. As long as any of you can touch me, I will let you go. Su Fengyu said again. His figure disappeared and reappeared behind an expert of the Samsara Underworld Hall who was not far away. The expert immediately let out a blood-curdling scream. There was a bloody hole in his chest. Su Fengyu had already taken out his heart and held it in his palm. With a light grip, it was immediately shattered. Go to hell. Even though his heart had been dug out, the Samsara Underworld Hall expert did not die immediately. His face was filled with desolation, unwillingness, and anger. He knew that he couldn't live anymore, so he used the last breath of his life to slap Su Fengyu, trying to kill this demon. However, before his palm could even get close to Su Fengyu, his body suddenly exploded. A cloud of blood mist floated out from the flying pieces of flesh and was once again absorbed by Su Fengyu's body. Sigh. As expected, you can't even withstand a single blow. Su Fengyu shook his head and sighed. He suddenly waved his hand and pointed behind him. Whoosh! The red light shot out and suddenly shot into the forehead of an expert who wanted to take the opportunity to attack Su Fengyu. The demonic cultivator's face immediately twisted, and the space between his eyebrows split open, spreading to the space between his legs. His whole body was divided into two halves, and blood mist flew out from the crack. The red light didn't stop there. After splitting apart this expert, it immediately shot towards the experts of the three primordial caves. In an instant, a blood-red light flashed and pierced through dozens of people. The demonic cultivators who were shot by the red light all had their foreheads split open. They didn't even have the chance to make a sound before they were split into two and died. Demon. He's a demon. Someone shouted in fear and turned to run. Even though they knew they couldn't escape this space, they subconsciously wanted to get away from Su Fengyu. Su Fengyu's methods were too fierce. None of the people he killed were intact. All of them had no bones left, which was chilling. I'll kill you. Of course, there were also some brave people who cursed and slashed at Su Fengyu. They seemed to know that they were going to die, and their faces were filled with grief and anger as they rushed over. When he was ten meters away from Su Fengyu, his body suddenly exploded, and his minced meat turned into a bloody mist that entered Su Fengyu's body. I wanted to use you guys to warm up, but I didn't expect you guys to be so cowardly. You only know how to run. Su Fengyu said with a sigh. His face revealed an impatient look as he suddenly grabbed at the sky. A series of explosions rang out at the same time. The experts scattered within a radius of a hundred miles immediately exploded and died. In an instant, broken limbs and bones covered the ground, the stench of blood filled the air, and blood formed a river. Many experts died here. Not even their bones were left. The blood mist that filled the sky also rushed toward Su Fengyu and quickly entered his body. Eh. I've recovered almost 90% of my strength, enough to deal with that damned demonic emissary. I'd like to see who else can protect you this time, the young lord of the sacred soul island. Su Fengyu's face turned cold, and his body disappeared into thin air. 
the ominous thundercloud in the sky gradually dissipated the moment Su Fengyu disappeared. The thunderclouds disappeared, and the vast ocean immediately surged over, instantly flooding hundreds of miles of space and scattering the corpses on the ground. In an instant, the seawater within a thousand miles was dyed blood red. Two figures flew past at high speed at the junction of a particular sea region. Zhou Yuanba brought Gu Mingzhou along. By the time Su Fengyu absorbed the experts, they had already escaped thousands of miles away. After passing through the Samsara Underworld Hall, he changed his direction again and flew towards the west. The distance between the two added together had already exceeded 10 million nautical miles. You've already flown more than 10 millions of miles. If you continue like this, I'm afraid you'll die of exhaustion before Su Fengyu can catch up. And don't you think the way you're hugging me is very awkward? Gu Mingzhou looked helplessly at Zhou Yuanba, who hugged him tightly and said awkwardly. Did I? Zhou Yuanba turned around and immediately landed on a rock. He let go of Gu Mingzhou and asked in confusion. Yes, very much so. Gu Mingzhou quickly kept his distance from Zhou Yuanba and said with certainty. Young lord, I was able to fight against that world cultivator earlier, but now that he has absorbed the blood essence of nearly forty cultivators, his strength has significantly increased. I'm no match for him, and you haven't awakened. I'm afraid we're doomed this time. Zhou Yuanba said seriously. Gu Mingzhou nodded. He finally understood why Zhou Yuanba had suddenly chosen to escape. It was because Su Fengyu's cultivation had suddenly increased. It's actually fine. No matter how cruel he is, as long as I don't get caught by him, it'll be fine. Gu Mingzhou thought for a while and said. World cultivators are in harmony with the Heavenly Tao. As long as we're in this world, they'll be able to detect the existence of the Heavenly Tao. As long as he recovers his strength, he'll be able to find us instantly. Compared to Gu Mingzhou's carefreeness, Zhou Yuanba was worried. No way. Doesn't that mean we have no way to escape? Gu Mingzhou questioned. He's right. There's no one in this world that I can't find. A voice as gentle as the wind suddenly came from behind them. The pressure suddenly descended and instantly locked down the area within a hundred miles, preventing Gu Mingzhou and Zhou Yuanba from escaping. Gu Mingzhou quickly ran to Zhou Yuanba's side and looked over. We meet again, little brother. Su Fengyu was actually floating in the sea with his hands behind his back. He looked at Gu Mingzhou with a smile. You've recovered your strength? Zhou Yuanba reached out to protect Gu Mingzhou and said in surprise. No, but it's almost the same. I said you can't escape. Su Fengyu said indifferently. You think I'm afraid of you? Zhou Yuanba stared at Su Fengyu cautiously and said in a cold voice. At some point in time, his hands, which were placed in front of his chest, were covering the bronze fragment emitting a faint light. It was a bronze fragment the size of a fist with the words G Prefecture written on it. There was a soft golden light flowing on it. Zhou Yuanba's hands were also circulating with black vital essence, and he held the bronze fragment tightly. Why? Are you scared? Zhou Yuanba's previous worry was swept away, and he spoke with a triumphant tone. A small bronze fragment could actually make the invincible Su Fengyu afraid. Gu Mingzhou guessed in his heart. It seemed like there was something in this world suppressing the other party. Otherwise, this world god would not have been sealed by his biological father for no reason. Everything had a cause and an effect. Although Su Fengyu was a powerful fellow in this world, there was naturally something that could restrain him. Chapter 258 Every world had a place where energy gathered to support the world as a whole. This world was suppressed by the nine prefectures' cauldrons. The world's origin was the source of life energy that the nine prefectures' cauldron provided to all the living creatures in this world. The world's origin could grow on its own and would not be destroyed, but it could be exhausted. Once half of the world's origin was consumed, it would cause the vitality of the entire world's living beings to weaken. This was also the reason why the Heavenly Tao had decided on the lightning punishment and caused the disaster. It was to maintain the balance of the world's origin and to prevent the production of excessive living beings from consuming the world's origin. 
Back then, the martial arts experts of the Central Plains and the people of the Sacred Soul Island had come to an agreement to use the Nine Prefectures Cauldron to seal Su Fengyu. This also caused the Nine Prefectures Cauldron to be broken. I'm sure you can see that this part of the world's origin energy won't endanger your life, but it can make your world god race unable to cultivate. You'll stop here and lose the ability to live forever. Zhou Yuanba paused for a moment before continuing. Because the nine prefectures' cauldrons were broken, they could no longer suppress Su Fengyu. However, at the same time, the world's origin was scattered, and the martial arts cultivation energy would be reduced. There were only two paths in front of Su Fengyu. He could either take the risk of gathering all the nine prefectures' cauldrons or make the nine prefectures' cauldrons disappear forever. And his martial Tao achievements were destined not to be too high. Speak. What do you want? Su Fengyu closed his eyes and calmed himself down. When he opened his eyes again, he asked in a cold voice with a frosty expression. Is there anything despicable in this world? Just because the heavenly Tao has pitted you, you're wreaking havoc and harming living beings. Aren't you despicable? Of course, what you do has nothing to do with me, but the young lord is someone I must protect. Let us go and I'll return the bronze fragment to you. How about it? Zhou Yuanba sneered. Humph. You've a good plan. Do you think that if I let him go, the others will? Do you think there's only one world god? He has the strength to seal a world god, and he's destined to die. Su Fengyu said softly. There is not only one world god. Back then, Gu Mingzhou's father had already proven he had the ability to defeat the world god, so this group of people would naturally not let him off. Similarly, they would not let anyone who posed a threat go. Just let us go. You don't need to worry about anything else. Zhou Yuanba interrupted Su Fengyu. If he couldn't even pass this obstacle, what future could he have? Right now, only Su Fengyu has appeared. Whether the other world gods can escape or not, it's still unknown. I can let him go, but how can I believe he will give me the fragment of the Nine Prefectures cauldron? Su Fengyu had obviously chosen to compromise, but he would not easily believe the other party's words. Zhou Yuanba frowned. His verbal promise was not enough to convince Su Fengyu. Furthermore, the other party was an old man who had lived for several hundred years. He was truly more intelligent than a monkey. It would be not easy to make him feel at ease. But now, his hope lay in the bronze fragment. Let the young lord go, and I'll stay as a hostage. Zhou Yu and Ba's compromise. No. Absolutely not. Gu Mingzhou refused directly. Although he had many doubts, he knew Zhou Yu and Ba would die if he stayed. He wasn't Su Fengyu's match in the first place. If he could figure out how he awakened his energy, he might still have a chance. If Zhou Yu and Ba died, he didn't know if he could survive. It was a bad choice. Young Lord, this is the only way. Furthermore, it is my honor to exchange my life for your safety. Zhou Yuanba said in an unquestionable tone. But. Gu Mingzhou paused and said unwillingly. He was interrupted by Zhou Yuanba. Young Lord, there's no need to say anything. This subordinate has already made up his mind. Zhou Yuanba said. It wouldn't be too late to capture him after his main body dealt with this demonic emissary and took back the world's origin power. He can't escape from this world anyway, and as long as he's still in this world, he can't escape from my palm. Su Fengyu pondered and calculated in his heart for a moment before he answered. Good. You stay with the world's origin, and I'll let him go. After saying that, Su Fengyu's face once again showed a standard smile, but two rays of light flashed in his eyes. He waved his right hand behind him, and the void suddenly trembled. Buzz. The imprisonment that had imprisoned a radius of a hundred miles instantly disappeared. You can leave now. Su Fengyu looked at Gu Mingzhou and said. I'm not leaving. If I'm leaving, we'll leave together. Moreover, his target is me, and it has nothing to do with you. Gu Mingzhou clenched his fists, looked up at Su Fengyu, and said in a clear voice. Although he had not known Zhou Yuanba for long, he was unwilling to see Zhou Yuanba sacrifice himself to save him. 
From the beginning to the end, Su Feng Yu's target had been Gu Mingzhou. Although he didn't know if he was the young lord they were talking about, Su Feng Yu's determination to kill him was very obvious. On the other hand, Zhou Yuanba was dragged into this because he wanted to save him. Therefore, Gu Mingzhou naturally did not agree to let him escape alone and let Zhou Yuanba stay behind to die. Moreover, Zhou Yuanba mentioned that the Realm Lord had a special skill to find anyone in his world instantly. This meant that even if Gu Mingzhou escaped now and temporarily escaped from his predicament, it would still be difficult for him to escape Su Fengyu's pursuit. It would be a waste of Zhou Yuanba's life. The outcome was still the same. Quick go, young lord. Otherwise, we'll all wait for death. Under Gu Mingzhou's opposition, Zhou Yuanba turned around and sighed. Before he finished speaking. Without waiting for Gu Mingzhou's reply, he pushed Gu Mingzhou with his right hand, wanting to send him away. Just as Gu Mingzhou was about to retort, Zhou Yuanba pushed him, and a palm-sized object entered his body. If you head west, there's an ancient battlefield 10,000 miles away. You can enter it with this token and leave this world temporarily. You can avoid the pursuit of the world god. Zhou Yuanba's voice suddenly sounded in Gu Mingzhou's mind. Without waiting for Gu Mingzhou to react, his right hand that was pushing Gu Mingzhou's body suddenly released a ball of pitch black pure elemental energy, which immediately wrapped around Gu Mingzhou. No. Gu Mingzhou finally came back to his senses and shouted, wanting to resist with all his might. However, it was too late. Zhou Yuanba's pitch black attack was so powerful that Gu Mingzhou could not stop it at all. He was taken away and shot towards the west. The black light wrapped around Gu Mingzhou, and in the blink of an eye, he disappeared from this sea. As you wished, I have already let him go. Give me the fragment. Su Fengyu said coldly as he looked at Gu Mingzhou, who quickly disappeared from his sight. There's no hurry. We'll wait until the young lord is completely out of danger. Zhou Yuanba said calmly. He had never intended to hand the item over to the other party. This was the last hope of the godfiend race and perhaps also the hope of mankind. Chapter 259 Are you going to act shamelessly in front of me? Su Fengyu's tone became even colder, and his killing intent wrapped around Zhou Yuanba. Ha, huh, you world god, you really don't know your place. I was just joking with you. Seeing Su Fengyu's ugly expression, Zhou Yuanba burst into laughter. Although I'm a demonic cultivator, why would I go back on my word like you guys? Zhou Yuanba replied, not forgetting to make fun of Su Fengyu. Before he could finish his words, Zhou Yuanba flicked his left hand, and the purple bronze fragment flew out of his palm towards Su Fengyu. Su Fengyu quickly stepped into the air and took the fragment. However, as soon as the purple bronze fragment touched his hand, Su Fengyu's expression changed abruptly, and his right hand suddenly clenched down hard. Slap! The round bronze fragment that was emitting a purple glow immediately shattered, turning into specks of crystal light before finally dissipating. How dare you lie to this lord! The sea began to shake. Su Fengyu's face was filled with anger. He stepped on the water and disappeared in an instant. Buzz! The next moment, Su Fengyu appeared before Zhou Yuanba and pushed out his palms. Zhou Yuanba didn't even have the chance to block before he was struck in the chest. Bang! Zhou Yuanba was sent flying hundreds of meters away, crashing into the rocks. The hard ocean rock that had existed for countless years immediately shattered into pieces. Cough it's not that I'm lying to you. You're the stupid one. If I could find the real nine prefectures cauldrons, would have destroyed you bunch of perverts long ago. Zhou Yuanba raised his head from the rubble. He clutched his chest and coughed violently. He suddenly burst out laughing again, very happy. You're looking for death. Su Fengyu's face was as cold as frost as he coldly shouted. He closed in on Zhou Yuanba again and gathered the energy of heaven and earth in his right hand. Then, he threw out a powerful punch. Ignoring his injuries, Zhou Yuanba quickly channeled his pitch black true core strength and threw out a punch. There was another violent explosion. Su Fengyu, who was in the air, did not move at all, but Zhou Yuanba's body, which had fallen to the ground, 
suddenly slid back for dozens of miles. Zhou Yuanba spat out a mouthful of blood and grinned hideously as he finally stopped. You perverted world god. I curse you all not to have a good life. Before Zhou Yuanba could finish his curse, Su Feng Yu's attack had already come. He closed the distance of a few hundred meters in an instant. His right hand formed a claw and suddenly reached into Zhou Yuanba's chest. Blood splattered everywhere as Su Feng Yu's right hand pierced through Zhou Yuanba's body. He held Zhou Yuanba's still beating heart in his palm, and blood flowed from it. Zhou Yuanba's face was ashen, but the smile from before still remained on his face. His throat moved slightly, and he chuckled. Go to hell. Su Feng Yu became even angrier. He clenched his right hand tightly, and his heart was instantly crushed. Whoosh! The finger-sized Zhou Yuanba suddenly burst out from the broken heart and shot toward the west without hesitation. It was Zhou Yuanba's soul that was hiding in his heart. Now that it was exposed, it chose to escape immediately. However, the soul did not even manage to fly a hundred miles before it suddenly stopped and exploded. Like fireworks, they bloomed at the bottom of the sea and were quickly annihilated, turning into dust. Then, a cloud of blood mist was devoured by Su Feng Yu. Do you think I don't know that you've hidden your soul in your heart? Su Feng Yu pushed Zhou Yuanba's corpse away and said coldly as he stared at the scattered soul ashes. Can you really save your young lord? Before he could finish his words, a charming smile reappeared on Su Feng Yu's face, and his figure instantly disappeared. The pitch black true core strength that enveloped Gu Mingzhou was very strange. It was like a solid shield that imprisoned Gu Mingzhou. Its speed was also extremely fast, even faster than Zhou Yuanba's speed. He had flown thousands of miles away in just a few breaths. From this, it could be seen that Zhou Yuanba seemed to have used all his power on Gu Mingzhou to help him escape danger. As for Zhou Yuanba, he was probably already prepared to die. Gu Mingzhou could naturally tell. However, he was only a peak saint cultivator. He couldn't change Zhou Yuanba's decision, nor could he change the current situation. In the end, it was still the result of strength. Sigh. Gu Mingzhou's eyes were slightly red. He looked at Zhou Yuanba and Su Feng Yu, who could not be seen at all, and sighed. However, his body continued to fly at high speed with the Black Essence's force. Zhou Yuanba planned the direction of the pitch black elemental energy in advance. In order to rush for time, he even flew directly to the far west in front of Su Feng Yu. Zhou Yuanba wanted to send Gu Mingzhou out of the ancient battlefield as soon as possible. Due to the ancient war, the regional walls were the weakest, and even many cave abodes did not belong to this world. Zhou Yuanba's goal was to let Gu Mingzhou enter those cave abodes. In this way, he could get rid of the perception of this world's heavenly Tao, and also get rid of Su Feng Yu's pursuit. Gu Mingzhou was still wrapped in Black Essence Force and rushing. In just a short while, he had flown thousands of miles away. This place should be tens of thousands of miles away from the Samsara Underworld Hall, right? Gu Mingzhou muttered to himself as he sat cross-legged in the middle of the Black Essence Force. Previously, Zhou Yuanba had already brought him thousands of miles away from the sacred Soul Island Sea area, and now they had flown thousands of miles again. Zhou Yuanba called him young lord, so he wanted to protect Gu Mingzhou even if it meant death. Su Feng Yu had also addressed him as young lord, yet he was trying to kill him by all means possible. What was the purpose of all this? And the secrets of the Zhou dynasty? The secret of the sacred soul island? Everything was like a mystery, waiting for him to unravel. He had also heard that Meng Ao of Seven Devil Hall had died. A mortal realm warrior was already invincible in the world of ordinary people. Who had killed Meng Ao? Could he be another world god? He kept guessing. Although Zhou Yuanba had fled with him for a while, he had been thinking about how to get rid of Su Feng Yu and escape from danger. He had not had the time to ask Zhou Yuanba about the reason. Could it be that the current him was not the real him? Gu Mingzhou thinks he's just an ordinary cultivator in the Zhou dynasty. He couldn't understand. His life for the first twenty years had been dull, similar to many cultivators in the Zhou dynasty. Ever since his parents were killed, things began to change. 
all kinds of disasters, dangers, and strange things were happening in an endless stream. Even now, he was beginning to doubt that he wasn't himself. Could it be that all of this is because of this? Gu Mingzhou pulled off the hexagonal pendant around his neck and muttered to himself with glistening eyes. The various changes that had happened to him in the past year had all started because of the reincarnation pendant. Gu Mingzhou quickly connected the dots. Naturally, he was reminded of the thing that had changed his life at the beginning. Chapter 260 After thinking through these things, he hung the pendant back around his neck and stuffed it into his clothes. The seawater surged, and after the black essence force that enveloped him flew rapidly for 10,000 miles, it seemed like it had already run out of energy. It gradually thinned out, and the speed also slowed down. In the end, it was equivalent to floating with inertia. What ancient battlefield are we at? Gu Mingzhou stood up from the thin black essence force shield and started to observe the situation around him. This was an ancient battlefield that had been swallowed by the sea. The seawater filled the broken walls and ruins. Fortunately, the water was so clear that one could see the bottom. Although the waves were gradually becoming blue, one could still clearly see the traces left behind by the ancient war. There were huge ravines cut by sharp weapons. They were flat and long, and the broken walls were smooth and slippery. There were ruins of castles that had been blown apart by powerful energy, and broken glass tiles were everywhere. There were even the corpses of experts who were soaked in the sea. Their clothes, skin, and flesh had rotted clean, leaving only white bones that emitted a faint white glow. After traveling for nearly a thousand miles, the black energy shield finally ran out of energy. It let out a crisp sound, like a bubble that had been popped. It instantly burst and turned into specks of crystal light, drifting along with the sea water and gradually disappearing. Gu Mingzhou fell from the sea and landed on the ruins. He looked around and couldn't help but feel a deep sense of respect. Especially those piles of white bones that were emitting a faint white light, their cultivation must have been extraordinary when they were alive. Because only cultivators in the mortal realm would be able to evolve their physical bodies, and their bones and bodies would be connected to the spirit. However, even if they had reached the mortal realm, they would still die a tragic death on the battlefield, and the best result was no one to collect their bodies. This was enough to prove how brutal this world had been in the ancient times. Gu Mingzhou quickly shook his head and forced himself not to think about this. The most important thing now was to find the cave as soon as possible and avoid the world god. Otherwise, Zhou Yuanba would have sacrificed his life for nothing. Even though he knew that Su Fengyu would not let Zhou Yuanba go, Gu Mingzhou still had hope for Zhou Yuanba. Or rather, it was a blessing, or even a hope to survive. Before he could finish his sentence, Gu Mingzhou immediately activated his elemental energy and took out the bronze fragment that Zhou Yuanba had fused into his body. Just as Zhou Yuanba had said, it was a bronze fragment the size of a palm. It was transparent like crystal. The two words G Prefecture were engraved in the middle of it, and the surroundings were decorated with blue patterns. It was many times more exquisite than the Seven Devil Halls token. Zhou Yuanba said with this bronze fragment, one can enter the ancient immortal's cave and escape the heavenly Dao surveillance. But how do I find it? Gu Mingzhou looked at the exquisite token in his hand and scratched his head. What's wrong? You can't find the place, can you? However, just as Gu Mingzhou was feeling vexed, a gentle voice with a hint of a smile suddenly sounded from behind him. Who is it? Gu Mingzhou turned pale with fright and quickly leaped back, jumping a few meters away to avoid the attack. The surrounding seawater where he stood before suddenly began to boil and churn. A red shadow gradually emerged. Su Feng Yu. Gu Mingzhou frowned, and surprise flashed across his face. The red shadow that emerged from the rolling sea water was Su Feng Yu, who was held back by Zhou Yuanba. Where's Zhou Yuanba? Gu Mingzhou came back to his senses and asked nervously. Su Feng Yu had come too quickly, so fast that Gu Mingzhou was a little surprised. He couldn't help but think of Zhou Yuanba. Hee hee, that fellow is just an ignorant wretch. Do you think he can stop me? Don't be delusional. This lord has said that none of you will be able to escape. Su Feng Yu said indifferently. 
Before he could finish his sentence, the devilish smile on his face suddenly disappeared and was replaced with a cold and sinister expression. His right hand suddenly reached out towards Gu Mingzhou, and a red ribbon suddenly shot out, directly shaking off the seawater and fiercely striking Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou hurriedly activated the elemental energy in his body and tried to dodge it. However, the speed of Su Fenyu's swing was simply too fast. Almost at the same time as Gu Mingzhou mobilized his origin power, he was instantly whipped. Slap! Gu Mingzhou was like a zither with a broken string. He immediately flew backward a hundred meters and fell directly on a pile of white bones that were emitting a white glow. The already rotten bones were smashed into pieces, causing layers of waves. Pfft! Blood spurted out of Gu Mingzhou's mouth, instantly dyeing the seawater around him red and giving off a strong smell of blood. I have never absorbed your blood essence before. I wonder how it tastes. Su Fengyu moved his nose very pretentiously and sniffed the bloody smell drifting in the sea. What, are you angry? Helpless, right? You're very unwilling, right? Ha ha ha. Su Fengyu seems to be doing something extremely enjoyable. Su Fengyu instantly appeared in front of Gu Mingzhou. He raised his left foot and kicked Gu Mingzhou's chest, completely pressing Gu Mingzhou, who was just about to get up, to the ground. What? Are you angry? Helpless, right? You're very unwilling, right? Ha ha ha. Su Fengyu seemed to be doing something very happy. His right foot stepped on Gu Mingzhou's chest, which made Gu Mingzhou feel weak and pressure as heavy as a mountain. The pressure made Gu Mingzhou's face red from lack of oxygen. What I want is for you to die in anger, helplessness, and unwillingness. Only then can I relieve the hatred in my heart. After saying that, Su Fengyu extended his right hand and pointed at Gu Mingzhou's face. A slender blood-red ray of light shot out immediately and attacked Gu Mingzhou with extreme speed. When the blood-red light shot between Gu Mingzhou's eyebrows, a cold glint suddenly burst out from Gu Mingzhou's body. It was a soft sword that was as thin as a wing. It flickered with a cold light and was filled with viciousness. At the same time, as fast as lightning, it instantly cut through the blood-red light and slashed directly at Su Fengyu without stopping. What? Su Fengyu sensed danger from the flexible sword and quickly retreated. The flexible sword did not take advantage of the situation to pursue an attack. After forcing Su Fengyu back, it suddenly returned and collided with a crimson light that had burst out of Gu Mingzhou's body. The two forces collided, causing the surrounding seawater to roil. The seawater suddenly split apart at the place where the soft sword and the red light collided, revealing a crack in the void that was as thick as two fingers. A storm formed by the turbulent flow inside shot out like a demon. It devoured everything around it, causing the crack to expand rapidly. It caused the void to shatter, forming a huge whirlpool that stirred up the entire seabed. Gu Mingzhou, the closest to the crack, was sucked into the crack almost instantly. Su Fengyu's expression changed. Even if he was one of the top existences in the world, he still showed a hint of fear when he saw the spatial storm that was crazily devouring everything. Seeing that Gu Mingzhou had been sucked into the crack by the turbulence, a cold smile flashed across Su Fengyu's face. He moved his feet and instantly disappeared. He had directly left this place where the void had shattered and the turbulence was wreaking havoc. Chapter 261 the huge whirlpool stirred the entire sea area. Whether it was the Samsara Underworld Hall thousands of miles away, the Sacred Soul Island millions of miles away, or even the sea region far away from the Great Zhou Dynasty, everyone was shocked by this crazy and devastating disturbance. At this moment, the entire world was in an uproar. In the universe beyond the world, or in other words, in the space beyond the void, there were not many planets and stars in the sky like in the legends. On the contrary, it was as dark as the night. It was so dark that one couldn't even see their fingers. It was so dark that it made people panic, palpitate, and panic. In this boundless darkness, all sorts of violent energies formed turbulence and storms that wreaked havoc. Even if ancient experts were to enter this place, they would be instantly turned into dust and die. The turbulent flow space was different from the world space. It was closely connected to the world space, 
but they were also separated and different from each other. Moreover, the turbulent space basically wrapped up all the world spaces. There could be many world spaces, but there could only be one turbulent space. Just like the legend, the beginning of the world was darkness. It was unknown how many times, but a powerful person who did not like darkness appeared. He swung his axe to split the world apart and created the world. Then, there was the sun, the moon, and the four seasons, and everything changed. Of course, this was only a legend. No one knew if it was true. However, almost all cultivators knew that in their world, if the void shattered, it would form a turbulent space. The spatial turbulence produced by it could almost easily destroy the world and all living beings. In this dark space filled with turbulence, a sky-blue ball of light suddenly floated over. It was particularly eye-catching. It emitted a gentle sky-blue radiance as it shuttled through the terrifying turbulent storm. It shot past and suddenly collided with the place where the storm was gathering. The turbulent flow of space surged, but not a single sound was produced. It was as if no such thing could transmit sound in this world. One could only feel the vibrations and not hear any sound. Even in the pitch-black space, the endless turbulent storms raged and collided with each other, causing the entire space to shake slightly. There was no sound at all, and it seemed extremely calm. The place where the blue light hit suddenly lit up. It was like the light in the dark night, more like ink that had fallen into clear water. In an instant, the light was so bright that it occupied the dark sky. In this darkness, it was especially dazzling and beautiful. However, the light was not eternal. After a flash, it quickly disappeared as if swallowed by darkness, leaving no trace. It was like a tide that came and went, quickly disappearing. The entire space once again returned to pitch-black darkness, as well as the endless turbulent storm. The strange ball of sky-blue light also disappeared with the light. The sky-blue ball of light was like a sharp arrow that was shot out. It suddenly appeared and instantly disappeared. The entire process happened in the blink of an eye. It was just like a short-lived epiphyllum flower in this turbulent space and was swept away by the tide-like light. Of course, it did not disappear. Instead, it left the turbulent space along with the brilliant light and entered another small space. To be precise, that place could not be considered a small space. There was no sun, moon, trees, or human habitation in this place. All there was was a grey sky, a grey-white land, and broken walls that seemed to have no end. It was like a barren desert, except that the yellow sand had been turned into a grey-white land, with rare rocks even in the Zhou dynasty, and living creatures of unknown species. Buzz. Suddenly, in this desolate place, above the grey sky, the void suddenly split open, creating a huge crack. Countless violent turbulent flows came out madly, stirring up the sky. Among them, there was also a dazzling white light, and a sky-blue light ball suddenly shot out. The sky-blue ball of light was very fast. As soon as it shot out of the crack, it instantly hit the ground. Bang! The blue light bloomed as if the entire earth was shaking, slightly shaking, dust rising, grey dust flying with the wind. The terrifying huge crack gradually closed in the sky, and the violent void turbulence also converged. The sky-blue light on the ground also quickly faded and fell from the sky, landing on the two figures who had fallen out of the light. Are you alright? Jing Wudao helped Gu Mingzhou up and asked with concern. I'm fine. Gu Mingzhou stood up and quickly waved his hand to wipe the blood from the corner of his mouth. He fell from the sky-blue light but was not injured. The blood at the corner of his mouth was caused by Su Funyu. What's going on? Jing Wudao only let go of Gu Mingzhou's hand after making sure that he was fine and asked with a frown. At the critical moment, he suddenly launched a sneak attack and forced Su Funyu to retreat, saving Gu Mingzhou. However, he knew nothing about what had happened to Gu Mingzhou. It's a long story. If you didn't come out, I would have thought that you had also disappeared. Gu Mingzhou said helplessly. He didn't expect that at this critical moment of life and death, he would suddenly appear and block Su Funyu, saving his life. Of course, the biggest reason he was saved was because of the bronze fragment that Zhou Yuanba had given Gu Mingzhou. When Jing Wudao forced Su Funyu back, 
he suddenly exploded with energy. He actually broke through the void and brought Gu Mingzhou here. I'm sorry. After my spirit was repaired, my stagnant cultivation started to loosen up. I went into seclusion and broke through a realm before coming out. Jing Wudao said apologetically. It's fine. This has nothing to do with you. The main reason is that Su Fengyu. If it wasn't for Zhou Yuanba who risked his life to save me and gave me this bronze fragment, I'm afraid I would be dead by now. As he said this, a flash of sadness appeared in Gu Mingzhou's eyes. Although Zhou Yuanba had not known Gu Mingzhou for long, he was very loyal to him. Even though he didn't know the reason, he was touched and sad. Who was that cultivator just now? I feel like he's much more powerful than those in the mortal realm. Seeing Gu Mingzhou's sorrow, Jing Wudao quickly interrupted Gu Mingzhou's thoughts and changed the topic. Your intuition is not bad. Even immortal foundation cultivators would be turned to dust in the snap of his fingers. Gu Mingzhou shook his head and said. So powerful. What was going on? How did you offend such a powerful cultivator? Jing Wudao asked. It's a long story, and even I don't know why I provoked him. Gu Mingzhou sighed helplessly. Su Fengyu suddenly appeared when he was cultivating in the Zhou dynasty and exterminated the entire clan. He deliberately left behind information about Sacred Soul Island so he could take revenge and find Sacred Soul Island for revenge. However, the god fiend of the Sacred Soul Island were all fighting their own battles. He could not find out where Su Fengyu was. Fortunately, the great elder of the Seven Devil Hall took Gu Mingzhou in. Chapter 262 I really didn't expect that you'd actually experience so much while I was in seclusion. After listening to Gu Mingzhou's story, Jing Wudao took a long breath and said in surprise. Jing Wudao was especially shocked and Gu Mingzhou talked about how Su Fengyu killed many experts with a flip of his hand and directly devoured a large amount of blood mist. Gu Mingzhou didn't know that before Su Fengyu caught up to him and Zhou Yuanba, Su Fengyu had also entered a deep sea battlefield and devoured many experts. Otherwise, Jing Wudao would be even more surprised. I didn't expect to encounter so many things in this unknown sea. Gu Mingzhou also sighed along with Jing Wudao. The path of a cultivator is like this. Life and death are up to fate. You don't have to think too much about it. However, it's quite a coincidence that you were able to come to this space. Jing Wudao advised. I know. It's just that the thought of someone dying for me makes me feel a little sad. Gu Mingzhou forced out a smile and replied. Although I have never seen Zhou Yuanba before, it is rare for a demonic emissary to be so loyal to his master. He is indeed worthy of admiration. Jing Wudao patted Gu Mingzhou's shoulder. Gu Mingzhou nodded his head in agreement, but his gaze shifted to his surroundings. Right, where is this? Gu Mingzhou asked, puzzled. He had only noticed now that the place they were in was completely different from his original world. Especially under the grey sky and the grey-white earth, it gave people a strange feeling. This should be a small, dilapidated space. Jing Wudao also looked around and explained. A small space? Gu Mingzhou asked, puzzled. Yes. You haven't seen it before, so it's not strange that you don't know. This kind of space isn't big, and it has lost many things from the original world, but it's precious in its secrecy. Generally, only the Creator knows where it is, and others can't find it at all. It's undoubtedly a good place for closed-door cultivation. Jing Wudao was a disciple of a reclusive sect of the Zhou dynasty, so he knew a little about this kind of thing. Oh, I see. Isn't this the same as a small world? Gu Mingzhou guessed. Of course not. The small space can only be considered a relatively stable part of the world before it was created. Although it is separated from the heavenly Tao, it must attach itself to the original world. Otherwise, the turbulent storm would have destroyed it long ago. Moreover, the source of true core strength in the small space still needs to be drawn from the world. Jing Wudao waved his hand. It was just a mere small space. It would be an exaggeration to say that it was a world. This place was inseparable from the energy of the source world. I see. 
Gu Mingzhou nodded slightly, understanding Jing Wudao's explanation. The smiling Jing Wudao suddenly grabbed Gu Mingzhou and hurriedly retreated. The moment Jing Wudao pulled Gu Mingzhou away, the grey-white ground where Gu Mingzhou had been standing suddenly exploded. There was a muffled sound, and dust flew. In the sky full of grey and white dust, a black phantom the size of half a man suddenly sprang out, fast as lightning, and attacked Gu Mingzhou. Be careful. Jing Wudao threw Gu Mingzhou behind him and suddenly thrust out the violet sun flexible sword in his right hand. The sword light flickered as it instantly stabbed toward the phantom. Sparks flew in all directions, and the sharp sound rang out. It was ear-piercing and heart-piercing, making one feel a little uncomfortable. The phantom that had pounced over ferociously was forced back by Jing Wudao's sword. It flipped in the air and landed ten meters away, revealing its true form. It was a very strange-looking monkey. Its size was similar to that of a common wild monkey. It was about half the height of a human and extremely thin. However, its entire body was black in color. Even though its fur was grayish-white, it was pitch-black when one looked at it. It was as if there was a strange ability that covered the color of its hair, making it easy to ignore. Moreover, he could not detect any life force from this monkey. There was only an extremely thin air of decay, which was very difficult to detect. Bloody Corpse Monkey when Jing Wudao saw the thing that suddenly attacked him, surprise flashed across his face. He stood in front of Gu Mingzhou to protect him. Bloody corpse monkey. What's that? Gu Mingzhou asked curiously. They are special creatures that devour other creatures to cultivate. They're brutal and cruel. They'll devour each other even if they're of the same kind. It's extremely terrifying. Jing Wudao gave a simple explanation. Devouring living beings. Isn't it very powerful? Why can't I sense its aura? Gu Mingzhou continued to ask. To be more precise, the bloody corpse monkey is a variant of the undead. It's equivalent to our soul. Its main source of life comes from the air of death, so it's difficult for us to detect its aura with our telegnosis ability. Jing Wudao carefully stared ahead. I wonder how strong it is. Let me kill it. It was too amazing for Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou had only seen spirits of the dead in ancient books and had never seen one before. Now that he had seen a mutant of the undead, he was suddenly curious. The bloody corpse monkey's strength should be equivalent to a mortal realm cultivator. With your injuries, you might not be its match. Let me do it. Jing Wudao was slightly worried. If I can't do it, you can go. Gu Mingzhou was very curious about the bloody corpse monkey and insisted on testing it. This Jing Wudao was a little troubled. He was worried that Gu Mingzhou would get injured again. It's just a test. Don't worry. Gu Mingzhou walked out from behind Jing Wudao and faced the bloody corpse monkey. Okay. Okay. The bloody corpse monkey was very afraid of Jing Wudao. It did not dare to attack and just watched carefully. Now that it saw Gu Mingzhou walking out of his own accord, it immediately let out a cry. At the same time, it moved its knees and quickly rushed toward Gu Mingzhou. The bloody corpse monkey's attack method was different from a cultivator's. It did not use origin energy but its sharp claws to attack the enemy. The claws were extremely sharp. With a wave, it shook the surrounding air and triggered true core strength. The sharp claws had yet to arrive but the sharpness had already arrived. Gu Mingzhou sensed the danger and quickly reached for his waist with his right hand. The long spear suddenly shot out, carrying a fierce might, and fiercely stabbed out. Although the bloody corpse monkey was undead, it was still intelligent. It seemed to have sensed the sharp edge of the spear and did not dare to attack. Its body which was in mid-air, shifted sideways. Its body was agile, and it dodged the spear light in an instant. At the same time, it stretched out its claws and grabbed the spear handle. An incomparably thick force hit him instantly. The force was so great that Gu Mingzhou's entire body was directly thrown up along with the spear. This is terrible. Gu Mingzhou was shocked. He quickly held the spear with both hands. His elemental energy gushed out wildly, and his arms shook with force. 
With a shake of the spear, the bloody corpse monkey was forced back and fell to the ground. Bastard, die! Gu Mingzhou shouted angrily. His body, which had been thrown into the air, somersaulted in the air and flew to the top of the bloody corpse monkey's head. He suddenly thrust his long spear. He was really angry. He was embarrassed he was almost thrown away by the bloody corpse monkey, so he used all his strength. The spear glowed brightly and descended from the sky at lightning speed, aiming at the bloody corpse monkey's head. The bloody corpse monkey cried out twice and bared its fangs. Chapter 263 Gu Mingzhou obviously angered the bloody corpse monkey. Seeing the long spear coming at it, it did not retreat. Instead, it advanced. Its slender arms suddenly waved out, and its sharp claws instantly grabbed the spear. Buzz! The sharp, ear-piercing sound rang out again, and sparks flew in all directions. Gu Mingzhou's spear, which he had thrust out with all his might, was actually blocked by the bloody corpse monkey's hands. Moreover, he was even sent flying in the air and was forced to retreat when he landed. Of course, the bloody corpse monkey didn't have much advantage either. It was also forced back by the impact. The nails on its right claw were shattered, and it was a bloody mess. A sticky green liquid was dripping from it, emitting a pungent smell. Are you alright? Jing Wudao asked in a worried voice while he rushed forward with open arms to catch Gu Mingzhou and help him relieve the force. Cough, I'm fine. Gu Mingzhou turned around with a pale face and forced a smile at Jing Wudao. Although he had only shattered one of the bloody corpse monkey's nails, he could not defeat it. However, the considerable backlash also caused Gu Mingzhou's Dantian to roll and touch his old injuries. All right, now that you've tried, rest first. Leave the rest to me. Jing Wudao let go of Gu Mingzhou's hand after he steadied himself and prepared to fight. The bloody corpse monkeys were monsters that live in groups. If we stay here too long, a group of them might appear. Let's end this quickly. Gu Mingzhou thought for a while and said. Don't worry. I know what to do. Jing Wudao reached out and patted Gu Mingzhou's shoulder. Before he finished his words, he jumped up and slashed at the bloody corpse monkey with the soft sword in his hand. Okay. Okay. The bloody corpse monkey shrieked ferociously. Although it feared Jing Wudao, Gu Mingzhou had completely stimulated its beast nature. It no longer had the fear it had before, and its robust body directly pounced at Jing Wudao. However, Jing Wudao clearly knew the bloody corpse monkeys very well and knew their attacks very well, so he did not confront them directly. Instead, he pointed at the air and landed behind the bloody corpse monkey. Then, he stabbed the bloody corpse monkey's back. Whoosh! The Qingfeng flexible sword, which was as thin as a cicada's wing, instantly pierced through the bloody corpse monkey's loose grayish-white fur and directly into its flesh. A sticky green liquid immediately flowed out of the sword, accompanied by a pungent smell. The bloody corpse monkey shrieked in pain and came back to its senses. He extended his right claw, still dripping with green blood, and directly grabbed the Qingfeng flexible sword. His right arm trembled, trying to snatch the weapon away with brute force. Humph. A small trick. Jing Wudao's face revealed a disdainful expression as if he already knew the bloody corpse monkey would grab the Qingfeng flexible sword. He immediately shook his right arm and let out a light shout. Bind. Before he could finish his words, the Qingfeng flexible sword, which had just been caught by the bloody corpse monkey, suddenly came to life as if it had a mind of its own. The sword twisted and broke away from the bloody corpse monkey's sharp claws. Then, like a venomous snake, it coiled around the bloody corpse monkey's right arm. The bloody corpse monkey turned pale with fright and immediately shook its right arm to free itself from the restraints. However, Jing Wudao attacked again as soon as it moved. Kill! Jing Wudao let out an explosive shout. The Qingfeng flexible sword that was tightly wrapped around the bloody corpse monkey's right arm suddenly rose and pierced through the entire arm. Jing Wudao didn't take the chance to cripple the bloody corpse monkey's right arm. Instead, he took two steps forward with a cold expression on his face. His right arm shook violently, and the Qingfeng flexible sword, which had pierced through the bloody corpse monkey's right arm, was thrust forward. 
the sharp Qing foam flexible sword immediately pierced through the bloody corpse monkey's head. A large amount of thick green liquid instantly shot out. It was a mixture of brain and blood, but it was dark green and extremely thick. The Qing foam flexible sword, which had pierced through the monkey's brain, shot out like a water column, splashing for several miles and almost splashing on Gu Mingzhou. Jing Wudao pierced through the bloody corpse monkey's brain. Without any hesitation, he immediately withdrew his sword and retreated. Plop! The flexible sword left the bloody corpse monkey's body. The bloody corpse monkey's face was still as ferocious as before. Then, it fell to the ground and died. Of course, it had no life force to begin with. Dead? Gu Mingzhou walked closer and asked carefully. That's right. It's already dead. Jing Wudao put away his sword and nodded at Gu Mingzhou. At the same time, he walked toward the bloody corpse monkey's corpse. Gu Mingzhou still couldn't believe it. He kicked the bloody corpse monkey on the ground and confirmed it was dead. Of course. I've dealt with the bloody corpse monkeys here before. Although they are fierce, they have a fatal weakness. Jing Wudao walked to the side of the bloody corpse monkey's corpse, pointed at its head with his sword, and explained. The source of their life was all gathered in their monkey brains. As long as the monkey brains were cut off, they would be completely dead. Otherwise, it would only become more courageous as the battle progressed, and he was not afraid of death, making him particularly difficult to deal with. I see. Gu Mingzhou nodded and said. It was no wonder he had used all his strength to injure its right claw severely but had no effect on it. Instead, it had only infuriated it even more. Let's go. The bloody corpse monkeys live in groups, and their blood has a particularly strong stench. I'm afraid that it will attract other bloody corpse monkeys. We've just arrived here and aren't familiar with this place. It's not suitable for us to fight for a long time. Jing Wudao said to Gu Mingzhou as he put away his green crest flexible sword. What about it? Gu Mingzhou nodded and pointed at the bloody corpse monkey's corpse. What do you mean? This thing is full of the smell of death and is useless to us. Its companions will eat the body, Jing Wudao shook his head and explained, then turned to leave. Where are we going now? Gu Mingzhou quickly followed, occasionally turning back to look at the corpses. We're unfamiliar with this place. Let's get familiar with the situation first and see if there's any opportunity. Jing Wudao said as he walked. The place they were at was still very barren. They should be at the edge of the ruins. All historical remains had natural treasures, and one might even be able to find great possibilities. Forget about the opportunity. I just want to leave this place as soon as possible and find out the truth. Gu Mingzhou shook his head and smiled. The so-called treasures of heaven and earth were bound to be filled with danger and the habitat of fierce beasts. Right now, Gu Mingzhou only wanted to find the truth as soon as possible and start cultivating. As for the other things, Gu Mingzhou did not care. Only after experiencing the pain of losing one's loved one would one know what one should cherish in life. It's not strange for you to have such thoughts. But have you ever thought about whether it's in this world, the great Zhou dynasty, or the unknown lands? How can one survive without power? Jing Wudao had long since seen through the law of the jungle, and the rule was to use your fist. Besides, after going through Su Fenyu's incident, don't you realize the seriousness of the matter? Even if you're not the young lord they speak of, once they decide you're the one, they'll definitely kill you. Gu Mingzhou fell into deep thought. Jing Wudao was right. This was a world where the strong ruled, and it was also a world where killing was everywhere. Whether you want to live or protect the people you want to protect, you can never lack strength. Chapter 264 After having experienced so many things, Gu Mingzhou was even more aware of the importance of strength. If he were strong enough, he would not have let his parents die. If he had been strong enough, he would not have been chased by Su Fengyu and sacrificed Zhou Yuanba. Almost everything that happened in the past year was because Gu Mingzhou was not strong enough. Otherwise, the result might not have been like this. But no matter how hard Gu Mingzhou worked, even if he had the opportunity to obtain this relic, was he really Su Fengyu's match? He didn't know, and he wasn't even confident. 
Gu Mingzhou had seen Su Fengyu's strength with his own eyes. It was not something that could be compared to an increase in a few realms. Even a man of the mortal realm was like an ant in this man's eyes, let alone a saint cultivator like Gu Mingzhou. Even Gu Mingzhou, who thought he was extraordinary, did not think he could surpass Su Fengyu in a short time. In fact, he didn't think he could defeat Su Fengyu for the next ten years. Therefore, he didn't think obtaining a great opportunity from the relics would save him ten years of cultivation. Actually, you don't have to belittle yourself. Although I can't see any good points in you, I believe that you're not an ordinary person. You'll definitely soar to the sky. Jing Wudao seemed to see Gu Mingzhou's loneliness and comforted him. Besides, don't be intimidated by Su Fengyu's means. The reason why he's so strong, the main reason, is because he's a world god. Jing Wudao continued. What? Gu Mingzhou didn't understand what Jing Wudao meant, and his eyes were filled with confusion. The so-called world god was actually the world cultivator race. The world cultivator race was born when the world was first formed. They were the first race to be born in this world. They were innately heavily relied on by the heavenly Tao. They had extraordinary talent, extraordinary strength, and a long life. Jing Wudao explained as he walked. It turned out that the so-called world cultivators were the first batch of living beings created by the heavenly Tao in order for the world to give birth to all living beings when the world was first formed. In order for them to survive, the heavenly Tao had given them many conveniences that they relied heavily on. Not only did it give them a strong body, but also special talents. They were born with super strength and even had a long life. But it was precisely because they were heavily relied on by the heavenly Tao and regarded as the guardians of this world. Therefore, the heavenly Tao would not let the world cultivators leave. In the previous period, the world cultivators had to cultivate with their feet on the ground, and the heavenly Tao did not mind. After thousands of years, these people, who were almost as old as the world, had reached the peak of their cultivation with their extraordinary talent. And at this moment, their cultivation stopped. This was because the amount of power that this world could contain had already reached a certain level. If the world cultivators were allowed to continue improving their cultivation, the balance of the world would be broken, and the world might even be destroyed. The only way was to ascend to another place or die. As a living being that was painstakingly nurtured by the heavenly Tao, it had long been destined to be unable to leave this world. As a result, the world cultivators began to oppose the heavenly Tao and the world they even attempted to break through the shackles of this world. This would completely enrage the heavenly Tao. Thus, the battle between the celestials and humans began. This was a war almost every world would experience after its birth. The outcome of the war was self-evident. It was impossible for a child to defeat his parents. Not to mention, they have not grown up yet. The lightning continued to strike, the earth crumbled, the water flooded, and the elemental energy solidified. The arrogant world cultivation race had thus brought about the destruction of their race. However, the heavenly Tao showed some mercy and did not exterminate them. When the world cultivation race was almost completely wiped out, a few were left behind. They were especially taken care of by the heavenly Tao and sealed to grow. As for the remaining young world cultivators, their abilities could not be underestimated when they grew up due to their talents as world cultivators. They easily became the peak existences in this world. This group of world cultivators didn't have any resentment against the heavenly Tao. However, they considered themselves superior to others due to their innate talent and cultivation. They were the noblest existences in this world, bullying all living things and calling themselves the world god. Many races had been exterminated because they didn't listen to the arrangements of these world cultivators. As for those who were lucky enough to escape, as they continued to cultivate and ascended to the upper realm, they still held a grudge against the world cultivators. As a result, cultivators who ascended to the ancient world formed gangs and alliances. Ultimately, the two worlds were connected, and they descended to kill the world cultivators. Of course, the person who was punishing the realm cultivators this time was not the real heaven but the mighty people from the upper realm who were called celestials. These mighty people had all cultivated to a particular realm in the upper realm. 
Even if the heavenly Tao suppressed their cultivation base in this world, the power they exerted was still difficult for the world cultivators to resist. The result was self-evident. The world cultivators were defeated once again, and they were all killed. However, as living beings favored by the heavenly Tao, it would definitely not let them die for real. Under the cover of the heavenly Tao, there would be a small number of world cultivators who would survive. In order to prevent such a thing from happening, the heavenly Tao would grant the world cultivators the ability to devour the living creatures born in this world at will, thus indirectly achieving the ability of immortality. Su Fengyu, whom Gu Mingzhou had met, should be one of the surviving realm cultivators. On the other hand, Su Fengyu's strange sorcery of killing and devouring the blood essence of independent cultivators and demonic cultivators was a special ability given to him by this world. It could ensure that he was full of strength, continuous vitality, and a long life. That's why Su Fengyu could easily kill a man at the mortal realm. It's not because of his high cultivation, but because he has a special ability given by the heavenly Tao, which can crush any creature born in this world. Even Jing Wudao felt a little thirsty when he talked about the history of the world cultivators. He put away the Qingfeng flexible sword and reached out to rub his temples. According to this, as long as I don't fight with Su Fengyu in the outside world, I have a chance to defeat or even kill him. Gu Mingzhou scratched his head and speculated. You can say that Jing Wudao suddenly stopped mid-sentence. What's wrong with you? Gu Mingzhou was entranced by Jing Wudao's words and almost bumped into him. He hurriedly stopped and looked at Jing Wudao, asking in confusion. Jing Wudao suddenly raised his hand and interrupted Gu Mingzhou's question. Be careful. They're coming. His expression became extremely grim as he said in a cold voice. Gu Mingzhou quickly spread out his spiritual sense, and his expression changed drastically. A thick and pungent stench filled the air and instantly enveloped the two of them. The particularly pungent smell made one's stomach churn. Furthermore, it was as if it was about to condense into a physical body, causing the feeling of vomiting to become even more intense. However, Gu Mingzhou didn't even have time to vomit before Jing Wudao grabbed him. He leaped up and shot forward. Jing Wudao's expression was extremely grim as if he had encountered an extremely serious matter. It made this expert, who could remain calm even when facing Su Fengyu, feel a sense of fear. Chapter, 265 Just as Jing Wudao flew up with Gu Mingzhou, the ground they were standing on exploded. Bang! White dust filled the air. Countless bloody corpse monkeys swarmed out like army ants in the desert. They were so dense that they formed a black mass. So many bloody corpse monkeys. Gu Mingzhou, who had been brought into the air by Jing Wudao earlier, looked down at the overwhelming number of bloody corpse monkeys. His pale face was filled with surprise. He had heard from Jing Wudao that the bloody corpse monkeys lived in groups. However, they had never thought that there would be so many of them. They were comparable to the number of people in a city of the great Zhou dynasty. Why are there so many? Even Jing Wudao, who had some understanding of the bloody corpse monkeys, was surprised when he saw the number of bloody corpse monkeys. You've never seen so many bloody corpse monkeys before. Gu Mingzhou looked at Jing Wudao in confusion and asked. The largest tribe only has a hundred or so of them. There are definitely not that many. Besides, we left the bloody corpse monkey's body behind. They should be fighting over it. How could they catch up to us? Jing Wudao said with certainty. Maybe it's because there are too many of them, so they're devouring the corpses very quickly. It seems there are only two of us in this land, right? It's not strange for them to find us. Before Gu Mingzhou could finish his sentence, Jing Wudao, who had been advancing rapidly, suddenly stopped, and his speed slowed down. This is bad. I must have entered the core of the relic. There's a speed restricting formation here. My speed has been reduced. Jing Wudao said. What? Gu Mingzhou was shocked. He subconsciously looked at the thousands of bloody corpse monkeys that were chasing after them. The group of bloody corpse monkeys was about to catch up. The bloody corpse monkey's speed was not affected by entering the hinterlands. Their robust figures did not stop at all as they frantically rushed toward Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao. 
A few bloody corpse monkeys at the front were already under Jane Woodow. They jumped up and stretched out their sharp claws, trying to drag Jane Woodow down. Fortunately, although these bloody corpse monkeys were fierce, they did not know how to fly. They could only rely on jumping. Although they jumped twenty to thirty feet high, they were still quite a distance away from where Jane Woodow and Gu Mingzhou were. Without waiting for Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao to relax, the army of bloody corpse monkeys had already caught up from behind. They actually directly piled up and gradually increased in height like a human pyramid, rapidly approaching Jing Wudao. If Jing Wudao's speed continued to be restricted, the bloody corpse monkeys would soon be caught up to them. This can't go on. We have to think of a way. Gu Mingzhou looked at the rapidly rising monkey wall below him and worriedly reminded him. Jing Wudao had naturally noticed this problem as well, and his expression became extremely serious. He didn't reply to Gu Mingzhou immediately. Instead, he fell silent. Lend me your spear. After a long time, he finally came back to his senses and said. Gu Mingzhou didn't know why Jing Wudao suddenly wanted the spear, but he subconsciously nodded in agreement. He reached out his right hand and handed the spear at his waist to Jing Wudao. When they get close, use your spell technique and try to stay in the air to avoid the bloody corpse monkey's attacks. I'll go and kill some of their pride. Jing Wudao immediately took the spear and said with a grim expression. No, this is too dangerous. Gu Mingzhou quickly objected. Jing Wudao shook his right arm and threw Gu Mingzhou high into the air. Then, he pulled and pushed with both hands, and the spear suddenly shot out. Whoosh! The sound of the spear piercing through the air could be heard. The spear was extremely fast and it immediately pierced through the head of one of the bloody corpse monkeys that was already close to the wall of monkeys. The tip of the spear was sharp. It instantly pierced through the back of the bloody corpse monkey's head, and thick green blood spurted out. The bloody corpse monkey close to Jing Wudao died on the spot. Its body was immediately thrown into the crowd of monkeys below without causing any ripples. Before it even landed on the ground, it was devoured by the bloody corpse monkeys below, leaving only white bones behind. As soon as one of the bloody corpse monkeys landed, the other monkeys immediately took up the position. They stepped on the wall of monkeys that had stacked up to several feet high and pounced at Jing Wudao. You're looking for death. Jing Wudao swung his spear and stabbed out once more. Pfft. The spear was as swift and violent as before, piercing through the bloody corpse monkey's head. Green blood spurted out and fell into the crowd of monkeys below, turning into white bones in an instant. But before Jing Wudao could even catch his breath, three bloody corpse monkeys had already leaped out at the same time. Their robust bodies lightly tapped against the wall of monkeys, and they flew above Jing Wudao. They pounced down ferociously, and their six sharp claws swiped at Jing Wudao. Jing Wudao didn't panic in the face of danger. Facing the three incoming bloody corpse monkeys, the long spear flickered. In the gray void, the long spear suddenly turned into two spear shadows and three spear lights were instantly thrust out. They were extremely fast and pierced into the heads of the three bloody corpse monkeys. Spurt! The green liquid splashed, and the life force was wiped out. The three bloody corpse monkeys that had pounced on them died on the spot. They fell into the crowd of monkeys and turned into white bones. Before Jing Wudao could withdraw his spear shadow, several more bloody corpse monkeys jumped out. In the blink of an eye, dozens of bloody corpse monkeys leaped over the monkey's wall. They leaped into the air and pounced at Jing Wudao simultaneously. Jing Wudao's spear, which had yet to be retracted, was suddenly flicked out. The two spear shadows that were originally circling around his left and right suddenly spread out and rapidly increased in number. Two, four, eight, sixteen streaks of mist. In the blink of an eye, hundreds of pitch black spear shadows appeared in front of Jing Wudao, shining with endless cold light. He shot out his spear and accurately pierced the bloody corpse monkeys. Muffled sounds reverberated in the air. All the bloody corpse monkeys that were hit by the spear shadows lost their balance even if they did not hit the monkey's brain. They fell into the group of monkeys with the spear shadows that had pierced into their bodies. In the end, only white bones were left. Okay. Okay. 
Jing Wudao's blocking of the bloody corpse monkeys' attacks didn't intimidate the monkeys. Instead, it infuriated them even more, causing them to roar in anger and attack even more fiercely. The bloody corpse monkeys began to jump up from the wall of monkeys. It was as if they were endless in number as they charged forward one after another. You're looking for death. Jing Wudao immediately brandished his spear, and his true origin energy spread out. The air trembled. The spear shadows that had followed the bloody corpse monkeys into the troop of monkeys exploded. It was like a landmine buried in the monkey tribe. The explosion shook the monkey wall and destroyed its foundation. The monkey wall, which had already been stacked several zhang high, collapsed with a loud bang. Nearly a thousand bloody corpse monkeys fell to the ground. Jing Wudao didn't care about this at all. He destroyed the wall of monkeys with a single spear strike. He didn't feel the slightest joy of victory as he hurriedly brandished his spear, using it as a whip and sweeping it across his chest. The spear instantly struck the dozen or so bloody corpse monkeys that had leaped high into the air to pounce on Jing Wudao. The spear struck their abdomens and they fell down to the chaotic monkey horde below. Then, Jing Wudao didn't stop at all. He used his spear to attack the bloody corpse monkey. Chapter 266 The wind suddenly rose, and the clouds changed color. Terrifying lightning filled the sky. In the gray sky, countless black spear shadows appeared. The cold light flickered, covering the clouds and the sun. Jing Wudao's face immediately turned fierce. He raised his spear high and suddenly swung it, instantly stabbing it toward the monkey group that was in a mess. Exterminate. The sky was filled with spear shadows, covering the sky and the earth like a rainstorm falling down. The spear's radiance was extremely sharp and flickered with a cold light. It carried a ferocious might and was like a punishment from the heavens. It was even more like a soul-summoning technique from purgatory. It was extremely swift and violent. In a flash, it had landed in the midst of the bloody corpse monkeys. Green blood splattered everywhere, and whales filled the sky. Thousands upon thousands of spear shadows filled the entire space as they stabbed toward the monkey tribe below. This was harvest. This was a slaughter. The viscous green blood continued to splatter and flow into a river. Ear-piercing screams resounded in the universe and went straight to the nine heavens. Slender black monkey arms flew out one after another, and broken limbs filled the sky. The pitch-black monkey shadows fell one after another. Although some of them were not dead, they had already lost their ability to move and were wailing on the ground. However, Jing Wudao's face didn't show any joy of victory, nor did he show any pity. There was only coldness and ruthlessness. Just like that, he stood proudly and coldly in the air with his spear. Gu Mingzhou fell from a high altitude. He activated the vital essence in his body and tried to slow down his falling speed. He tried his best to resist the gravity of the ground so that his body wouldn't fall, and he maintained the same height as Jing Wudao. Let's leave this place first. Once we find a safe place, I'll teach you the four season spear art in detail. Jing Wudao threw the spear back to Gu Mingzhou. If I can perform at half of your level, I'll be very satisfied. Gu Mingzhou quickly took the spear and said humbly. We should have already entered the heart of the ruins, I think we can reach the center if we keep going. Jing Wudao raised his head and looked into the distance as he replied softly. What should we do with these bloody corpse monkeys? Gu Mingzhou looked down at the wailing bloody corpse monkey. Let them bring their own destruction. Jing Wudao stepped into the air and flew toward the gray horizon. Gu Mingzhou chased after Jing Wudao. On the gray-white land, the cries of the remnant blood corpse monkeys gradually weakened. The viscous green liquid that gushed out of their wounds had long since solidified. Some of the less injured ones had already recovered, and new limbs had even begun to grow out. After Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao left, a slightly larger bloody corpse monkey looked at the disappearing figures of the two. Its dark eyes flashed with a green light, and it released a soft cry. Unlike the other blood corpse monkeys, this one had blood-red fur between its eyebrows. It was glowing with a bright red light. As the bloody corpse monkey's forehead glowed with a red light, the monkeys began to screech in response to the bloody corpse monkeys. 
An ear-piercing cry instantly reverberated in the empty space between heaven and earth. Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao, who had already flown more than a hundred miles away, naturally did not know what was happening behind them. Jing Wudao's speed wasn't fast, but he kept flying in a straight line, as if he had a clear target. Even so, Gu Mingzhou still had to do his best to catch up and not be left far behind. Two figures were flying rapidly in this grey world. Gu Mingzhou did not find any living beings within a hundred miles. The sky was grey, and the land was grey. There are cultivators about a thousand miles ahead of us. Jing Wudao didn't turn back to look at Gu Mingzhou. He only looked at the grey sky. Could it be the remaining living beings in these ruins? Gu Mingzhou asked, puzzled. Although it was his first time in the ancient ruins, he knew the battlefields left behind from the ancient times were all ruins. All kinds of energy in the world had almost collapsed and been exhausted. It was not suitable for the survival of all living things. The bloody corpse monkey was an exception. I don't know. We'll only know the details when we get there. This world is too empty. We'll be easily discovered if we fly. Let's walk over. Jing Wudao said. He reached out and grabbed Gu Mingzhou, bringing him to the ground. Gu Mingzhou did not dare to delay and quickly followed. The speed of walking on the land was naturally slower than flying. But to ordinary people, Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao's speed was already astonishing. In just an hour, Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao had covered a distance of nearly a thousand miles. The originally empty space between heaven and earth finally began to change. It was no longer empty. Instead, mounds of various sizes began to appear, as well as intermittent silver-white forests. It was a very strange tree. Whether it was in the Great Zhou Dynasty or on the freezing cold island, Gu Mingzhou had never seen it before. Each forest covered an area of nearly a hundred miles, but there were not many trees in it, only about a hundred. However, the trunk of the tree was as thick as twenty to thirty meters. It towered into the clouds, and the branches and leaves were luxuriant. They were connected to each other and covered the sky. The strange thing was that these thick trees were silver white in color. Even though they looked extremely flourishing, they did not give off a feeling of vitality. Instead, they gave off a lifeless aura. It was like the aura of a cemetery in the wilderness, the smell of rotting corpses. It made people shiver and feel a chill down their backs. Meanwhile, the group of cultivators that Jing Wudao had discovered was in a silver-white forest two hundred miles away from them. They're in the forest ahead. We'll sneak over and take a look. Be more careful. On the hill outside the forest, Jing Wudao turned his head and reminded Gu Mingzhou. I know, Gu Mingzhou nodded and replied. If we can't afford to offend them, we can just run away. Jing Wudao made a rare joke. Without waiting for Gu Mingzhou's reply, he disappeared into the forest like a ghost without making any sound. Gu Mingzhou followed suit and entered the strange silver-white forest. Although he couldn't be as silent as Jing Wudao, the sound he made was almost inaudible. However, just as Gu Mingzhou entered the forest behind Jing Wudao, several cold lights suddenly shot out. The three-meter-long black spike was extremely sharp and as fast as lightning. It shot out from the depths of the forest and headed straight for Jing Wudao and Gu Mingzhou. Jing Wudao's flexible sword suddenly shot out. Whoosh! Dozens of sword lights flashed and accurately struck the black spikes. A crimson light instantly flashed through the silver-white forest, and the sharp spikes that were fiercely piercing toward Jing Wudao were all shaken away by Jing Wudao's soft sword. However, Jing Wudao's advance stopped here and he landed back on the ground. What do you think of this lord's words? Is there someone? Then, a loud sound came from the depths of the forest. The sound of something breaking through the air could be heard, and several figures quickly flew over. Gu Mingzhou, who had just stopped behind Jing Wudao, had a drastic change in expression when he saw these figures. Chapter, 267 He Chuan didn't know what was happening outside. It was because he had found a place that led to space in the secret room of Tung Tuan Chanyu. As if he had passed through the turbulence of time and space, he arrived in deep and bottomless space. The shape of this space was somewhat special. 
It was like a huge sword that soared into the sky. The entire space seemed to have been pierced by a sharp sword. According to Meng Ao's memories, powerful beings fought each other in ancient times. A true god used his sword to break open the void and connect to another world. The energy from the other world was then transferred into this world. Some humans, after being contaminated by this special energy, had become the so-called god fiend. This energy affected not only the god fiends, but also many humans in the central plains. From then on, their cultivation improved by leaps and bounds, and their realms climbed rapidly. However, back then, with the suppression of the ancient powerful beings, humans appeared very small. Later, humans gradually rose to power and began the cultivation era. After the passage of time, the nine prefectures' cauldrons were shattered, and the so-called spiritual energy in the world disappeared. Therefore, no one could ever spy on the mortal realm. In fact, saint cultivators were very weak in the past, no different from rank 9 grandmasters now. The entire place should be a space left behind by the ancient war. Perhaps it was just a casual strike, and the group of powerful beings did not take it seriously back then. There were countless bronze fragments scattered here, and countless energies from other worlds entered this place and were suppressed by the scattered bronze fragments. However, because the nine prefectures' cauldrons were not complete, there was a chance that the energy would leak out. It turned out that the nine prefectures' cauldrons suppressed the energy. Back then, it had also suppressed the so-called world god. For some unknown reason, the nine prefectures' cauldrons exploded and turned into countless fragments. The world god must have escaped by now. It's really a time of troubles. The god fiends that appeared are unimportant, but there are still who knows young lord and even powerful and evil world gods. According to the clues left behind, one can cultivate in this world, but the danger is everywhere. He Chuan muttered to himself. Fortunately, he had found clues about the god fiends in the books, and now he had found more secrets by following the clues. He couldn't stop after cultivating. The gods and demons recorded in the anecdote of Chizho were actually just humans who had been contaminated with powerful energy. Some of them had their goal in the nine prefectures' cauldrons. However, from the clues he had obtained, real demons and ghosts in this world ran amok in the desolation land. Because of the ancient enchantment, they could not come to the central plains for the time being. However, with the appearance of the world god, many things changed. No one knew what would happen in the future. No wonder the Zhou dynasty had hidden such a huge formation. It turned out the hidden formation was not used to deal with wars but to prevent the gods and demons from making a comeback. This nine prefectures cauldron was rumored to be a treasure left behind by Emperor Yu. And when the so-called strong cultivators of the god-fiend race and the central plains were suppressing the world god, they accidentally discovered the secret. Some people were bewitched by the remnant thoughts left behind by the world god because they pursued power and could not forget the nine prefectures' cauldrons. After destroying the cauldrons of the nine prefectures, everyone would be able to start cultivating, and their realms would not be limited to saint cultivators. The white tiger grand sage Meng Ao was one of those who had been bewitched. They had even entered this place before, and through hard work, they had successfully released a world god. No wonder he had been so arrogant and confident He Chuan would not dare to kill him. However, he didn't expect He Chuan to ignore him and directly kill him with the soul searching technique. Because He Chuan was a reincarnated person with the system, he wouldn't be frightened by threats at all. After this world's level had dropped, the powerful cultivators of the central plains had left this place one after another. They went to places with slightly more energy such as the freezing cold sea, Lujo of northern Kulu, and the endless desert, in search of new cultivation methods. This meant that these experts had already given up on the central plains. After the incident with the nine prefectures' cauldrons, experts from all over the world began to go crazy and wanted to fight for the cauldrons. At that time, countless saint cultivators and mortal realm cultivators had fallen in the war. This caused the combat power of the entire world to decline again. There should still be many secrets that have not been uncovered. He Chuan even suspected some people had used reincarnation to set up a bigger chess game. He Chuan looked at the nine prefectures' cauldron fragment in front of him. It contained an indescribable amount of energy. If he were to absorb it directly, he would probably be able to break through to an even higher realm. 
Only by breaking through to the mortal realm could he face the world god. It was a pity that the nine prefectures' cauldrons could only be used once, and it was also incomplete, missing a few fragments. He could probably break through to a higher level if he could collect all the fragments. However, he Chuan didn't care. He had the system, so he had enough opportunities this time. He let out a breath of turbid air and began to scan the bronze fragments on the ground with his consciousness. As a world-suppressing treasure, the nine cauldrons could gather the chaotic force and help him improve his cultivation. It might even help him break through to the mortal realm. Forget it. Let's not think about unnecessary things for now. It's better to prepare to break through my own strength first. It was useless to think too much, so he might as well increase his strength first. He didn't know how powerful the mysterious world god was, and a sixth-rank mortal realm wasn't safe. It was the most important thing to improve one's strength. He Chuan sat in the middle, converting the foreign world's energy absorbed by the bronze fragment for his own use. It was as if he was basking in the warm sun, his entire body feeling warm as if all the cold in this place had been driven away. After an unknown amount of time, an incomparably tyrannical force spread out from his body. The true essence in his body continuously gathered in his dantian, gradually turning into a golden pill. In the earth realm, the human soul would condense into the golden pill and break away from the realm of martial arts to become a true cultivator. These monastic cultivators could use the power of heaven and earth to fight, and their souls would temporarily leave their bodies. They could even snatch other people's bodies. They could preserve their souls and not die at the moment of life and death. The earth realm was more powerful than the mortal realm. It was even more vast than the saint cultivators. The gap between a cultivator and a martial arts practitioner was immediately revealed. The key point between the two was that martial arts used true energy to launch attacks, while cultivators used the power of heaven and earth to fight. They used the spiritual energy of heaven and earth to strengthen themselves. After becoming a true cultivator, it might be a bit exaggerated to travel a thousand miles in a flash with ordinary swords and true essence. Still, He Chuan could now cross a distance of several dozen miles in the blink of an eye. He Chuan put away the bronze fragment and was about to leave when he suddenly remembered he had not checked in today. This place is definitely special enough. If I check in here, there should be some good things, He Chuan thought to himself. Check in. He Chuan ordered the system in his mind. The system's warning tone rang out. Ding. Congratulations to the host for successfully checking in. You are rewarded with one chaos pill and one swordsmanship technique. The rewards in special places were different indeed. There were two things at once, which was very rare compared to the previous rewards. He was indeed very lucky today. Not only did he obtain most of the bronze fragments of the Nine Prefectures Cauldron, but he also obtained two other treasures. He immediately focused his mind to check the information on the two items. Chapter 268 The Chaos Pill was a rare treasure for self-cultivators, which could help them break through to the Earth Realm quickly. As the name suggested, the sword control technique allowed cultivators to ride their flying swords and take the heads of enemies from thousands of miles away. This was the true secret manual of a cultivator. Once upon a time, he had fantasized about riding a sword and flying in the air like the experts in novels. But now, he was really going to succeed. He Chuan did not plan to go out. The power of heaven and earth here was very strong, which was a good place to cultivate. In his opinion, no one would come here. It was very suitable for cultivation. He could also check in here every day until he ran out of good stuff. There should be more good things in the first few times. He sat down cross-legged, feeling the spiritual energy flowing around him, and began cultivating. Cultivation did not know the passage of time. This was true for martial arts, and it was even more so for Tao techniques. The first rank of the earth realm, the second rank, and it did not stop until the third rank of the earth realm. He Chuan did not know how much time had passed. It might have been a few days, a few months, or even a few years. However, even though a few years had passed, it was still shocking enough for everyone to go from the first rank of the earth realm to the third level. It was a pity that the Taishian scripture had not been cultivated to the realm of great completion. 
if he could cultivate the Taishan scripture to the ninth rank, then he would welcome a qualitative change. Regardless, this was normal and within expectations. If the Taishan scripture could be cultivated to the great circle of perfection, one could achieve an immortal body. As long as the flesh, blood, and soul were not destroyed, one could be reborn continuously. Therefore, it was definitely not that easy to cultivate it to the great perfection. It's time to go out and take a look. I wonder how the young lord of the godfiend race and world god are doing. He Chuan put away all the bronze fragments and checked in again. Ding! Congratulations to the host for successfully checking in. You are rewarded with one astral talisman. The system's warning tone sounded. An astral talisman? He Chuan was a little stunned. What was this? It didn't sound like an ordinary item. During this cultivation period, he would find time to check in every day. However, they were usually items that were useful for cultivation, so they were not very rare. He immediately checked the information regarding the astral talisman. There were all kinds of spaces in the nine heavens and ten lands. It was difficult for ordinary people to break through the space and enter. However, as long as one held the astral talisman, they could enter all kinds of spaces. This world was indeed not simple. There were actually all sorts of hidden spaces. The astral talisman was like a master key that could be used to enter the so-called hidden space. Previously, he was still thinking about how to go to those hidden spaces to take a look. He did not expect the system to reward him with an astral talisman. This was like someone immediately gave him a pillow when he was sleepy. The most important task now was to find all the fragments of the nine prefectures' cauldrons and then reassemble them. Otherwise, if he really couldn't do anything to the so-called world god, it would be a disaster for the entire continent. He Chuan forced out a drop of blood essence and dripped it into the astral talisman. After the astral talisman absorbed the blood essence, it immediately flashed with a sky blue light and had a very special connection with He Chuan. He Chuan streaked across the void with the sky blue astral world talisman. A gap had appeared in this ancient space, connecting it to the real world. He crossed the space and returned to the secret room where he had been cultivating. This was also the reason why he had cut open the space at the entrance of the secret chamber. He might have appeared in another place if he had changed his position. Kai Lien carried out her daily routine of cleaning He Chuan's room. In fact, even if she didn't do the cleaning, someone else would do it, but she still insisted on doing it herself. He Chuan had been cultivating for more than a year, but he still hadn't appeared. He had been cultivating for even longer than the last time. Fortunately, Kai Lien was already used to this kind of situation. She believed that perhaps one day, He Chuan would appear. Every day, she would clean the room and wait for the young master to return. All the items on the table had been placed, and the dust in the corners had been cleaned. Just as Kai Lien was about to leave, a crack suddenly appeared in the space in front of her. Just as she was dumbfounded, he Chuan appeared from the crack. Kai Lien rubbed her eyes and looked at He Chuan in disbelief. Young young master. She stuttered. A saint cultivator's ability to distort space was just a technique. Now, He Chuan had appeared from the crack. If she hadn't seen it with her own eyes, she wouldn't have believed that such a method existed. Could this be the so-called power of the earth realm? Why are you looking at me like you've seen a ghost? He Chuan put away the astral talisman, and the spatial crack behind him slowly disappeared. I didn't see a ghost. It's just that the way young master appeared shocked me. Kai Lien wiped the tears from the corner of her eyes. You're almost thirty years old, and you still cry easily. How are you going to find a husband in the future? He Chuan smiled and rubbed Kai Lien's head. I'm just happy to see you, young master. Kai Lien lowered her head and said in embarrassment. Although she was almost thirty years old, she had always been by He Chuan's side, so she still maintained that innocence and kindness in her heart. She would only kill them if she really encountered a truly evil person. It was precisely because of this that He Chuan had been able to let Kai Lien follow him and not mention leaving for many years. Kai Lien also knew that finding a husband was a joke. What's the situation outside? He Chuan sat in a chair and motioned for Kai Lien to pour him a cup of tea. 
He had been cultivating all this time and was unaware of what was happening outside, especially the appearance of the world god. He did not know what this world had become. And in Meng Ao and Tung Tuan Chan Yu's memories, this world god was indeed very powerful. Earlier, the entire ground shook, and there was a tsunami in the sea. I heard that it was caused by some world god. Kai Lien said honestly. In that case, the world god is indeed very powerful. He can actually cause tsunamis and earthquakes. He Chuan was also stunned. This so-called world god was at least an earth realm cultivator. Otherwise, he would be unable to cause the spiritual energy to shake. Fortunately, he had also broken through to the earth realm, so he still had a chance to fight with his opponent. Yes, and the cultivation speed is not as slow as before. Sister Lia and I have also become faster. I think it won't be long before we can touch the threshold of the mortal realm. Kai Lien spoke of the recent changes. Now that the spiritual energy in the world had become richer, everyone's cultivation speed had become faster. It was as if something had lifted the restrictions, and everyone was fighting to enter closed-door cultivation. Kai Lien had also chosen to cultivate in seclusion some time ago, but she didn't do it for long, only about five months. However, she improved very quickly. She had already reached the eighth rank of the saint cultivator and was very close to the mortal realm. Where there was a loss, there was gain. After Lia became the king of the grassland, her cultivation had slowed down, and she was only a third rank saint cultivator now. In the past, it would have been stunning enough, but now that the world was reinvigorated with spiritual energy, a third rank saint cultivator was indeed not enough. We'll go back to the capital for a few days, and then we'll continue to walk around. With the astral talisman in his hand, He Chuan naturally had to find more alternate dimensions. Chapter 269 In a certain ancient space, a gentle breeze came from somewhere and gently ruffled the silver white leaves. It made people feel an inexplicable sense of wilting and desolation, and a chill rushed into their hearts. Gu Mingzhou seemed to have been penetrated by the coolness of this breeze. He unconsciously shrank his body and hid behind Jing Wudao. A total of five figures emerged from the depths of the forest. Gu Mingzhou recognized three of the five people. And not only did they know each other, they could even be said to be irreconcilable existences. The fat man who first landed in front of Jing Wudao, who was also the person whose loud voice resounded in the forest, was the fat man who had intended to use Gu Mingzhou to sow discord between the Seven Demons Hall and the Samsara Underworld Hall in the demonic cultivation world of the freezing cold sea. Wu Ji Palace's sect master, Wu Ji Patriarch. Behind the Wu Ji Patriarch, the former carefree envoy of the Seven Demons Hall, Lu Yucheng, appeared. Wu Ji Palace's spy, Seven Demons Hall's protector He Yuyang. There was also a middle-aged man with a square face and a brocade robe, and a middle-aged man with a sharp mouth and a big waist in a golden robe. Among these five, whether it was the patriarch of Wuji, Lu Yucheng, or He Yuliang, Gu Mingzhou could be said to have an irreconcilable relationship with them. Not only did Gu Mingzhou ruin the patriarch's plan, but he also killed the protector of Wuji Palace. No matter what the reason was, the patriarch of the Wuji would not let Gu Mingzhou off. He Yuliang had initially intended to scheme against Gu Mingzhou, but had not expected to go for wool and come home shorn. Not only did he help Gu Mingzhou kill the fifth hall master of the Seven Demons Hall, but Gu Mingzhou also took the soul concentrating disc. He was even drawn into the chaotic battle between Wu Ji Palace and the Seven Demons Hall at that time. His hatred for Gu Mingzhou was, needless to say. As for Lu Yucheng, although Gu Mingzhou had never fought with him, the deaths of the sixth and seventh hall masters were undoubtedly related to Gu Mingzhou. Even if Gu Mingzhou did not do it on purpose, in Lu Yucheng's eyes, Gu Mingzhou was probably someone he had to kill. He just didn't know why these three people, who were originally like fire and water, had suddenly gathered together. Moreover, from the words of the Wu Ji sex patriarch, it was clear that the enmity between the Wu Ji sex patriarch and Lu Yucheng had been completely resolved. They had even turned from enemies to friends and had become friends who ridiculed each other. This made Gu Mingzhou especially confused. One had to know that Lu Yucheng was the enemy of the Wu Ji sect. 
The Wu Ji Patriarch was also the main leader of the attack on the Seven Demons Hall, causing Lu Yuching to be homeless. Moreover, there was still the traitor He Yuliang between the two of them. From Gu Mingzhou's point of view, these two people must be fighting to the death. However, looking at the situation now, the relationship between the three was the exact opposite. Not only did they not fight, but they even formed a group. This was entirely beyond Gu Mingzhou's expectations. Could it be because of the treasure here, or perhaps there was some great opportunity here? This group of people in front of him would rather let go of their hatred to obtain the treasure. Gu Mingzhou did not even have time to think about the reason, and his expression suddenly changed. The smile on the Wu Ji patriarch's chubby face was gone. In its place, his expression turned cold. Her green eyes scanned Gu Mingzhou, and her entire body exuded a strong killing intent. It's you. Sure enough, even though Gu Mingzhou had intentionally dodged behind Jing Wudao, Jing Wudao's thin body couldn't block Wu Ji Patriarch's line of sight. Wu Ji Patriarch discovered Gu Mingzhou almost instantly. What's more, in Wu Ji Palace, Wu Ji Patriarch had seen Jing Wudao. It's you. Before Wu Ji Patriarch could finish, a cold and harsh voice sounded. He Yu Yang followed behind the Wu Ji Patriarch. He wore a wide, black robe that covered his face. His blue eyes stared at Jing Wudao as he spoke coldly. Compared to Gu Mingzhou, He Yu Yang's hatred for Jing Wudao was even deeper. After all, if it wasn't for Jing Wudao's appearance near the Seven Devil Hall C area, Gu Mingzhou would have already died at He Yu Yang's hands. Furthermore, even though He Yu Yang used his ultimate skill in the end, he had still not been able to make Jing Wudao and Gu Mingzhou stay. On the contrary, he had been lured into the battle between Wu Ji Patriarch and Lu Yuqing by Gu Mingzhou, which exposed his identity. On the contrary, Lu Yuqing was not as excited or angry about Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao's appearance as he was about ancestor Wu Ji and He Yu Yang. However, his eyes narrowed slightly, and he frowned as he looked at Gu Mingzhou. No one knew what he was thinking. Before He Yu Yang could finish his sentence, he had already made his move and disappeared into thin air. In the next moment, he appeared three meters in front of Jing Wudao and threw out his right hand. Whoosh! The thin silver needle shot toward Jing Wudao's chest with a sharp and cold light. Jing Wudao frowned. In fact, he had been on guard ever since he saw the Wu Ji Patriarch. Now that he had seen He Yu Yang's swift attack, he naturally did not panic. He drew his flexible sword. The sword light streaked across the void, and a cold light flashed. It instantly cut the three silver needles. Clang! 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 Sparks flew in all directions, and crisp sounds rang out repeatedly. He Yu Yang's three seemingly ferocious poison needles were actually easily deflected by Jing Wudao. However, it was evident that He Yu Yang would not give up. As soon as he threw out the silver needle, he had already disappeared again. When Jing Wudao swung his sword to shake off the poison needle, he suddenly appeared on Jing Wudao's right and immediately reached out with his hand. He Yu Yang's arm was as skinny as a dead man's, and it was even covered with red spots similar to liver mortis, which was particularly horrifying. This was especially so for his right hand, which had a pair of sharp nails nearly three centimeters long. As he waved his hand, the nails whistled through the air as they went straight for Jing Wudao's neck. Jing Wudao's expression did not change in the face of He Yu Yang's fierce attack. When He Yu Yang's right hand approached him, the flexible sword he swung out stabbed forward like a spirit snake. Swoosh! The sword light flashed, and a dark red color appeared. Ah! He Yu Yang immediately let out a miserable cry. His right hand was cut off at the wrist, and fresh blood spurted out, splattering on Jing Wudao's already scarlet red robe and falling to the ground. Jing Wudao's face was still unruffled, not affected by He Yu Yang's wailing at all. As the blood splattered onto his body, he turned around again and swept out with the soft sword in his hand. He took the opportunity to take He Yu Yang's head. Take his life while he's down. However, even though his right hand had been cut off, he Yu Yang's vigilance was still very high. As soon as Jing Wudao moved, he sensed it and swiftly retreated to avoid the soft sword. 
However, Jing Wudao naturally wouldn't let go of such an excellent opportunity to kill his enemy. He immediately strode forward and gave chase. Just as Jing Wudao caught up to He Yuyang again and was about to kill him, the dazzling jade green light shot toward his head. The green light was extremely swift and violent, like a bolt of lightning. It carried a terrifying power and sneaked an attack while Jing Wudao was attacking He Yuyang. Chapter 270 Jing Wudao had already sensed the green light when it approached him. He immediately gave up on killing He Yuyang and turned around to strike with his sword. Jing Wudao's seemingly casual swing of his sword was just right, and it struck the green light that was fiercely shooting over. His expression changed when the flexible sword collided with the green light. Bang! A muffled sound rang out in the forest. Jing Wudao, who had swung his sword at the green light, was actually sent flying several meters back by the remaining power of the green light, staggering to the ground. The Wu Ji Patriarch's poisonous eye is indeed powerful. Jing Wudao steadied his body and looked at the Wu Ji Patriarch with a frown. The soft sword that Jing Wudao held tightly in front of his chest was still buzzing and shaking. It was enough to show the power of the green light just now. However, as a famous expert, aren't you afraid of losing face by ambushing me like this? Jing Wudao paused for a moment before continuing his questioning. If he hadn't reacted in time, even if he were half a second slower, he would have been either dead or injured. Shameless thief, who do you think you are? Do you think you're worthy of talking about face with me? The Wu Ji patriarch didn't seem to mind Jing Wudao's question at all and responded with a cold smile. I don't know if I'm qualified to talk about it if I kill you. Jing Wudao said indifferently. Wei Jian, it seems that you've not only improved your cultivation but also your arrogance. The Wu Ji patriarch gritted his teeth and said angrily. A vast amount of true essence energy burst out of the Wu Ji patriarch's body, and his chubby body dashed toward Jing Wudao with a mighty aura. The Wu Ji patriarch was short and extremely fat. However, his body was extremely vigorous, and his steps were profound. In the blink of an eye, he was already close to Jing Wudao, and his right palm struck out. It was evident that the Wu Ji patriarch was going to kill him. A casual palm strike carried 90% of his power, shaking the air, and making the trees sway. But Jing Wudao wasn't afraid. Even in the face of Patriarch Infinity's full power attack, he didn't seem to care and continued to wave his sword. Enter Twine. The soft sword, which was as thin as a cicada's wing, suddenly bent like a slithering snake and wrapped itself around the Patriarch's arm, binding it tightly. Then, Jing Wudao didn't hesitate at all. He moved his feet and retreated. As he dodged the attack, he pulled the Wu Ji Patriarch back and kept a two meter distance from the wind. Petty trick. The Wu Ji Patriarch snorted when he realized that his attack was ineffective and that he was being restrained. He exerted force on his feet and pulled back his arm, trying to break free from the soft sword. Just as the Wu Ji Patriarch moved, Jing Wudao changed his move again. Break. The flexible sword that had been tightly bound to the Wu Ji Patriarch's arm suddenly trembled and bounced up. Swung. A cold light flashed and directly tore the right sleeve of the Wu Ji Patriarch, revealing the white arm inside. However, even though the sword art could break a celestial artifact, it only left two white marks when it touched the Wu Ji Patriarch's right arm. It didn't hurt the Wu Ji Patriarch at all. This little trick is just like scratching an itch. If you only have this much strength, then give up, and I'll let you die in one piece. The Wu Ji Patriarch sneered and punched with his right hand. A vast and heavy aura suddenly shot out of the Wu Ji Patriarch's arm, instantly shaking the flexible sword away. Jing Wudao withdrew his flexible sword and quickly retreated. His face was slightly grave and worried. The strength displayed by the Wu Ji Patriarch was clearly beyond Jing Wudao's expectations. Jing Wudao's swordsmanship was so sharp that even a cultivator in the mortal realm would be afraid of it. Now that he couldn't even break through the Wu Ji Patriarch's body fortification, it was apparent who was stronger. Humph, you still want to leave? Seeing Jing Wudao retreat with his sword, the Wu Ji Patriarch's fat jiggled. He formed a sword with his right hand and pointed it at his temple. Break! 
Before he could finish, the bump in the middle of the Wu Ji Patriarch's forehead suddenly split open like a pair of eyes growing horizontally, revealing the round emerald eyes inside. A beam of azure light shot out from the green eyeball, as fast as lightning, and with terrifying power, it spread through the sky. As soon as it flew out, it gathered the heaven and earth origin energy in a ten-mile radius, forming thousands of beams of light that shot toward Jing Wudao. Jing Wudao's expression was grim, and he was extremely cautious. When he saw the green light coming, he immediately dodged to the side. Previously, he had used his flexible sword to block the green light. Although he had blocked most of the attack, the aftermath still had a significant impact on him. The green light this time was obviously more powerful than the previous one. Thus, he chose to dodge this time and no longer face it head on. However, the Wu Ji Patriarch seemed to have expected Jing Wudao to dodge. Almost at the same time as Jing Wudao retreated to the side, the sword fingers on his right hand suddenly pointed at Jing Wudao. Just as the green light was about to brush past Jing Wudao, it suddenly changed direction and shot toward him. The green light that suddenly changed direction seemed to have increased in speed as it changed direction. In the blink of an eye, it reached Jing Wudao's chest, and just as Jing Wudao raised his sword to block it, it suddenly struck Jing Wudao's chest. Thud. The muffled sound was incredibly dull, but it was also unusually heart-wrenching. The quintessential essence gathered within a radius of five kilometers also crashed into Jing Wudao along with the azure light, severely injuring him. At the same time, the green radiance did not dissipate. Instead, it expanded and enveloped Jing Wudao. Fresh blood spurted out of Jing Wudao's mouth. Although the blood turned into red glows and disappeared before it hit the ground, Jing Wudao had clearly suffered a heavy blow. His entire face instantly turned ashen, and like a broken oriole, he was wrapped in green light and flew back. Even the powerful Jing Wudao couldn't withstand the patriarch's venomous eyes. Wu Dao. Gu Mingzhou, who had been paying close attention, suddenly turned pale and shouted. He leaped up and hurriedly reached out to support Jing Wu Dao, trying to catch his body. The moment Gu Mingzhou touched Jing Wu Dao, the green glow that enveloped Jing Wu Dao's body instantly spread to Gu Mingzhou. The weight of a mountain suddenly fell on Gu Mingzhou's body. It was extremely heavy. It caused him to be suppressed within, unable to break free. Gu Mingzhou's face was ferocious as he bared his teeth and roared. He hugged Jing Wudao tightly with both hands and circulated the cultivation technique in his body crazily. It was like a flood that surged out. He frantically tried to resist this huge impact, trying to break free from the suppression and save Jing Wudao. Even if Gu Mingzhou continued to absorb the violent origin energy of heaven and earth to resist, it was to no avail. Chapter 271 the two of them were sent flying backward while enveloped by the green light by this massive force. Bang! A huge force suppressed Jing Wudao and Gu Mingzhou, forcing them to retreat rapidly. Then, they broke the thick roots of the towering trees, shook the earth, and flew out of the forest with the falling leaves. As if it wanted to smash Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao into mincemeat, its power didn't decrease and directly crashed into a small mound. Just as Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao were about to crash into the grayish-white mound, a purple ray suddenly shot from the sky. The purple ray was extremely strange. It was as fast as lightning and struck the green beam. Immediately after, the green light that had suppressed Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao and sent them flying quickly disappeared. The explosion was earth-shattering, the void trembled, and the wind and clouds changed colors. In the air, the purple-green light entangled with each other. It was dazzling. The surrounding vital energy shot out in all directions, flowing between heaven and earth. Deep in the forest, Wu Ji Patriarch, Lu Yuqing, He Yuliang, and the others had followed him. They stopped at the edge of the forest and immediately revealed looks of surprise. The Wu Ji Patriarch was the most surprised. He was very clear about the power of the poison eye. It was very difficult to create such a commotion in the air. At the very least, one needed power on par with his third eye. However, he had fought Jing Wudao before, so he naturally knew how strong Jing Wudao was. Although Jing Wudao was powerful, he was still much weaker than the power of his third eye. In fact, even with Gu Mingzhou, 
the two of them were not as powerful as the third eye of the Wuji Patriarch. Therefore, the Wuji Patriarch was very surprised by the commotion caused by the collision of forces in the air. Wuji Patriarch's eyes flickered, and he spread his spiritual sense to check the orbs. He suspected it was caused by a powerful cultivator. The Wuji Patriarch checked again and again but didn't find any cultivators around. However, while the Wuji Patriarch was investigating, the power of the collision in the air had been exhausted and was beginning to dissipate. The wind howled, and the trees swayed. The dazzling entangled green and purple light in the air finally came to an end and gradually dimmed in an instant of brilliance. Under the dim light, two figures were suspended in the air as if they were intact. Jing Wudao looked at the edge of the forest and the five great cultivators who were shocked. How is that possible? Wu Ji Patriarch looked at Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao, who were in perfect condition, and said in disbelief. Just now, he had personally seen Jing Wudao being suppressed by the green light. He spat out blood, and his expression was dark. Even if he didn't die, he would definitely be heavily injured. However, Jing Wudao didn't seem to be injured at all. How could he not be surprised when he appeared in front of him? You three-eyed old thing. You used quite a bit of strength just now. In the air, Jing Wudao's flexible sword had turned into a long spear, and he pointed it at the Wu Ji Patriarch. If it weren't for my tough life, I would have fallen for your trick. Now, it's your turn to test my spearmanship. Without waiting for the Wu Ji Patriarch's reply, he stepped out of the void and stabbed with his spear. The clouds dispersed, and the wind suddenly rose. The originally dark and gloomy world immediately turned dark. Countless spear shadows suddenly appeared in the sky, covering the sun. Before Jing Wudao's voice died away, spear shadows filled the sky and shot out. The spearhead turned around and shot toward the Wu Ji Patriarch below. The Wu Ji Patriarch's chubby face couldn't help but sneer with disdain. Although the spear shadows were powerful, they were not enough to threaten the Wu Ji Patriarch. Even Wu Ji Patriarch's protective vital essence energy couldn't be broken. Before the spear shadow could reach the Wu Ji Patriarch, Jing Wudao had already brandished his spear again. The void trembled, and the thousands of spear shadows that shot down instantly merged into a vast spear shadow. In the blink of an eye, it turned from the original arm thick to the waist thick, and its power soared. Cold light flickered around him as the spear shadow shot toward Patriarch Limitless with greater speed. What? The Wu Ji Patriarch muttered to himself in disbelief. If the spear shadows that filled the sky at the beginning couldn't break through the Wu Ji Patriarch's protective energy, the spear shadows now could threaten him. He might not be able to kill Wu Ji Patriarch, but he could still injure him. It's just a small trick. Although the Wu Ji Patriarch was wary, he was not afraid. On the contrary, he felt that he was getting stronger and stronger. He immediately waved his arms and crossed them in front of his chest, instantly condensing dense and pure elemental energy. Poison Barrier Before the Wu Ji Patriarch could finish his sentence, he suddenly opened his arms and raised his palms. The wind in the void howled continuously. The pure energy that had gathered in front of the Wu Ji Patriarch's chest spread out with his palms and turned into a green light shield, completely covering the Wu Ji Patriarch. The sky was filled with thick spear shadows that suddenly arrived. The enlarged pitch black spear shadow seemed to be the fusion of only three to five slender spear shadows. However, after the spear was enlarged, its power increased by dozens of times. It was even faster and shot directly at the green light shield that enveloped the Wu Ji Patriarch. The power of the black spear shadow, which had increased greatly, could not break the green light shield. After the thousands of spear shadows collided with the green light shield, they stopped and exploded. On the green light shield, there was only green light flowing and crystal waves constantly shaking, but it did not break. Ha! <laughs> good momentum. It's just that the strength is too small. Wu Ji Patriarch was completely protected by the green light shield. He was not hurt at all. Looking at the black spear shadows that were blocked by the green light shield, he laughed. Jing Wudao had mocked the Wu Ji Patriarch for his weak third eye. Now, Wu Ji Patriarch was mocking Jing Wudao for the same reason. Old dog, it's too early for you to be happy. 
Jing Wudao wasn't disappointed that he couldn't break the green light shield. Instead, he sneered. As he spoke, he took three steps in the air and stood behind the thousands of spear shadows. He brandished his spear and stabbed out. The void trembled once again, and the thousands of spear shadows shooting down also shook. After a moment of stagnation, they accelerated again and shot toward the green light shield with even more madness. However, the spear shadow that shot down this time did not crash into the green light shield and explode like before. Instead, it exploded the moment it touched the green light shield. A series of explosions reverberated in the grey world and did not dissipate for a long time. Although it was still unable to break the green light shield, the continuous self-destruction of the spear shadows had already caused the light waves on the surface of the green light shield, which were originally indestructible, to flash even more violently. Even the entire green light shield began to shake slightly, like a candle in the wind, on the verge of collapse. The self-destruction of the spear shadows continued. Every explosion would cause the green light shield to shake violently. Chapter 272 When the green light shield was about to be broken, the bump on Wuji Patriarch's forehead would shoot out a tiny green light to stabilize the green light shield. One after another, the green light barrier stabilized and blocked the spear shadow's self-destruction each time it was about to collapse. Soon, the power of the spear shadows that filled the sky had been completely exhausted. In the blink of an eye, only a dozen or so black spear shadows were left. They descended in unison and shot directly toward the azure light shield. Your attack is nothing more than this. Seeing that the spear shadows covering the sky were about to be used up, Wu Ji Patriarch's smile grew wider. His fat was stacked on top of each other, making him look fierce and funny. I've said it before. It's too early for you to be happy. Jing Wudao didn't seem to care about Wu Ji Patriarch's mockery. Before he could finish, Jing Wudao appeared above Wu Ji Patriarch's head. Dozens of black spear shadows shot out from his spear and stabbed at the green light shield. Take my spear. Jing Wudao shouted as he thrust his spear forward. The blood red light suddenly brightened, revealing its sharp edge and soaring killing intent. Dozens of pitch black spear shadows instantly pierced the green light shield. Boom! The explosion was even more deafening than before. The indestructible green light was finally unable to resist the powerful spear and exploded. A green light shot out, and the vital essence energy flowed. Wu Ji Patriarch was hit hard. He spat out blood and staggered back. Old dog, you're still not going to die. Jing Wudao immediately brandished his spear, ready to pursue an attack. The spear radiance pierced through the air and arrived in front of Wu Ji Patriarch's chest. At this moment, the purple shadow suddenly appeared in front of Wu Ji Patriarch's sex patriarch. Lu Yucheng, who had been watching the battle, finally couldn't help but make a move. He saved Wu Ji Patriarch in time and wrapped his long sleeve around the sharp tip of the spear. The long spear that was fiercely stabbing down was instantly deflected to the side by the purple sleeve and pierced into the void. Jing Wudao immediately retracted his spear and placed it behind his back, hovering in the air. What's wrong? Are you guys planning to take turns? If you really have such a plan, why don't you come together and save time? He held the spear in his hand and spoke arrogantly. Gu Mingzhou, who was in the distance, did not think that Jing Wudao's words were arrogant. Both He Yuliang and Wu Ji Patriarch were top existences in this world, but Jing Wudao had defeated them, so they had the power to say such words. However, that didn't mean that the others present thought the same. The brawny man with a sharp mouth stood side by side with Wu Ji Patriarch and looked up at Jing Wudao. Arrogant brat, let me teach you a lesson. A terrifying pressure burst forth from the sharp-mouthed man's body, instantly filling the entire world. Lu Yuching suddenly stretched out his hand and stopped the sharp-mouthed man. Don't be in a hurry. How about you let this little brother speak first? Lu Yuching saved Wu Ji Patriarch, but he didn't pay any attention to him. Instead, he turned to Jing Wudao and cupped his hands at the sharp-mouthed man. This Pei Guang, the man with the pointed mouth, subconsciously turned around and looked at the man holding the white fan in the back. Seeing him nod, he then nodded slightly at Lu Yuching. 
Better make friends than make enemies. Why don't we make peace? Make peace. Jing Wudao couldn't help but feel puzzled. He was indeed very powerful, but his mission was to protect Gu Mingzhou. He didn't care about anything else. Therefore, when Liu Yucheng proposed a peace treaty, he subconsciously looked at Gu Mingzhou for his opinion. In your opinion, how do you want to negotiate? Gu Mingzhou was also confused, but Jing Wudao naturally knew what he meant when he looked over. It would be fine if he spoke when the two sides met. But now, they were suddenly negotiating for peace. Naturally, it was hard to believe. Moreover, it was clear that Jing Wudao had the upper hand in the current situation. If Liu Yuching were to ask for peace at this time, it was inevitable people would think that he was being forced into a disadvantageous position. Therefore, Gu Mingzhou had some doubts about Liu Yuching's words. The source of all the changes was ultimately still the purple energy that had suddenly shot out at the critical moment. The most important thing was to deal with Liu Yuching and the others. As expected, heroes come from youngsters. Liu Yuching seemed to have expected this. A smile appeared on his face, and he rose directly into the air. He stopped three meters in front of Jing Wudao and Gu Mingzhou, then cupped his hands and said. His words were full of flattery, but they made Gu Mingzhou frown. As the saying goes, when enemies meet, their gaze red with hate. However, Liu Yuching did not reveal any malicious intent, so he naturally had to be cautious. Sometimes, people like this were even more terrifying. No matter what grudge we have between us, it's all mortal grudges. Now that we've all come here, we're all here for the opportunity. Liu Yuching went straight to the point and explained. The ancient remnant space was full of danger. Since everyone had the same goal, why not turn enemies into friends and form an alliance? As for grudges, how could they be more important than benefits? No wonder I didn't see Liu Yuching and the others when I was hiding from Su Funyu. They've been here for a long time. Gu Mingzhou thought to himself. Liu Yuching's words just now directly state the pros and cons. It was undoubtedly a win-win method if both sides came for opportunities and turned enemies into friends. However, Liu Yuching did not expect that Gu Mingzhou was simply avoiding Su Fengyu and had no other intentions. However, since he had already come to this ancient space, he would really be letting down this opportunity if he didn't enter. Naturally, he would not be so foolish as to tell Liu Yuching that he had appeared here to avoid Su Fengyu's pursuit. To Gu Mingzhou, it was naturally best if he could avoid fighting. After all, Jing Wudao's powers were largely thanks to the sudden purple light just now, and Gu Mingzhou wasn't sure if the purple light would come again. If Liu Yuching gave up on the peace negotiations and chose to fight to the death with Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao. Jing Wudao wasn't afraid, but fighting one against five was still a huge risk. Moreover, someone among the other party had come out to deal with Gu Mingzhou. If the other four were to hold Jing Wudao back, it would probably be difficult for Jing Wudao to protect Gu Mingzhou. Turning enemies into friends and temporarily cooperating was the best solution. The reason why the two old enemies, Wu Ji Patriarch Sex Ancestor and Liu Yuching, could become friends and appear here, was probably because of luck. Coupled with the great opportunity that Jing Wudao mentioned earlier, Gu Mingzhou was now filled with curiosity and couldn't wait to go take a look. Since Hall Master Liu is so generous, I naturally can't refuse you. However, the two of you might not be willing to do so. If you launch a sneak attack on me, I'm afraid I'll lose my life here. Gu Mingzhou knew that Liu Yuching's proposal for cooperation was largely due to the strength Jing Wudao had displayed. Otherwise, the other party would not have given such a benefit to Gu Mingzhou directly. Chapter 273 Master, are you really leaving? Liya hugged Hichuan's arm and said unwillingly. She had been with Hichuan for so many years. It would be a lie to say that she didn't have feelings for him. She definitely couldn't bear to see Hichuan leave. There's no banquet in the that doesn't end. I will come and see you when I have time. Hichuan rubbed Leah's head. This female king of the plains had followed him for many years, so he naturally had some feelings for her. However, it was just the relationship between master and disciple, and there was not much else mixed in. 
he helped Liya to ascend the throne because he wanted to crush the god conspiracy. Otherwise, he would not be interested in such a palace drama. Serve the wine and dishes. Liya knew He Chuan's temper. No one would persuade him once he decided on something. She had specially arranged a banquet to send her master and Kai Lian off. He Chuan didn't reject this. After all, they didn't know when they would meet again. During the banquet, Liya kept raising her wine cup. He Chuan and Kai Lian were both highly skilled martial artists and would not get drunk. What did you put in the wine? When he was about to finish drinking, He Chuan felt something was wrong. Why did his body start to heat up? His blood seemed to be boiling. He quickly circulated his true energy and prepared to suppress the heat in his body. If I can get pregnant, then in a hundred years, the peace between the grasslands and the great Zhou will continue. I have added dozens of drugs to it. Master, please don't blame me. Liya took off her clothes as she spoke, revealing her perfect figure in front of He Chuan. She had a classical oval-shaped face, curved eyebrows, a straight nose, a red mouth, a perky, round bottom, and long, round legs. His extremely seductive expression made He Chuan's blood flow rapidly. You're really silly. He still wanted to persuade Liya to change her mind. Sister Liener, what are you waiting for? This is a rare opportunity. Otherwise, you won't have a chance in this lifetime. Liya immediately pulled in an alliance. How could she not see through Kai Lien's thoughts? I'm sorry, young master. Kai Lien gritted her teeth and hugged He Chuan from behind. It was like a dumpling being thrown into boiling water, and there was no turning back. He Chuan panted heavily. He waved his hand and set up a barrier, pressing down on the two girls who had been by his side for many years. The sound of the phoenix flute moved, the jade pot glowed, and the fish and dragons danced all night. The moth, snow willow, and gold wisps passed away with a smile. In the end, He Chuan stayed in the grassland for a while longer and worked hard every night to ensure that Liya could get pregnant successfully. What had happened had already happened, and there was no chance to change it. He naturally wanted the peace between the Zhou dynasty and the Xiongnu people to continue. If the children in the future were He Chuan's descendants, they would be true brothers. You're really full of tricks. Liener and I will go back tomorrow. I will come back when you give birth. He Chuan, who was an expert in this realm, was much more powerful than a doctor. He could feel there was already a continuation of life in Leah's lower abdomen. He he, I swore in my heart before that I would not marry anyone else but Master. And Sister Changning has already agreed to this. Lia gently caressed her smooth lower abdomen, her beautiful legs resting on He Chuan. Kai Lien will return to the capital this time and stay in the library pavilion for a while. He Chuan held the two beauties tightly in his arms he did not have many feelings for love, but he already had three close female friends by his side. It was really a joke. Young master is angry with me? Kai Lien put her arms around He Chuan's neck and said pitifully. I'm not angry with you, but you're pregnant now, so it's not appropriate for you to travel back and forth. Whether it's the world god or those hidden sects, they're all very dangerous. I don't want anything to happen to you. He Chuan said as he pinched Kai Lien's cheeks. Even if Kai Lien weren't pregnant, he wouldn't take her out this time because the person he was going to face was really too powerful. He wasn't completely confident. When Kai Lien heard that she was also pregnant, she immediately smiled and agreed to stay in the capital. People had their own joys and sorrows, and the moon had its ups and downs. He Chuan once again promised Liya that he would return to the Xiongnu tribe before Liya gave birth. Then leave with Kai Lien. Liya stood on the hill and looked in the direction of the Zhou dynasty, not moving for a long time. After half an hour, Liya gently stroked her abdomen and turned to return to her bedroom. Young master, when did you learn how to ride a flying sword? Kai Lien asked enviously as she looked down at the beautiful scenery. When you reach the earth realm, you will naturally be able to do the same. So, don't fall behind in your cultivation. He Chuan hugged Kai Lien's waist. This was also his first time using the sword control technique. He was also a little excited. 
In the novels he used to read, he envied cultivators who could ride flying swords and travel freely between heaven and earth. Now, he could finally do it. Not even half a day had passed. He Chuan took Kai Lian back to the imperial palace of the Zhou dynasty. Kai Lian left the space for Empress Changning and He Chuan and returned to the library pavilion. He Chuan naturally had a tiring day. Empress Changning lazily lay in He Chuan's arms, her jade like body trembled slightly, and her charming eyes shot out an alluring gaze that was alluring and charming. Husband, do you like being the prince consort of the grassland? Empress Changning asked mischievously. What like or dislike? Why didn't you guys discuss this with me in advance? He Chuan said helplessly. If I had told husband in advance, you would definitely not have agreed. Empress Changning didn't want to read the memorials today. She just wanted to have a good night's rest in her lover's arms. She knew He Chuan's character too well. If she had said it in advance, this would definitely not have happened. It was better to act first and report later. In fact, He Chuan was helpless about this. In a few days, I'll go to the ocean to take a look. According to the movements of the world god, they're probably in the deep ocean. I just don't know what kind of treasure they have He Chuan felt the current situation was a little complicated because it seemed the biggest enemy was not the so-called gods and demons at all but the hall masters and various hidden sects. If they knew that the cauldrons of the nine prefectures were in He Chuan's hands, they would probably make a comeback and come to the central plains to fight for them. A bloody storm was definitely unavoidable. Will there be any danger? Empress Changning asked, a little worried. The commotion the world god caused before was huge. Earthquakes and tsunamis weren't things normal people could do. No matter how powerful He Chuan was. He probably wouldn't be able to fight with such a person. Don't worry. I've reached the earth realm, which is also the realm of self-cultivation. Even if I can't defeat him, I can still retreat safely. Besides, I'm mainly looking for a hidden space this time to see if I can find an opportunity to break through to a higher level in the urban area. The main thing was that check-in at this kind of place would give him good things. The system was He Chuan's biggest trump card. It didn't matter if there were any opportunities or not. If he found some special places to check in, he would have everything. No matter what, you still have to be careful. The children and I are all worried about you. Now that Lia and Kai Lian are here, you're not alone. Empress Changning was still a little worried. She wanted He Chuan to think more before doing anything. Chapter 274 the sky was clear for thousands of miles, and the breeze brushed past one's cheeks, making one feel a little tipsy. Daddy, hug. Zhou Shui, who was sitting in the stroller, stretched out her little hand and called out in her childish voice. Empress Changning was very serious about handling government affairs and had no time to play with Zhou Shui. Therefore, the first thing Zhou Shui did when she saw He Chuan was to ask for a hug to comfort her young heart. He Chuan stepped forward and picked up the little girl. As for Zhou Ming, he seemed to be a little afraid of He Chuan and did not dare to ask his father to carry him. This might be because father and son were not as close as father and daughter. He carried Zhou Shui to the man-made lake and grabbed a handful of fish food. He stood at the edge with Zhou Shui in his arms and threw the food in his hands into the paste. Soon, a group of colorful koi fish swam over and fought for the delicious food on the lake. Gugu Zhou Shui clapped her tiny hands and her two short legs happily kicked around, expressing the joy in her heart. He picked up the remaining food and placed it in the little girl's hand, wanting her to experience what it was like to feed fish. Who knew that Zhou Shui would open her small mouth and stuff the fish food into it? This gave He Chuan a fright. He quickly snatched them all and threw them into the river. Zhou Shui looked at her empty chubby hand and pouted her lips, about to burst into tears. He Chuan's head throbbed with headache. His obedient daughter had the tendency to become a naughty child. What should he do? My good daughter, I'll take you for a walk. He did not have any experience taking care of children, but he felt that going out to play would make Zhou Shui happier. He was just about to check on the progress of the steelmaking. The current Zhou dynasty's technology was relatively backward, so He Chuan helped them forge steel. Only in this way could they resist the countries far away on the other side of the ocean. 
He wrapped Zhou Shui in his arms and went to the newly opened steel factory to check. The blacksmiths and enslaved people kept putting molten iron and waste materials into the vast kiln. The current technology were far behind, and they couldn't compare with the ones in his previous life. However, the armors and weapons that could be made using such a forging method were already much more advanced in this era. When the two armies faced each other, the elite troops with superior, tempered weapons and armor would deal a fatal blow to the enemy. Although the process was much worse, the weapons equipped by other countries' soldiers were definitely not comparable. Not long after, clanking sounds could be heard as the blacksmiths began to forge armor and weapons according to the drawings. Everything was going according to plan. Now, they just had to wait for the wind and clouds to change. The carpenters were led by the Minister of Works and began to divide their work. Each made some parts, and when they were done, they mass-produced various required machine parts. Quickly add more slaves as soon as possible. Both blacksmiths and carpenters are obviously short of manpower. We don't lack money now, but we're short of manpower. He Chuan felt that the Zhou dynasty had to speed up its development. Otherwise, it would only be beaten up. He Chuan walked around twice and left with Zhou Shui after seeing that there were no problems with the blacksmith for the time being. The little guy was wrapped in a quilt, only showing her little face, curiously looking at the roadside stall. At his daughter's request, He Chuan bought a bunch of things. He also didn't forget to buy toys for his son in the palace. After all, they were both his children, and he couldn't favor one over the other. After staying in the capital for a few days, He Chuan also set out on the road to the sea. He could feel a very terrifying aura there. In ancient space, Gu Mingzhou and the others had reached temporary cooperation and were prepared to look for opportunities together. This silver white forest was not very big. Compared to the other forests around it, it could only be considered average, neither big nor small. However, the silvery white trees were too big. They reached into the clouds, making it hard to see through the forest. Especially in this grey world where there was no sunlight to begin with, it made the depths of the forest very dark. Fortunately, this kind of darkness did not hinder Gu Mingzhou, who had adapted to the freezing cold sea. The group of people did not walk slowly. In just a few breaths, they had already arrived at the forest's depths. At the place where everyone had stopped, surrounded by towering trees, there was a giant statue that was dozens of meters tall. A statue of a fat Taoist priest. He had a big head and ears, and his face was oily. With a horsetail whisk in his hand, a sword on his back, and his right hand behind his back, he looked out valiantly. The entire statue was dozens of meters tall and nearly ten meters wide. It stood in the middle of the forest like a giant but didn't lose its spirituality. It was so lifelike that it looked like a genuine spirit. This Gu Mingzhou was so surprised he couldn't close his mouth. He reached out and pointed at the tall statue of the Taoist priest. This stone statue is the entrance to the immortal's cave, Lu Yuqing saw that Gu Mingzhou was surprised, so he smiled and explained. The entrance is this stone statue. Gu Mingzhou asked again in disbelief. The stone statue is both the entrance and the location of the opportunity. In other words, the opportunity we are looking for is inside this stone statue. Lu Yuqing explained, waving his hand. A small space. Gu Mingzhou blurted out. According to what Lu Yuqing said, if the opportunity left behind was really in this stone statue, then the inside of the stone statue must have its own space. The stone statue was similar to a chinkun bag, a magic tool with a space inside. If this stone statue were really a magic tool, then whether it was compared to the chinkun bag, it would be a high-grade magic tool. After all, even though the chinkun bag also had space, it could not allow living beings to survive. However, this stone statue was clearly different. The space inside could allow living beings to survive. Or rather, it could accommodate the existence of living beings. Just this point alone made it much more valuable than many mustard-type magic tools. This isn't a magic tool with space. Any magic item with space would have a space created inside, with some hollow space. However, this stone statue is solid. Jing Wudao didn't wait for Lu Yuqing to speak and directly rejected Gu Mingzhou's idea. Oh. 
It seems like Brother Wudao is quite familiar with the methods of the small space. Lu Yucheng, who was just about to speak, heard Jing Wudao's explanation, and a bright light flashed through his eyes. He revealed some surprise. This stone statue is indeed solid. There's no space inside. It's also very different from the methods of the small space that we know of. It doesn't seem like a magic tool with a space. Lu Yucheng explained. Then I wonder why the opportunity is in this stone statue. Could it be that even if this stone statue is solid, but also has its own space? Gu Mingzhou was even more confused. To tell you the truth, although we have studied it, we still haven't found anything. Does Brother Wu Dao know the secret of the stone statue? Lu Yucheng helplessly replied. Jing Wu Dao didn't expect Lu Yucheng to shift the question to him suddenly, and he immediately looked at Gu Mingzhou. He seemed to be asking Gu Mingzhou if he wanted him to answer. Gu Mingzhou was also very curious about the stone statue. When he saw Jing Wudao looking at him with a questioning gaze, he immediately agreed. If I'm not wrong, this should be an alternate dimension. Jing Wudao retracted his gaze and looked up at the huge stone statue. Chapter 275 Alternate Dimension Gu Mingzhou and Lu Yucheng asked in unison. Even the other four people standing under the stone statue looked at Jing Wudao in confusion. The world is so vast that it encompasses the entire universe and coexists with space. There are also 3,000 worlds in various places, and beyond these 3,000 worlds, the vastness of space is simply indescribable. Sometimes, there might be two spaces coexisting in the same world, or even more. Jing Wudao didn't mind the gazes of the crowd. He continued to stare at the huge statue and explained. Space was hard to distinguish. Even in ancient times, it had a title, but no one had ever seen it. That was why not many people knew about it. It was not until ancient times, when the world was on the verge of destruction, that an expert broke through the shackles, saw through the heavenly Tao, controlled reincarnation, and glimpsed the secrets. That's right. There was indeed such a senior at the end of ancient times. As far as I know, this senior was once called Heaven and called himself the Heavenly Emperor. He controlled the heavenly Tao and looked down on the world. As soon as Jing Wudao finished speaking, Shang Wan Fei, who had surrounded him, gently waved his paper fan and looked at Jing Wudao with a smile. The spell technique that the heavenly emperor named after the heavenly Tao he had glimpsed was an alternate space. The so-called alternate dimension was the use of heaven-defying means to preserve two or more dimensions in a world. With the Heavenly Emperor's disappearance, the wondrous method of alternate dimensions was also lost in the end. What Island Master Shengwan said is almost exactly the same as what I know. I've also heard some things from hearsay and can't be sure. Today, I've learned a lot from Island Master Shengwan's words. Jing Wudao raised his hand in a rare gesture and slightly cupped his hands at Shengwan Fei as he spoke loudly. This was the first time Gu Mingzhou had seen Jing Wudao cup his hands to express his admiration since he had known him. It was obvious that this famous Sheng Wan Fei's profound knowledge had completely conquered the proud Jing Wudao. You're too kind. Although I've heard a lot of ancient anecdotes, I've only had a shallow understanding of them. I can't recognize them at a glance like fellow Taoists. Sheng Wan Fei said humbly as he waved his folding fan in the face of Jing Wudao's admiration. Since the two of you know about the alternate dimension, I wonder if you can break this stone statue. Seeing Jing Wudao and Shang Wan Fei flattering him back and forth, Lu Yucheng immediately asked the most crucial question. The alternate dimension can be said to be similar to a small world created by cultivators. Is there any way to break it? In such a space, other than the person who created it, no one else would be able to find it. Shang Wan Fei turned his head and looked at the stone statue. There's no time to lose. We'll know what's inside once we enter. Sheng Wan Fei turned around and walked back to the stone statue. Five jade keys appeared around him. The opening of this opportunity is within the horsetail whisk of this stone statue. Please take out your jade keys and activate them with your spiritual sense. Follow me to open the immortal abode. With that, Sheng Wan Fei turned around to look at Gu Mingzhou and Lu Yucheng. Gu Mingzhou immediately took out a jade key. 
Lu Yucheng took out three jade keys. Adding them up, it was a total of nine. The two of you, please follow me and open the immortal abode. Shang Wan Fei opened his mouth again. As he spoke, he activated a spell, and his spiritual sense burst out. He directly urged the five jade keys in his palm and suddenly flew them to the huge horsetail whisk in the left hand of the stone statue. Gu Mingzhou's expression was grim. He and Lu Yucheng made their moves almost at the same time. They each threw a jade key toward the horsetail whisk after Shang Wan Fei. When the nine jade keys approached, the seemingly inanimate stone horsetail whisk suddenly emitted a brilliant light, and nine holes appeared in front of the stone statue. The nine jade keys followed and entered the holes respectively. They were neither too big nor too small, matching perfectly. The jade key pierced into it, and the entire void trembled. The huge statue of the Taoist priest started to rotate slightly. The statue had just moved half a circle when a loud sound suddenly rang out. I, Master Qin, have already helped you so obviously. You actually only came to save me now. His voice was filled with dissatisfaction, a little complaint, and a little excitement. Gu Mingzhou had a strange expression on his face. Master Qin. Gu Mingzhou blurted out the name that he had almost forgotten. Master Qin. The owner of the voice that suddenly came from the stone statue was the person Gu Mingzhou had accidentally released from the netherworld peak in the sea area of the Seven Demons Hall. He was a mysterious expert with extremely powerful means. Gu Mingzhou had thought that he would never meet Master Qin again. After all, Master Qin's inexplicable entanglement had made him very uneasy. He didn't expect to meet him here again. While he was still in shock, a purple light shot out from the stone statue. The purple light was extremely bright and shot out for a thousand miles, instantly disappearing into the horizon. After three breaths, the purple ray flew back from the sky and quickly flew towards Gu Mingzhou, stopping in front of him. The purple light swirled and gradually dimmed. The palm-sized purple figure, with a faint purple glow in front of it, quietly floated in front of Gu Mingzhou. You little brat! Why did you only come to save Master Qin now? It was still a wild and unruly voice that came from the small person's mouth, full of complaints. Um Gu Mingzhou was speechless. He really didn't know that Master Qin was here. Jing Wudao and Gu Mingzhou were able to block the ferocious green light from Patriarch Wu Ji's third eye. A large part of the reason was the sudden appearance of the purple light, which instantly restored Jing Wudao to his peak state. Only then could he break through Wu Ji's green light and turn the tide. However, Gu Mingzhou had only felt that the purple glow was familiar and had not thought of Master Qin. Gu Mingzhou didn't have much memory of Master Qin. Now that he heard Master Qin's complaint, Gu Mingzhou suddenly recalled that the purple glow from before had come from Master Qin. This was naturally a little awkward, and he was even speechless. After all, he had just helped you, and it was hard to say he didn't remember him at all. What are you doing here? Gu Mingzhou immediately changed the topic and asked. It's all your fault for coming up with such a bad idea, causing me to run for my life. I didn't think I would be so fast that I would end up in this damn place. Master Qin floated to Gu Mingzhou's right shoulder. Oh. This expert fellow Daoist entered the stone statue. Before Master Qin finished his words, Shang Wan Fei continued the topic with great interest. Not only Shang Wan Fei but Lu Yucheng, Wei Lin, He Yuliang, Wu Ji Patriarch, and even Jing Wudao were also present. At that moment, they couldn't help but look at Master Qin. Jing Wudao looked at Master Qin with curiosity, while the others looked at him with doubt and hostility. This guy is really a troublemaker. Gu Mingzhou could not help but sigh in his heart. After all, the mysterious purple dwarf had just come out of the opportunity they wanted to enter. Who knew if the treasure they were looking for had already been taken away by this expert? If everyone went in to search for opportunities and found nothing, or if their gains were minimal, they would probably blame it on Master Qin. Chapter 276. At that time, even if Master Qin denied it, no one would believe him. And Gu Mingzhou, who was related to Master Qin, was probably also the target of public criticism. The stone statue is so weird. 
I was just passing by and was sucked in for no reason. Then, I was trapped in the formation. Fortunately, although Master Qin didn't seem to understand what Shang Wan Fei meant, his answer just so happened to avoid the crisis. The place that trapped you should be the primordial array of this stone statue. Shang Wan Fei didn't know whether to believe Master Qin's question or doubt it. In any case, Master Qin's answer only gave him a slight nod. But whether Shang Wan Fei believed Master Qin's words or not, his words had completely dispelled the crowd's hostility. After hearing Shang Wan Fei's confirmation, Lu Yucheng, Wu Ji Sex Patriarch, and the other two old men all involuntarily withdrew their hostile gazes. Gu Mingzhou heaved a sigh of relief. Fortunately, Shang Wan Fei had spoken up. Otherwise, if the crowd really wanted to attack Master Qin, he would be in a dilemma. Gu Mingzhou didn't want to make enemies with everyone. Although he had a private agreement with Lu Yucheng, once they started fighting, Lu Yucheng would not intervene. Wu Ji Patriarch and He Yu Yang alone would be enough to keep Jing Wudao busy. In addition, there was Wei Lin and the thunderous Shang Wan Fei. To Gu Mingzhou, it was probably a disaster. To Gu Mingzhou, Master Qin wasn't really his friend. But Master Qin had helped Gu Mingzhou before. If he hadn't suddenly shot out a purple light that broke through Wu Ji Patriarch's restraint and instantly healed Jing Wudao, he would have died. The situation might not be like this. Therefore, Gu Mingzhou would not ignore Master Qin no matter what. Thanks to Shang Wan Fei's explanation, the situation did not devebedly weigh. However, even so, Gu Mingzhou also realized that when everyone looked at Master Qin and himself, although there was no hostility in their eyes, there was still doubt. This couldn't be helped. The place where Master Qin appeared was suspicious. He could only pray to the heavens that there were too few treasures and opportunities here. Island Master Shangwan, now that the stone statue has been opened, can we go in and look for opportunities? Lu Yuching timely interrupted the slightly awkward situation. It's still a little short. Although the statue has been opened, the primordial array hasn't disappeared. My ancestor once came here alone with only three jade keys. He was able to open the statue but couldn't open the primordial array. Shang Wan Fei explained. What exactly is the primordial array? It's actually this powerful. Wei Lin asked in a clear voice. Everyone, follow me in, and you'll know how good the primordial array is. Shang Wan Fei waved the nine jade keys in his right hand, and his internal force vibrated before he finished his words. The jade keys immediately flew out of the radiant stone statue, divided into three balls, and five returned to his hand. One of them flew towards Gu Mingzhou, while the other three went to Lu Yucheng. Shang Wan Fei was the first to enter the light disappear. Let's go too. Seeing that Shang Wan Fei had taken the lead, the Wu Ji patriarch glared at Gu Mingzhou and said to He Yuliang and Wei Lin, who were beside him. He also quickly stepped into the stone statue. He didn't have the time to settle scores with the other party. Since Jing Wudao had cut off He Yuliang's right hand, he had become silent. He followed behind Wu Ji patriarch without a word and entered the statue. Then, Wei Lin followed and stepped into the stone statue. Little friend, be careful. Lu Yucheng reminded Gu Mingzhou. Before he finished speaking, his figure also disappeared into the stone statue. Gu Mingzhou understood what Lu Yucheng meant. Everyone was full of hostility towards him, and now, with the addition of Master Qin, the enmity was probably going to grow even bigger. However, Gu Mingzhou did not mind. Anyway, he would have to fight with the Wu Ji Patriarch and the others sooner or later. On the contrary, the appearance of Master Qin was simply a timely help for him to enter the opportunity. Master Qin's almost perverted means meant Gu Mingzhou had an endless supply of elemental energy. Master Qin. You talk less and do more, okay? After everyone else had entered the stone statue, Gu Mingzhou turned to look at Master Qin on his shoulder. Why? Master Qin asked, still unaware. No reason. If you disagree, then don't follow me. Gu Mingzhou knocked Master Qin off his shoulder and strode toward the stone statue. Don't. I'll listen to you. Master Qin quickly agreed and instantly returned to Gu Mingzhou's shoulder, following him into the stone statue. 
On the other hand, Jing Wudao, who was left behind, had his eyes flickering ever since Master Qin appeared. He seemed to be thinking about something. It was only after everyone had entered the stone statue that he suddenly thought of something. Impossible. There shouldn't be such a coincidence. Jing Wudao muttered to himself. Brother Wudao, quickly follow. Gu Mingzhou's voice came from the stone statue and interrupted Jing Wudao's thoughts. I'm coming. Jing Wudao responded. Without thinking any further, he moved his feet and instantly entered the stone statue. Following Jing Wudao's entrance, the stone statue emitting a boundless radiance began to spin in the opposite direction, returning to its original position. The light receded, and the entire statue returned to normal. Although the stone statue of the fat Taoist was real, when Gu Mingzhou stepped towards it, it was as if he had stepped into a barrier. It was as if the stone statue didn't exist at all. When he stepped forward, it didn't block him at all. The entire world had undergone an earth-shaking change. There was no grey sky, nor was there any grey-white land. It gave people the feeling of a fairyland, surrounded by white mist, the air was fresh, and the heart was relaxed and happy. This is an opportunity. Gu Mingzhou looked around curiously. The fog here was very thick, so even Gu Mingzhou, who had become a saint cultivator, could only see three meters. He was almost like a blind man. Fortunately, he could still see colors and light. What a familiar smell. Master Qin's voice was like a stone that broke the calm surface of a lake, creating layers of ripples as it rang in Gu Mingzhou's ears. You've been here before. Gu Mingzhou asked, a little confused. I can't quite remember. Anyway, it feels familiar. There's a very familiar smell. Master Qin's silly look from before disappeared. His tiny body flew out of Gu Mingzhou's shoulder, circled around, and then returned to his shoulder. You sound like you're telling the truth. I'm afraid you were just born not long ago, right? Gu Mingzhou joked. At my age, I'm probably your ancestor. Maybe you have the same blood as me in your body. Master Qin was still the same funny guy. As he spoke, he deliberately arched his back towards Gu Mingzhou. Go to hell with your bullshit ancestors. Gu Mingzhou said in disdain. He didn't know if Master Qin was telling the truth, but he knew Master Qin wasn't reliable. He squinted his eyes and looked around. He realized the people who had entered before him had all disappeared. Jing Wudao didn't even appear behind him. Chapter 277 Gu Mingzhou had an ominous premonition. He hurriedly turned around to look and even called out Jing Wudao's name. However, all he got in response was silence. There was not even a single echo. Stop looking. We are in the middle of the primordial array. Master Qin finally said. The so-called primordial array referred to the use of formation techniques to imprison heaven and earth. So, the true purpose of the primordial array is not to protect the opportunities but to imprison this small world. Gu Mingzhou said in surprise. Before they came in, Jing Wudao and Shang Wanfei had discussed the reason for the storage space of the huge Daoist stone statue. It was the carrier of space. And all the opportunities they were looking for should be in another space. If the primordial array was really used to imprison space like what Master Qin said, then the creator of the primordial array must have set up this place to imprison this space. As soon as Gu Mingzhou finished speaking, Master Qin started to praise him. Not bad. The person who created this cave abode may have discovered the space, but it was extremely difficult for him to keep it for his own use. That's why he created the primordial array. It's also called a useless formation. Master Qin explained. A useless formation? I can understand why it's called the world's number one secret formation, but why is it called a useless formation? Gu Mingzhou asked in confusion. The primordial array can imprison heaven and earth and create space, but it can only imprison space. Even if it has lived for tens of millions of years, it can't imprison heaven and earth. Master Qin explained in detail as if he was living history. The main purpose of the formation was to imprison space. As for the others, the illusion was not as good as the illusion arrays. Its defense was not as good as the sect protection array, 
and its attack was not as good as the Thousand Array. Furthermore, the conditions to set up the formation were extremely harsh. Wasn't it just a useless formation? That's true. Gu Mingzhou thought for a while and said. According to what Master Qin said, the primordial array was indeed a useless formation. After all, the person created it to imprison that elusive space. However, since ancient times, almost no one had been able to discover space. Many people didn't even know what a different space was. In this way, the primordial array would lose its function and become a useless formation. Since this primordial array can't trap the enemy, why are Lu Yucheng and the others missing? After understanding where they were, Gu Mingzhou thought of the others who had disappeared. That's even simpler. Although the primordial array is useless, it still has one strong point from all other formations. Whether it's defense, attack, imprisonment, or other functions, it has all of them. Master Qin explained in detail as if he knew the primordial array very well. Therefore, it was evident this primordial array had activated its imprisonment technique. Everyone was surrounded by a thick white fog blocking their vision, and they could not find each other. The white mist obscured his vision but could not block one spiritual sense. As long as Gu Mingzhou spread out his spiritual sense to investigate, he could quickly discover the others. It can be done like this. Gu Mingzhou was very curious. He immediately spread out his spiritual sense. Sure enough, he found Sheng Wanfei, Lu Yucheng, He Yuliang, Wei Lin, and the Wu Ji Patriarch not far away from him. It was evident that they knew the secret of the primordial array. Otherwise, they would not have gathered together so quickly. Hey, why can't I sense Brother Wu Zora? Gu Mingzhou asked with a frown. Even when he sent out his greatest spiritual sense to cover a radius of a hundred miles, he still couldn't find Jing Wu Zora. This made him very depressed. That means he didn't come in. Master Qin said with some disdain. He didn't come in. That's impossible. Gu Mingzhou did not believe it. However, just as he finished speaking, a red shadow suddenly flew over and landed beside Gu Mingzhou. Brother Wu Dao. I'm sorry, I came in a little late. Jing Wu Dao saw Gu Mingzhou's surprised expression and immediately smiled shyly. He apologized. You really didn't come in. Master Qin was right. Gu Mingzhou was a little surprised. He had thought that Master Qin was joking. He didn't expect Jing Wu Dao to really not enter. What do you mean by I was right? This is common sense. Didn't I tell you that the primordial array only has this function? How could it lose a person? Master Qin said disdainfully, his words full of disdain for Gu Mingzhou. So this is the primordial array. Jing Wudao stared at Master Qin with interest for a long time. A smile appeared on his face, and then he retracted his gaze. And, Brother Wudao, you know about it? Gu Mingzhou asked in return. I've indeed heard of it before, but I don't really understand it. As Jing Wudao answered, his gaze shifted to the purple figure on Gu Mingzhou's shoulder. Master Qin. How do you know so much? Gu Mingzhou asked, a little confused. Maybe it's natural. After all, I'm not an ordinary person. I'm taking a break. Don't bother me if there's nothing else. Master Qin seemed to be really tired. He lazily leaned on Gu Mingzhou's shoulder and started to rest. Gu Mingzhou shook his head helplessly. This Master Qin was still as funny as ever. He stopped talking and explored the way with his spiritual senses, quickly approaching Shang Wan Fei and the others. Jing Wudao also followed behind Gu Mingzhou. In Gu Mingzhou's spiritual sense, they had not moved since they had discovered the location of Shang Wan Fei and the others. When Gu Mingzhou arrived, he realized there were two tightly shut bronze doors at the place where the four of them had gathered. They stood in the middle of the white fog. There were two huge doors more than a hundred meters tall. They were utterly cast in bronze and emitted a faint green light. Amid the white mist, they were particularly eye-catching, even mysterious. The bronze door gave Gu Mingzhou a mysterious feeling. The more he looked, the more mysterious it became. It was as if there was something was clearly within reach, but when you reached out to grab it, you couldn't. It was mysterious and heart-wrenching. 
In the middle of the closed bronze door was a gilded nine in the shape of a bulge. Something seemed to be missing from the nine words. There were precisely nine palm-sized grooves that covered the entire nine characters. Each groove emitted a faint white light, which corresponded with the green light of the door. Why are you so late? Wu Ji's patriarch said unhappily. Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao had just walked over when they immediately attracted everyone's attention. Little friend, we're not like you. You've already been here once. It's already not bad that you were able to find us so quickly. He Yu Yang immediately retorted. Wu Ji patriarch was speechless and turned around angrily. Gu Mingzhou could not help but feel puzzled. He was not doubtful that Wu Ji Patriarch was targeting him but because Wu Ji Patriarch seemed to be afraid of He Yu Yang. You have to know that when Wu Ji Patriarch first attacked the Seven Devil Halls, he fought against He Yu Yang alone. It seemed like there was still a feud between Wu Ji Sex Patriarch and He Yu Yang. With such a relationship, even if they reconciled, Wu Ji Patriarch should not be afraid of He Yu Yang. They weren't going against each other, but they were still unforgiving. It seemed like He Yu Yang was holding something against Wu Ji Sex Patriarch, so Wu Ji Sex Patriarch dared not say anything. If that was the case, things would become even more interesting. Chapter 278 Little brother, I was in a hurry just now and forgot to tell you about the primordial array. You don't mind, right? Hall Master Lu immediately apologized to him after the Wu Ji Sex Patriarch left. Hey, Hall Master Lu. What are you saying? It's just a primordial array, nothing to be afraid of. Gu Mingzhou laughed and raised his voice on purpose. Sure enough, before he finished speaking, Shang Wan Fei and the others around him immediately looked over. Who doesn't know how to brag? A look of disdain flashed across Wei Lin's face. Although he was whispering, the people around him could hear him easily. Young people nowadays are so arrogant because they have something to rely on. They really don't know the immensity of the heavens and earth. The Wu Ji sex patriarch, who was already angry, continued to mock. Although it also seemed to be a low whisper, the tone was much louder than Wei Lin's. Freak three-eyed old man. Gu Mingzhou shouted coldly. What's wrong? Now you won't even let me speak. The one who answered Gu Mingzhou was not Wu Ji patriarch, but the burly man, He Yu Yang. For some reason, he Yu Yang, who appeared to be kind, also had some dissatisfaction on his face as he spoke coldly. Since this little brother is so powerful, why don't you teach us how to break this primordial array so that we can gain some knowledge? He Yu Yang continued. Because Gu Mingzhou and Master Qin were close, he was a little hesitant. Shang Wan Fei looked a little worried and motioned for He Yu Yang to keep quiet. What's wrong? Could it be that little brother still can't break this primordial array that you don't even care about? He Yu Yang, who had always been obedient to Shang Wan Fei, did not choose to remain silent this time. Instead, he took two steps toward Gu Mingzhou and said disdainfully. Gu Mingzhou looked at He Yu Yang with some doubt. Although he had raised his voice on purpose, his purpose was only to give a warning and to express his dissatisfaction with Shang Wan Fei, Gu Mingzhou, and the others for hiding the information about Primordial Array. He didn't expect that he would attract a wolf instead of a tiger, which made him a little unhappy. Island Master He, this little brother didn't mean it. He didn't aim at you. Please don't mind. Gu Mingzhou seemed to be more respectful of the Wu Ji sex patriarch's cold words. Hall Master Lu, this has nothing to do with you. I just want to see how capable this young man is. Gu Mingzhou continued to say. However, as he spoke, he directly stepped past Gu Mingzhou and approached him. Without waiting for Gu Mingzhou to react, a red shadow flashed past. Jing Wudao had already appeared in front of Gu Mingzhou, blocking him. What's wrong? Do you still want to practice? He Yu Yang said coldly as he stared at Jing Wudao from a close distance. I'll accompany you anytime. Jing Wudao said coldly, still expressionless. Before Jing Wudao could finish his sentence, Gu Mingzhou reached out and patted Jing Wudao's shoulder. Brother Wudao, move aside first. Didn't he Yu Yang just want to ask me about the primordial array? Then I'll just embarrass myself. 
Gu Mingzhou lightly patted Jing Wudao's shoulder twice and said with a smile. Jing Wudao stared at He Yuyang in front of him. After a long while, he took a step forward and once again retreated behind Gu Mingzhou. However, his hands were already surrounded by a red glow, and he was clearly ready to attack. The so-called primordial array does not refer to the arrays or arrays that we know of, and it is not a mantra. Instead, it's the eighth direction outside of the eight directions of heaven and earth. Seeing Jing Wudao retreat, Gu Mingzhou nodded slightly at He Yuyang. He immediately translated what he had just heard from Master Qin into his own words and told him. In other words, the eight formations referred to the eighth direction outside of the four corners, which was the direction of the dimension discussed outside the stone statue. As for the primordial array was used to imprison an area of the world by using the direction between dimensions. Of course, heaven and earth were actually dimensions. Therefore, one could also assume that the primordial array was not trapping the heavens, but a dimension, or in other words, an alternate dimension. Island Master Shengguan, am I right? Gu Mingzhou shifted his gaze from He Yuyang to the ancestor of Wuji and Wei Lin. Finally, it stopped at Shengguan Fei and asked. I'm impressed. I didn't expect that not only Daoist brother Wu Dao would be so knowledgeable, but young friend Mingzhou is also very knowledgeable. Shengguan Fei smiled and walked to He Yuyang's side. He cupped his hands and said to Gu Mingzhou. It's just an introduction to the primordial array. Maybe you just happen to read about it in ancient books. If you really have the ability, then break this formation. Don't forget, island master Gu Mingzhou was asking about the way to break it, not the introduction. The Wu Ji patriarch added fuel to the fire. You three-eyed old thief! Gu Mingzhou shouted coldly. Please don't be angry, Hall Master Lu. The Wu Ji sex patriarch was just reminding you out of good intentions. Gu Mingzhou reached out to stop him and comforted him. You're tactful. The Wu Ji patriarch's face was full of arrogance. He was obviously very unhappy with Gu Mingzhou. I did not answer the question just now. In fact, it is very easy to break this primordial array. Although the thick white fog seems to block our vision and separate the challengers, it only blocks our vision but not our spiritual sense. Gu Mingzhou said in a clear voice. Clap. 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 Before he finished speaking, Shang Wan Fei was the first to applaud. Little brother is indeed amazing. You've woken me up from my dream with a single sentence. Shang Wan said as he clapped. Island Master Shang Wan, you're too kind. As Wu Ji Patriarch said, I just happened to read a few ancient books. I was indeed a little arrogant just now. Gu Mingzhou cupped his hands and said to He Yuyang. Humph. What you said does make sense. Although He Yuyang was a little reluctant, he was very convinced by Gu Mingzhou's explanation. Huh, everyone is here to explore the opportunities in the alternate dimension, so we should live in harmony. Since little brother Mingzhou is already here, let's open the opportunities in the alternate dimension. Gu Mingzhou stepped forward and tried to smooth things over. That's right. This time, we've gathered all nine jade keys. We should be able to open the opportunity of the alien dimension. Said Shang Wan Fei with a nod. He immediately took the lead and walked to the bronze gate. He raised his right hand and placed the five jade keys into the grooves of the nine word. Then, he stepped back. Hall Master Lu, please. Shang Wan Fei said, waving his hand. All right. Gu Mingzhou replied with a smile. He immediately walked to the bronze door and quickly placed the three jade keys he had into the nine groove. Then, he retreated to the side and turned to look at Gu Mingzhou. My young friend, Mingzhou, please. Shang Wan Fei was the first to speak and made a gesture of invitation to Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou nodded slightly. Although he didn't answer, he walked to the huge nine word on the bronze door. He raised his hand and placed the only jade key in his hand into the last groove. Chapter 279 The nine jade keys were placed into the grooves, and the huge nine word that protruded between the two bronze doors suddenly shone with a dazzling white light. Then, the bronze door that had been closed all this time suddenly opened. 
As the nine jade keys were in place and the huge nine word in the middle of the two copper doors gradually separated and directly split the shining nine word. The bronze door seemed to have not been opened for a long time. When it suddenly opened, it let out an ear-piercing sound. However, this voice was not long. It only caused people to frown for a short while before it disappeared without a trace as if it had never appeared. Then, darkness came into everyone's eyes. At this moment, the bright nine character, the bronze door emitting a faint green light, and the gentle white mist that filled the entire space all seemed to have disappeared. All that was left was darkness. It was so black that it was strange and terrifying. It was the scene behind the bronze door. It was the only scene that everyone could see after the bronze door opened. A black light flashed. The jade key suddenly shot out from the split nine word and flew rapidly towards Gu Mingzhou. Before Gu Mingzhou could even react, the jade key he had just placed in the groove had already flown back to him. Then, the black jade key floating above Gu Mingzhou's head suddenly dropped a light screen, directly enveloping Gu Mingzhou. Oh no! Before Jing Wudao could finish his sentence, his body suddenly turned into a red light and quickly entered Gu Mingzhou's body. The next moment, the jade key and Gu Mingzhou entered the pitch black bronze door. Immediately after, three more jade keys flew out and enveloped Gu Mingzhou, who still had a look of surprise on his face. Without waiting for him to react, the light screen lowered and instantly disappeared into the bronze door. After that, the remaining five jade keys flew out of the nine groove and also flew toward the grim-looking Shang Wan Fei. However, unlike Gu Mingzhou and Gu Mingzhou, Shang Wan Fei had already reacted when the jade key flew to him. He scuttled to He Yuliang, Wu Ji Patriarch, and Wei Lin sighed instantly. He reached out with both hands and grabbed their shoulders. Don't move. Shang Wan Fei said in a deep voice. His words were firm and unyielding, causing the three people who were about to resist to stop. The next moment, the five jade keys suddenly arrived, and the light curtain descended pitifully, directly enveloping He Yuliang, Wei Lin, and the Wu Ji Patriarch and instantly entering the bronze door. The wide open bronze door shook slightly before closing. The darkness that seemed to devour the world also disappeared. The thick white mist and the faint green glow returned to the area in front of the bronze door. As for the huge nine word that had been reassembled, it appeared extraordinarily dim, and its light had disappeared. In the darkness, one could not even see one's fingers. Gu Mingzhou only heard the sound of the wind in his ears. The scene in front of him suddenly changed. It suddenly brightened, and Gu Mingzhou had no choice but to close his eyes. Splatter. The sound of the river water reaching the shore entered his ears, causing Gu Mingzhou, who had his eyes tightly shut, to open them again slowly. The hundred-meter-long river was in front of him. The blood-yellow river water churned endlessly, setting off wave after wave and gradually forming ripples. Although it was beautiful, it was also strange. This is the river of the dead. Just as Gu Mingzhou was feeling puzzled, a familiar voice suddenly came from behind him. Gu Mingzhou quickly turned around. What he saw were Shang Wan Fei, Wu Ji Patriarch, Wei Lin, and He Yu Yang. Jing Wudao was nowhere to be found. The person who spoke was Gu Mingzhou, who looked very strong. Where is the corpse flower? He Yu Yang almost ignored Gu Mingzhou and walked past him. He walked to the riverbank excitedly and looked into the distance. Not only He Yu Yang, but Wei Lin, Gu Mingzhou, the Wu Ji Patriarch, and even Shang Wan Fei behind him also looked excited. They ignored Gu Mingzhou and walked toward the river ahead. Hall Master Lu, where's Brother Wu Dao? Gu Mingzhou didn't notice everyone's abnormality and was only concerned about Jing Wu Dao's situation. He immediately stopped Gu Mingzhou and asked. After all, everyone was here except for Jing Wu Dao. Isn't fellow Daoist Wu Dao with you? Just now, when you were brought in by the Jade Key, Daoist Wudao turned into a red light and entered your body. Hall Master Lu looked at the river and replied with excitement. He seemed to be a little impatient. He walked around Gu Mingzhou and followed the crowd to continue walking toward the long river. Inside me. Gu Mingzhou couldn't care less about his excitement. He quickly looked inside his Dantian and spread out his spiritual sense. 
As expected, Jing Wudao was sitting in front of the stone table, sulking. Brother Wudao. Gu Mingzhou called out to her via voice transmission. Gu Mingzhou. Are you alright? Jing Wudao suddenly raised his eyes and replied. I'm fine. Why did you return to my alternate dimension? Gu Mingzhou asked via voice transmission. I don't know either. I saw you being enveloped by the light curtain hanging down from the jade key just now. I was worried that something might have happened to you and was about to save you, but the body of my soul dispersed uncontrollably and pulled me directly back to the alternate dimension. Jing Wudao explained gloomily. I see. Come out first. We seem to have entered this ancient alternate dimension. Gu Mingzhou immediately had an idea. Jing Wudao instantly appeared beside him. This place is a work of art that seizes the good fortune of heaven and earth. As soon as Jing Wudao appeared, Shang Wan Fei's sigh came from behind the two. Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao didn't even have time to talk before they looked in the direction of the voice. He saw Shang Wan Fei and the others standing on the riverbank, looking at the rolling river and sighing. Gu Mingzhou quietly gave Jing Wudao a look and walked toward the crowd. Just like Gu Mingzhou, Wei Lin, and the others, Jing Wudao's eyes were filled with surprise. He couldn't hide his excitement as he walked quickly towards the river. Yellow blood forms a river, and the heavenly Tao reincarnates for life. Yellow Spring River, so this is the river of the dead. Huh, it seems that the legends are true. He Yu Yang said excitedly as he stretched out his hands. Not bad. This is definitely the legendary river of the dead. I didn't expect we would be so lucky to encounter this mysterious river of the dead as soon as we entered. Gu Mingzhou couldn't hide his excitement as he looked carefully at the bloody yellow river and couldn't help but say. Since the river of the dead really exists, doesn't that mean that the corpse flower, which is said to be able to reincarnate people, also exists? Wu Ji Patriarch also looked at the river in excitement. With the river of the dead, the corpse flower must be here as well. Wei Lin continued the patriarch's words and said happily. Before he could finish his sentence, the three quickly walked along the riverbank. Their eyes kept looking around as if they were looking for the legendary copper's flower. It's really the river of the dead. Jing Wudao, who was the last to arrive at the shore, looked at the river and said in surprise. Chapter, 280 What River of the Dead? Gu Mingzhou looked at the blood-yellow surface of the river and asked in confusion. Of course, it's the legendary river of the dead that connects the spiritual realm and the divine realm. Haven't you heard of it? Jing Wudao said excitedly. Spiritual and divine realm? I've never heard of it. Gu Mingzhou shook his head and said. When I was young, I heard from the elders of the sect that after a person dies, their soul will enter the gates of hell. They can be reincarnated only after passing through the road of the dead, stepping on the bridge of helplessness, and crossing the river of the dead. He had only heard about myths. What my young friend Mingzhou has heard is only a legend among mortals. Among us cultivators, there is another story about the river of the dead. I wonder if my young friend has heard of it. Without waiting for Jing Wudao's reply, Shang Wan Fei, who had been standing still by the river, turned around. When he glanced at Jing Wudao, his eyes flashed with a bright light. Gu Mingzhou shook his head. The yellow blood formed a river, and the heavenly Tao reincarnates for another lifetime. Before the river of the dead, find the other shore, half a step away from the soul, half a step away from life. The yellow blood formed a river, and the heavenly Tao reincarnates for another lifetime. Before the river of the dead, find the other shore, half a step away from the soul, half a step away from life. Gu Mingzhou frowned. He could not help but repeat these two sentences, but in the end, he shook his head. Indeed, he had never heard of it before. Perhaps the river of the dead he had heard of was completely different from the current river of the dead. You even know about the primordial array that has been passed down for thousands of years, but you don't know about the mortal tribulation. A look of disbelief flashed across Shang Wan Fei's face as he asked in confusion. I've never heard of the mortal tribulation. The river of the dead that I know is different from the one you're talking about. Gu Mingzhou awkwardly scratched his head and replied. 
The so-called mortal tribulation refers to the three tribulations created by the heavenly emperor of untainted land. They are divided into the river of forgetfulness, helplessness, and rebirth. Jing Wu Dao explained. The yellow blood formed a river, and the heavenly Dao reincarnates for another lifetime. This referred to the first difficulty of the mortal tribulation, the river of the dead. The river of the dead was created by the heavenly emperor by collecting the blood lost in the battle between the three thousand almighty experts in the world. It has the ability to retain memories and be reborn a second time. A second rebirth? Gu Mingzhou's expression was extremely surprised. This was equivalent to having a second life. It doesn't mean that you'll be reborn. The water of the river of the dead can predict the major difficulties that will happen to you in the future according to your soul memory so that you can sense them in advance and take precautions to avoid death. Shang Wan Fei continued Jing Wudao's words and explained. He needed the corpse flower that grew in the river of the dead as a catalyst. Otherwise, it would be useless to find the river of the dead. There's such a thing. Although Gu Mingzhou felt that it was not as magical as having a second life, it was still very rare. After all, it was equivalent to being able to predict the future, seeking good fortune, and avoiding disaster. Especially for the almighty cultivators, being able to avoid the danger of death was definitely considered a rebirth. No wonder they were so excited when they saw the river of the dead. Gu Mingzhou muttered to himself. This was naturally of utmost importance to Gu Mingzhou, the patriarch of Wuji, Wei Lin, Shang Wan Fei, and He Yu Yang. Then what about river of helplessness and rebirth? Gu Mingzhou continued to ask. The mortal tribulation was divided into three difficulties. The first difficulty was the corpse flower by the river of the dead that could predict the future. The second difficulty was the river of helplessness the third was to be reborn. This bridge of helplessness refers to the bridge of helplessness. Speaking of the bridge of helplessness, it's an even more miraculous existence. Shang Wan Fei helped to explain. I found it. Shang Wan Fei was just about to explain the helplessness when He Yu Yang suddenly shouted and directly interrupted him. Come here quickly. The corpse flower is here. What? You found it. Let's go, He Yu Yang is there. Gu Ming Zhou, Wei Lin, and Wu Ji Patriarch, who were also looking around, were immediately attracted and hurriedly walked in He Yu Yang's direction. Let's go and take a look. Although Shang Wan Fei looked calm on the surface, he gave up on explaining the moment He Yu Yang shouted. He urged Gu Ming Zhou and immediately strode over to where he was. Driven by curiosity, Gu Ming Zhou naturally went with them. Where? Where is the treasure? The Wu Ji sex patriarch asked anxiously as he walked up to He Yu Yang. Gu Ming Zhou and Wei Lin, who were behind him, didn't ask directly, but they both looked anxious. In the middle of the river. He Yu Yang's tall and sturdy body bent down slightly, and he pointed at the center of the river where the waves were rolling. The blood yellow river water churned unceasingly, creating ripples on the surface of the river. On the surface of the river that was gradually calming down, several half-green and half-red gorgeous flowers stood out from the falling waves. They seemed out of place with the surroundings, but they also merged perfectly. They remained suspended above the blood yellow river, unmoving, allowing the wind to blow and the waves to hit them. Corpse flower. Ha, huh, it really is the corpse flower. He Yu Yang could not hide his excitement and shouted happily. The heavens have eyes. I found the corpse flower. Ha ha ha. Behind Gu Mingzhou, the Wu Ji sect patriarch also couldn't hide his excitement. Wei Lin's long and narrow eyes flickered with an extremely excited light as he stared closely at the cluster of two colored flowers on the river's surface. This is the corpse flower that can use the river of the dead to predict the future and see the recent dangers. Gu Mingzhou stared curiously at the two colored flower in the middle of the river and muttered to himself. Yes, that's it. Shang Wan Fei looked back at Gu Mingzhou and explained with a smile. I forgot to tell you that the corpse flower can only allow those with a physical body to see the future through the river of the dead. Shang Wan Fei paused as if he had suddenly thought of something. He glanced at Jing Wudao imperceptibly and explained to Gu Mingzhou. Before Gu Mingzhou could figure out what Shang Wan Fei meant, he had already turned around and walked quickly to the river. 
don't get too excited yet. Since everyone knows about the river of the dead and the corpse flower, you should also know that no one can cross the river of the dead. Shang Fei walked through the crowd to the front and said in a clear voice. I know. That's why I'll have to trouble island master Shang to make a move. The Wu Ji patriarch cupped his hands and said to Shang Fei with a big smile on his face. Everyone gets a share. Wait a moment. Let me verify the number of corpse flowers. Shang Fei said generously. Gu Mingzhou leaned over, wondering what Shang Fei was going to do next. Shang Fei sat cross-legged on the wet riverbank with his eyes slightly closed and his hands crossed. Suddenly, he exuded strong pressure. A dazzling white light suddenly appeared around Shang Fei, making him look like a god. Then, Shang Fei's body, which had been sitting cross-legged on the ground, began to float slightly, and his tightly shut eyes opened at this moment. Two beams of light shot out from Shang Fei's eyes and instantly entered the cluster of two colored flowers on the river's surface. Chapter 281 Half an hour later. Everyone is really lucky. There are actually ten corpse flowers here. Shang Fei smiled and said in one breath. Really? It's definitely enough for each of us to make a prediction. He Yu Yang said excitedly as he clapped. I didn't expect that we would be so lucky. Not only did we encounter the river of the dead, but we also found ten corpse flowers. Gu Mingzhou was also very happy, and his voice trembled slightly. Thanks to island master Shang Wan's good leadership. If I follow you, I'm afraid I won't even be able to enter the door. Before Gu Mingzhou could finish his sentence, the Wu Ji sect patriarch said coldly. You. Gu Mingzhou was about to get angry when he saw Shang Wan Fei looking over angrily. He immediately ignored the ancestor of Wu Ji. I've said before that since everyone came together, everyone will naturally have a share. Let's cut to the chase. Everyone, quickly sit down and open your souls. I'll guide everyone to the corpse flower. Shang Wan Fei acted as the peacemaker again. Gu Mingzhou and the others couldn't wait for the river of the dead. Now that they heard Shang Wan Fei's words, they immediately put aside their grudges and sat down cross-legged on the wet riverbank. They closed their eyes, exuded pressure, and opened their souls. Island Master Shang Wan, since there are extra corpse flowers, please help me to draw in one as well. I also want to try it. Jing Wudao suddenly walked to Shang Wan Fei's side and said. Shang Wan Fei looked at Jing Wudao in surprise and only nodded slightly after a long while. Many thanks. Jing Wudao cupped his hands and thanked Shang Wan Fei when he saw that he had agreed. After saying that, he immediately sat down cross-legged and released a powerful pressure. Brother Wudao. Gu Mingzhou called out uneasily. He had already understood that Shang Wan Fei had probably already seen through Jing Wudao's identity, so he had deliberately warned him. Even though Shang Wan Fei had warned him in advance that the corpse flower was only effective on people with a physical body, Jing Wudao still went up, which made Gu Mingzhou a little worried. I'm fine. The river of the dead only has an impression on my memories. It can't hurt me. Jing Wudao, who was about to close his eyes, consoled Gu Mingzhou softly. Jing Wudao turned around as he spoke, and a scorching pressure suddenly rose. Gu Mingzhou naturally understood what Jing Wudao meant. Without saying anything else, he also sat down cross-legged, released his pressure, and opened up his soul. Everyone, get ready. I'll start the channeling of the soul. Shang Wan Fei's face was extremely grim, and his hand suddenly changed into a Daoist seal in front of his chest. Before he could finish his sentence, Gu Mingzhou, who had just sat down, felt the air around him sink, and a hot vitality suddenly entered his open soul. The entire space suddenly trembled. Heaven and earth darkened, and heaven and earth were reversed. Pressure, endless pressure. It was so heavy that it felt like he was suffocating. It filled every corner of Gu Mingzhou's body and pressed down on all his cells. Ah! Gu Mingzhou finally couldn't bear it. He let out a hoarse cry from his throat, and his tightly closed eyes suddenly opened. However, it was pitch black in front of him. It was the same darkness as when the bronze door first opened. It was so dark that it was terrifying. 
Where is this place? Gu Mingzhou asked in confusion as he looked around. When he opened his eyes, he found that he was not sitting on the bank of the river of the dead but in darkness. He couldn't tell the world apart, he couldn't tell the direction, and there was only darkness around him, endless darkness. He Yuliang and the others, who had been sitting next to him, had all disappeared. Jing Wudao was also not by his side. Even Sheng Wan Fei, who had guided everyone to the corpse flower, had disappeared. A sudden sense of loneliness and helplessness overwhelmed her. Brother Wudao. Gu Mingzhou looked around and walked aimlessly in the dark, shouting loudly. He couldn't stand loneliness, or rather, he was afraid of loneliness. After all his family members passed away, Gu Mingzhou looked like he had made it. However, in reality, there was always someone by his side. Cultivation has always been a long and tedious process. In addition to his parents' passing, Gu Mingzhou was actually very lonely. Although he didn't say it out loud, he was still terrified of this feeling. But now, he suddenly felt helpless, lonely, and had a vague sense of fear. Furthermore, this overwhelming darkness had no elemental energy in the air. He was even surprised to find there was no elemental energy in his body. This meant that Gu Mingzhou's current existence was like that of an ordinary person. This made him even more panicked. In this cruel world where the strong preyed on the weak, losing one's strength meant death. And in the pitch-black space around him, he felt as if there were countless pairs of eyes watching him. However, when he looked back, he only saw darkness. Detestable. Gu Mingzhou roared. It was as if he was the only one left in the world. There was not even a single echo even when he roared hoarsely. Darkness and confusion swept through his heart in the quiet and empty environment. This was what he had felt since he opened his eyes. Other than that, he felt nothing else. He identified a direction and began to walk forward with large strides. As he walked, he started to run. He ran crazily in the darkness. There was no use for vision here because there was only darkness. Even though he couldn't see, he could still run with ease. He wanted to run to the end of this darkness. To run out of this unbearable place. The sound of footsteps rang out in the empty darkness. Although there was no echo, it was still particularly clear. He didn't know how long he had run. Two hours, four hours, or even more. Even when he was exhausted, he was still running with all his might. He was running in the right direction. Everything in the world had an end. The end of life was death, and the end of death was life. The ultimate of light was darkness, and the ultimate of darkness was, naturally, light. Gu Mingzhou wanted to run to the end of the darkness, find the end, to find the light. But in the end, he still failed to achieve his goal. After forcing himself to run for a distance, the exhausted Gu Mingzhou finally could not hold on any longer. Plop. The muffled sound was particularly ear-piercing in the dark. Gu Mingzhou's entire body ached, and he collapsed powerlessly. He revealed a bitter smile helplessly and wanted to close his eyes. He even felt that he was about to be devoured by the darkness. Then, he closed his eyes. Gu Mingzhou Just as Gu Mingzhou was about to close his eyes completely, a cold voice suddenly rang out from the darkness, causing Gu Mingzhou to open his eyes again. Brother Wu Dao Gu Mingzhou forced his weak body to sit up, looked up at the darkness above, and shouted. It's me. This is just an illusion created by the river of the dead to predict the difficulties they will encounter in the future. It's not real. Don't sink into oblivion. Jing Wudao's voice rang out again. Although it was urgent, it was still extremely clear in Gu Mingzhou's ears. This is an illusion. Then what should I do? Gu Mingzhou forced his weak body to stand up. He staggered two steps, panting heavily, and looked up to ask. Chapter 282. Don't think about anything. It has nothing to do with you. Jing Wudao's voice stopped abruptly before he could finish. The world returned to silence. It was as if Jing Wudao's voice had never appeared. It's an illusion created by the corpse flower guiding to the river of the dead. It's just a prediction of the predicament I'm going to encounter in the future. It's not real. Although Jing Wudao's voice only appeared for a moment, 
it was enough to cheer Gu Mingzhou up. Could it be that I'll be trapped in a place like this in the future? Gu Mingzhou, who had calmed down, started to speculate. Although the present was only an illusion, the function of the river of the dead and the corpse flower was to deduce a certain part of the future according to the original memory of the soul. He moved his body and felt he had recovered some strength. He sensed this dark world more carefully, trying to find clues to prepare for the future. Could it be that this world is the one that is trapped? He suddenly raised his head, and two rays of light shot out from his eyes. Before Gu Mingzhou could finish his sentence, there was a sudden explosion in the darkness. Purple lightning as thick as a water bucket suddenly tore through the darkness and slithered over, carrying a terrifying power as it circled above Gu Mingzhou. The scene in front of him changed. The darkness disappeared, and light reappeared. The surroundings returned to the grey sky. Central Plains In the northern Shaolin Temple, not far from the outskirts of the Zhou Dynasty. After the last battle, He Chuan had destroyed more than half of the secret realm of the northern Shaolin Temple. After nearly two years of recuperation, this place had basically recovered. After being nourished by the spiritual energy of heaven and earth, the flowers and trees here had become more lush. Cultivators from all over the world had come here, and it had become a holy land for martial artists. This was because a small part of the space here was still undamaged. After the world changed, the spiritual energy in the other space was more abundant than in other places. In addition to the traces left behind by He Chuan, many people chose to come here to cultivate and comprehend. They would strive to become a saint cultivator as soon as possible, or even touch the barrier of the mortal realm. There was also the most eye-catching building. The palace had a golden roof and a red door. This antique style made people feel a sense of solemnity. The golden glazed tiles were dazzling under the sun. Then, once you pushed open the long coral window. Outside the window, there was a back garden full of exotic flowers and plants. It was very bright and beautiful, and it was a place for sightseeing. There were also sixteen flower trees, each tall and beautiful. It was early summer, and the wind blew and the flowers fell. Thousands of flowers covered the ground, and the backyard was like the first snow, very beautiful. This was a special place for the Zhou dynasty's royal family. Every time someone from the royal family wanted to break through or gain enlightenment, they would send them here. With each one behind them, no one dared to fight with the imperial court. Of course, the main thing was that the royal family didn't go too far. Everyone could come here to comprehend and cultivate, but the most important place was occupied. The Wudong sect's territory neighbored the imperial court. In recent years, they had been known as the number one in the world and had suppressed the Shaolin Temple. More and more disciples came to the Wudang sect because of its reputation. The entire Wudang sect was thriving, but some sects would secretly call them the dogs of the imperial court. The Wudang sect turned a deaf ear to this. Because they realized that being close to the imperial court had more advantages than disadvantages. As long as there were enough benefits, what was the point of being a lackey of the imperial court? In the northmost, the ice mountain never melted. It was extremely cold every year, and the temperature was extremely low. The sacred soul island of the Godfiend race was located here. The seawater here was extremely cold, and there were almost no marine creatures living there. Even the birds in the sky could not cross it. Life had withered, and matter had not rotted for many years. If there were no special reason, the corpses would probably rot with the world. It was almost impossible for ordinary people to pass through the freezing cold place. Perhaps saint cultivators could live in the freezing cold land for a short period of time, but it was said there were terrifying existences hidden in the deep sea of the freezing cold land. Even saint cultivators could easily swallow them. Other than the godfiend race, there were basically no other cultivators that lived here. But there was always an exception. A figure stood on the surface of the ocean in an extremely cold place. Even saint cultivators didn't dare to step into this place easily, but it didn't seem to affect him at all. Is this the sacred soul island? Why does it look like there's no life force? The man was He Chuan. He covered the entire island with his spiritual sense and found that there were only two or three small fish and shrimp on the island. It wasn't as powerful as recorded in the anecdote of Chizhou. 
He Chuan could not understand this. Previously, when he extracted the memories of the White Tiger Grand Sage, Meng Ao, he found that the Sacred Soul Island was relatively strong. However, because they wanted to welcome back their young lord, Gu Mingzhou, a civil war broke out between the various factions. Because there were many people who wanted to be great lord, a few hall masters did not want Gu Mingzhou, who had been wandering in the Great Zhou Dynasty for many years, to be promoted. The Seven Devil Hall was the hall that supported Gu Mingzhou the most. However, it was a little too exaggerated for an internal conflict to turn out like this. Who are you? How dare you come to Sacred Soul Island? Leave immediately. A person flew out from the island. He held a five-foot-long golden saber and his eyes were filled with caution. He Chuan saw that the other party was at the peak of the Saint Cultivator realm, but he still looked as if he was facing a great enemy. He guessed that the God-fiend race was not having a good time. You come at the right time. It saves me a lot of trouble. He Chuan was very dissatisfied with their plan for the Zhou Dynasty's secret and had no intention of holding back. With a wave of his hand, the Sacred Soul Island's expert's head was grabbed by his right hand. He used the soul-searching technique. He Chuan threw the corpse on the ground a few minutes later. Some things were beyond his imagination. He did not expect that there were so many hidden sects in this world that were on par with the God-Fiend race. Previously, because of the fight for treasures, a few sects had joined forces to attack the God-Fiend race on Sacred Soul Island. However, it was not enough to destroy this place. The main reason was still the appearance of the World God, who had killed most of the experts on Sacred Soul Island. As a result, the God-Fiend race's strength had greatly decreased. The few Hall Masters either ran away or died. They were temporarily not on the island. Interesting. So there are so many strong people in the world. Su Feng Yu, Wu Ji Patriarch, Jing Wudao, Sheng Wan Fei, and the young Lord Gu Mingzhou He Chuan raised his head and looked at the sky. The more he understood this world, the more he felt he had been ignorant. Fortunately, he did not choose to stay in the library to cultivate for long. Otherwise, he would not have known the wonderful things about this world. How could he become stronger? By the way, since this is the place where the God-Fiend clan cultivates, it should be a special place. I wonder what good things I can get by checking in. He Chuan suddenly thought of the check-in system. He couldn't let go of such a place. Check-in. Ding. Congratulations to the host for successfully checking in and obtaining the Ziwei Shinshin Miraculous Scripture. His luck this time could only be described as bursting. The reward was actually Emperor Zi Wei's cultivation technique. This was an extremely rare item, something that could be compared to what he had obtained before he flew far away. Since he had obtained such a good thing, He Chuan was not in a hurry to find other spaces. He would cultivate here for and continue to check in for a while. When he ran out of good stuff, he would go and look for the legendary alternate dimension. Chapter 283 a winding river appeared in front of Gu Mingzhou. The blood-yellow river water was turbulent and the waves were gradually splashing. On the endlessly rolling river, five beams of red and green light spread out from a cluster of dual-colored flowers in the center of the river and fell on Sheng Wan Fei, He Yuliang, Wei Lin, Lu Yucheng, and the Wu Ji Patriarch, who were all sitting cross-legged with their eyes closed, respectively. Phew! I'm really out. Gu Mingzhou let out a long breath and said in surprise. At the same time, he didn't forget to turn his head to look at Jing Wudao, who was also sitting cross-legged on the ground, but wasn't enveloped by the light. Brother Wudao, you. Let's go. Before Gu Mingzhou could finish his sentence, Jing Wudao interrupted him. Jing Wudao suddenly pounced over, grabbed Gu Mingzhou, jumped up, and directly shot into the distance. The five people who were enveloped in light opened their eyes almost at the same time and looked in the direction they had escaped in. Kill! Angry shouts rose to the sky. The five people, including Shang Wan Fei, shouted in unison. A monstrous killing intent instantly filled the air. The simple word kill resounded in front of the river of the dead. It was still loud and clear with the sound of the river. Before he finished his words, five killing intents gushed out at the same time, surging and imposing. 
Brat, I didn't expect it to be you. Lu Yuqing was the first to get up and instantly chased after Gu Mingzhou. Buzz. At almost the same time as Lu Yuqing moved, the Wu Ji sex patriarch and He Yuliang also rose to their feet and gave chase. Even Lu Yuqing, who had a good relationship with Gu Mingzhou, had murderous intent in his eyes. He rose into the air and stepped in the air, chasing after Gu Mingzhou. I really didn't expect that the tribulation of the masses would actually be on you. Shang Wan Fei's eyes were sharp as he stood up and said. However, he was clearly much faster than He Yuliang and the others. Each step he took in the air covered a hundred meters. After taking three or two simple steps, he overtook Lu Yuqing, who had been the first to move, and headed straight for Gu Mingzhou. What is this? Have they all gone crazy? Gu Mingzhou turned around and looked at the five people who were full of murderous intent. His tone was very surprised. I guess the catastrophe they saw through the river of the dead is related to you. It would be strange if they didn't want to kill you. Jing Wudao explained as he sped up. Related to me? How was this possible? I'm only a saint cultivator, the weakest in this group. Gu Mingzhou said in disbelief. I'm not sure about this. Anyway, I just peeked at the future catastrophe that they have predicted through the river of the dead. It's basically related to you. And judging from their current appearance, I'm afraid the person who is threatening their lives is you. Jing Wudao said worriedly as he looked at the approaching Shang Wan Fei with a frown. Don't joke with me. Even if my cultivation has increased, I'd only entered the mortal realm. How can I be their match? Gu Mingzhou was a little confused as to why things had turned out this way. Even if Shang Wan Fei and the others believed it, he didn't. Even if he really broke through to the mortal realm, Gu Mingzhou would definitely not be their match. Moreover, there was also the mysterious island master, Shang Wan Fei, who had a profound cultivation. Therefore, when he heard this possibility, he almost subconsciously cursed. These idiots, don't they use their brains? Gu Mingzhou, don't belittle yourself. If they don't kill you, they'll probably die in your hands. In the face of Gu Mingzhou's curses, Jing Wudao shook his head and said. How is this possible? Gu Mingzhou said in surprise. Although he had never seen Shang Wan Fei fight, he could tell from the fact that Shang Wan Fei was the leader of the other four that Shang Wan Fei was definitely the strongest among them. In addition, he was one of the three major islands for itinerant cultivators and the island master of the Myriad God Island. It was already a miracle that he would back down. Kill. He did not even dare to think about it. The way they look at you is probably no less than the hatred for your father's death. It's impossible to form an alliance now, so you can only rely on yourself. Jing Wudao said. Humph. I'm afraid you don't have a chance anymore. Before Jing Wudao could finish his words, Shang Wan Fei's voice came from not far behind. Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao turned around in surprise almost at the same time. Shang Wan Fei had already caught up with him, his face full of killing intent. He. As he spoke, his right hand formed a palm and quickly slapped toward them. A golden light shot out. When it reached the two of them, it turned into a white-fronted tiger with a hanging neck. It opened its bloody mouth, and its strong limbs kicked in the air as it suddenly pounced at Gu Mingzhou. Be careful. Jing Wudao's expression was extremely serious as he directly threw Gu Mingzhou forward. At the same time, he stretched out his left hand. The flexible sword stabbed out stealthily. A cold glint flickered, and it was extremely swift as it stabbed toward the tiger. The flexible sword, which was as thin as a cicada's wing, instantly pierced the tiger's forehead. Roar! Even though it was a ferocious tiger formed from elemental energy, it still roared in pain. The golden light around its body instantly brightened, and its body that had charged into the air with the flexible sword suddenly crashed in front of Jing Wudao. The fierce tiger phantom dissipated, and Jing Wudao was sent flying as if he had suffered a heavy blow. Brother Wudao! Gu Mingzhou hurriedly circulated his essence force and forcefully stopped his retreating body. The tip of his foot lightly touched the ground, and he immediately flew back to catch Jing Wudao. Even though he was caught by Gu Mingzhou, Jing Wudao still spat out a mouthful of blood, 
which turned into a red light in front of his chest and dissipated. Are you all right? Gu Mingzhou floated down from the sky and supported Jing Wudao as he asked nervously. What do you mean, are you all right? Think of a way to leave this place. Jing Wudao pushed Gu Mingzhou away with all his might and switched the flexible sword in his left hand to his right as he said coldly. No. You won't be able to stop them. Gu Mingzhou refused. He had already experienced what happened to Zhou Yuanba, and he didn't want something similar to happen again. Moreover, Zhou Yuanba did not have a deep friendship with Gu Mingzhou. However, Jing Wudao was different. Jing Wudao had followed Gu Mingzhou and had a deep relationship with him. He naturally wouldn't abandon Jing Wudao and let him die in his place. He's right. You're just a spiritual sense body. You can't stop me at all. You should give up. Shang Wan Fei landed from the sky and said indifferently. Even if I can't block it, I have to. I can only cover a distance of 50 miles for you. The rest is up to you. Jing Wudao suddenly turned around and quickly patted Gu Mingzhou's back with his true core strength. Swift. A powerful force immediately pressed down on Gu Mingzhou's body and actually pulled him backward at an extremely fast speed. Brother Wudao. Gu Mingzhou hurriedly activated his elemental energy and tried to break free, but he couldn't break free from Jing Wudao's spell at all. Jing Wudao looked at Gu Mingzhou, who was constantly struggling as he flew backward, and a smile appeared on his face. He shook his flexible sword and leaped forward, directly attacking Shang Wan Fei. Island Master Shang Wan, let me try to stop you with my spiritual body today. Jing Wudao shouted coldly, and his body that had charged into the air stood in the air. He held his sword with both hands and slashed down with all his might. Chapter 284 Sword Breaking Art The flexible sword, which was as thin as a cicada's wing, burst out with a bright light at this moment. The sword was so sharp that it directly cut through the void and attacked Shang Wan Fei with a dark crack. To be honest, I admire you, but you chose to stand on the wrong side. Shang Wan Fei casually waved his right hand in front of him as he faced the sword light. The sword light, which seemed to be extremely fierce and could tear the void apart, disappeared in an instant with Shang Wan Fei's wave even the pitch black spatial rift had completely disappeared as if it had never existed. What? Jing Wudao's face paled as he spoke. No matter how strong your spiritual sense is, I'm afraid it's difficult to display the true mystery of power. The reason why you're so strong is probably because of this soul body. Shang Wan Fei didn't rush to attack after he lifted his hand to wipe out Jing Wudao's attack. Instead, he looked at Jing Wudao. Jing Wudao did not answer. But it's a pity that in order to display the power of a soul body, its master must at least have the ability to support it. My young friend Mingzhou obviously doesn't have this ability. Shang Wan Fei still had a smile on his face, but he raised his right hand again. The void trembled, and endless golden threads of power suddenly shot out from Shang Wan Fei's palm. Like a spider spitting silk, it turned into thousands of golden threads of light and quickly shot toward Jing Wudao. In your dream. Jing Wudao looked at the golden threads of light that were shooting toward him and quickly retreated, wanting to avoid them. Jing Wudao immediately brandished his flexible sword, trying to cut off the golden threads of light that were approaching him. However, the golden threads of light that shot out of Shang Wan Fei's palm seemed to have intelligence. When the flexible sword came at him, they quickly turned around and directly dodged the sharp edge. Immediately after, the golden threads of light rapidly dispersed in front of Jing Wudao, and like a fishing net that had been spread out, they instantly enveloped Jing Wudao. Without waiting for Jing Wudao to react, the golden threads of light formed a huge cocoon of light in the blink of an eye, completely imprisoning Jing Wudao within. Brother Wudao The moment Jing Wudao was imprisoned, Gu Mingzhou, who had already been sent away, suddenly flew back and exclaimed. A black spear with a flickering flame suddenly shot out of Gu Mingzhou's hand and instantly pierced the cocoon of light. The long spear burned with scarlet flames like a fire gun. It appeared out of thin air in Gu Mingzhou's hand and burned the void. It instantly pierced the light cocoon that imprisoned Jing Wudao. However, the light cocoon, which did not look very solid, 
only trembled slightly in the face of Gu Mingzhou's fierce attack and no longer reacted. You seem to be too confident in your own strength. Even a cultivator in the mortal realm would find it difficult to break through my light cocoon, let alone you. Shang Wan Fei said with a sneer. Right at this moment, a robust figure scuttled out. Island Master Shang Wan, do you need to kill such a small fry yourself? He Yuliang finally arrived and immediately rushed toward Gu Mingzhou. As he spoke, He Yuliang's right hand turned into a claw and clawed at Gu Mingzhou. Lu Yuqing's right hand directly transformed into a giant bird claw, its sharp fingertips flickering with cold light. Gu Mingzhou did not have time to retreat. He immediately shook his long spear and stabbed it at the giant claw. Bang! Gu Mingzhou vomited blood and flew backward, landing heavily on the ground. I didn't expect you to be so weak. Is the prediction in the river of the dead true or false? He Yuliang questioned. I don't care if it's real or fake. I'd rather believe it than not. Before he could finish, the fat Wu Ji arrived. That's right. This kid is indeed strange. When I first saw him, he was still very weak, like an ant, but now he already has the strength to compete with us. The speed of his growth is too terrifying. Wei Lin also caught up and explained. On the other hand, Lu Yuqing, who had also caught up, did not speak either because he was afraid of the blood contract or for some other reason. He only looked coldly at Gu Mingzhou, who had fallen to the ground, and remained silent. Who cares? Let's kill him first to get rid of future trouble. Wu Ji Patriarch put two fingers on his right hand together and pointed at his temple. Buzz! A bright green glow instantly shot out, as fast as lightning and as fast as thunder, straight for Gu Mingzhou's chest. Old bastard. Get lost. Gu Mingzhou got up from the ground with a pale face and quickly stabbed the green glow with his long spear. Unfortunately, there was a difference in strength. His spear flew out of his hand, and Gu Mingzhou slid tens of meters away on the ground. Blood gushed out of Gu Mingzhou's mouth again. The long spear fell to the ground and stabbed diagonally beside him. Gu Mingzhou was extremely weak. He Yuliang had already injured him severely. In addition, the Wu Ji's attack had almost taken his life and broken many of his meridians, so he couldn't use any other moves. Actually, we also want to know why. Wu Ji Patriarch looked at Gu Mingzhou and approached him from the void. How can mere ants be able to kill us all? If it wasn't for the River of the Death's deduction, would have thought it was a joke. Are the deductions of the River of the Death not a joke? It's rare that the deduction of the river of the death is real. Gu Mingzhou clutched his chest and shouted loudly. You're so eloquent. It's better to believe it than not. No matter how you quibble, you can't escape the fate of death today. Wu Ji Patriarch floated down from the sky and stood in front of Gu Mingzhou. Island Master Sheng Wan, do you really believe in the so-called deduction of the river of the death? Gu Mingzhou no longer paid attention to the Wu Ji Patriarch turned his eyes to Shang Wan Fei. He knew that Shang Wan Fei was the leader and the most powerful cultivator among them. As long as he denied it, no one would say anything even if they were unwilling. It was a pity that Shang Wan Fei only shook his head slightly in the face of Gu Mingzhou's inquiry and did not say anything else. Hall Master Lu, do you also think so? There's still a blood contract between us. If I die, you can forget about living. After getting an answer from Shang Wan Fei, Gu Mingzhou turned to look at Lu Yucheng. The two of them had previously made an agreement. Presumably, due to the existence of the blood contract, Lu Yucheng should also appear to save him at this time. You signed a blood contract with this kid? Wu Ji Patriarch asked coldly. What contract? He even hid it from us. That's right. Hall Master Lu Yucheng, you actually signed a blood contract with this brat. It seems like you also want to betray the alliance and become our enemy. Wei Lin chided, continuing Wu Ji Patriarch's words. At the same time, he retreated to the side and stared cautiously at Lu Yuqing. Is what he said true? He Yo Yang's eyes flickered as he asked cautiously. A smile appeared on Gu Mingzhou's face. He had clearly directed all the spearheads on the field to Lu Yuqing. 
This way, Liu Yuqing would probably have no choice but to stand on his side. Ming Zhou is right. Before I invited him to join us, I signed a blood contract with him and promised to protect him. In the face of Gu Mingzhou's scolding and everyone's spearheads, Liu Yuqing cupped his hands and said to everyone. Chapter 285 So, you really want to be our enemy? A cold smile appeared on Wu Ji forefather's face. He didn't wait for Liu Yuqing to finish before cutting him off. Why are you in such a hurry? Wait for me to finish. Liu Yuqing explained with a smile. It was true that he had signed a blood contract with Gu Mingzhou, but he had done it for the jade key in his hand. After all, there were only eight jade keys at that time. Even with the array brought by island master Shangwan, the possibility of opening the ruins was less than 50%. Now that he had already entered, the jade key was naturally useless, so Liu Yuqing naturally would not stop him. He was also facing a calamity when I deduced in the river of the dead just now. Liu Yuqing paused and then continued. You. Gu Mingzhou directly interrupted He Youliang's words, hesitating to speak. This sudden change was originally hard for him to accept. But he didn't expect that the blood contract he thought was foolproof was actually something Liu Yuqing had planned to deceive him. In fact, when Liu Yuqing had signed the blood contract with Gu Mingzhou, he had already planned to enter the remains and kill Gu Mingzhou. As for agreeing to Gu Mingzhou's requests, he was so straightforward back then, probably because he already thought that Gu Mingzhou was going to die. A sense of powerlessness overwhelmed Gu Mingzhou, who was filled with anger, and he could not speak at all. Who do you think you are? Do you think you have the right to sit on equal footing and bargain with us? To tell you the truth, even without the deduction of the river of the dead, you won't be able to live for long. Faced with Gu Mingzhou's anger, he Yo Yang's face revealed a cold smile and disdain as he spoke eerily. Good, good, good. Gu Mingzhou was so angry that he laughed and said repeatedly. At this moment, he knew that there was no turning back. Regardless of the river of the dead incident, He Yu Yang and the others would not let him off. After thinking about all this, Gu Mingzhou smiled indifferently. Everyone is here. Today, I, Gu Mingzhou, swear that as long as I don't die today, I'll definitely kill you all in the future. But do you think you can keep me here just like that? As he spoke, he extended his right hand, and a transparent jade slipped the size of a palm flew out. It fell onto the endless light screen and instantly enveloped Gu Mingzhou. Not good. He's trying to escape. He Yu Yang hurriedly reminded the others and rushed towards Gu Mingzhou at the same time. Wei Lin and Liu Yucheng also rushed out with He Yu Yang. Even Sheng Wan Fei attacked almost at the same time as Gu Mingzhou's words. In an instant, true core strength shot out. The light swirled, and countless rays of light attacked Gu Mingzhou. You can't escape. Wu Ji Sex Patriarch, who was the closest to Gu Mingzhou, also reacted instantly. He mobilized his surging true core strength and slapped Gu Mingzhou's head. Just as the Wu Ji Patriarch's fierce palm wind was about to hit Gu Mingzhou, Gu Mingzhou smiled faintly. Gu Mingzhou disappeared in front of the Wu Ji Sex Patriarch. Not good. It's an instant talisman. Shang Wan Fei's expression changed as he rushed toward Gu Mingzhou. He turned around and flew toward the light cocoon that imprisoned Jing Wudao. Before Shang Wan Fei could reach the light cocoon, there was a flash of light, and the light cocoon, which had been suspended in the air, disappeared instantly. At the same time as the cocoon of light disappeared, the spears that were scattered on the ground also disappeared. Shang Wan Fei's attack was very fierce and fast. He arrived almost the moment the light cocoon disappeared. The ferocious palm directly smacked the void. The sharp wind from the palm caused the wind and clouds to retreat and the fog to disperse. But Shang Wan Fei was still one step too late. There was no one left in the void, and the light cocoon disappeared. You brat, you actually used an instant talisman. Wu Ji withdrew his hand and stared at the spot where the cocoon had disappeared. Others might not know about the transparent jade slip that Gu Mingzhou had used before he disappeared, but Patriarch Wu Ji was very clear about it. After all, it was something given to him by Wu Ji Patriarch. At that time, 
He had only thought of bribing Gu Mingzhou, but he did not expect that he would lose the rice instead of the chicken. Now, Gu Mingzhou had even used the instant talisman he had given him to escape from him. Naturally, he was furious. The instant talisman can teleport a thousand miles away in an instant. He's probably a thousand miles away from us now. If he escapes, I'm afraid there will be endless trouble in the future. Guan Fei stood with his palms suspended in the air as he looked back at the crowd. I should have directly killed him just now. If I had, all this wouldn't have happened. Lu Yuching sighed. This is going to be troublesome. If the deduction of the River of the Dead is true, then Wei Wei Lin was at a loss as he recalled the calamity he had deduced. Even if that's true, I don't believe that a mere saint cultivator can kill us all in such a short time. Wu Qi said in disdain. I don't believe it either. I've doubted the River of the Dead's prediction since the beginning. After all, everyone has only heard about it and no one has ever seen it for themselves. There's no need for everyone to take this matter to heart. Shang Guan Fei said. I agree with Island Master Shang Guan. What do you think? He Yu Yang said in agreement. I don't have any objections either. It'd be best if we were together. Lu Yuching said. I agree. I also agree. Wei Lin and Patriarch Wu Ji answered in succession. Although the crowd agreed with Shang Guan Fei on the surface, they were still a little afraid of Gu Mingzhou's escape. After all, everything they had experienced in the deduction of the River of the Dead was so real. As for whether it was true or not, they would more or less judge it in their hearts. But now, due to face or other reasons, no one was willing to admit it. A tacit understanding was perhaps what everyone was doing now. If that's the case, then let's go find the Bridge of Helplessness now. As long as we cross the bridge before that brat, we'll be able to catch a turtle in a jar and kill him in advance. He Yu Yang said gloomily after everyone had agreed. That's right. As long as we can cross the bridge of helplessness in advance, we can block him in front. In any case, the bronze gate of the ruins has already been sealed. He only has a jade key on him, so it's absolutely impossible for him to open it. Shang Guan Fei agreed. That may be true, but how do we know where the bridge of helplessness is? We can't just go in one direction and search along the river, right? Lu Yuching raised his doubts and asked. The river of the dead was 100 meters wide, and it was impossible to cross it. There was white mist all around, and visibility was extremely poor. They couldn't see the bridge at all. If he searched alone, he would probably need to spend a long time. After all, no one knew how long the river of the dead was. If the direction they were looking for happened to be in the opposite direction of the bridge of helplessness, they would waste even more time. Ha, huh, you don't have to worry about this problem. You only know that the Bridge of Helplessness is a bridge to cross people, but you don't know that it is actually the source of the River of the Dead. Shang Wan Fei burst into laughter upon hearing this. Chapter, 286 Oh. There's actually such a thing? Wu Ji Patriarch asked curiously. The River of Forgetfulness's Three Tribulations The River of Forgetfulness starts from naivety, but naivety returns to rebirth. The tribulations are intertwined, and there is a connection between them. Shang Wan Fei explained patiently. So it's actually very easy for us to find the bridge of helplessness. We just need to follow the direction of the flow of the water. Shang Wan Fei floated down from the air and came to the riverbank. He looked at the surging blood yellow river. The river flows from the west to the east, so the bridge of helplessness must be in the west. We just need to move up the north current to find the bridge of helplessness. Shang Wan Fei paused and continued. As expected, island master Shang Wan is really wise. Wu Ji Patriarch also walked to the river and gave him a thumbs up. Then what are we all waiting for? To prevent that stinky brat from getting there first. Lu Yuching urged. With my light cocoon around, if Gu Mingzhou wants to cross the bridge of helplessness, he'll have to abandon Jing Wudao and he might not be willing to abandon his companions. Shang Guan Fei said calmly. If that's the case, we need to hurry up. If we see him later, I'll imprison him in space and cut off the use of his instant talismans. Then, I'll kill this kid myself. 
Wu Qi said viciously. The next time I see that kid, I definitely can't let him go. He Yu Yang also chimed in. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go. Lu Yucheng was an impatient person, and he knew the right direction. Without any hesitation, he immediately took the lead and shot forward. Seeing this, Wu Ji Patriarch quickly chased after Lu Yucheng. Wei Lin and He Yu Yang followed closely behind, activating their origin power and flying up into the air. What an interesting fellow. I'd like to know how you're going to kill me, you dog. Sheng Wan Fei muttered to himself as he looked at the backs of the four people who were flying away quickly. Before he finished his words, he also jumped up and stepped into the void, quickly chasing after them. At the riverside, which was a thousand miles away from where they were flying. Gu Mingzhou, whose body was still extremely weak, was flying slowly with the light cocoon. Sheng Wan Fei and the Wu Ji Patriarch had guessed correctly. Gu Mingzhou had used the instant talisman the Wu Ji Patriarch had obtained at the last moment. He didn't expect that he would be able to save his life. He did not let his guard down after temporarily escaping from Sheng Wan Fei and the others. Right now, Gu Mingzhou has almost become the target of public criticism. In the ruins, which were not considered big, the only thing he could do was to leave this place as soon as possible. They could only enter the core of the ruins in advance. There was no other way. After all, with Gu Mingzhou's current cultivation, it was impossible for him to fight against Sheng Wan Fei and the other five powerhouses at the same time. Wei Lin, who had the weakest cultivation among them, could probably kill Gu Mingzhou easily. I have to leave the River of the Dead as soon as possible. Thinking of this, Gu Mingzhou became more and more nervous. However, his injuries were too heavy. Although he had temporarily escaped from danger with the instant talisman, he was already close to the end of his life. It was already a miracle that he could fly. He simply couldn't increase his speed. Fortunately, just as Gu Mingzhou was about to collapse, a flash of inspiration appeared in his mind. He thought of an important person and hurriedly called out. Master Qin, are you still alive? Master Qin. Didn't I already tell you? Don't disturb Master Qin's rest. Gu Mingzhou called out to her for a long time before his lazy voice came from her shoulder. You still have the mood to sleep. If you continue sleeping like this, we're all done for. Gu Mingzhou said unhappily. Bah! I've just woken up, and I'm hearing you talking nonsense. What a killjoy! Why did you call Master Qin for? Master Qin asked while yawning. Please open your eyes and look at the situation before you ask. Gu Mingzhou said helplessly. As soon as he finished speaking, he was completely out of energy. Finally, he couldn't hold on any longer. He staggered and fell with the light cocoon. Bang! Dust flew everywhere, and Gu Mingzhou created a deep pit. Even if you're unhappy with me, you don't have to hurt yourself, right? A purple glow suddenly flew out from Gu Mingzhou's right shoulder. Master Qin said as he floated above his head. You think I want to do this? Gu Mingzhou said weakly as he lay in the deep pit and weakly pulled the light cocoon. The current him didn't even have the energy to curse. You were fine just now. How did you become so weak in the blink of an eye? Master Qin flew around Gu Mingzhou curiously and asked in confusion. Stop talking nonsense. Aren't your healing methods quite powerful? Quickly help me heal. Otherwise, we'll all be dead when those people catch up. Gu Mingzhou used all his strength to shout. It seems that you've shed all pretenses of cordiality with that group of people. Master Qin, I, don't have to pretend to be mute anymore. Master Qin was inexplicably excited and kept talking. Even though he said that Master Qin did not stay idle. As he spun around Gu Mingzhou, he scattered a purple light. As the purple radiance descended, the void that was enveloped by the purple radiance started to tremble. The purple light did not cover a large area, just enough to accommodate Gu Mingzhou's entire body. After the purple light passed through the surrounding origin energy, it gradually became pure and gentle. It entered Gu Mingzhou's body and replenished his dried meridians. As the purple light enveloped Gu Mingzhou, a powerful life force instantly grew in his body. 
coupled with the crazy influx of pure elemental energy, Gu Mingzhou's serious injuries began to heal rapidly. In an instant, it was as good as new. Phew! It was so magical. Previously, you were only able to heal injuries, but now, you're actually able to recover origin power. Gu Mingzhou jumped up from the ground and exclaimed as he felt the surging elemental energy in his body. Back then, when I, Master Qin, was at my peak, I was an existence that ruled the world. Master Qin stopped the purple light and said arrogantly. I said you're great, and you really took it. Gu Mingzhou said helplessly. Are you doubting Master Qin? In the past Master Qin was immediately unwilling and started to complain. Stop. I was wrong, okay. Gu Mingzhou heard that Master Qin was about to reminisce about the past, so he quickly interrupted him and changed the topic. By the way, Master Qin, can you break this light cocoon? Gu Mingzhou pointed at the huge light cocoon not far away from him. The light cocoon was still emitting gentle white light, and there were also traces of golden light surrounding it. However, Gu Mingzhou was not in the mood to appreciate this beautiful light cocoon. He was attracted by the person imprisoned in the light cocoon and was even worried. Previously, Jing Wudao had used his cultivation to forcefully send Gu Mingzhou five kilometers away, wanting to let Gu Mingzhou escape alone. It was a pity that Gu Mingzhou didn't want the tragedy to happen again. Thus, when Jing Wudao's power disappeared, he immediately turned around and flew back. He saw Sheng Wan Fei release endless golden threads and imprison Jing Wudao in the light cocoon. This was why he still wanted to take the light cocoon away even though he knew even using the instant talisman would likely be discovered by Shang Wan Fei. After all, the person imprisoned in the cocoon of light was very important to Gu Mingzhou. Who do you think I am? I'm not a silkworm. How would I know how to break out of the cocoon? In the face of Gu Mingzhou's question, Master Qin seemed very unhappy and said with some dissatisfaction. Chapter 287 at the freezing cold sea. The sacred soul island. He Chuan focused on his cultivation. He finally knew why the people of the Godfiend race cultivated faster than ordinary people. Not only was the name of the technique passed down, but the spiritual energy here was also richer than that of the central plains, the great desert, or the grasslands. Even though the spiritual energy of the entire world had begun to recover, it was still far from being here. This was because the spiritual energy on the sacred soul island would also grow. He didn't know what had happened in the river of the dead or about the corpse flower that could peer into the future and help them avoid a crisis. Moreover, Shang Wan Fei and the others were quite powerful. If he knew what had happened in the alternate dimension, he would probably be more or less nervous. Now, even with the assistance of the system, his cultivation speed had become extremely slow. He had only reached the fourth level of the earth realm after taking all the supreme grade medicinal pills. Although this kind of strength was enough to do whatever he wanted in any part of the world, he wanted to be careful because he believed that there would always be more powerful experts. They cultivated in the dark and usually wouldn't appear in front of people. Unless a great opportunity appeared, this group of hidden experts would not come out at all. Moreover, the world was now reinvigorated with spiritual energy. While He Chuan was cultivating, others were also cultivating. He was not the only one who had improved. And the most important person was the legendary world god, Meng Ao's memories and the information Tong Dun Chanyu had received in the letter. They didn't know how strong a world god Pinnacle was. He had to be at least at the earth realm. And that young lord, Gu Mingzhou, seemed to be the chosen one as well. He was one of the earliest supremacies of the Godfiend race to play a game of chess. If Gu Mingzhou recovered his strength, wouldn't his strength be no weaker than that of the world god? All of them were unpredictable factors. He didn't know what the martial arts world in the central plains had become like now and whether someone had broken the shackles and become the first person in the mortal realm in the central plains. If there was, He Chuan still hoped that it was someone from the imperial court because this could ensure the stability of the Zhou dynasty. The real experts would not even bother with such a low-level dynasty. Otherwise, if those hidden sects had not left the central plains, it was hard to say whether the Zhou dynasty could be as it was now. No matter what, the most important thing was to continue to improve his strength. 
What He Chuan didn't know was that when he was in seclusion, saint cultivators kept popping up like spring bamboo shoots after the rain. It was much easier to break through in cultivation. It was as if the barrier to becoming a saint cultivator no longer existed. He remembered that in the past, anyone who could become a half-step saint cultivator would have some status in the martial arts world of the Central Plains. But now, he was no different from a ninth-level Xientian cultivator. Saint cultivator, the peak of the saint cultivator. Some people had even reached the mortal realm. Their numbers were also gradually increasing. The cultivators in the mortal realm discovered that a new world had opened up. This was because he had basically reached the end of his martial path. No matter how powerful a saint cultivator was, that was all he could do. However, cultivation was different because cultivation could draw the spiritual energy of heaven and earth for one's own use. From there, he could enter a higher level of cultivation. Whether it was his attacking methods or his cultivation methods, they had all become new. This made many experts extremely excited. They began to create cultivation techniques one after another, wanting to seize the opportunity. After becoming a warrior of the mortal realm, his lifespan would also be increased exponentially. It would not be a problem to live for another 300 years. Empress Chining recruited all kinds of suitable palace maids and eunuchs and sent them all to the space of the northern Shaolin Temple to cultivate. With the pills left behind by He Chuan, a large number of saint cultivators quickly emerged. Even Zhou Shui and Zhou Ming, this pair of children, had already broken through to the half-step saint cultivator realm, perhaps because they had inherited excellent genes. Kai Lian stayed in the library pavilion to cultivate, helping Empress Changming teach the two little guys. Her bulging belly was also becoming more and more obvious, and she was not far from her due date. At this moment, she missed He Chuan even more. Unknowingly, they had already been separated for several months. Lia was also close to her due date. Ever since the Xiongnu and Zhou dynasty signed various agreements, trade between the two countries became more and more frequent. The Zhou dynasty also followed the agreement and sent some officials from the Ministry of Agriculture to the grasslands to help them cultivate. The herdsmen who had lived in the grasslands for generations would never have thought that rice could be grown on their land, not just grass. A large river flowed along the Hollingall grassland. It was called the River of Food, and the best grasslands on the prairie grew on both sides of the river. In fact, it was not just the herdsmen. When the people of the Zhou dynasty came to the grasslands, the first impression in their minds was the wind blows the grass and sees the cattle and sheep. They did not expect that the fertile black land in the depths of the grasslands could also produce rice. With rice, everyone no longer had to starve in winter, no longer had to snatch food from neighboring countries every year, and no longer had to let the elderly go deep into the snowy mountains to fend for themselves. They were even more respectful to the new king, and their love for her was genuine and not an act. No one liked war. After all, when war broke out, the first to suffer would be the civilians. Not only did they want to recruit young people to serve on the front lines, but they also wanted to collect grain and supplies for the country to fight. In the past, when they couldn't even fill their stomachs, they had to collect grain to help the country. Although they didn't dare to say anything on the surface, they definitely had complaints in their hearts. Since ancient times, commoners rebelled only because they could not fill their stomachs. Otherwise, who would be willing to put their head on a bet and do such a dangerous thing? Lia was sitting in her bedroom, fiddling with all kinds of small clothes, all of which were prepared for the unborn child. Compared to the past, the childishness on her pretty face gradually disappeared, and the brilliance of her motherly nature was revealed. Baby, do you miss your father? She caressed her lower abdomen and thought of He Chuan's handsome face. Her beautiful eyes were filled with deep longing. It had only been a few months since they last met, but she felt as if many years had passed. It was as if they had not seen each other for many years. Perhaps this was what the people of the Central Plains meant by passing a day like a year. We pay our respects to our king. A personal maid appeared in the bedchamber and greeted her respectfully. Is the alternate dimension that my husband cultivated useful? Lia didn't even raise her head as she continued to stare at the small clothes in her hands. The spiritual energy inside is indeed more abundant. 
The Golden Saber King even especially left a formation to ensure that the spiritual energy inside doesn't leak out, which is very beneficial to our cultivation. Her personal maid answered truthfully. He Chuan took out the bronze fragment that he had left in the alternate dimension. Spiritual energy began to flow out uncontrollably, so he simply set up a spirit gathering array. Help the Xiong new people leave behind a place to cultivate. Liya laughed happily when she heard that He Chuan had helped to set up the spirit gathering array. This proved that this man still had her in his heart, but she knew that He Chuan was not good at expressing himself. Whether it was Empress Changning, the palace maid Kai Lian, or herself, he had never expressed his love. They had basically been passively accepting his love. Send more people who can pass the message in to cultivate and try to break through to the mortal realm one day. The Xiongnu tribe must at least have the ability to protect itself. Liya did not forget about the proper business. The entire world was changing, and Xiongnu could not fall behind. Chapter 288 The Imperial Court of the Great Zhou Dynasty was the first to announce that an expert from the palace had broken through to the mortal realm. This also meant that the Imperial Court had once again established the foundation for hegemony. The entire sky above the capital was filled with strange phenomena. The vibration of the spiritual energy caused the area within a hundred miles to tremble. After this news spread, not only was the entire martial arts world shocked, but the world was also shocked. Of course, this was only on the surface. The hidden masters, other than He Chuan, had already reached the mortal realm. However, this kind of thing that was out in the open excited everyone the most. This was because it represented hope. It represented that everyone could reach this threshold. Cultivation was no longer a legend, and the mortal realm was no longer an unattainable barrier. This shocked all the cultivators in the world. Everyone put even more effort into their cultivation. Just two months later, Zhang Junbao, the leader of the Wudang sect, broke through into the northern Shaolin Temple's secret realm. He followed closely behind the imperial court and announced that he had become a powerhouse of the mortal realm. When he broke through, his sword will soar into the sky, and the clouds above the sky were scattered. It was as if it was going to break through the sky and shatter the void. No one knew exactly what was above the void, but the breakthrough was a fact. This caused many of the cultivators who were watching the northern Shaolin temple to fall into a state of shock, unable to recover for a long time. In the following period of time, the entire world was filled with the appearance of mortal realm cultivators. The Xiongnu people, the Great Desert, the Wilderness, and even the countries on the other side of the ocean also had cultivators of the mortal realm. However, even with the extreme prosperity of martial arts, one couldn't underestimate the danger of breaking through to the mortal realm from the saint cultivator. It was easy to become a saint cultivator from the half-step saint cultivator, but it was very difficult to break through to the mortal realm. Dozens of saint cultivators died when they broke through again. Cultivation was no longer a legend, and martial arts were still inferior. Entering cultivation also meant that a cultivator had to start building their foundation and lay a foundation for the future. There was a saying that was circulating now. Those who did not enter the foundation building stage were still ants. The various sects also began to study cultivation techniques. In the distant Uttarakuru, this place was known as the paradise of fierce beasts. A deathly silent snow-covered area. Vigorous, solemn, and always dull. White, always a cold white. It was as if nature had frozen the raging waves in this place, making them eternally still. Since the revival of spiritual energy, some birds and animals have also gained intelligence. They absorbed spiritual energy from the sun and moon and began to cultivate. They cultivated by instinct, so their speed was naturally slower than humans. However, a beast's body had the advantage of being the only one in the world. If the human and the beast were in the same realm, the beast could easily kill the human with its physical advantage. Therefore, humans were even more reluctant to set foot in this place. Not only was it desolate, but it was also filled with wild beasts and danger. Who would expect that the spiritual energy of the whole world would start to recover and that an expert of the mortal realm would appear in the central plains? The two of them stood at the edge of the forbidden zone, where no one dared to come. The square-faced man in black said in a low voice. The square-faced man's tone was very respectful. 
The young man beside him, wearing a brocade robe, had a beautiful face and sword-like eyebrows and only nodded slightly. The young man's body exuded an aura that looked down on the world. This world has been sealed for close to a thousand years. Now that the seal has been broken, it means the world god has appeared. I heard that there's also an incredible expert in the Zhou dynasty who killed Meng Ao of the god-fiend race a few years ago. The young man said nonchalantly, his hands behind his back as he looked at the wild beast in the distance. That should be right. The world god is related to this world. If he escapes, the recovery of the world's spiritual energy will not be a problem. The square-faced man analyzed. He he, an expert. Our goal this time is the world god and the nine prefectures cauldron. As long as we can find the nine prefectures cauldron, no one will dare to fight me. The young man didn't care about the legend of He Chuan at all. Even if he was at the peak of the mortal realm, he was no different from an ant in his eyes. Since the world god had escaped, the nine prefectures cauldrons were destined to be destroyed. Now, they needed to find the scattered fragments. The complete nine prefectures cauldron contained a huge secret. In the past, martial arts flourished in the central plains, and the number of cultivators was unknown. Later, because of the appearance of the nine prefectures cauldrons, all parties began to fight for it, which eventually led to the death of many mortal realm cultivators. The blood gathered into a river, and the world god appeared. As a last resort, the human experts joined forces and used the Nine Prefectures Cauldron to seal the world god. The matter of the Nine Prefectures Cauldrons had also become taboo. The various sects had destroyed all related information, so the stories of the cauldrons gradually disappeared in the long river of history. Empress Changning had also discovered the secret of the Nine Prefectures Cauldrons in the royal records, but at that time, she had thought it was just a legend. This was because no one had ever heard of the mortal realm before. In this world, even breaking through to the saint cultivator realm was difficult. Empress Changning only believed what was written in the book after He Chuan took out the fragment of the Nine Prefectures cauldron. However, this young man and the square-faced man seemed to know very well about the secret. It was clear that the two of them were not from the central plains. In fact, they knew even more details. The young man even knew the secret of the nine prefectures' cauldrons. At this moment, a ferocious tiger pounced at the two of them. It seemed to have the strength of a human saint cultivator. You reckless animal! After the square-faced man finished speaking, he disappeared from the spot. With a sharp wind sound, his palm directly hit the back of the tiger's head. Kaboom! The sound of a watermelon bursting rang out, and the tiger's head was instantly split into pieces. Blood splattered everywhere. There's no need to waste time with them. Let's go to the Zhou dynasty and take a look first. Let's see if we can find any information regarding the nine prefectures' cauldrons. The young man frowned at the splatter of blood. He was annoyed by it. The golden air shield rose up and blocked the blood. Then, he suddenly disappeared. If he wanted to improve his cultivation, he had to find the nine prefectures' cauldrons. This was because the competition there was equally intense. The competition between the various forces was continuous. If anyone wanted to become a true leader, they had to use their impeccable strength to speak. The square-faced man licked the blood on his hand, his eyes shining with excitement. Then, he disappeared. It was as if the two of them had never appeared. All that was left was a headless tiger's corpse in Atarakuru. The smell of blood quickly attracted other wild beasts here. Even if he was the king of beasts when he was alive, he would still be a corpse after death. The wild beasts all went forward and began to tear at the corpse of the former king of beasts. Whether it was the human world or the world of wild beasts, everything was like meat. The weak would never be able to stand out. If they wanted to survive, they had to keep getting stronger. Otherwise, they would be devoured by the strong. At that time, they would have no chance to resist. Chapter, 289 A long time passed. He Chuan, who was cultivating on the sacred soul island, suddenly opened his eyes. In an instant, the clouds in the sky changed, and a purple cloud of tribulation lightning floated above their heads. To cultivate against the heavens, one was destined to be punished by the heavens and be baptized by the heavenly tribulation. 
He Chuan was already at the sixth rank earth realm. If he wanted to advance again, he had to experience the baptism of lightning. Seeing that the purple clouds above his head were getting denser and about to form a bolt of powerful lightning, He Chuan immediately mobilized the spiritual energy in his body to form a protective barrier. Then, according to the system's reward, he quickly arranged a simple array. The lightning tribulation this time was too sudden, and there was only enough time for him to set up a small array. If he had enough time, he could set up the array in advance. However, this time, it also gave him a reminder. The next time he entered seclusion to break through, he should set up a formation to resist the lightning tribulation in advance. This was because he was no longer simply cultivating his own body. He was going against the heavens and starting the cultivation mode. If they weren't prepared, it would be easy for accidents to happen. Boom! 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 Silver lightning as thick as a tree streaked across the sky, illuminating the dark sky. When the first bolt of tribulation lightning struck the formation, the outermost layer of protection couldn't even last for two breaths and exploded. He Chuan was as steady as Mount Tai, and the lightning tribulation did not shake his state of mind. It was because he had enough confidence in himself. The materials used to set up the formation were not damaged. He injected spiritual energy into it again, and an even more dazzling light appeared. The protective shield once again enveloped He Chuan. Crack! The power of the second lightning tribulation was also stronger. It seemed to carry a force of 10,000 pounds as it struck the golden light again. Cracks began to spread across the protective barrier like a spider web, and the spiritual energy within the materials used to set up the formation gradually weakened. Then, the third lightning tribulation fell and hit the protective shield again. The protective shield shattered instantly and was blocked by He Chuan's protective barrier. The materials used to set up the formation turned into a fine powder and dissipated into the air. Then, the fourth, the fifth. After he resisted the eighth lightning tribulation, He Chuan's protective barrier energy disappeared, and the most powerful ninth lightning tribulation was already in front of him. The silver lightning was like a giant python, bearing its fangs and brandishing its claws as it wrapped around He Chuan. As the final lightning tribulation descended, a destructive presence filled the world. Within a hundred kilometers of the clouds, everyone could not move at all. It was more than ten times stronger than the first lightning tribulation. The terrifying power scared the nearby animals and made them faint. Countless birds, beasts, and fish were scared to death by the massive aura of the lightning tribulation. It was clear how terrifying this lightning tribulation was. The lightning tribulation with alternating black and white light dissipated. He Chuan sat in his original place, unscathed. The ground caved in, and the trees burned within a radius of dozens of miles. It was as if the end of the world had come. He Chuan slowly opened his eyes. In an instant it was as if countless bolts of lightning had flown out. With a simple wave of his hand, the flames on the burning trees were instantly extinguished. He waved his hand again, and the monstrous waves rolled and then rushed down like a storm, completely extinguishing the dark fire. This was what a cultivator was like. They could turn the clouds and rain with a wave of their hands and control the power of heaven and earth. After experiencing the lightning tribulation again, He Chuan's body became stronger. Ordinary swords and knives couldn't even leave a mark on him, let alone hurt him. Counting the time, Kai Lian and Lia's due date is also approaching. I'll go to the ancient alternate dimension after a while. He promised to accompany the two women in labor. A man must do what he said. He mobilized the spiritual energy in his body, stepped on the flying sword, and disappeared into a stream of light. Half an hour later. The powerhouses of the Godfiend clan on the sacred soul island were only relieved when they could no longer sense He Chuan's aura. After He Chuan had killed a few members of the divine Godfiend race with overwhelming power, the remaining people finally knew fear. For hundreds of years, the Godfiend race had believed that they were powerful and that ordinary martial artists were no match for them. However, he had never thought that He Chuan was an anomaly. He was ridiculously strong. They could only give up the sacred soul island. Now that this fiend had finally left, the remaining powerhouses of the Godfiend race could finally relax. Damn it, 
who said that humans outside of the freezing cold land are weak. That's right. I don't think that person is weaker than a world god. Even the acting island master might not be his match. TSK, I was thinking of going to the central plains to take a look at the local conditions and customs, but now I won't go even if you beat me to death. I have to hurry up and cultivate. The remaining god fiend experts came to a consensus not to go to the outside world for no reason. It was too dangerous. It would be better for them to stay on the sacred soul island and cultivate. He Chuan didn't know that his simple action would make the god fiend race not dare to spy on the central plains. He Chuan returned to the palace in less than half a day. Husband. When Empress Changning saw he had returned, she got up from her bed in pleasant surprise. She even thought that she was still asleep. She pinches her thigh unconfidently. The pain returned to her brain, proving that she was not dreaming. Kai Lian and Lia are about to give birth, so I specially came back to take a look. He Chuan walked up and held Empress Changning's soft hands as he spoke softly. Kai Lian and Lia are indeed about to give birth, but husband has changed a lot. You seem to be even younger. Empress Changning leaned into He Chuan's arms and carefully examined He Chuan's handsome face. It should be the effect of the lightning tribulation. I just wanted to tell you that you have to set up a defensive array when you break through in the future. Otherwise, when the lightning tribulation strikes, it's very likely that you'll die. He Chuan caressed Empress Changning's hair. Although he didn't feel much for her, he didn't want anything to happen to these three women. After all, they had already done it. Lightning Tribulation Is it the legendary heavenly tribulation that the cultivator has to go through? Is it very terrifying? Empress Changning asked with some worry. She could imagine what kind of difficulties He Chuan had gone through. That could be said to be the legendary heavenly tribulation, and its power was probably not inferior to the attack of an expert at the low extreme realm. Most importantly, the man she loved seemed to be fine. How powerful was he exactly? Every time, she felt that she had understood He Chuan enough, but every time, she would be refreshed. That's right. It's the heavenly tribulation that cultivators have to go through. The heavenly tribulation that falls following the number of multiples of nine is completely different from the previous heavenly tribulations. It's also more powerful. He Chuan did not hide anything from his woman. Moreover, this wasn't a big secret. As for the safety issue, he didn't think it was a big deal. Since ancient times, there had been no place that wasn't dangerous when undergoing lightning tribulations. They would have to experience it in the future, so there was no harm in knowing in advance. All right, Kai Lian and Lia are still waiting for you. Hurry up and go see them. Empress Changning was not a jealous person. She knew that the other two women also needed He Chuan's comfort. And they were still in the stage of labor. He Chuan didn't try to be pretentious. He kissed Empress Changning's forehead and then disappeared. Chapter 290 In the Ancient Dimension Gu Mingzhou walked back and forth around the light cocoon. Even you can't break it. He said in disappointment. He had already used all his strength to try using the spear, but unfortunately, he couldn't even hurt the hair of the light cocoon. He couldn't break it at all. Now, if Master Qin couldn't break it, no one around Gu Mingzhou could help. It's just a simple seal. If it was in the past, I could easily break it with a breath. Now that I'm seriously injured, and my cultivation has declined, I can't do anything about it. Master Qin explained as his palm-sized body circled the huge light cocoon. That's not right. This light cocoon is so weak. Don't you have a spiritual sense in your body? Let him out, and we'll be able to break it immediately. After circling the light cocoon a few times, Master Qin seemed to have discovered something. He flew back to Gu Mingzhou's side and asked. The spiritual sense is imprisoned in the light cocoon. Gu Mingzhou rolled his eyes at Master Qin and said, somewhat speechless. If Jing Wudao could come out, he wouldn't have to worry about breaking the light cocoon. That spiritual sense is imprisoned in the light cocoon. Hee <laughs> hee, interesting. Upon hearing this, Master Qin was overjoyed. Once again, he activated his palm-sized body and started to spin around the light cocoon. Aren't you talking nonsense? 
If Brother Wu Dao weren't injured, he wouldn't have been imprisoned inside. Gu Mingzhou was even more speechless. But before he could finish his sentence, he seemed to have caught on to something. She quickly walked to the light cocoon and grabbed Master Qin, who was still spinning. Master Qin. Quickly help Brother Wu Dao heal his injuries. As long as he can recover, he might be able to break the seal by himself. Io, FCK, let me go. Are you trying to kill Master Qin? Master Qin's tiny body immediately scurried around in Gu Mingzhou's palm and he shouted in a panic. I'm sorry, I'm too excited. Quickly help heal Brother Wu Dao. Gu Mingzhou quickly let go of Master Qin and apologized. What's the rush? Let me observe first and see if this light cocoon can be penetrated. Master Qin said unhappily. At the same time, he broke free from Gu Mingzhou's restraints and flew up again, spinning around the cocoon of light. Master Qin, what are you doing? Hurry up and save him. Gu Mingzhou said anxiously when he saw that Master Qin was only circling around the light cocoon and did not release the magical purple glow. Don't worry. I'll do it. But let me make this clear. I can't guarantee that I can penetrate this thing. Master Qin's body, which was spinning around the light cocoon, instantly scattered down rays of purple light. This time, it was not the void that was trembling but the huge light cocoon. It was as if the surrounding spiritual energy was pouring in and the light cocoon was unable to withstand it. The entire cocoon began to shake, and it was getting more and more intense. Io. There's no need to be in such a hurry. Master Qin was shocked when he saw this. As he shouted, he immediately shot away. Gu Mingzhou didn't know why Master Qin suddenly ran away. He was about to speak when his heart suddenly throbbed. He immediately swallowed the words on the tip of his tongue and instantly retreated tens of meters away. The moment he retreated, the light cocoon that was shaking violently exploded. Boom! Although the sound wasn't deafening, it was still quite harsh. Light burst forth, and golden threads flowed. A red figure emerged from the exploding light cocoon, holding a sharp sword and soaring into the clouds. Brother Wu Dao. Gu Mingzhou immediately smiled and shouted in surprise. Gu Mingzhou, what are you doing here? Jing Wu Dao jumped down from the sky. Do you still need to ask? If he's not here, how can you come out? Without waiting for Gu Mingzhou's reply, Master Qin, who had been running away in a hurry, flew back. It's you. Did you give me that life force just now? Jing Wu Dao looked at Master Qin with surprise on his face. Nonsense. Other than Master Qin, who else has such a skill? Master Qin flew back to Gu Mingzhou's shoulder and said arrogantly. So, you were the one who helped break the seal of Wu Ji sect outside the forest? Jing Wu Dao immediately asked. I only did this because of Mingzhou. Otherwise, I wouldn't have bothered with you. Master Qin was very arrogant as if he didn't like Jing Wu Dao. Didn't you just say that you were asking me for help? Gu Mingzhou directly exposed Master Qin at an inappropriate time. No matter what, we should thank Senior for saving our lives. Please accept my bow. Jing Wu Dao didn't mind. Instead, he respectfully bowed to Master Qin, who was on Gu Mingzhou's shoulder. Forget it. What Senior? Just call me Master Qin. Master Qin said shamelessly. You're pushing it. If I didn't use the instant talisman, I'm afraid you would have become a corpse by now. Gu Mingzhou could not stand Master Qin's arrogance and said ruthlessly. You little brat. You were the one who told me to speak less. Besides, wasn't I sleeping when the incident happened? Do you know that Venerable Sovereign's Master Qin suddenly stopped before he could finish his sentence? He seemed to have recalled something. Do you think you can make Venerable Sovereigns bow down to you? Gu Mingzhou instantly caught hold of something and took the opportunity to ridicule Master Qin. I can't be bothered with you. Master Qin gave in, which was a rare sight. He shrank into Gu Mingzhou's neck and stopped talking. Gu Mingzhou finally gained the upper hand and was prepared to continue mocking Master Qin. You used the instant talisman to escape from Shang Wan Fei and the others? Jing Wu Dao interrupted Gu Mingzhou, who was about to press on with his victory and asked. Yeah. 
I've traveled a thousand miles in an instant. They're probably still wondering how I disappeared. Gu Mingzhou did not know that Sheng Fei had already know his position when he used the instant talisman. He even forgot the instant talisman in his hand was also there. The original owner of the talisman, Wu Ji Patriarch, was also there. With Sheng Fei's knowledge, I'm afraid he can recognize that you're using an instant talisman. Maybe they're on their way now, Jing Wudao turned around and looked behind him. It can't be. Gu Mingzhou immediately became a little nervous. His good mood from just now when he was fooling around with Master Qin instantly disappeared. I can even feel their presence getting closer. We have to leave this place as soon as possible. Jing Wudao retracted his gaze and said. Without waiting for Gu Mingzhou to object, he reached out and pulled Gu Mingzhou up. Where are we going now? Gu Mingzhou allowed Jing Wudao to carry him as he asked in confusion. Since we can't get out for the time being, let's just walk to the end. Let's go to the Bridge of Helplessness. Jing Wudao explained as he flew forward with Gu Mingzhou. The Bridge of Helplessness? You mean the second one? Gu Mingzhou remembered Shang Wan Fei's explanation. The second catastrophe seemed to be the so-called Bridge of Helplessness. It's right ahead. Jing Wudao pointed forward and chuckled. Gu Mingzhou quickly turned his head and looked ahead. Less than 500 meters away from them, a huge black shadow loomed above the river that was filled with white fog. Chapter 291 The huge arch bridge was made of gray stone and was extremely wide. It stood above the river that was filled with white fog. No matter how turbulent the waves below it were, it did not move. It was very magnificent. This is the bridge of helplessness. Gu Mingzhou looked at the arch bridge curiously and asked. He had placed all his attention on the light cocoon imprisoning Jing Wudao, so he didn't notice that the wide arch bridge was not far from him. That's right. This is the bridge of helplessness. Your luck is extremely good to actually come to the side of the bridge of helplessness by accident. As Jing Wudao spoke, he had already reached the side of the Bridge of Helplessness and floated down from the sky with Gu Mingzhou. I had no choice. I could only take the risk and rush to the west to take you away, Gu Mingzhou scratched his head and said. You don't have to be humble. Since ancient times, all young talents have been blessed with great luck. Even though they have suffered, you are the perfect interpretation of this. Jing Wudao laughed. Gu Mingzhou smiled shyly. Jing Wudao's words made sense. After all, ever since Gu Mingzhou's parents met with an accident, although Gu Mingzhou's luck couldn't be said to be very good, he had always had people helping him along the way. Even when Gu Mingzhou faced a life and death crisis, a mysterious master like Zhou Yuanba suddenly appeared. Before knowing anything about the situation, he was willing to exchange his life for his. Another example was the mysterious master Qin, although he didn't know why he was sticking to him. He felt Master Qin was still hiding something, which made him feel a little uncomfortable. However, his luck was still pretty good. We'd better enter the Bridge of Helplessness as soon as possible in case Shang Wan Fei and the others catch up. Jing Wudao changed the topic and pointed at the wide arch bridge in front of him. The first tribulation was to predict the future, which let them prevent it from happening. The Bridge of Helplessness is for reliving the past and experiencing life. Reliving the past and experiencing life? Gu Mingzhou frowned and asked. Actually, many people would have doubts after seeing the three tribulations of the River of Forgetfulness. Jing Wudao explained. The three tribulations of the River of Forgetfulness were not simple tribulations but tribulations with both advantages and disadvantages. It was similar to the Lightning Tribulation. When cultivators went through it, they would only discover the advantages and ignore the disadvantages. The three tribulations of the river of forgetfulness had more disadvantages than advantages. In other words, the danger of the tribulation power of the river of forgetfulness was actually far greater than the benefits one could obtain. Because in the three tribulations of the river of forgetfulness, there were only two paths to take. One was to sink into oblivion, and the other was to survive safely. There was no other way. When you were going through the tribulation of the river of forgetfulness, if I didn't remind you in time, you would probably still be lost in it, right? 
Jing Wudao stopped at the end of the arch bridge and turned back to look at Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou did not answer but nodded. Because Jing Wudao was right. Previously, Gu Mingzhou had been deeply trapped in darkness during his deduction in the river of forgetfulness. If Jing Wudao didn't remind him in time, he would have probably chosen to sink into the darkness and be unable to extricate himself. However, before he had time to think about it carefully, Shang Wan Fei and the others turned hostile. This caused him to forget about this matter temporarily. Now that it was mentioned again, he was shocked to find that he had escaped from death back then. The river of forgetfulness tribulation caused one to be lost in the illusion of the future. As for the calamity of helplessness, it would make you lose yourself in your memories. I know that there are some unfortunate things in your memories, but you must remember that the past is the past. Don't get too caught up in it. The bridge of helplessness targets the soul. Jing Wudao's expression suddenly turned serious as he stared at Gu Mingzhou and spoke seriously. Targeting the soul. In other words, to you Gu Mingzhou looked at Jing Wudao and asked in surprise. That's right, the river of forgetfulness tribulation is useless against me, but this bridge of helplessness is my nemesis. Jing Wudao retracted his gaze and turned to look at the wide bridge in front of him. Don't worry. I won't let you down. I still have many things to do. Gu Mingzhou lowered his head and thought for a moment. He looked at Jing Wudao with a determined gaze and said firmly. Don't be too nervous. Just stay calm. Follow behind me. Jing Wudao reached out and patted Gu Mingzhou's shoulder. Jing Wudao's feet tapped lightly, and like a fierce tiger descending a mountain, he instantly arrived at the arch bridge. The entire wide arch bridge trembled slightly, and the white mist that had filled the bridge became thicker. In the blink of an eye, it covered Jing Wudao's body. Brother Wudao. Gu Mingzhou looked at Jing Wudao, who had disappeared into the white fog, and stopped talking. In the end, a determined expression flashed across his face as he stepped onto the bridge. The moment he stepped on the bridge, the surrounding white fog quickly surged over, blocking Gu Mingzhou's vision in an instant. After a few breaths, the white fog slowly dispersed, allowing Gu Mingzhou to regain his vision. However, when he looked at his surroundings, the scene had already changed greatly. The wide bridge had disappeared, and in its place were endless green mountains, flowing streams, and running wild beasts. In the sky, there were white clouds and eagles soaring. It was a peaceful scene. He did not have the time to be surprised as he was attracted by the black hole not far in front of him. He walked forward in confusion. Just as Gu Mingzhou approached the black hole, he heard a sharp sound of something breaking through the air behind him. The incomparably sharp arrow flickered with a bone-piercing cold light as it charged over. It was extremely fast. With a flash of white light, it instantly arrived beside Gu Mingzhou and attacked the back of his head. Gu Mingzhou sensed the situation behind him. He circulated his true core strength in his right hand and grabbed at his back. It caught the sharp arrow without any deviation. Crack. He then turned around and threw the arrow on the ground. He did not feel any elemental energy from the arrow, so he guessed that the person who shot it was not a cultivator. Although he was filled with doubts, he did not immediately counterattack. Instead, he looked at the source of the arrow. Several figures darted out from the forest behind them. They were probably a group of hunters. They were wearing robes made of animal skin, with scimitars at their waists, quiver on their backs, and bows in their hands. The moment they appeared, they drew their bows and aimed their arrows at Gu Mingzhou. Who are you? Among the group of hunters, a strong young man stood at the front. He seemed to be the leader. He pointed his bow at Gu Mingzhou and shouted softly. When Gu Mingzhou saw the young man speak, he was stunned. A gust of wind suddenly blew over, causing the fallen leaves to rustle. Gu Mingzhou's eyes could not help but turn slightly red. Father. Gu Mingzhou's lips trembled as he let out a soft cry. His tone was filled with disbelief, surprise, and indescribable excitement. Once upon a time, this dark but determined face would often appear in Gu Mingzhou's mind. Gu Mingzhou had seen with his own eyes that this face had aged from young, from unswerving determination to vicissitudes of life, and had been through many hardships. 
It poured into Gu Mingzhou's heart in an instant, and he could no longer control his reddened eyes. Crystal tears rolled down his face. Chapter 292 Gu Hai He was an ordinary hunter in the countryside of the Zhou dynasty. A good husband who did not fight for fame or profit, a good father who did not drag his son down and was willing to commit suicide. This young man looked exactly like Gu Mingzhou's father. He was the Gu Hai from Gu Mingzhou's memory when he was young. However, in the face of Gu Mingzhou's sudden tears, the hunters who were standing proudly with their bows in hand were instantly confused. They looked at each other, not knowing what to do. Big Brother Hai, you're good. When did you get such a big son behind sister-in-law's back? A young hunter asked in surprise. Stop talking nonsense. Gu Hai pushed the little hunter away and took two steps forward. Little brother, who are you? Gu Hai's face was filled with suspicion. He subconsciously put down the bow and arrow in his hand and shouted at Gu Mingzhou. However, his voice was much gentler than before. Father. Gu Mingzhou's voice became a little hoarse, and hot tear rolled down his face. He staggered toward the middle-aged man. Don't come over. Gu Hai had just put down his bow and arrow, but he was now knocking them again. He pointed at Gu Mingzhou from a distance and shouted with some difficulty. I'm Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou thought that he had frightened the other party. He reached out to wipe the tears from the corners of his eyes and explained with red eyes. You look like you're in your early twenties, right? Big Brother Hai is only in his twenties. How could he have a son as old as you? Did he get married right after he was born? Behind Gu Hai, the young hunter put down his bow and arrow and joked. Brother Duan Yu, you're wrong. Brother Hai is a famous hunk in our town. Maybe when he was young before Duan Yu could finish his sentence, the other hunters continued to tease him, causing everyone to burst into laughter. What nonsense are you guys talking about? Gu Hai shouted coldly. Everyone was so frightened that they quickly kept quiet and did not dare to laugh again. No matter who you are, this is our town's temporary stronghold to store our prey. We don't welcome outsiders. You can go. Gu Hai stopped everyone and turned back to look at Gu Mingzhou. But, Father Gu Mingzhou was a little dazed. He quickly reached out to wipe his tears and called out anxiously. I say, little brother, you can eat the wrong medicine, but don't say things that you can't. My son is only two years old, and I really like him. I don't need you to replace him. Gu Hai immediately interrupted Gu Mingzhou. Don't you feel ashamed? You call everyone father. The young hunter who had spoken earlier held his bow and said with a cold smile. Old sixth Gu, that's not right. Maybe he just likes to call people that. Duan Yu walked over to the young hunter, sixth Gu, and joked. How old are you guys? Why do you still act like an insensible child? Gu Hai glared at Duan Yu and scolded them. He he, I was just joking. I was wrong. Duan Yu saw that Gu Hai was angry and quickly apologized. You only know how to be glib and not do your proper work. Why didn't you put in so much effort when we were hunting just now? Gu Hai scolded Duan Yu again. Little brother, you should leave my town doesn't welcome outsiders. Looking at the group of people in front of him, Gu Mingzhou, who was sad and excited, could not help but be completely stunned. He did not hear what the young man said at all. What's going on? Why doesn't father recognize me? And Uncle Duan Yu and the others. Where did the problem lie? Gu Mingzhou kept thinking in his heart. He kept feeling that something was wrong. It was as if something was missing, and the answer was right in front of him. He only needed to reach out and touch it, but he couldn't touch it no matter what. Are you alright? Little brother? Just as Gu Mingzhou was in a dilemma. Gu Hai's voice rang out again, instantly pulling him out of his thoughts. Ah, uh, I'm fine. Gu Mingzhou waved his hand and said. He looked at the young man, who was both familiar and unfamiliar, and he immediately panicked. He quickly retracted his gaze and lowered his head. What are you doing here? Why aren't you leaving? Duan Yu immediately said. I'll leave now. Gu Mingzhou quickly nodded and replied, 
then turned to leave. Little brother, wait a moment. He had just taken two steps when Gu Hai called out to him from behind. Gu Hai threw the bow and arrow in his hand to the side and turned around to pull the bag from Duan Yu's shoulder. He took out two large flatbreads and threw the package back to Duan Yu. Brother Hai, this is sister in law Duan Yu immediately understood the young man's intention and hurriedly shouted. Shut up and mind your own business. Gu Hai took two large flatbreads and quickly walked to Gu Mingzhou's side, stuffing the pancakes into his hands. Hurry up and take it. There are more bandits in the vicinity. Finish eating and leave this place. After Gu Hai finished speaking, he turned around and was about to leave. Wait a moment. Gu Mingzhou looked at the two flatbreads in his hands and quickly called out to Gu Hai. What's wrong? Is there anything else? Gu Hai turned around and asked suspiciously. I want to know how old you are this year. Gu Mingzhou asked. He had not figured out what was going on. However, he felt that this question was very important to him. I'm just 23 years old this year. Finish the bread and leave this place. Gu Hai reached out and patted Gu Mingzhou's shoulder. Could it be 20 years ago? The two flatbreads in Gu Mingzhou's hands fell to the ground. What's wrong with you? Gu Hai instantly noticed Gu Mingzhou's abnormality. He quickly reached out and caught the two pieces of flatbread that were about to fall to the ground. He stuffed the two pancakes back into Gu Mingzhou's hands. You're really called Gu Hai. Gu Mingzhou turned his head stiffly and asked timidly. I'll never change my surname. Did you get the wrong person? I just got married two years ago. My son was born last year, and today is his second birthday. Gu Hai's face was filled with a happy smile. After saying that, he turned around and walked toward the hunters. Gu Mingzhou seemed to have suddenly thought of something. At this moment, a figure suddenly appeared from the front. Not good. That bandit has killed his way into the town. The town is in danger. Gu Mingzhou's expression turned cold, and instantly disappeared from everyone's sight. This. Sixth Gu rubbed his eyes in disbelief, unable to even speak. It wasn't just little Gu. The hunters around him were equally frightened, rubbing their eyes as if they had just seen a ghost. In this group of people's world, even a ninth-rank Xientian cultivator was rare, let alone an expert like Gu Mingzhou. They didn't even know what realm Gu Mingzhou was in. Gu Mingzhou did not care about these things. Although he had many doubts in his heart, he still had important things to do. It was a place that he would never forget, even in death. The town was no longer just a simple home. It had already been upgraded to the level of a home. When one's family is in trouble, one can't refuse. Moreover, there were still some people in the town. Whoosh! Gu Mingzhou's speed was very fast. He temporarily put aside his doubts and used all his strength to increase his speed to the limit. In the blink of an eye, he overtook Gu Hai and Duan Yu, who had rushed to the town ahead of time. Gu Mingzhou knew the way to the small town very well. He did not need to ask anyone and easily arrived at the small town. The bandits had come from the main road in the north of the town and had already killed their way into the outskirts of the town. For a moment, they were full of momentum, and their shouts shook the sky. Chapter, 293 The current Qingyun town had already fallen and was in chaos. The neighing of horses, the crying of women and children were mixed together. In addition, there were also panicked villagers and horse bandits chasing after them with sharp blades in their hands. This caused the entire Qingyun town to be in a state of chaos. Whoosh! Gu Mingzhou entered the town without any hesitation. He did not immediately care about the unscrupulous horse bandits, but ran straight to the east of the town. Qingyun town was the most square-shaped town in all of the Green Sun City's territories. It was squarish, corresponding to the north, south, east, and west. And Gu Mingzhou's home, where Gu Hai and Lu Chui lived, was originally at the easternmost part of Qingyun town. Gu Mingzhou was very familiar with his home. He quickly found the farmyard at the east end of the town. The farmyard was still the same as Gu Mingzhou's childhood memories. It was very simple and crude. 
there were only four dilapidated houses that were surrounded. The high courtyard wall, which was originally made of mud, could no longer block Gu Mingzhou's vision. As soon as Gu Mingzhou approached the farmyard, he saw the stocky horse bandits carrying thick and wide machetes, kicking open the already dilapidated wooden door and rushing in. It was a voice that he was extremely familiar with. It was a voice that he had heard many times in his dreams. What are you guys doing? Hurry up and get lost. The woman's voice was accompanied by the continuous cries of a baby and the lecherous laughter of a man who was panting. Mother. Gu Mingzhou's eyes immediately turned red. He was not familiar with the other voices, but he could clearly remember the voice of the woman who screamed. It was the voice of his mother, Lu Chui. Gu Mingzhou's heart was filled with anger. His eyes were red and swollen, and he was filled with murderous intent. Everyone has their own Achilles heel, and they would definitely be angered if it was touched. With a strong killing intent, Gu Mingzhou directly chose to jump over the wall. The earth wall, which was half the height of a person, posed no hindrance to Gu Mingzhou at all. He easily jumped over it. After that, Gu Mingzhou rushed directly into the house in the farmyard. Stop! Gu Mingzhou did not even need to check the situation to know what had happened. The moment he rushed into the room, he let out a loud roar. In the room, the six bandits, who had just forced Lu Chui to the bed and were about to beat her, turned around at the same time. On the bed not far from Lu Chui's head, there was a crying two-year-old baby boy. The little guy looked at the horse bandit, who had subdued his mother in horror, tears rolling down his face. Where did this reckless guy come from? How dare he spoil our plans? The horse bandit standing by the bed sneered. As he spoke, he rushed in front of Gu Mingzhou. The broad machete in his hand was immediately raised and suddenly slashed down at Gu Mingzhou. Go to hell. Gu Mingzhou's face was gloomy. Just as the horse bandit's machete was about to hit his body, he immediately punched. Bang! Bang! Along with a muffled sound, blood splattered everywhere. The horse bandits were just ordinary martial artists. Without using his true core strength, Gu Mingzhou had pierced through the other party's abdomen with just his physical body. Eh! The brawny horse bandit's machete suddenly stopped in midair. With a look of disbelief on his face and his muscles twitching slightly, he opened his mouth as if he was about to say something. However, before he could say anything, blood gushed out of his mouth like a river. Gu Mingzhou did not hesitate at all and immediately retracted his fist. Plop! The horse bandit, who had his abdomen pierced through, immediately fell backward and died. Gu Mingzhou did not pay attention to the dead horse bandits. He retracted his fist, but he was still full of killing intent. Step by step, he walked toward the five horse bandits on the bed. You all deserve to die. The voice seemed to be squeezed out from Gu Mingzhou's teeth. It was sharp and cold. The temperature in the room dropped, and the horse bandits could not help but feel a cold wind behind them. They subconsciously let go of Lu Chui, who was struggling on the bed. There were even some who saw that the situation was not right. The moment they let go of Lu Chui, they suddenly jumped out of the bed and wanted to escape through the window. Gu Mingzhou, who was already enraged, naturally wouldn't let them leave. Just as the horse bandit rushed to the window and thought he was about to escape, Gu Mingzhou, who had been slowly approaching, suddenly disappeared and then reappeared in front of the window. He still did not use any spiritual energy, just the strength of his physical body. A whip-like kick suddenly kicked out. Swish. Boom. The horse bandit, whose face was still filled with joy from escaping, was suddenly sent flying backward and smashed into the stone wall of the farmyard. He then fell limply to the ground, bleeding from his seven orifices, and died on the spot. Ghost. Everyone, run. Suddenly, the four remaining horse bandits who had recovered from the shock immediately exclaimed. They gave up resisting and rushed out of the door, trying to escape. Gu Mingzhou retracted his right leg, but a strange smile suddenly appeared on his face. It was a sinister, terrifying, sinister, and bloody smile. It was like a hungry wolf seeing its prey or a poisonous snake finding its enemy. Don't even think about escaping. Gu Mingzhou's heart palpitated as he spoke, 
and his voice reached the ears of the horse bandits who were fleeing in fear. Immediately after, Gu Mingzhou was like lightning. In just two breaths, he left four afterimages in the air and then walked out of the crowd. Without looking at the horse bandits, he directly set his eyes on Lu Chui on the bed and slowly approached. The horse bandits, who had already reached the door, suddenly stopped and exploded. Pft. Pft. Four muffled sounds rang out. Blood mist filled the air, and pieces of flesh flew. At this moment, Gu Mingzhou was like a devil from hell, slowly walking out of the blood mist. Although his body was spotless, it still made people's hearts palpitate. Even Lu Chui, who had just escaped death, was shocked by this sudden change. She sat quietly on the bed and stared at Gu Mingzhou, who walked out of the blood mist. Wow! Suddenly, a baby's cry sounded in the room, causing Lu Chui to wake up instantly. She came back to her senses and quickly crawled to the baby boy's side. She reached out and held him in her arms as she comforted him softly, her eyes were fixed on Gu Mingzhou, who was gradually approaching. Her body was squeezed in the corner, trembling slightly. Mother, ah no, that are you alright? Gu Mingzhou was woken up by the crying. His monstrous killing intent gradually disappeared, and a kind smile appeared on his face. He looked at Lu Chui and asked in a hoarse voice. Although Lu Chui was much younger, Gu Mingzhou recognized her at a glance. She was his mother, Lu Chui, whom he had been thinking about day and night. To be precise, it was the young Lu Chui, the Lu Chui from twenty years ago. Therefore, after Gu Mingzhou subconsciously called out mother, he realized that something was wrong and immediately changed it. After all, Gu Mingzhou was only two years old twenty years ago. Lu Chui would naturally not recognize the current him. Don't come over. Lu Chui screamed in fear, and her body trembled even more violently. Don't be afraid. I don't have any ill intentions. I'm here to save you. Gu Mingzhou knew that his actions just now had frightened the young Lu Chui, so he quickly stopped to explain and comfort her. He even took the opportunity to take two steps back. Chapter 294 Who the hell are you? I don't know you. Lu Chui saw Gu Mingzhou retreat, and her fear instantly dissipated a little. Her violently trembling body also began to relax. As she spoke, she held her child and asked nervously. I Gu Mingzhou was about to mention his name, but he swallowed the words. The current Lu Chui didn't know him and was even full of fear. It wasn't suitable for her to introduce herself. My name is Qin Yang, and I'm from Qinyang City. Gu Mingzhou chose to hide it and appeared with a fake identity. You're from Qinyang City. Did the city lord send you to save us? The fake identity immediately made Lu Chui let down her guard and ask nervously. You could say it that way. Gu Mingzhou saw the desire in his mother's eyes and couldn't bear to refuse. That's great. We're saved, the Qinyun town is saved. Lu Chui seemed to be very excited. She had already walked out of her fear and was about to kneel down. Gu Mingzhou's right hand quickly formed a sword and pointed it out. His true energy immediately gushed out and instantly blocked Lu Chui's posture. Please don't do this. I can't stand it. Gu Mingzhou's eyes were red. Lu Chui knew that the other party had stopped her actions. At the same time, she also knew how powerful Gu Mingzhou was and did not dare to disobey him. She smiled awkwardly and quickly sat back on the bed. Gu Mingzhou didn't say anything more and just stared at Lu Chui quietly. He had forgotten how long it had been since he last saw his mother. He really wanted to look at her like this, quietly watching her, forever. Lu Chui's face turned red from Gu Mingzhou's stare. She was a little embarrassed, but she didn't dare to get angry. She could only sit awkwardly at the side with her child in her arms. The entire room seemed to have stopped. Suddenly, the baby boy in Lu Chui's arms started to cry again, breaking the scene that had just stopped. Good Zhou -er, mother is here. Lu Chui quickly hugged the baby boy and shook him slightly, comforting him. He's called Zhou -er. Gu Mingzhou looked at the baby boy in Lu Chui's arms with tears in his eyes and asked softly. That's right, Gu Mingzhou. When the child's father gave him the name, 
he said that he wanted him to be as kind as water, like a boat in the vast ocean, with endless life. Lu Chui explained as she coaxed the baby boy in her arms. I see. Can I look at him closer? Gu Mingzhou asked carefully. Ah Zhou'er? Lu Chui raised her head in surprise, but she met Gu Mingzhou's questioning gaze and quickly lowered her head again. Sure, but my Zhou'er is shy with strangers, don't scare him. I will be careful. Gu Mingzhou answered softly and excitedly. He quickly walked to the bed and looked at the baby boy in Lu Chui's arms. The baby boy's big watery eyes were still filled with tears, and his face was full of grievances. However, he was not afraid and looked straight at Gu Mingzhou. In the end, he even opened his mouth and laughed while drooling. Is this me when I was young? I'm quite cute. Gu Mingzhou thought to himself. He looked at the cute little Gu Mingzhou. His previous hostility was completely gone, and he was like a big boy. He also laughed along with little Gu Mingzhou. At this moment, an angry shout suddenly came from outside the house. Damn horse bandits, I'm going to skin you alive. Before he could finish his sentence, a figure dashed into the room, and a sharp arrow was shot at Gu Mingzhou's head. What? Gu Mingzhou's eyes narrowed slightly. Two beams of light shot out and instantly collided with the arrow. Bang! The incoming arrow was shattered in midair. It's you. Two surprised voices were heard at the same time. Gu Mingzhou looked at Gu Hai, who was still panting heavily and had a shocked expression. I was kind enough to give you the flatbread, but I didn't expect you to collude with the horse bandits. Gu Hai's anger surged, and he shouted coldly. He threw away the beast bow in his hand, raised his hand to pull out the machete at his waist, and rushed towards Gu Mingzhou. Don't be rash. Let me explain first Gu Mingzhou knew that Gu Hai had misunderstood and quickly waved his hands to explain. Explain what? You horse bandits who commit crimes everywhere, you all deserve to die. Gu Hai was obviously furious. He did not give Gu Mingzhou a chance to explain and interrupted him directly. He shouted angrily, and the machete in his hand quickly slashed down. The machete was extremely sharp. Although they were not as wide as the sabers in the horse bandit's hands, they were sharper. With a cold glint, they went straight for Gu Mingzhou's neck. Although Gu Mingzhou was not afraid of Gu Hai's attack, he did not dare to attack casually for fear of hurting Gu Hai. He dodged to the side and jumped off the bed. He passed by Gu Hai and landed at the door. Gu Hai would not give up so easily. He immediately turned around and stopped in front of the bed. He held his machete and was about to attack Gu Mingzhou again. Big Brother Hai, stop! Lu Chui, who was coaxing little Gu Mingzhou, finally came back to her senses and quickly shouted. Sister Chui, don't be afraid. As long as I'm here, no one will be able to hurt you too. Gu Hai's machete, which was about to swing down, suddenly stopped in mid-air and comforted her. Brother Hai, you've misunderstood. This little brother is here to help us. If he hadn't killed those horse bandits just now, I'm afraid I would have now, you actually, actually want to lay your hands on my and Zhou's benefactor. Lu Chui explained and suddenly choked. Wa wa little Gu Mingzhou seemed to feel his mother's sadness and started crying. I'll apologize to little brother right now. Gu Hai comforted her helplessly. I'm really sorry. It's all my fault for being old and blind. I almost hurt my benefactor. He hurriedly turned around and cupped his hands in greeting to Gu Mingzhou. Please don't do this. You're just worried. Gu Mingzhou appeared in front of Gu Hai in an instant and reached out to support Gu Hai's arms. No matter what, it's my fault. I apologize to you, little brother. Thank you for saving my wife and child. Thank you. Gu Hai stood up and said to Gu Mingzhou. You're too polite. Gu Mingzhou cupped his hands in return. Look at you. You only know how to hunt, hunt, and hunt. Do you know that if it wasn't for this little brother's timely appearance, I'm afraid you wouldn't have been able to see us mother and son again? Lu Chui wiped her tears and said angrily. It's all my fault. Sister Chui, don't cry. Look, this little brother has already forgiven me. 
Gu Hai sat on the edge of the bed awkwardly and begged for mercy. Hurry up and let little brother sit down. Lu Chui pointed at Gu Mingzhou and said. Quickly sit down, quickly sit down. Gu Hai quickly extended his hand and asked Gu Mingzhou to sit down. You two chat first. I need to go to the toilet. Gu Mingzhou turned around and walked out of the door. He suddenly felt the warmth of home again. Especially when he saw Gu Hai and Lu Chui's loving appearance. Although his parents didn't know him now, it was already the happiest thing to be able to see them again and reunite with them. Even if it was just a reunion in his memory. The reunion in memories. Gu Mingzhou, who had just walked out of his room, suddenly had a serious expression on his face. He looked up at the sky, and his eyes shot out two rays of light. Ever since he met the young Gu Hai, Gu Mingzhou felt that something was missing from his memory. And at this moment, he instantly caught the loophole. Chapter 295 The Reunion in His Memory Why was it in his memory? Previously, he didn't know. He only had a feeling, as if he had forgotten something. Now, he had come to a sudden realization. What he had forgotten were his memories, the memories of his parents, the memories that he had never wanted to think about but kept appearing in his dreams. A large number of memories rushed into his mind. In the past, there was joy and sorrow, joy and anger they all came to his mind, causing Gu Mingzhou's originally red eyes to shed tears unconsciously. He finally remembered everything that he had experienced in the past year. Is this the so-called going back to the past, tribulation of helplessness? Gu Mingzhou muttered to himself. He was a little unwilling, but he could only believe it. He remembered he was being chased by Su Fengyu, and Zhou Yuanba was the only one who allowed him to escape and enter the ancient battlefield ruins. He recalled the scene at the banks of the River of Forgetfulness, where he had used an instant talisman to escape with the imprisoned Jing Wudao when he faced the hostile Shang Wan Fei and the others. Of course, he also recalled the words Jing Wudao had said to him before he stepped onto the Bridge of Helplessness. Of the three tribulations of the River of Forgetfulness, the first tribulation is to predict the future so that you can take precautions before it happens. However, this one is to reminisce about the past and let you experience life. The River of Forgetfulness tribulation was an illusion of being lost in the future. As for the tribulation of helplessness, it was lost in memories. So this is what Jing Wudao meant when he was worried about getting lost in it. After thinking it through, a smile appeared on Gu Mingzhou's face. He finally knew why Jing Wudao had warned him repeatedly before he stepped onto the bridge of helplessness. The only people who could attract Gu Mingzhou here were his parents. Only when his parents appeared in the illusionary realm could Gu Mingzhou be lost. But unfortunately, the bridge of helplessness had its limits. It could only make him return to the past, but it could not change anything in his memory. This also caused the perfect illusion constructed by the Bridge of Helplessness to have two Gu Mingzhous, which became a loophole. The Bridge of Helplessness could not draw out an independent world based on a person's memory. Otherwise, he would probably be completely lost in it. So it's all fake. Good thing it's all fake. Gu Mingzhou muttered to himself. Seeing his parents again had a huge impact on Gu Mingzhou's state of mind. Fortunately, after walking out of the illusion, he naturally would not think about these things. Since it's an illusion, let me accompany you for two more days. Gu Mingzhou wiped away his tears and turned to look at the dilapidated house. He listened to the intimate conversation between Gu Hai and Lu Cii, as well as little Gu Mingzhou's faint murmurs. He knew that this was an illusion, so he could just leave. However, he was still unwilling to leave he wanted to spend more time with his parents, even if it was just a reunion in his memories. Perhaps this was the so-called the tree wants to be quiet, but the wind will not stop. The sun wants to be raised, but the family is not there. He wanted to stay in this illusionary realm for a longer period of time to reunite with his parents. Just as Gu Mingzhou was about to make a decision, he heard hurried footsteps. The black shadow suddenly jumped over the wall and landed in the courtyard. Uncle Duanyu. Gu Mingzhou called out in a low voice. The person who had suddenly climbed over the wall was Duanyu, who had rushed back. However, the current Duanyu was clearly in a much more sorry state compared to his previous high-spirited and unruly self. 
The other party's robe was tattered, his body was covered in blood and wounds, and he was holding a curved blade in an unkempt manner. It's you. What are you doing here? Duan Yu had also noticed Gu Mingzhou, and his eyes were filled with caution. Gu Mingzhou looked at Uncle Duan Yu, who had been educating him since he was young. He was about to explain when he was interrupted. So you're in cahoots with those horse bandits, aren't you? Duan Yu raised his saber and pointed it at Gu Mingzhou as he spoke with hatred. Duan Yu dragged his injured right leg and suddenly pounced at Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou dodged it easily and did not fight back. You still dare to tease me? Take my blade. Duan Yu's anger immediately rose, and he raised his saber, ready to attack again. Duan Yu, stop. Gu Hai quickly came out of the house and shouted to stop him. Brother Hai, you don't have to worry about this. I'll kill this pervert who's trying to harm sister-in-law today. Duan Yu shook his scimitar and said arrogantly. What perverted bandit? Don't talk nonsense. This little brother here is your sister-in-law's benefactor. Gu Hai pointed at Gu Mingzhou and said to Duan Yu angrily. Benefactor? Duan Yu was dumbfounded and didn't know what to do. If it wasn't for him, I'm afraid your sister-in-law would have been in deep trouble. Gu Hai explained. It's all my fault. I was blind and nearly wronged benefactor. Please don't blame me. Duan Yu was a quick-witted person and instantly reacted. He hurriedly bowed to Gu Mingzhou and apologized. I'm fine. Gu Mingzhou waved his hand and said. It's just a misunderstanding. Everyone, please don't take it to heart. Didn't I ask you to take the villagers to the cave to hide? Gu Hai tried to smooth things over. If Big Brother didn't mention this, I would have almost forgotten about it, but Duan Yu hurriedly explained. But what? Hurry up and tell me. Gu Hai saw Duan Yu's tone change and immediately urged. Although the villagers have evacuated, the horse bandits didn't leave they went to the place where we stored our prey. Duan Qiming and I intercepted them halfway and led all the horse bandits back to the town. Some of them are still trapped. Duan Yu quickly explained. Gu Hai's face turned ugly when he heard that the villagers were ambushed. What are you waiting for? Hurry up and save them. Gu Hai pulled Duan Yu and was about to walk out of the door. Just as Gu Mingzhou was about to call out to Gu Hai, there was suddenly the sound of noisy footsteps from outside the door. This way. I just saw him running in this direction. A loud shout rang out, accompanied by the sound of hurried footsteps, quickly approaching the house they were in. Terrible. It's the horse bandits who chased me here. Duan Yu quickly pulled Gu Hai and leaned against the corner of the wall, his tone apologetic. I don't blame you. What's going to come will come. Gu Hai pulled out the scimitar from his waist, cautiously staring at the door, and advised in a low voice. Although he was trying to persuade Duan Yu, it was obvious that Gu Hai's right hand, which was holding the machete, was trembling. Even if Gu Hai had the courage to fight against ten people alone, it would be difficult for him to stop hundreds of horse bandits. Both Duan Yu and Gu Hai were focused on the horse bandits chasing after them and completely ignored Gu Mingzhou, who was standing at the side. It seems like I still need to take action. Gu Mingzhou touched his nose and thought to himself. He immediately activated his spiritual energy and gathered it in his hands. He was about to jump out of the wall and quickly finish off the horse bandits. At this moment, a red glow seeped out of Gu Mingzhou's Dantian. Not good. Brother Wudao is in trouble. Gu Mingzhou was a little shocked. Jing Wudao was a spiritual sense, a precious soul body. Although he couldn't cultivate, his potential was endless, and could increase his strength according to his master's strength. It was a pity that Gu Mingzhou's strength wasn't enough to support Jing Wudao's soul body, so Jing Wudao had to rely on himself to absorb and accumulate all his cultivation. Otherwise, he would be like a mortal. However, the fact that Gu Mingzhou was Jing Wudao's master couldn't be changed. Chapter 296 This also meant that Jing Wudao would face the danger of his soul being destroyed if he were to leave a radius of 50 miles. And if Jing Wudao were in danger, his body would react. The red glow was not very bright. 
It was only slightly emitted from Gu Mingzhou's lower abdomen as if there was something emitting red light in his lower abdomen. It was not obvious, but he could instantly sense it. This was a reaction of Jing Wudao's own due to his weak vitality. However, Gu Mingzhou did not stop. Instead, he flew out of the courtyard even faster. He did not have much time left. Jing Wudao was in trouble, so he had to get out of the illusionary realm as soon as possible to rescue him. Although it was just an illusion, he would not leave Gu Hai and Lu Chui alone, and he would not ignore Kinjian Town. He had to get rid of everything in the shortest time possible and protect Kinjian town from any future troubles. He didn't hide anything anymore and fully displayed his cultivation as a peak saint cultivator. His spiritual energy surged, and he shuttled through the bandits outside the courtyard like a ghost. With a wave of his arms, he harvested lives. Blood spurted out and sprayed into the sky. Nearly a hundred bandits were all killed without even making a sound, their heads and bodies separated. Clean, neat, decisive, and fast. In the blink of an eye, corpses were strewn all over the ground, leaving only Gu Mingzhou's afterimage that gradually drifted away. Gu Hai, who was ready to fight, carefully poked his head out and opened his mouth in surprise. What happened? Duan Yu asked doubtfully. He quickly stuck his head out and was instantly stunned. The two of them were in disbelief. It's it's that little brother who did it. Gu Hai stuttered. Isn't little brother in the courtyard Duan Yu turned around with a suspicious look on his face. Just as he was about to point at Gu Mingzhou, he suddenly realized that the courtyard was already empty. There was no one there. He took care of these bandits in the blink of an eye and left without looking back. Gu Hai explained as he walked out of the door, suppressing his surprise. Isn't this too magical? Could it be that the kid is a deity? Duan Yu also came out and said as he looked at the corpses on the ground. He's not immortal. He should be a powerful saint cultivator. Gu Hai suddenly raised his head and looked towards the south of the town, where the villagers of Kinjian town were besieged. The dense trees there were shaking, and groups of birds rose into the air. As if they were frightened by something, they scattered in all directions. It seemed to be accompanied by a few screams. A saint cultivator. That little brother is a powerful saint cultivator. Duan Yu, who was bending over to examine the body, was stunned and asked. However, Gu Hai did not answer the question. Instead, he slowly retracted his gaze. Kinjian town is finally saved. He looked at Duan Yu with a smile. What? Duan Yu didn't quite understand and was about to ask. Gu Mingzhou appeared out of thin air and stood in the air. He lowered his head and looked at Gu Hai and Duan Yu. Thank you for your help, my lord. I thank you on behalf of the hundreds of villagers in Kinjian town. Gu Hai's reaction was extremely fast. He was not frightened by Gu Mingzhou's sudden appearance at all. He immediately cupped his hands and bowed. There's no need to thank me. Kinjian town is actually my home. I'm just doing something for my hometown. Gu Mingzhou couldn't help but feel a little emotional. The red glow on his abdomen became even brighter. He turned around and flew straight up to the top of the sky. The villagers of Qingyun town will remember this for all eternity. Gu Hai looked at Gu Mingzhou's back as he quickly disappeared and cupped his hands. There's no need to remember this. Just remember, in the future, don't let your son set foot on the path of cultivation. Gu Mingzhou's voice came from the sky and echoed in the empty Kinjian town. All right. Gu Hai immediately agreed. Big Brother Hai, did he just fly into the sky? Duan Yu cut him off very inappropriately as he looked at Gu Mingzhou, who disappeared into the sky. He's really familiar as if I've seen him before. Gu Hai quietly looked in the direction that Gu Mingzhou had disappeared in and muttered to himself. Gu Mingzhou, who had already traveled through the clouds, naturally could not hear Gu Hai's mumbling. He was worried about Jing Wudao's situation, so he pushed his speed to the limit and rushed into the clouds without any hesitation. The illusionary realm was different from the real world. If one flew too far away in the real world, one would be suppressed. However, the illusion was a fixed area. Gu Mingzhou did not know how to break through the illusion, 
so he could only fly out of the area covered by the illusion, reach the end, and break through the illusion. After all, the pressure in the illusionary realm could not be as terrifying as the real world. The Zhou Dynasty In the Imperial Library He Chuan was lying on the rocking chair with Zhou Shui in his arms from time to time, he would turn his head to look at Zhou Ming, who was reading. Kai Lian was sitting not far away, lazily basking in the sun and chatting with Lia, who had just been picked up. It looked like a quiet and peaceful scene. Zhou Ming looked enviously at his carefree sister, Zhou Shui. He also wanted to have such a childhood. But whether it was his mother or the ministers, they all wanted him to learn all kinds of knowledge. He still had to cultivate, and his schedule was very full every day. His small shoulders carried a very heavy burden. In fact, he was more curious about his father. When he was young, he didn't know how strong his father was. He also didn't know how strong the hero his mother talked about was. Until recently, when he witnessed the power of the White Tiger Grand Sage and the suffocating pressure of a million Xiongnu soldiers. However, in front of his father, they were easily destroyed. This was the first time Zhou Ming had witnessed his father's strength. From then on, he had a lofty image in his heart, but he didn't know how to express it. If you don't like studying, put it aside first. You can do what you like. He Chuan said softly. Ah not studying. Zhou Ming did not react in time. In his impression, studying was a natural thing. Furthermore, as the future successor of the Zhou dynasty, he should learn more. You should strike a balance between work and rest. Go play for a while and do what you like. Come back in the afternoon and study for two hours. He Chuan said, waving his hand. Of course, he knew that children needed to release their nature. He would never believe that they would just study. Just like Chengen in the past, it was precisely because the management was too strict that he did not see the outside world of sensual pleasures. This caused the desire in his heart to explode, and in the end, it was destroyed in the belly of a woman. He had heard that Chengen's life had entered a countdown due to his obsession with beauty and that the eldest son would inherit the throne. What was worth mentioning was that the eldest son was Fang Luqing's child. Noble consort Qin and Fang Luqing did not leave Chengen and followed him to their fief to enjoy life. Therefore, it was very important to strike a balance between work and rest. In the early stages, Zhou Ming had to release his nature so that his character would not be distorted. Many thanks, father. Zhou Ming revealed an excited smile. He did not expect that his father, who seemed to be high and mighty, would actually understand his thoughts the best. At this moment, Empress Changning arrived at the library pavilion. Husband knows how to be a good person. Ming Er is the future successor of the Zhou dynasty. How can he be playful? She sat down next to He Chuan and said to Zhou Ming who was jogging. You and Chengen used to visit the library quite often. You were even lazy when studying, and you still have the nerve to talk about Ming Er. He Chuan remembered that the two of them had come here to play in the name of studying. Because they knew He Chuan would not restrict them. Chapter 297 The situation was different at the time. I'm afraid no one would have thought that I would be able to sit on this dragon throne in the end. Empress Changning naturally knew that as the crown prince, Zhou Ming was very depressed, but this was something that he had to experience. Don't underestimate a child's rebellious heart. The more you don't let him do it, the more he will miss it. One day, when you can't control Ming Er, Cheng An's path back then will be a lesson for you. As a reincarnated person, He Chuan's vision in the aspect of managing children was much further than that of the ancient people. Zhou Ming's current situation could only be compared to his senior year in high school. It was fine to suppress it for a year or two, but after a long period of time, it would definitely cause problems in his character. When she heard her younger brother, Chengen, Empress Changning clearly froze for a moment. When he was young, Chengen had not been controlled like this, but in the end, a problem had still occurred. So she knew that He Chuan wasn't just trying to scare her. Putting herself in Zhou Ming's shoes, she would probably be unable to take it anymore. Husband even knows how to take care of children. No wonder Shui er is so close to you. Empress Changning looked at her daughter in He Chuan's arms with a bit of jealousy. 
As long as he Chuan was at home, the little fellow liked to pester him. It's not that I know how to take care of children. It's just that you, as the empress, don't have the time to take care of them. He Chuan looked at his well-behaved daughter and smiled. He Chuan had truly experienced the feeling of being connected by blood. Lia and Kai Lian also came over. They also wanted to know the things to take note of when raising children. At this moment, a powerful aura circled above the Zhou dynasty. It was the pressure of a powerful cultivator at the peak of the mortal realm. Like a violent hurricane, it swept through the entire capital. The heavens and the earth trembled. The sky was filled with dark clouds, and it was as if a huge mountain was pressing down. The capital that had been extremely lively just a moment ago instantly became silent. The commoners ran back to their houses, and the soldiers were on alert for the situation around them. Who is this? Don't you know the situation in the imperial court? Empress Changning was enjoying the time she had with He Chuan when she was suddenly interrupted by this inexplicable pressure. Her tone was obviously not very happy. It seems that after the revival of energies, hidden forces have emerged one after another. This man's power is already at the peak of the mortal realm, so he's probably not from the central plains. He Chuan didn't make a move. Instead, he let the pressure wreak havoc with an interesting smile. In any case, it was just a test and would not cause any harm. If He Chuan directly intervened, he was afraid the other party would be on guard. He wanted to see who this person was and what his purpose in coming to the Zhou dynasty was. In the martial arts world of the Central Plains, the mortal realm was no longer a legend, nor was it unattainable. The Zhou dynasty had already cultivated strong practitioners of the mortal realm. Imperial court expert, Shi Feng Lai. Some experts in the pugilistic world took the initiative to pledge their loyalty to the imperial court in order to fish for some benefits. Usually, they would cultivate in peace. When there was a real problem, they would help to solve it. This group of experts had been cultivating in a specially constructed area outside the imperial palace. When this pressure arrived, they all clearly felt it and immediately woke up from their cultivation. The power of the dark clouds made everyone's faces turn very ugly. Because their most powerful master was only at the third level of the mortal realm, and the gap between him and a master at the peak of the mortal realm was really big. One must share the Lord's worries when eating the Lord's fortune. Since they had become the distinguished guests of the imperial court, they could not turn a blind eye to the threat in the capital. However, they were also confident. Duke He was someone who could suppress the white tiger grand sage, Meng Ao. With him as their backing, everyone was confident. The capital of the Zhou dynasty is a sacred land under the feet of the emperor. What is the reason for your provocation? Shi Feng Lai circulated the spiritual energy in his body, and his voice pierced through the clouds as he loudly questioned. I'm Shen Changi from the Heavenly Sword sect. I'm here on the orders of my young master, Murong Qi, to seek advice from the powerhouses of the Zhou dynasty. The person who spoke was the man who had killed the hanging-eyed tiger in Atarakuru. The two invisible forces collided. This was a contest of aura belonging to the warriors of the mortal realm. Everyone in the great Zhou dynasty was paying close attention to the contest between the two. Pfft. Because of the difference in strength, Shi Feng Lai was still no match for his opponent. It was as if a heavy hammer had struck his chest, causing him to instantly spit out a mouthful of blood. The imperial court's expert, Shi Feng Lai, had been defeated in the clash of auras. This caused many people to feel apprehensive. Ever since He Chuan killed the White Tiger Grand Sage, Meng Ao, he had not encountered such a thing for many years. The Xiongnu army surrounded the capital, and the White Tiger Minister Meng Ao ordered the slaughter of everyone in the Zhou dynasty. That was their most desperate moment, and finally, He Chuan appeared and killed Meng Ao with a flip of his hand, wiping out the Xiongnu army. Now that they were in danger again, everyone believed that He Chuan would be able to solve the problem. It was just like a few years ago. Although Shi Feng Lai had lost, he was not afraid in his heart. He rose directly into the air and arrived in the sky above the Zhou dynasty. A powerful aura was released from his body. You have some ability. No wonder you dare to speak such arrogant words. Shen Chinese figure appeared in an instant, 
and he spoke disdainfully to Shi Feng Lai. Why did you come to the Zhou dynasty to cause trouble? Shi Feng Lia's body emitted a powerful aura, enveloping the capital below to prevent the commoners of the Zhou dynasty from being affected by the aura of these two people. I've said that I'll test the strength of the experts of the Zhou dynasty. Shen Changyi suddenly made his move, blasting it forward. A powerful aura swept over. The heavens and earth trembled as the terrifying attack pressed down on Shi Feng Lai. Behind Shi Feng Lai was Zhou dynasty. If he were unable to withstand the attack, then half of the buildings in the Zhou dynasty would be destroyed. Humph. You're looking for death. Shi Feng Lai did not expect Shen Changyi to be so indifferent to life, to the point that he did not care about the lives of the millions of people in the Zhou dynasty. If this move had been used against him alone, he might not have been so angry. However, now that it was going to destroy the entire Zhou dynasty, how could he accept this? Even a rabbit would bite when forced into a corner, not to mention a cultivator in the mortal realm. Break the mountain. Shi Feng Lai pulled out the three-foot-long Qin Feng sword from his waist. His entire being seemed to have fused with the sword. As the sword trembled, countless sword rays shot up into the sky. Hurry up! It was so fast that it was impossible to see how Shen Changyi had attacked. The sword light instantly tore Shen Changyi's attack apart, but the power of the sword light did not decrease. It continued to attack forward like a net that intertwined between heaven and earth, enveloping the opponent's entire body. It was as if it would crush the target in the next moment. You're overestimating yourself. Shen Changyi's expression didn't change. A scorching red flame rose from his palm, and the red flame was like a fiery lotus colliding with the sword ray. Boom! A deafening sound rang out. The sword energy was finally scattered by the scarlet flames, and the scattered flames hit Shi Feng Lia's chest. Cough! Shi Feng Lia's entire body was sent flying, and he coughed out a string of blood. He landed on the ground like plum blossoms. Fortunately, the power of Shen Changyi's attack was gradually fading, and it did not cause any damage to the capital. Chapter, 298 Dina Om The martial arts world of the Central Plains was indeed a place with crouching tigers and hidden dragons. If this group of people was given some more time, it was very likely that they would catch up. Although Shen Changyi felt that Shi Feng Lai was already sufficiently stunning, the expressions of the Zhou dynasty's experts changed greatly. They had not expected Shen Changyi to be so powerful. As one of the earliest cultivators to reach the mortal realm in the central plains, Shi Feng Lai had been seriously injured in one move. If they were the ones fighting, they would have become corpses. Just what was the other party doing to be so strong? He had never heard of it before. Could it be another hidden force? Otherwise, Shi Feng Lai would definitely not have lost. The Zhou dynasty was really full of disasters. Every once in a while, an expert would pop out of nowhere. But it's over. If you can't give this lord a surprise, then please die. Shen Changyi said. Like in the current situation, if Shi Feng Lai could not withstand the opponent's attack, the entire Zhou dynasty would be destined to disappear. It was not as simple as sparring. Moreover, this expert from the outer realms had no humanity at all. Killing people was as easy as drinking water. Shi Feng Lai gritted his teeth. He had broken through to the mortal realm because of the pill given by the imperial court. If he left now, not only would he be letting down Empress Changning, but he would also be letting down the great Zhou dynasty and the millions of citizens behind him. He had always believed that Duke he would make a move and that he was most likely testing him. You may leave. He Chuan's voice came slowly. Shi Feng Lia's face was filled with joy. He knew who this person was the moment he heard the voice. Fortunately, he had not run away just now. Oh. So there's a hidden expert. Shen Changyi looked at the person in the distance, his expression calm. He was not afraid of He Chuan at all. In his opinion, no one in the entire Central Plains was his match. No matter how many people came, they would not be a threat to him. Where did you come from? I'll leave your corpse intact if you tell me. He Chuan was very curious about his identity. He didn't know where the other party had come from, 
but he was sure the other party was definitely not from the Central Plains. This was because if the experts of the Central Plains made a move, they would definitely not harm the people of the Great Zhou Dynasty. So he was very curious. Now, various experts were constantly jumping out, such as the World God and the Young Master of Sacred Soul Island. There were also Shen Changyi and the Young Master behind him. If you want to know, go to Hell and ask the King of Hell. Shen Changyi revealed a disdainful expression. Since the other party dared to boast shamelessly, he would not say anything. Shen Changyi mobilized the spiritual energy in his body, and golden wings grew on his back, with purple lightning lingering on them. Like a python that was about to devour a person, he rushed madly toward He Chuan. The electric arc was shocking, and the power of thunder was astonishing. He was outraged. He wanted to humiliate He Chuan slowly. This was their race's innate ability. The wings behind his back could cause lightning and thunder to interweave together, and its divine might was astonishing. He Chuan moved horizontally in an instant, his fingers forming a sword that cuts through the void. His entire person appeared a thousand feet away in an instant. The place where he had been standing was flooded with a large amount of purple lightning crackling. You still want to run? Shen Chani's dignified face became a little twisted when he saw that his attack, which he was confident in, was missed. It was a great humiliation for him that He Chuan had dodged his attack. No one had never done such a thing. Even in their own race, not many people could dodge it. Mere humans. He still dared to challenge him, so Shen Chani must dismember him into a thousand pieces to relieve the hatred in his heart. To such a talented expert, they cared about their face the most. If their attack was dodged by a human from the Central Plains, it would be too embarrassing if word got out. A dragon's roar resounded, and a huge purple flood dragon appeared behind Shen Changyi. It coiled there like a black cloud carrying a storm. At the same time, a golden bow appeared in his hand. He drew the bow and knocked an arrow. This time, he used extremely powerful spiritual energy. Whoosh! The moment the bowstring was released, a dazzling golden arrow instantly shot out. The beam of light was dozens of meters long, like a shocking rainbow, sliding across the sky. He Chuan mobilized the spiritual energy in his body, which flowed in his flesh and turned into runes. His whole body seemed to have turned into a nine prefectures cauldron with a mysterious aura. The aura he emitted was astonishing. The nine prefectures cauldrons could attack and defend, and they were unpredictable. This was the ability that he had gained after absorbing the energy from the bronze fragment. The spiritual energy of heaven and earth continued to gather around He Chuan. The scarlet vermilion bird phantom swirled behind him as if it wanted to incinerate all the sins in the world. He had to defend and attack at the same time. The vermilion bird raised its head and flapped its wings. It flapped its crimson flames to block the golden arrows. However, this arrow was Shen Changyi's attack filled with hatred. It was a technique of the mortal realm, and its power was as destructive as rotten wood. It immediately tried to break apart the crimson flames. He Chuan's hands moved, and the vermilion bird in the air flapped its wings again. The scarlet flames turned into a shield, and the dense runes revealed an ancient symbol. Clang! The golden arrow flew over with unparalleled power and collided with the crimson flame shield. A buzzing sound rang out as it destroyed all obstacles in its way. The vermilion bird's flames dimmed slightly, and finally, a crack appeared on the crimson flame shield. The arrow pierced through the red flame shield and headed straight for He Chuan's chest without losing any power. A golden light rushed into the sky. A light rose around He Chuan, and two cauldrons of the nine prefectures seemed to be floating in his eyes. He didn't use any other precious techniques, and the spiritual energy within his body instantly began to boil. He continuously clapped his hands, turning the bad situation into advantageous. Vaguely, he seemed to have merged with the heavens and earth again. The two resonated with each other. He was like an ancient god, but fortunately, he displayed a magical power. He Chuan's hands kept moving, and it was as if the earth was shaking. The crimson light collided with the golden arrow, causing it to shake and then shatter. The golden aura spread across the sky and wreaked havoc in the world. How is that possible? 
Shen Changyi was shocked. This time, he didn't hold back and was really going for a kill. This was his full power attack. It didn't work. What kind of person was he Chuan? How could he block his attack? Shen Changyi couldn't understand. Since you're so stubborn, you can go to hell. He Chuan rushed forward, his body wrapped in light. His speed had reached its limit, leaving behind an afterimage. He had to kill Shen Changyi and not give him a chance to shoot again. This mysterious race in front of him had far more powerful attacks than those who cultivated martial arts. They should have cultivated for many years. Even a lion would use its full strength when hunting a rabbit. He Chuan didn't want to give his opponent a chance. Shen Changyi's eyes glinted. He knew the situation had become worrisome. However, he flapped his wings and dodged to the side with a flash of lightning. He Chuan let out a long cry. The divine light in his body changed again, turning into a long spear. His aura also changed. It was incomparably sharp. His entire body was like a statue, and his aura was so piercing that it made one's spirit unstable. Kill. A cruel smile appeared on Shen Changyi's face. He used his precious technique and sent out a big move. It was formed from symbols and was shaped like a golden cloud as it pressed down. He covered He Chuan beneath him. He was going to use the absolute strength of an inscription realm to suppress and crush He Chuan. Chapter 299 A golden light burst forth, and Shen Changyi's entire body was like a golden spear, directly piercing forward, revealing his sharp edge as he charged forward. Shen Changyi flapped the wings on his back with a cold and mocking expression on his face. Thick lightning bolts shot out in succession as if they were going to explode the void. When the powerful cultivators of the Zhou dynasty saw the fierce lightning, their faces changed. This was the embodiment of the perfect state of the thunder spell. When a cultivator at the peak of the mortal realm cast it, a lightning bolt could destroy a mountain. Now that the eight lightning bolts were out at the same time wanting to stop He Chuan. Its power was rather terrifying. He was going to turn the entire capital into dust. Interesting. His aura fluctuated, and crimson wings appeared on his back. He dodged the lightning in the sky at a breakneck speed, drawing a beautiful arc in the air as he charged toward Shen Changyi. Exterminate. Shen Changyi shouted as the lightning exploded in the sky. The entire place was turned upside down. Even the lava lake evaporated and shot into the sky. However, He Chuan was swift and had long avoided the attack range of the lightning. He used the vermilion bird wings to increase his speed and came to Shen Changyi's back. Then, he raised his palm to kill him. I've been waiting for you to come. Shen Changyi was sure that He Chuan had nowhere to hide this time. As a matter of fact, the most powerful part of their clansmen was their fleshly bodies. They had tempered their flesh, blood, and bones to be even stronger than weapons. He Chuan didn't hesitate because of the other party's words. His palm still struck down, stirring up a violent astral wind. Shen Changyi vaguely felt that something was wrong. He did not dare to face it head on and hurriedly dodged to the side. The astral wind brushed past his body like a sharp knife causing his skin to hurt. Die. He Chuan seized the opportunity and continued to attack with his palm. Shen Changyi instantly raised his right fist. The fist and palm collided, and the sound of bones breaking could be heard. Shen Changyi's expression changed drastically, and his right fist was still shattered. How domineering were these palm moves? It was even more terrifying than his physical body. Shen Changyi's expression was cold as he endured the pain and retreated. However, He Chuan followed Shen Changyi like a shadow. He didn't want to give Shen Changyi any chance. Break. Blood splattered everywhere. He Chuan tore off Shen Changyi's right arm. In the end, He Chuan's fist landed on Shen Changyi's chest. With a bang, Shen Changyi's entire body was split into several pieces, and he died. The outer realm cultivator at the peak of the mortal realm had fallen. The cultivators who were watching the battle were all shocked. That was a cultivator at the peak of the mortal realm from the outer realm, but he was killed by He Chuan so easily. This place was boiling with excitement, causing a huge sensation. 
another major event happened in the alternate dimension. After Gu Mingzhou flew to a high altitude, the gravitational force from the ground suddenly disappeared. The area in front of him became extremely dense white clouds, shrouding and blocking the future. As Gu Mingzhou got closer to the white clouds, the red glow in his Dantian became even more dazzling, turning his entire body red. At the same time, in the thick clouds around him, several lightning bolts flashed silently without him knowing and instantly entered Gu Mingzhou's body. What? Gu Mingzhou noticed the lightning that had merged into his meridians and revealed a surprised expression. However, he didn't investigate the reason too much. After confirming that the lightning was harmless to him, he didn't care anymore. After all, Jing Wudao's life was in danger, and he had to get there as soon as possible. Brother Wudao, you must hold on. Gu Mingzhou thought to himself. However, he did not stop and continued to fly above the clouds. Whoosh! A strong wind suddenly rose, and the white clouds scattered. The scenery in front of Gu Mingzhou changed instantly, just like when he first stepped on the Bridge of Helplessness. The first thing that came into view was the wide bridgehead and several entangled figures. Gu Mingzhou had already crossed the Bridge of Helplessness and reached the other side. However, before he could stand still, an angry roar came from the entangled figures. Get lost! It was Jing Wudao's voice. He seemed to have suffered a huge attack and had forcibly resisted it. I don't care who you are, but you'll die today. It was the voice of Wu Ji Patriarch. His tone was cold and full of anger. It's useless to struggle. Tell us where Gu Mingzhou is, and we might let you die in one piece. This was He Youyang's voice, and it was also extremely cold. If you want to know, you'll have to defeat me first. Jing Wudao was still arrogant and cold, but his voice was much weaker than usual. He was obviously seriously injured. Hall Master He, there's no need to say anything more. Since he's guarding here, it means that Gu Mingzhou is still in the tribulation of helplessness and hasn't come out. Wei Lin's voice was very sharp and directly hit the vital point. Why are you wasting your breath on him? Just kill them directly. Lu Yucheng was as forthright as ever as he directly said this. Before he could finish speaking, a golden light suddenly appeared. It was clear that Lu Yucheng had used a powerful spell to attack. At the same time, green and purple lights flashed. It was the Wu Ji Patriarch and He Youyang simultaneous attacks. Bang! Bang! The deafening sounds of collision resounded throughout the Bridge of Helplessness. Brother Wu Dao! Gu Mingzhou couldn't hold it in any longer. With a light tap of his toes, he charged toward the crowd. The spear was already out before the person arrived. The long spear suddenly appeared. It was incomparably swift and violent. It directly pierced through the clouds and quickly stabbed the people who were fighting fiercely. Lu Yucheng, who was just about to attack Jing Wudao, suddenly turned around and sent out a palm strike. The spear and the palm collided, producing a muffled sound. At this moment, the spear in Gu Mingzhou's hands suddenly shot out two purple thunderbolts. They were extremely swift and violent, and they instantly sank into Lu Yucheng's body. Pfft! Lu Yucheng's face immediately turned red as he vomited blood and staggered backward. Gu Mingzhou didn't move at all, but he didn't follow up with another attack. Instead, he brandished his spear and stabbed at the back of the Wu Ji Patriarch, who was attacking Jing Wudao. I've been waiting for you. Although Gu Mingzhou's sudden sneak attack was swift, he was still discovered by Wu Ji Patriarch. Seeing Gu Mingzhou's attack, a look of disdain flashed across Wu Ji Patriarch's face, and he slapped out with his broad palm. The green glow brightened, and the wind from his palm was sharp as he attacked Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou did what he had done to Lu Yucheng earlier. He stepped into the air, shook his long spear, and stabbed down. The spear was sharp and swift, and it instantly collided with Wu Ji Patriarch's palm wind. An intense light flashed as true core strength shot out in all directions. Your cultivation level increased again. However, do you think you can compete with me? You're still too young. Wu Ji Patriarch grinned coldly. Suddenly, a powerful force burst out of his right hand and knocked the spear away. Gu Mingzhou's expression changed, 
and he quickly retreated. He kept swinging his spear with both hands to dissipate the force. Without waiting for Gu Mingzhou to relax, Wu Ji Patriarch Sex Patriarch took advantage of the situation and pounced on him with his fat body. Wu Ji Patriarch didn't say anything. He put his true core strength on his palms, and green light danced in the air. Gu Mingzhou's brows furrowed. Instead of advancing, he retreated. His long spear pierced through the air repeatedly, trying to keep a distance from the ancestor of Wu Ji and not let him get close. Chapter, 300 Wu Ji Patriarch's cultivation level was much higher than Gu Mingzhou's. Furthermore, the true core strength in his body was very thick, and his moves were very experienced. If Gu Mingzhou were to get close to him, he would definitely be unable to resist and would be defeated in an instant. This was something he didn't want to see, because he knew his shortcomings and his strengths. As long as he didn't let Wu Ji Patriarch get close, he could hold Wu Ji Patriarch back with his powerful spiritual energy. But Gu Mingzhou waved his spear as he frowned at Jing Wudao, who was being pincered by He Yuliang and Wei Lin. His heart sank. With his cultivation and the advantage of his spear, he could delay Wu Ji Patriarch for a while if he wanted to. But that was all Gu Mingzhou could do. After a while, Wu Ji Patriarch would definitely be able to guess Gu Mingzhou's motive. At that time, regardless of whether he chose to attack even crazily, or even activate his third eye, or retreat and attack Jing Wudao again, Gu Mingzhou would find it difficult to stop him. Even if he could delay Wu Ji Patriarch, could Jing Wudao block He Yuyang and Wei Lin's pincer attack? The white mist was like silk, constantly wandering. The surrounding true core strength was scattered in all directions. Gu Mingzhou, who had joined the battle, could clearly see Jing Wudao's situation. At this moment, Jing Wudao was in a sorry state. His red robe was in tatters, and his body was covered in blood. His face was pale, and he was heavily injured. In the face of He Yuliang and Wei Lin's double attacks, he could only barely block them. He was in danger from a distance, and it was obvious that he wouldn't be able to hold on for long. I can't let this continue. Gu Mingzhou thought to himself. He stopped retreating in midair, and the spear in his hand suddenly shook. Soul Destruction Spear shadows filled the sky, densely packed, and enveloped the opponent. Wu Ji Patriarch's expression changed. He quickly waved his palms and formed a circle in the air. Whoosh! The void trembled, and green light filled the sky. A round green shield with a diameter of nearly three meters appeared in front of Wu Ji Patriarch. In the next moment, spear shadows filled the sky and suddenly arrived. Thousands of spear shadows instantly hit the round green shield like a storm of pear blossoms. Bang! The sounds of collision rang out continuously, and the entire round green shield trembled. But unfortunately, the spear shadows couldn't break the green shield and hurt Wu Ji Patriarch at all. Ha ha ha! You little brat, your hit is too light. Wu Ji Patriarch said sarcastically. Humph! Gu Mingzhou let out a cold snort. He could hear the sarcasm in Wu Ji Patriarch's voice and knew that even if he went all out, he wouldn't be able to shake Wu Ji Patriarch. However, Jing Wudao's life was in danger, and Gu Mingzhou didn't have time to think. He had to get rid of Wu Ji Patriarch as soon as possible. A smile appeared on Gu Mingzhou's face. He took three steps in the air and took the initiative to approach Wu Ji Patriarch. The spiritual energy gushed out from his arm as he waved his spear in the air and stabbed forward again. Soul Reincarnation Gu Mingzhou shouted. The spear shadows that filled the sky fused together and became thicker. The speed and power of the spear shadows that shot toward the round green shield became more violent. However, Gu Mingzhou did not stop there. He swung his long spear again, causing the void to tremble. The spear shadows that were shooting toward Wu Ji Patriarch changed their direction and scattered. They instantly filled Wu Ji Patriarch's surroundings and came at him from all directions. Small tricks. Wu Ji Patriarch looked at him with disdain. He grabbed the green shield in front of him and pulled it away. The round shield was pulled apart like rubber and turned into a round shield, which quickly covered Wu Ji Patriarch. Do you want to be a coward? Gu Mingzhou sneered. 
Just as the thick spear shadows were about to hit the circular shield, he stabbed the long spear in his hand again. Kill the enemy. Before Gu Mingzhou could finish his sentence, the spear shadows that had already reached the front of Wu Ji Patriarch suddenly self-detonated, and the thick, black spear shadows that covered the sky and the earth exploded one after another. Everything around the round banner that enveloped Wu Ji Patriarch exploded. Tens, hundreds, tens of millions in the end, thousands of spear shadows exploded at the same time. Boom! A deafening sound reverberated in front of the Bridge of Helplessness. The void trembled, and countless fragments shot out in all directions. It caused the spiritual energy around Wu Ji Patriarch to boil and flow in all directions. It was extremely dangerous. Wu Ji, you stay here for now. Gu Mingzhou immediately avoided the violent area, went around Wu Ji Patriarch, and attacked He Yu Yang. Shameless thief. Wu Ji Patriarch was furious. He knew he had been tricked. Just as he was about to put away his banner, his sleeves were cut by the violent flow of spiritual energy. He was so frightened that he quickly put back his sun cover to protect his body. He could only watch Gu Mingzhou leave, his eyes almost spewing fire. Using the self-destruction of thousands of spear shadows to trap Wu Ji Patriarch. Gu Mingzhou wouldn't waste this rare opportunity. He ignored Wu Ji Patriarch's curses and flew toward Jing Wudao as fast as he could. Before his figure had even arrived, his long spear had already been thrust directly aimed at He Yuliang. The spear's radiance was as sharp as ever as it struck its target. However, He Yuliang did not turn around. Without waiting for the spear to come, he instantly jumped to the side, choosing to retreat without fighting. He Yuliang. Wei Lin naturally also instantly discovered He Yuliang, who was retreating. His expression instantly changed, and he couldn't help but roar. He Yuliang's escape caused Wei Lin to instantly fall from the upper hand to disadvantage, and he might even be attacked from both sides by Jing Wudao and Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou, whose attack had been missed, was a little surprised, but he didn't think too much about it. He Yuliang's retreat without a fight was naturally the best for him. The spear immediately changed direction and attacked Wei Lin. Seeing that the situation was just as he had expected, Wei Lin hurriedly retracted his palm that was about to hit Jing Wudao. He immediately turned around and retreated, pushing both hands towards Gu Mingzhou at the same time. Three silver needles were shot out at the same time, brushing past the long spear and aiming straight for Gu Mingzhou's chest. Be careful. Jing Wudao's pale face revealed a worried expression. As he warned Gu Mingzhou, a scarlet light flashed out, and his right palm slapped Wei Lin. Gu Mingzhou's expression was grave, and he twisted the spear with his right arm. Clang! The silver needles that were shot at him were instantly scattered by him. At the same time, Jing Wudao also quickly approached Wei Lin and slapped him with a fierce palm wind. Wei Lin's face revealed a ruthless expression. He actually chose to advance instead of retreating. He stepped forward into the void and directly raised his palm to meet the attack. Bang! Bang! The two palms collided. Jing Wudao's expression was dark as he was sent flying like a broken zither. Wei Lin, however, wasn't affected. Instead, he took the opportunity to fly in the direction of Lu Yucheng, seeking protection. Gu Mingzhou couldn't care about chasing Wei Lin and hurriedly flew towards Jing Wudao. He held the spear in his left hand and freed his right hand to catch Jing Wudao. I'm fine, cough, cough Jing Wudao's face was extremely dark, and as soon as he opened his mouth, blood gushed out. Brother Wudao, don't talk. Go back to my inner core and rest first. I'll ask Master Qin to help you heal later. Chapter, 301 But Jing Wudao didn't need to listen to Gu Mingzhou's words. A warm smile appeared on his dark face as he slowly reached out his hand and pointed behind Gu Mingzhou with a trembling finger. Hurry up and go to the Three Life Stone a hundred meters north. Stop him. Before he could finish speaking, Jing Wudao's raised palm suddenly dropped down. His entire body turned into a red light and quickly entered Gu Mingzhou's body. Jing Wudao! Gu Mingzhou exclaimed. However, in the next moment, he felt the extremely weak Jing Wudao return to his Dantian, 
and he immediately relaxed. Free Life Stone After making sure that Jing Wudao's life was not in danger for the time being, Gu Mingzhou gripped his spear tightly and looked toward the north. Since Jing Wudao did not forget to remind Gu Mingzhou before he disappeared, it was enough to prove the importance of this matter. He couldn't help but pay attention to it and set his eyes on the three life stone Jing Wudao mentioned. He looked to the north and saw a circular altar that was dozens of meters long. At the center of the altar was a yellow stone about three to four meters in diameter. Right now, in front of the yellow stone, a figure was constantly casting spell techniques. He urged a steady stream of true core strength into the stone, spreading out ripples of true core strength. Shang Wan Fei Gu Mingzhou muttered to himself. The figure on the altar was Shang Wan Fei, who had disappeared. No wonder I didn't see him earlier. I thought he was still trapped in the tribulation of helplessness and hadn't come out yet. I didn't expect him to be controlling the Three Life Stone. As Gu Mingzhou spoke, he leaped and flew towards the altar. Before Jing Wudao disappeared, he didn't forget to remind him to stop something when he mentioned the Three Life Stone. At first, he didn't understand what Jing Wudao meant. But now, seeing Shang Wan Fei's action, Jing Wudao's intention was to stop Shang Wan Fei. He didn't know why he stopped Shang Wan Fei from activating the Three Life Stone, and he didn't even know what the stone was used for. However, it was naturally very important for Jing Wudao to regard it so highly. Without the slightest hesitation, he leaped forward and thrust his spear at Shang Wan Fei, who was on the altar. Gu Mingzhou's position was less than a hundred meters away from the altar. With his current speed, he could reach it in an instant. At this moment, the golden light shot over rapidly with great ferocity and power. If you want to stop Island Master Shang Wan Fei, you have to get past me. Lu Yucheng had already attacked, following behind the golden light. His true essence was vast and mighty as he threw a punch. The wind from the punch howled as it condensed true core strength. It instantly turned into a ferocious golden dragon and attacked Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou quickly retracted his spear and retreated to avoid the dragon formed by the golden light. At this critical moment, he directly used his void true core strength and stabbed forward. The true core strength on the tip of the spear also transformed into a giant dragon that coiled in the air. It suddenly roared toward the ferocious golden dragon and instantly collided with it. Boom! The explosion was earth-shattering and tore the void apart. A black crack appeared and a spatial storm seeped out, wreaking havoc. Gu Mingzhou and Lu Yucheng both retreated from the shock and staggered a few steps before they managed to stop themselves. Pfft! Gu Mingzhou, who had just stopped, spat out a mouthful of blood. The void was instantly dyed red as he floated down. Lu Yucheng's strength was clearly much more tyrannical than his, and he was also shaken until his face and ears turned red, but he did not vomit blood, barely holding back. Gu Mingzhou, you little thief! Die! Without waiting for Gu Mingzhou to wipe the blood from the corner of his mouth, the ancestor of the Limitless sect had already escaped and flown over angrily. Wu Ji Patriarch formed a sword with his hands and pointed at his temples. The bump on his forehead split open, and a bright green light shot out. The extremely bright green light was as thick as a little finger and had great power. It actually passed through the raging spatial storm directly, leaving a black crack in the void, and shot towards Gu Mingzhou like lightning. Gu Mingzhou hurriedly waved his spear, wanting to use the spear technique to block, but it was too late. The green ray instantly hit his chest. Blood spurted out. Gu Mingzhou immediately fell to the ground like a falling meteor. Dust flew everywhere, the blue stone slabs cracked, and the turtle mark spread. Little thief, you're dead for sure this time. Wu Ji Patriarch didn't stop. He seemed to know that Gu Mingzhou wasn't dead even after suffering such a heavy blow. He directly kicked out in the air and suddenly kicked down at the place where the dust was flying. Before the flying dust settled, it rose again. The cracks on the bridge started to spread again. In the blink of an eye, the cracks covered the entire bridge. Let's see if you're still alive this time. Wu Ji Patriarch finally stopped and looked on with disdain. The old patriarch is mighty. Gu Mingzhou will definitely die this time. 
Wei Lin also flew over and floated beside Wu Ji Patriarch. You're not bad either. Even when faced with the joint forces of two people, you didn't choose to abandon the enemy and escape. Unlike some people, who usually think that their cultivation is profound, at the critical moment, they're scared and run away before they even fight. Wu Ji Patriarch smiled at Wei Lin, but his words were full of sarcasm. However, he Yu Yang did not seem to mind. His eyes looked at the place where Gu Mingzhou had fallen. At the same time, he took a step into the air and approached the bridge. Is he going to die just like this? He Yu Yang muttered to himself. Could it be that Hall Master he is still reluctant to part with him? Lu Yuqing coldly mocked. He's just an ant. Why would I put him in my eyes? Since he would be a great obstacle in the future, if he dies so easily, I'll doubt the authenticity of the river of forgetfulness. He Yuyang said in a clear voice. Wei Lin immediately stood in front of He Yuyang, blocking his way. I wonder who was the one who was scared off by the ant just now. Now that the ant has been taken care of by Wu Ji Patriarch, why is he here again? Wei Lin was clearly brooding over He Yuyang's escape from the battle earlier, leaving him to face Gu Mingzhou and Jing Wudao's attack alone. What do you know? With Wu Ji Patriarch and Island Master Lu Yuqing here, this brat won't be able to escape. He Yu Yang explained. I don't dare to be called Patriarch. This kid has an instant talisman in his hand. He was able to escape from the Island Master Shangguan before. I don't dare to boast. Wu Ji Patriarch replied ambiguously. Hall Master He, what you did just now was really outrageous. From Lu Yuqing's words, it was clear that he was on the side of Wu Ji Patriarch's ex patriarch. He Yu Yang was immediately rendered speechless and no longer continued this topic. He took a step forward, wanting to bypass Wei Lin and fly toward the end of the bridge. It's better if you don't get close. Who knows if you're trying to save him? Wei Lin quickly stepped forward and stopped He Yu Yang again with a sinister smile. Get lost. He Yu Yang's face was filled with anger. After being blocked by Wei Lin time and time again, it was obvious that he was furious and was ready to teach this arrogant fellow a lesson. You want to bully the weak? Before He Yu Yang made a move, Wu Ji Patriarch had already opened his mouth. The eye on his forehead had already split open, and he looked like he was about to attack as well. I'm not dead yet, and you already have an internal conflict. Amidst the flying dust, Gu Mingzhou held his spear and said. You're still alive. You're really tough. Wu Qi Patriarch's Patriarch narrowed his eyes and turned to look at Gu Mingzhou. Chapter, 302 The toad isn't dead yet, so how could I die so easily? Gu Mingzhou reached out to wipe the remaining blood from the corner of his mouth and looked up at the crowd. You're on the verge of death, and still dare to speak so arrogantly. I'll definitely peel off your skin later. The eye on the patriarch's forehead split open, and a bright green light shot out again. The green light streaked across the sky and rapidly approached. Facing this ferocious green glow, Gu Mingzhou suddenly smiled. Smelly toad, it's all thanks to you that I was able to escape this time. Just based on this point alone, I'll leave your corpse intact in the future. Gu Mingzhou's left hand suddenly reached for his waist. The token the size of a palm flew out immediately, and a light screen hung down, directly enveloping Gu Mingzhou. Then, Gu Mingzhou disappeared into thin air, leaving only an afterimage that swayed faintly in the dust. The dazzling green light struck, instantly piercing through the afterimages and directly striking the bridge of helplessness. He actually escaped. Wu Ji Patriarch grumbled. It's bad. The stinky brat is trying to stop Island Master Shengwan. He Yu Yang suddenly turned around and flew in the direction of the altar. The other three people were shocked and flew toward the altar at the same time. They were one step too late. Before they could fly up to the altar, Gu Mingzhou instantly appeared in front of the three life stone and looked at Shengwan Fei across the stone. Island Master Shengwan, I'm afraid you'll be disappointed again this time. The long spear in Gu Mingzhou's hand danced. Shengwan Fei, who was casting a spell, wanted to stop it, but it was still too late. His long spear instantly stabbed into the three life stone. The entire altar trembled. 
The three life stone that had been stabbed suddenly burst out with a brilliant light that enveloped Gu Mingzhou, Shang Wanfei, as well as Yu Liang, Wu Ji Patriarch, Lu Yucheng, and Wei Lin, who were flying over at high speed. A gentle breeze blew past, and everyone disappeared. The wind howled in front of him, and the world was reversed. Before Gu Mingzhou could react, the scenery in front of him changed dramatically. A huge palace appeared in front of him. You little brat, you've killed me. Before Gu Mingzhou could take a closer look at the palace, an extremely cold voice came from behind him. Shang Wanfei. Gu Mingzhou turned around and looked. Shang Wanfei was standing not far behind him, his eyes blazing. Don't you know that you've not only harmed yourself this time, you've also harmed us. Behind Shang Wanfei, He Yuliang, Lu Yucheng, Wei Lin, and Wu Ji Patriarch were all present. Although they looked around in confusion, when they looked at Gu Mingzhou, their eyes were filled with anger. Island Master Shang Wan, what are you still talking about? Just kill him directly. Wu Ji Patriarch said. That's right. This brat ruined our plan. We must kill him. Wei Lin pandered to Wu Ji Patriarch and also wanted to kill Gu Mingzhou. So, I've successfully stopped your plan. Gu Mingzhou turned a blind eye to everyone's killing intent. He just needed to complete Jing Wudao's task. As for his life and death, he had no choice. Jing Wudao knew he could temporarily escape from this predicament by using the instant talisman. However, Jing Wudao didn't ask him to escape before he disappeared. Instead, he asked him to stop Shang Wan Fei. In the past, if they were in danger, Jing Wudao would probably choose to let Gu Mingzhou escape without hesitation, even if it meant sacrificing his life. However, the choice this time was completely different, so he had to do it. Shang Wan Fei's calm face finally showed an expression that did not match his identity. Not bad. You've indeed stopped me from subduing the Three Life Stone, but the price you'll have to pay for this will be your life. Guan Fei tapped his feet lightly and leaped towards Gu Mingzhou. Golden spiritual energy quietly burst out, and he suddenly waved his palm, aiming straight for the other party's chest. The wind from the palm strike was extremely fierce. Gu Mingzhou, who was now seriously injured, had no ability to dodge at all. Shang Guan Fei's fierce palm had already struck Gu Mingzhou's chest. Bang! But after the muffled sound, Gu Mingzhou did not move at all. Instead, Shang Guan Fei, who had struck, retreated. Shang Guan Fei was sent flying back several meters. He staggered back after landing on the ground. Wu Ji Patriarch and the others behind him quickly reached out to support him. Only then did he stop and barely stand. Island Master Shang Wan, are you alright? Wu Ji Patriarch asked with concern. Island Master Shang Wan He Yuliang, Wei Lin, and Lu Yucheng also hurriedly went up to ask about the situation. I'm fine. Shang Wan Fei said coldly, waving his hand to block the crowd support. Just keep hiding. Come out and face me if you have the ability. Shang Wan Fei took two steps forward, raised his head, and looked around as he shouted. There was no sound, not even movement. Gu Mingzhou also raised his head and looked around like Shang Wan Fei. Just now, he had thought that he would die. After all, he was very clear about Shang Wan Fei's strength. Now that he was seriously injured, it was naturally difficult for him to resist the palm just now. But strangely, just as Shang Wan Fei's fierce palm was about to hit Gu Mingzhou, an inexplicable force suddenly fell on him. Not only did he block Shang Wan Fei's attack, but he also managed to push Shang Wan Fei back. What's wrong? You dare to do but dare not admit it. Seeing that no one was paying attention to him, Shang Wan Fei immediately clenched his right hand into a fist and circulated his spiritual energy, ready to attack Gu Mingzhou again. Killing is forbidden in front of the Qin Emperor's palace. Those who disobey will be beheaded. The sound of the echo lingered in the air, reverberating through the entire hall. The palace gate suddenly opened on its own. Two golden doors that were nearly 100 meters tall exuded a faint light. They slowly opened, revealing a resplendent palace hall. The hall was extremely wide, with golden glazed tiles and jade plate dragon pillars. The decorations were magnificent. In the middle of the hall, 
there was a stage that surrounded the dragon throne. There was a huge screen behind the dragon throne with a picture of a hundred dragons dancing. A huge plaque that was several meters long was hung above. The Qing Emperor's Palace. Shang Wan Fei murmured to himself as the spiritual energy around his right hand dissipated. Could it be the palace of the ancient Qing Emperor? Wu Ji Patriarch asked in surprise. The Qing Emperor you mentioned, could it be the great Qing Emperor who comprehended dimensional secret techniques? Lu Yucheng said in disbelief. Who is this Qing Emperor? Wei Lin knew nothing about the Qing Emperor. He's a legendary figure from ancient times. No one knows where he came from. The Qing Emperor appeared out of nowhere and used tough methods to save a woman. He fought against many heroes alone and killed many. He was known as the Sage of Qing Emperor and was an unrivaled existence in the universe. He Yu Yang explained. However, after he became famous, he disappeared without a trace, and his life and death are a mystery. Wu Ji Patriarch heaved a sigh. I never thought that I would be able to find the Qing Emperor's traces in the Three Life Stone. How lucky! Lu Yuqing rubbed his eyes, afraid that he was seeing things. Gu Mingzhou had never heard of this legendary Qing Emperor. However, after listening to He Youliang's explanation, he now understood a little and a sense of admiration welled up in him. You're lucky. I'll spare your life for now. Shang Wan Fei said coldly. However, Wu Ji Patriarch and the others were unwilling to accept this. Killing is forbidden in front of the Qing Emperor's palace. Who would dare to disobey the Qing Emperor's words? Shang Wan Fei interrupted the people who were about to speak. He waved his long sleeve and walked directly past Gu Mingzhou to the main hall. Although the other four were unwilling, they knew that it would be very easy for Shang Wan Fei to kill them. They didn't dare to hesitate and quickly chased after Shang Wan Fei. When they passed by Gu Mingzhou, their eyes were filled with killing intent. Since I'm alive today, you'll all die in the future. Gu Mingzhou looked at the people who quickly entered the hall and mumbled. He immediately followed the crowd and walked into the Qing Emperor's palace without any hesitation. Chapter 303. The Qing Emperor Palace was extremely spacious. It was twice as large as the Seven Devil Hall that Gu Mingzhou had seen. The ground was paved with dark green stone slabs, which emitted a dark green light like a mirror of light that reflected the hall. As he stepped in, it was as if he was standing in two connected palaces at the end, making the entire hall look even more magnificent and spacious. In the hall, there were a total of eighteen pillars with coiling dragons on each side. The carved divine dragons were vivid and lifelike. Under the reflection of the green stone slabs, they swayed slightly as they stepped in. At first glance, they looked like thirty-six real dragons that had come to life. Their pillars were ferocious and majestic. It's really the work of the heavens and earth. He Yu Yang could not help but exclaim as he stepped into the hall. I think that only the Qing Emperor, who had dominated the Eight Realms, could be so extravagant. Look at the dark green stone slabs. They are all top-grade green primordial stones, which are also scarce materials. Look at the coiling dragon pillar, which is made of top-grade green wood. The three thousand glazed tiles on the roof are all made of rare gilt rock any one of them would cause a sensation if they were to be released outside. Wu Ji's patriarch also let out a sigh. The Qing Emperor is indeed worthy of being one of the great ancient emperors in the past hundreds of millions of years. Is he really as powerful as you all say? Wei Lin squinted his eyes and sized up the surroundings as he questioned. Do you still need to say that? Just looked at the Qing Emperor's palace. Since the beginning of the world, which emperor can be compared to him? Lu Yuqing explained, his face full of admiration. The Qing Emperor is indeed a publicly acknowledged powerful existence in the cultivation world. Whether it's his battle achievements or his cultivation, they're both extremely powerful. It's a pity that even such a person can't obtain eternal life. Even if we cultivators put in all our effort in cultivation, what will we be able to achieve in the end? Shang Wan Fei also spoke up. He looked at the splendid palace and sighed. Island Master Shang Wan's words are wrong. No one can say for sure whether the Qing Emperor is dead or alive. 
Lu Yuqing suddenly opened his mouth and actually refuted Shang Wan Fei's opinion. This theory of yours is truly unique. However, it is tough for us to know exactly what happened to the Qing Emperor in the end. Perhaps he really did find a place to live in seclusion. Shang Wan Fei did not refute Lu Yuqing's opinion but explained it accordingly. While everyone was sighing and arguing, Gu Mingzhou stood by the door expressionlessly. He carefully looked around and did not approach the crowd. His slightly narrowed eyes were filled with surprise. The surprise that this magnificent Qing Emperor's Grand Palace had brought to everyone was truly too great. However, just as everyone was in shock, the ancient voice sounded again. I am the Qing Emperor. Welcome to my Qing Emperor Palace. A fat Taoist priest in a Taoist robe suddenly appeared on the initially empty stage. This was the fat Taoist priest who was not angry but still looked mighty. He was dressed in a simple green Taoist robe, but he had the appearance of a sage. Even with his hands behind his back and a smile on his face, he still made people shudder and respect him. However, Gu Mingzhou felt a strange aura from this fat Taoist priest for some reason. He had an ominous premonition, which made his hair stand on end. He felt that the Qing Emperor was not a good person. Of course, Gu Mingzhou only thought about it and did not dare to say it out loud. This fat Taoist priest that had suddenly appeared was almost precisely the same as the fat statue he had seen in the Silver White Forest. The only difference was that the fat figure was a thousand feet tall, while the fat Taoist was only about one, seven meters tall. So that sculpture outside earlier was the Qing Emperor. I've been disrespectful. Obviously, Gu Mingzhou was not the only one who had realized this. Shang Wan Fei and the others also realized this. Lu Yuqing couldn't help but step forward and cup his hands. Since you were able to overcome the tribulations of the river of forgetfulness and bridge of helplessness, it is clear that you have a strong will and a powerful soul. The Qing Emperor, who was standing on the stage with his hands behind his back, turned a blind eye to Lu Yuqing's flattery. He arrogantly raised his hands and cupped them in respect to the heavens. He minded his own business and loudly shouted. I believe that those who can make it here are all geniuses of this world. Since I, the Qing Emperor, have left behind my inheritance here, I naturally won't mistreat you all. If you all can pass through the final three life tribulation, you will be able to enter the back hall of the Qing Emperor and obtain the divine weapons and inheritance of my true self. The Qing Emperor put down his hands and continued. The Qing Emperor actually left behind an inheritance. He Yuyang was extremely shocked. So this is the land of the Qing Emperor's inheritance. The heavens are really watching over us. The infinity laughed out loud in excitement. Although Wei Lin and Lu Yuqing didn't say anything, their faces were filled with joy and excitement. It is truly an honor for us to be able to encounter His Excellency Sage Emperor's inheritance here. However, may I know where the three-life tribulation that Senior mentioned is? What's the tribulation? On the other hand, Shang Wan Fei, who was unusually calm, took a step forward, cupped his hands, and said. Shang Wan Fei is indeed a cunning old fox. Even in the face of the Qing Emperor's inheritance, he still looks calm, and his heart is not beating fast. His inner world is showing its inner thoughts and he is concerned about the third tribulation. Gu Mingzhou, who was standing at the entrance of the hall, thought to himself. Shang Wan Fei's behavior was enough to prove his cautious and cunning nature. It would not be easy if he wanted to escape from his hands. Ordinary people can't obtain my inheritance. Therefore, his main body had made some changes to the last of the three tribulations of the river of forgetfulness. It was no longer prying into reincarnation but a line between life and death. The Qing Emperor also did not answer Shang Wan Fei's question. As he continued, a strange smile that made Gu Mingzhou feel uneasy appeared on his greasy and fat face. The Qing Emperor's right hand pointed toward the dark green floor of the Grand Palace in front of him. The entire Qing Emperor's palace started to shake. The initially flat green ground began to wriggle slightly and gradually spread. In the end, it was like the surface of the water, with slight ripples when the breeze blew. It's indeed a good move. Gu Mingzhou frowned and thought to himself. The Qing Emperor instantly turned the vast floor of the hall into a pool of water. 
His means were so powerful that even the world god, Su Fengyu, whom Gu Mingzhou had met before, might not have been able to do it. Everyone, please take a look. This is the final three life tribulation. You'll have to experience it on your own after you've entered, the Qin Emperor muttered. The Qin Emperor did not wait for everyone's reaction. His right hand was waved out. Swish. A strong wind suddenly rose and swept through the hall. Gu Mingzhou was not even prepared at all. Together with Sheng Fei and the others, they were directly swept into the ground that had turned into a lake by this sudden gust of wind. Whoosh! The waves splashed in all directions. The entire Qin Emperor's hall was once again empty. The two doors of the hall slowly closed. If he can walk out of this three lives tribulation, it means his talent is not bad. At that time, I will be able to carry out the follow-up plan. The Qin Emperor's fat image projection shattered and turned into specks of crystal light before dissipating into the entire hall. Chapter, 304 the sound of the violent collision of the seawater rang in Gu Mingzhou's ears, piercing his eardrums the endless seawater swarmed over and drowned him in an instant. He didn't even have time to react before he was chugged down by a few mouthfuls of seawater, choking and coughing non-stop. Gu Mingzhou quickly came back to his senses. He hurriedly activated the spiritual energy in his body and rose into the air. But to Gu Mingzhou's surprise, he had just flown less than three meters out of the sea when a powerful suction force appeared and instantly landed on him. What? He was so surprised that he almost fell into the sea again. He hurriedly circulated all the true core strength in his body to resist the powerful suction force and looked around while panting. Other than water, there was still water. As far as the eye could see, it was as if he was in the middle of an endless sea, surrounded by a boundless sea surface. The waves gradually splashed, and the wild tide continued. Between heaven and earth, it was all white, making him feel like a drop in the ocean, extremely small. Where is this place? Gu Mingzhou resisted the strong suction force and looked around. He only remembered he was swept away by the violent wind that the Qin Emperor had created. In the blink of an eye, he had arrived here. Could this be the so-called the Third Tribulation? Gu Mingzhou muttered to himself as he looked at the boundless sea and guessed in his heart. At this moment, a huge wave swept over like a sea beast. The wave was dozens of meters high and extremely terrifying. Gu Mingzhou hurriedly activated his spiritual energy and quickly fled in the opposite direction, trying to avoid this wave. Unfortunately, the powerful pressure from the sea made him barely able to resist. Even if he could move, his speed was extremely slow. After flying for less than three meters, he was swept away by the waves behind him and instantly slammed down. The heavy and large amount of seawater directly smacked Gu Mingzhou into the sea and drowned him. Splash! The next moment, Gu Mingzhou flew out of the sea with difficulty and floated in the air again. However, he had just flown out of the sea when a huge wave hit him again, instantly smacking Gu Mingzhou into the sea. Gu Mingzhou flew out again, and the waves rose again, instantly attacking. After repeating this over and over again, the monstrous waves directly slammed Gu Mingzhou down to a depth of 100 meters. What's the situation? Could it be that flying is prohibited on the surface of the sea? Gu Mingzhou, who had suffered three losses, did not continue to fly out of the sea. He just hid in the sea and carefully looked above. The powerful gravitational force disappeared, and so did the strange wave. He immediately noticed the difference. Let's try again. Without any hesitation, he poured out his spiritual energy and broke out of the water. As expected, the moment he flew out of the sea, a powerful suction force immediately descended on his body. Then, a huge wave suddenly appeared out of nowhere and came crashing down. Splash! The water splashed everywhere, and the ripples gradually spread. Gu Mingzhou, who had just flown out of the sea, was slapped back into the sea. Gu Mingzhou did not have the power to resist the waves. Instead, he took advantage of the force of the waves and swam directly to the bottom of the sea. Since he's not allowed to fly out of the sea, he'll go to the bottom of the sea to see what's going on. The ocean here was much clearer than the Arctic Ocean. Even if it were a thousand meters deep, one would not feel dark. However, 
for some reason, he had been traveling at high speed for an hour. With his speed, he had probably traveled more than 2,000 meters. It was still a vast expanse of green, and he couldn't see the bottom of the sea. Gu Mingzhou thought that the sea was deeper, so he kept pouring out his spiritual energy and accelerated again to dive down. He continued to sink more than 3,000 meters, but he still couldn't see the bottom of the sea. He panted continuously, but his eyes were determined as he continued to dive. Four hours later, they had sunk more than 600 meters, but they still could not see the bottom of the sea. With a pale face, Gu Mingzhou's body was close to its limit. Although his diving speed was much slower, he did not give up and continued. After sinking more than 8,000 meters, he still couldn't see the bottom. I can't do it anymore. The exhausted Gu Mingzhou decisively gave up on the idea of continuing to dive. He sat cross-legged in the seawater more than 8,000 meters deep and began to recuperate. However, just as he sat down, Gu Mingzhou, who was resting in the deep water, opened his eyes again. There's no spiritual energy here. He got up unsteadily and muttered to himself in disbelief. He was just about to rest for a while to recover some spiritual energy and heal his injuries. However, when he sat down and started to cultivate, he realized that he could not absorb any energy from the surrounding seawater. The spiritual energy is the beginning of the world. How can the sea not have spiritual energy? Gu Mingzhou was a little anxious. He still did not believe it. He immediately used the absorption technique, wanting to absorb the spiritual energy of heaven and earth forcibly. This was an unknown spell that Gu Mingzhou had obtained by chance when he started cultivating. Its domineering absorption ability set off a storm around him. The seawater within a 50-mile radius of Gu Mingzhou started boiling, forming a vortex. With him as the center, the seawater within the 50-mile radius was stirred up. Even so, Gu Mingzhou, who had activated it for a long time, stopped. The boiling sea water spread out, forming ripples that spread in all directions. There really is no spiritual energy. He muttered to himself in disappointment. The spiritual energy of heaven and earth was too important for cultivators. One must know that if a cultivator did not have spiritual energy, then what was the difference between them and a martial artist? At most, he was a saint cultivator. After all, he was still a mortal. This isn't the real world. It's normal not to have spiritual energy. Just as Gu Mingzhou's soul was in a daze, an unruly voice suddenly rang in his ears. Master Qin. The disappointed Gu Mingzhou quickly shouted. The person who suddenly spoke was Master Qin, who was hiding in his collar. Don't you know how to use your brain when you're in trouble? What's the use of being so dejected? Master Qin flew out from Gu Mingzhou's collar and descended a purple light to heal him. It's just that I can't help but feel a little flustered when I suddenly came to a place where I can't even see fish. Gu Mingzhou quickly sat down cross-legged and used the purple light to heal his injuries and recover his strength. He didn't forget to refute Master Qin. Still not admitting it. I found your mental illness during the river of forgetfulness tribulation. You have a huge knot in your heart that needs to be untied. Master Qin said. I know I have a knot in my heart, but it can't be untied. Gu Mingzhou felt that his injuries had recovered. He looked up at Master Qin, who was flying around, and said. If you can't untie the knot in your heart, I'm afraid it'll be very difficult to break through your current realm. Master Qin said lightly. Gu Mingzhou was about to ask for more details when Master Qin suddenly screamed. Poisonous electric eel. Hurry up and run. Before he could finish his sentence, a huge wave had already hit Gu Mingzhou. Master Qin's shout was so sudden that Gu Mingzhou didn't even have time to react. He was directly swept away by this sudden huge wave. The huge wave carried a huge force and rolled Gu Mingzhou three to four miles away. Fortunately, although it came suddenly, he reacted the moment he was swept away, and the spiritual energy he had just recovered gushed out. Chapter, 305 Gu Mingzhou broke through the waves and immediately resisted this force. He stabilized himself in the boiling seawater again. But before he could stand firm, Master Qin also flew out of the waves and quickly landed on Gu Mingzhou's shoulder, urging him. Little brat, 
What are you doing? Hurry up and run. Ah. Gu Mingzhou still didn't understand what Master Qin meant, and a chill suddenly hit him. A thick black eel that was a thousand feet long suddenly appeared in front of them. It opened its bloody mouth wide, and its sharp, venomous fangs flashed with a cold light as it suddenly pounced at Gu Mingzhou. I'll run. Gu Mingzhou quickly retreated. However, the black giant eel was obviously more agile than he had expected. It turned its body and instantly darted toward Gu Mingzhou. When the black eel approached, it swung its tail with great force and was extremely fast. A thousand-foot body blocked Gu Mingzhou's path. Then, the eel turned around and coiled around Gu Mingzhou, trying to entwine its prey. His expression changed drastically. He knew very well how strong the snake eel's body was. If he were entangled, he would immediately lose his mobility. The spiritual energy in his body surged, and Gu Mingzhou's speed immediately increased. When the thick eel's body swept over, he instantly flew a hundred meters away. Hiss. When the giant black eel saw that Gu Mingzhou had escaped, it immediately bared its teeth and flicked its red tongue. It was obviously a little angry. Its tail swayed, and it quickly rushed toward its prey. A little snake eel dares to do something strange. Gu Mingzhou shouted in a deep voice. He decided not to run anymore. He opened his hands and a long spear appeared in Gu Mingzhou's hands out of thin air. With the long spear in hand, Gu Mingzhou swept away his previous embarrassment and revealed his confidence. He thrust his long spear forward. Thousands of spear shadows suddenly appeared in front of Gu Mingzhou. They were densely packed. When the black eel approached, they suddenly shot out. The spear shadow was extremely fast, carrying a terrifying destructive power. It instantly stabbed the black eel's body, causing it to stop and be instantly overwhelmed by the countless spear shadows. Let's see if you're still alive. Gu Mingzhou put away his gun and stood up, a smile on his face. Master Qin's sudden exclamation earlier had made him a little flustered. In addition, the sudden appearance of the black giant eel caught Gu Mingzhou off guard. This caused him to be flustered. Now that he had come back to his senses, Gu Mingzhou became very confident. Gu Mingzhou realized that there was no spiritual energy in this sea area. Since it had no spiritual energy, the black eel naturally could not cultivate and become a demon. He would not be afraid of a snake eel without cultivation. However, the smile on Gu Mingzhou's face had just appeared when it instantly froze. The black giant eel let out an explosive sound in the midst of the thousands of spear shadows. Boom! A muffled sound rang out as if thunder had exploded at the bottom of the sea. Although it wasn't deafening, it set off huge waves. The seawater within a radius of nearly a hundred miles churned at this moment, and the waves swept in all directions. What? Before Gu Mingzhou could react, he was sent flying a hundred meters away by the waves caused by the explosion. At the center of the bubble explosion, a giant eel that was a thousand feet long and flashing with green light suddenly jumped out, broke the waves, and hovered above the rolling sea. Its huge eel head turned around, and its fist-sized round eyes stared straight at Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou's scalp turned numb from the gaze of this pair of eerie eel eyes. A bone-piercing chill, accompanied by a great sense of danger, rose spontaneously. Not good. Gu Mingzhou quickly activated his core energy to resist the impact of the waves around him. He turned around and fled decisively. This was an instinctive reaction of the body to anything that could endanger his life. An extremely strong and dangerous aura even made Gu Mingzhou feel like he was about to die. As Gu Mingzhou turned around and fled without hesitation, the black giant eel on the rolling waves suddenly opened its bloody mouth, and its scarlet snake tongue stuck out immediately. A thick green liquid shot out from his arm. As the purple liquid shot out, there were also traces of lightning surrounding it. It continued to overflow into the surrounding seawater. A thousand miles of the sea was filled with lightning and instantly attacked Gu Mingzhou. Crackle. Gu Mingzhou, who was turning around to escape, was struck by lightning. His body went numb, and his speed immediately slowed down. This bolt of lightning had the ability to seal one's cultivation. The moment it hit Gu Mingzhou, 
it was locked down along with the core energy in his body. Although the ceiling power wasn't strong, it still stopped his escaping figure. The green, viscous liquid quickly rushed toward Gu Mingzhou and slammed into him. Dirty saliva, get lost. A bright purple light shot out from Gu Mingzhou's shoulder and instantly hit the green, sticky liquid. The sticky green liquid exploded three feet away from Gu Mingzhou. Countless little finger-sized green liquid fragments splashed in all directions and merged into the surrounding seawater. The seawater that came into contact with the green liquid instantly turned pitch black, and white foam bubbled and sizzled. In the blink of an eye, it had infected a radius of a hundred miles, forming a rolling black fog that rose up. Within the black mist, there were also electric arcs circulating. What a ferocious poison! Gu Mingzhou's pupils contracted as he thought to himself. Fortunately, at the critical moment, Master Qin blocked the green poison. Otherwise, he would have died. Brat, why are you still in a daze? Hurry up and run. While Gu Mingzhou was still in shock, the purple ray flew out of the black mist and landed on Gu Mingzhou's shoulder. Gu Mingzhou came back to his senses. Without any hesitation, he used all his strength and quickly fled forward. The giant black eel was completely enraged by Gu Mingzhou. Seeing that the poison had lost its effect, it immediately shot its thousand-foot-long body at its prey. He passed through the black mist in an instant and approached Gu Mingzhou's back. The black giant eel's speed in the deep sea was even faster than Gu Mingzhou's at his peak condition. Gu Mingzhou sensed the speed of the black eel's pursuit and was extremely surprised. Gu Mingzhou, who was in the mortal realm, used all his speed and was more than twice as fast as before. In the deep sea, although it could not be as fast as lightning on land, it was still extremely fast. However, he couldn't shake off the black eel. Not only did he not manage to shake them off, but he was also caught up to in an instant. This caused Gu Mingzhou's previous confidence to vanish instantly, and he couldn't help but feel uneasy. After the short fight just now, he knew that he was no match for the black eel. If he were caught up, he would die without a doubt. I say, brat, you're too slow. Sooner or later, you'll become the feces of this poisonous electric eel. Grumbling aside, as Master Qin spoke, he also emitted a bright purple glow that instantly enveloped Gu Mingzhou. Whoosh! Gu Mingzhou's speed suddenly increased like lightning. In a few breaths, he had already left the black giant eel far behind. After temporarily shaking off the black eel, he did not dare to delay and continued to run. Gu Mingzhou only dared to slow down when he had flown nearly 10,000 miles away, and the bright purple light that Master Qin emitted had faded. Chapter 306 Where is this broken place? Not only did it not have any true core strength, but it also had such a powerful giant eel. Gu Mingzhou said breathlessly, still in shock. Humph. That's a highly poisonous electric eel, so it's naturally very powerful. Godfather Qin explained. Poisonous electric eel. Did you just say that the eel was called a poisonous electric eel? Gu Mingzhou asked, puzzled. It's indeed a giant eel, but who told you that an eel can't be called a poisonous eel? Not only does it have a powerful venom, but it also has electric arcs that can paralyze people. Master Qin immediately retorted in dissatisfaction. That's true, Gu Mingzhou immediately nodded. The giant black eel was indeed strange. Not only was the venom it spat out extremely powerful, but it also had an electric arc that could confine one's cultivation. He had been struck by the electric arc and was almost corroded by the venom. In the end, it was all thanks to Master Qin's help that Gu Mingzhou managed to escape death again. The poisonous electric eel is a terrifying existence even in the ancient world. Although it has no cultivation, its poison alone is enough to give even an emperor a headache. Master Qin warned. It's a good thing we've already shaken it off. At this moment, Gu Mingzhou realized that a wooden boat was slowly passing by above his head. Because they were being chased just now, they flew nearly 10,000 miles and rose to a certain height. Now, they were less than 100 meters from the sea, and they could almost see the bottom of the ship. From the bottom of the boat, he could deduce that the wooden boat was not big, only about 10 meters long. 
It was crudely made, so it should be an ordinary fishing boat. Could you float on this sea surface? Gu Mingzhou was very confused. He had tested it before. When he floated to the surface, he was hit by huge waves and pushed back into the sea. He was sure that he couldn't float to the surface in this sea area. But now, there was a similar fishing boat that was sailing steadily on the sea. This greatly piqued Gu Mingzhou's curiosity and also made him more cautious about this fishing boat. The wooden boat's appearance was too strange. Let's go over and take a look first. He quickly swam towards the wooden boat. For Gu Mingzhou, the distance of 70 to 80 meters was just a slight swim, and he was already close to the wooden boat. Just as he was about to approach the wooden boat, he suddenly heard the sound of water. Before he could react, the huge net had already attacked and caught him. Gu Mingzhou hurriedly activated his elemental energy and tried to break free. However, the silk net was also very strange. As Gu Mingzhou struggled, not only did he not break free from the net, but he also made the silk net even more tightly wrapped around him. In the end, Gu Mingzhou was completely trapped in it. Master Qin, can you help me? He lay in the silk net speechlessly and asked Master Qin for help. It's just a fishing net. They probably think you're a small fish in the deep sea. Master Qin joked. After saying that, Master Qin suddenly turned into a purple ray and directly entered Gu Mingzhou's Dantian. The silk net that wrapped around Gu Mingzhou started to float upwards. It was obvious that the other party had already noticed that the net had caught something and had started to pull it in. Gu Mingzhou looked at the approaching sea and clenched his fists. He circulated his spiritual energy and was ready to attack at any time. As long as something went wrong or there was any danger, he would not hesitate to attack. The net gradually floated to the surface. Fifth uncle, I'm afraid we've caught a big fish this time. A tender voice rang out, extremely clear. I don't think so. The degree of struggle in the net just now is not something that ordinary fish can do. Everyone, be careful not to catch sea monsters or the like. A slightly steady and aged voice sounded. Fifthly, I think you're once bitten twice shy. How can you encounter a sea monster so easily? That's right. I'm afraid that fifth uncle was frightened by the sea monster a few years ago and hasn't come back to his senses yet. Don't say any more. Come up. Accompanied by the noisy discussion, Gu Mingzhou was brought out of the sea by the net. A large amount of seawater poured down, and a piercing white light shone in Gu Mingzhou's eyes. Gu Mingzhou, who had been in the deep sea for a long time, subconsciously closed his eyes. It's a human. The young and tender voice from before rang out again and was the first to reach Gu Mingzhou's ears. It really is a human. Look, he's still moving. He's still alive. Quickly fish him up and take a look. How can a person stay in there unscathed? Everyone, be careful. Who knows if it is a sea monster? Fifth uncle's reminder is right. I think this guy might really be a sea monster. Gu Mingzhou found himself hanging in the air of the wooden boat. The people on the wooden boat were staring at him cautiously and curiously. Don't misunderstand. I'm not a sea monster. Gu Mingzhou quickly explained. He's talking. Everyone, be careful. Prepare for battle. Alert, alert. However, Gu Mingzhou's sudden words made everyone on the wooden boat wary. Who are you? The young and tender voice from before sounded again. A young man around the age of twelve was looking curiously at Gu Mingzhou. He broke the discussion and directly asked Gu Mingzhou. Liang, don't talk nonsense. The middle-aged man, who was called Fifth Uncle, was shocked and quickly pulled the young man behind him. Don't be afraid, everyone. I'm really a human. My name is Gu Mingzhou. I accidentally fell into the sea earlier. I see that everyone has saved me. I'm very grateful. Gu Mingzhou said sincerely. Although the spiritual energy around his hands had been withdrawn, he still had his guard up. You're Gu Mingzhou. Where did he come from? And why would it be in Qinghai? When Fifth Uncle Li heard this, he waved his hand to stop the crowd's discussion. He leaned over to look at Gu Mingzhou and asked. 
I'm from the Zhou dynasty. Not long ago, I went treasure hunting with my friends, but I accidentally fell into this place. Fortunately, I was saved by you all. Gu Mingzhou said sincerely. He didn't completely reveal his identity and purpose. He only gave a simple introduction and hid many things. He was not sure of these people's identities and could not determine whether they were friends or foes, so he naturally would not reveal his identity. The Zhou Dynasty How come I've never heard of such a place in Qingxi? You're not lying to us. Fifth Uncle Li questioned. The Zhou Dynasty is a little remote, so it's normal that you haven't heard of it. But please believe me. I'm really not a sea monster. Gu Mingzhou said helplessly. I'll believe you for now. Fifth Uncle Li pondered for a while and then motioned for Gu Mingzhou to be pulled up. Fifth Uncle, don't be silly. Do you believe everything he says? You may know a person's face, but not his heart. The man next to Fifth Uncle Li suddenly reached out his hand to stop him. Fifth Uncle Li, who was about to save Gu Mingzhou, suddenly hesitated. Not good, the sea monster is here. When the people gathered on the ship heard this, their expressions immediately became serious. Inform the helmsman to change directions and quickly leave. Immediately prepare the blessed water. The rest of you, go back to the cabin and get your weapons. Prepare for battle. He called out to everyone and urged them to hurry up. Everyone then hurriedly left to do their own things. The originally lively ship instantly fell silent. The thick aura of black clouds pressed down on the city, and danger was lurking everywhere. The wooden boat that was heading deep into the sea also quickly changed its course and sailed in the opposite direction. May the heavens bless us. I hope that this will be a close call. Seeing this, Fifth Uncle Lee's face was filled with worry. He sighed and turned around to leave the deck. Chapter 307 All the powerhouses in the Great Zhou Dynasty were dumbfounded. He Chuan had killed Shen Changi so easily. Especially Shi Feng Lai was even more touched at this moment. He was at the peak of the mortal realm, yet he was defeated so easily. Then what realm was Du Qi at? Could it be a higher realm? It was simply unheard of. Murong Qi, the young master of the profound heavenly sword sect, had naturally sensed Shen Changi's death, and his face turned extremely ugly. The peak of the mortal realm. He didn't expect that there would be one in the capital of the Zhou dynasty. It might not even be at the peak of the mortal realm, but the earth realm. Looking for trouble rashly was indeed a little reckless. His subordinate Shen Changi was already dead, and there wasn't even a message sent back. His soul had probably been destroyed. Although he was also in the earth realm, he did not dare to take the risk of fighting against the mysterious master of the Zhou dynasty. What if the boat capsized in an easy ditch? His goal was to find out the secret of the recovery of the spiritual essence. He could not die in the Zhou dynasty. As for taking revenge for Shen Changi, that didn't even exist. It was impossible for the master to take revenge for the loyal dog. Staying alive was the most important thing. After He Chuan solved the problem, he returned to the library. He picked up his sleeping daughter and continued to lie on the rocking chair as if he had just done something insignificant. He didn't even sweat a drop. The difference between the mortal realm and the earth realm was too great. It could not be made up with cultivation methods or treasures. Is this the power of a cultivator? Empress Changming asked with some envy. Just now, when the two of them raised their hands, the mountains collapsed, and the earth cracked and the spiritual energy between heaven and earth was drawn to fight each other. It made her heart sway, and she couldn't wait to immediately reach the state of the mortal realm to feel it. Empress Changning, Lia, and Kai Lian were all at the edge of the Saint Cultivator realm and the mortal realm. They were only one step away from breaking through. For now, Lia and Kai Lian were temporarily unable to cultivate and break through. They would wait until after giving birth. Empress Changning, on the other hand, had less and less time to cultivate because she was busy with state affairs. If it weren't for He Chuan's various medicinal pills, she would have been stuck at the Saint Cultivator level for the rest of her life. That's right. People who practice martial arts are still mortal and can't use the spiritual energy of heaven and earth. On the other hand, 
cultivation is going against the heavens and touching the Supreme Tao. There's a big gap between the two. He Chuan explained in a gentle voice. This was the first time he had fought with someone after breaking through to the earth realm. The feeling of triggering the power of heaven and earth was indeed intoxicating. It was something that martial arts could not compare to. Study the cultivation technique I'm going to give you carefully. It's a cultivation technique created by the ancient imperial emperor, Emperor Ziwei. It's a hundred times more powerful than ordinary cultivation techniques. He Chuan continued. While the others were still studying how to cultivate, he had already led the people around him to start cultivating the top cultivation techniques. His starting point was already far ahead of the others. If the woman beside him slacked off, it would really be a little unreasonable. Emperor Ziwei. Who is that? Husband, tell us. Lia asked curiously as she stroked her bulging stomach. He Chuan nodded and explained it simply. Emperor Ziwei was also known as the The Son of Heaven. In ancient times, Emperor Ziwei held an important position in the faith of humans and was one of the four emperors of Taoism. He was under the Jade Emperor and assisted the Jade Emperor in managing the astral world. The school of the Emperor Star was also known as the Palace of the Emperor, the Star of the Emperor Star. It was located in the central enclosure of the three enclosures. It was the residence of the Emperor in the constellation, the Weiyang Palace of the Western Han Dynasty. The Ziwei city in Wuyang of the Sui and Tang Dynasties, and the Forbidden City of the Ming and Qin Dynasties, which was called the Forbidden City, were examples of this origin. The Ziwei star was located in the middle of the heavens, never moving. It was the highest star, so it was the most respected star. It was the master of the stars, the grandmaster of all creations. As such, all of the divine knights revered him greatly. The Emperor of the North Star was in charge of the heavens and earth, commanding the stars in the sky and controlling the ghosts, gods, and lightning. Northern Yin's Fengdu Supreme Devil Law Book, mentioned, the Son of Heaven of the Past lives in the Zi Wei enclosure. He's the Grandmaster of all creations, revered by all stars, and the Emperor of the Ten Thousand Arts Golden Immortal. He's in the Imperial Court, and below him is Fengdu. The Son of Heaven ruled the stars above and Fengdu below. He was the master of the stars. The arctic demon expelling yard was under his control. The purple star was known as the master of divination. Since ancient times, researchers have regarded the Z-Wei star as the emperor star. Therefore, those who had the Z-Wei star as their main star were the emperor. The Big Dipper revolved around it. If the sky was a funnel, then the purple star was at the top of the funnel. The people of the Zi Wei star, which was surrounded by the stars, were called the fate of Zi Wei's descent to the mortal world. However, the area surrounded by the stars varied in size. Those who were born in a family were the masters of a family, and those who were born in a country were the masters of a country. So, this cultivation technique is very suitable for me and Sister Chang to cultivate? Liya asked excitedly after hearing that Emperor Zi Wei was related to the emperor. That's how it should be. There's not only spiritual energy in the world but there's also all sorts of great fortune. With the energy of a true dragon protecting your body, you should be able to achieve twice the results with half the effort by cultivating Emperor Zi Wei's cultivation technique. He Chuan wasn't half a hundred percent sure, but he was at least seventy percent sure. After all, Zi Wei was related to the emperor. If an emperor were to cultivate this technique, he would definitely have an advantage over an ordinary person. This is great. There's finally a cultivation technique that's suitable for us. Lia clapped her hands and laughed. As the Xiongnu's female king, she did not have much time to cultivate. Of course, she was even happier to have a cultivation method that could save energy. Emperor Ziwei wasn't the only mighty figure in ancient times, so you mustn't become lazy just because you're one step ahead of others. Shen Chang'e alone is more powerful than all of you combined. He also has the mysterious Heavenly Sword sect that I've never heard of, as well as that young master. I wonder how powerful they are. He Chuan jumped out at the right time to give them a warning. There was also the world god, Su Fengyu, and Gu Mingzhou, who was blessed with great fortune. They would all be future enemies. He Chuan suspected that Gu Mingzhou's father, 
the Lord of Sacred Soul Island, had deliberately arranged this path. Thus, he was very curious as to how far Gu Mingzhou would grow. He even thought about killing this son of great fortune. Peace was just a beautiful wish. Only with strength could one obtain peace and prosperity. Otherwise, it would all be empty talk. Husband loves to pour cold water on us. It really gives me a headache. Lia had been quite happy, but He Chuan's words had completely dispelled her previous excitement. Even if she cultivated Emperor Zi Wei's cultivation technique, she still wouldn't be invincible. Then what's the point of cultivating? The truth is the truth, and good advice is unpleasant to the ear. As the two of you are the rulers of the country, you should understand the meaning of this sentence. He Chuan's tone was very calm. It was because he could maintain a calm state of mind and not get lost in his current strength that he could continue to grow stronger. You're right. The great Zhou dynasty has faced many disasters, and it was you who helped solve them. Otherwise, the great Zhou dynasty would have disappeared in the dust of history. This indirectly shows that we are not strong enough. Empress Changning accepted He Chuan's suggestion. Right now, they shouldn't be lost in a cultivation technique. Working hard to cultivate and become stronger was the most important thing. Kai Lian didn't say anything. No matter what He Chuan said, she felt that it made sense. Chapter 308 Emperor Zi Wei was a true heavenly god almighty. People like the Qing Emperor, the Yan Emperor, and the Underworld Emperor had only gained their fame through their cultivation. They had forcefully become ancient emperors, so they naturally couldn't be compared to him. If it weren't for the system's blessing, He Chuan would probably not have been able to obtain such a good thing. Therefore, He Chuan did not envy Gu Mingzhou, who was blessed with great luck. This was because if one wanted to get something good, one would have to go through a near-death calamity. He checked in using the system. If this Gu Mingzhou, who was blessed with great fortune, were willing to cultivate in peace, he would not have caused trouble for him. If he were like the other members of the God-fiend race and liked to cause trouble in the central plains, he would not mind killing him. The reason why He Chuan didn't want to kill Gu Mingzhou directly was that the Heavenly Tao would control him after he entered the ranks of cultivation. If he killed the Son of Destiny before he jumped out of the Three Realms and the Five Elements, the Heavenly Tao would punish him. Therefore, He Chuan had to be careful. This was also the difference between martial arts and cultivation. Not only did one have to find a way to survive in a world where the strong preyed on the weak, but one also had to fight against the Heavenly Tao to avoid being defeated in these two places. Zhou Shui woke up groggily, not knowing that her father had just killed a warrior at the peak of the mortal realm. She blinked and kissed He Chuan on the cheek. Empress Changning felt a little sour when she saw this. Her well-behaved daughter liked to be close to He Chuan. Stupid girl, can't you see that your mother is still here? Empress Changning pointed at her face and said. Chu. Zhou Shui kissed Empress Changning, Aunt Lia, and Aunt Kai Lian on their faces, then ran off to play somewhere else. Originally, the Central Plains was a place that many self-cultivators abandoned because of the Nine Prefectures' cauldrons. However, when the World God broke the seal and appeared, the Nine Prefectures' cauldrons were shattered into pieces and scattered all over the place. Without the seal, the spiritual energy in the Central Plains became abnormally abundant. I'm afraid it will become the center of competition in the future, so you all have to improve your strength as soon as possible. He Chuan couldn't stay here all the time. What if something happened to the women around him? And now, they had children. The only way was to increase their strength so that he wouldn't have to take action every time personally. Don't worry, husband. We'll work hard to cultivate so that we won't make you worry. Empress Changning said with a smile as she held He Chuan's hand. I'm not worried. I'm just afraid. In the past, I didn't care about anyone. I only wanted to cultivate according to the steps until I touched the peak of martial arts. But you've now become a part of me. He Chuan wasn't a heartless person, so he naturally couldn't achieve the so-called not be moved by emotions. How could He Chuan not be touched that these three beauties were willing to bear his children? However, he would not show it normally. Atarakuru. There was a small town called Hanshui, which was the closest to this place. This place didn't belong to the Zhou dynasty. 
It was just a small, remote country among many other countries. Compared to the central plains, the grasslands, or the foreign countries, they were not worth mentioning at all. However, the people here dressed somewhat similarly to the Zhou dynasty. It was probably due to the influence of the Zhou dynasty civilization. There were ten people here for no reason. Although everyone was restraining their aura, it was difficult to conceal their momentum. It was something that they were born with. The people from the profound heavenly sword sect were among them. Shen Chanyi actually died in the central plains. That's really surprising. I wonder where that Morong Chi is. The person who asked was the senior sister of the Cold Moon sect, Song Moli. She was also a proud daughter of the heavens from the small world outside the region, a strong warrior of the second rank of the earth realm. In the small world, she could be ranked fifth on the list. Humph. Murong Chi used his identity as the young master of the Heavenly Sword sect to do whatever he wants, and Shen Chani is his loyal dog. It's not a bad thing for him to die. Wan Lang, the eldest senior of the Heavenly Sword sect, said. Wan Lang was the number one person in the Heavenly Sword sect and the third strongest in the small world. He was the most promising existence to become the next sect leader. As the only son of the Heavenly Sword sect's leader, Morong Chi also had a high chance. That was why the two of them didn't get along. Wang Lang was the last disciple of the first elder, so he was not afraid of Morong Chi. They had fought with each other for the sect leader position. Therefore, Shen Chinese death was a good thing for Wang Lang. As for the friendship between fellow disciples, it did not exist at all. In the world of cultivation, there were only benefits. If there were enough benefits, it was possible for the people here to kill their master. This was because they had been in contact with the cultivation world since they were young and had a better understanding of the law of the jungle. The elites of the small worlds had gathered here naturally because of the recent recovery of spiritual energy in the central plains. As the only son of the sect leader, Morong Chi was sent here in advance. Don't worry about Morong Chi for now. The most important thing is to find out the secret of this world. Shen Chani's strength is not bad, so we must be careful. Wang Lang continued. As a fellow disciple of the Heavenly Sword sect, Wang Lang was well aware of Shen Chani's strength. Logically speaking, he should have no problem doing as he pleased in the Central Plains. Yet, he had still fallen here. Brother Wang. You're not joking, are you? Shen Chani is at the peak of the mortal realm. Before the revival of energy in this world, it was difficult for them to even become a saint cultivator Song Moli couldn't believe it, but she still wanted to confirm it. Because she was afraid that Wang Lang would deliberately find an excuse to tie down the other sects. Of course, I'm not joking. If Shen Chani dies in this world, the Heavenly Sword sect will lose face. Wang Lang knew what Song Moli was planning, but this wasn't nonsense. It was something that had really happened. There were hidden experts in this abandoned world. It would be great if he could find Morong Chi to clarify the matter, but with Wang Lang's understanding of Morong Chi, he was afraid Morong Chi would not tell him the truth. He couldn't wait for them to all die here. Therefore, he had to be very careful when he came to the Central Plains this time. Otherwise, it would not be worth it to die. The Central Plains is the place where our ancestors lived. After the revival of energy, it's not surprising that some sons of destiny have appeared. Zhao Fang of the Fire Cloud sect calmly analyzed. The central plains in ancient times had been filled with ancient emperors. It was rumored that Emperor Zi Wei was also born in the central plains, so many people still worshipped him. Later, because of the seal, the spiritual energy in the central plains disappeared. This group of cultivation sects joined forces to open the small world and barely managed to cultivate inside. They had completely abandoned the central plains. So, in terms of bloodline, they were also from the central plains. Humph. No matter who killed Shinchani, when the Heavenly Sword sect returns, we'll make sure that person dies without a burial place. Now, please take out the map given by the sect. We'll search for the other world one by one and divide the treasures equally, if there are any. Even though Wang Lang didn't like Shen Changi, he was still a member of the Heavenly Sword sect. He had to get revenge, but now was not the time. 
they all came here with missions from their respective sects. The cultivation sects in the small worlds were also considering returning to the central plains. After all, after the revival of energy in the central plains, the conditions for cultivation were much better than those in the small worlds. After the ten of them confirmed their destination to be the freezing cold sea, they rose into the air and flew towards the southernmost land. Chapter, 309 In the Ancient Alternate Dimension Fifth Grandpa, what should we do with this person? The panickingly Mingliang suddenly grabbed Fifth Uncle Li, who was about to leave and pointed at Gu Mingzhou. What do you mean? Don't get involved in adults' affairs. Quickly go to the cabin and hide. Without waiting for Fifth Uncle Li's reply, a young man who had previously objected to fishing up Gu Mingzhou spoke again and directly scolded Li Mingliang. Fifth Uncle, in my opinion, this person was attacked by sea monsters as soon as he appeared. Even if he's not a sea monster, he's not an auspicious person either. He must be a disaster, and it's better to get rid of him directly with the sea. The young man cupped his hands and said to Fifth Uncle Lee. Don't, Fifth Uncle. I don't think that brother is a bad person. Li Mingliang was shocked and pulled on Fifth Uncle Lee. What do you know? Would a bad person's face have bad person written on his face? Children should not interrupt when adults are talking. The young man scolded Li Mingliang again. Why are you, adults of his uncle's generation, competing with a child? An unhappy expression flashed across Fifth Uncle Li's face. He was obviously dissatisfied with Li Mingliang being scolded repeatedly. Fifth Uncle. Li Meng was shocked when he heard this and quickly shouted. All right, I know what I'm doing, so you don't have to say anything more. What are you guys still standing there for? Hurry up and save him. Before Li Meng could finish his sentence, he was interrupted by Fifth Uncle Li. Ming Liang, it's too dangerous here. I'll take you to the cabin first. Li Meng, hurry up and save the people here. Fifth Uncle Li did not hesitate at all. He pulled Li Ming Liang and walked towards the cabin. I know. Fifth uncle. You guys, pull the net up. Li Meng cupped his hands unwillingly. The remaining four people on the deck quickly pulled the hemp rope and quickly pulled the fishing net that bound Gu Mingzhou onto the deck. Swish. Without waiting for the crowd to untie the net and release Gu Mingzhou, Li Meng suddenly pulled out the knife at his waist and instantly placed it on Gu Mingzhou's shoulder. I don't care if you're a human or a monster. Since Fifth Uncle saved you out of kindness, you'd better behave yourself. If I find out that you have ulterior motives, Li Meng will not be easy to deal with. Li Meng stared at Gu Mingzhou and said hatefully. Brother, don't worry. I just fell into the sea by accident. I'm very grateful to you for saving my life. I have no evil intentions. Gu Mingzhou didn't care about the knife on his neck. After all, with Gu Mingzhou's current cultivation, ordinary iron could not hurt him. Moreover, he had no ill intentions toward these fishermen. Now, he was even more confused. It was just like what Master Qin had said. After he was caught in a net, he didn't attract the monstrous waves to stop him. This was very weird, and you could say it was abnormal. You too, tie up his hands first, then untie the net. Even though Gu Mingzhou expressed his goodwill again, Li Meng still did not believe him and instructed the people beside him. Got it. Two of the four men who were pulling the net turned around and took out hemp ropes. They quickly tied Gu Mingzhou's hands together and then untied the net. Thank you, brothers. Don't worry. I really don't have any bad intentions. The net left his body, and Gu Mingzhou immediately felt the pressure on his body disappear. Even though his hands were tied up, he still felt relaxed. He quickly thanked the man. You stay here and don't go anywhere. The four of you look after him. I'll go check the situation. Li Meng raised the saber again and waved it in front of Gu Mingzhou as a warning. He turned around and was about to leave. The entire wooden boat seemed to have suffered a heavy blow. A muffled sound rang out. The sail swayed, and the seawater surged. The entire wooden boat began to shake violently. Plop. Everyone on the deck, including Gu Mingzhou, was caught off guard by this sudden change and fell onto the deck. 
Not good. The sea monster is catching up. A panicked voice was heard. What? Li Meng, who had also been knocked down, jumped up, and his expression changed greatly. Without waiting for a reply, he ran to the stern. There was a clamor of human voices coming from the stern of the ship, accompanied by the rolling sound of water and the constant sound of weapons. It was obvious that the people on the stern had already started fighting with the sea monster. The remaining four people on the deck looked nervous. When they got up from the deck, they pulled out their waist knives and stared cautiously at the stern with worried expressions. Brother, what's a sea monster? Gu Mingzhou was too lazy to get up. He sat cross-legged on the deck and looked at Li Meng, who was leaving in a hurry. You've been fishing in the Qing Sea, but you don't know about sea monsters. The young man asked. I accidentally fell into this place. I'm not from here, so I don't know what a sea monster is. Anyway, I have nothing to do now. Can you tell me about it? Gu Mingzhou leaned against the deck and asked. Sea monsters are the man-eating monsters in Qing Sea. Each sea monster is extremely huge and extremely ferocious. It's the biggest nemesis of us fishermen who live on the sea. Without waiting for the young man to answer, the other slightly older fisherman explained first. I see. Have you seen sea monsters before? Gu Mingzhou continued to ask. How can we just meet him as we please? How many people who had seen sea monsters could survive? You're lucky today. The fifth uncle, who asked us to save you, encountered a sea monster when he went fishing five years ago. At that time, he had a group of thirty to forty people, but only fifth uncle managed to escape. The old fisherman seemed to have opened up a chatterbox and started to talk enthusiastically. He simply sat down and told Gu Mingzhou about fifth uncle Li's deeds. It turned out that this fifth uncle Li had been interested in going out to sea to fish five years ago. He had directly driven the fishing boat thousands of miles deep into the Qing Sea. He had wanted to catch some big fish for the winter, but he had unexpectedly encountered a huge sea monster. The sea monster was like a giant python. It was four to five meters thick and three hundred meters long. It had a ferocious face and fangs. When the sea monster appeared, it brought with it a huge wave that directly overturned Fifth Uncle Lee's fishing boat. It then cruelly devoured the fishermen who fell into the water. More than half of Fifth Uncle Lee's group had been killed. Although the remaining seven managed to escape by luck, they were also on the way back. Their physical strength was insufficient, and they drowned one after another. In the end, the only one who returned safely was Fifth Uncle Lee. To be honest, you're really lucky. If it wasn't for Fifth Uncle Lee's favorite grandson, Ming Liang, who went out to sea for the first time and offered to protect you, I'm afraid Fifth Uncle Lee might not have saved you. At the end of his sentence, the old fisherman reached out and patted Gu Mingzhou's shoulder. I'll have to thank that little brother later properly. Gu Mingzhou quickly agreed. Let's talk about this later when we can survive. Now that the sea monster is here, I'm afraid we can't escape. The old fisherman sighed. He stood up again and looked at the stern of the ship. He couldn't help but worry. Heaven helps the good. Good people will be rewarded. Everyone will turn misfortune into a fortune. Gu Mingzhou consoled. Chapter 310 The elderly fisherman forced a smile and looked at Gu Mingzhou with a gentle gaze. However, before Gu Mingzhou could finish his sentence, the wooden boat started shaking violently again. The dull sound came from the stern again, and the wooden boat shook even more violently than before. The seawater churned, and huge waves suddenly rose at the stern. Splash! A huge, pitch-black figure emerged from the waves. It was a black shadow that was three to four times larger than the entire wooden boat. It was round on the top, but eight huge tentacles as thick as an adult man were swaying from the bottom. They were nearly a hundred meters long and swayed between the waves. It was impressive. Release the holy water. Use the holy water. The voice of Fifth Uncle Lee, who had left earlier, could be heard. He seemed to be extremely panicked. Following Fifth Uncle Lee's voice, dozens of water pillars as thick as an arm shot out from the stern of the ship. They hit the black figure in the rolling waves precisely. 
It was unknown what the holy water was, but it left a few wisps of white smoke in the air. When it landed on the black figure, it produced an even more intense reaction. The white smoke turned black, and the sizzling sound was loud. The black smoke rolled and rose continuously. The black shadow seemed to have been severely injured. Its huge body began to twist violently, causing the seawater within a hundred miles to roll and surge. The pitch black figure even let out a sharp, ear piercing scream of pain. The scream was like a sonar, not only ear piercing but also mind shaking. At a speed visible to the naked eye, it instantly engulfed the entire fishing boat. Ah! I can't take it. Help! Many people at the stern couldn't stand the strong sound and fell to the ground, covering their ears with their hands and screaming. There were even some people who were bleeding from their seven orifices. They were extremely terrifying as they rolled on the floor. Bang! Bang! The cabin that was swept by the sharp sound made a loud noise. The entire cabin's roof was directly blown up by the sound. It flew dozens of meters away and fell into the sea. The wind howled, and the sea churned. The fishing boat began to shake violently and creak. Kacha! A cracking sound was heard, and the mast of the fishing boat suddenly broke. Fifth uncle, it's bad. The mast has been blown off. Of the four fishermen guarding Gu Mingzhou, the slightly older fisherman realized the mast was broken. He held on tightly to the railing by the side of the fishing boat and shouted towards the stern. The wind was still howling, and the fishing boat was shaking even more violently. The waves kept hitting the fishing boa, as if it was going to capsize in an instant. The people on the fishing boat no longer attacked the black figure that was struggling in the monstrous waves. They were all flipped over by the violent shaking of the fishing boat. They all fell onto the deck and swayed along with the fishing boat. They were in great pain. This is a sea monster. Gu Mingzhou held the guardrails beside him and let the fishing boat sway. He looked at the stern of the boat and saw a dark figure struggling violently in the huge waves. The more he looked, the more familiar he felt. Unfortunately, the distance was too far, and with the splashing sea water and huge waves, he could only see the outline, not sure if he had seen it before. It seems that this time, we're probably doomed. Just as Gu Mingzhou was observing the sea monster, the fishermen behind him who were responsible for guarding the ship had almost been shaken to all corners by the fishing boat. Only the old fisherman held the guardrail beside him tightly and barely managed to stabilize his body. He leaned against Gu Mingzhou and spat out a mouthful of seawater. Big brother, we're already on the verge of death. Can I discuss something with you? Gu Mingzhou shouted. What is it? You tell me. The fisherman said. Help me untie the rope. Gu Mingzhou allowed the splashing seawater to hit him. The fisherman did not seem to expect Gu Mingzhou to make such a request at this time. Fine, I'll help you cut the rope so your hands won't be tied up when you reach the netherworld. The fisherman did not refuse. Gu Mingzhou took advantage of the moment and the fishing boat tilted to the side and reached the fisherman in two steps. The fisherman didn't hesitate. He immediately waved the waste knife in his right hand and cut the rope that tied his hands. Many thanks, big brother. How should I address you? Gu Mingzhou asked as he grabbed the railing and supported the fisherman with his hands. My name is Li Hao. If you want to, you can call me Uncle Hao. I see that you have extraordinary skills, so you must be good at swimming. Now that no one has found you, quickly escape by yourself. Li Hao said as he came back to his senses. Fifth Uncle Li, who had been directing the fight against the sea monster at the stern, suddenly rolled over. It was very fast. It rolled past Gu Mingzhou and Li Hao instantly and stopped right next to the broken mast. Fifth Uncle Li braved the strong wind and waves and stood up on the violently shaking deck. He used the rope beside him to tie himself to the broken mast, suddenly grabbing the fallen sail with both hands. You must be steady. Don't be afraid, our holy water will definitely injure the sea monster, and it won't be able to do anything. Let the helmsman drive the ship away, and I'll lift the sail. Fifth Uncle Li, who was grabbing the sail, shouted at the top of his voice. The strong wind came at the right time. 
It happened to blow on the sail that Fifth Uncle Lee had raised alone, causing the fishing boat, which was deep in the waves, to be blown more than forty meters away. Although he was not completely out of the control of the waves and sea monsters, he had left the place where the sea water was the most turbulent. This allowed the fishing boat that was on the verge of falling apart to escape death, and even the shaking speed was not as intense as before. Helmsman, set sail quickly. Fifth uncle is holding the sail. Li Meng's voice was heard from the stern of the ship. The helmsman, who had been hesitating, finally regained control of the rudder and began to control the fishing boat, wanting to leave this place. At this moment, the giant black figure in the monstrous waves seemed to sense that the fishing boat was about to escape. Its body suddenly shook and pulled out two huge tentacles. Whoosh! The two fearsome-looking tentacles instantly pierced through the waves and whipped toward the fishing boat. Before it even got close, the tail of the fishing boat had already sunk. If it hit, the fishing boat would probably fall apart on the spot. The fishermen, who had just built up their confidence, were dumbfounded at this moment. The unavoidable aura of death made them completely desperate. Grandpa. Li Mingliang, who was crying, suddenly ran out of the cabin without a roof. His thin and shaking body seemed to be blown away as he ran towards Fifth Uncle Li, who was lifting the mast. Before Li Mingliang could run to Fifth Uncle Li's side, the tentacle in mid-air had already attacked him. Li Mingliang instantly twitched. Mingliang. Fifth Uncle Li's eyes were red as he roared. The people on the fishing boat were also in a state of panic as they roared. When the tentacle was close to Li Mingliang, it suddenly stopped. Fifth Uncle Li, who was in so much pain that he wanted to die, realized that a figure had appeared behind his grandson and blocked the sea monster's fierce attack with his bare hands. Gu Mingzhou. Fifth Uncle Li instantly recognized the person who had saved his grandson. It was the young man he had saved from the sea. How is that possible? He actually blocked the sea monster's attack with his bare hands. Oh my god! The people on the fishing boat also recognized Gu Mingzhou, and they all showed expressions of disbelief. Chapter, 311 Good job, little brother. Although Li Hao was also shocked, he did not find it hard to believe. Instead, he clenched his right hand and shouted excitedly. Gu Mingzhou smiled and comforted the young man. The sea monster was obviously enraged by the holy water. When the fishing boat escaped, it attacked ruthlessly, throwing out two extremely fierce tentacles. Naturally, he would not stand by and watch. He easily restrained the tentacle and saved the youngster, Li Mingliang, and the fishing boat. He also recognized the true identity of the sea monster that terrified the fishermen. It was actually a squid-like monster. However, what he was puzzled about was that he did not sense any spiritual energy from the tentacle that the squid had pulled out. In other words, it was very likely that this squid had no spiritual energy but possessed terrifying cultivation. This made Gu Mingzhou very confused. It did not use his spiritual energy but displayed such a powerful force. It was truly unbelievable. Just as he was speculating about the identity of the squid, the sea monster in the huge waves in the distance seemed to have sensed Gu Mingzhou's existence. The second tentacle that swept over became even more ferocious. This tentacle was obviously several times more ferocious and swept at an angle. Before it even got close, it shook the sea and shook the fishing boat. You're courting death. Gu Mingzhou snorted coldly. He stretched out his hand and grabbed at the air. With a flash of red light, a long spear appeared out of thin air. He did not stop and instantly stabbed the tentacle. Green blood spurted out. Gu Mingzhou's long spear, which was enhanced with spiritual energy, easily broke the tentacle. Plop! The tentacle immediately left its body and fell onto the deck of the fishing boat, rolling around. The squid in the huge wave let out a sharp cry of pain. Its originally trembling body was now shaking even more violently. It instantly pulled back the tentacle that Gu Mingzhou had grabbed. After the tentacle left Gu Mingzhou's control, the squid turned around and ran away without hesitation. However, Gu Mingzhou's curiosity about this squid had already been piqued, so he naturally wouldn't let it leave. You want to leave? Wasn't it too late? 
Gu Mingzhou tapped the tip of his foot slightly on the deck, and his entire body instantly darted out. The squid was fast, but Gu Mingzhou was even faster. When half of the squid's body sank into the sea, Gu Mingzhou had already rushed over. The squid, which had fled without a fight, immediately let out a panicked shriek when it discovered the humans chasing after it. Its remaining seven tentacles instantly lashed out at Gu Mingzhou simultaneously. One tentacle was already very terrifying. Seven tentacles came out at the same time and instantly dispersed the monstrous wave, which suddenly slapped toward Gu Mingzhou. Good moves. Gu Mingzhou's diving body turned in the air. After a few jumps, he easily dodged the attack of the seven tentacles. He instantly grabbed the tentacle that brushed past him and poured out his spiritual energy. The squid, which had half of its body submerged in the sea, was immediately pulled out by him and thrown into the sky. Gu Mingzhou used all his strength, and the squid, which weighed 500 kilograms, was thrown up high into the air. It flew more than 10 meters out of the sea. The squid was also completely enraged by Gu Mingzhou. Its flying body suddenly turned around in the air and directly descended from the sky. Its seven tentacles were like celestial maiden scattering flowers as it suddenly whipped toward Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou hurriedly stepped into the air and lightly touched the tip of the waves. His figure was like lightning as he quickly avoided the tentacles. The tendrils were smacked on the surface of the sea. The water splashed everywhere, and the seawater shook. The tentacles that were constantly beating on the surface of the sea caused the water that had just calmed down to become turbulent again. Gu Mingzhou took advantage of the moment and the seven tentacles slapped the sea's surface to hit the huge wave suddenly. He jumped up and instantly flew to the squid's bald head. Let's end this. With the long spear in hand, Gu Mingzhou did not hesitate at all. He immediately released the spiritual energy in his body and stabbed at the squid's head. Tens of thousands of spear shadows appeared out of thin air. They were extremely swift and instantly stabbed toward the squid's head. Muffled sounds rang out in succession, and thick green blood spurted out like a curtain of rain, spraying into the sea. The squid let out a few soft cries of pain. The seven thick and long tendrils under its huge body trembled slightly twice before it went limp. It instantly fell from the sky and into the sea. Huge waves splashed up, and layers of ripples spread in all directions like huge waves. Even the fishing boat not far away was blown forward by the huge wave. Gu Mingzhou immediately retracted his spear. He then flew back to the deck and cupped his hands at the people around him. Everyone on the fishing boat, whether it was Fifth Uncle Li, who was holding the mast, or Li Meng, who was holding the saber, all looked at Gu Mingzhou with their mouths agape. Little brother, no, senior, are you a high-ranking person who can fly in the sky and burrow underground? Li Hao, who had untied Gu Mingzhou earlier, was extremely excited. He quickly ran to Gu Mingzhou's side and sized him up. A high-ranking person? It can be considered so. Gu Mingzhou said tacitly. Fifth Uncle Li woke up from his shock. He put down the sail in his hand and took out a knife to cut the rope tied to his body. If we're talking about saving lives, you and I also were each other's life-saving benefactor, so we're even. Gu Mingzhou reached out and patted Li Hao's shoulder. With senior's abilities, I'm afraid that even without us, you would be able to move unhindered in Qing Si. Without waiting for Li Hao's reply, Fifth Uncle Li hurried over and cupped his hands at Gu Mingzhou. Fifth Uncle Li, you're too polite. I'm not worthy of being called a senior. You're a highly respected elder, so you can just call me Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou quickly reached out to help Fifth Uncle Li. Then I'll take advantage of my seniority and call you Mingzhou. Fifth Uncle Li burst into laughter. That's right, Fifth Uncle, I just arrived here and am unfamiliar with this place. May I know where this is? Gu Mingzhou nodded and asked. This is the shallow shore of Qing Si. We are all fishermen from the island not far away. Have you heard of it? Fifth Uncle Li explained. Qingxia Island. Gu Mingzhou shook his head slightly. He had never heard of this name. How about this, you come back with us to Qingxia Island, we've gained more or less this time anyway. Fifth Uncle Li said, not minding at all. 
Fifth uncle, the fish we caught in the ocean these two days all fell into the ocean during the turbulence just now. Li Meng jogged over and whispered into fifth uncle Li's ear. What? Fifth uncle Li's expression changed drastically upon hearing this. There's no dry food, and even our fishing tools are basically gone. Li Meng said sadly. Go and check on the people. It's fine as long as everyone is fine. Fifth Uncle Li seemed to have aged a lot in an instant as he waved his hand at Li Meng. Fifth Uncle, the day after tomorrow is the day we hand over the food. If we can't hand over enough food Li Meng said anxiously. I still have some in stock. If it's not enough, I'll give them the holy ancestor's fish bone. Fifth Uncle Li had an awkward smile on his face as he waved his hand. No. Without waiting for Fifth Uncle to finish, everyone on the ship interrupted him in unison. We can't give the Holy Ancestor fish bone to those people. If we hand over the Holy Ancestor fish bone, I'm afraid Qingshir Island will be in danger. Li Hao persuaded. Fifth Uncle, we definitely can't hand over the Holy Ancestor fish bone. I'll take five people on a small boat and fish it out from the sea. Li Meng said in disagreement. Chapter 312. Qing Si is so dangerous, how can we just jump down? Everyone, go back. Fifth Uncle Li was furious and scolded. If you really need to harvest, why don't you fish up the squid just now and bring it back? Gu Mingzhou pointed to the place where the squid had fallen. The people who were arguing were suddenly stunned and came over to Gu Mingzhou in unison. That's right, that sea monster is so huge. It's definitely heavy. Why don't we salvage it, and then we can hand it over? Li Hao reacted and said. If those guys ask, how do we explain it? After all, our strength isn't enough to subdue such a terrifying sea monster, right? Fifth Uncle Li was caught in a dilemma. I do have a way to deal with those people, so they think you can subdue the sea monster. Gu Mingzhou explained. Brother Mingzhou, do you have any good ideas? Fifth Uncle Li was delighted and quickly asked. It's very simple. On the way back, we'll throw a squid tentacle into the sea every hundred miles. Then, we'll spray the holy water to deal with the sea monsters on the corpses. Gu Mingzhou slowly revealed the plan in his heart. Wonderful. Excellent. Fifth Uncle Li immediately understood what he meant. On the other hand, Li Meng did not understand what Gu Mingzhou meant and looked at the crowd in confusion. To put it simply, it was to create the illusion that when the sea monsters were on the verge of death, they were discovered and killed with holy water. This explained that they didn't have the ability to kill the sea monster, and they just happened to encounter the sea monster's corpse. This way, our exchange can be completed, and we don't have to give the holy ancestor's fish bone to those bad people. Li Mingliang was overjoyed when he heard this. Fifth Uncle Li no longer seemed to be the brave warrior who raised the seven or eight meter long sail alone in the time of danger. Instead, he became an amiable old man. Li Meng understood what Gu Mingzhou meant. His previous gloominess was swept away, and he revealed a bright smile. Then, Fifth Uncle, I'll bring some people to prepare the chopping knife and holy water. We'll deal with it after the sea monster is fished up. Li Meng said to Fifth Uncle Li. Go. Fifth Uncle Li said as he hugged Li Mingliang. Don't worry, Fifth Uncle. Even if I have to go into the sea to catch them with my bare hands, I'll let Brother Mingzhou and all of you have a good meal today. Li Hao immediately cupped his hands. Mingliang, go with your Uncle Li Hao to the cabin to help. Fifth Uncle Li patted Li Mingliang's head and said softly. I know, Grandpa. Li Mingliang replied with a smile and walked to the cabin with Li Hao. Brother Mingzhou, may I have a word with you? Fifth Uncle Li looked kindly at Li Mingliang and Li Hao as they entered the cabin. Then, he turned around and said to Gu Mingzhou in a low voice. Gu Mingzhou was stunned. He immediately guessed Fifth Uncle Li's purpose. He probably wanted to probe Gu Mingzhou's background. After all, the method he had just used to kill the squid was too shocking for these fishermen who had no cultivation at all. Of course, I also happen to have some questions that I would like to ask Fifth Uncle. Thinking of this, Gu Mingzhou immediately cupped his hands and said. 
Fifth Uncle Lee nodded slightly and immediately walked toward the bow of the ship. There was no one there, and it was a place that few people went to. Gu Mingzhou was thinking about how to make Fifth Uncle Lee believe him. He followed Fifth Uncle Lee and walked to the stern of the ship. Brother Mingzhou, from your behavior, clothing, and cultivation, you're different from us. I don't think you're from here, right? Fifth Uncle Lee suddenly turned around, wiped away his smile, and deliberately lowered his voice. I accidentally slipped and fell into the Qing Sea. It's not wrong to say that I'm not from your place. Gu Mingzhou didn't understand what Fifth Uncle Lee's sudden question meant. That's not what I'm asking. You're not from this world. He said. Fifth Uncle Lee's expression suddenly became serious. He stared at Gu Mingzhou as if he was afraid that others would hear him. He even glanced around and said in a deep voice. Gu Mingzhou's heart sank. He squinted at Fifth Uncle Lee but did not answer. He was indeed not a person of this world, or perhaps this place could not even be considered a world. In his eyes, regardless of whether it was people or objects, they were merely the third tribulation set up by the Qin Emperor. Although he did not find any loopholes in the illusion, he would not treat this place as a world. This was also the reason why he acted last when the sea monster attacked the fishing boat. After all, he had come here to challenge the third life's tribulation. But now, Fifth Uncle Li's words made Gu Mingzhou suddenly feel that he had thought wrong. This might really be a different world, or rather, a space. If this place was simply the third tribulation set up by the Qin Emperor, then the people here should not doubt his identity. Even if they did, they would not suspect that he was not from this world. I guessed it. Seeing Gu Mingzhou's silence, Fifth Uncle Li's face suddenly turned fierce, but there was a little helplessness and unwillingness mixed in. He said in a calm tone. What are you trying to say? Gu Mingzhou felt that Fifth Uncle Li was not a simple person. If I'm not wrong, you're actually here to undergo a tribulation, right? Fifth Uncle Li paused for a moment, and a smile reappeared on his face as he said in a low voice. I've really underestimated you, Gu Mingzhou said coldly. The spiritual energy in his body instantly surrounded his body. Fifth Uncle Li, who had suddenly become somewhat unfamiliar, gave him a strong sense of unease. If you kill me or harm the people of Qingshu Island, I can guarantee that you will never be able to leave this place. Fifth Uncle Li's originally honest and kind face instantly became extremely sinister. He directly threatened Gu Mingzhou. I don't have any ill intentions. But that doesn't mean I'm easy to bully. Gu Mingzhou was not afraid of the threat and retorted directly. Ever since Fifth Uncle Li had suddenly revealed his identity, the uneasiness in his heart had been rising. It was as if he had fallen into a trap. It was as if everything that had happened after he was trapped in the strange fishing net had been a trap set up for him. This included the ferocious squid sea monster and the fisherman who had escaped from death. It made Gu Mingzhou feel like it was a trap, and an ominous premonition rose in his heart. Seeing Gu Mingzhou's expression change, Fifth Uncle Li immediately smiled smugly. His old but clear eyes looked around. After he was sure that no one was paying attention to the two of them, he approached Gu Mingzhou. Actually, my purpose is very simple before he could finish, Fifth Uncle Li's eyes suddenly turned cold. He waved his right hand, which had been behind his back. Swish! A dagger that glinted coldly suddenly appeared in Fifth Uncle Li's hand. Before Gu Mingzhou could react, the dagger was already stabbed into his lower abdomen. A dark red color instantly bloomed on the deck. Fifth Uncle Li's sudden thrust of the dagger was completely out of Gu Mingzhou's expectations. After all, Fifth Uncle Li was just a mortal without any cultivation. Even if he stood still and let him hit him, it would definitely be difficult to hurt him. When he saw the cold light that suddenly flashed in Fifth Uncle Li's hand, he subconsciously thought that with Fifth Uncle Li's ability, no matter how sharp a weapon was, it would definitely be difficult to break through the protective essence energy. It was his arrogance that brought about this unbelievable nightmare. Chapter, 313 Although the dagger that Fifth Uncle Li suddenly took out did not look like a divine weapon, when it stabbed Gu Mingzhou's body, it instantly broke through his body protection spiritual energy and directly stabbed into his lower abdomen. What? 
Gu Mingzhou looked in disbelief at the dagger that was more than three inches deep in his body. Anger rose in his heart. His right hand, which was already surrounded by spiritual energy, suddenly slapped out. However, what shocked Gu Mingzhou was that when he pushed his palm out, he immediately felt that the vital essence in his body seemed to be absorbed by something and was quickly consumed. Before his right palm could hit Fifth Uncle Lee, the spiritual energy around his palm had already been exhausted and disappeared. And as the spiritual energy in his body was rapidly drained, Gu Mingzhou clearly felt tired and powerless. The seemingly fierce palm strike had already gone limp when it hit Fifth Uncle Lee's chest. It only touched him lightly before it fell down powerlessly. A strong sense of exhaustion hit him. Gu Mingzhou only felt his body become limp and weak, and he involuntarily fell backward. Plop. With a muffled sound, Gu Mingzhou fell directly on the deck. However, he didn't feel any pain caused by the fall. Even the wound on his lower abdomen that was constantly bleeding didn't hurt at all. All he could feel was fatigue, dizziness, and a strong sense of sleepiness. Don't blame me for being ruthless. A voice filled with vicissitudes of life and helplessness, mixed with helplessness and eeriness, suddenly rang in Gu Mingzhou's ears. The sound of messy footsteps, accompanied by the sound of discussion, came from far away and quickly approached Gu Mingzhou. But he didn't even have the strength to look back. He couldn't resist the strong sense of weakness and fainting. The dagger that Fifth Uncle Li had stabbed into Gu Mingzhou's abdomen had been coated with a special poison. Otherwise, with Gu Mingzhou's mortal realm cultivation, it was impossible for him to fall unconscious from a knife wound. In other words, before Fifth Uncle Li made a move on Gu Mingzhou, he had everything planned. It was a well-prepared scheme. Just as he thought of this, he fell into a coma. The feeling of fainting was very strange, and it made him fall into a deep sleep. Gu Mingzhou didn't know how long he had been unconscious or how long he had slept. When he woke up again, he felt much more comfortable. All the fatigue from before had been swept away. The sky had already turned dark. He was tied up by a special fishing net that could seal the spiritual energy in his body. Outside the fishing net, there was a strong hemp rope as thick as two fingers, which tied him to the wooden chair and bound his limbs, making him unable to move. This was a stone house built entirely of stone. There was a very small skylight on the roof, from which a few rays of light could be seen so that the entire stone house was not completely dark. How long have I been unconscious? Gu Mingzhou looked up at the skylight and muttered to himself. From the looks of it, the fishing boat had already left Qin Si and returned to the Qingxia Island that Fifth Uncle Li had mentioned. After all, he had seen you before. There was no such stone house, and of course, it couldn't accommodate such a big stone house. Since Fifth Uncle Li had been scheming against Gu Mingzhou from the start, he could not guarantee the authenticity of the other's words. Perhaps, there was no such thing as a blue rock island in this place, and it was all to win his trust. I don't have any spiritual energy left in my body. When Gu Mingzhou, who had completely woken up, looked inside himself, he found that his dantian had dried up. He couldn't help but feel a little helpless. He really didn't expect that he would be tricked by a mortal. If someone in the mortal realm wanted to kill Fifth Uncle Li and the others, it would be as easy as blowing off dust. It was also because of this that Gu Mingzhou let down his guard. He was confident that even if the other party had ulterior motives against him, he would not be able to do anything to him. However, he did not expect that he was still overconfident. What was wrong with that dagger? He didn't seem to be flustered. Instead, he gradually calmed down and began to think about the reason. The first thing he thought of was the dagger that Fifth Uncle Lee used. The dagger that Fifth Uncle Lee used was definitely specially processed. Not only did it easily break through Gu Mingzhou's protective spiritual energy, but it also had the ability to devour spiritual energy after piercing into Gu Mingzhou's body, making him become like a mortal and temporarily lose his cultivation. Creak. As Gu Mingzhou was thinking, the dull sound of the door opening suddenly rang out. The tightly shut stone door immediately opened, and bright light instantly shone in. A figure walked in. He quickly closed his eyes and pretended to be unconscious. What was the purpose of these people capturing him? Since you're awake, why pretend to be unconscious? 
Do you miss that feeling? The person who walked in seemed to know Gu Mingzhou's situation like the back of his hand. He stopped three meters away from him, and an extremely familiar voice suddenly sounded. Gu Mingzhou no longer pretended to be unconscious. He looked surprised. It's you. He squinted his eyes and stared at the figure standing at the door. Even though he couldn't see the person's face clearly, he could guess who the person was from the familiar voice. Even though he had thought of thousands of possibilities, he never thought that he would actually meet them here. That's right, it's me. Are you surprised? The person stood quietly in front of Gu Mingzhou and said lightly. There was a sharp voice in the gloominess, and those who heard it could not help but feel a cold breeze. I really didn't expect to meet you here. Was this all a trap you set up to catch me? Gu Mingzhou saw the person clearly and even guessed the reason why the other party had set up a trap to capture him. The trap I set up was not meant for you only. The man said softly with his hands behind his back. Not only me. Who else do you want to catch? What about Lu Yucheng and the others? Why aren't they with you? Are they also your targets? Gu Mingzhou frowned. The other party's answer this time was a little unexpected. Ha ha ha. I like to talk to smart people. You can get it right with just a little hint. You guessed right, and you don't have to wait long. The others will come to accompany you. The man suddenly burst into laughter. The silver light from the starry sky shone on his face, revealing his true face. It was Wei Lin, who had been separated from Gu Mingzhou not long ago. The sky was filled with stars, and the moon hung high in the sky, sprinkling down silver light to resist the darkness so that the world was not pitch black. Gu Mingzhou could clearly see that the other party was Wei Lin, whom he guessed from the voice. Wei Lin was wearing a loose hooded robe that covered his entire body. He raised his skinny face slightly and looked at the starlight outside the door with a smile. What a good plan. If everyone is captured, you'll be the only one to pass the third life's tribulation. Gu Mingzhou said as he stared at Wei Lin. He would never have thought that his sneak attack and capture by Fifth Uncle Li was actually a trap set by Wei Lin. Moreover, Wei Lin's trap wasn't just targeted at him. Instead, it was targeted at everyone who had entered the calamity. Chapter, 314 From this moment on, Shang Wan Fei, Wu Ji Patriarch, Lu Yucheng, and He Yuyang were all targets of Wei Lin's plan. The other party's goal was obvious. As long as the other intruders were eliminated, the inheritance left behind by the Qing Emperor would fall into Wei Lin's pocket. But what made Gu Mingzhou a little puzzled was how Wei Lin, who had entered at the same time, had managed to set up a trap before everyone else. Everything else aside, it would take a very long time. Unless Wei Lin had just entered and immediately appeared on Qingxia Island, then quickly set up a trap. How did Wei Lin manage to get the people here to work for him during this process? Gu Mingzhou couldn't figure out the reason. With the other party's cultivation base, it was absolutely impossible for him to control everyone here in an instant. Unless the Qing Emperor was deliberately taking care of him, or perhaps he already knew the people here and could even gain control over them. Gu Mingzhou could only think of two answers for the time being. No matter which one it was, he didn't think it was realistic. The Qing Emperor was a figure from the ancient era. The possibility of others surviving in the land of inheritance was almost zero. After all, when one reached the level of the Qing Emperor, one would only pursue higher things and would definitely not stick to the fundamental principles and remain stagnant. Secondly, Wei Lin was a cultivator from the great world. Other people might not know about his life experiences, but Lu Yucheng and Wu Ji Sex Patriarch knew them very well. Therefore, Wei Lin was definitely not from this place. Besides, Shang Wan Fei said without the Nine Jade Keys, there's no way to open this unknown dimension. How did the other party manage to set up all this? Gu Mingzhou put his doubts to the back of his mind for the time being. They would be answered eventually. How can you be sure that they will fall into the trap? Whether it's Wu Ji Sex Patriarch or Lu Yucheng, they're both cunning old foxes. There's even Shang Wan Fei, who's even more powerful. Gu Mingzhou asked. Without spiritual energy, Wu Ji Patriarch, Lu Yucheng, and even Shang Wan Fei are all useless in front of me. 
Wei Lin replied in a dark tone. They don't have spiritual energy, but aren't you the same? We don't know who will win. Gu Mingzhou didn't believe Wei Lin's words. Who told you that I don't have spiritual energy? In the face of Gu Mingzhou's doubts, Wei Lin's expression was disdainful. Wei Lin suddenly stretched out his right hand and clenched it into a fist in front of his chest. His index and middle fingers formed a sword finger and flicked out. Buzz! The dark blue flame immediately jumped out and burned on Wei Lin's fingertips. You have spiritual energy. How is this possible? Gu Mingzhou said in surprise. He was even more shocked than when he first saw Wei Lin. After all, he had tried it countless times, but it was to no avail. There was no spiritual energy in this world. Now that Wei Lin actually had spiritual energy, Gu Mingzhou naturally thought of the reason. Extremely dense spiritual energy burst out of Wei Lin's body and instantly locked onto Gu Mingzhou. A powerful pressure with a strong aura of death directly attacked Gu Mingzhou's heart. This how is that possible? A huge wave was set off in Gu Mingzhou's heart. If the flame before were the vital essence that Wei Lin had stored in his body before he came here, then it would be the same. Now, it was, undoubtedly, proof that the other party's spiritual energy was endless. He could clearly feel it from the pressure of the true energy that was locked on him. This was a special ability of mortal realm cultivators, a spell controlling the natural energy to lock onto the opponent. Wei Lin was actually able to control endless heaven and earth vital essence in a world without it. There's no absolute in everything. You're still too inexperienced. Even if you have heavenly talent and great fortune, you've only cultivated for a few decades. Wei Lin looked at the surprised Gu Mingzhou and said lightly. I'm going to capture all of you and bring you to Qingxiu Island. Then, I'll cut off the tendons in your hands and feet and destroy your Dantian cultivation. I'll make you all watch as I obtain the Qing Emperor's inheritance and achieve Fela. Ultimately, I'll bring you back to the freezing cold land and unify the world. Wei Lin's face was extremely ferocious as he laughed heartily and left the stone house arrogantly. He should be happy. There was no spiritual energy in this world, so no one could cultivate. On the other hand, Wei Lin happened to be able to cultivate and seemed to be able to absorb even purer vital essence. This meant that when everyone became an ordinary martial artist, Wei Lin would be in control of the lives of everyone in this world. It seemed to be a fantasizing and perverted idea, but it was possible to realize it here. As long as he obtained the inheritance of the Qing Emperor, then not only in this world, but even in the real world, who could be his opponent? Su Feng Yu. The world god was powerful, but Gu Mingzhou could not place his hopes on this person. Whether it was Su Feng Yu or Wei Lin who won, they were both extremely terrifying nightmares for the creatures of the great world. Thump. With Wei Lin's departure, the stone door that brought bright moonlight to the stone house closed. The entire stone house fell into darkness once again. Even though the skylight above Gu Mingzhou's head was open, for some reason, the moonlight that shone down on him made him feel a lot dimmer. An inexplicable chill crept into his heart, causing him to shiver uncontrollably. He did not know when it started, but goosebumps had already covered his entire body. Wei Lin's words before he left truly shocked him. He had never thought that Wei Lin didn't just want to snatch the Qing Emperor's inheritance but to rule the world. Obtaining the Qing Emperor's inheritance and establishing a sect would not be a problem. With such strength, he was definitely the most tyrannical existence in the great world. It was not impossible for him to rule the world. However, if the world was ruled by someone like Wei Lin, what would its future be like? Gu Mingzhou was not a compassionate person, but he would not allow the people in his hometown to suffer. Or could it be that the legendary expert of the Zhou dynasty, the husband of the Empress, Duke He, could stop Wei Lin. No, I must stop him. He looked at the closed stone door in the dark and muttered to himself. Jing Wudao, Master Qin. It was as if he had caught hold of his life force and quickly called out. Back in the Qin Sea, when Gu Mingzhou was caught by Fifth Uncle Li's fishing net, he had asked Master Qin for help. However, back then, Master Qin didn't save Gu Mingzhou at all. Instead, he entered his Dantian and said that he was treating Jing Wudao's injuries. 
now that he thought of Master Qin's existence, he was naturally ecstatic. With Master Qin's magical treatment methods, Jing Wudao would have been cured after such a long time. I really did owe you in my past life. As expected, following Gu Mingzhou's call, a lazy voice sounded in his ears. His voice was filled with dissatisfaction. The purple ray suddenly shot out from Gu Mingzhou's lower abdomen and instantly landed on his shoulder. The light faded, revealing a purple figure the size of a palm. It was Master Qin, whom he hadn't seen in a long time. I want you to rest, but the situation doesn't allow it. Gu Mingzhou didn't argue with Master Qin. Instead, with a pleading tone, he turned to look at Master Qin, who had landed on his shoulder, and said with a smile. Gu Mingzhou knew Master Qin's temper very well. This guy was an old urchin. Not only was his identity mysterious, but his methods were also extremely magical. He always gave Gu Mingzhou an inexplicable feeling. Chapter 315 If he were to use force against him, he was afraid that it would not be worth it. Thus, Gu Mingzhou changed his usual attitude and temporarily gave in. A man should know when to yield and not. I haven't seen you for two days, but why is your mouth as sweet as honey? Seeing that you're so sensible, I'll be merciful and help you. In the face of Gu Mingzhou's flattery, Master Qin was instantly overjoyed. His previous dissatisfaction was swept away, and he said with a smile. Then, I'll have to trouble Master Qin to help me heal my injuries and recover my spiritual energy. Gu Mingzhou said. It's a small matter. Master Qin replied nonchalantly. Master Qin's tiny body instantly rose into the air and floated above Gu Mingzhou's head. In the darkness, the purple light curtain fell and quickly covered him. The wound on Gu Mingzhou's lower abdomen was healing at a speed visible to the naked eye. In an instant, the wound had disappeared and recovered. His dried up Dantian was also gradually producing spiritual energy. In the blink of an eye, it was already full. You just recovered less than two days ago, and your spiritual energy has already dried up. After healing Gu Mingzhou, Master Qin immediately put away the light screen and returned to Gu Mingzhou's shoulder. I wouldn't be so depressed if I were to be caught after two days of fighting Gu Mingzhou told Master Qin in detail about how he had been caught on the fishing boat, killed the sea monster, and then lost consciousness after being sneak attacked by Fifth Uncle Lee. That stinky brat whose entire body is filled with demonic chi still has such great ambitions. You can't compare to him. After listening to Gu Mingzhou's story, Master Qin actually praised Wei Lin while mocking Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou was a little speechless. What should we do next? Master Qin could tell that Gu Mingzhou was embarrassed, so he changed the topic. Help me untie this fishing net first. It can restrain my cultivation. I can't break free, Gu Mingzhou said helplessly as he shook his head. I have a plan, but I don't know if you want to hear it. Master Qin said mysteriously. Why don't you tell me? Gu Mingzhou didn't have any good ideas, but now that he heard that Master Qin had a plan, he had to listen. Master Qin floated to Gu Mingzhou's ear. After explaining the plan, Master Qin flew back to his Dantian. Gu Mingzhou raised his head and looked at the sky full of stars through the skylight. Even if Wei Lin had used all his tricks, he wouldn't have thought that there would be a loophole in the plan he thought was perfect. Ever since he had come to see Gu Mingzhou that night and displayed what he thought was a perfect plan, Wei Lin had not appeared again. He seemed to be focused on dealing with Shang Wan Fei and the others. There was no news about Shang Wan Fei and the others for four or five days. Without spiritual energy, one could not cultivate. Life was much more relaxed at this time. Three days later, more people were sent over. But Gu Mingzhou did not expect that the person who came would be Shang Wan Fei, who had the highest cultivation among the people who had entered the Three Lives Tribulation. Shang Wan Fei was in a sorry state when he was caught. His embroidered yellow robes were in tatters, and his hair and face were unkempt. He was covered in wounds, and his entire person seemed extremely dispirited, on the verge of death. Moreover, Shang Wan Fei was not bound by the silk net but was directly carried into the stone house by four strong men. It was obvious that he had retaliated strongly when he was caught. 
It was a pity that he, who had limited spiritual energy, was not only defeated by Wei Lin, who could endlessly absorb spiritual energy, but it was also a crushing defeat. Wei Lin also tortured him. Plop. The brawny man who carried Sheng Wan Fei into the stone house did not show any mercy. He threw Sheng Wan Fei to the ground, causing dust to fly up. The four of them turned around and left, ignoring Gu Mingzhou and closing the door tightly. Are you still alive? Gu Mingzhou waited for the stone door to completely close before approaching Sheng Wan Fei and asking in a low voice. He didn't know if it was because he was too seriously injured, but he didn't answer Gu Mingzhou's question, or he was deliberately ignoring Gu Mingzhou. Hello. Gu Mingzhou continued to ask as he observed Shang Wan Fei's condition. Even though Shang Wan Fei looked extremely weak now. However, the influence of a powerful man lingers after his downfall, so he has to be careful. Shang Wan Fei, who was lying on the ground, still had no reaction and did not say anything. After a long while, Gu Mingzhou couldn't help but step closer to the other party. As Gu Mingzhou approached, Shang Wan Fei's face, which was lying on the ground and turning sideways, was suddenly exposed to him. Shang Wan Fei's face was pale and bloodless. His eyes were closed, and his breathing was weak. Even though he had shortened the distance to three meters, he was still unmoved. He's really unconscious. Gu Mingzhou thought to himself that the other party's current condition really did look like he had fainted. When one's cultivation reached Shang Wan Fei's level, their soul would be extremely strong, and their willpower would be even stronger. How could he fall unconscious so easily without any medicine? With suspicion in his mind, Gu Mingzhou slowly stepped forward and approached Shang Wan Fei again. One, two, three. He walked very slowly, and the distance between him and Shang Wan Fei gradually shortened. When Gu Mingzhou was only three steps away from Shang Wan Fei, Shang Wan Fei, who had been lying still on the ground, suddenly opened his eyes. Go to hell. A loud shout resounded in the stone chamber. Shang Wan Fei suddenly turned over, rose into the air, and struck his right palm at Gu Mingzhou's chest. Three pitch black concealed weapons shot out, fast as lightning and extremely violent. Gu Mingzhou's expression changed. Now that Shang Wan Fei had suddenly launched a sneak attack, he immediately waved his right hand, and a long spear appeared out of thin air, spinning in front of him instantly. Clang! 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 Three metal clanging sounds rang out. The three hidden weapons that were as fast as lightning was immediately blocked and shaken off by the spinning long spear. Gu Mingzhou made a prompt decision. With a light tap of his right foot, his whole body instantly flew backward, directly putting some distance between him and Shang Wan Fei. With the spear in his hand, he stared at them warily. After missing his first attack, Shang Wan Fei did not continue to attack. He flipped over and landed on the ground. He staggered a few steps back and leaned against the wall, looking at Gu Mingzhou. It's you. Shang Wan Fei cried out. I didn't expect that island master Shang Wan's means would be so fierce even when he is under the control of others. If I hadn't been prepared, I'm afraid I would have really died here. Gu Mingzhou's tone was calm, and he did not have any intention of reproaching. Shang Wan Fei had always been sanctimonious, polite, and in control of the world. Now that he was in such a sorry state, it was already very embarrassing for him. The method of using hidden weapons to hurt people was the complete opposite of his previous image. I'm sorry, I thought it was that thief Wei Lin, so Shang Wan Fei awkwardly cupped his hands at Gu Mingzhou and said humbly, but at the same time, he still is cautious. It was no wonder. After all, Shang Wan Fei had led the others to hunt down Gu Mingzhou before this. Moreover, what Shang Wan Fei apologized for was his own identity. Gu Mingzhou would not take the initiative to expose him, lest it made both sides feel awkward. Island Master Shang Wan, you don't have to blame yourself. This is human nature. I'm afraid I would have done the same. Gu Mingzhou waved his hand and said. Right, why are you here? Could it be that you were also captured by Wei Lin or? Hearing this, Shang Wan Fei forced out a smile, but he did not let down his guard. Chapter 316 We're both in the same boat. With my relationship with Wei Lin, there's no other possibility. 
Gu Mingzhou shrugged his shoulders helplessly and smiled bitterly. With a helpless expression, Shang Wanfei kept shaking his head and sighing. He then told Gu Mingzhou about his experience. The people who had been sucked into this place were not together but were randomly scattered. Gu Mingzhou and Shang Wanfei were both alone. Shang Wanfei could only sneak aimlessly at the bottom of the sea for two days and two nights before coming to the surface. There was no spiritual energy between heaven and earth, so the remaining spiritual energy in his body was quickly depleted. He could only rely on his body to swim. He had originally wanted to find a boat to board the sea, but he did not expect to drift on the sea for two days and two nights without seeing a boat. Instead, on the third day of drifting, it was pushed into a large island by the morning waves. Shang Wanfei, who had thought he was saved, had not had time to drink a mouthful of water when Wei Lin appeared and attacked him without saying a word. Shang Wanfei, who had lost his spiritual energy, was easily defeated by Wei Lin and was beaten up. Later, his body could not take it anymore, and he pretended to be unconscious. Wei Lin had wanted to continue torturing Shang Wanfei. However, he suddenly received an urgent message, so he sent Shang Wanfei to this stone house and left in a hurry. After listening to Shang Wanfei's story, although Gu Mingzhou's face was extremely serious, he couldn't help but feel happy in his heart. Compared to Gu Mingzhou, Shang Wanfei's experience was much more tragic. Not only had he drifted in the sea for four days and four nights, but he had also been brutally beaten up by Wei Lin after being discovered. He really didn't know how much Wei Lin hated Shang Wanfei. In contrast, Gu Mingzhou was much more relaxed. After drifting in the sea for half a day, he encountered a fishing boat. Although he had fallen into a trap, Wei Lin had only caught him and locked him in this stone house. He didn't do anything else. Shang Wanfei didn't know what Gu Mingzhou was thinking. After he finished speaking, his original wariness seemed to have relaxed a lot. He looked at Gu Mingzhou and sighed again. After all my calculations, I still overlooked one move. I didn't expect that the river of forgetfulness tribulation that predicted the future was actually fake and thus ignored Wei Lin, who was hiding malicious intent beside me. Shang Wanfei cupped his hand slightly at Gu Mingzhou and apologized again. Under the deduction of the river of forgetfulness tribulation, even I would probably believe it, let alone you. It's just that I didn't expect Wei Lin to be the great tribulation. Gu Mingzhou knew Shang Wanfei was just putting on an act, but he did not clarify it and directly agreed. That's right. I never thought that this would be the result. Shang Wanfei sighed. However, I found it strange that Wei Lin could actually absorb the spiritual energy in this place without any natural origin energy. Furthermore, he's not killing us. I wonder what he's up to. Oh. Island Master Shang Wan doesn't know Wei Lin's purpose. Gu Mingzhou caught the main point in Shang Wan Fei's words. Why? Do you know about it, my young friend? Shang Wan Fei asked directly. Wei Lin's motive isn't small before Gu Mingzhou could finish his sentence, the stone door, which had just been closed, opened again. The dull sound of the door opening interrupted Gu Mingzhou. The stone door opened so suddenly that both Shang Wanfei, who had just relaxed his guard, and Gu Mingzhou, who was carefully preparing to explain, were startled. Who is it? Compared to Gu Mingzhou, Shang Wanfei was like a bird startled by the mere twang of a bow. He instantly retreated to the corner of the wall and stretched out his hands to defend himself. Gu Mingzhou was used to it and looked at the stone door in confusion. The stone door didn't open very quickly. In fact, it opened rather slowly. The four big men who had just walked out came back in. This time, they were also carrying a person. However, this person was too heavy, causing the four strong men to be so tired that their foreheads were covered in sweat. Their steps were not as steady as before, and they walked in a little shakily. Gu Mingzhou glanced at the face in the hands of the four strong men who walked in, and a bright smile appeared on his face. It was the Wuji Patriarch. No wonder these four strong men look constipated. It's a fat toad. Gu Mingzhou felt relieved and could not help but smile. Wuji Patriarch was extremely fat. He must have weighed more than 150 kilograms with such a huge body. 
In addition, a cultivator's body was purer than an ordinary person's, so he was naturally heavier. It was indeed difficult for four ordinary strong men to carry him in. Plop. Just like Shang Wan Fei, as soon as the four strong men carried the Wu Ji patriarch in, they couldn't wait to throw the pile of fat meat in their hands to the ground and gnaw on it. Then they turned around and left with lingering fear. Even if I weren't killed by that bastard Wei Lin, I would have been killed by you goons. Can't you be gentler? Wu Ji patriarch was dizzy from the fall and could only curse. He didn't notice two pairs of eyes staring at him from behind. The four brawny men still turned a deaf ear and walked out of the stone house without a word, closing the stone door behind them. What lousy place is this? Seeing the stone door close, Wu Ji Patriarch got up from the ground and cursed as he examined the stone house. Before she could finish speaking, she saw Gu Mingzhou. You're actually here, kid. Wu Ji Patriarch came back to his senses. His face turned cold, and he smiled evilly. Wu Ji Patriarch tapped his feet lightly, and his fat body pounced toward Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou didn't expect the Wu Ji Patriarch to make a move here. He immediately tapped his feet lightly and went around Wu Ji Patriarch, almost brushing past him. At the same time, Gu Mingzhou subconsciously clenched his right hand into a fist. The moment his shoulder brushed past Wu Ji Patriarch, his fist instantly landed on his armpit. Bang! Wu Ji's patriarch's body was sent flying into the air, and he crashed into the wall. The entire stone house shook as if there was an earthquake. Gu Mingzhou's face immediately revealed a brilliant smile. He he, Wu Ji patriarch, the tables have turned. Gu Mingzhou approached Wu Ji patriarch slowly and smiled evilly. Brat, if it wasn't for the fact that I don't have spiritual energy, would you be my match? Wu Ji Patriarch's voice trembled, and his hands kept shaking. He was obviously afraid of Gu Mingzhou. Is that so? When Gu Mingzhou saw this, the smile on his face grew even wider. The tables had really turned. From the first time Wu Ji Patriarch met Gu Mingzhou, he constantly suppressed him and even wanted to kill him. However, the situation was completely different now. In the third life's tribulation, there was no spiritual energy that could be absorbed. Wu Ji Patriarch became an ordinary martial artist, but Gu Mingzhou was able to preserve his cultivation because of Master Qin's existence. Gu Mingzhou and Wu Ji Patriarch's position had undergone a complete change. Gu Mingzhou, who had been bullied by Wu Ji Patriarch, would naturally not let go of such a good opportunity. Gu Mingzhou instantly rushed in front of Wu Ji Patriarch. His right hand clenched into a fist, and he threw an uppercut. He was so fast that even if Wu Ji Patriarch, who had lost his spiritual energy, could see it coming, he couldn't escape. As soon as he moved, his fist was already on Wu Ji Patriarch's chin. Blood gushed out, and the tooth flew out of Wu Ji Patriarch's mouth. It formed a perfect arc in the air and fell to the side. Chapter 317 the Great Zhou Dynasty had been invaded by powerful alien cultivators. Although the dust had settled and He Chuan was handling things steadily, it did not cause an inevitable result. But the discussions throughout the Central Plains did not stop. Especially Shen Chang'i's strength. Although Shi Fenglai wasn't as powerful as He Chuan, he was still a strong fighter of the Zhou Dynasty. It was obvious that he was the first to step into the mortal realm. If Yi Chuan hadn't acted at the critical moment, the final result would have been difficult to predict. Because of this, the various sects of the martial arts world in the Central Plains had a clearer understanding of martial arts and cultivation. No matter how strong a martial artist was, they would not even have the power to fight back in front of a cultivator. However, Yi Chuan's strength had once again deepened their impression of him. What was the limit of this Duki? Was he at the peak of the mortal realm or the higher level of the earth realm? In the imperial palace. He Chuan didn't care about what was going on in the outside world. Recently, he had stopped cultivating and instead returned to reading in the library every day to allow his state of mind to catch up. He had broken through too quickly recently and was afraid that his state of mind would be affected. A cultivator's state of mind was more important than that of a martial arts practitioner. Zhou Shui followed behind him every day, like a loyal little follower. Daddy, play go with me. 
Big Brother won't play with me. Zhou Shui came to Hichuan with a chessboard, wanting to play Go. You can play Go, but you can't go back on your move, Hichuan said with a smile. He liked his daughter very much. He usually doted on her, but when it came to teaching her, he was not careless. Zhou Ming did not want to play with Zhou Shui because she liked to go back on her move. Because of Yichuan's teachings, he always remembered them in his heart and had no regrets. Just like the path of life, after taking this step, one could no longer retreat. One had to bear the consequences on their own. When she heard that she could not go back on her move, Zhou Shui's beautiful big eyes rolled twice before she finally agreed. In the New World The Heavenly Sword Sect Huge volcanic craters surrounded the 10,000-meter-high mountain. One could vaguely see the boiling lava, which was extremely hot. The various experts from the mysterious Heavenly Sword sect were all seated around the place with anxious expressions on their faces as if they were waiting for something. They were all from the Heavenly Sword sect. A few elders and personal disciples were gathered here, waiting for their sect leader to come out of seclusion. As long as everything goes well, Murong Fu will become a strong man at the fourth stage earth realm. At that time, the Heavenly Sword sect would have absolute authority in the New World. Every step forward in the Earth Realm was extremely difficult. The difference between the initial stage of the Earth Realm and the second stage was like the difference between Heaven and Earth. A few hundred years ago, when Su Fengyu, the World God, appeared out of nowhere, all the cultivation forces in the Central Plains were involved. Whether it was the sect leader of the Heavenly Sword sect or other hidden cultivation sects, they were all slaughtered by Su Fengyu. The God-fiend race in the distant sacred soul island was also not spared. All the cultivation sects in this world put aside their differences and gather together to deal with Su Fengyu. However, the world god's ability was too strange, and countless self-cultivators died at Su Fengyu's hands. Moreover, the more energy Su Fengyu absorbed from the experts, the stronger he became. Everyone realized that they could not continue like this. At that time, the island master of Sacred Soul Island had suggested borrowing the nine prefectures' cauldrons from the second emperor of the great Zhou dynasty to seal the world god. The Zhou dynasty's second emperor saw that Su Fengyu had indeed gone too far, so he agreed to lend out the national defense divine weapon. However, he made a request that the nine prefecture cauldrons could not be taken out of the Zhou dynasty. Later on, the cultivators set a trap and successfully sealed Su Fengyu. However, as the nine prefectures' cauldrons sealed the world god, the spiritual energy of the entire world gradually disappeared. Not only were the cultivation levels of the various sects unable to increase, but they even showed signs of a slight decline. It turned out that the Zhou dynasty's second emperor had long expected this. Back then, the cultivation sects suppressed the imperial court, and the Zhou dynasty could not control the cultivation sects at all. The effect of imperial power was pitifully small. If the suppression of the world god were carried out on the land of the Zhou dynasty, it would not affect the fate of the Zhou dynasty, but at the same time, it would weaken the cultivation sects. It was a plan that killed two birds with one stone. Most importantly, this matter could not be blamed on the second emperor of the Zhou dynasty. Without the nine prefectures' cauldrons, it would not be as simple as the gradual disappearance of spiritual energy. The various cultivation sects joined forces to create a new small world and left the central plains. The cultivation era had completely abandoned this place. Later on, when martial arts flourished, everyone gradually forgot about the existence of cultivation. Until recently, Su Fengyu took advantage of a tiny crack in the seal and bewitched some people to help him escape. Only then could the spiritual energy be restored. The Heavenly Sword sect was also a cultivation sect that had arrived in the New World. Today was the day Murong Fu came out of seclusion. The elders and core disciples of the Heavenly Sword sect were all waiting for the decision of the sect leader to return to the outside world. Originally, this matter was basically set in stone. However, the news suddenly came back that their sect's disciple, Shen Changi, had been killed by a mysterious expert of the Zhou dynasty. Boom! All of a sudden, the 10,000-meter-tall mountain began to shake. A terrifying force shot into the sky, and the volcano erupted. The lava flowed along the mountain. 
the experts of the mysterious Heavenly Sword sect all flew into the air to avoid the scorching lava. A figure flew out. This person was wearing a green robe and held a treasure sword that was flowing with rainbow light in his hand. It was the sword of the Heavenly Sword sect and the Seven Star Dragon Abyss sword that only the sect leader could use. Murong Fu's eyes swept across everyone present, cold and palpitating. Greetings, sect leader. Many elders and core disciples bowed and said respectfully. Where's the great elder? Why didn't he come? Murong Fu saw that the great elder didn't come, and his anger suddenly surged. It was true that there was a grudge between the two of them, but today was the day he broke through to the fourth level of the earth realm. If he didn't come, it would be a slap in the face of the sect leader. The others looked at each other, not daring to speak. After all, they could not afford to offend either side. The great elder said he wanted to deal with the matter of Shin Chinese death. As the second elder was the most senior, he couldn't let the atmosphere continue to be awkward. What? Shin Chinese died. Where's cheer? A monstrous aura instantly spread out. The core disciples who were flying in the air could not hold on any longer and were about to fall. Even the few elders were breathless. Don't worry, sect leader. The young master's name token is intact, and he should still be in the outside world. We can discuss the details when we return to the sect. The second elder waved his hand and pushed Morong Fu's energy away, preventing his disciples from falling into the lava. At the same time, he cursed Murong Fu in his heart because he knew that the other party was deliberately creating a scene. He couldn't do anything to the great elder, but he had to give everyone a warning. He wanted to display his powerful strength. Humph. Someone actually dared to touch the people of the Heavenly Sword sect. I'll definitely make him pay the price. Shen Changi was not only the loyal dog of the Murong family but also the disciple of Murong Chi. He was shocked and angry now that he had died in an abandoned great world. Everyone kept quiet out of fear, not daring to make a sound in front of the angry Morong Fu. They would be courting death if they were to get themselves into trouble now. Chapter 318 It was uncertain how the Heavenly Sword sect would deal with each one. The ancient alternate world, however, was extremely lively. Wu Ji Patriarch was sent flying by Gu Mingzhou with one punch. The excruciating pain caused the everlasting elder's face to twitch. He pointed at Gu Mingzhou in disbelief and was about to speak. His fist came again, hitting Wu Ji Patriarch's fat left cheek. Bang! Even Wu Ji Patriarch, who weighed four to five hundred pounds, was sent flying by Gu Mingzhou's powerful punch. He hit the wall again and rolled on the ground. How is it? Comfortable, right? I'll let you have a taste of my self-created pig slaughtering technique. Gu Mingzhou moved his hands and looked at Wu Ji Patriarch. He smiled and said softly. He stretched his neck and landed beside Wu Ji Patriarch. Without waiting for Wu Ji Patriarch to get up from the ground, he jumped up and knelt on the back of Wu Ji Patriarch. He reached out his hands and grabbed Wu Ji Patriarch's thick hands, pulling them back. Crack. Two crisp sounds were heard at the same time. Ah! The intense pain from his arms caused Wu Ji Patriarch's chubby face to twitch and writhe as he screamed. Comfortable. Although I ate a lot of toad legs when I was young, I only ate the hind legs. Today, I can try the front legs. With that, Gu Mingzhou grabbed Wu Ji Patriarch's hands and pulled them backward. The crisp sound of bones rubbing against each other reverberated in the stone house. Let me go, Brother Mingzhou. No, Master Mingzhou, I was wrong. Please be magnanimous and forgive me this time. The unbearable pain caused Wu Ji Patriarch's face to twist. He begged Gu Mingzhou for mercy in a panic. Let you go. Before this, have you ever thought of letting me go? Even if it's just once. Gu Mingzhou said coldly. When you used me, framed me, and wanted to kill me, did you ever think of letting me go? Gu Mingzhou's kneeling right knee exerted a little force and pulled Wu Ji Patriarch's arms again. Master Mingzhou, I know I was wrong. I've let you down. Please let me go. Wu Ji Patriarch let out a shrill scream that was even more piercing. 
he cried out in pain and begged for mercy in a panic. My young friend, Mingzhou, please show mercy. Sheng Wanfei, who was watching from the side, finally couldn't help but plead on behalf of the Wuji Patriarch to persuade Gu Mingzhou. Island Master Sheng Wan, save me quickly and kill this detestable brat. Hurry! Sheng Wanfei's sudden words immediately caught the attention of Wu Ji Patriarch, who hurriedly asked for help. In the eyes of Wu Ji Patriarch, Sheng Wanfei was the most powerful existence among them. Gu Mingzhou was naturally no match for him. Shut up! However, before Wu Ji Patriarch could finish his sentence, Sheng Wanfei frowned and rebuked angrily. Wu Ji Patriarch was so frightened by Sheng Wanfei's sudden scolding that he shut his mouth and looked at Sheng Wanfei in shock. My young friend, Mingzhou, Wu Ji was indeed too much. But now, we should be united against a common enemy and deal with Wei Lin. Don't kill each other. Gu Mingzhou gradually stopped. When Wu Ji Patriarch attacked him, Sheng Wanfei did not care. Obviously, he wanted to use Wu Ji Patriarch to get rid of him. Now that Wu Ji Patriarch was captured, he was worried that he would kill him after he killed Wu Ji Patriarch. He would be alone, so he tried to persuade him. What a cunning old fox! Gu Mingzhou instantly guessed Shang Wan Fei's thoughts. However, he stopped thinking about killing Wu Ji Patriarch. Even if Shang Wan Fei and Wu Ji Patriarch joined forces, they would not be a match for Gu Mingzhou. However, if Gu Mingzhou wanted to win, he would probably have to use his spiritual energy. Once he used his spiritual energy, Wei Lin would definitely notice something, which would affect Master Qin's previous plan. It might even cause the cautious Wei Lin to choose to cooperate with He Yuliang and Lu Yuqing, who had yet to be captured. If Wei Lin chose to work with the other three, it would be very disadvantageous for Gu Mingzhou. Moreover, Wei Lin's ability to endlessly absorb refined energy here would allow He Yuliang and Lu Yuqing to recover their cultivation. This would be a fatal blow to him. Since Island Master Sheng Wan has spoken, I'll let him go, but it won't happen again. Thinking of this, Gu Mingzhou could only give up on the idea of directly crippling Wu Ji Patriarch. He could not help but loosen his hands, get up, and let go of Wu Ji Patriarch. He cupped his hands and said to Sheng Wan Fei. Sheng Wan Fei was just about to speak when the stone door, which had just closed, opened again. A sharp and sinister voice suddenly sounded in the stone house. Oh! It seems that I came at the right time. This place is quite lively. The sudden voice caused the three people in the stone house to turn their heads in unison to look at the open stone door. Wei Lin, who was wearing a white robe, walked in with a demonic smile and his hands behind his back. What do you want to do? I've treated you well, yet you're treating me like this. Wu Ji Patriarch was the first to speak and quickly got up from the ground. He raised his arms unnaturally and pointed at Wei Lin angrily. I'm worried that you're unfamiliar with this place, so I brought you here. The smile at the corner of Wei Lin's mouth grew wider, and his tone was full of ridicule. Worried about me? Don't you know that I was almost beaten to death by this kid? Wu Ji Patriarch was furious. His previous embarrassment was completely gone, and his identity as the Hall Master was revealed again. He turned sideways and pointed at Gu Mingzhou, complaining. This brat actually dared to assault you. Wei Lin's expression turned cold, and he instantly appeared beside Gu Mingzhou. Without waiting for Gu Mingzhou to react, he struck out with his right palm. Although Gu Mingzhou had discovered something, he did not dare to use his spiritual energy to block it. He could only subconsciously block it with his hands. In the end, he was a step too slow and was instantly hit on his left shoulder by Wei Lin. Blood spurted out of Gu Mingzhou's mouth. He flew backward uncontrollably and hit the wall hard. When he rolled to the ground, his face was pale. Gu Mingzhou's eyes flickered. The words were on the tip of his tongue, but he didn't say them out loud. He only glared at Wei Lin fiercely. In the end, he gave up resisting and sat down on the ground, no longer standing up. Is this enough to vent your anger, old patriarch? Seeing this, Wei Lin smiled in satisfaction and ignored Gu Mingzhou. He turned around and smiled at Wu Ji Patriarch. Just now, this brat almost crippled my four limbs. 
If you want to vent my anger, you either kill him or cripple his four limbs. Wu Ji Patriarch didn't seem to appreciate it. He snorted coldly and said disdainfully. Wu Ji Patriarch. Gu Mingzhou's hands unconsciously clenched into fists as he said angrily. He had been soft-hearted just now and let Wu Ji Patriarch go after hearing Shang Wan Fei's persuasion. However, he didn't expect Wu Ji Patriarch would be so vengeful that he asked Wei Lin to cripple his limbs. If Wei Lin agreed, Gu Mingzhou naturally wouldn't sit by and let him do whatever he wanted. Master Qin's plan would probably have to be brought forward. Chapter 319 Fortunately, Wei Lin was disgusted by Wu Ji Patriarch's insatiable behavior. The reason why I attacked him just now was only that you have been my master for many years. It doesn't mean that you can order me around. Wei Lin slowly lowered his raised hand and said coldly. What do you mean? Is it that your wings have hardened now? You don't even listen to the words of this old patriarch Wu Ji Patriarch was furious and shouted coldly. It seems you're still unclear about the current situation. Wei Lin immediately interrupted Wu Ji Patriarch's endless anger. A powerful aura burst out of his body and instantly enveloped Wu Ji Patriarch. What do you want to do? Wu Ji Patriarch shivered at the chill and stammered. However, before Wu Ji Patriarch could finish his words, Wei Lin suddenly struck out with his right hand and instantly grabbed Wu Ji Patriarch's extended wrist. His spiritual energy gushed out, and he suddenly broke it in the opposite direction. Crack. The sound of bones cracking was particularly ear piercing in the small stone house. Ah. A miserable scream came out of Wu Ji Patriarch's mouth. The intense pain made his body limp involuntarily, and he knelt in front of Wei Lin. Remember, I'm the true ruler here, and all of you are just prisoners. If there's a next time, it won't be as simple as just crippling your hand. Wei Lin flung Wu Ji Patriarch's limp right hand away. Maybe because he was angry or because of the intense pain from his broken wrist, Wu Ji Patriarch grunted in a low voice. His face was red and twisted. The pain from his wrist woke him up instantly. He understood the situation, but he didn't dare to say anything. After all, if Wei Lin wanted to kill him, it would be a piece of cake. Wu Ji Patriarch had lived for a long time, and he knew that a wise man would submit to the circumstances. Wei Lin saw Wu Ji Patriarch kneeling on one knee in front of him with his head lowered, not daring to speak, and revealed a refreshed expression. I was planning to capture all five of you and then deal with all of you, but now that the situation has changed, I'll have to trouble the three of you for a favor. Wei Lin strode toward the door. What favor? Shang Wan Fei was probably the calmest of the three. He had already walked out of the previous shadow. You'll know when you get there. Wei Lin walked out of the stone door without looking back. When he walked out, he waved to the dozens of strong men standing at the door. The six strong men held a special silk net in their hands and walked towards Gu Mingzhou and the other two. What do you want? Shang Wan Fei said in a cold voice as he looked at the approaching burly man, especially the silk net in his hand. However, Wei Lin didn't pay any attention to him and directly ignored him. He turned around without looking back and disappeared from the sight of the three people. The three of you, don't make things difficult for us. Six burly men came to Gu Mingzhou and the other two. One of them said in a whisper. Shang Wan Fei's hands were clenched into tight fists before the brawny man could finish his words. He didn't know if it was because of the humiliation he had suffered earlier or because of Wei Lin's disregard. His face was filled with anger, and his eyes flickered. He was obviously ready to attack. Island Master Shang Wan, endure for a moment and everything will be fine. The enemy is stronger than us, so don't be reckless. Gu Mingzhou quickly stepped forward to grab Shang Wan Fei's right hand and said in a deep voice. Gu Mingzhou was not worried about Shang Wan Fei's life or death. He was only worried Shang Wan Fei would resist. If he angered Wei Lin and they were executed on the spot in this stone house, the situation would not be good. After all, Although Master Qin's plan could be brought forward, the possibility of capturing Wei Lin in this narrow space wasn't high. If Wei Lin was allowed to escape, 
it would be extremely difficult for Gu Mingzhou to find a way to resolve the Three Lives Tribulation and the Qing Emperor's inheritance here with his power alone. In fact, even with the help of Master Qin and Jing Wudao, Wei Lin might get there first. This was something Gu Mingzhou didn't want to see. It was also the main purpose of Master Qin's plan, to beat him at his own game and reap the benefits without doing anything. Therefore, he had no choice but to stop the angry Shang Wan Fei at this time. Shang Wan Fei's hands were clenched so tightly that cracking sounds could be heard. His whole body was trembling, and he was obviously suppressing his temper. After all, he was the master of the island, the leader of the freezing cold land. Wherever he goes, he'll be respected and worshipped. He had never been bullied like this by a small fry that he had looked down on before. But Shang Wan Fei was Shang Wan Fei after all. Not only did he know that a wise man submits to circumstances, but he also understood that a man should know when to yield and when not to. Although he was furious, he did not lose his mind. After hearing Gu Mingzhou's words, the intention to resist was obviously gone. He turned around and looked at Wu Ji Patriarch. Wu Ji Patriarch stood up shakily, his left hand gripping his right wrist tightly. The intense pain caused his entire chubby face to contort. Wu Ji Patriarch didn't answer. Instead, he staggered toward the two brawny men in front of him and raised his hand slightly. Wu Ji! Shang Wan Fei shouted loudly and glared at him. Island Master Shang Wan, now that things have come to this, one day more is one day more to live. Resistance will only make you die faster. Wu Ji Patriarch didn't look back. With a bitter smile, he reached out his hands to the two brawny men. The two brawny men immediately understood what Wu Ji Patriarch meant. They immediately went up and bound Wu Ji Patriarch with a net. However, the two brawny men were quite kind. They only bound Wu Ji Patriarch's body and didn't touch his arms. The bounded Wu Ji Patriarch looked like he was wearing a net jacket. AI. Seeing this, Shang Wan Fei let out a long sigh and also stretched out his hands, letting the strong man beside him restrain them. In fact, he was just trying to find an excuse for himself. However, the four strong men restraining Gu Mingzhou and Shang Wan Fei were obviously not merciful. Gu Mingzhou and Shang Wan were almost completely tied up with a net. Even their legs were not forgotten. After the three of them were tied up, they were escorted out of the stone house by the six strong men. They walked through a quiet and curved path for about half an incense's time. They made a turn and entered a dilapidated old temple. Just as Gu Mingzhou, Shang Wan Fei, and Wu Ji Patriarch were being escorted into the old temple, the bell rang three times. Ding! Dong! The bell rang melodiously and went straight to the nine heavens. A low and deep voice of an ancient incantation sounded. The blue stone stands for a thousand years, protecting the people and ensuring their safety. I offer my sincere sacrifice and punish the world with my palm. A strange mumble. It was like singing but also like chanting. The voice was gentle, and the tone was low. It didn't make people feel uncomfortable. Instead, it had a special magic that made the listener feel dazed and relaxed. In the courtyard of this dilapidated old temple, a circular altar with a radius of ten meters was built. It was more than two meters high. At the center of the altar was a pitch black hole with a diameter of about three meters. It went deep into the ground, and its depth was unknown. Chapter 320 A white robed old man over sixty years old was kneeling at the edge of the altar and praying. The chanting that Gu Mingzhou and the others had heard earlier had come from this strange white-robed old man. A devil monk? Just as Gu Mingzhou was feeling puzzled, Shang Wan Fei, who was standing behind him, shouted in horror. What's a devil monk? Gu Mingzhou turned around and looked at Shang Wan Fei in confusion. He knew about monks, and he knew about devils. However, devil monk, this was the first time he had heard of such a new term. Devil monks were the products of the world called the Devil World. Although they had the body shape of a human, their true bodies were all kinds of devils. The reason why they were called Devil Monks was that they imitated the way of the Great Buddha. Other than their clothes, they were basically the same as Buddhist monks. The only difference was that Buddhism advocated for mercy while they advocated killing. 
Shang Guanfei explained to Gu Mingzhou after he calmed down and stared at the old man in the white robe who was still chanting on the altar. Advocate for killing? Can that still be considered as Buddha? Gu Mingzhou asked in surprise. To us, of course not. But to them, they're just evil Buddhas. Buddhism doesn't recognize them, and they don't believe in Buddha but the devil. Shang Fei paused and then explained. The devil monk's philosophy was that strength was respected and cultivation was supreme. The devil was the heavenly Tao, and all living things were slaves. The demonic monks who believed in them naturally had the belief to destroy the alien races and demonize the heavenly Tao. In other words, the existence of the devil monk was to kill all living things and demonize the heavenly Tao. Demonized the heavenly Tao. For some reason, Gu Mingzhou couldn't help but shiver when he repeated those words. What was the heavenly Tao? There was an ancient saying that everything that happened in the six realms was fated. Mortals looked up at the sky. There was no sun or moon, and the four seasons changed. In the netherworld, all things followed their karma, and the eternal was the heavenly Tao. In other words, the heavenly Tao was in charge of the laws of heaven's movements, the rules of all living things, the principles of all living things, and the world's stability. For cultivators, the heavenly Tao was the most profound and mysterious Tao out of the three hundred great Tao. It wasn't an inanimate object, but it was spiritual and conscious. It could seek good fortune and avoid evil, measure the stability of the world, and control the world. The so-called One Tao, one thousand ways referred to the heavenly Tao. The heavenly Tao was a supreme existence that could not be provoked in everyone's heart. The existence of devil monk who was chanting the profound and complicated language on the altar actually wanted to demonize the heavenly Tao. Not only that, but from Shang Fei's words, Gu Mingzhou could clearly hear that there was only one world outside the world he was in that existed for the demonized heavenly path. Even the beliefs they left behind were all working hard to demonize the heavenly Tao. This even shocked Gu Mingzhou. The heavenly Tao was a terrifying existence to any cultivator. The consequences of demonizing the heavenly Tao were self-evident. Clap, clap, clap. Just as Gu Mingzhou was feeling shocked by Shang Fei's words, the crisp sound of applause interrupted his thoughts. Gu Mingzhou frowned and looked in the direction of the voice. In the dilapidated temple, Wei Lin, who was wearing a loose robe, was walking slowly and clapping as he walked. As expected of the leader of the itinerant cultivators in the freezing cold land. Island Master Shangguan is indeed knowledgeable. You even know about the devil monk. I can't help but admire you for this. Although Wei Lin had covered his face with a long robe, Gu Mingzhou could sense the pride and arrogance in his words. I previously didn't understand how you could possess spiritual energy and control the people here, but I understand now. In the face of Wei Lin's hypocritical praise, Shang Fei didn't show any joy but spoke with an extremely grim expression. Why don't you tell me? With a smile still on his face, Wei Lin stopped in front of the three people and asked Shang Fei. I heard that when Wu Ji Patriarch attacked the Seven Devil Hall, you appeared on your hedgehog and resisted the attacks of Wu Ji Patriarch and He Yuliang by yourself. If I'm not wrong, you're the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog, right? Shang Fei sneered. It's the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. Wei Lin sized up Shang Fei curiously. It's indeed the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. My speculation is more accurate now. Shang Fei continued. I'd like to hear more. Wei Lin gestured for the other party to continue. Everyone thinks that the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog is a demonic beast that you have raised. In fact, they don't know that the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog is actually a member of the Devil World, also known as the Nine Nether Devil Hedgehog. It is also known as the demonic beast with the most identity in the Devil World. Shang Fei said slowly. In other words, the real Wei Lin had actually died long ago. A clone created by the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog after his memories were devoured. This also explains why no one can absorb spiritual energy in a place without it, but Wei Lin can absorb it infinitely. This was because he was not absorbing spiritual energy but demonic energy. Before this, I had been thinking about why you were able to absorb spiritual energy from places that I, who had a much higher cultivation level than you, could not. 
It was only when I saw the devil monk that I finally understood. Shangguan Fei pointed at the devil monk on the altar and said. This was the place of the third life's tribulation that the Qin Emperor had mentioned. In fact, it was not a normal space at all but a demonized heaven and earth. It was similar to the small world of the devil world. As for the demonic hedgehog, it didn't need any spiritual energy at all. It only needed to absorb demonic energy to obtain cultivation. This is a demonized place. Gu Mingzhou was still in disbelief. The strange waves and the eight-clawed squid that could cultivate without spiritual energy all appeared in Gu Mingzhou's mind, which matched Shang Wan Fei's speculation. Only the demonized eight-limbed squid could cultivate without absorbing spiritual energy. Even so, how did he manage to control the people here in such a short time? After thinking about this clearly, Gu Mingzhou had new doubts. That's even simpler. The Qing Emperor should have set this place up, so the demonic cultivators here can't cultivate and are just like mortals. And at this time, Wei Lin, who could cultivate and was also a demonic cultivator with strong cultivation, suddenly appeared, so he naturally became their master. Shang Wan Fei explained. Wei Lin couldn't help but clap before Shang Wan Fei could finish his words. As expected of island master Shang Wan, you're really powerful. Fortunately, it was he Yuliang and Lu Yucheng, those two idiots, who escaped, and I caught you in advance. Otherwise, I really might have let you ruin my plan. Wei Lin laughed. You're indeed a demonic cultivator. The reason you captured us was to devour us. Although Shang Wan Fei was asking, his tone was certain. Not bad. I'm indeed a demonic cultivator but Wei Lin didn't know how to appreciate my kindness after I promised him so many benefits, so I could only devour him. Seeing that Shang Wan Fei had guessed his identity, Wei Lin didn't hide it anymore and directly revealed it. Chapter, 321 However, you're wrong about one thing. The reason why I captured you is not to devour you. Instead, I need your blood to open the inheritance that the Qing Emperor left here. The Qing Emperor's inheritance is here. Gu Mingzhou asked in shock. That's right. It's there. Wei Lin suddenly turned around and pointed at the round altar with his right hand. That's where the Qing Emperor's inheritance is. Wei Lin, or rather, the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog's clone, pointed in the right direction. It happened to be the circular altar in front of everyone. Everyone, including Gu Mingzhou, looked at the altar in unison. The everlasting sex patriarch, who had his head lowered, also looked at the altar. His eyes flickered as he pondered. You're saying that the Qin Emperor's inheritance is in this altar? Shang Wan Fei was the first to recover from his shock and said softly as he looked at the altar. That's right. It's in this altar. The Qin Emperor has set up a restriction to imprison the people of my devil race. Wei Lin replied. In that case, if we want to get the Qin Emperor's inheritance, we must break the restrictive spell and let the imprisoned demon escape, Shang Wan Fei continued to ask. Island Master Shang Wan is really smart. You immediately found the main point. Wei Lin immediately burst out laughing. If the Qing Emperor had set this rule, then wouldn't he be intentionally releasing these demons? Gu Mingzhou said in disbelief. He didn't want to believe this. After all, the demon race was the most evil existence in his knowledge. As a human, the Qing Emperor and the demon race could be said to be irreconcilable. To be able to imprison these demon race here without killing them was already a great mercy. Nothing is impossible. Perhaps the Qing Emperor's idea at that time was that by the time someone came here, the imprisoned demons would have already been exterminated. Shang Wan Fei saw Gu Mingzhou's confusion and immediately explained. It's a pity the Qing Emperor didn't expect the demon race's vitality to be so strong. It's completely beyond his imagination. Ha! Huh. Wei Lin threw his head back and laughed a little crazily. Whether it was Shang Wan Fei, Gu Mingzhou, or the ancestor of Wu Ji, they all fell silent and looked at Wei Lin in unison. To obtain the inheritance, one had to break the restriction and release the demons here. If it was someone who wasn't from the demon race, they would probably think twice before acting and hesitate. However, he had no concerns about Wei Lin at all. He was a demon, 
so if he could obtain the inheritance and save his clansmen, it would be a win-win situation, so why not? Not only do we need creatures with demon blood, but we also need cultivation. I'm afraid that damnable Qing Emperor is also trying to prevent us demons from entering this place to obtain the inheritance. That's why he set such restrictions. Wei Lin's face was filled with anger as he spoke indignantly. Do you want to use our blood to open the restriction? Wu Ji Patriarch said fearfully. Is there a better way? Wei Lin reached out and pointed at Gu Mingzhou, Sheng Wanfei, and Wu Ji Patriarch. The more he spoke, the more excited he became. In the end, he finally couldn't hide his wild laughter. Wu Ji Patriarch's face was uncertain as if he had made a decision. Amid Wei Lin's wild laughter, he suddenly knelt on the ground and prostrated in front of Wei Lin. Lord Nine Nether, I, Wu Ji, am not a human. I am just a three-eyed toad. My blood may not be useful. Please spare my life. I will definitely submit to you and serve the demon race with all my might. Wu Ji Patriarch's words were so sincere that Gu Mingzhou and Shang Fei's expressions changed. Wu Ji. Shang Fei's heart ached the most. He looked at Wu Ji Patriarch, who was kneeling on the ground, in disbelief. Wu Ji Patriarch's actions were shameless, but it had to be said that many people would make the same choice in the face of death. His life was more important than his dignity. Gu Mingzhou admired the cruel and merciless fat toad. After all, Wu Ji Patriarch's status was above thousands of people. In the freezing cold land, he was the hall master. However, he could now put down his pride and yield to Wei Lin's feet. Gu Mingzhou couldn't help but admire this kind of spirit. Of course, it was possible that Wu Ji Patriarch was indeed afraid of death and had been shocked by Wei Lin's previous means. When he learned of Wei Lin's purpose, he chose to surrender. Unfortunately, Wei Lin clearly didn't intend to let the three of them go. Even though Wu Ji Patriarch had lowered himself and kneeled in front of him like a loyal dog, he still couldn't feel any pity for him. I didn't think that Wu Ji Patriarch, who dominated the depths of the freezing cold lands, would have such a day. Ha ha ha! Wei Lin burst into laughter. As he spoke, he kicked Wu Ji Patriarch down. My demon race is a natural overlord. In the future, the entire universe will belong to my demon race. You act like a dog now, but you disgust me. I'll use you as a sacrifice first. A demon was still a demon. No matter how much you groveled, they would not have the slightest pity or hesitation. Before he could finish his words, a chill instantly swept across Wei Lin's face. Black energy instantly surrounded his palm, and he suddenly slapped it toward Wu Ji Patriarch head. Whoosh! The wind from the palm was extremely fierce, and it headed straight for Wu Ji Patriarch. If it hit Wu Ji Patriarch, he would probably die immediately. It was obvious that Wei Lin wasn't joking. He really intended to use the blood of Wu Ji Patriarch's blood as a sacrifice. Just as the palm covered in thick black energy was about to land on Wu Ji Patriarch, the pleading Patriarch's eyes suddenly turned cold. Do you think this Patriarch is submitting to you? You're not worthy. Wu Ji Patriarch suddenly roared. His chubby body that was lying on the ground suddenly glowed with a green light and quickly grew in size. Bang! 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 As Wu Ji Patriarch's body grew, the net around him broke. When the black energy approached him, a bright green light shot out of Wu Ji Patriarch's forehead. The green light was resplendent and as fast as lightning, instantly colliding with Wei Lin's right palm. Pfft! A dark red color suddenly appeared. The dazzling green light instantly penetrated Wei Lin's palm and continued to attack Wei Lin's face without stopping, along with the spurting blood. Wei Lin didn't expect that after losing his spiritual energy and being confined by the net, Wu Ji Patriarch could suddenly counterattack. Even so, as the clone of the poisonous hedgehog, he came back to his senses the moment the green light pierced his palm. He tilted his body slightly and brushed past the sharp green light. The green light was swift and fierce. Even though Wei Lin's reaction was quick, it still brushed past his cheek and pierced through his wide coat, revealing Wei Lin's true face. This was Gu Mingzhou's second time seeing Wei Lin's true appearance. 
he hadn't changed much from the time he saw him in the freezing cold land. On the bald head was still a terrifying face that was extremely ferocious. However, Wei Lin was now filled with anger, and his face was cold. He was obviously angry at the Wu Ji Patriarch's sudden attack. On the other hand, Wu Ji Patriarch had also changed greatly and revealed his true form. Chapter 322 The huge teal-colored toad was more than three meters tall. It had eyes as big as copper bells and a vertical eye on its forehead. As it flickered, it exuded a terrifying aura. On the toad's uneven back, there were human-sized tumors. With just a glance, one would involuntarily have goosebumps all over their body, looking extremely ferocious. It was the true body of Wu Ji Patriarch, the legendary teal-eyed toad. I almost forgot that you're not a human either, but a disgusting toad. Wei Lin pulled his bleeding right hand back to his face, stuck out his tongue, and licked the blood on his palm as he spoke with a fierce look in his eyes. He suddenly smacked at the teal-eyed toad. Endless black energy suddenly shot out from Wei Lin's palm like a ferocious black dragon. It whizzed out and swept the toad. Rib bit. The teal-eyed toad's bell-sized eyes were filled with caution. It uttered a cry and stomped on the ground with its thick hind legs, directly shattering the solid bluestone floor. His hill-like body immediately leaped a few meters away, just in time to avoid the terrifying black gas. He descended from the sky again and attacked Wei Lin. Even in the face of the teal-eyed toad that could crush a cow into a meat patty, Wei Lin didn't show the slightest fear. Just as the teal-eyed toad was about to land, Wei Lin tapped lightly and retreated dozens of meters back to the corner. The small mountain-like body of the teal-eyed toad suddenly fell to the ground. The earth trembled, and dust rose. The teal-eyed toad didn't hit Wei Lin. Wu Ji Patriarch also knew that he might not be able to hit the target. Although Wei Lin was agile and escaped in an instant. However, the people behind Wei Lin couldn't avoid it and were crushed by the teal-eyed toad's huge body, their bones turning into dregs. Blood immediately flowed out. Gu Mingzhou, Shang Wanfei, and the others subconsciously stepped back to avoid it. Gu Mingzhou's eyes, however, shone with a strange light as he stared at the hill-like teal-eyed toad in front of him. Fortunately, Gu Mingzhou listened to Shang Wanfei's advice and gave up the idea of killing Wu Ji Patriarch. Otherwise, not only would it be difficult to kill him, but he would also be exposed. Fortunately, he suppressed his anger and didn't force Wu Ji Patriarch to use his trump card. However, Wu Ji Patriarch is really patient. The way he looked at the teal-eyed toad changed. Wu Ji Patriarch's main body had a strong attack power. Still, in the face of the fisherman's encirclement, Gu Mingzhou's threat, and even Wei Lin's earlier bullying, he didn't show any abnormalities. It wasn't until Shang Wanfei had guessed Wei Lin's scheme and Wei Lin had wanted to make a move on Wu Ji Patriarch that he revealed his true form and launched a counterattack. Not only did he unexpectedly injure the careless Wei Lin, but he also revealed a tyrannical and brutal aura. He couldn't help but admire him. From the looks of it, Wu Ji Patriarch's previous act of bending his knees and submitting to Wei Lin was probably part of his plan. Just as Gu Mingzhou was trying to guess Wu Ji Patriarch's plan, the teal-eyed toad's mouth, which was like a small mountain and even slightly arched, suddenly opened. At the same time, it shot its long scarlet tongue at Wei Lin. The long tongue was estimated to be more than three fingers wide, its length unknown, and it was extremely fast. It left a red glow in the air and instantly rolled toward Wei Lin. However, Wei Lin was obviously prepared. When his long tongue rushed to his side, he advanced instead of retreating and pushed out his palm. Black energy suddenly rose, forming a tornado with Wei Lin as the center. It instantly met the long tongue that was rapidly shooting over and suddenly collided. Bang! Bang! The tornado dissipated and formed a thick black mist in the air, blocking the line of sight. The teal-eyed toad's long tongue didn't suffer much damage. After a temporary pause, it shot out rapidly again, instantly piercing through the black mist and directly rolling Wei Lin up. Ha ha ha! Wei Lin is still too inexperienced. How can you be this patriarch's match? The teal-eyed toad spoke in the human language and was extremely excited. 
Before he could finish his words, the long tongue that had wrapped around Wei Lin quickly retracted and penetrated the black mist. It was about to pull into its huge mouth, wanting to swallow Wei Lin directly. Wei Lin was about to be eaten by the teal-eyed toad. Wei Lin suddenly revealed a strange smile. Wu Ji, be careful. Shang Guan Fei, who had been paying close attention to the battle, suddenly reminded nervously. Wu Ji Patriarch was confident in his long tongue, so when he saw Wei Lin was bound by his tongue, his mind was filled with joy. How could he pay attention to Shang Guan Fei's reminder? Even if Wu Ji Patriarch heard Shang Guan Fei's warning, it would be too late. When the reminder sounded, Wei Lin, who was wrapped by the long tongue, had already made a new move. Wei Lin's ten fingers flickered as he stabbed toward his own chest. Pfft. With a slightly muffled sound, Wei Lin's body, which had never been damaged even when facing the teal-eyed toad with its terrifying binding power, was instantly pierced through his own chest. Wei Lin's hands, which were half buried in his chest, suddenly pulled to the left and right. The sound of flesh being torn apart immediately echoed in the air. His sudden action moved everyone present. The tea-lied toad couldn't help but be stunned by Wei Lin's self-harming behavior. Damn toad, die. Wei Lin's hands that were grabbing his stomach suddenly loosened. Slender and sharp, black needle-like thorns emerged from Wei Lin's cracked chest. The thorns were extremely sharp and instantly pierced through the long tongue that bound him. The tea-lied toad was in pain, and its long tongue that was wrapped around Wei Lin was about to withdraw. Unexpectedly, the thorns seemed to be stuck to it and were tightly connected to the long tongue. The tea-lied toad actually directly pulled Wei Lin out of his chest. One, two, three. The densely packed thorns mixed with blood rapidly pulled out of Wei Lin's cracked chest as the long tongue retracted. A black hedgehog the size of an adult appeared in the air. A hedgehog was originally curled up into a spiky ball. When the sharp thorns were pulled out, other than the long tongue, the rest of the thorns were soft. Even so, when the soft thorns left Wei Lin, there was still much blood and a few pieces of minced meat hanging on them. After leaving Wei Lin's body, the hedgehog's body began to stretch out quickly, revealing its four limbs with sharp claws. As its long tongue was pulled back, it flew toward the teal-eyed toad's mouth. Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog The teal-eyed toad was greatly alarmed and quickly stopped its long tongue. Wu Ji Patriarch naturally recognized the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. He immediately recognized what it was and shook it off. Wu Ji Patriarch knew how powerful this thing was. The Black Hedgehog let out a sharp cry. His dark round eyes were spinning. It sniffed around with its boar-like nose, and as if it had discovered something particularly attractive, it suddenly charged toward the teal-eyed toad that was as large as a small mountain. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog was extremely fast. When the teal-eyed toad's long tongue was completely retracted into its mouth, it also arrived like a ball of flesh covered with spikes. The teal-eyed toad chose to run away without fighting. Its thick and powerful hind legs suddenly stomped, causing the ground to tremble. The teal-eyed toad directly rose into the air and landed ten meters away, just in time to avoid the fierce attack of the nine nether poisonous hedgehog. Chapter, 323 Kill him Just like the last time, Wei Lin's body was extremely weak after releasing the nine nether poisonous hedgehog. However, his pale face still had a sinister smile on it as he stared at the teal-eyed toad that had dodged and gritted his teeth. It was no wonder. After all, if it wasn't for Wu Ji Patriarch suddenly revealing his true body as a teal-eyed toad and interrupting Wei Lin's plan, Wei Lin might have already obtained the Qing Emperor's inheritance. Of course, Wei Lin didn't know that not only had he underestimated the teal-eyed toad, ancestor Wu Ji, but he had also underestimated Gu Mingzhou. Or rather, in Wei Lin's heart, Gu Mingzhou was not worth looking at at all. Among the five people who had entered the Three Lives Tribulation, Gu Mingzhou undoubtedly had the weakest cultivation and ability. It was Wei Lin's contempt that gave Gu Mingzhou an opportunity to take advantage of. Just as Wei Lin opened his mouth and instructed the nine nether poisonous insects to kill the teal-eyed toads, a figure appeared behind Wei Lin silently. A pitch-black long spear flickering with flame-like light appeared out of thin air. 
It revealed its sharp edge and suddenly stabbed toward Wei Lin as fast as lightning. Whoosh! What? Even though he was seriously injured, Wei Lin was shocked to find out when the long spear approached him. However, it was too late. The spear's speed was extremely fast, and the distance was so short that even if Wei Lin discovered the danger, it was difficult for him to avoid it. The long spear that glowed with a fiery light pierced into Wei Lin's healing chest. Pfft. A red light flickered, and blood spurted out. The long spear was incomparably sharp, and its power was vast. It instantly pierced through Wei Lin's chest. It's you. Wei Lin instantly recognized the person who launched the sneak attack. His face was instantly filled with anger as he gritted his teeth and shouted angrily. The reason why Wei Lin was so angry wasn't just because he had been sneak attacked, but because the person who had suddenly attacked Wei Lin was Gu Mingzhou, who had been observing from the side. When Wu Ji Patriarch first revealed his true form, he wanted to attack. However, he restrained himself. He had to find an opportunity to give Wei Lin a fatal blow. The spiritual energy in Gu Mingzhou's body now all came from Master Qin's magical treatment method. It was not inexhaustible. However, Wei Lin was completely different. He didn't understand the reason before, but now he understood it completely after Sheng Wan Fei's explanation. The current Wei Lin wasn't Wei Lin, or rather, the current Wei Lin wasn't a species. He was just a clone of the poisonous hedgehog of the netherworld. He was a demon cultivator, not a cultivator. Wei Lin could be said to be like a fish in water in a land that the Qin Emperor had set up. The energy he could absorb was several times more powerful than the energy he could absorb in the great world. Once they were entangled, just the endless supply of demonic energy alone would be enough to exhaust Gu Mingzhou to death. Therefore, Gu Ming had to kill him in one blow. Even if he couldn't kill Wei Lin, he would at least severely injure him. It was the only way he could win and escape from danger. The conceited Wei Lin didn't take Gu Mingzhou seriously in the first place. In addition, he thought that with the net that could consume and confine spiritual energy, both Gu Mingzhou and Shang Wan Fei had lost their ability to attack. Therefore, after Wei Lin discovered the sudden outburst of the Wu Ji Patriarch, he put all his attention on him. Even when he released his true form, the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog, he was not worried at all, even though his body was extremely weak. Instead, he urged the Nine Netherworld Poisonous Hedgehog to kill the Teal-Eyed Toad and directly ignored Gu Mingzhou. Gu Mingzhou naturally wouldn't let go of such a great opportunity. Seeing that Wei Lin wasn't on guard at all, he directly broke free of the net and instantly appeared behind Wei Lin, using his long spear to launch a sneak attack. He hit the target with one shot and severely injured Wei Lin in an instant. Damn you, Gu Mingzhou. Go to hell. The furious Wei Lin's eyes widened as he glared at Gu Mingzhou. As he shouted, his left hand instantly reached out and grabbed the spear that had pierced his chest. Black energy swirled around his right hand. He suddenly raised it and slapped it at Gu Mingzhou, who was close at hand. The wind from the palm whistled, and black energy filled the air. His murderous aura filled the air and went straight for Gu Mingzhou's head. You didn't expect this, did you? When Wei Lin waved his hand, Gu Mingzhou suddenly held a spear in both hands. Break! The long spear that had pierced through Wei Lin's chest suddenly enlarged, and the flames burned brightly as it trembled non-stop. When Wei Lin's palm was three feet in front of him, countless black spear shadows suddenly appeared in front of Gu Mingzhou. They were extremely swift and fierce as they stabbed into Wei Lin's body again. PFF. In an instant, the dense pitch black spear shadows, no less than a thousand of them, all pierced Wei Lin. Every spear pierced through him, and fresh blood spurted out. Wei Lin had already turned into a sieve, and his entire body was filled with spear shadows, making him look even more like a hedgehog. How could you? Wei Lin looked at Gu Mingzhou in disbelief. Before he could finish speaking, the voice that was squeezed out of his throat stopped abruptly and his eyes turned dark. The palm that he had struck out before his death stopped three inches away from Gu Mingzhou. The black energy dissipated, and his right hand drooped powerlessly. 
the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog clone that had used Wei Lin's identity to hide for who knew how long had died just like that. Squeak. When Wei Lin died, the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog that was attacking the Teal-Eyed Toad suddenly stopped. Its round eyes looked like they were about to burst into flames. It stared at Gu Mingzhou and let out a sharp cry that hurt people's eardrums. Before his voice died away, the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog turned around quickly and actually abandoned the Teal-Eyed Toad. It rushed towards Gu Mingzhou fiercely. It was filled with endless killing intent. It was obvious that Wei Lin's death had completely enraged this Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog from the Devil World. The Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog, which was famous in the Devil World, revealed its ferocious face. It wanted to kill Gu Mingzhou. The Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog's sudden attack was completely out of Gu Mingzhou's expectations. In Gu Mingzhou's plan, or perhaps in Master Qin's plan, they had both ignored the existence of the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. Their target was Wei Lin. Subconsciously, he was simply following the plan to kill Wei Lin and forgot about the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog's existence. It was only when the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog suddenly exploded that Gu Mingzhou came to a realization. Since Wei Lin was the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog's clone, Gu Mingzhou killing Wei Lin was equivalent to killing the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog. This would undoubtedly infuriate the other party. Gu Mingzhou came back to his senses and quickly pulled back his spear. Without any hesitation, he turned around and fled. Gu Mingzhou had already seen the strength of the poisonous hedgehog. Even though his cultivation had improved a lot, he clearly understood that he might not be a match for the nine nether poisonous hedgehog. Therefore, Gu Mingzhou turned around and fled without hesitation. What Qing Emperor's inheritance? What hatred with Shangguan Fei and Wu Ji Patriarch? He had thrown all of this to the back of his mind. Living on was what Gu Mingzhou should be thinking about now. As Gu Mingzhou pulled out his gun and fled, Wei Lin's corpse, which was already riddled with holes, lost its support and fell to the ground. Just as Wei Lin's body was about to fall to the ground, the nine nether poisonous hedgehog that was charging at Gu Mingzhou suddenly turned around. His four strong limbs moved slightly in the void, and he instantly scuttled under Wei Lin's body, floating down almost close to the ground. Chapter 324 The Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog Floated in the Air Just as Wei Lin's body was about to fall on its body, it suddenly opened its mouth and bit at Wei Lin's body. Chomp! Its mouth, which didn't seem big, swallowed Wei Lin in two or three bites. After swallowing Wei Lin's corpse, the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog seemed to have had a full meal and turned to look at Gu Mingzhou, who was several miles away. You can't escape. The Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog that could only make sharp squeaking sounds suddenly spoke in the human language. Before he could finish his words, the Nine Nether Poison Hedgehog, who was floating in the air, suddenly exploded with a powerful force. The entire island trembled. A transparent beam of light, visible to the naked eye, shot towards Gu Mingzhou with the poisonous hedgehog at the center. The speed of the light beam was extremely fast as if it had teleported. When Gu Mingzhou, who had escaped several miles away, saw the light, the light wave had already appeared in front of him. It entered Gu Mingzhou's body at the speed of light without making any sound. Gu Mingzhou suddenly felt like he had suffered a heavy blow, and blood spurted out of his mouth. Without waiting for Gu Mingzhou to react, black energy seeped out of his seven orifices and quickly turned into a black net in midair. It instantly bound him and pulled Gu Mingzhou back in the opposite direction. How is that possible? Gu Mingzhou's face was pale as the black net imprisoned him. He muttered to himself in disbelief. The most surprised person was him. It wasn't just because of the speed at which the Nine Nether Poisonous Miasma shot out the light beam but also because of the black net that was currently imprisoned him. The black net wasn't made of any rope. It was made of thin black gas and emitted a strange power. It wasn't just a simple imprisonment but something similar to an acupuncture point, causing him to lose control of his body when the black net covered him. Not to mention activating his spiritual energy and casting spells. He couldn't even move his fingers. He could only watch as he flew toward the nine nether poisonous miasma. Lowly ant, how dare you to destroy my clone. I'll tear you into pieces. 
Seeing that Gu Mingzhou, who had escaped quickly, was enveloped by the black net and flying back, the nine nether poisonous hedgehog suspended body flew up close to the ground and said in Wei Lin's sharp voice, full of hatred. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog seemed to be a little impatient. Its short, thick limbs shook slightly in the air as it charged straight at Gu Mingzhou. As it rushed towards its target, the blackthorns changed sides at the same time. They all pointed at Gu Mingzhou as if they wanted to beat him into a sieve. Infinity, if we die, the teeth will grow cold. If I die, you'll be the target of the poisonous hedgehog. Seeing that the poisonous hedgehog was about to reach him, Gu Mingzhou locked his eyes on the tea-eyed toad, who was still watching the show. The tea-eyed toad, which had originally planned to kill with a borrowed knife, finally reacted. It opened its bloody mouth and let out a cry. Its thick and powerful hind legs moved, and its hill-like body immediately jumped up. Perhaps it was because toads were naturally good at jumping. The tea-eyed toad's leap was several times faster than the poisonous hedgehog. When the poisonous hedgehog approached Gu Mingzhou, the tea-eyed toad had already arrived in front of Gu Mingzhou. It stuck out its long tongue and instantly hit Gu Mingzhou's body. Bang! Bang! The tea-eyed toad's long tongue looked soft, but it was very tough. The moment it touched Gu Mingzhou, it instantly broke the black silk net. Then, it quickly wrapped around Gu Mingzhou, who had escaped from the restraints. Buzz! Then, the tea-eyed toad's hind legs kicked in the air and jumped away. Just as the tea-eyed toad swept Gu Mingzhou away, the aggressive nine nether poisonous hedgehog directly crashed into the place where it had been. The void trembled, and the clouds changed color. In particular, the densely packed black spikes on the back of the nine nether poisonous hedgehog seemed to pierce through the sky, shining with a cold light. The attack was missed. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog turned around in the air. Its round black eyes stared at the teal-eyed toad that had jumped away and Gu Mingzhou, who was caught by the teal-eyed toad's long tongue. Damn toad! You dare to ruin this king's business. Are you tired of living? The roasted duck flew out of the nine nether poisonous hedgehog's mouth. It was like adding oil to the fire. It became even angrier and said with a ferocious face. The tea-eyed toad didn't respond to the nine nether poisonous hedgehog's threat. Instead, it threw Gu Mingzhou onto its back. Are you all right? The voice of Wu Ji Patriarch was heard. However, he was not answering the poisonous hedgehog but asking Gu Mingzhou. I'm fine. The black energy seems to be poisonous and can paralyze the body. Gu Mingzhou stood up from the back of the tea-eyed toad, which was covered in sarcomas. He moved a little to make sure that there was nothing wrong with his body. I'm afraid that the two of us aren't a match for the nine nether poisonous hedgehog. He furrowed his brows as he stared at the nine nether poisonous hedgehog. Judging from the strength displayed by the poisonous hedgehog, even if Gu Mingzhou and Wu Ji Patriarch, who had revealed his true form, joined forces, it would be difficult to defeat the other party. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog might even kill them. I know that even if you don't tell me. Wu Ji Patriarch said in dissatisfaction. Even though he had no choice, Wu Ji Patriarch chose to save Gu Mingzhou and form an alliance. However, his hatred for Gu Mingzhou did not diminish because of this. Gu Mingzhou did not care about Wu Ji Patriarch's dissatisfaction. Instead, he suddenly extended his right hand into the air, and a spear appeared in his hand. No matter what grudges we have, we must put them aside for now. The most important thing now is to work together and kill the poisonous hedgehog. Only then will we have a chance to live. Gu Mingzhou said. Humph. With just you two pieces of trash, you dare to say that you'll kill this king shamelessly. The poisonous hedgehog looked disdainful and snorted before the infinity patriarch could answer. I wonder if we can get rid of you, a demonic being. His voice was loud and clear, penetrating the ancient temple and soaring into the nine heavens. Before his voice had died away, two figures shot out from the north of the old temple and quickly flew toward the tea toad. Lu Yucheng, He Yuyang. Gu Mingzhou saw the person and said. The two people who had suddenly appeared were the brawny men, Lu Yucheng and He Yuyang, who had been lucky enough to escape Wei Lin's trap and hadn't been caught. 
What's going on, Wu Ji Patriarch? Why did you show your original form? He Yuliang stopped beside the tealied toad and teased. Lu Yuching directly bypassed the tealied toad and flew directly in front of Shang Wan Fei, instantly knocking away the fisherman guarding Shang Wan Fei and breaking the net imprisoning Shang Wan Fei. You can use spiritual energy. Shang Wan Fei caught on to the main point and did not care about himself but quickly asked Lu Yuching. It's all thanks to He Yuliang. He was the one who discovered this fruit that can allow us to absorb spiritual energy. Lu Yuching replied. Lu Yuching took out a bright red fruit and handed it to Shang Wan Fei. It was a fruit that looked like a strawberry, but it was two times bigger than it. It was bright red, like fresh blood, as if it was about to drip water. A fruit that can absorb spiritual energy. Essence fruit. Shang Wan Fei said in disbelief. The essence fruit was a magical fruit that replenished spiritual energy in the ancient world. The effect was several times more powerful than the crystal origin stone. At least, it could ensure a man in the mortal realm has a full supply of spiritual energy for 24 hours. It was extremely precious. However, the higher one's cultivation, the weaker the effect. But for Shang Wan Fei, it had the best effect and was extremely precious. Chapter 325 That's right. It's the essence fruit. In the air, he Yu Yang looked down at Shang Wan Fei. Seeing how excited he was, he could not help but smile. Island Master Shang Wan, I don't think I need to explain the effect of this fruit. Island Master Lu Yucheng and I went through countless hardships and searched the entire island to find this. When Lu Yucheng spoke, he subconsciously glanced at Gu Mingzhou, a little hesitant to speak. Before meeting Wei Lin, they would have definitely thought that Gu Mingzhou was the mastermind. Therefore, when they picked the fruit, they naturally only left it for Shang Wan Fei. Now that they found out that Gu Mingzhou wasn't the mastermind and that the main culprit was Wei Lin, who was the most unremarkable person in their eyes, the situation was a little awkward. However, it was obvious that they would not give it to Gu Mingzhou regardless of whether they had it or not. Due to Wei Lin's scheme, these people more or less began to doubt the river of forgetfulness tribulation. But deep down, they still had their guard up against Gu Mingzhou. Sheng Wan Fei had naturally thought of this as well, and his hand, which was holding the fruit, paused. The essence fruit wasn't a precious fruit. Island Master Sheng Wan, you're the expert with the highest cultivation here. Quickly recover your spiritual energy. Let's join forces to deal with this demonic beast. He Yu Yang urged. You're just a bunch of ants. So what if you can recover your spiritual energy? You all still have to die. The Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog suddenly opened its mouth. The back of the Nine Nether Poisonous Hedgehog arched slightly, and the dense black spikes flashed and suddenly shot toward the crowd. Dozens of thorns shot out at the same time in different directions. They were aimed at Gu Mingzhou, Lu Yucheng, and Shang Wan Fei. Although the poisonous hedgehog said so, it was still a little afraid and took action before Shang Wan Fei consumed the fruit. Since you're not afraid, why are you in such a hurry to attack? He Yu Yang had discovered the nine nether poisonous hedgehog's intention, and he suddenly thrust his palms toward the dozens of spikes. A fierce wind blew, and two streams of pure vital essence shot out from He Yu Yang's palms like flood dragons. It whistled through the air and instantly collided with the thorns. Dozens of thorns were destroyed and exploded in the void, shaking the air. You're looking for death. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog's anger grew even more intense with his thoughts exposed. He didn't waste any more time and directly pounced at He Yu Yang. How about we work together to repel the enemy today? Seeing this, He Yu Yang did not show any fear. Instead, he turned around and said to the tea lied toad. Then we'll have to see if you're qualified or not. The tea lied toad's bloody mouth opened and closed, and it spat out a deafening sound. The tea lied toad said without any hesitation. The mountain like body suddenly rushed toward the nine nether poisonous hedgehog with a whistling sound. Although the tea lied toad is a divine beast, I, the blue wave dragon, am not bad either. The dragon's roar was deafening, reverberating through the universe and shaking the nine heavens. He Yo Yang's body glowed with purple light. His spiritual energy circulated, 
and he transformed into a blue wave dragon. The blue wave dragon was a hundred meters long and as thick as a water tank. It coiled in the air and occupied half of the sky above the ancient temple. On the dragon's back, there were blue spikes that were surrounded by purple light, shining with a terrifying cold light. It made people shudder. The blue wave dragon swung its tail without hesitation. Its four claws stepped on the air and quickly rushed toward the nine nether poisonous hedgehog. At this moment, the nine nether poisonous hedgehog was already fighting with the teal eyed toad, and it was obviously at an advantage. Although the nine nether poisonous hedgehog wasn't as big as the teal eyed toad, it perfectly made use of its small size and kept moving around it. The thorns on its back glowed with cold light and kept stabbing out. Although the teal eyed toad had put up some defense, it was still pierced by several thorns. The thorns went three inches deep, and green blood flowed out continuously. Even so, the teal eyed toad wasn't afraid at all. It continued to fight with the nine nether poisonous hedgehog, trying to suppress it with its huge body. It kept attacking the nine nether poisonous hedgehog with its long tongue. Unfortunately, the nine nether poisonous hedgehog was obviously much stronger than the teal eyed toad in terms of cultivation base and strength. It was not afraid of the teal eyed toad's huge body at all. Moreover, the nine nether poisonous hedgehog's body was full of thorns, perfectly restraining the teal eyed toad's flexible long tongue, making it cower and not dare to attack. The teal eyed toad's attack was restrained, but the nine nether poisonous hedgehog was not. Its body was much smaller than the teal eyed toad's, but it moved nimbly in the air like lightning. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog dodged the mountain like body of the teal eyed toad once again. It seemed that it had already figured out the teal eyed toad's trick. It immediately let out a cry and soared into the sky. It instantly scuttled to the top of the teal eyed toad's head, and the thorns on its body flashed with light, shooting out countless thorns. Buzz! The sharp spikes pierced through the air and attacked the teal eyed toad. The teal eyed toad was at a disadvantage and was even injured. He Yu Yang, who had directly revealed his true form, arrived just in time. His thick dragon tail immediately swept out, shaking the void and carrying a terrifying power. It was incomparably fast as it suddenly swept toward the back of the teal eyed toad. The dragon's tail was fierce. It just so happened to pass the back of the teal eyed toad and directly sweep away the countless thorns shot out by the nine nether poisonous miasma. With the help of the blue wave dragon, the teal eyed toad finally had the time to dodge. It immediately used its hind legs to kick in the air, and its hill like body jumped away. You're just a long worm that sheds its skin. Do you really think you're a true dragon? Seeing that its attack was blocked and the teal eyed toad was able to escape from this fatal attack, the nine nether poisonous hedgehog immediately turned its anger to the blue wave dragon. As it spoke, its body which was suspended in mid-air, suddenly disappeared without any visible movement. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog suddenly appeared on the head of the blue wave dragon. It immediately stretched out its sharp claws and clawed at the dragon's head. The blue wave dragon was obviously prepared for this. It sensed the danger above its head and let out a dragon roar. Its body immediately shook in the void and twisted its body to avoid the attack. The dragon head that had avoided the sharp claws of the nine nether poisonous hedgehog suddenly turned around in the void. They took the opportunity to bite the nine nether poisonous hedgehog. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog quickly dodged to the side to avoid the blue wave dragon's attack. At this moment, a figure as large as a small mountain suddenly descended from the sky and crashed into the nine nether poisonous miasma. The teal eyed toad was trying to sneak attack the nine nether poisonous hedgehog. You're looking for death. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog's round eyes shot out two fierce lights. It didn't retreat. Instead, it fearlessly changed its direction and charged toward the teal eyed toad. You're looking for death. Let's see if I don't smash you into a meat patty. The teal eyed toad was immediately overjoyed. An endless amount of spiritual energy surrounded his huge body, shaking the void as he smashed toward the nine nether poisonous hedgehog with even more ferocity. In the teal eyed toad's eyes, although the nine nether poisonous hedgehog was powerful, it would win without a doubt if they really collided. The body that was like a small mountain wasn't fake. It really existed. 
With just the weight of his body, he could instantly smash an adult into a meat patty. Now, with the addition of spiritual energy, it made it as hard as a rock. A teal-eyed toad like this would naturally win if it were to clash with the nine nether poisonous hedgehog. Chapter 326 When the teal-eyed toad was full of confidence, he Yu-Yang, the blue wave dragon, turned around and suddenly opened his mouth to remind it nervously. Be careful. Before he Yu-Yang could finish his words, the teal-eyed toad and the poisonous hedgehog of the netherworld had already met each other. Seeing that the two sides were about to collide, the nine nether poisonous hedgehog rolled its round eyes. He suddenly changed his direction and turned around in a strange manner. He changed from charging upwards to descending, and he stuck close to the teal-eyed toad's lower jaw as he drilled into its abdomen. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog changed its position so quickly that the teal-eyed toad didn't have time to react. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog had already slid close to the teal-eyed toad's body and slid to the softest part of the teal-eyed toad's abdomen. The spikes on the back of the nine nether poisonous hedgehog suddenly stood up, shining with cold light and sharp. Pfft. The densely packed spikes on the back of the nine nether poisonous hedgehog instantly pierced through the teal-eyed toad's abdomen, penetrating several feet deep and causing green blood to spurt out. Right at this moment, the blue wave dragon arrived once again. Its vigorous and powerful dragon claws suddenly stretched out and instantly grabbed the back of the teal-eyed toad. At the same time, the dragon tail struck out again, sticking close to the blue eyes toad's belly and suddenly sweeping toward the poisonous hedgehog. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog didn't dare to take it head on, and immediately retreated. The departure of the poisonous hedgehog had pulled out the countless thorns that had penetrated deep into the teal-eyed toad's abdomen, and green blood gushed out again. The secondary damage caused the teal-eyed toad even more pain. Its body, which was as large as a small mountain, could not help but twitch. It pulled the blue wave dragon that was grabbing it. The two behemoths and ferocious beasts immediately shook violently in the void. In an instant, the weather changed, the void shook, and a strong wind blew. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog that had jumped away took the opportunity to attack. It turned its body, stepped on the air, arched its back, and shot out dense sharp spikes. Thousands of thorns glittered with cold light and shot toward the blue wave dragon and blue eye toad. Hall Master He and Wu Ji Patriarch are in danger. Lu Yucheng, who was urging Shangguan Fei to eat the fruit, said nervously. Island Master Shangguan, quickly take the essence vitality fruit and recover your cultivation. I'll go help you first. Without waiting for Shangguan Fei's reply, Lu Yucheng immediately leaped up and quickly flew toward He Yuliang and the Infinity Sex Ancestor. A dragon roar similar to that of the Blue Water Dragon was heard. The pure dragon roar was still deafening, but it was much more pleasant than the blue wave dragons. It made those who heard it feel as if it was the sound of nature. What is this? Gu Mingzhou looked at Lu Yucheng, who was flying up into the sky, and his face was full of doubt. Lu Yucheng's next change solved all the doubts in Gu Mingzhou's heart. As the dragon roared, Lu Yucheng's body suddenly burst forth with endless golden light. The human figure disappeared, and a golden dragon that was the same size as the blue wave dragon suddenly appeared in the sky. It looked like it was made of gold and was extremely exquisite. The moment the golden dragon appeared, it moved like lightning. Gu Mingzhou did not even have time to take a closer look before it suddenly disappeared. It instantly appeared in front of the entangled blue wave dragon and the teal-eyed toad. It circled in the void and roared angrily at the thousands of thorns that were shooting toward it. A dragon's roar that was even louder than before resounded, shaking everyone's hearts. The invisible sound wave followed the dragon's roar. With the golden dragon as the starting point, it whizzed forward and instantly swept across the densely packed thorns. Thousands of thorns were swept by this sound wave and broke in half like rotten wood, floating between heaven and earth. After cutting off the thorns, a hundred-meter-long golden dragon extended its claws and grabbed the teal-eyed toad and the blue-wave flood dragon. The moment the golden dragon took away the blue-wave dragon and the teal-eyed toad, the countless thorns floating in the air exploded, shaking the void and setting off a storm. They turned into countless black lights and swept across the sky above the ancient temple. The storm raged for a long time, covering the sky and the sun. 
It was extremely terrifying. It's a five-clawed golden dragon. I didn't expect you all to be hidden talent. This king has really underestimated you. The nine nether poisonous hedgehog wasn't as angry as before. Instead, he was a little surprised as he stared at the blue wave dragon, teal-eyed toad, and the giant golden dragon that had just appeared. As long as I devour you, this king's cultivation will definitely enter the demon supreme realm. Ha ha ha. The more the nine nether poisonous hedgehog spoke, the happier it became. It was as if the three giant beasts in front of it had become delicious food. You're talking big. It's just a magical beast, yet it dares to boast about devouring. Simply courting death. The golden dragon that Lu Yucheng had transformed into snorted coldly in response to the nine nether poisonous hedgehog. I'm a real demon king, comparable to a cultivator in the earth realm. This king doesn't put you ants in his eyes. In the face of Lu Yucheng's disdain, the nine nether poisonous hedgehog also showed its tyrannical side and also disdained to respond. Without waiting for He Yo Yang's reply, the similarly large blue wave dragon Lu Yucheng opened his bloody mouth and proudly said. Seeing the situation clearly, Gu Mingzhou did not stand by and watch. He immediately joined the battle. When He Yuliang and the others saw that Gu Mingzhou, who had been watching from the side for a long time, had suddenly joined in, they instantly had different looks in their eyes. There was disdain, doubt, and praise. So what if you're the demon king? Now that the four of us are working together, we can even fight against cultivators in the earth realm. He directly ignored the gazes of the three people. We share a common enemy. How can I be absent in such a great battle? Let's fight this fiend together. Sheng Wan Fei was full of vigor as he circled around the old temple, penetrating the sky. Obviously, in this short moment, Sheng Wan Fei recovered his cultivation with the help of the fruit and joined the battlefield. The essence fruit is really a good thing. Gu Mingzhou glanced at Sheng Wan Fei beside him and thought to himself. Although Sheng Wan Fei was still dressed in rags and unkempt, he was still very handsome. However, the gloominess from before was swept away. His face was bright, and he changed his body to be surrounded by spiritual energy as a pressure burst out. Although he wasn't at his peak, he had recovered 70 to 80 percent of his cultivation. Ha ha ha. Today, we'll join hands and destroy this heretic. The winding golden dragon opened its mouth and let out a deafening sound. Lu Yocheng's suddenness instantly caught Gu Mingzhou's attention. It was only now that he could clearly see the golden dragon that Lu Yucheng had transformed into. This golden dragon was exactly the same as the divine dragon in the legends. Upon closer inspection, it indeed had rabbit eyes, deer horns, cow mouth, camel head, clam belly, tiger paws, eagle claws, fish scales, and a snake body, making it look sacred and solemn. However, it wasn't as pleasing to the eye as the legend said. It looked more ferocious and terrifying than other demonic beasts. Even Gu Mingzhou, who had stepped into the ranks of cultivators, felt his heart throb and a cold wind blow across his back. I didn't think that the ordinary Lu Yocheng's true body would be the incarnation of a true dragon. Gu Mingzhou thought to himself when he saw the golden dragon's appearance. He had a basic understanding of four of the five people who had entered this place. Before, he did not understand how Lu Yucheng had gained the trust of Sheng Wan Fei, He Yuliang, and others. Now, Gu Mingzhou had a sudden realization. Chapter, 327 A storm was brewing. After discussing with the other sects in the New World, the Profound Heavenly Sword sect was prepared to make a comeback and return to the Central Plains. If this group of people returned to the Great World, they would definitely stir up a storm. It wasn't just the people of the New World who couldn't sit still. Even the sects far away in the Outer Realms couldn't help it. After all, the Nine Prefectures' cauldrons were too tempting, and no one wanted to miss out on such a treasure. However, after Shen Chang's death, everyone's expressions changed when they mentioned the powerful He Chuan. Fortunately, He Chuan was a state duke and rarely moved around in the cultivation world or the pugilistic world. Otherwise, this group of people would not know what to do. Learning martial arts and depending on the imperial court was one thing, but other things were another. No matter who it was, who would care about the icing on the cake? 
When the Wudang sect had been attached to the imperial court, He Chuan had not displayed such powerful means. Now that He Chuan was in charge of the Zhou dynasty, nothing would happen to them. If they tried to suck up to the imperial court, Empress Changning might not care. Time passed in the great world in a flash. Lia and Kai Lian were very coincidental as they both gave birth on the same day. He Chuan stood calmly outside the door. He didn't look anxious at all, because with his strength, even if something unexpected happened, he would be able to take care of it. Zhou Shui was very much looking forward to this. After the two ants entered the delivery room, she would have new playmates. It was Zhou Ming's fault for not liking to play with her. Mother and daughter are safe. Congratulations to the state duke for having a little princess. The midwife came out with the child in her arms and carefully handed it to He Chuan. Reward. All of them will be rewarded. He Chuan carefully took over his and Kai Lian's daughter. Zhou Shui stood on her little feet and looked at the newborn baby curiously. Daddy, little sister is so dark. It was Zhou Shui's first time seeing a newborn. She was surprised to see her younger sister's dark and ugly appearance. Silly girl, all newborn babies are like this. You were much uglier than your sister back then. He Chuan carried the baby into the delivery room. Zhou Shui subconsciously touched her face when she heard that she was uglier than her sister. She had inherited He Chuan and Changning's outstanding genes. How could a fair little beauty like her believe that she was so ugly in the past? Liener, you've worked hard. He Chuan said softly as he coaxed his distressed little daughter and held Kai Lian's hand. Husband, why don't you give your daughter a name? Kai Lian usually called him young master and rarely called him husband. Now that she saw the fruit of their love, she blurted out the word husband. Hia, didn't Lianer wish for your daughter to be more elegant and dignified? Why don't we name her Hia? He Chuan placed Hia, who was sleeping soundly, next to colorful Kai Lian and held her soft and tender hand tightly. Hia, you'll be called Hia from now on. Kai Lian gently patted her daughter in her arms, her face full of motherly radiance. He Chuan ordered the palace maids to take good care of Kai Lian and also arranged for two wet nurses to enter the palace. After consoling Kai Lian, he immediately rushed to the delivery room to wait. An hour later, Lia also successfully gave birth and gave birth to a baby girl. Her name was He Yingying, and she was also known as Princess Wencheng. Her status was different from Kai Lian's. Not only was she He Chuan's woman, but she was also the king of the prairie. So, He Yingying was born with the status of a princess. However, Kai Lian didn't care about this at all, because she knew how cold the royal family was. Her daughter could choose her own life in the future, so how could it not be a kind of happiness? It's a pity that I was unable to give birth to a young master for my husband. Lia leaned into He Chuan's arms and looked at her adorable daughter as she spoke gently. Don't let your imagination run wild. I've said before that I like daughters the most. Now that there are so many daughters in the house, I want to live in seclusion in the mountains and enjoy the happiness of my family. He Chuan pinched Leah's nose and said with a smile. He placed the little girl in the baby cot, her pink face making people want to kiss her. It's a pity that I only have Ying as my daughter now. I'm afraid I'll be criticized by the ministers when the time comes. I can only blame my belly for not being able to live up to expectations. Lia wanted a son and had made all sorts of wishes before, but unfortunately, her wishes did not come true. It wasn't that he liked sons, but as a female king of the prairie, she needed more heirs, just like Empress Changning, to avoid having no one inherit the throne after she died. With me around, they will all grow up without any illness or disaster, and there will be no premature deaths. He Chuan's face was filled with black lines. How could he not understand Leah's underlying meaning? She clearly wanted He Chuan to work harder so that they could have more babies. Wa Wa He Yingying seemed to know that her mother was unhappy and immediately started crying. Baby, be good. Mother will feed you. Leah's motherly love immediately burst forth as she carefully picked up her daughter with a blissful smile on her face. He Chuan didn't try to hide or anything. He knew Leah's body very well, even where she had a mole. If my husband has the time, please help me and Sister Changning more. After all, 
the country guarantees that the heir will be the successor. Liya said coquettishly as she fed He Yingying. She knew that under such circumstances, her lover would definitely not reject her. Normally, He Chuan would neither reject nor agree to it. But at this moment, Liya had just given birth to a well-behaved daughter for him, so he could not bear to say no. Mm. If we have time, we'll study it again. He Chuan caressed Liya's face and finally agreed. Liya revealed a happy smile. He Chuan had been very relaxed recently. He taught Zhou Ming and Zhou Shui when he had nothing to do, or he would hug He Yingying and He Ye every day. Zhou Shui was very confused about this. Why was she and her brother surnamed Zhou, but her two younger sisters surnamed He? After He Chuan's patient explanation, Zhou Shui finally understood the specific situation. Fortunately, Zhou Shui was more cautious and did not request to change her surname to He. Otherwise, He Chuan and Empress Changning would have a headache. I heard that a cultivation sect has appeared recently, and they're taking in a large number of disciples. It looks like they're going to expand the sect. Empress Changning lay in He Chuan's arms, her straight legs resting on He Chuan's stomach. Her languidness was heart stirring. After a discussion, the cultivation sects in the New World finally decided to return to the Great World. The Central Plains was the best place to establish a sect. If they wanted to maintain their current position, they had to accept disciples from all over the world. Otherwise, it would be suppressed by the rising martial arts sects. However, the seven major sects of the Central Plains were very dissatisfied with this group of newly emerged cultivation sects. After all, their appearance meant the decline of the seven great sects. Between cultivation and martial arts, it was easy for everyone to know which one to choose. It was definitely the cultivation sect. Then martial arts would gradually decline. Therefore, the seven major sects were also recruiting under the banner of cultivation, competing with the cultivation sects. However, they all started with martial arts and couldn't be compared to the cultivation sects that had been passed down for thousands of years. It doesn't matter. Their appearance means the arrival of a cultivation generation. As long as the Zhou dynasty can guarantee the emergence of cultivators, they will surpass them one day. He Chuan said disapprovingly. With his help, the Zhou dynasty would not be any worse than the cultivation sects.